three years ago, Earth underwent a cataclysm. The animals and plants in the world started to change and evolve crazily and inexplicably. The entirety of human civilization was hit hard with countless casualties. In order to protect the world from being destroyed and uphold world peace, humans have awakened the ability to control monsters and use them to fight. He is a normal high school student whose parents were killed during the cataclysm. However, not only he does have a powerful and mysterious beauty protecting him, he even awakened a mysterious system and when it comes to taming and raising monsters, he shall reign supreme. However, the Earth's cataclysm also caused the bizarre disappearance of his grandfather. In the face of deadly dangers that are coming one after another, there is only one path he can take, and that is to become powerful and become the strongest monster trainer, also to succeed in evolving an epic-grade familiar. However, in the future, he will one day realize that the epic-grade monster evolution is just the beginning. Our main protagonist's name is Gao Peng. He is 18 years old, a student at Chang'an Third Senior High School, and his dream is to become the Imperial Ambassador. Gao Peng was walking home while wondering why he often sees some strange interfaces and think he was hallucinating because of the stress recently. Gao Peng opened the gate of the apartment and started to walk upstairs. Suddenly he noticed something and confirmed that he was not hallucinating. The virtual screen said the monster's name is Grey Disc Spider, it was level 3, its status is healthy and irritable. Also the monster's weakness is flame. Gao Peng remembers that the spider owned by Grandma Chen and his teacher Murong said that Grey Disc Spiders are very gentle. Suddenly the spider attacked him, fortunately, he avoided it but he was shocked. Gao Peng was running to the stairs while calling Granny Chen's name because her spider came out to bite people. The spider got up and attacked him again but Gao Peng avoided it, and run again. Suddenly when he looked back the spider was near to him, and while he was panicking he remembered that the spider was weak in flame. Then he lit the lighter and throw it at the spider. The spider burns and collapsed to the ground but he realizes that the fire is too small, then the monster gets up and looked at him angrily. Gao Peng realizes it and starts to run while thinking he needs to pass one more floor and he'll be home because Big Purple is at his home. Gao Peng continues to run while the spider follows him and attacks him. Gao Peng finally arrive at his room door, but suddenly the spider jumped toward him. Gao Peng called Big Purple and it opens his door room, then attack the spider. Big Purple come out into the room, which made the spider shake in fear. Gao Peng asks the spider if it still wants to play with the Big Purple in his back. The spider crawls up to the ceiling quickly and runs. Gao Peng said it was a fast runner. Suddenly Big Purple said she want to eat and asks him why he was so late and he's starving her to death. The monsters are divided into a total of two forms, the combat form and the non-combat form. In the non-combat states, the monster will reduce its size to reduce energy consumption and can also slowly recover some minor damage. Also, when the owner bond with a monster, they can communicate with it telepathically, and his monster named is Dazzy's. Gao Peng pat Da Zai's head and said he'll cook for her. He enters the kitchen and asks Da Zai's to put his bag on the cabinet. Then he prepares himself to start showing his real skill. Gao Peng chops the meat and other ingredients, then prepare his special nutrition dinner. Da Zai smells her food and then eats it. Gao Peng reminds Da Zai to eat slowly and then checks Da Zai's data. Da Zai monster's name is purple-backed yellow-clawed centipede. She was level 7, and her attribute was yin and poison system. Da Zai's status is healthy and happy, also her weakness is thunder flame. Suddenly Gao Peng saw that Da Zai is upgraded from a normal quality monster to a promotion of elite quality. The quality of monsters is divided into ordinary quality, elite quality, and perfect quality from low to high. The higher the quality of the monster, the greater its potential of the monster. Gao Peng thinks if Da Zai can be promoted to elite quality it means she can be promoted to perfect quality that can break through the legendary barrier and rise to the rank of a leader. Gao Peng hugs Da Zai and promises to make her promoted to elite quality, which made Da Zai confused. Gao Peng clicked the quality requirements and saw that he need 10 pieces of Yin Shangzheng, one piece of Thunder Wood, and one piece of Thunder Crystal Core. He thinks he can get Shangzheng Grass easily by spending little money. He can get lightning wood too but lightning crystal core is troublesome, and the common 5 crystal core cost 8 credits. Gao Peng thinks it was expensive, then he closed the virtual screen. After the formation of the New World Alliance, the common currency was established as the Union Currency, and credits, then credits are premium currency based on affiliate coins, 10,000 affiliate coins can be exchanged for 1 credit point. When his mother and father had their accident, the state paid out 20 credit points of pension, and he still has 11 credits on hand, which is barely enough to get the materials for Da Zai's promotion. Gao Peng looked at Da Zai and thinks his credits is just to upgrade Da Zai, and he won't be able to get through the rest of the days. Dazzy eats all of her food but she is still hungry and asks Gao Peng for more. Gao Peng reminds her that she was a centipede, but Da Zai interrupts his words by shouting she's hungry, which made Gao Peng said okay. 
Zhao Peng gives another bowl of food to Da Zai and watched her eat it while thinking the method of promotion is empty but he doesn't have money to buy materials. Suddenly he thinks that if the information on the system is correct, then maybe he could become a monster trainer. Gao Peng thinks when the time comes, he can have as much money as he wants. Suddenly he remembers his teacher saying that tomorrow there will be a monster trainer exam, and interested students can go with their parents to see it. Gao Peng immediately opened his phone because he doesn't know when the registration period will be closed. When he opened the apps he saw that the deadline was only 3 minutes left. He immediately clicks yes to apply for the monster trainer exam. But the system was busy and he needs to wait. Fortunately, he was successful in registration and he was happy to catch up. The next day, Gao Peng knocks on the neighbor's door. The neighbor named Tang Tang opens the door, and Gao Peng greets her good morning shyly. Tang Tang asks Gao Peng why he wants to see him so early. Gao Peng said he was going to take the monster trainer's exam and he asks if she can take care of Da Zai for a few days. Tang Tang happily accepts his request, and Gao Peng thanks her because he's able to take his exam with peace of mind. Then he left while saying he'll treat her to dinner when he gets back. Suddenly Tang Tang look at Da Zai disgusted because Da Zai's qualifications are ordinary and she was not cute. Then she asked Da Zai how Gao Peng get involved with such an unlucky plaything like her. This made Da Zai angry, but Tang Tang petted Da Zai's head and said the old man will be furious when he find out. The two enter the room, then Tang Tang called the old man. Tang Tang said Gao Peng signed an imperial beast, an ordinary quality purple-backed yellow-clawed centipede, which made the old man angry and tell her to talk to Gao Peng. Tang Tang asks the old man how he can persuade Gao Peng when he is exactly the same as him, and on the surface, Gao Peng doesn't care about anything. But in reality, he is stubborn like an ox, and Da Zai was left by his daughter and son-in-law. Tang Tang changes the topic and asks the old man if he's done with his business. Tang Tang tells the old man that they kill all the disobedient people, and replace them with obedient ones. Tang Tang was looking at Gao Peng in the window assuring the old man to not worry because as long as she was with Gao Peng he won't be in danger. Then she hung up. Meanwhile, in the company, Chairman called his secretary and ordered her to tell the lab that he only give them five months, and if they don't work for him, they don't need to exist. The chairman swing his hand to make the secretary leave, then the secretary agree and vowed. The chairman looks at his phone while saying Gao Peng within a year, everything will be solved and then he will go to meet him, and no one can hurt him. At the Chang'an City Monster Division, many people are waiting to go inside. Gao Peng says that, the monster trainers are really a hot commodity because there are a lot of people, suddenly someone called his name. When he looked back he saw Lai Zigong calling for him. Gao Peng walked to Lai Zigong and saw that he was with her sister named Lai Hongdu and his mother named Jiang Hong. Gao Peng greeted Jiang Hong, then Lai Zigong said there are in Chang'an to take the exam with their mom, and Jiang Hong asked if he comes alone to watch the monster trainer's exam. Lai Zigong said his sister was also there to take the exam even though she did not pass the exam three times which made Lai Hong do angry, then hit him with her bag. Suddenly Gao Peng said he was there to take the exam, which made everyone shocked. Jiang Hong held onto his shoulder and said young people should be ambitious and maybe he become the youngest monster trainer in Chang'an. Gao Peng shyly responded that he was not good as Jiang Hong said and that he just came to try his luck. Suddenly someone asks if Jiang Hong was talking about the youngest monster trainer in Chang'an City, then he asks in a mocking tone when did the threshold for monster trainers become so low that any dog or cat can participate. Lai Zigong got angry but Lai Hong do stop him. The man said he thought it was ridiculous that even a kid wants to be a trainer. Suddenly Gao Peng said if he can become a trainer by talking. He must already be a senior monster trainer, which made the man angry. Then the man shouted at Gao Peng as a warning. Jiang Hong said the man named Wang Shu, the son of the Wang group, and Wang Shu failed four consecutive monster trainers exams. Suddenly the people noticed that the door of the building is opening. Then a guard comes out with the man. The man named Feng Zhu, chief examiner of Chang and Monster Trainers Division. Feng Zhu announced that the Monster Trainers exam is starting and asked everyone to take the test in an orderly manner. When everyone was inside the building, Feng Zhu welcomed them and explained that the exam is divided into two levels, the literary test and the martial arts test. Feng Zhu said that their first test is a written test, three videos will be shown on the big screen, and they will pass if they accurately describe the monsters that appear in the video. Without further ado, the examination begins. The big screen showed a dolphin swimming under the water, then showed its heads outside the water. The video ended fast, which made the examiners shock. Feng Zhu said it was the first video, and they have 20 minutes to think about their answers. Examiners were panicking because they can identify the monster in a short period of time. Feng Zhu shouts that anyone who makes any more noise will be punished as cheating and will be expelled from the examination room, which made everyone silent. 
Wang Xu thinks that the literary test this year is hardest than in past years, but he got the exam question in advance. Suddenly Wang Xu noticed Gao Peng smiling, and he thought Gao Peng was pretending. On other hand, Gao Peng was happy because he can see the monster's data, dolphin named was Storm Dolphin. The Storm Dolphin likes soothing music, sunbathing, and eating all kind of fish and shrimp. The dolphin also fears dark attribute attacks and hate cluttered sound waves. Gao Peng immediately write all he saw in his paper test. The second video was in the forest with the gorilla getting a banana in the tree, and suddenly the gorilla saw the videographer, then throw a banana at the videographer and hide behind the three. Gao Peng saw that the gorilla named Mighty Gorilla, it's like to climb trees and eat bananas, the gorilla had an impatient personality, and it easily angered, also he fears poisonous monster attacks. Gao Peng immediately writes the monster data on his paper. The last video is still in the forest with a mantis on the ground. The mantis saw the videographer and it jump into the trees. Gao Peng saw that the mantis named Scythe Mantis, it's fighting for courage and strength. The Scythe Mantis is a carnivorous monster, it likes to eat all kinds of insects, and it fears fire and flame attacks. Gao Peng smiles because he knows he passed the test. The time was up, and Feng Zhu said that the paper will be collected. The other man collects all the paper, and he lastly collects Gao Peng papers and then said that he should wait at the building for his test result. One hour later, Feng Zhu was holding the paper, while saying the result of the examination are out, and he will announce the list of qualified persons. Feng Zhu called for Zhang Hong, Wang Shu, and others. Feng Zhu said all of the examiners made some mistakes, but they passed their exam, and he wished these candidates the best of luck in their martial arts exam. Wang Shu asks Gao Peng why he didn't pass the test in a mocking tone. Gao Peng didn't say a word and he wonder if there was a mistake in the data given by the system. Suddenly Feng Zhu asks who is Gao Peng. Gao Peng immediately stand up and raised his hand. Feng Zhu said he didn't expect that the candidate who scored perfect on the test would be so young and he tell that the heroes are really young, while clapping. Everyone was shocked because he perfect the exam at a young age. Gao Peng look at Wang Xu and set a perfect score on the written exam. And Gao Peng apologized for letting Wang Xu down in a sarcastic tone which made Wang Xu angry. Feng Zhu assists the past examiners to the other part of the building. When everyone enters the place, Feng Zhu welcomes them to the second exam of the martial test, and explained that the marital arts test is very simple. There are monsters provided by the association in the room, and they only have to improve the quality of the monster within a week to pass. All materials consumed during the evaluation will be provided by the association but if they fail to improve the quality they have to pay the market price. Also, every material had a certain amount, and if the amount exceeded too much it was considered a failure which made Gao Peng and others worried. Feng Zhu claps his hand, then the supervisor of Chang'an's monsters division named Lai Jin showed holding a red box, and asks everyone to take a card for their room one by one. Everyone lines up and then grabs cards in the box one by one. While Gao Peng was waiting in line, he thinks that there is no way to know what kind of monster he will encounter in this random selection process, and no wonder everyone said that the monster trainer's certificate is one of the most difficult certificates to obtain. On other hand, Wang Xu was looking at Gao Peng while thinking that Gao Peng should be proud of himself for a while because he'll see him later. Gao Peng was grabbing his cards wishing that he can draw a good card. When Gao Peng was done and walked past by Lai Jin, Lai Jin smiled in a mocking way. Zhang Hong walked towards Gao Peng and said she get room number 6, then asks Gao Peng what he get. Gao Peng said he got room 10. When everyone had a room card, Feng Zhu asks them to find their room according to the room card they have drawn, and he announces that the martial arts examination officially begins. Gao Peng arrived at his room and meet the person in charge of room 10 named Zhu Yuan. Zhu Yuan opened the room. Gao Peng was nervous waiting to fully open the door and saw the ape monster behind the cage. Gao Peng saw that the monster's status was negative lesions and pre-abolished. Gao Peng asked Zhu Yuan what happened to the Red River Ape. Zhu Yuan responded that too many experiments have accumulated, a lot of waste and conflicting energy in the ape's body. Zhu Yuan tell him that the ape should have been eliminated, but there are no more monsters left in the association for him to train. In reality, before the examination, Zhu Yuan asked Lai Jin why he put the ape on the assessment list, but Lai Jin just responded that he shouldn't worry about it, because he have his own agenda. Then Lai Jin called Wang Xu to confirm that his work was done, and guarantee that Gao Peng will not be able to pass the martial arts test. Zhu Yuan said that the ape has been able to survive until now solely on its own perseverance, but the possibility of it being promoted is too low, and he can help him apply and keep the result of the written exam, then he can take the martial exam next time. Gao Peng looked at the ape, then Gao Peng thanked Zhu Yuan for his kind words, but he decided to continue the exam. Zhu Yuan agreed, then left the room. Gao Peng stood in the ape front, which made the ape shake in fear. Zhu Yuan thinks the material and dosage of the culture solution are correct, 
but it's not effective. He also thinks that there is a serious conflict between energy in the ape body, and the Red River ape is hopeless and completely ruined. The ape grabs the bar of its cage, then roar at Gao Peng with tears in its eye. Suddenly Gao Peng petted the ape's head, then said don't worry because he'll definitely help him evolve. Gao Peng opened the Red River Ape promotion to elite quality. He saw that it have two promotion routes, the normal evolution and the advance of lesion distortion. He thinks that the normal way of evolution required too many materials to be consumed. Gao Peng realizes that the ape exceeded the number of materials given for the examination, and he knows that he'll have to take a risk. Gao Peng choose the advanced lesion distortion material and then write the ingredients he needs like black candle grass, undead monster crystal core, luminous powder, sulfuric acid water, skeleton mushroom, and grass knot. Gao Peng handed the paper to Zhu Yuan. Zhu Yuan read all the ingredients and realized that all ingredients are full of toxic. Then he asks Gao Peng if he's going to train the ape or kill it. Gao Peng responded that a serious disease needs a strong cure, and he assured Zhu Yuan that he knows what he's doing. Then he closed the door, leaving Zhu Yuan confused. Zhu Yuan thinks Gao Peng full marks on the written exam were just luck and he's another guy who can only talk about things on paper. Three days later, one examiner was beaten by the monsters but still wanted to take another test. The other one almost made the monster promoted. But something went wrong, and someone was going crazy because his scientific experiments were no effect. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks that the interface solution is correct. The black candle grass healed the wounds in the ape's body, and after eating black candle grass for three days in a row, the ape's spirit and condition reached a brief peak. Gao Peng also saw that the undead monster's cores are starting to take effect. Then Gao Peng looked at the key in his hand while saying he just need to put the ape in sulfuric acid water and soak it. Zhu Yun give the key to him while warning him to be careful because the ape has been tested and tortured many times. Gao Peng thinks it's difficult for the monsters to communicate in complex ways without a blood contract, but he comes so far and he can only choose to believe. Gao Peng tells the ape that he'll let him out, but he needs to be obedient. Then Gao Peng opens the cage, then order him to come out with open arms. The ape run towards him, which made him shocked, but the ape hug him. Gao Peng petted its heads while saying that they need to go because it was important to help him get promoted. Gao Peng stands up and opened the curtains where the sulfuric acid water was. Gao Peng ordered the ape to lie in and take a dip in the acidic water while assuring the ape that it will be transformed. The ape picks some hair in its body, then throws it into the acidic water. The hair produced smoke, which made the ape shocked in fear. The ape turned to Gao Peng and then shake its head. Gao Peng touched its head and said he can give the ape strength, but it must be courageous which made the ape thinks. The ape finally has courage, then goes into the sulfuric acid water, and when the ape is fully soaked, the smoke comes out from it, which made Gao Peng cough and alerted the smoke detector. The operator saw that the fire alarm was triggered in room 10. Then he called the security officer for help. Zhu Yun grabbed the fire extinguisher, then walked toward room 10 with the other security officer, which made the other examiners confused. On other hand, Wang Xu thinks his money was not spent in vain because Lai Jin is reliable. The security officer arrives at room 10, then Zhu Yuan kicked the door. When they were inside, they were confused because there was no fire, only smoke. Gao Peng notices them and asks Zhu Yuan what brings them into the room. Zhu Yuan point to the fire detector and tells to Gao Peng that he made a lot of noise, and that they were there to check on him. Gao Peng apologized for the scene he made, then the other security officer leave while Zhu Yuan called the operator that room 10 is clear. Feng Zhu enters the room with Lai Jin while asking what happened. Zhu Yuan whispered the current situation to Feng Zhu which made Feng Zhu shocked. On other hand, the other examiners were outside the room talking about Gao Peng being inexperienced, with Wang Shu thinking Gao Peng's experiment failed. Suddenly, the acidic water in the bathtub boil, then a skeletal hand pops up, and then the skeletal face, which made Wang Shu and the other examiners shocked in fear. The monster stands up, then gets out of the bathtub which made the ground break and made everyone in the room stun. The monster looks at Gao Peng, and Gao Peng knows that he successfully completed the evolution of the Red River Ape. The monster's new name was the Babel Bone Dead Ape, his level is 11. His quality is elite, and his attribute is undead. The monster's status was weak but excited, also its weakness is light. Gao Peng checks the ape's new body with happiness. On other hand, Lai Jin said that the Babel Bone Dead Ape was a new type of monster that has never been discovered. Feng Zhu thinks Lai Jin was correct. But the truly precious is not the monster, but the one who created the monster. Gao Peng suddenly notices Feng Zhu in the back and looks back to say that he succeeded. Suddenly the monster grabs his coat, then Gao Peng look at it. Gao Peng touched its finger and said he was done helping it to improve its quality, which made the monster sad. On the other hand, Lai Jin thinks the monsters that are promoted are usually given to the employees of the association as rewards, and he wants to get the rare monsters. Suddenly Feng Zhu said that the monster is very dependent on Gao Peng, and in that case, he'll give the monster to Gao Peng 
which made Lai Jin, Zhu Yuan and Gao Peng shocked. Feng Zio confirmed that he was giving the monster to Gao Peng, but Gao Peng still can believe it. Fun Ziu explains that the battle bone dead ape monster is not recorded, and the data on all aspects are unknown. However, it looks like the upgrade was successful, then Feng Ziu asks if he wants to take the monster. Gao Peng looked at the monster and saw that the monster can be promoted to epic. Zhu Yuan holds Gao Peng's shoulder while saying that the ape really wanted to go with him and that he shouldn't leave it. Suddenly Lai Jin protests at Feng Ziu because, in the association's rule, the successfully evolved monsters are usually awarded to the association's employees, and the ape has been tested six times. Suddenly Wang Xu shouted that the monster should have been eliminated. Then Lai Jin said to have such an advanced monster is certainly not something that a young age person and no experience can do. Then Wang Xu shouted that Gao Peng must have cheated. Feng Zhu asks what kind of cheating Wang Xu talking about. Lai Jin responds that the difficulty of the exam is far beyond what the junior trainer can handle. And maybe Gao Peng just happened to know some method somewhere and accidentally cured the monster, so the result may not be the true level of Gao Peng. Feng Zhu asks what he means in his words. Lai Jin responded that the result is successful, and the certificate that should be combined is still given to Gao Peng, but the monster should still follow the usual rule. Suddenly Feng Zhu laughed hard, then said he's not strict in discipline, and there are not many monsters in Chang'an, so he doesn't know how to raise the monster, then he asks Gao Peng to show his skills, to let them know that there is a world beyond. Gao Peng said he just came to get the certificate, then he asks how did he get into trouble. Gao Peng looked at Wang Shu while saying he was young, so he must cheat it on tests. Then he looked at Lai Jin and said Lai Jin can't do it, but he can do it, so he's just blind. Gao Peng asks them if others can do it, they think it's impossible, so there must be something fishy. Gao Peng explained that the name of the Red River Ape has a river on it. It's just because the ape group lives and multiplies by the Hongshui River, in fact, the ape attributes have nothing to do with water because there is a river in the monster's name. And judging by the ape's previous state, there is more than one idiot who made such a judgment and gives the ape a large amount of water and yin materials to swallow. Also, the past examiners didn't know the weakness of the ape is the yin system, and if they didn't know common sense knowledge, they lived their age in vain. Suddenly Wang Xu shout that the weakness of the ape is the wood system and Gao Peng was wrong. Then Feng Zhu said although the ape will have a fearful response to the wood system, its weakness is indeed the yin system, which made Wang Xu silence. Gao Peng explained that the strength of the Red River ape's body goes deep into the bone marrow, and it's hard to clear it, so he did the opposite. The first three days Gao Peng gives the ape a black candlegrass to strengthen its soul, then supplemented by a large amount of undead materials. Gao Peng said that there is nothing he need to hide, but he advised them not to try it casually because what really matters is the order in which the materials are added and the ratio between them. And if they don't know, they shouldn't just toss it around, because he's not sure what the tested monster will become. Suddenly Feng Zhu claps while saying the new generation is fearful, and Gao Peng ability was wrong for the junior trainer certificate, and he will grant him an intermediate monster trainer certificate. Feng Zhu grabs Gao Peng's shoulder and said that the intermediate certificate is beyond his authority, and that he must go to the Yanjing headquarters to accept the assessment. But with his qualification, he'll get it. Then Feng Zhu looked at Lai Jin and Wang Shu, then asks who was cheating and he asks them how they think he become the chairman of the board that he can't find out the truth. Also Feng Zhu asks who just said that the ape was a test piece that was supposed to be eliminated is in the test examination room which made Wang Shu and Lai Jin shocked in fear. The other examiners confirmed that they always felt that Wang Shu's speech is weird and Lai Jin was always targeting Gao Peng. Then Zhu Yuan raised his hand and said he can testify. Zhu Yuan said that Lai Jin is the one who deliberately added the ape to the assessment list. And then Zhu Yuan pointed to Wang Shu and said Lai Jin did it because he took bribes from Wang Shu. Also he said that the evidence is in the monster's mobilization record. Wang Shu fell to the floor because he knows it was over for him. Feng Zhu announced that Wang Shu has severely cheated and was exempt from reference qualification, and will not be allowed in the examination of the Chang'an Monster Trainer Association for the next three years. Feng Zhu also expelled Lai Jin from the Chang'an Monsters Trainers Teachers Association, and will never be hired. Wang Xu and Lai Jin were being thrown by a guard while the examiners said they deserve it. Feng Zhu faces Gao Peng and asks him if he wants to sit in his office and have a cup of tea. Feng Zhu also said that he has a little favor for Gao Peng. At Feng Zhu office, Feng Zhu said he would like to invite Gao Peng to represent Chang'an City in the World Monster Trainers competition. And he also said that the number and quality of trainers in Chang'an City are not very optimistic, which is why he never had a good result in major monster trainers competition for several years. Feng Zhu asks Gao Peng if he's willing to represent Chang'an City because the World Monster Trainers competition doesn't have a strict age limit, whether it is the elderly, middle-aged, or young people. 
Feng Zhu also said that in terms of growth potential, young talent like Gao Peng must have an advantage. Suddenly Gao Peng laughed in nervousness, which made Feng Zhu thinks Gao Peng is not interested. Feng Zhu said it was a pity because the top players can get the prize, and the top 10 can get at least 10,000 credits. Suddenly Gao Peng stands up which made Feng Zhu shocked. When Gao Peng heard about the prize he agreed to the competition. At the bus stop, Gao Peng was happy to get the intermediate certificate, and he heard that 30 points of the points he got in his monster trainer exam will be added to the college entrance exam. He also named the Skull Ghoul Ape Dummy because it liked to daze when it was alone. The bus arrives, then Gao Peng enters the bus while thinking that the monster trainer exam was great because he get an elite quality monster and made a great profit. Also Gao Peng gets the identity token. Gao Peng and Dummy were on the bus while Gao Peng wondered if they really going to the competition because it sounds very annoying. On the other hand, people in the back of them whisper about Dummy appearance. Then one passenger tried to touch Dummy but Dummy attacked the passenger but Gao Peng didn't notice it. The monsters faced the passenger and tried to pierce the passenger's eye. Suddenly Gao Peng called Dummy then Dummy ungrabbed the passenger and faced Gao Peng. Gao Peng said in order to support Dummy and Da Zai he needs to go to the competition. Gao Peng jokingly said that he is handsome and genius at a young age and that heaven will be jealous. On the other hand, the passengers think Gao Peng hasn't signed a contract with a monster, yet he could make the fierce monster obedient. Gao Peng and Dummy get down on the bus, while they were walking Dummy notices something. Then he pushed Gao Peng to the side, then Dummy changes to his combat form and blocks the way where Gao Peng was, while looking at something. Gao Peng stands up and asks Dummy why he pushed him. Gao Peng look at where Dummy is looking, and realize Dummy was protecting him. Gao Peng assured Dummy not to worry because they will be family. Then Gao Peng introduces Da Zai to Dummy, but Gao Peng was stopped when he saw Da Zai's appearance. Suddenly Tang Tang appeared and said she and Da Zai are there to pick him up. Gao Peng asks Tang Tang what happened to Da Zai. Tang Tang responded that she give Da Zai a lot of good food, and Da Zai is very healthy and strong. But Gao Peng sees Da Zai's data and she was extremely overnourished. Tang Tang said Dazi was too skinny before because Gao Peng wasn't careful enough. On the other hand, Dummy looks at Da Zai, then looked away with attitude. Tang Tang changes the topic and asks him how his exam was. Gao Peng shyly says that he encountered a monster that failed to level up six times, but he upgraded him and got an intermediate monster trainer certificate, and the president of the trainer's association gives him the monster that has been successfully leveled up, which made Tang Tang shocked and asks if he really get the intermediate monster trainer's certificate. Gao Peng showed his certificate while saying as fake as it is, he actually get the certificate. Suddenly Tang Tang come close to Gao Peng and said his growth rate really surprised her, and she need to talk about something to him, which made Gao Peng confused. Tang Tang asks Gao Peng if he knows why the monster trainer has such a high status. It is because the monsters they use, no matter how strong they are, the monster is still monstrous. The Imperial monster's secret technique is clearly damage transfer, which can transfer all the damage they receive to their own monster. Although the range is limited, and can only be turned on by the subjective choice of the monster, and defensive power of the monster is far from the human. Also, when the monster upgrades, it gains more vitality and defense, and it will be more beneficial to Gao Peng. After learning, Gao Peng feel that Da Zai and him were connected by an invisible thread. Gao Peng thinks his contract is done. Then Gao Peng look at Dazi. Gao Peng tells Da Zai that she was fat, and looks like a fat purple pig. But Da Zai is still talking back to him. Gao Peng orders Dummy to bring the mirror to him, then he places it in front of Dazi, which made Da Zai shocked. Da Zai plays dead, but Gao Peng said she needs to exercise in a few days to lose body fat, and after her reduction, Gao Peng will give her a quality upgrade. Then Gao Peng imagined Da Zai flying in the sky fat which made him disgusted. Two days passed, in Chang'an city center. Tang Tang was calling for Gao Peng in the street, then Tang Tang said she was happier because Gao Peng was already an intermediate monster trainer, and willing to help her with her little company. Tang Tang said she's come out to pick him up, and before they go inside she need to say that she partnered with other people to open her small monster training institution. Also she invested a lot of money in it, but her partners run away with the money some time ago, and the trainers were taken away from the store. Gao Peng said the location of Tang Tang business is good because it was the busiest part of downtown, and the rent is not cheap, which made Tang Tang shocked. Tang Tang responded with an uncomfortable expression that her business was doing good before, so she rented the place, but ever since the trainers were taken away, the business has gone downhill. Gao Peng feels that Tang Tang is strange. Suddenly Tang Tang turns around and asks him to go upstairs first. While they were in the front of the elevator, Tang Tang explained that the studio is on the third floor, and as for the treatment, the salary is at the highest rate in the industry, and he will be given 20% of the shares. Tang Tang pushed the third button in the elevator assuring Gao Peng that he won't be delayed in 
in his studies and that he just need to drop by on weekends because the job of a monster trainer is very easy. They enter the elevator and then Gao Peng asks Tang Tang why she can't recruit trainers in the market when the salary is too high. Tang Tang just responded that not having monster trainers is a trivial matter, but they can't smash the sign. Gao Peng thinks Tang Tang's offer was a trap, but it was Tang Tang, and for the past three years, he's not been an orphan because of Tang Tang's care. Gao Peng set aside his bad feeling and trusted Tang Tang, then he said he'll listen to Tang Tang. Tang Tang wished for their happy cooperation, but Tang Tang felt intense because she thought Gao Peng found something wrong with her action. They arrive on the third floor, then someone welcomes them there. Tang Tang introduced Gao Peng to their receptionist named Zun Quan Quan. Then Tang Tang opens the elevator door and goes inside. Tang Tang tells Gao Peng that she already explained everything to Quan Quan, and Quan Quan will show him the environment and introduce him to his colleague. Then Tang Tang left, leaving Gao Peng and Quan Quan confused. Gao Peng thinks everything happening had many flaws. Suddenly Quan Quan said they get started with registration information, and Gao Peng agreed. When they enter the room, Quan Quan thinks Gao Peng was too young while she enters Gao Peng information on the desk. Also, she thinks her boss Tang Tang got cheated again. On the other hand, Gao Peng was on the sofa, drinking some tea, and thinks a plan on how he will earn enough money for Tang Tang. He needs to set the charging standard. Unlike the other trainers, they need to follow his instruction, and they will have almost 100% success rate in advancing to the next level. In that case, the fee will increase. Although Gao Peng doesn't love money, he shouldn't receive less because it was a desecration of knowledge, and also, disrespectful to Goldfinger. So his plan is he'll take a loss, multiply it by three at the current highest price for an intermediate monster trainer. Suddenly Quan Quan interrupt his thought and said his information has been recorded. Quan Quan asks him if he really wants to set the fee standard three times the maximum fee for an intermediate monster trainer. Quan Quan also said, it's not a big deal if he doesn't follow the rules and he doesn't get clients, but it's not a trivial matter if it affects the reputation of the studio. Gao Peng asks Quan Quan what her intention to say. Suddenly someone barges in and said Quan Quan means Gao Peng has to prove that he really has the ability which made Quan Quan shocked and called the man named Mr. Ma. Then Mr. Ma walked toward him while asking if he really want three times the maximum charge. Then Mr. Ma pointed a finger at Gao Peng and said as long as he can cure his monster, it doesn't matter how much it is, he'll give him ten times as much as he can. Gao Peng said it was not necessary. Gao Peng first order to Mr. Ma is even if it's a big bonus, he just needs to triple it. Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if he can cure his beast for sure, Gao Peng said he doesn't need to rush, and that he needs to see where his beast is before he can give him an accurate answer. Mr. Ma said he'll believe in Gao Peng once, then he showed his injured pet. Gao Peng walked close and saw the data of the monster. The name of the monster is a purple lightning rat, its level is 13, and its quality is elite. Purple lightning rat status was light injury and suffering and its weakness is the ground system. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed that the rat was critical and he need to deal with its dangerous mutation as soon as possible. Gao Peng asks Mr. Ma in a shouting way what he feeds to the rat to make it critical. Mr. Ma said he gave the rat a blood jade mushroom because he wanted his beast to mutate and evolve. Then he begs Gao Peng to cure his pet. Gao Peng knows that the purple mouse is already in the process of evolution. But it is only because of the conflict between the power of the blood system and the lightning system that led the rat to critical condition. Gao Peng saw the mutant evolution ingredients and realizes that he need to use the system's plan to turn conflict into complementarity then the rat will be able to complete its evolution. Gao Peng ordered Quan Quan to get five shadow fruits, one red maple heart, a pair of thunder gold leaves, and one blood bat monster crystal core, then he explained to Mr. Ma. The rules for trainers, that they will come up with a plan, and they will help him with the materials, but he'll need to pay for it himself, Mr. Ma responded no problem. Gao Peng assured the rat that he will make him evolve. Gao Peng and the others proceed to the treatment room. Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if it was really the best way to upgrade his pet with fear in his voice. Gao Peng was holding the rat with a knife in his other hand, while asking Mr. Ma if he have a problem. Suddenly Gao Peng dropped the rat into the boiling soup pot, which made Mr. Ma shocked. When the rat was inside the pot, Gao Peng stirred the soup with the rat in it, which made the rat dizzy. Gao Peng scoops soup into the pot and asks Mr. Ma if he wants to take a sip of rat soup. Then Gao Peng opens the pot lid and said he was joking, then asks Mr. Ma to take a look. Mr. Ma looked at the pot in shock to see that his pet was relaxing in the pot. Gao Peng explains he didn't make soup, he made a medicinal bath for his beast, and the heating only enhances the absorption of the medicine. Then Gao Peng closed the pot lid again and said he need to cook the rat twice and bore it for another 10 minutes. Mr. Ma knows there are only two senior monster trainers in the entire city of Chang'an, and they have very high status so he can't get an appointment, and the only choice he has is to give Gao Peng a try. 
10 minutes later, Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if his pet is ready because it taking a little too long to cook. Gao Peng responded that it's almost time. Suddenly the pot lid moved, and Gao Peng said it was time. Then the pot lid burst open, showing a shaky rat inside. Suddenly the rat opened its eyes and then jump out into the pot, and another part of the room which made the treatment room destroyed. Mr. Ma saw that his pet upgrade was succeeded. The new monster's name is Purple Lightning Blood Rat, it's level 20 and its quality is perfect. Also, its attributes are the lightning system and the blood system. Gao Peng said Mr. Ma made a fortune because his pet was a perfect quality double system, and with a little bit of training, he can be promoted to the leader level beast. Mr. Ma apologizes to Gao Peng for his previous rudeness because he didn't expect that his beast can be advanced, and he thanks him. Gao Peng hand the bills to Mr. Ma and said he shouldn't thanks him because he's paying him for his service, and he needs to pay the damage to his office plus the consultation fee. Gao Peng gives the paper to Quan Quan and he asks her to follow the list of materials in the paper, then send it to his house, and the cost will be deducted from his commission. Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if he can make an appointment for him tomorrow because he wants Gao Peng to take a look at his other beast, which made Gao Peng think. Suddenly Mr. Ma said the money is not a problem, he can pay triple or more. But Gao Peng said it's not about the money, he needs to go to class tomorrow that's why he doesn't have time. Mr. Ma was confused and asks if he was going to an association training class or to the master's class. Gao Peng grabs his coat while asking what Mr. Ma talking about, and then he said he was in third year high school, and he needs to go home to do his homework then Gao Peng left. Leaving Mr. Ma and Quan Quan shocked, Quan Quan also said Tang Tang just bought the studio a few days ago at a high price and dismissed all the monster trainers, and asked her to keep it secret to deceive Gao Peng. Meanwhile, in the apartment, Tang Tang was with her pet looking at the crystal core in her hand, and she thinks it was a good quality crystal core. Tang Tang asks her pet to send the crystal core to Gao Peng room. Tang Tang pet climbed to Gao Peng window room where Da Zai was, then throw the crystal core in front of Da Zai, which made Da Zai and Dummy look at the crystal core confused. Suddenly Da Zai eats the crystal core, then chewed it. Da Zai feels weird, then suddenly Da Zai's body acts up which made Dummy concerned. On the other hand, Gao Peng was excitedly walking while thinking that the 15 pounds of cedar pine needles are enough for Dummy to eat for a month, and he need to make Dummy evolve to its perfect quality. Gao Peng also thinks Da Zai's side can't be more urgent to upgrade because Da Zai needs a level 10 or higher lightning monster crystal core, and even if he finds one he can't afford it. Suddenly he heard a noise coming into his apartment and realized it was dummy. Gao Peng throws all the ingredients he buys and then runs towards his apartment. Gao Peng ran to the stairs and when he arrives at his apartment door, he opened his door forcefully and then he saw Da Zai rolling back and forth to the ground with a bubbling mouth. Gao Peng opened Da Zai's data and see that Dazi took a large amount of blood and flesh from the lighting badger centipede with the monster's crystal core because of that Da Zai is in the process of evolution, which made Gao Peng shocked in confusion. Gao Peng looked at Da Zai wondering how can she eat something so expensive and he was wondering who would give it to her. Then Gao Peng notices Tang Tang outside his door peeping. Tang Tang showed herself, then Gao Peng asks if she is the one who give the crystal core to Da Zai. When Tang Tang didn't answer, Gao Peng asks why did she do it. Tang Tang thinks if she said it in advance Gao Peng wouldn't want it. Then Tang Tang just said she was there to deliver something. Tang Tang put down the ingredients Gao Peng threw outside while saying Gao Peng is sloppy because he left his stuff halfway down the road. Then Tang Tang immediately run to her front door and said Gao Peng is so spendthrift after only a few days of earning money, then Tang Tang go inside her apartment, not making Gao Peng talk to her. Gao Peng looks at Dizzy Da Zai and scolds Da Zai for being an eater, and she shouldn't eat whatever she sees in the future. Gao Peng thinks Da Zai doesn't care about the situation, and he needs to make a way to complete Da Zai's upgrade quickly. Gao Peng tried to find something to his items, and throw everything that won't work. Then he finally finds the medium-grade purple poison flower that will help Da Zai evolve. He just needs to grind it and make it into juice. Gao Peng grinds the flower, then made Da Zai drink it. When Da Zai drinks it, Da Zai's eyes open wide, and her body produces a light, which made the room window break. Da Zai's horn and body become bigger and sharper which made Gao Peng shock. Gao Peng checked Da Zai's data and saw that Da Zai's monster name changed to a purple-backed lightning centipede, her level increased by 9, and her quality changed to epic. Da Zai's attributes are the lightning system and the blue system and she was ready to promote to the perfect quality. Gao Peng was happy because Da Zai's evolution was over and he didn't think it would be so easy for Da Zai to become an epic quality. Suddenly Da Zai collapsed on the ground leaving Gao Peng and Dummy confused. Dummy comes close to Da Zai worried, but Gao Peng assured him that Da Zai just lost strength. Gao Peng extends his hand with a bowl of food to Dummy while saying he specially bought his food for him and compared to Dummy appearance he's too kind. 
Dummy gets the food confused, but he still eats it, which made him more confused because of the food's taste. Gao Peng praised Dummy and said he need to keep eating, while Gao Peng cleaned the mess. Gao Peng tells Dummy that he completed the upgrade, and it's better to stabilize it. He will upgrade Dummy after he finds the most suitable material, and Dummy will definitely become a very powerful beast. A few hours passed, finally Da Zai regained her strength and woke up. But she saw Dummy and Gao Peng sleeping on the sofa. Da Ze thinks of a better idea, then she gets a blanket, and walks toward Gao Peng. Da Ze put the blanket on Gao Peng, then she hugged Gao Peng, which made Gao Peng uncomfortable. On the other hand, Tang Tang was looking at them in the window mirror while wondering if it was the calmness before the storm, and wishing Gao Peng will grow up as soon as possible. The following day, at the principal's office, the principal was shouting at Mr. Ma because he disagreed with letting the monster into the school. The principal angrily said that the students in the school are still children and not professionally trained. Mr. Ma calmly responded that in times of peace, the age of the student was still considered a child, but in ancient times, people of the same age as students already took weapons to defend the country. The principals understand what Mr. Ma words and ask in a worried tone if the current situation of the world got worse. Mr. Ma said the new technologies are being researched all over the world but the speed is still too slow. Mr. Ma explained that if the technologies are still slow, and when the day comes when their technology is no longer a threat to the monsters, it'll be too late for the world. Meanwhile, in the classroom, Gao Peng feels uncomfortable because his classmates are looking at him. Suddenly one of his classmates asks him if he really gets the intermediate monster trainer certificate. Then Gao Peng asks his classmate back how did he know about his certificate. His classmate shows the Chang'an daily newspaper to him excitedly. Then all his classmates congratulates him, which made him shy. Suddenly one of Gao Peng classmates asks if he can make a small request. But Gao Peng stops him. Then Gao Peng said his request was small, so it was not going to be difficult for him alone. But for both of them, it was not a good deal. Which made his classmate angry, but their room teacher was behind Gao Peng classmates back. Then their teacher named Miss Murong hit his classmate's head with a piece of paper, which made everyone run back to their sits. Miss Murong made the student silent and said she had an announcement. Miss Murong announced that all schools around the world are urgently reformed. The second year high school will have a new course on beasts, and a new special recruitment channel was added. It was a joint project of the Union Ministry of Education and the Union Military. Also, the best student can be recruited directly by the top academies or military academies. Miss Murong also said that the military coaches will be in the school soon, and students who are interested in joining the academies will begin training in the afternoon. And if they want to be special students, they need to come to Miss Murong as soon as possible after class to sign up. The class was panicking because of the sudden changes. Suddenly Miss Murong called for Gao Peng and asked him to come out for a moment because Miss Murong wanted to talk to him. Outside the classroom, Miss Murong said the principal praised him by name in the meeting because he got the intermediate monster trainer's certificate straight away. And tomorrow, the student of the 7th high school are coming, and the school like him to represent their school as a freshman. Gao Peng interrupted Miss Murong words and said that formal speech doesn't suit him. But the fact is he likes to apply for the special student of the Imperial Ambassador. Miss Murong asks why he suddenly has an intention for the Imperial Ambassador position. Miss Murong thinks the Imperial Ambassador is a pretty good way to go, but it doesn't make much sense for Gao Peng. Miss Murong look at the window said Gao Peng grades are very good, and the bonus of an intermediate monster trainer's certificate will get him to get a lot of credits. He can try all the top academies in China and foreign academies well. While Miss Murong looking at the man getting the monster ready for the afternoon, Miss Murong said if Gao Peng really wants to become an imperial ambassador he can also use cultural achievement to enter the military academy and then apply for related majors, Miss Murong warned him to shouldn't rush. Gao Peng thanked Miss Murong for being considerate to him and said Miss Murong was right and it was safer to enter the military academy before becoming an imperial ambassador. But it was too slow for Gao Peng because he want to learn more from actual combat training and grow stronger quickly. Also Gao Peng assured Miss Murong to take both exams because he won't give up either opportunity. Miss Murong just smiles at him and turns around. Then said since Gao Peng has his own ideas, she won't stop him. But she hopes he can think it over. In the afternoon, the group of students was ready to meet their opponent. Suddenly Gao Peng classmate named Tan Kaianjin shouted in the crowd asking if Gao Peng signed up to be an Imperial Ambassador student too. Then Kaianjin walks past the crowd toward Gao Peng. Then he asks him if he was a monster trainer that has a good result. Gao Peng responded that his grade are also good and asks Kaianjin why did he sign up too. Kaianjin said it's all about his childhood dream he used to watch, and the monster in the film was very cool. Also, Kaianjin said he wanted to be the strongest ambassador. Gao Peng just leave him and said he should keep up, the field is just ahead. In the school court, the student who signed up for the military academy was waiting. 
In the court stage, the woman called for the colonel. Kyanjin said their instructor is not that special except for being strong. Suddenly the colonel looks in their direction, which made Kyanjin shocked and Gao Peng think that the colonel has a murderous aura. The colonel first said that the student who comes have balls compared to the people who are afraid, but they shouldn't think they become imperial ambassador, without a firm mind and without a will of steel. The colonel said they will be pissing their pants the moment they see a real monster in the wild, and their legs will be as soft as noodles, they won't be able to run away, which made everyone afraid. The colonel asks if they don't like it and he shows the monster. The colonel gets the monster and commands his lieutenant colonel to provide the armor plate. Then Lieutenant Collins report to the colonel that the target is 10 centimeters thick, and three type armor plate has been set up. The colonel orders the monster to go ahead, then the monster runs toward the armor plate, and destroyed it. The armor plate was destroyed in just one attack, which made the students shocked in fear. Gao Peng wondered how the thick armor plate was destroyed in one attack. Then the colonel said that it was the killing power of a trained beast, and the monsters they will face in the future will have the same, or even greater power to kill. The colonel gives one last chance to the student who wants to quit and orders them to step out quickly. Gao Peng saw that many students wanted to quit, suddenly the colonel asks the student who want to leave, why their heads is down. The colonel said they didn't do anything wrong, and they should study hard because it was a good way out too. Also the colonel said they're not deserters, they just made a rational choice to go back to class. Then the colonel looked at the student who had chosen to stay and said they are different because from now on if anyone gives up, he's a real loser, and the colonel doesn't want any loser. After school is done, Gao Peng goes home tired, although he's mentally prepared. He didn't expect the situation to be a little more serious than he thought. Suddenly Da Zai said she was hungry while Dummy was sulking in the corner. Gao Peng stands up to walk toward the refrigerator while thinking about the words that Colonel Chen said in one month. All institutes in the city will have to eliminate 1,200 students from enrollment and Gao Peng opens the refrigerator while thinking the elimination rate is too high. When Gao Peng opens up the drawer of the refrigerator the cedar pine needles are gone. Gao Peng looks around at the refrigerator wondering where his piles of cedar pine needles are, and Gao Peng finds just one cedar pine needle. Gao Peng barge out into the kitchen angry, asking where the other cedar pine needles are, then Da Zai points to Dummy and said Dummy eat it all. Gao Peng called Dummy and he walked towards sulking Dummy. Gao Peng touches Dummy back, and tell to Dummy that next time if he wants to eat more, he needs to tell him. Gao Peng assured Dummy that he didn't say Dummy was wrong, but Dummy was still sulking in guilt. Gao Peng sits on the sofa and checks Dummy's property box. He saw that Dummy needs to absorb 600 pounds of cedar pine needles and Dummy's first stage is almost complete. Gao Peng ordered 30 pounds of cedar pine needles and 10 pounds of lightning flower fruit. One caddy of cedar pine needles is 1000 union currency, and it is only 1.5 credits to eat 15 katas a day, which he can still afford. Gao Peng thinks it's good for dummy that he can able to eat, and more beneficial substances are absorbed, and they can move faster to the next evolution. Dummy is still an elite rank monster, and when it's at a higher rank, the material dummy needs to consume will be more precious, and some materials are even priceless that can only be obtainable by burning money. Then Gao Peng look at Da Zai and thinks Da Zai needs to take 200 pounds of lightning flower fruit to advance to perfect quality. The thunder flower fruit is cheaper than the cedar pine needles, and he can buy a pound of them for a hundred union coins. Then Gao Peng realizes that it's not easy to raise a family. Gao Peng decided to go to the monster park but he was shocked to see that the owners and monsters were in chaos, but Gao Peng noticed the exaggerated pig with the girl. Gao Peng approached the girl and asks if it was her monster and if she can give him a little space because her beast is blocking the gate, which made the girl embarrassed. The girl sadly remembers her beast before and said in sad tone that when he bought her monster it was not this big. Suddenly the coach asks what happened. Then the other people said the beast blocking the way. The coach called his beast Silver and said to Silver that the pig was all him. Then Silver changed its expression like it going to attack the pig. The pig saw Silver expression, then the pig stand up in fear which made its owner shocked. The coach said the show was over and if they were done, they should start the training right away. The owners and their beasts were lined up and listening to coach words. The coach said she knows some of them want to sign more beasts in the future, so she will first train them to command their beasts. It was a very basic and very important part. The coach said even if their beast is strong, it won't listen to the command that is also equal to zero and she believes they have just seen the opposite of the lesson. Then the people look at the girl with her big beast. The coach patted her beast and said if they want to train their beast, they must understand their habits and preference in order to establish a good relationship with their beast in a targeted way. The coach's example is her silver moon wolf. She bought its favorite black clad pork and fed it to her beast personally. Also, she played and slept with her beast every day which is why her beast's reliance on her has improved a lot and it is willing to obey her command. 
The coach said that the colonel's beast they had seen before smashed the armor plate with its tail, but in fact, the tail is not the silver moon wolf's natural strong point it was just the colonel train his beast many months that the beast's tail gradually becomes harder and swing faster, which made the people shocked. The coach said that the wolf had additional means of attack besides its teeth and claw, and the colonel's training method, developing the beast's attack diversity and enhancing the beast's advantages. Then the coach asks Old Lai to show the silver wolf's skills. Old Lai was playing with the stone in his hand while saying that the silver moon wolf beside him was the same. But different training methods are used for different battles, and there are different directions of development. Then Old Lai throw the rock, then the wolf run equally to the flying rock, then the wolf destroyed it, which made Gao Peng and Dao Zai shocked. The coach said the current classification of the beast has five categories, attack, defense, support, healing, and field control. The actual fact is that there are a lot of people who can do multiple categories. Then coach gives an example, the green devil vine, which can act as both a defensive and a control type. But the most important thing is that they have to be able to use it as an attacker. The coach said he had already given them a demonstration and their official training will start. She also suggests they start with simple materials, such as training bite force to choose a wood first, and then gradually increase the hardness. The coach pointed to the apes who were moving the big box of materials and assured them to don't worry about the material because they shipped a large number of training materials. The coach asks the people who had chosen a training route to register and receive their training materials. Gao Peng look at Da Zai, wondering what else Da Zai needs to strengthen. Then he remember that Da Zai learned the secret art of damage transfer and Da Zai needed to improve her defense first. Then Gao Peng remember the small ape who can move such a big box, and he was amazed. Suddenly Gao Peng remember seeing in the studio's archives a kind of mutant ape monster with sparse hair, called the Fierce Fist Ape. Fierce nature is very warlike, but the defense is very low, so the fierce ape from birth will be trained by their parents. Gao Peng thinks it's crazy how the fierce ape uses their own body to hit the trunk of the tree. They first hit the tree, and then hit the rocks, mountain walls, and so on. Over time, the fierce ape repeatedly injured and healed skin becomes tougher and tougher. When the fierce ape becomes an adult, there are not only thick muscles, but also calluses and scars gathered together to form something to armor. And at that time the fierce adult will not suffer the slightest injury, even if they hit the mountain wall. Gao Peng thinks he can follow the fierce ape training method to train the defense of Da Zai, then he chose the training materials in the box. Gao Peng called Da Zai who was relaxing under the tree, Gao Peng walked toward Da Zai while hiding something behind his back. Then Gao Peng said he has already chosen a training method for Da Zai, and he said it's better for Da Zai to have pain now than for the rest of Da Zai's life. Gao Peng slowly shows the item behind his back while saying that it can be a little bit of suffering, and Da Zai should swear now in order to not bleed later. Then he showed the big metal hammer he get for Da Zai while saying he'll be gentle, which made Da Zai shocked. Then Da Zai runs in fear. Gao Peng runs after Da Zai with a big metal hammer while shouting for Da Zai to stop because it's for her own good, and Da Zai must understand his pain. Gao Peng finally caught up with Da Zai while enduring the pain in his arm for holding the harmer for so long. One week later, Gao Peng was in his bed. When his alarm tried to wake him up, Gao Peng just turned off his alarm, then tried to sleep again because he don't have training today. Suddenly he heard Da Zai knocking on something which made him fully awake. Gao Peng come out to his bedroom and Da Zai said she was hungry. Gao Peng start cooking while complaining about why he's suffering when Da Zai is the one who upgrading. Then he looked at Da Zai and dummy. Then he realizes that Da Zai didn't eat for nothing during the period of extra meals because Da Zai grow bigger and successfully reach the 10th level. But Gao Peng is not sure if he was going to be able to get a good deal on Da Zai and his arms are almost broken in Da Zai's defense training. And dummy also almost ate up his salary. Suddenly Gao Peng cell phone ring and dummy notice it and grab the phone then answer the call. The man who calls introduces his name as Liu Senlin, the general manager of Blue Shield Security Company. Gao Peng asks what Mr. Liu needs from him. Mr. Liu said he would like to talk about something with him that would be great benefit to him, and he asks Gao Peng if he has time to talk in person. At Fei Peng's studio, Gao Peng was welcomed by Quan Quan, and Quan Quan said his visitor is already waiting for him. Gao Peng meet Mr. Liu in his office, then Mr. Liu reached his hand out while introducing himself again. Gao Peng shakes Mr. Liu's hand and asks him to sit down. Gao Peng asks Mr. Liu why he was looking for him because there are senior trainers in Chang'an City, and he's not the only intermediate monster trainer. Gao Peng also said he doesn't know what kind of reputation he has that would make the general manager of a big security company come to his door on purpose. Mr. Liu laughed and said Gao Peng was too modest. Then Mr. Liu explained that there are senior trainers in Chang'an but one of them is the president of the Monster Trainers Association named Mr. Chen, and he doesn't have time to be a consultant for a small company like his company. Also, the other senior trainer named Mr. Gu Xianlin is the government's full-time training consultant. 
Mr. Liu said he prefers to believe in the young and talented Gao Peng than those mid-level trainers. Gao Peng said before they continue Mr. Liu needs to accept his demand otherwise there is no need to waste their time. Gao Peng first demand is he has classes from Monday to Friday, unless it is a very urgent situation, and they shouldn't disturb him during the weekdays. Second, it's fine for him to be a trainer consultant but he won't sign a buyout exclusivity contract, and he can only guarantee that he won't help their competitors. Mr. Liu hand the contract to him because he agreed to Gao Peng demand, and he asks Gao Peng if the part-time contract they prepare is appropriate. Gao Peng get the contract and read it. Gao Peng realizes that the contract is not quite right because there are no mandatory requirements. The salary is annual, 500 credits per year plus commission, and 50 credits for every successful evolution of Devil Mantis from the Blue Shield. Gao Peng signed the contract while wondering if the owner of the Blue Shield Company is so rich and capricious, but the contract was almost a non-binding contract. Suddenly Quang Quan knocked on the room door and enter, then said that Mr. Ma who made an appointment earlier has arrived. Mr. Liu stand up and said since Gao Peng signed the contract, he won't bother him anymore. Then they head out. Gao Peng assists Mr. Liu to the elevator, then Mr. Liu said he'll look forward to their future cooperation. Then Gao Peng left. When Mr. Liu was waiting for the elevator, he called someone to report that Gao Peng signed the contract. Then Mr. Liu asks why he choose Gao Peng when there are so many trainers in Chang'an. But someone in the other line said something that Mr. Liu just agree. In other place, in the Fei Peng studio, Gao Peng is checking on Mr. Ma Beast. Gao Peng saw that the monster's name is the Four Seasons Begonia Demon. It was level 3, and its attribute is urban. The Four Seasons Begonia Demon status is health pleasure, and its weakness is fire and lightning. Gao Peng asks Mr. Ma in an angry tone if he really wants his flower demon to evolve because the flower demon was pretty, the leaves have a fuchsia pattern and serrated edges, and also it has a slight fragrance. Mr. Ma said yes because there will be a Flower King competition in Chang'an City in half a month, and he's going to use his flower demon to compete for the position of Flower King. Huang Quan said the Flower King competition is usually for girls to participate. Mr. Ma said he also knows that he's a big man to compete for the Flower King, and it will look really strange. Then the Flower Demon holds Mr. Ma finger and Mr. Ma said it was his second beast and he hopes to give his Flower Demon a good start. Then Mr. Ma begged Gao Peng to make his beast evolve so it has a better chance of taking the tournament, which made Gao Peng shocked because he didn't realize that Mr. Ma was so concerned about his beast. Gao Peng assured Mr. Ma that he will make his beast evolve. Then Gao Peng said Mr. Ma know the usual rules, three times the charge. Suddenly Quang Quan asks Mr. Ma to swipe his card to their ATM swiper to pay. Gao Peng ordered Quang Quan to prepare the 200 years old tree essence, 150 drops of flower spirit dew, one leaf of spirit flower, one money of golden bell, one caddy of fat sea, and one black wind grass, which Quang Quan agreed. After Quang Quan prepared all the ingredients, Gao Peng throw him outside the operating room and said that they shouldn't disturb him, but Mr. Ma still peeked even though Quang Quan tried to stop him. Gao Peng was holding an injection, assuring the fear flower demon that it just hurt a little. Then Gao Peng inject the injection into the flower, and the flower made a sound, which made Mr. Ma angry and tried to shout, but Quang Quan covered Mr. Ma mouth and tried to make Mr. Ma calm down. Suddenly Gao Peng said they can come in which made them shocked. Gao Peng introduces to them the Four Seasons Begonia, Level 4, and Elite. Mr. Ma and Quang Quan were happy because the flower demon becomes so much prettier after being evolved. Suddenly Mr. Ma jumped to hug Gao Peng because of his happiness which made Gao Peng angry. Meanwhile, somewhere, the girl who's touching her beast asks if they fail again. The tree man said even if they pass the test, they may not be able to get into a good school. Also 12 o people only can be recruited, they can simply mix for a month, and then go back to the test after a month. The girl stands up while thinking that the three men were a bunch of stupid who thinks they're smart, and she said that no matter what other do, she must try again to find Gao Peng. In the forest, the small monsters feel the forest shaking. Then the small monster sees some mushrooms, suddenly the small monster gets attacked by the spider web, which made the monster shake in fear. The monster activates his combat form, then spin around to free itself from the spider web. But more spider webs were poured by the poor small monster. When the small monster was fully covered by a spider web, the spiders showed themselves, and there were a lot of spiders coming out into the forest. Meanwhile, in Chen Jai's material shop, Gao Peng getting his 30 pounds of cedar pine needles to old Chen. But old Chen said the cedar pine needles are out of stock and only 10 pounds were left. Gao Peng asks old Chen why cedar pine needles are out of stock when there has an estate outside the city that specializes in supplying them. Old Chen hands his tablet to Gao Peng to show that a week ago there have a group of villainous spiders emerged from nowhere, and the spiders ate all the herbs in the garden, so the area had been sealed off by the army. 
Old Chen also said that the spider eats other monsters in the surrounding mountain and forest, and he heard that if it weren't for the boss of the estate running fast, they could also be eaten. Old Chen's words were interrupted when someone entered the shop to buy. Old Chen asks Gao Peng if they can talk later because he has business to receive. Gao Peng realizes that first the college and the military had a sudden collaboration, then the security company that came to his door, then lastly the unknown spider that appeared suddenly. Gao Peng knows that something big will happen. Suddenly Mr. Liu calls Gao Peng. Gao Peng answer the call, then Mr. Liu asks if he knows about the newly discovered brutal gray spider in the Ember Forest. Gao Peng immediately go to Blue Shield Security Company, where he was greeted by Mr. Liu. Mr. Liu said it was urgent, so he won't speak any courtesies and asked Gao Peng to follow him through the background information. Mr. Liu explains that due to the large number of brutal gray spiders attacking numerous resource sites, the government has brought together security companies and several private organizations to explore forests with the goal of understanding the habits and weaknesses of the brutal gray spiders. Mr. Liu said their company just received the assignment and will be leaving in three days, but they don't have enough reserves of imperial beasts yet. So Mr. Liu would like to ask Gao Peng to take a look at the beast in advance because if they can advance a few more devil mantis before they leave they will have a better chance of success on the mission. Gao Peng said he better look at the situation of the devil mantis first. Mr. Liu said the company really takes the opportunity very seriously, and previous meetings convened by the coalition government abolished many regulations that suppressed non-official forces. Mr. Liu swiped his card to open the room while saying, the changes in monsters in recent years and that the government is increasingly overwhelmed. And Mr. Liu said the conference has opened up many policies, and is afraid the direction of the coalition is about to change. Mr. Liu asks Gao Peng to take a look, then Mr. Liu explained that all the devil mantises in the company are there, also Mr. Liu said they will arrange enough manpower to assist Gao Peng. Mr. Liu assures Gao Peng that his rewards will definitely make him feel good, as long as the results they wanted are achieved. Gao Peng said he won't let Mr. Liu down, then Gao Peng proceed to check at the devil mantises. On the other hand, Mr. Liu was upstairs looking at Gao Peng in the mirror, then his secretary asks him what is Gao Peng doing. Mr. Liu's secretary said that all he can see from the moment Gao Peng went downstairs, he just touched and looked like an old man shopping, and is a bit confused if Gao Peng really can do it. Mr. Liu tells his secretary to shut up if he doesn't know how to talk properly, which made the man shocked in fear. Mr. Liu looks at where Gao Peng was and wonders if Gao Peng can do it, but is betting his future on Gao Peng, so he can only believe that Gao Peng must be capable. On the other hand, Gao Peng said the eighth one from the left in the first row, the fourth one from the right in the fourth row, and the largest one in the seventh row. Then he asks to leave the ten of devil mantis as he just mentioned, and he asks to prepare a laboratory, as well as a low-rank insect enhancement drug, low-rank eth crystal core, star steel powder, and perilla leaves in ten copies. Mr. Liu immediately order his secretary to prepare the requirements that Gao Peng said. Mr. Liu realizes that Gao Peng sees the tenth strongest devil mantis in just ten minutes among hundreds of imperial beasts. Mr. Louis thinks Gao Peng's speed and accuracy rate was faster than the new senior, and the most frightening thing is that Gao Peng is less than 20 years old. The materials that Gao Peng requested arrived, then Gao Peng started working, and mix all the ingredients. Finally Gao Peng get the mixture of ingredients he needed. Suddenly Mr. Liu heard Gao Peng shouting it worked. Mr. Liu stand up and walk toward Gao Peng, and he saw the devil mantises evolved with cheering people. Mr. Liu's secretary said Mr. Liu really has a good eye because the devil mantises turned out to be a leader level 4 winged jade mantis, and it's a perfect quality evolution. Mr. Liu was looking at Gao Peng, proud that Gao Peng is really unfathomable treasure he has found. The next day, Gao Peng and Da Zai are in the monster park training how fast can Da Zai run. Gao Peng said Da Zai run 7.47 seconds, 0.4 faster than last time. Then he patted Da Zai's head and give Da Zai his favorite dried worm. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed that the other student is just fooling around. But the coach only care about the hardworking students and don't care about the negligent students. Suddenly someone called Gao Peng name. When he turned around he saw his classmate named Mu Ting. Ting tells Gao Peng that he trained his beast very well. Gao Peng thinks if Ting is a man, she would definitely be called a strong man, then Gao Peng said thanks. Ting said she was there to team up with him, which made Gao Peng ask why him. Ting explained that in the middle and later stages of training, they will be fought in the battles, then teams will be divided, and their score will be calculated in small groups. Trying also said that the others are not competent, and she has no mutual language with others. Gao Peng asks where her beast is, Ting said wait a minute, then she whistles and called Lotus Seed her beast name. Lotus here Ting, then run towards her which made Ting shy, but Gao Peng and Da Zai were shocked. 
Ting introduced her beast named Lotus Seed, and she said Lotus Seed was a steel rhino. Gao Peng and Da Zhe are still shocked. Suddenly Ting said before Gao Peng considers teaming up with her, she wants Gao Peng to know that her beast is very timid and that Lotus Seed will give away to the monsters dozens of times smaller than it. But Ting said that her beast is more than qualified to be on defense now because of its dulled sense of pain. Gao Peng thinks it's not impossible to team up with Ting. Even though there are many Imperial Beasts present 99% of them are ordinary quality, and there are only a few that can reach elite quality. Then Gao Peng looked at Lotus Seed data and saw that it was elite quality. Gao Peng thinks Da Zai going to take the attack route with the poison attribute, so a defensive route of the Imperial Beast is just right for them because it creates more time and space for Da Zai to attack. Also, more options in terms of tactics. Ting was worried because Gao Peng hesitated for so long, and she was sure that Gao Peng doesn't want to team up with her. Then she looks at her beast thinking that her Lotus Seed may not really fit into the Battle Royal Beast, and it was not fair for Lotus Seed too. When Ting was ready to leave, Gao Peng stopped her and said he accepted her invitation. Gao Peng said that it doesn't matter if her beast is a timid temperament because she can train it later. Also, Gao Peng thinks it's tiring to communicate with others, which made Ting happy. Ting grabs Gao Peng's hand, then she shakes it hard because of her happiness. Meanwhile, outside the Black Ember Forest joint operation area gather all the invited team leaders and managers. Captain Mu said she didn't expect to see the famous manager Liu there, which made Mr. Liu laugh. Suddenly someone behind Mr. Liu said that according to the latest official information, the brutal gray spider has a clear fear response to flames. Then Mr. Liu said Captain Song's team is best at the fire element and Captain Song should take the lead in the mission. Captain Mu said he doesn't care because Mr. Liu's Devil's Mantis is called the Jungle Killer, and she's afraid that Mr. Liu is the first one to finish the job. Then Captain Mu and Mr. Liu look at each other smiling with tension. Suddenly the captain of the military said he was glad they all came and is sure that they have seen the new information yesterday. The captain explains that it's highly likely that the brutal gray spider preys on large numbers of prey and brings them back to the nest in order to provide sufficient food for their mother. And once their mother gets enough food supply, it means that there will be more terrifying spider waves. The captain said the leader's and manager's mission is very important, and they hope that they can cooperate with the military sincerely, and their priority is to complete the task, and as long as their task is completed, the reward will never be less. The leaders and managers think the military was trying to be nice to them but the military is afraid that they will fight internally. The captain of the military thinks they don't have any objections and he said they should start the task. As agreed, the military provides fire suppression first. Then the captain ordered to fire to 3 o'clock. His comrade hears him and then blows fire to 3 o'clock. The attack lunged to the spiders and made a hole in the ground with broken spider body parts. Mr. Liu complains to the captain of the military because after he talks to them nicely, he still have to show his muscles and scare them. However, Mr. Liu said the government did take the exploration very seriously, and the artillery was meant to deter them. But Mr. Liu thinks it did greatly weaken the strength of the monsters for them, and if they can show anything real in their current mission they can't justify it. Captain Mu shouts at Mr. Liu that he hasn't even done anything yet and the leader-level Imperial Beasts, the eight of them, and several other organizations only have three or four each. Mr. Liu laugh and said that because the others still have their cards, unlike Captain Mu and him, who are too honest. Suddenly the ground something make a loud sound that made every people on the ground panic. The man called Mr. Liu because the state of the Devil Mantis is not right and the Mantis seems to be very scared. Suddenly he heard a big step coming toward them, then a big gorilla showed itself. Mr. Liu looked at it and said that the aura he feels is a lord level monster aura. Then Mr. Liu realizes that it was the lord of the Black Ember Forest. The lord of the forest screams loudly and ready itself to attack which made the people there panic. The captain of the military thinks the leader and managers are useless. Suddenly the military's killer golden beast got down from heaven which made the people think they're saved. When the lord of the forest is going to attack, the golden beast flies in front of it. Then the golden beast attacked the lord of the forest using its fire, but the lord of the forest shielded itself using his arm. The lord of the forest looks at his burning arm in shock, then turn around and leave. The military captain suggests to Mr. Liu to act quickly as their support can't go so far. The captain shouts at the people to assemble. The captain said to the man that the people with them are all a bunch of ripoffs. Also, he asks why they need the help of the people when their team in the military can take care of the situation themselves. The man said although they were one step ahead and noticed the change, they were able to take advantage of it and be prepared. But the world is changing more dramatically than they thought and the situation is increasingly dire. 
The man explains that in order to prepare for the non-governmental organization should grow and participate as soon as possible. Captain Mu and her team were in the cage, killing spiders using their beast and fire. One of her team said that their plan won't work because it was too wasteful of energy. The women also said although their imperial beasts can easily kill the elite quality monsters, the number of monsters is too many and their beast energy will be depleted soon. Captain Mu orders her team to adjust their formation, and she orders her defensive imperial beasts, to stand in the front row to support the imperial beast that stands in the center. Suddenly his defensive imperial beast was attacked by the spider. The girl order her thorn demon flower to use its thorn armor to pass at defensive imperial beasts. Then Captain Mu asks her beast to attack, then Captain Mu beast blows out the fire to attack the spiders. After Captain Mu's beast killed the spider they were happy because their tactics working. Suddenly they hear people fighting, but they realize that they are still at some distance from the mother spider's destination. Captain Mu run and order her team to move. Finally, Captain Mu's team arrived at the mother spider's destination and saw the other teams attacking the mother spider. The team's leaders realize that the mother spider has little offensive power and is only large enough to reproduce, but she is actually a very weak fighter. Then Mr. Liu suggests to other team leaders that they should work together to kill the mother spider, and after that, they can divide the credits according to the wounds they inflicted. Then Mr. Liu orders his support to attack the eyes of the mother spider using the back row of long range which his support immediately follow. Mr. Liu attacked the mother spider's eyes but he was shocked to see that it had a shield. On the other hand, the girl and Captain Mu's team said the situation is deadlocked, and they had to get down to help the other team. Also, if the mother spider die without their team's help, the military will deduct their contribution and other teams will also reject them. Captain Mu looked at the mother spider, then said her teammate was right and they have to go down to help, but she thinks something is not right with the mother spider, and she had a bad feeling. Suddenly the eye shield of the mother spider broke, and Mr. Liu notices it. Then Mount Liu Manta saw it and it jumped into the mother spider's eyes and attacked it, which made the mother spider shocked. Suddenly the spider screams loudly and the people around hear it suffer. Mr. Liu wonders who's the one who said that the mother spider doesn't have an attack power. Suddenly Mr. Liu's eyes widen because the mother spider is evolving into a lord level aura. Mr. Liu immediately rides to his mantis and makes it run while explaining that the mother spider is an evolving lord rank peak monster and apparently the evolutionary process of the mother spider was interrupted by them. Mr. Liu shouts at the people that isn't something they can solve and he orders the people to run. Meanwhile, in the forest, the captain of the military and the government were waiting for the teams to come back. Suddenly they saw someone flying in the sky coming their way. When the captain looks up and he thinks something wrong, he shouted to alert all the troops and order them to prepare for the battle. Mr. Liu who currently riding his mantis in the sky shouts to hold the fire. When Mr. Liu and his mantis landed Mr. Liu was down to the ground exhausted. Then one of the government's people run toward him to ask why he was alone. Suddenly Mr. Liu stands up and grabs the man's suit tie, while asking if their government sent them there to die because the mother spider that they said was a little offensive monster is in the process of advancing to the lord level. The captain holds Mr. Liu's hand and tells him to calm down. Also he should clarify the situation first. Mr. Liu ungrabs the man's suit tie then he explained that when they exploring the cave, they encountered a mother spider in the process of evolution. Due to the difference in strength they had to be one-sided and been massacred. Also, Mr. Liu said in order to complete the mission, they sent out their best beasts but all their beasts were killed inside the cave. The captain looks at the government researcher and asks them in an angry tone why they only said that the mother spider is with a little combat power, but the researcher can't say a word. Suddenly the man appeared in the distance, the captain asks the man where is the mother spider and if it follow him. The man responded that he don't know, and maybe the mother spider chasing the others because after they came out, they were all scattered and fled which made the other military personnel look at each other. The captain said if they knew in advance that the mother spider was in the process of advancing to the level of the lord, they won't just send a small amount of manpower. Also, the captain said if they can bring the mother spider back to the military zone and train it properly, it will definitely enhance the strength of their military zone. However, the mother spider failed to advance and become worthless, and the captain assured his people that they don't need to worry about the rest because one mountain can't tolerate two tigers, and the leader beast of the black ember forest will definitely not let it go. Meanwhile, in Monster Park, Dazai destroyed the stone, which made the other owner shocked. The other owner tells his beast to look at Dazai in an encouraging tone. Gao Peng was petting Dazai when he thinks Mr. Liu unexpectedly met two leader rank and one half leader rank monster after only taking over a government task. 
Gao Peng knows that the hunting environment in the wild is getting more and more severe, and the value of the corpse of the common level monster is pitifully low. Then the price of an elite level monster's corpse is only enough to buy a snack for Dummy. So, Gao Peng thinks he needs to let Dummy and Dazai rise up to the leader rank as soon as possible, so that the success rate of hunting in the field is higher, and once his beast all advances, his reputation as a monster trainer would be established. If that time comes, Gao Peng plans to go to Yanjing City to get the senior monster trainer certificate, and get his one regular and one assistant, as long as he grows according to the route, he thinks he can continue to become stronger. Demi has broken through level 14, but unfortunately, no one has completed the task set by the Monster Hunters Guild, and Dummy has eaten all cedar pine needles at home, so Dummy can only stand foolishly in front of the refrigerator and stared at it every day. And after all time of training, Dazai also reached level 13. Suddenly Ting called for Gao Peng while showing her notebook, then Ting said inside her notebook she write her own summary of training tips for defensive beasts. Gao Peng took the notebook and check it while thinking since Ting choose to team up, she have to be well prepared and with her notebook, they can formulate tactics based on the characteristics of her beast. Gao Peng read on one page of Ting notebook that the will of steel is always more important than physical defense for the defensive beast. Then Gao Peng looked at Ting while thinking that Ting is really serious about their team, which made Ting confused. Gao Peng walked toward Ting, then he tiptoed to reach Ting, and tapped Ting's shoulder, then Gao Peng said he suddenly feels that Ting is quite easygoing, which made Ting more confused. Suddenly, they heard someone in the speaker ordering all students to gather in front of the stage, and there will be no free practice. When all the students gathered, the coach said their first phase of training is done, and before they start the second phase he would like to announce a list of names. The captain showed a piece of paper and started to call the names of the student written on it, and the captain said all the names he called was eliminated and they should leave the field which made the student who was called gets angry and protests. Suddenly the expression of the military trainers changes and asks if they have a problem, and said their instructors have seen how they have all been behaving in the past few weeks. The coach asks Zai Jiangyi if the phone is fun. Then he asks Hu Yanchen how can she sleep comfortably on the training field. Then the coach warned them that if they fool around and be lazy in basic training, then there is no point in continuing the training. The coach also said that the second phase of the training is a practical one, and if they continue with their kind of lax attitude, they will not only cause accidents, but they may even lose the lives of their beasts, which made the student shocked. One student said his teddy is the strongest, and absolutely can kill the monsters without leaving any behind. Suddenly someone said his teddy looks like a bluff, and he was afraid his teddy will be scared to crawl in an instant and ask him if you want to fight he still need his yellow-tailed king scorpion beast. The two men glaringly look at each other, then they shout at each other, which confused other students. Suddenly the coach said there should five people in a group, and they should get ready to start actual combat training. Also, the coach said the new group will be led by an instructor so they need to hurry up to find a group. The two classmates immediately jumped toward Gao Peng and Ting while shouting to other students to find other teams because there are teammates of Gao Peng and Ting. The other student starts to make a teammate. Suddenly the coach appeared on Gao Peng team while saying hi. Then the coach formally introduces himself as Zhang Renbai, and he said he'll be in charge of their group's practical training. Then Renbai asks Gao Peng group who wants to be the first to try. Renbai introduced the monster named Steel Pig, and it was level 9. The Steel Pig status is weakly wounded. The other teammate of Gao Peng shakingly asks Renbai if they can get a different monster. Renbai pointed to the other monster named Hairless Bloodhound and it was level 10. The Hairless Bloodhound quality is elite and its status is moderately injured and it was alerted. Gao Peng thinks the hyena looks unimpressive but it is actually an elite quality, and if his teammate gets excited and go berserk, the hyenas can be much more aggressive than the wild boars. Gao Peng walked toward Renbai and said since no one is gonna try, he'll be the first to challenge. Renbai released the wild boar out of its cage. Then the boar run towards where Gao Peng and Da Zai were. Da Zai changes to his combat form and Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to go ahead. The boar scream and attack Da Zai, but Da Zai avoided it, then Da Zai jump above the boar. Da Zai open his mouth, then bite the boar, which made the boar scream in pain. The boar jerked Da Zai off with force, then Da Zai was thrown to the ground injured, which make his teammates shocked because they think Da Zai lose. Gao Peng realizes that Da Zai is at a disadvantage, but Da Zai has already taken control of the situation because the boar is poisoned. Da Zai toxin has been injected into the steel pig along with the attack. The more violent the attack of the steel pig, the faster the toxin spreads. Suddenly the boar's feet shake, then the boar collapsed to the ground severely injured, which made his teammates and their beasts shocked. Da Zai stands up and looks at the lying boar. Renbai said the steel pig's face was blue, so it was clearly poisoned. 
Then Renbai congratulates Gao Peng because he passed today's training, and his centipede is very toxic and had good combat sense. However, Renbai said it's better to let Da Zai poison sparingly, otherwise it is difficult to improve Da Zai's combat power, and it will lose most of its combat power once it encounters enemies that are immune to poison. Gao Peng gives Da Zai a treat and said Da Zai did well, while Renbai thinks Gao Peng's centipede is almost raised like a dog. Renbai said the steel pig can still fight and he asked who will go next. One of Gao Peng teammates touched his beast and said his beast can participate in the second round battle, then his other teammates said he only have the ability to beat a dog in the water. The student mocked his other classmate and said he can only beat up the falling water teddy in his house, Renbai stopped them and ordered them to continue the training. The boar stands up again, and the student orders his yellow-tailed scorpion king to attack. The scorpion attacked the boar using its tail with a poison needle repeatedly, which made the boar dead, and the student was proud of his beast. Suddenly his beast collapsed to the ground with its mouth bubbling. That made the owner shocked. Gao Peng said his beast was poisoned which made the owner more confused, then Ting said Gao Peng words were true because Gao Peng's imperial beast, and the yellow-tailed scorpion's own poison were still left in the monster's body. Then Ting said it's not the case that all the imperial beasts with poison attacks have poison resistance. The owner asks if his beast was poisoned by itself, then the other teammates of them laugh because his yellow-tailed scorpion king laughs to death, which made the owner angry. The owner of the scorpion pointed to something and said to his teammate that before he laugh at him, he should look at his beast. When the student looked around he saw his beast running towards the dead boar. The student hold his beast and tried to stop it. Then the owner of the scorpion gives his scorpion an antidote, while in the back team was asking Gao Peng a question. Renbai thinks Gao Peng team was not easy to lead. The next day, Dummy opened the refrigerator cabinet, but it was still empty, so Dummy close it hard. Then Dummy opens it again hoping that the cedar pine needle was in it. Gao Peng who's looking at Dummy thinks Dummy was so silly and cute, while behind him Da Zai was eating. Suddenly Gao Peng phone rang. When he picked it up and see it was the Monster Hunting Association number, he thinks it must be the Cedar Pine Needles. Gao Peng answered the phone. Then the voice on the other line said his task number posted in the Monster Hunting Association had been completed, and his item will arrive at the pickup location at the scheduled time. Gao Peng immediately wears his shoes because he thinks if the shortage continues, he wants to give Dummy a new evolutionary route. Gao Peng called the robot who delivered his Cedar Pine Needles item. On the other hand, there have two men in the alley looking at Gao Peng. The second brother asks his boss if Gao Peng was the one who paid a lot of money to buy cedar pine needles, to which his boss agreed. The boss told his men that in the night they were going to do a big job. The third brother asks him if they are really okay doing something bad. The boss looked at the man angrily and said that he was really useless, then his second brother punched his head, then shout at him angrily. The boss said they were not going to attack right away, they just going to check it first, and if they really can't afford to offend, they will withdraw immediately. The night comes, the three men was quietly walking around in the neighborhood. Then the second brother of their group asks their boss why the neighborhood is so shabby, and he feels it was poorer than the hellhole they live in. The boss said it was better because the kid has no background, but recently made a fortune, so it was more suitable for them. The three men finally arrive at Gao Peng apartment door and the boss is trying to unlock Gao Peng door. Suddenly someone's door opens, then Tang Tang asks them what they're doing in the middle of the night. The two men shield their boss and said the hallway is too tight, and he couldn't open their door at once. Tang Tang turns around and said okay while she was pulling her door close. Suddenly the man stops her door to close, then the man asks her if they can come in and get a glass of water because they're thirsty. Tang Tang said, of course, then she asked the men to come in. The boss and the second brother look at each other smiling. The boss order his second brother to say thank you while the third brother was afraid behind them. When the three man was inside Tang Tang's apartment, the boss signals his second brother to lock the door, then the second brother follow his boss and lock it. Tang Tang hear it and asks why they lock the door. The boss said they were afraid of disturbing the other neighbors at the late hour. Tang Tang said they can rest assured because she uses special soundproofing material in her walls, and even if they play bouncy, they won't disturb the next door neighbors, which made the three men shocked in fear because they saw Tang Tang expression, and behind Tang Tang was her big beast. Tang Tang walks toward the three man, suddenly the boss pulled a knife, then tries to stab Tang Tang, but Tang Tang attacks his arms, which made the man bend in pain. The other two men were shocked, then the third brother asks his beast to help their boss. The beast tried to attack, but Tang Tang beast grab it and eat it which made the two men shocked. Tang Tang patted her beast and asked why it eating randomly again. Suddenly, Tang Tang and her beast are attacked. The boss praised his bullet rat beast and mocked Tang Tang. 
but the boss was shocked when he saw Tang Tang was not injured. Tang Tang said she told them the answer, but they also don't understand it. Tang Tang looked at the three man and then said that was okay because she will teach them a lesson by hand. Then Tang Tang changed to something which made the three man shake in fear. The boss shouts and said grandma and admits that he was wrong. Gao Peng heard the scream from his bedroom, but he just thinks it was someone who doesn't sleep in the middle of the night. Tang Tang tied up the three man and called Old Kai. Tang Tang said she have three volunteers, so Old Kai shouldn't worry because the three man was well trained and she can guarantee that the three man will guard the border until the last moment. The morning comes, Gazai and the other monster were tired, which made their owners shocked because their beasts can't break the defense. The monster was named Mutant Water Bear Bug, it was level 12 elite, and its quality is normal. The Mutant Water Bear Bug status is healthy but lazy, and its first weakness is fire, the second is don't let it have water and get dehydrated and die, and lastly, it will die if it gets chopped. Gao Peng thinks it's time to consider the third beast of him and he wonders if he will sign for a water bear bug because Gao Peng knows water bears bugs are hardy beings that can survive in space, nuclear radiation, minus 200 degrees below zero, and microwave ovens. Also after the catastrophe, the vitality has been further improved and the water bear bug has strong resistance to abnormal attributes. However, Gao Peng knows that the water bear bug kind of beast has a strong ability to protect itself, so there is no need to cooperate with Da Zai and Dummy, and choosing a long-range attack or defense type is more suitable. But if there's a room for flying beast or healing beast is more better. Suddenly, Gao Peng noticed the noise and saw Ting cheering her beast killing the hyena while Ren Bai tried to make Ting stay away from her beast because the beast is fighting. Gao Peng thinks Lotus Seed's timid character has improved a lot under Ting's training. Then his phone in his pocket rang. Gao Peng answered the call and Mr. Liu asked him if he have free time today. Gao Peng asks what is it. Then Mr. Liu said he'd like to invite him to dinner and he have some friend coming over so he'd like him to introduce him to them. Gao Peng thinks Mr. Liu's attitude seems to be too flattering but after the last Black Ember Forest incident, Mr. Liu's company lost a lot of money and powerful monster trainers like him naturally they don't spare any effort to draw in. Gao Peng agreed and said they should meet at the school gate after school. The school ends, then Gao Peng was in Mr. Liu's car and apologized to Mr. Liu for convenience. Mr. Liu smiled and said it was okay because he was also on his way, and it happens that his daughter was in Gao Peng's school, so he came to pick her up from their school as well. Mr. Liu's daughter named Liu Zheyu tells Mr. Liu that he only come to her school the second time to her school this year, and the first time was at the beginning of the school year. Mr. Liu laughs and changes the topic by asking Gao Peng if he has time to look and help Zheyu Beast. Gao Peng looked at Jiu's beast and said her cat-like beast is relatively rare. Jiu beast named Mint Cat, it was level 12, and its quality was normal. Mint Cat attribute is a wood system and its weakness is the water system. Gao Peng tells Jiu that he's in the studio on Saturdays and Sundays and she can meet him in the studio on weekends, which made Jiu happy. Mr. Liu arrives at their apartment building, then he asks Jiu to go home first because he and Gao Peng still have things to do. Jiu got down in the car and said goodbye to Gao Peng, while Gao Peng wondered why Mr. Liu left her daughter to go home first when he was going to meet friends, and Gao Peng thinks the situation is getting stranger and stranger. Gao Peng asks Mr. Liu what are the identities of his friends, but Mr. Liu just said Gao Peng will know when they arrive. Gao Peng and Mr. Liu arrive at the place, then Mr. Liu asks Gao Peng to follow him. While Mr. Liu and Gao Peng were walking, Gao Peng notices that the place is decorated in the style of a landscape garden, probably the work of a master who is well versed in the design of the northern and southern gardens and Gao Peng thinks Mr. Liu friend's identity must not be simple. Mr. Liu and Gao Peng arrive at the dining table and Mr. Liu introduce Gao Peng to Captain Song Si of the Firefly Hunting Team and Captain Zhang Gu of the Sky Star Hunters, but Captain Zhang said he didn't expect the mystery that Mr. Liu said as a young boy. Gao Peng thinks that it's not a coincidence that all the people sitting there are from monster hunting teams, and the eyes of these people looking at him were filled with temptation and doubt that made him feel very uncomfortable. Mr. Liu said they should start the dinner, suddenly Captain Zhang said wait a minute and look at Gao Peng. Captain Zhang asks Gao Peng why he doesn't look happy and if they come too abruptly and make him unhappy. Captain Song asks Zhang if he came there to scare a child and if it spread that some of them were bullying a student. It's going to be very shameful. Mr. Liu explained that he didn't make an appointment with Gao Peng, so he didn't know they had so many good friends there, then Mr. Liu apologized to everyone in the room. Captain Zhang responded that they tried to know Gao Peng for a long time, and they always wanted to meet him in person to get some advice, but is really hard to find. Then Captain Zhang asked Gao Peng to drink with them. Also the other people in the room asks Gao Peng to drink with them. 
Gao Peng thinks the group of people in the room seems to be passionate, but their words are loaded. Obviously, they don't seem to come to the place just to have a good meal. Mr. Liu gives Gao Peng a glass of wine and then Mr. Liu apologizes to him because he didn't arrange the situation properly. But Gao Peng thinks he created value for Mr. Liu that far exceeded what he was paying him. In other words, Mr. Liu owes him. But now Mr. Liu was planning something at him. Gao Peng wanted to see how the feast is going to be. Captain Zhang put his chopstick down and said he was a rough man, and he had something he wanted to say to Gao Peng. Captain Zhang said Gao Peng is young and capable, also he had a 100% promotion rate. Captain Zhang also said that he doesn't know if Gao Peng is as magical as the rumors say he is. Gao Peng responded that the main reason for his situation is for the love and care of the examiner Feng. Then Gao Peng tell Captain Zhang that if he need anything, he can come to their company for consultation. Captain Zhang said Gao Peng words are too raw. And since Gao Peng is a friend of Mr. Liu, Gao Peng is also a friend of his, and friends help each other, then Captain Zhang asks Gao Peng why should the company take part in it. The other captain said Captain Zhang is right, and tried to convince him to help them for free. Gao Peng looked at them angrily while thinking the group of people in front of him thinks he was an idiot. Gao Peng left the dinner and suddenly Mr. Liu and the other captains called for him. But Gao Peng said he was just a high school student who hasn't been in the industry for a long time, so he can't afford to take on such an important task. Mr. Liu said it was all his fault because he didn't arrange the party properly and he asks Gao Peng to let him drive him. Gao Peng showed his phone and said no need because he already made an appointment for a car in advance. The car arrived, then Gao Peng left. The other captain thinks Gao Peng is ungrateful, then Mr. Liu apologizes to the other captain because he only had good intentions. The other captain said alright and go inside because Mr. Liu was kind enough to invite them. Suddenly someone touched Mr. Liu's shoulder, Captain Jiang tells Mr. Liu that he helped him to target Gao Peng and provoke his relationship with other groups, so the favor Mr. Liu did for him in the Black Ember Forest is over. Mr. Liu tells Captain Zhang that they were a lifelong friend and they should help each other more, but Captain Zhang disagree and said one rule is one rule, they are not friends. Captain Zhang turns around at Mr. Liu while thinking that Gao Peng helped him so much, in order to tie him to his boat he has to set him up, and Captain Zhang called Mr. Liu Old Fox. Three years ago, Earth underwent a cataclysm. The animals and plants in the world started to change and evolve crazily and inexplicably. The entirety of human civilization was hit hard with countless casualties. In order to protect the world from being destroyed and uphold world peace, humans have awakened the ability to control monsters and use them to fight. He is a normal high school student whose parents were killed during the cataclysm. However, not only he does have a powerful and mysterious beauty protecting him, he even awakened a mysterious system and when it comes to taming and raising monsters, he shall reign supreme. However, the Earth's cataclysm also caused the bizarre disappearance of his grandfather. In the face of deadly dangers that are coming one after another, there is only one path he can take, and that is to become powerful and become the strongest monster trainer, also to succeed in evolving an epic-grade familiar. However, in the future, he will one day realize that the epic-grade monster evolution is just the beginning. Our main protagonist's name is Gao Peng. He is 18 years old, a student at Chang'an 3rd Senior High School, and his dream is to become the Imperial Ambassador. Gao Peng was walking home while wondering why he often sees some strange interfaces and think he was hallucinating because of the stress recently. Gao Peng opened the gate of the apartment and started to walk upstairs. Suddenly he noticed something and confirmed that he was not hallucinating. The virtual screen said the monster's name is Grey Disc Spider, it was level 3, its status is healthy and irritable. Also the monster's weakness is flame. Gao Peng remembers that the spider owned by Grandma Chen and his teacher Murong said that Grey Disc Spiders are very gentle. Suddenly the spider attacked him, fortunately, he avoided it but he was shocked. Gao Peng was running to the stairs while calling Granny Chen's name because her spider came out to bite people. The spider got up and attacked him again but Gao Peng avoided it and run again. Suddenly when he looked back the spider was near to him, and while he was panicking he remembered that the spider was weak in flame. Then he lit the lighter and throw it at the spider. The spider burns and collapsed to the ground but he realizes that the fire is too small, then the monster gets up and looked at him angrily. Gao Peng realizes it and starts to run while thinking he needs to pass one more floor and he'll be home because Big Purple is at his home. Gao Peng continues to run while the spider follows him and attacks him. Gao Peng finally arrive at his room door, but suddenly the spider jumped toward him. Gao Peng called Big Purple and it opens his door room, then attack the spider. Big Purple come out into the room, which made the spider shake in fear. Gao Peng asks the spider if it still wants to play with the Big Purple in his back. The spider crawls up to the ceiling quickly and runs. Gao Peng said it was a fast runner. Suddenly Big Purple said she want to eat and asks him why he was so late 
and he's starving her to death. The monsters are divided into a total of two forms, the combat form and the non-combat form. In the non-combat states, the monster will reduce its size to reduce energy consumption, and can also slowly recover some minor damage. Also, when the owner bond with a monster, they can communicate with it telepathically, and his monster named is Dazzy's. Gao Ping pat Da Zai's head and said he'll cook for her. He enters the kitchen and asks Da Zai's to put his bag on the cabinet. Then he prepares himself to start showing his real skill. Gao Peng chops the meat and other ingredients, then prepare his special nutrition dinner. Da Zai smells her food and then eats it. Gao Peng reminds Da Zai to eat slowly and then checks Da Zai's data. Da Zai monster's name is purple-backed yellow-clawed centipede. She was level 7, and her attribute was yin and poison system. Da Zai's status is healthy and happy, also her weakness is Thunder Flame. Suddenly Gao Peng saw that Da Zai's upgraded from a normal quality monster to a promotion of elite quality. The quality of monsters is divided into ordinary quality, elite quality, and perfect quality from low to high. The higher the quality of the monster, the greater its potential of the monster. Gao Peng thinks if Da Zai can be promoted to elite quality it means she can be promoted to perfect quality that can break through the legendary barrier and rise to the rank of a leader. Gao Peng hugs Da Zai and promises to make her promoted to elite quality, which made Da Zai confused. Gao Peng clicked the quality requirements and saw that he need 10 pieces of Yin Shengzheng, one piece of Thunder Wood, and one piece of Thunder Crystal Core. He thinks he can get Shengzheng Grass easily by spending little money. He can get Lightning Wood too but Lightning Crystal Core is troublesome, and the common 5 Crystal Core cost 8 credits. Gao Peng thinks it was expensive, then he closed the virtual screen. After the formation of the New World Alliance, the common currency was established as the Union Currency, and credits, then credits are premium currency based on affiliate coins, 10,000 affiliate coins can be exchanged for 1 credit point. When his mother and father had their accident, the state paid out 20 credit points of pension, and he still has 11 credits on hand, which is barely enough to get the materials for Da Zai's promotion. Gao Peng looked at Da Zai and thinks his credits is just to upgrade Da Zai, and he won't be able to get through the rest of the days. Dazzy eats all of her food but she is still hungry and asks Gao Peng for more. Gao Peng reminds her that she was a centipede, but Da Zai interrupts his words by shouting she's hungry, which made Gao Peng said okay. Gao Peng gives another bowl of food to Da Zai and watched her eat it while thinking the method of promotion is empty but he doesn't have money to buy materials. Suddenly he thinks that if the information on the system is correct, then maybe he could become a monster trainer. Gao Peng thinks when the time comes, he can have as much money as he wants. Suddenly he remembers his teacher saying that tomorrow there will be a monster trainer exam, and interested students can go with their parents to see it. Gao Peng immediately opened his phone because he doesn't know when the registration period will be closed. When he opened the apps he saw that the deadline was only 3 minutes left. He immediately clicks yes to apply for the monster trainer exam. But the system was busy and he needs to wait. Fortunately, he was successful in registration and he was happy to catch up. The next day, Gao Peng knocks on the neighbor's door. The neighbor named Tang Tang opens the door and Gao Peng greets her good morning shyly. Tang Tang asks Gao Peng why he wants to see him so early. Gao Peng said he was going to take the monster trainer's exam and he asks if she can take care of Da Zai for a few days. Tang Tang happily accepts his request and Gao Peng thanks her because he's able to take his exam with peace of mind. Then he left while saying he'll treat her to dinner when he gets back. Suddenly Tang Tang look at Da Zai disgusted because Da Zai's qualifications are ordinary and she was not cute. Then she asked Da Zai how Gao Peng get involved with such an unlucky plaything like her. This made Da Zai angry, but Tang Tang petted Da Zai's head and said the old man will be furious when he find out. The two enter the room, then Tang Tang called the old man. Tang Tang said Gao Peng signed an imperial beast, an ordinary quality purple-backed yellow-clawed centipede, which made the old man angry and tell her to talk to Gao Peng. Tang Tang asks the old man how he can persuade Gao Peng when he is exactly the same as him, and on the surface, Gao Peng doesn't care about anything. But in reality, he is stubborn like an ox, and Da Zai was left by his daughter and son-in-law. Tang Tang changes the topic and asks the old man if he's done with his business. Tang Tang tells the old man that they kill all the disobedient people, and replace them with obedient ones. Tang Tang was looking at Gao Peng in the window assuring the old man to not worry because as long as she was with Gao Peng he won't be in danger. Then she hung up. Meanwhile, in the company, Chairman called his secretary and ordered her to tell the lab that he only give them five months, and if they don't work for him, they don't need to exist. The chairman swing his hand to make the secretary leave, then the secretary agree and vowed. The chairman looks at his phone while saying Gao Peng within a year, everything will be solved and then he will go to meet him, and no one can hurt him. At the Chang'an City Monster Division, many people are waiting to go inside. Gao Peng says that, the monster trainers are really a hot commodity because there are a lot of people. Suddenly someone called his name. 
When he looked back he saw Lai Zigong calling for him. Gao Peng walked to Lai Zigong and saw that he was with her sister named Lai Hongdu and his mother named Jiang Hong. Gao Peng greeted Jiang Hong. Then Lai Zigong said there are in Chang'an to take the exam with their mom, and Jiang Hong asked if he comes alone to watch the monster trainer's exam. Lai Zigong said his sister was also there to take the exam even though she did not pass the exam three time which made Lai Hongdu angry, then hit him with her back. Suddenly Gao Peng said he was there to take the exam, which made everyone shocked. Jiang Hong held onto his shoulder and said young people should be ambitious and maybe he become the youngest monster trainer in Chang'an. Gao Peng shyly responded that he was not good as Jiang Hong said and that he just came to try his luck. Suddenly someone asks if Jiang Hong was talking about the youngest monster trainer in Chang'an City, then he asks in a mocking tone when did the threshold for monster trainers become so low that any dog or cat can participate. Lai Zigong got angry but Lai Hong do stop him. The man said he thought it was ridiculous that even a kid wants to be a trainer. Suddenly Gao Peng said if he can become a trainer by talking. He must already be a senior monster trainer, which made the man angry. Then the man shouted at Gao Peng as a warning. Jiang Hong said the man named Wang Shu, the son of the Wang group, and Wang Shu failed four consecutive monster trainers exams. Suddenly the people notice that the door of the building is opening. Then a guard comes out with the man. The man named Feng Zhu, chief examiner of Chang'an Monster Trainers Division. Feng Zhu announced that the Monster Trainers exam is starting and asked everyone to take the test in an orderly manner. When everyone was inside the building, Feng Zhu welcomed them and explained that the exam is divided into two levels, the literary test and the martial arts test. Feng Zhu said that their first test is a written test, three videos will be shown on the big screen, and they will pass if they accurately describe the monsters that appear in the video. Without further ado, the examination begins. The big screen showed a dolphin swimming under the water, then showed its heads outside the water. The video ended fast, which made the examiners shock. Feng Zhu said it was the first video, and they have 20 minutes to think about their answers. Examiners were panicking because they can identify the monster in a short period of time. Feng Zhu shouts that anyone who makes any more noise will be punished as cheating and will be expelled from the examination room, which made everyone silent. Wang Shu thinks that the literary test this year is hardest than in past years, but he got the exam question in advance. Suddenly Wang Shu noticed Gao Peng smiling, and he thought Gao Peng was pretending. On other hand, Gao Peng was happy because he can see the monster's data, dolphin named was Storm Dolphin. The Storm Dolphin likes soothing music, sunbathing, and eating all kind of fish and shrimp. The dolphin also fears dark attribute attacks and hate cluttered sound waves. Gao Peng immediately write all he saw in his paper test. The second video was in the forest with the gorilla getting a banana in the tree, and suddenly the gorilla saw the videographer, then throw a banana at the videographer and hide behind the three. Gao Peng saw that the gorilla named Mighty Gorilla, it's like to climb trees and eat bananas, the gorilla had an impatient personality, and it easily angered, also he fears poisonous monster attacks. Gao Peng immediately writes the monster data on his paper. The last video is still in the forest with a mantis on the ground. The mantis saw the videographer and it jumped into the trees. Gao Peng saw that the mantis named Scythe Mantis, it's fighting for courage and strength. The Scythe Mantis is a carnivorous monster, it likes to eat all kinds of insects, and it fears fire and flame attacks. Gao Peng smiles because he knows he passed the test. The time was up, and Feng Zhu said that the paper will be collected. The other man collects all the paper, and he lastly collects Gao Peng papers and then said that he should wait at the building for his test result. One hour later, Feng Zhu was holding the paper, while saying the result of the examination are out, and he will announce the list of qualified persons. Feng Zhu called for Zhang Hong, Wang Shu, and others. Feng Zhu said all of the examiners made some mistakes, but they passed their exam, and he wished these candidates the best of luck in their martial arts exam. Wang Shu asks Gao Peng why he didn't pass the test in a mocking tone. Gao Peng didn't say a word and he wonder if there was a mistake in the data given by the system. Suddenly Feng Zhu asks who is Gao Peng. Gao Peng immediately stand up and raised his hand. Feng Zhu said he didn't expect that the candidate who scored perfect on the test would be so young and he tell that the heroes are really young while clapping. Everyone was shocked because he perfect the exam at a young age. Gao Peng looked at Wang Shu and set a perfect score on the written exam. And Gao Peng apologized for letting Wang Shu down in a sarcastic tone which made Wang Shu angry. Feng Zhu assists the past examiners to the other part of the building. When everyone enters the place, Feng Zhu welcomes them to the second exam of the martial test, and explained that the marital arts test is very simple. There are monsters provided by the association in the room, and they only have to improve the quality of the monster within a week to pass. All materials consumed during the evaluation will be provided by the association but if they fail to improve the quality they have to pay the market price. Also, every material had a certain amount, and if the amount exceeded too much it was considered a failure which made Gao Peng and others worried. 
Feng Zhu claps his hand. Then the supervisor of Chang'an's monsters division named Lai Jin showed holding a red box and asks everyone to take a card for their room one by one. Everyone lines up and then grabs cards in the box one by one. While Gao Peng was waiting in line, he thinks that there is no way to know what kind of monster he will encounter in this random selection process. And no wonder everyone said that the monster trainer's certificate is one of the most difficult certificates to obtain. On other hand, Wang Shu was looking at Gao Peng while thinking that Gao Peng should be proud of himself for a while because he'll see him later. Gao Peng was grabbing his cards wishing that he can draw a good card. When Gao Peng was done and walked past by Lai Jin, Lai Jin smiled in a mocking way. Zhang Hong walked towards Gao Peng and said she get room number 6, then asks Gao Peng what he get. Gao Peng said he got room 10. When everyone had a room card, Feng Ziyu asks them to find their room according to the room card they have drawn, and he announces that the martial arts examination officially begins. Gao Peng arrived at his room and meet the person in charge of room 10 named Zhu Yuan. Zhu Yuan opened the room. Gao Peng was nervous waiting to fully open the door and saw the ape monster behind the cage. Gao Peng saw that the monster's status was negative lesions and pre-abolished. Gao Peng asked Zhu Yuan what happened to the Red River Ape. Zhu Yuan responded that too many experiments have accumulated. A lot of waste and conflicting energy in the ape's body. Zhu Yuan tell him that the ape should have been eliminated, but there are no more monsters left in the association for him to train. In reality, before the examination, Zhu Yuan asked Lai Jin why he put the ape on the assessment list, but Lai Jin just responded that he shouldn't worry about it, because he have his own agenda. Then Lai Jin called Wang Shu to confirm that his work was done, and guarantee that Gao Peng will not be able to pass the martial arts test. Zhu Yuan said that the ape has been able to survive until now solely on its own perseverance, but the possibility of it being promoted is too low, and he can help him apply and keep the result of the written exam, then he can take the martial exam next time. Gao Peng looked at the ape, then Gao Peng thanked Zhu Yuan for his kind words, but he decided to continue the exam. Zhu Yuan agreed, then left the room. Gao Peng stood in the ape front, which made the ape shake in fear. Zhu Yuan thinks the material and dosage of the culture solution are correct, but it's not effective. He also thinks that there is a serious conflict between energy in the ape body, and the Red River ape is hopeless and completely ruined. The ape grabs the bar of its cage, then roar at Gao Peng with tears in its eye. Suddenly Gao Peng petted the ape's head, then said don't worry because he'll definitely help him evolve. Gao Peng opened the Red River Ape promotion to elite quality. He saw that it have two promotion routes, the normal evolution and the advance of lesion distortion. He thinks that the normal way of evolution required too many materials to be consumed. Gao Peng realizes that the ape succeeded the number of materials given for the examination, and he knows that he'll have to take a risk. Gao Peng choose the advanced lesion distortion material and then write the ingredients he needs like black candle grass, undead monster crystal core, luminous powder, sulfuric acid water, skeleton mushroom, and grass knot. Gao Peng handed the paper to Zhu Yuan. Zhu Yuan read all the ingredients and realized that all ingredients are full of toxic. Then he asks Gao Peng if he's going to train the ape or kill it. Gao Peng responded that a serious disease needs a strong cure, and he assured Zhu Yuan that he knows what he's doing. Then he closed the door, leaving Zhu Yuan confused. Zhu Yuan thinks Gao Peng full marks on the written exam were just luck and he's another guy who can only talk about things on paper. Three days later, one examiner was beaten by the monsters but still wanted to take another test. The other one almost made the monster promoted. But something went wrong, and someone was going crazy because his scientific experiments were no effect. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks that the interface solution is correct. The black candle grass healed the wounds in the ape's body, and after eating black candle grass for three days in a row, the ape's spirit and condition reached a brief peak. Gao Peng also saw that the undead monster's cores are starting to take effect. Then Gao Peng looked at the key in his hand while saying he just need to put the ape in sulfuric acid water and soak it. Zhu Yun give the key to him while warning him to be careful because the ape has been tested and tortured many times. Gao Peng thinks it's difficult for the monsters to communicate in complex ways without a blood contract, but he comes so far and he can only choose to believe. Gao Peng tells the ape that he'll let him out, but he needs to be obedient. Then Gao Peng opens the cage, then order him to come out with open arms. The ape run towards him, which made him shocked, but the ape hug him. Gao Peng petted its heads while saying that they need to go because it was important to help him get promoted. Gao Peng stands up and opened the curtains where the sulfuric acid water was. Gao Peng ordered the ape to lie in and take a dip in the acidic water while assuring the ape that it will be transformed. The ape picks some hair in its body, then throws it into the acidic water. The hair produced smoke, which made the ape shocked in fear. The ape turned to Gao Peng and then shake its head. 
Gao Peng touched its head and said he can give the ape strength, but it must be courageous which made the ape thinks. The ape finally has courage, then goes into the sulfuric acid water, and when the ape is fully soaked, the smoke comes out from it, which made Gao Peng cough and alerted the smoke detector. The operator saw that the fire alarm was triggered in room 10. Then he called the security officer for help. Zhu Yun grabbed the fire extinguisher, then walked toward room 10 with the other security officer, which made the other examiners confused. On other hand, Wang Xu thinks his money was not spent in vain because Lai Jin is reliable. The security officer arrives at room 10, then Zhu Yuan kicked the door. When they were inside, they were confused because there was no fire, only smoke. Gao Peng notices them and asks Zhu Yuan what brings them into the room. Zhu Yuan point to the fire detector and tells to Gao Peng that he made a lot of noise and that they were there to check on him. Gao Peng apologized for the scene he made, then the other security officer leave while Zhu Yuan called the operator that room 10 is clear. Feng Zhu enters the room with Lai Jin while asking what happened. Zhu Yuan whispered the current situation to Feng Zhu which made Feng Zhu shocked. On other hand, the other examiners were outside the room talking about Gao Peng being inexperienced, with Wang Shu thinking Gao Peng's experiment failed. Suddenly, the acidic water in the bathtub boil, then a skeletal hand pops up, and then the skeletal face, which made Wang Shu and the other examiners shocked in fear. The monster stands up, then gets out of the bathtub which made the ground break and made everyone in the room stun. The monster looks at Gao Peng, and Gao Peng knows that he successfully completed the evolution of the Red River Ape. The monster's new name was the Battle Bone Dead Ape, his level is 11. His quality is elite, and his attribute is undead. The monster's status was weak but excited, also its weakness is light. Gao Peng checks the ape's new body with happiness. On other hand, Lai Jin said that the Battle Bone Dead Ape was a new type of monster that has never been discovered. Feng Zhu thinks Lai Jin was correct. But the truly precious is not the monster, but the one who created the monster. Gao Peng suddenly notices Feng Zhu in the back and looks back to say that he succeeded. Suddenly the monster grabs his coat, then Gao Peng look at it. Gao Peng touch its finger and said he was done helping it to improve its quality, which made the monster sad. On the other hand, Lai Jin thinks the monsters that are promoted are usually given to the employees of the association as rewards, and he wants to get the rare monsters. Suddenly Feng Zhu said that the monster is very dependent on Gao Peng, and in that case, he'll give the monster to Gao Peng which made Lai Jin, Zhu Yuan and Gao Peng shocked. Feng Zio confirmed that he was giving the monster to Gao Peng, but Gao Peng still can believe it. Feng Zio explains that the Battle Bone Dead Ape monster is not recorded, and the data on all aspects are unknown. However, it looks like the upgrade was successful, then Feng Zio asks if he wants to take the monster. Gao Peng looked at the monster and saw that the monster can be promoted to epic. Zhu Yuan holds Gao Peng's shoulder while saying that the ape really wanted to go with him and that he shouldn't leave it. Suddenly Lai Jin protests at Feng Zhu because, in the association's rule, the successfully evolved monsters are usually awarded to the association's employees, and the ape has been tested six times. Suddenly Wang Xu shouted that the monster should have been eliminated. Then Lai Jin said to have such an advanced monster is certainly not something that a young age person and no experience can do. Then Wang Xu shouted that Gao Peng must have cheated. Feng Zhu asks what kind of cheating Wang Xu talking about, Lai Jin responds that the difficulty of the exam is far beyond what the junior trainer can handle. And maybe Gao Peng just happened to know some methods somewhere and accidentally cured the monster, so the result may not be the true level of Gao Peng. Feng Zhu asks what he means in his words. Lai Jin responded that the result is successful, and the certificate that should be combined is still given to Gao Peng, but the monster should still follow the usual rule. Suddenly Feng Zhu laughed hard, then said he's not strict in discipline, and there are not many monsters in Chang'an, so he doesn't know how to raise the monster, then he asks Gao Peng to show his skills, to let them know that there is a world beyond. Gao Peng said he just came to get the certificate, then he asks how did he get into trouble. Gao Peng looked at Wang Shu while saying he was young, so he must cheat it on tests. Then he looked at Lai Jin and said Lai Jin can't do it, but he can do it, so he's just blind. Gao Peng asks them if others can do it, they think it's impossible, so there must be something fishy. Gao Peng explained that the name of the Red River Ape has a river on it. It's just because the ape group lives and multiplies by the Hongshui River, in fact, the ape attributes have nothing to do with water because there is a river in the monster's name. And judging by the ape's previous state, there is more than one idiot who made such a judgment and gives the ape a large amount of water and yin materials to swallow. Also, the past examiners didn't know the weakness of the ape is the yin system, and if they didn't know common sense knowledge, they lived their age in vain. Suddenly Wang Xu shout that the weakness of the ape is the wood system and Gao Peng was wrong. Then Feng Zhu said although the ape will have a fearful response to the wood system, its weakness is indeed the yin system, which made Wang Xu silence. Gao Peng explained that the strength of the Red River Ape's body goes deep into the bone marrow, and it's hard to clear it, so he did the opposite. 
The first three days Gao Peng gives the ape a black candle grass to strengthen its soul, then supplemented by a large amount of undead materials. Gao Peng said that there is nothing he need to hide, but he advised them not to try it casually because what really matters is the order in which the materials are added and the ratio between them. And if they don't know, they shouldn't just toss it around, because he's not sure what the tested monster will become. Suddenly Feng Zhu claps while saying the new generation is fearful, and Gao Peng ability was wrong for the junior trainer certificate, and he will grant him an intermediate monster trainer certificate. Feng Zhu grabs Gao Peng's shoulder and said that the intermediate certificate is beyond his authority, and that he must go to the Yanjing headquarters to accept the assessment. But with his qualification, he'll get it. Then Feng Zhu looked at Lai Jin and Wang Shu, then asks who was cheating. And he asks them how they think he become the chairman of the board that he can't find out the truth. Also Feng Zhu asks who just said that the ape was a test piece that was supposed to be eliminated is in the test examination room which made Wang Shu and Lai Jin shocked in fear. The other examiners confirmed that they always felt that Wang Shu's speech is weird and Lai Jin was always targeting Gao Peng. Then Zhu Yuan raised his hand and said he can testify. Zhu Yuan said that Lai Jin is the one who deliberately added the ape to the assessment list. And then Zhu Yuan pointed to Wang Shu and said Lai Jin did it because he took bribes from Wang Shu. Also he said that the evidence is in the monster's mobilization record. Wang Shu fell to the floor because he knows it was over for him. Feng Zhu announced that Wang Shu has severely cheated and was exempt from reference qualification, and will not be allowed in the examination of the Chang'an Monster Trainer Association for the next three years. Feng Zhu also expelled Lai Jin from the Chang'an Monsters Trainers Teachers Association, and will never be hired. Wang Shu and Lai Jin were being thrown by a guard while the examiners said they deserve it. Feng Zhu faces Gao Peng and asks him if he wants to sit in his office and have a cup of tea. Feng Zhu also said that he has a little favor for Gao Peng. At Feng Zhu office, Feng Zhu said he would like to invite Gao Peng to represent Chang'an City in the World Monster Trainers competition. And he also said that the number and quality of trainers in Chang'an City are not very optimistic, which is why he never had a good result in major monster trainers competition for several years. Feng Zhu asks Gao Peng if he's willing to represent Chang'an City because the World Monster Trainers competition doesn't have a strict age limit, whether it is the elderly, middle-aged, or young people. Feng Zhu also said that in terms of growth potential, young talent like Gao Peng must have an advantage. Suddenly Gao Peng laughed in nervousness, which made Feng Zhu thinks Gao Peng is not interested. Feng Zhu said it was a pity because the top players can get the prize, and the top 10 can get at least 10,000 credits. Suddenly Gao Peng stands up which made Feng Zhu shocked. When Gao Peng heard about the prize he agreed to the competition. At the bus stop, Gao Peng was happy to get the intermediate certificate, and he heard that 30 points of the points he got in his monster trainer exam will be added to the college entrance exam. He also named the Skull Ghoul Ape Dummy because it liked today's when it was alone. The bus arrives, then Gao Peng enters the bus while thinking that the monster trainer exam was great because he get an elite quality monster and made a great profit. Also Gao Peng gets the identity token. Gao Peng and Dummy were on the bus while Gao Peng wondered if they really going to the competition because it sounds very annoying. On the other hand, people in the back of them whisper about dummy appearance. Then one passenger tried to touch dummy, but dummy attacked the passenger, but Gao Peng didn't notice it. The monsters faced the passenger and tried to pierce the passenger's eye. Suddenly Gao Peng called dummy, then dummy ungrabbed the passenger and faced Gao Peng. Gao Peng said in order to support dummy and Da Zai he needs to go to the competition. Gao Peng jokingly said that he is handsome and genius at a young age and that heaven will be jealous. On the other hand, the passengers think Gao Peng hasn't signed a contract with a monster, yet he could make the fierce monster obedient. Gao Peng and Dummy get down on the bus, while they were walking Dummy notices something. Then he pushed Gao Peng to the side, then Dummy changes to his combat form and blocks the way where Gao Peng was, while looking at something. Gao Peng stands up and asks Dummy why he pushed him. Gao Peng look at where Dummy is looking, and realize Dummy was protecting him. Gao Peng assured Dummy not to worry because they will be family. Then Gao Peng introduces Da Zai to Dummy, but Gao Peng was stopped when he saw Da Zai's appearance. Suddenly Tang Tang appeared and said she and Da Zai are there to pick him up. Gao Peng asks Tang Tang what happened to Da Zai. Tang Tang responded that she give Da Zai a lot of good food, and Da Zai is very healthy and strong. But Gao Peng sees Da Zai's data and she was extremely overnourished. Tang Tang said Dazi was too skinny before because Gao Peng wasn't careful enough. On the other hand, Dummy looks at Da Zai, then looked away with attitude. Tang Tang changes the topic and asks him how his exam was. Gao Peng shyly says that he encountered a monster that failed to level up six times, but he upgraded him and got an intermediate monster trainer certificate, and the president of the trainers association gives him the monster that has been successfully leveled up which made Tang Tang shocked and asks if he really get the intermediate monster trainer's certificate. 
Gao Peng showed his certificate while saying as fake as it is, he actually get the certificate. Suddenly Tang Tang come close to Gao Peng and said his growth rate really surprised her, and she need to talk about something to him, which made Gao Peng confused. Tang Tang asks Gao Peng if he knows why the monster trainer has such a high status. It is because the monsters they use, no matter how strong they are, the monster is still monstrous. The Imperial Monster's secret technique is clearly damage transfer, which can transfer all the damage they receive to their own monster. Although the range is limited, and can only be turned on by the subjective choice of the monster, and defensive power of the monster is far from the human. Also, when the monster upgrades, it gains more vitality and defense, and it will be more beneficial to Gao Peng. After learning, Gao Peng feel that Da Zai and him were connected by an invisible thread. Gao Peng thinks his contract is done. Then Gao Peng look at Dazi. Gao Peng tells Da Zai that she was fat and looks like a fat purple pig. But Da Zai is still talking back to him. Gao Peng orders Dummy to bring the mirror to him. Then he places it in front of Dazi, which made Da Zai shocked. Da Zai plays dead, but Gao Peng said she needs to exercise in a few days to lose body fat, and after her reduction, Gao Peng will give her a quality upgrade. Then Gao Peng imagined Da Zai flying in the sky fat which made him disgusted. Two days passed, in Chang'an city center. Tang Tang was calling for Gao Peng in the street, then Tang Tang said she was happier because Gao Peng was already an intermediate monster trainer, and willing to help her with her little company. Tang Tang said she's come out to pick him up, and before they go inside she need to say that she partnered with other people to open her small monster training institution. Also she invested a lot of money in it, but her partners run away with the money some time ago, and the trainers were taken away from the store. Gao Peng said the location of Tang Tang business is good because it was the busiest part of downtown, and the rent is not cheap, which made Tang Tang shocked. Tang Tang responded with an uncomfortable expression that her business was doing good before, so she rented the place. But ever since the trainers were taken away, the business has gone downhill. Gao Peng feels that Tang Tang is strange. Suddenly Tang Tang turns around and asks him to go upstairs first. While they were in the front of the elevator, Tang Tang explained that the studio is on the third floor, and as for the treatment, the salary is at the highest rate in the industry, and he will be given 20% of the shares. Tang Tang pushed the third button in the elevator assuring Gao Peng that he won't be delayed in his studies and that he just need to drop by on weekends because the job of a monster trainer is very easy. They enter the elevator and then Gao Peng asks Tang Tang why she can't recruit trainers in the market when the salary is too high. Tang Tang just responded that not having monster trainers is a trivial matter, but they can't smash the sign. Gao Peng thinks Tang Tang's offer was a trap, but it was Tang Tang, and for the past three years, he's not been an orphan because of Tang Tang's care. Gao Peng set aside his bad feeling and trusted Tang Tang, then he said he'll listen to Tang Tang. Tang Tang wished for their happy cooperation, but Tang Tang felt intense because she thought Gao Peng found something wrong with her action. They arrive on the third floor, then someone welcomes them there. Tang Tang introduced Gao Peng to their receptionist named Zun Quanquan. Then Tang Tang opens the elevator door and goes inside. Tang Tang tells Gao Peng that she already explained everything to Quan Quan, and Quan Quan will show him the environment and introduce him to his colleague. Then Tang Tang left, leaving Gao Peng and Quan Quan confused. Gao Peng thinks everything happening had many flaws. Suddenly Quan Quan said they get started with registration information, and Gao Peng agreed. When they enter the room, Quan Quan thinks Gao Peng was too young, while she enters Gao Peng information on the desk. Also, she thinks her boss Tang Tang got cheated again. On the other hand, Gao Peng was on the sofa, drinking some tea, and thinks a plan on how he will earn enough money for Tang Tang. He needs to set the charging standard. Unlike the other trainers, they need to follow his instruction and they will have almost 100% success rate in advancing to the next level, in that case, the fee will increase. Although Gao Peng doesn't love money, he shouldn't receive less because it was a desecration of knowledge, and also, disrespectful to Goldfinger. So his plan is he'll take a loss, multiply it by three at the current highest price for an intermediate monster trainer. Suddenly Quan Quan interrupt his thought and said his information has been recorded. Quan Quan asks him if he really wants to set the fee standard three times the maximum fee for an intermediate monster trainer. Quan Quan also said, it's not a big deal if he doesn't follow the rules and he doesn't get clients, but it's not a trivial matter if it affects the reputation of the studio. Gao Peng asks Quan Quan what her intention to say. Suddenly someone barges in and said Quan Quan means Gao Peng has to prove that he really has the ability which made Quan Quan shocked and called the man named Mr. Ma. Then Mr. Ma walked toward him while asking if he really want three times the maximum charge. Then Mr. Ma point a finger at Gao Peng and said as long as he can cure his monster, it doesn't matter how much it is, he'll give him ten times as much as he can. Gao Peng said it was not necessary. Gao Peng first order to Mr. Ma is even if it's a big bonus, he just needs to triple it. 
Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if he can cure his beast for sure. Gao Peng said he doesn't need to rush, and that he needs to see where his beast is before he can give him an accurate answer. Mr. Ma said he'll believe in Gao Peng once, then he showed his injured pet. Gao Peng walked close and saw the data of the monster. The name of the monster is a purple lightning rat, its level is 13, and its quality is elite. Purple lightning rat status was light injury and suffering and its weakness is the ground system. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed that the rat was critical and he need to deal with its dangerous mutation as soon as possible. Gao Peng asks Mr. Ma in a shouting way what he feeds to the rat to make it critical. Mr. Ma said he gave the rat a blood jade mushroom because he wanted his beast to mutate and evolve. Then he begs Gao Peng to cure his pet. Gao Peng knows that the purple mouse is already in the process of evolution. But it is only because of the conflict between the power of the blood system and the lightning system that led the rat to critical condition. Gao Peng saw the mutant evolution ingredients and realizes that he need to use the system's plan to turn conflict into complementarity then the rat will be able to complete its evolution. Gao Peng ordered Quan Quan to get five shadow fruits, one red maple heart, a pair of thunder gold leaves, and one blood bat monster crystal core, then he explained to Mr. Ma. The rules for trainers, that they will come up with a plan, and they will help him with the materials, but he'll need to pay for it himself, Mr. Ma responded no problem. Gao Peng assured the rat that he will make him evolve. Gao Peng and the others proceed to the treatment room. Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if it was really the best way to upgrade his pet with fear in his voice. Gao Peng was holding the rat with a knife in his other hand, while asking Mr. Ma if he have a problem. Suddenly Gao Peng dropped the rat into the boiling soup pot, which made Mr. Ma shocked. When the rat was inside the pot, Gao Peng stirred the soup with the rat in it, which made the rat dizzy. Gao Peng scoops soup into the pot and asks Mr. Ma if he wants to take a sip of rat soup. Then Gao Peng opens the pot lid and said he was joking, then asks Mr. Ma to take a look. Mr. Ma looked at the pot in shock to see that his pet was relaxing in the pot. Gao Peng explains he didn't make soup, he made a medicinal bath for his beast, and the heating only enhances the absorption of the medicine. Then Gao Peng closed the pot lid again and said he need to cook the rat twice and bore it for another 10 minutes. Mr. Ma knows there are only two senior monster trainers in the entire city of Chang'an, and they have very high status so he can't get an appointment, and the only choice he has is to give Gao Peng a try. Ten minutes later, Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if his pet is ready because it taking a little too long to cook. Gao Peng responded that it's almost time. Suddenly the pot lid moved, and Gao Peng said it was time. Then the pot lid burst open, showing a shaky rat inside. Suddenly the rat opened its eyes and then jumped out into the pot, and another part of the room which made the treatment room destroyed. Mr. Ma saw that his pet upgrade was succeeded. The new monster's name is Purple Lightning Blood Rat, it's level 20 and its quality is perfect. Also, its attributes are the lightning system and the blood system. Gao Peng said Mr. Ma made a fortune because his pet was a perfect quality double system, and with a little bit of training, he can be promoted to the leader level beast. Mr. Ma apologizes to Gao Peng for his previous rudeness because he didn't expect that his beast can be advanced, and he thanks him. Gao Peng hand the bills to Mr. Ma and said he shouldn't thanks him because he's paying him for his service, and he needs to pay the damage to his office plus the consultation fee. Gao Peng gives the paper to Quan Quan and he asks her to follow the list of materials in the paper, then send it to his house, and the cost will be deducted from his commission. Mr. Ma asks Gao Peng if he can make an appointment for him tomorrow because he wants Gao Peng to take a look at his other beast, which made Gao Peng think. Suddenly Mr. Ma said the money is not a problem, he can pay triple or more. But Gao Peng said it's not about the money, he needs to go to class tomorrow that's why he doesn't have time. Mr. Ma was confused and asks if he was going to an association training class or to the master's class. Gao Peng grabs his coat while asking what Mr. Ma talking about, and then he said he was in third year high school, and he needs to go home to do his homework then Gao Peng left. Leaving Mr. Ma and Quan Quan shocked, Quan Quan also said Tang Tang just bought the studio a few days ago at a high price and dismissed all the monster trainers, and asked her to keep it secret to deceive Gao Peng. Meanwhile, in the apartment, Tang Tang was with her pet looking at the crystal core in her hand, and she thinks it was a good quality crystal core. Tang Tang asks her pet to send the crystal core to Gao Peng room. Tang Tang pet climbed to Gao Peng window room where Da Zai was, then throw the crystal core in front of Da Zai, which made Da Zai and Dummy look at the crystal core confused. Suddenly Da Zai eats the crystal core, then chewed it. Da Zai feels weird, then suddenly Da Zai's body acts up which made Dummy concerned. On the other hand, Gao Peng was excitedly walking while thinking that the 15 pounds of cedar pine needles are enough for Dummy to eat for a month, 
and he need to make dummy evolve to its perfect quality. Gao Peng also thinks Da Zai's side can't be more urgent to upgrade because Da Zai needs a level 10 or higher lightning monster crystal core, and even if he finds one he can't afford it. Suddenly he heard a noise coming into his apartment and realized it was dummy. Gao Peng throws all the ingredients he buys and then runs towards his apartment. Gao Peng ran to the stairs and when he arrives at his apartment door, he opened his door forcefully and then he saw Da Zai rolling back and forth to the ground with a bubbling mouth. Gao Peng opened Da Zai's data and see that Dazi took a large amount of blood and flesh from the lighting badger centipede with the monster's crystal core because of that Da Zai is in the process of evolution, which made Gao Peng shocked in confusion. Gao Peng looked at Da Zai wondering how can she eat something so expensive and he was wondering who would give it to her. Then Gao Peng notices Tang Tang outside his door peeping. Tang Tang showed herself, then Gao Peng asks if she is the one who give the crystal core to Da Zai. When Tang Tang didn't answer, Gao Peng asks why did she do it. Tang Tang thinks if she said it in advance Gao Peng wouldn't want it. Then Tang Tang just said she was there to deliver something. Tang Tang put down the ingredients Gao Peng threw outside while saying Gao Peng is sloppy because he left his stuff halfway down the road. Then Tang Tang immediately run to her front door and said Gao Peng is so spendthrift after only a few days of earning money, then Tang Tang go inside her apartment, not making Gao Peng talk to her. Gao Peng looks at Dizzy Da Zai and scolds Da Zai for being an eater, and she shouldn't eat whatever she sees in the future. Gao Peng thinks Da Zai doesn't care about the situation, and he needs to make a way to complete Da Zai's upgrade quickly. Gao Peng tried to find something to his items, and throw everything that won't work. Then he finally finds the medium-grade purple poison flower that will help Da Zai evolve. He just needs to grind it and make it into juice. Gao Peng grinds the flower, then made Da Zai drink it. When Da Zai drinks it, Da Zai's eyes open wide, and her body produces a light, which made the room window break. Da Zai's horn and body become bigger and sharper which made Gao Peng shocked. Gao Peng checked Da Zai's data and saw that Da Zai's monster name changed to a purple-backed lightning centipede, her level increased by 9, and her quality changed to epic. Da Zai's attributes are the lightning system and the blue system and she was ready to promote to the perfect quality. Gao Peng was happy because Da Zai's evolution was over and he didn't think it would be so easy for Da Zai to become an epic quality. Suddenly Da Zai collapsed on the ground leaving Gao Peng and Dummy confused. Dummy comes close to Da Zai worried, but Gao Peng assured him that Da Zai just lost strength. Gao Peng extends his hand with a bowl of food to Dummy while saying he specially bought his food for him and compared to Dummy appearance he's too kind. Dummy gets the food confused, but he still eats it, which made him more confused because of the food's taste. Gao Peng praised Dummy and said he need to keep eating, while Gao Peng cleaned the mess. Gao Peng tells Dummy that he completed the upgrade, and it's better to stabilize it. He will upgrade Dummy after he finds the most suitable material, and Dummy will definitely become a very powerful beast. A few hours passed, finally Da Zai regained her strength and woke up. But she saw Dummy and Gao Peng sleeping on the sofa. Da Zai thinks of a better idea, then she gets a blanket, and walks toward Gao Peng. Da Zai put the blanket on Gao Peng, then she hugged Gao Peng which made Gao Peng uncomfortable. On the other hand, Tang Tang was looking at them in the window mirror while wondering if it was the calmness before the storm, and wishing Gao Peng will grow up as soon as possible. The following day, at the principal's office, the principal was shouting at Mr. Ma because he disagreed with letting the monster into the school. The principal angrily said that the students in the school are still children and not professionally trained. Mr. Ma calmly responded that in times of peace, the age of the student was still considered a child, but in ancient times, people of the same age as students already took weapons to defend the country. The principals understand what Mr. Ma words and ask in a worried tone if the current situation of the world got worse. Mr. Ma said the new technologies are being researched all over the world, but the speed is still too slow. Mr. Ma explained that if the technologies are still slow, and when the day comes when their technology is no longer a threat to the monsters, it'll be too late for the world. Meanwhile, in the classroom, Gao Peng feels uncomfortable because his classmates are looking at him. Suddenly one of his classmates asks him if he really gets the intermediate monster trainer certificate. Then Gao Peng asks his classmate back how did he know about his certificate. His classmate shows the Chang'an daily newspaper to him excitedly. Then all his classmates congratulates him, which made him shy. Suddenly one of Gao Peng's classmates asks if he can make a small request. But Gao Peng stops him. Then Gao Peng said his request was small, so it was not going to be difficult for him alone. But for both of them, it was not a good deal, which made his classmate angry, but their room teacher was behind Gao Peng classmates back. Then their teacher named Miss Murong hit his classmate's head with a piece of paper, which made everyone run back to their sits. Miss Murong made the student silent and said she had an announcement. Miss Murong announced that all schools around the world are urgently reformed. 
the second year high school will have a new course on beasts and a new special recruitment channel was added. It was a joint project of the Union Ministry of Education and the Union Military. Also, the best student can be recruited directly by the top academies or military academies. Ms. Mirong also said that the military coaches will be in the school soon, and students who are interested in joining the academies will begin training in the afternoon. And if they want to be special students, they need to come to Ms. Mirong as soon as possible after class to sign up. The class was panicking because of the sudden changes. Suddenly Miss Murong called for Gao Peng and asked him to come out for a moment because Miss Murong want to talk to him. Outside the classroom, Miss Murong said the principal praised him by name in the meeting because he got the intermediate monster trainer's certificate straight away. And tomorrow, the student of the 7th high school are coming, and the school like him to represent their school as a freshman. Gao Peng interrupted Miss Murong's words and said that formal speech doesn't suit him. But the fact is he likes to apply for the special student of the Imperial Ambassador. Miss Murong asks why he suddenly has an intention for the Imperial Ambassador position. Miss Murong thinks the Imperial Ambassador is a pretty good way to go, but it doesn't make much sense for Gao Peng. Miss Murong look at the window said Gao Peng grades are very good, and the bonus of an intermediate monster trainer's certificate will get him to get a lot of credits. He can try all the top academies in China and foreign academies well. While Miss Mirong looking at the man getting the monster ready for the afternoon, Miss Mirong said if Gao Peng really wants to become an imperial ambassador, he can also use cultural achievement to enter the military academy and then apply for related majors. Miss Mirong warned him to shouldn't rush. Gao Peng thanked Miss Mirong for being considerate to him and said Miss Mirong was right and it was safer to enter the military academy before becoming an imperial ambassador. But it was too slow for Gao Peng because he wanted to learn more from actual combat training and grow stronger quickly. Also Gao Peng assured Miss Mirong to take both exams because he won't give up either opportunity. Miss Mirong just smiles at him and turns around. Then said since Gao Peng has his own ideas, she won't stop him. But she hopes he can think it over. In the afternoon, the group of students was ready to meet their opponent. Suddenly Gao Peng classmate named Tan Kaianjin shouted in the crowd asking if Gao Peng signed up to be an Imperial Ambassador student too. Then Kaianjin walks past the crowd toward Gao Peng. Then he asks him if he was a monster trainer that has a good result. Gao Peng responded that his grade are also good and asks Kaianjin why did he sign up too. Kaianjin said it's all about his childhood dream he used to watch, and the monster in the film was very cool. Also, Kaianjin said he wanted to be the strongest ambassador. Gao Peng just leave him and said he should keep up, the field is just ahead. In the school court, the student who signed up for the military academy was waiting. In the court stage, the woman called for the colonel. Kaianjin said their instructor is not that special except for being strong. Suddenly the colonel looks in their direction, which made Kaianjin shocked, and Gao Peng think that the colonel has a murderous aura. The colonel first said that the student who comes have balls compared to the people who are afraid, but they shouldn't think they become imperial ambassador, without a firm mind and without a will of steel. The colonel said they will be pissing their pants the moment they see a real monster in the wild, and their legs will be as soft as noodles, they won't be able to run away, which made everyone afraid. The colonel asks if they don't like it and he shows the monster. The colonel gets the monster and commands his lieutenant colonel to provide the armor plate. Then Lieutenant Collins report to the colonel that the target is 10 centimeters thick, and three type armor plate has been set up. The colonel orders the monster to go ahead, then the monster runs toward the armor plate, and destroyed it. The armor plate was destroyed in just one attack, which made the students shocked in fear. Gao Peng wondered how the thick armor plate was destroyed in one attack. Then the colonel said that it was the killing power of a trained beast, and the monsters they will face in the future will have the same, or even greater power to kill. The colonel gives one last chance to the student who wants to quit and orders them to step out quickly. Gao Peng saw that many students wanted to quit, suddenly the colonel asks the student who want to leave, why their heads is down. The colonel said they didn't do anything wrong, and they should study hard because it was a good way out too. Also the colonel said they're not deserters, they just made a rational choice to go back to class. Then the colonel looked at the student who had chosen to stay and said they are different because from now on if anyone gives up, he's a real loser, and the colonel doesn't want any loser. After school is done, Gao Peng goes home tired, although he's mentally prepared. He didn't expect the situation to be a little more serious than he thought. Suddenly Da Zai said she was hungry while Dummy was sulking in the corner. Gao Peng stands up to walk toward the refrigerator while thinking about the words that Colonel Chen said in one month. All institutes in the city will have to eliminate 1,200 students from enrollment and Gao Peng opens the refrigerator while thinking the elimination rate is too high. When Gao Peng opens up the drawer of the refrigerator the cedar pine needles are gone. Gao Peng looks around at the refrigerator wondering where his piles of cedar pine needles are, and Gao Peng finds just one cedar pine needle. Gao Peng barge out into the kitchen angry, asking where the other cedar pine needles are, then Da Zai points to Dummy and said Dummy eat it all. 
Gao Peng called Dummy and he walked towards Sulking Dummy. Gao Peng touches Dummy back and tell to Dummy that next time if he wants to eat more, he needs to tell him. Gao Peng assured Dummy that he didn't say Dummy was wrong, but Dummy was still sulking in guilt. Gao Peng sits on the sofa and checks Dummy's property box. He saw that Dummy needs to absorb 600 pounds of cedar pine needles and Dummy's first stage is almost complete. Gao Peng ordered 30 pounds of cedar pine needles and 10 pounds of lightning flower fruit. One caddy of cedar pine needles is 1,000 union currency, and it is only 1.5 credits to eat 15 katas a day, which he can still afford. Gao Peng thinks it's good for dummy that he can able to eat, and more beneficial substances are absorbed, and they can move faster to the next evolution. Dummy is still an elite rank monster, and when it's at a higher rank, the material dummy needs to consume will be more precious, and some materials are even priceless that can only be obtainable by burning money. Then Gao Peng look at Da Zai and thinks Da Zai needs to take 200 pounds of lightning flower fruit to advance to perfect quality. The thunder flower fruit is cheaper than the cedar pine needles, and he can buy a pound of them for a hundred union coins. Then Gao Peng realizes that it's not easy to raise a family. Go Peng decided to go to the monster park but he was shocked to see that the owners and monsters were in chaos, but Gao Peng noticed the exaggerated pig with the girl. Gao Peng approached the girl and asks if it was her monster and if she can give him a little space because her beast is blocking the gate, which made the girl embarrassed. The girl sadly remembers her beast before and said in sad tone that when he bought her monster it was not this big. Suddenly the coach asks what happened. Then the other people said the beast blocking the way. The coach called his beast Silver and said to Silver that the pig was all him. Then Silver changed its expression like it going to attack the pig. The pig saw Silver expression, then the pig stand up in fear which made its owner shocked. The coach said the show was over and if they were done, they should start the training right away. The owners and their beast were lined up and listening to coach words. The coach said she knows some of them want to sign more beasts in the future, so she will first train them to command their beasts. It was a very basic and very important part. The coach said even if their beast is strong, it won't listen to the command that is also equal to zero and she believes they have just seen the opposite of the lesson. Then the people look at the girl with her big beast. The coach patted her beast and said if they want to train their beast, they must understand their habits and preference in order to establish a good relationship with their beast in a targeted way. The coach's example is her silver moon wolf. She bought its favorite black clad pork and fed it to her beast personally. Also, she played and slept with her beast every day which is why her beast's reliance on her has improved a lot and it is willing to obey her command. The coach said that the colonel's beast they had seen before smashed the armor plate with its tail, but in fact, the tail is not the silver moon wolf's natural strong point it was just the colonel train his beast many months that the beast's tail gradually becomes harder and swing faster, which made the people shocked. The coach said that the wolf had additional means of attack besides its teeth and claw, and the colonel's training method, developing the beast's attack diversity and enhancing the beast's advantages. Then the coach asks Old Lai to show the silver wolf skills. Old Lai was playing with the stone in his hand while saying that the silver moon wolf beside him was the same. But different training methods are used for different battles, and there are different directions of development. Then Old Lai throw the rock, then the wolf run equally to the flying rock, then the wolf destroyed it, which made Gao Peng and Da Zai shocked. The coach said the current classification of the beast has five categories, attack, defense, support, healing, and field control. The actual fact is that there are a lot of people who can do multiple categories. Then coach gives an example, the green devil vine, which can act as both a defensive and a control type. But the most important thing is that they have to be able to use it as an attacker. The coach said he had already given them a demonstration and their official training will start. She also suggests they start with simple materials, such as training bite force to choose a wood first, and then gradually increase the hardness. The coach pointed to the apes who were moving the big box of materials and assured them to don't worry about the material because they shipped a large number of training materials. The coach asked the people who had chosen a training route to register and receive their training materials. Gao Peng looked at Da Zai, wondering what else Da Zai needs to strengthen. Then he remembered that Da Zai learned the secret art of damage transfer and Da Zai needed to improve her defense first. Then Gao Peng remember the small ape who can move such a big box, and he was amazed. Suddenly Gao Peng remember seeing in the studio's archives a kind of mutant ape monster with sparse hair, called the Fierce Fist Ape. Fierce nature is very warlike, but the defense is very low, so the fierce ape from birth will be trained by their parents. Gao Peng thinks it's crazy how the fierce ape uses their own body to hit the trunk of the tree. They first hit the tree, and then hit the rocks, mountain walls, and so on, over time. The fierce ape repeatedly injured and healed skin becomes tougher and tougher. When the fierce ape becomes an adult, there are not only thick muscles, but also calluses and scars gathered together to form something to armor. And at that time the fierce adult will not suffer the slightest injury, even if they hit the mountain wall. 
Gao Peng thinks he can follow the fierce ape training method to train the defense of Da Zai. Then he chose the training materials in the box. Gao Peng called Da Zai who was relaxing under the tree. Gao Peng walked toward Da Zai while hiding something behind his back. Then Gao Peng said he has already chosen a training method for Da Zai, and he said it's better for Da Zai to have pain now than for the rest of Da Zai's life. Gao Peng slowly shows the item behind his back while saying that it can be a little bit of suffering, and Da Zai should swear now in order to not bleed later. Then he showed the big metal hammer he get for Da Zai while saying he'll be gentle, which made Da Zai shocked. Then Da Zai runs in fear. Gao Peng runs after Da Zai with a big metal hammer while shouting for Da Zai to stop because it's for her own good, and Da Zai must understand his pain. Gao Peng finally caught up with Da Zai while enduring the pain in his arm for holding the harmer for so long. One week later, Gao Peng was in his bed. When his alarm tried to wake him up, Gao Peng just turned off his alarm, then tried to sleep again because he don't have training today. Suddenly he heard Da Zai knocking on something which made him fully awake. Gao Peng come out to his bedroom and Da Zai said she was hungry. Gao Peng start cooking while complaining about why his suffering when Da Zai is the one who upgrading. Then he looked at Da Zai and dummy. Then he realizes that Da Zai didn't eat for nothing during the period of extra meals because Da Zai grow bigger and successfully reached the 10th level. But Gao Peng is not sure if he was going to be able to get a good deal on Da Zai and his arms are almost broken in Da Zai's defense training. And dummy also almost ate up his salary. Suddenly Gao Peng's cell phone ring and dummy notice it and grab the phone then answer the call. The man who calls introduces his name as Liu Senlin, the general manager of Blue Shield Security Company. Gao Peng asks what Mr. Liu needs from him. Mr. Liu said he would like to talk about something with him that would be great benefit to him, and he asks Gao Peng if he has time to talk in person. At Fei Peng's studio, Gao Peng was welcomed by Quang Quan, and Quang Quan said his visitor is already waiting for him. Gao Peng meet Mr. Liu in his office, then Mr. Liu reached his hand out while introducing himself again. Gao Peng shakes Mr. Liu's hand and asks him to sit down. Gao Peng asks Mr. Liu why he was looking for him because there are senior trainers in Chang'an City, and he's not the only intermediate monster trainer. Gao Peng also said he doesn't know what kind of reputation he has that would make the general manager of a big security company come to his door on purpose. Mr. Liu laughed and said Gao Peng was too modest. Then Mr. Liu explained that there are senior trainers in Chang'an but one of them is the president of the Monster Trainers Association named Mr. Chen, and he doesn't have time to be a consultant for a small company like his company. Also, the other senior trainer named Mr. Gu Xianlin is the government's full-time training consultant. Mr. Liu said he prefers to believe in the young and talented Gao Peng than those mid-level trainers. Gao Peng said before they continue Mr. Liu needs to accept his demand otherwise there is no need to waste their time. Gao Peng first demand is he has classes from Monday to Friday, unless it is a very urgent situation, and they shouldn't disturb him during the weekdays. Second, it's fine for him to be a trainer consultant, but he won't sign a buyout exclusivity contract, and he can only guarantee that he won't help their competitors. Mr. Liu hand the contract to him because he agreed to Gao Peng demand, and he asks Gao Peng if the part-time contract they prepare is appropriate. Gao Peng get the contract and read it. Gao Peng realizes that the contract is not quite right because there are no mandatory requirements. The salary is annual, 500 credits per year plus commission, and 50 credits for every successful evolution of Devil Mantis from the Blue Shield. Gao Peng signed the contract while wondering if the owner of the Blue Shield company is so rich and capricious, but the contract was almost a non-binding contract. Suddenly Quang Quan knocked on the room door and enter, then said that Mr. Ma who made an appointment earlier has arrived. Mr. Liu stand up and said since Gao Peng signed the contract, he won't bother him anymore. Then they head out. Gao Peng assist Mr. Liu to the elevator, then Mr. Liu said he'll look forward to their future cooperation. Then Gao Peng left. When Mr. Liu was waiting for the elevator, he called someone to report that Gao Peng signed the contract. Then Mr. Liu asks why he choose Gao Peng when there are so many trainers in Chang'an. But someone in the other line said something that Mr. Liu just agree. In other place, in the Fei Peng studio, Gao Peng is checking on Mr. Ma Beast. Gao Peng saw that the monster's name is the Four Seasons Begonia Demon. It was level 3, and its attribute is urban. The Four Seasons Begonia Demon status is health pleasure, and its weakness is fire and lightning. Gao Peng asks Mr. Ma in an angry tone if he really wants his flower demon to evolve because the flower demon was pretty, the leaves have a fuchsia pattern and serrated edges, and also it has a slight fragrance. Mr. Ma said yes because there will be a Flower King competition in Chang'an City in half a month, and he's going to use his flower demon to compete for the position of Flower King. Quang Quan said the Flower King competition is usually for girls to participate. Mr. Ma said he also knows that he's a big man to compete for the Flower King, and it will look really strange. Then the Flower Demon holds Mr. Ma finger and Mr. Ma said it was his second beast and he hopes to give his Flower Demon a good start. 
Then Mr. Ma begged Gao Peng to make his beast evolve so it has a better chance of taking the tournament, which made Gao Peng shocked because he didn't realize that Mr. Ma was so concerned about his beast. Gao Peng assured Mr. Ma that he will make his beast evolve. Then Gao Peng said Mr. Ma know the usual rules, three times the charge. Suddenly Quanquan asks Mr. Ma to swipe his card to their ATM swiper to pay. Gao Peng ordered Quanquan to prepare the 200 years old tree essence, 150 drops of flower spirit dew, one leaf of spirit flower, one money of golden bell, one caddy of fat sea, and one black wind grass, which Quanquan agreed. After Quanquan prepared all the ingredients, Gao Peng throw him outside the operating room and said that they shouldn't disturb him, but Mr. Ma still peeked even though Quanquan tried to stop him. Gao Peng was holding an injection, assuring the fear flower demon that it just hurt a little. Then Gao Peng inject the injection into the flower, and the flower made a sound, which made Mr. Ma angry and tried to shout, but Quanquan covered Mr. Ma mouth and tried to make Mr. Ma calm down. Suddenly Gao Peng said they can come in which made them shocked. Gao Peng introduces to them the Four Seasons Begonia, Level 4, and Elite. Mr. Ma and Quanquan were happy because the flower demon becomes so much prettier after being evolved. Suddenly Mr. Ma jumped to hug Gao Peng because of his happiness which made Gao Peng angry. Meanwhile, somewhere, the girl who's touching her beast asks if they fail again. The tree man said even if they pass the test, they may not be able to get into a good school. Also 12 o people only can be recruited, they can simply mix for a month, and then go back to the test after a month. The girl stands up while thinking that the three men were a bunch of stupid who thinks they're smart, and she said that no matter what other do, she must try again to find Gao Peng. In the forest, the small monsters feel the forest shaking. Then the small monster sees some mushrooms, suddenly the small monster gets attacked by the spider web, which made the monster shake in fear. The monster activates his combat form, then spin around to free itself from the spider web. But more spider webs were poured by the poor small monster. When the small monster was fully covered by a spider web, the spiders showed themselves, and there were a lot of spiders coming out into the forest. Meanwhile, in Chen Jai's material shop, Gao Peng getting his 30 pounds of cedar pine needles to Old Chen. But Old Chen said the cedar pine needles are out of stock and only 10 pounds were left. Gao Peng asks Old Chen why cedar pine needles are out of stock when there has an estate outside the city that specializes in supplying them. Old Chen hands his tablet to Gao Peng to show that a week ago there have a group of villainous spiders emerged from nowhere, and the spiders ate all the herbs in the garden, so the area had been sealed off by the army. Old Chen also said that the spider eats other monsters in the surrounding mountain and forest, and he heard that if it weren't for the boss of the estate running fast, they could also be eaten. Old Chen's words were interrupted when someone entered the shop to buy. Old Chen asks Gao Peng if they can talk later because he has business to receive. Gao Peng realizes that first the college and the military had a sudden collaboration, then the security company that came to his door, then lastly the unknown spider that appeared suddenly. Gao Peng knows that something big will happen. Suddenly Mr. Liu calls Gao Peng. Gao Peng answer the call, then Mr. Liu asks if he knows about the newly discovered brutal gray spider in the Ember Forest. Gao Peng immediately go to Blue Shield Security Company, where he was greeted by Mr. Liu. Mr. Liu said it was urgent, so he won't speak any courtesies and asked Gao Peng to follow him through the background information. Mr. Liu explains that due to the large number of brutal gray spiders attacking numerous resource sites, the government has brought together security companies and several private organizations to explore forests with the goal of understanding the habits and weaknesses of the brutal gray spiders. Mr. Liu said their company just received the assignment and will be leaving in three days, but they don't have enough reserves of imperial beasts yet. So Mr. Liu would like to ask Gao Peng to take a look at the beast in advance because if they can advance a few more devil mantis before they leave they will have a better chance of success on the mission. Gao Peng said he better look at the situation of the devil mantis first. Mr. Liu said the company really takes the opportunity very seriously, and previous meetings convened by the coalition government abolished many regulations that suppressed non-official forces. Mr. Liu swipe his card to open the room while saying, the changes in monsters in recent years and that the government is increasingly overwhelmed. And Mr. Liu said the conference has opened up many policies, and is afraid the direction of the coalition is about to change. Mr. Liu asks Gao Peng to take a look, then Mr. Liu explained that all the devil mantises in the company are there, also Mr. Mr. Liu said they will arrange enough manpower to assist Gao Peng. Mr. Liu assures Gao Peng that his rewards will definitely make him feel good, as long as the results they wanted are achieved. Gao Peng said he won't let Mr. Liu down, then Gao Peng proceed to check at the Devil Mantises. On the other hand, Mr. Liu was upstairs looking at Gao Peng in the mirror, then his secretary asks him what is Gao Peng doing. Mr. Liu's secretary said that all he can see from the moment Gao Peng went downstairs, he just touched and looked like an old man shopping, and is a bit confused if Gao Peng really can do it. 
Mr. Liu tells his secretary to shut up if he doesn't know how to talk properly, which made the man shocked in fear. Mr. Liu looks at where Gao Peng was and wonders if Gao Peng can do it, but is betting his future on Gao Peng, so he can only believe that Gao Peng must be capable. On the other hand, Gao Peng said the eighth one from the left in the first row, the fourth one from the right in the fourth row, and the largest one in the seventh row. Then he asks to leave the ten devil mantis as he just mentioned, and he asks to prepare a laboratory, as well as a low-rank insect enhancement drug, low-rank eth crystal core, star steel powder, and perilla leaves in ten copies. Mr. Liu immediately order his secretary to prepare the requirements that Gao Peng said. Mr. Liu realizes that Gao Peng sees the tenth strongest devil mantis in just ten minutes a among hundreds of imperial beasts. Mr. Liu thinks Gao Peng's speed and accuracy rate was faster than the new senior, and the most frightening thing is that Gao Peng is less than 20 years old. The materials that Gao Peng requested arrived, then Gao Peng started working, and mix all the ingredients. Finally Gao Peng get the mixture of ingredients he needed. Suddenly Mr. Liu heard Gao Peng shouting it worked. Mr. Liu stand up and walked toward Gao Peng, and he saw the devil mantises evolved with cheering people. Mr. Liu's secretary said Mr. Liu really has a good eye because the devil mantises turned out to be a leader level 4 winged jade mantis, and it's a perfect quality evolution. Mr. Liu was looking at Gao Peng, proud that Gao Peng is really unfathomable treasure he has found. The next day, Gao Peng and Da Zai are in the Monster Park training how fast can Da Zai run. Gao Peng said Da Zai run 7.47 seconds, 0.4 faster than last time. Then he patted Da Zai's head and gave Da Zai his favorite dried worm. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed that the other student is just fooling around. But the coach only care about the hardworking students and don't care about the negligent students. Suddenly someone called Gao Peng name. When he turned around he saw his classmate named Mu Ting. Ting tells Gao Peng that he trained his beast very well. Gao Peng thinks if Ting is a man, she would definitely be called a strong man. Then Gao Peng said thanks. Ting said she was there to team up with him, which made Gao Peng ask why him. Ting explained that in the middle and later stages of training, they will be fought in the battles, then teams will be divided, and their score will be calculated in small groups. Trying also said that the others are not competent, and she has no mutual language with others. Gao Peng asks where her beast is, Ting said wait a minute, then she whistles and called Lotus Seed her beast name. Lotus here Ting, then run towards her which made Ting shy, but Gao Peng and Da Zai were shocked. Ting introduced her beast named Lotus Seed, and she said Lotus Seed was a steel rhino. Gao Peng and Da Zai are still shocked. Suddenly Ting said before Gao Peng considers teaming up with her, she wants Gao Peng to know that her beast is very timid and that Lotus Seed will give away to the monsters dozens of times smaller than it. But Ting said that her beast is more than qualified to be on defense now because of its dulled sense of pain. Gao Peng thinks it's not impossible to team up with Ting. Even though there are many imperial beasts present 99% of them are ordinary quality, and there are only a few that can reach elite quality. Then Gao Peng looked at Lotus Seed data and saw that it was elite quality. Gao Peng thinks Da Zai going to take the attack route with the poison attribute, so a defensive route of the imperial beast is just right for them because it creates more time and space for Da Zai to attack. Also, more options in terms of tactics. Ting was worried because Gao Peng hesitated for so long, and she was sure that Gao Peng doesn't want to team up with her. Then she looks at her beast thinking that her Lotus Seed may not really fit into the Battle Royal Beast, and it was not fair for Lotus Seed too. When Ting was ready to leave, Gao Peng stopped her and said he accepted her invitation. Gao Peng said that it doesn't matter if her beast is a timid temperament because she can train it later. Also, Gao Peng thinks it's tiring to communicate with others, which made Ting happy. Ting grabs Gao Peng hand, then she shakes it hard because of her happiness. Meanwhile, outside the Black Ember Forest Joint Operation Area gather all the invited team leaders and managers. Captain Mu said she didn't expect to see the famous manager Liu there, which made Mr. Liu laugh. Suddenly someone behind Mr. Liu said that according to the latest official information, the brutal gray spider has a clear fear response to flames. Then Mr. Liu said Captain Song's team is best at the fire element and Captain Song should take the lead in the mission. Captain Mu said he doesn't care because Mr. Liu's Devil's Mantis is called the Jungle Killer, and she's afraid that Mr. Liu is the first one to finish the job. Then Captain Mu and Mr. Liu look at each other smiling with tension. Suddenly the captain of the military said he was glad they all came and is sure that they have seen the new information yesterday. The captain explains that it's highly likely that the brutal gray spider preys on large numbers of prey and brings them back to the nest in order to provide sufficient food for their mother. And once their mother gets enough food supply, it means that there will be more terrifying spider waves. The captain said the leader's and manager's mission is very important, and they hope that they can cooperate with the military sincerely, and their priority is to complete the task, and as long as their task is completed, the reward will never be less. The leaders and managers think the military was trying to be nice to them. 
but the military is afraid that they will fight internally. The captain of the military thinks they don't have any objections and he said they should start the task. As agreed, the military provides fire suppression first. Then the captain ordered to fire to 3 o'clock. His comrade hears him and then blows fire to 3 o'clock. The attack lunged to the spiders and made a hole in the ground with broken spider body parts. Mr. Liu complains to the captain of the military because after he talks to them nicely, he still have to show his muscles and scare them. However, Mr. Liu said the government did take the exploration very seriously, and the artillery was meant to deter them. But Mr. Liu thinks it did greatly weaken the strength of the monsters for them, and if they can show anything real in their current mission they can't justify it. Captain Mu shouts at Mr. Liu that he hasn't even done anything yet and the leader-level Imperial Beasts, the eight of them, and several other organizations only have three or four each. Mr. Liu laughed and said that because the others still have their cards, unlike Captain Mu and him, who are too honest. Suddenly the ground something make a loud sound that made every people on the ground panic. The man called Mr. Liu because the state of the devil mantis is not right and the mantis seems to be very scared. Suddenly he heard a big step coming toward them, then a big gorilla showed itself. Mr. Liu looked at it and said that the aura he feels is a lord level monster aura. Then Mr. Liu realizes that it was the lord of the black ember forest. The lord of the forest screams loudly and ready itself to attack which made the people there panic. The captain of the military thinks the leader and managers are useless. Suddenly the military's killer golden beast got down from heaven which made the people think they're saved. When the lord of the forest is going to attack, the golden beast flies in front of it. Then the golden beast attacked the lord of the forest using its fire, but the lord of the forest shielded itself using his arm. The lord of the forest looks at his burning arm in shock, then turn around and leave. The military captain suggests to Mr. Liu to act quickly as their support can't go so far. The captain shouts at the people to assemble. The captain said to the man that the people with them are all a bunch of ripoffs. Also, he asks why they need the help of the people when their team in the military can take care of the situation themselves. The man said although they were one step ahead and noticed the change, they were able to take advantage of it and be prepared. But the world is changing more dramatically than they thought and the situation is increasingly dire. The man explains that in order to prepare for the non-governmental organization should grow and participate as soon as possible. Captain Mu and her team were in the cage, killing spiders using their beast and fire. One of her team said that their plan won't work because it was too wasteful of energy. The women also said although their imperial beasts can easily kill the elite quality monsters, the number of monsters is too many and their beast energy will be depleted soon. Captain Mu orders her team to adjust their formation, and she orders her defensive imperial beasts to stand in the front row to support the imperial beast that stands in the center. Suddenly his defensive imperial beast was attacked by the spider. The girl order her thorn demon flower to use its thorn armor to pass at defensive imperial beasts. Then Captain Mu asks her beast to attack, then Captain Mu beast blows out the fire to attack the spiders. After Captain Mu's beast killed the spider they were happy because their tactics working. Suddenly they hear people fighting, but they realize that they are still at some distance from the mother spider's destination. Captain Mu run and order her team to move. Finally, Captain Mu's team arrived at the mother spider's destination and saw the other teams attacking the mother spider. The team's leaders realize that the mother spider has little offensive power, and is only large enough to reproduce, but she is actually a very weak fighter. Then Mr. Liu suggests to other team leaders that they should work together to kill the mother spider, and after that, they can divide the credits according to the wounds they inflicted. Then Mr. Liu orders his support to attack the eyes of the mother spider using the back row of long range which his support immediately follow. Mr. Liu attacked the mother spider's eyes but he was shocked to see that it had a shield. On the other hand, the girl and Captain Mu's team said the situation is deadlocked, and they had to get down to help the other team. Also, if the mother spider die without their team's help, the military will deduct their contribution and other teams will also reject them. Captain Mu looked at the mother spider then said her teammate was right and they have to go down to help, but she thinks something is not right with the mother spider and she had a bad feeling. Suddenly the eye shield of the mother spider broke and Mr. Liu notices it. Then Mount Liu Mantis saw it and it jumped into the mother spider's eyes and attack it, which made the mother spider shocked. Suddenly the spider screams loudly and the people around hear it suffer. Mr. Liu wonders who's the one who said that the mother spider doesn't have an attack power. Suddenly Mr. Liu's eyes widen because the mother spider is evolving into a lord level aura. Mr. Liu immediately rides to his mantis and makes it run while explaining that the mother spider is an evolving lord rank peak monster and apparently the evolutionary process of the mother spider was interrupted by them. Mr. Liu shouts at the people that isn't something they can solve and he orders the people to run. Meanwhile, in the forest, the captain of the military and the government were waiting for the teams to come back. Suddenly they saw someone flying in the sky coming their way. 
When the captain looks up and he thinks something wrong, he shouted to alert all the troops and order them to prepare for the battle. Mr. Liu who currently riding his mantis in the sky shouts to hold the fire. When Mr. Liu and his mantis landed Mr. Liu was down to the ground exhausted. Then one of the government's people run toward him to ask why he was alone. Suddenly Mr. Liu stands up and grabs the man's suit tie, while asking if their government sent them there to die because the mother spider that they said was a little offensive monster is in the process of advancing to the lord level. The captain holds Mr. Liu's hand and tells him to calm down. Also he should clarify the situation first. Mr. Liu ungrabs the man's suit tie then he explained that when they exploring the cave, they encountered a mother spider in the process of evolution. Due to the difference in strength they had to be one-sided and been massacred. Also, Mr. Liu said in order to complete the mission, they sent out their best beasts but all their beasts were killed inside the cave. The captain looks at the government researcher and asks them in an angry tone why they only said that the mother spider is with a little combat power, but the researcher can't say a word. Suddenly the man appeared in the distance, the captain asks the man where is the mother spider and if it follow him. The man responded that he don't know, and maybe the mother spider chasing the others because after they came out, they were all scattered and fled which made the other military personnel look at each other. The captain said if they knew in advance that the mother spider was in the process of advancing to the level of the lord, they won't just send a small amount of manpower. Also, the captain said if they can bring the mother spider back to the military zone and train it properly, it will definitely enhance the strength of their military zone. However, the mother spider failed to advance and become worthless, and the captain assured his people that they don't need to worry about the rest because one mountain can't tolerate two tigers, and the leader beast of the Black Ember Forest will definitely not let it go. Meanwhile, in Monster Park, Dazai destroyed the stone, which made the other owner shocked. The other owner tells his beast to look at Dazai in an encouraging tone. Gao Peng was petting Dazai when he thinks Mr. Liu unexpectedly met two leader rank and one half leader rank monster, after only taking over a government task. Gao Peng knows that the hunting environment in the wild is getting more and more severe, and the value of the corpse of the common level monster is pitifully low. Then the price of an elite level monster's corpse is only enough to buy a snack for Dummy. So, Gao Peng thinks he needs to let Dummy and Dazai rise up to the leader rank as soon as possible, so that the success rate of hunting in the field is higher, and once his beast all advances, his reputation as a monster trainer would be established. If that time comes, Gao Peng plans to go to Yanjing City to get the senior monster trainer certificate, and get his one regular and one assistant, as long as he grows according to the route, he thinks he can continue to become stronger. Demi has broken through level 14, but unfortunately, no one has completed the task set by the Monster Hunters Guild, and Dummy has eaten all cedar pine needles at home, so Dummy can only stand foolishly in front of the refrigerator and stared at it every day. And after all time of training, Dazai also reached level 13. Suddenly Ting called for Gao Peng while showing her notebook. Then Ting said inside her notebook she write her own summary of training tips for defensive beasts. Gao Peng took the notebook and check it while thinking since Ting choose to team up, she have to be well prepared and with her notebook, they can formulate tactics based on the characteristics of her beast. Gao Peng read on one page of Ting notebook that the will of steel is always more important than physical defense for the defensive beast. Then Gao Peng looked at Ting while thinking that Ting is really serious about their team, which made Ting confused. Gao Peng walked toward Ting, then he tiptoed to reach Ting, and tapped Ting's shoulder, then Gao Peng said he suddenly feels that Ting is quite easygoing, which made Ting more confused. Suddenly, they heard someone in the speaker ordering all students to gather in front of the stage, and there will be no free practice. When all the students gathered, the coach said their first phase of training is done, and before they start the second phase he would like to announce a list of names. The captain showed a piece of paper and started to call the names of the student written on it, and the captain said all the names he called was eliminated and they should leave the field which made the student who was called gets angry and protests. Suddenly the expression of the military trainers changes and asks if they have a problem, and said their instructors have seen how they have all been behaving in the past few weeks. The coach asks Zai Jiangyi if the phone is fun. Then he asks Hu Yanchen how can she sleep comfortably on the training field. Then the coach warned them that if they fool around and be lazy in basic training, then there is no point in continuing the training. The coach also said that the second phase of the training is a practical one, and if they continue with their kind of lax attitude, they will not only cause accidents, but they may even lose the lives of their beasts, which made the student shocked. One student said his teddy is the strongest, and absolutely can kill the monsters without leaving any behind. Suddenly someone said his teddy looks like a bluff, and he was afraid his teddy will be scared to crawl in an instant and ask him if you want to fight he still need his yellow-tailed king scorpion beast. The two men glaringly look at each other, then they shout at each other, which confused other students. Suddenly the coach said there should five people in a group, and they should get ready to start actual combat training. 
Also, the coach said the new group will be led by an instructor so they need to hurry up to find a group. The two classmates immediately jumped toward Gao Peng and Tiang while shouting to other students to find other teams because there are teammates of Gao Peng and Tiang. The other student starts to make a teammate. Suddenly the coach appeared on Gao Peng team while saying hi. Then the coach formally introduces himself as Zhang Renbai, and he said he'll be in charge of their group's practical training. Then Renbai asks Gao Peng group who wants to be the first to try. Renbai introduced a monster named Steel Pig, and it was level 9. The Steel Pig status is weakly wounded. The other teammate of Gao Peng shakingly asks Renbai if they can get a different monster. Renbai pointed to the other monster named Hairless Bloodhound and it was level 10. The Hairless Bloodhound quality is elite and its status is moderately injured and it was alerted. Gao Peng thinks the hyena looks unimpressive but it is actually an elite quality, and if his teammate gets excited and go berserk, the hyenas can be much more aggressive than the wild boars. Gao Peng walked toward Renbai and said since no one is gonna try, he'll be the first to challenge. Renbai released the wild boar out of its cage. Then the boar run towards where Gao Peng and Da Zai were. Da Zai changes to his combat form and Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to go ahead. The boar scream and attack Da Zai, but Da Zai avoided it, then Da Zai jump above the boar. Da Zai opened his mouth, then bite the boar, which made the boar scream in pain. The boar jerked Da Zai off with force, then Da Zai was thrown to the ground injured, which make his teammates shocked because they think Da Zai lose. Gao Peng realizes that Da Zai is at a disadvantage, but Da Zai has already taken control of the situation because the boar is poisoned. Da Zai toxin has been injected into the steel pig along with the attack. The more violent the attack of the steel pig, the faster the toxin spreads. Suddenly the boar's feet shake, then the boar collapsed to the ground severely injured, which made his teammates and their beasts shocked. Da Zai stands up and looks at the lying boar. Renbai said the steel pig's face was blue, so it was clearly poisoned. Then Renbai congratulates Gao Peng because he passed today's training, and his centipede is very toxic and had good combat sense. However, Renbai said it's better to let Da Zai poison sparingly, otherwise it is difficult to improve Da Zai's combat power, and it will lose most of its combat power once it encounters enemies that are immune to poison. Gao Peng gives Da Zai a treat and said Da Zai did well, while Renbai thinks Gao Peng's centipede is almost raised like a dog. Renbai said the steel pig can still fight and he asked who will go next. One of Gao Peng teammates touched his beast and said his beast can participate in the second round battle. Then his other teammates said he only have the ability to beat a dog in the water. The student mocked his other classmate and said he can only beat up the falling water teddy in his house. Renbai stopped them and ordered them to continue the training. The boar stands up again, and the student orders his yellow-tailed scorpion king to attack. The scorpion attacked the boar using its tail with a poison needle repeatedly, which made the boar dead, and the student was proud of his beast. Suddenly his beast collapsed to the ground with its mouth bubbling. That made the owner shocked. Gao Peng said his beast was poisoned which made the owner more confused. Then Ting said Gao Peng words were true because Gao Peng's imperial beast and the yellow-tailed scorpion's own poison were still left in the monster's body. Then Ting said it's not the case that all the imperial beasts with poison attacks have poison resistance. The owner asks if his beast was poisoned by itself, then the other teammates of them laugh because his yellow-tailed scorpion king laughs to death, which made the owner angry. The owner of the scorpion pointed to something and said to his teammate that before he laugh at him, he should look at his beast. When the student looked around he saw his beast running towards the dead boar. The student hold his beast and tried to stop it. Then the owner of the scorpion gives his scorpion an antidote, while in the back team was asking Gao Peng a question. Renbai thinks Gao Peng team was not easy to lead. The next day, Dummy opened the refrigerator cabinet, but it was still empty, so Dummy close it hard. Then Dummy opens it again hoping that the cedar pine needle was in it. Gao Peng who's looking at Dummy thinks Dummy was so silly and cute, while behind him Da Zai was eating. Suddenly Gao Peng phone rang. When he picked it up and see it was the Monster Hunting Association number, he thinks it must be the Cedar Pine Needles. Gao Peng answered the phone. Then the voice on the other line said his task number posted in the Monster Hunting Association had been completed, and his item will arrive at the pickup location at the scheduled time. Gao Peng immediately wears his shoes because he thinks if the shortage continues, he wants to give three years ago, Earth underwent a cataclysm. The animals and plants in the world started to change and evolve crazily and inexplicably. The entirety of human civilization was hit hard with countless casualties. In order to protect the world from being destroyed and uphold world peace, humans have awakened the ability to control monsters and use them to fight. He is a normal high school student whose parents were killed during the cataclysm. However, not only he does have a powerful and mysterious beauty protecting him, he even awakened a mysterious system and when it comes to taming and raising monsters, he shall reign supreme.
However, the Earth's cataclysm also caused the bizarre disappearance of his grandfather. In the face of deadly dangers that are coming one after another, there is only one path he can take, and that is to become powerful and become the strongest monster trainer, also to succeed in evolving an epic grade familiar. However, in the future, he will one day realize that the epic grade monster evolution is just the beginning. Our main protagonist's name is Gao Peng. He is 18 years old, a student at Chang'an Third Senior High School, and his dream is to become the Imperial Ambassador. Previously, the team made a move, which made Dummy and Da Zai alerted, and made Gao Peng ask Dummy and Da Zai what was wrong. Gao Peng noticed someone behind the tree, then he shouted to the people hiding to show their self. The captain nervously said they had been found out. The captain showed himself with their beasts and greet Gao Peng, which made Yao Huan confused. The captain said they are there to see if Gao Peng need help with anything. Then Yao Huan looked at his captain proudly because he thinks his captain is quick-witted. Gao Peng knows that the man is lying because the armor-piercing cone bee and the skull butterfly the man had are the familiars that are good at ambushing an enemy in the forest. Gao Peng thinks the two men definitely don't have good intentions. Suddenly Dummy notices someone, then Gao Peng and Dummy look at the man hiding in the tree. The captain said it was his brother and they should relax because they have no ill intentions. But in reality, the captain is nervously wondering how Gao Peng and his beast are so perceptive of their plan. Deng Sen showed himself with his beast named Mitral Cockroach, it was level 18 elite and it was in excellent grade. The cockroach's attribute is gold, and its weakness is electric. Then Deng Sen agreed to his captain's word and said he had to use the bathroom that's why he just came. Gao Peng looked at the Mithril Cockroach data and thinks it was a rare type of variant, and luckily Da Zai can counter it so there's nothing to be afraid of. Then Gao Peng said he don't think he need help, especially if it was that kind of help. The captain responded that since Gao Peng doesn't like them impeding, they should forget about it, then the captain walk away, which made Yao Huan shocked. Yao Huan walks toward his captain and asks if they are really leaving. The captain responded that with their exposure one after another, they already lost the element of surprise, and if they fail, they just make a new enemy for nothing. The captain also said to be able to raise three familiars at the same time at such a young age means that Gao Peng either has the money or the skills to do so. Either way, it means that they shouldn't mess with Gao Peng, and the captain said to make things worse, the black robe familiar of Gao Peng is giving off an aura that makes Tudu rather uncomfortable, and Tudu's intuition has saved him many times. The captain turned to walk away properly while saying in this dog-eat-dog -dog world. Who knows what kind of familiars they meet that could easily take their lives, and he said they will go back once Gao Peng leaves to see if they can find anything there later. Yao Huan said he understand while still looking at Gao Peng. Gao Peng looked at the man while wondering if Dummy didn't spot the person hiding in the dark would the men have attacked them head on. Gao Peng also wonders if the three men attacked them would he have just fought with the intention to kill. Two hours later, Gao Peng was happy because they get 0.95 kilograms of wood space hearts and he thinks it should be enough then Gao Peng called Da Zai and use his one hand to hold Da Zai in its horns and use one hand to get the torch at Silly. Then Gao Peng made the torch fire using Da Zai electricity. Then Gao Peng drops the torch into the leaves on the ground. The forest made a big fire and Gao Peng walk away while thinking that before the cataclysm, starting a fire in a forest was a chargeable offense, but they removed that law after the cataclysm occurred. The life force and resistance possessed by the plants have become more resilient than initially imagined, and for a simple flame to create a huge fire is practically impossible. Gao Peng knows that it was convenient for him to get rid of the evidence. Meanwhile, at the top of the forest, Yao Huan pointed at something and called his captain to look at it. Deng Sen said Gao Peng is cunning, and then he asks his captain if Gao Peng was scared that they'd find something when they double back. The captain said Gao Peng is too vigilant and he thinks Gao Peng might have not realized the decisive ruthlessness that's embedded in his nature. Yao Huan asks his captain if they are just going to leave the matter alone. Captain responded that there is no fundamental conflict between Gao Peng and them. If Gao Peng was holding on to some obvious treasure, then things might have been different. Captain said he would have chosen to take the risk and eliminate all the traces and to say it simply, the possible benefits aren't big enough. Also, they can't afford it, and they can forget about it, but someone else sure won't. Then the captain calls someone and he said to the person on the other line to relay to Dr. Jiang that the mission has been completed, and he already sent him pictures of the target's familiars. Meanwhile, in the other place, the man thanks the captain for his hard work, and he said that the captain's remuneration has been sent. The man looked at Dr. Jiang and he said that he don't think those bandits even made a move, and this scouting mission is a failure. Dr. Jiang said it was fine, then Jiang asks the man if they haven't already finished preparing the next step of their plan. Then Dr. Jiang smiled in a creepy way and said Jai Hanwu, his grandson, his only relative, he found him. On the other hand, Gao Peng and his beasts come back to their apartment and they saw the apartment dirty with an empty can of food and skin of stripey on the floor. 
Gaopeng said Stripey's growth rate sure is quick, and not only has Stripey leveled up, but its body has also grown two sizes bigger since they left the house. Then Gaopeng grabs the skin of Stripey on the floor and look at it. Then he said the skins of Stripey broke so easily and here he thought the shed skins of familiars could have a magical effect like in the novels. Gaopeng walked towards Stripey and tells it to continue eating because it is best if it can eat up and be nice and chubby. Then Gaopeng said they will wait until Stripey become fat, then they'll eat fried spider meat, which made Stripey shake in fear. Then Stripey ungrabbed the can of food it was holding, then lay on the floor sad, while Gaopeng explained that his telling Stripey to eat less for his own good because his body will accumulate toxins if he eat too much canned food in one sitting. Gaopeng thinks that they collected wood space hearts and the items required for Sil's evolution are all gathered. However, they can't be stewed in a large pot of food. Gaopeng knows that Silly has a weak constitution and can't take any stress, so the materials need special preparation. Then Gaopeng decided to go to Fei Peng Familiar Studio with Silly. He opens the studio using his hand access, and when they finally inside the studio Gaopeng noticed that Quanquan went home so early today, which means no one will disturb him. Gaopeng grabs his lab coat while thinking that the ingredients are rare, and according to the formula they have to be specially processed by refrigeration, high temperature burning, and corrosion using a strong acid. Gaopeng goes to the lab and proceeds to cook the ingredient at a high temperature, then he blends the mixture. Gaopeng showed the mixture in the tube happy and said that the ingredients is finally done, and judging by its sweet fragrance, Silly will definitely like it. Gaopeng put the mixture in the large glass, which made Silly smell its fragrance, and Silly thinks the mixture is juice. Gaopeng pointed to the pot and ordered Silly to come in which Silly immediately did. Silly jumps to the pot happy while Gaopeng said he hasn't even finished talking yet and Silly is so impatient. Suddenly, Gaopeng was shocked to saw that Silly changing color. Gaopeng thinks there's something wrong with the color because Silly turning green. Gaopeng realizes that Silly's favorite place is on top of his head, and he suddenly feels that it's the wrong decision to choose the Wood Spirit Jellyfish Evolution Path. Gaopeng looks at Happy Silly and shouts for help because he doesn't like fluorescent green jellyfish. Gaopeng also realizes the materials needed for the evolution to epic grade are way too rare. Then he angrily wonders what the space attribute materials called magical space sand, and it looks like the highest grade Silly can reach is the perfect grade for now. Silly's monster's name changed to wooden spirit jellyfish, it was level 6 normal and it has perfect grade. Silly's new attributes are space, wood, and wind, its condition is healthy and happy. Also, Silly's weaknesses are electricity and ice. Gaopeng said with Silly's evolution, his soul strength has increased considerably considerably, and is probably still far away from being able to make a contract with Dummy. But as long as he put in the effort, Gaopeng knows that it'll probably only take a couple of days. Suddenly Gaopeng feels Silly's eyes behind him. Then Silly tried to sit on his head, but Gaopeng tried to push Silly away. Still, Silly happily succeed to sit on the top of sad Gaopeng head. Suddenly Gaopeng phone rang, and when he look at it, he saw it was the construction company that Tang Tang introduced to him a few days ago. Gaopeng wondered why manager Lai called him so late when the details of the workflow had already been finalized. Gaopeng answer the call, then manager Lai asks if he have a minute because they encountered some problems while cleaning the villa and they need Gaopeng to personally come to take a look. Gaopeng asks what's the problem. Manager Lai responded that they found some variant plants inside the villa that impede their development work, and if they do not get rid of the variant plants, it will be impossible for them to continue with their repair work. However, if they remove the plants they would need to remove parts of the building, which is why they hope that Gaopeng can come and take a look. Gaopeng agree, then manager Lai said it was great because all of the workers are waiting for him on site, so he need to hurry. Gaopeng noticed something and asked manager Lai to wait. Then Gaopeng asks if manager Lai said all the workers are waiting for him on site right now. Then he asks if he really has such honor that many masters are working overtime for him without any extra pay. Meanwhile, manager Lai who is currently being hostage responded that is a matter within their own organization. Then he asked Gaopeng to just hurry up. Gaopeng agreed and said he'll be there later. Then the man who was holding manager Lai's phone ended the call. Dr. Zhang patted manager Lai's head and said manager Lai did a good job and his son will be having roast chicken tonight. On the other hand, Gao Peng was looking at his phone and said manager Lai's words are very suspicious, and he can't contact Tang Tang. Gao Peng decided to bring Dummy and Da Zai as a precaution. Then Gao Peng ran while calling Silly. Half an hour later, the man asked Dr. Zhang why Gao Peng hasn't arrived yet and he also asked if he thinks Gao Peng noticed that something was wrong. 
Dr. Zhang responded that the man should be patient and that it was fine if Gao Peng comes a bit late because they still need to meet Jai Hanwu's people. Dr. Zhang also tells the man that he really didn't want to use such violent methods because, after all, they are civilized people. Dr. Zhang said no one in their group would have thought that Jai Hanwu still had a living grandson, and if someone hadn't secretly relayed that to him, all of them would have just thought he had no relatives left. The man said if news about Jai Hanwu's grandson being alive spreads, it's a given that a lot of people will move back into the dark to try and get rid of that threat. Dr. Zhang looks at his wine and shakes it while saying, after all, Jai Hanwu doesn't have any family. Jai Hanwu certainly grows old, but his grandson, on the other hand, is still very young, and Dr. Zhang said as the saying goes wealth moveth the heart of a man. Then he said the Southern Sky Group is now a huge organization with different forces populating the higher-ups and everyone having their own motives and ideas. The man was shocked and asked Dr. Zhang if he mean that they have to kill Gao Peng. Then the man also asks why don't they just kill Gao Peng, and why waste time on such superfluous actions. Dr. Zhang throw his wine and said Jai Hanwu spent so much effort to protect and hide his grandson, so he must pay a lot of attention to ensure his safety. There are surely people protecting Gao Peng secretly and if they move in right away, an accident is very likely. It'd be extremely problematic if they alerted Jai Hanwu. Also, Dr. Zhang asked the man who said that he wanted to kill Gao Peng. He only want to use him as leverage over Jai Hanwu for negotiation. Dr. Zhang throws his glass wine and looks at the man. Then he asks him if he actually thinks they have the prerequisites to fight for control over the Southern Sky Group. The glass wine broke into the ground and Dr. Jong said if they killed Jai Hanwu's grandson, they had to face the wrath of Jin Hanwu. And ultimately, the only benefactors would be those who have the prerequisites and capabilities to compete for the spot. Dr. Jong also said the research unit is in isn't among the top in the Southern Sky group, and there are at least 30 people who are on the same level as him. Moreover, apart from research units, there are still a few major security units, and even if the only heir of the Southern Sky group were to pass away, the position is too far away from him. Dr. Jung smiled and said why should he dirty his hands when he can benefit more by muddying the water because, after all, it wouldn't be wrong to consider Gao Peng as the prince who would inherit the throne one day. Even though they're on opposite sides right now, their world's definition of a friend and enemy is never that simple. They just need to wait till he gets his benefits and expands his laboratory tonight. Then he knows Gao Peng can't refuse his capitulation in the future. Dr. Jung checked the time and said it was about time and Jai Hanwu's people should be there. Then he asks the man to help him keep an eye on Manager Lai, which made Manager Lai shake in fear and said Dr. Jong shouldn't hurt him. Dr. Jong showed his butterfly beast while asking Manager Lai not to be nervous because he's a respectable researcher, and not the same as those hooligans. Then Dr. Jong's butterfly beast flies toward Manager Lai, and then the butterfly sprinkles dust on Manager Lai, which made Manager Lai collapse to the ground. Dr. Jong looked at Manager Lai sleeping and said Manager Lai should rest for a while because he can't have him meddling in the following matters. Dr. Jong also said it's a pity that there'll be one less person to witness his success tonight. Suddenly something fly into the sky fast. Then the man pointed at it and called Dr. Jong to look at it. Then they saw a dragon beast flying in the sky. Meanwhile in Chang'an's military region, the military bird beast is currently relaxing in its nest. Suddenly the bird feels something and screams loudly which made the military wonder what happening. Then he asks his comrade if the ape from the dark ember forest is out. His comrade disagrees and he thinks it looks like the golden god discovered something and they should hurry up and investigate. The chief arrives and tells the military that there's no need to investigate because that person from the Southern Sky Group is there in Chang'an. The chief said there was no need to worry and he just need to sound the alert as usual which the military immediately followed. The chief looked at their bird beast and said a storm is coming. On the other hand, Jai Hanwu and his beast arrive in front of Dr. Jong which made Jong said he has Gao Peng in stuttered words. Jai Hanwu warned Dr. Jong to think clearly before speaking. Dr. Jong looked at his people that were dead on the ground, and he explained that what he said just now was nonsense, and he spewed due to nervousness. Then Jong begs Jai Hanwu to give him a chance to speak. Jai Hanwu asked him who told him about Gao Peng. Dr. Jong responded that Jai Hanwu shouldn't be hasty because he didn't let anyone know about Gao Peng. However, he has set up a program, and as long as he doesn't decode the program on time, the program will send news about Gao Peng to the mobile devices of every employee in the Southern Sky Group. Jai Hanwu tells Jiang to forget it because everyone has their own will, so he won't force him to tell. Then Jai Hanwu starts to walk away, but Dr. Jiang shouts that he'll tell him, and he said it was Secretary Liu. Then he explained that he only wanted more funds and he never thought about hurting Gao Peng. As long as there are enough funds, he will certainly bring immense benefits to the Southern Sky Group. Jai Hanwu touches Beast and said seeing that Jiang actually worked hard. 
He'll let him have a good time which made Zhang beg for forgiveness, but it was too late. Jai Han Wu looked at the dead Zhang and said Zhang is a fool because he would never be threatened in any way. Then Jai Han Wu clicks his device bracelet to contact his people. Jai Han Wu orders his people to investigate Zhang because he probably set up a program. And if they can find the program they should destroy it and if they can't they should let him know because Gao Peng is the heir to the Southern Sky Group. And that is an unchangeable truth. In the worst case scenario, Jai Hanwu will simply need to announce that to the public earlier. The man in the other line said he understood and then hang up. Suddenly Tang Tang arrives while Jai Hanwu was looking at the place. Jin Hanwu looks at Tang Tang and thanks her for her hard work. Jai Hanwu tells her that when he just returned from overseas, he couldn't fully control the group because the group was in a state of chaos and the death of Gao Peng parents overshadowed news about Gao Peng. Jai Hanwu said he could only send his people to find any remaining clues so that Gao Peng could grow up in peace, although the forces within the group has gradually stabilized. There was no need to rush bringing Gao Peng over, and the sort of free-roaming grooming method can better train a person's willpower. Also Gao Peng's talent has far exceeded his expectations. Jai Hanwu patted his beast and said he have some business to attend to, so he'll leave the clean up to her which made her shocked. Tang Tang asks his teacher Jai Hanwu if he isn't going to visit Gao Peng tonight. Jai Hanwu looked at her and said they should wait for a more suitable opportunity. Also for Gao Peng a rock solid heart and soul are so much more precious than any obtainable object. Then Jin Hanwu left, leaving a message that Gao Peng should show him how much he can grow. Meanwhile, Gao Peng and his beasts arrived at the place, but they didn't see anyone. Gao Peng wondered where his manager Lai and the workers, also. He couldn't get in touch with manager Lai since just now and he worried that something wrong happened. Gao Peng noticed the mark in the ground and said no matter how he looks at the mark it doesn't look like a trace left behind from renovation, and he thinks it looks like a claw mark. Suddenly someone said seems like she underestimated Gao Peng growth which made Gao Peng shocked and turned around and he saw it was Tang Tang. Gao Peng sighed and said it was just her and no wonder Silly didn't alert him, which made her feels a bit of disgust and dismissal because of Gao Peng expression. Tang Tang lectured Gao Peng that in their current situation, he shouldn't let his guard down so easily because he can't confirm if she was an enemy or not. Gao Peng responded that if he have to be suspicious of her too, then there wouldn't be anyone he can trust in their world because ever since he became an orphan. But before Gao Peng can finish his word Tang Tang interrupted him and said Gao Peng is wrong. She explained that Gao Peng is not an orphan, and his grandfather is still alive. Which made Gao Peng shocked and asked her if his grandfather is really still alive. She explained that when the cataclysm occurred, his grandfather was stuck on a foreign island. The people who were stuck on the island with his grandfather included several of his grandfather's most trusted aides. The island was already a tropical environment. It was surrounded by ocean, so no one could imagine the difficulties at such a start and if one were to say that an inland city was a normal difficulty, then the island would be the start of a hell difficulty stage. Also islands don't have armies. However, the heavens never forsook his grandfather and his grandfather was lucky later and seized the opportunity. His grandfather relied on his amazing will to survive on the island while continuously training familiars, which made Gao Peng think his grandfather is amazing. Tang Tang also said, his grandfather cares about him dearly, so his grandfather entrusted her to look after and protect him. As to why his grandfather never came to see him, his grandfather has his reasons. Gao Peng responded that he knows that it's the whole before heavens entrust a man with great responsibility. He shall be tested kind of thing. Gao Peng said he knows his grandpa's personality. His grandfather must have felt it wasn't safe and thought that it would easier to protect him by keeping him hidden, and his grandpa wants to test him, hoping that he would grow on his own as quickly as possible. Gao Peng looked away and assured Tang Tang, she won't have to worry because he understands his grandfather because he is his family, which made Tang Tang feel happy while looking at Gao Peng. Suddenly Gao Peng happily jumps forward to her and asks what his grandfather familiar and what grade is it, and if it is incredibly strong. Tang Tang just responded that he will know the answer in the future, which made Gao Peng sad. On the other hand, his grandfather was looking at them, in the sky with his beast. Jai Han Wu happily said Gao Peng understand him, then he said he'll be waiting for when the time comes. The next day, Gao Peng looks at the people gathered in one place with an ambulance and he wonders what happened. Gao Peng come to take a look and saw one student lying on the medical stretcher. Then he asked his classmate if the student accidentally lose his footing. His classmate responded that it wasn't an accident, the student was beaten up by a monster trainer cadet, and she heard that the two students have always had problems with one another and one of them became a monster trainer cadet. This morning the two students had a verbal spat in front of the school gate, and the monster trainer cadet used his familiar to attack the other student because of that the student was almost killed. 
Gao Peng classmate also said the student who used his familiar to commit the crime used to be bullied in his class because of his weak personality. As for the student who was sent to the hospital, he was one of the students that bullied the attacker student the most. The other students were talking and fighting about their reason for the situation of the bullet attacker and injured bully. While Gao Peng was walking away wondering what the school's and military's stance on the situation and if they removed the training grounds from their school. Meanwhile, at the principal office, the principal was angrily shouting at the military chief that the school prohibits students from carrying sharp tools like knives because the student's age and mentality make the students impulsive and those familiars are way more dangerous than knives, and continuing training inside the school is unreasonable in terms of safety. Also it's as unfair to the students who do not have familiars. The military calmly tells the principal to calm down because they didn't wish for it to happen too. The principal calmed down and apologized because he lost his cool, and he explained that his words don't concern the others, he was just worried about the safety of the students. The military chief said he understand, then he stand up while explaining that he seriously consider the principal's suggestion, and that he he will also relay it to the higher-ups, but he can't guarantee the principal what the result will be. The military walked to the door and said that right now nowhere is really safe anymore and all he can do is to try to stop things like their current situation from happening with the power of the law. Then the military chief left, leaving the principal sigh and worry. At the Chang'an military region, the military chief tells his chief instructor everything that happened at the school, and the instructor chief agreed and said the school should be a place for studying. But that was in the past. The instructor chief also said that the military chief should know that just in the last month, Chang'an City reported over 300 cases of familiars injuring humans. Moreover, because the familiars were abnormally lethal, most of those kinds of incidents were malicious in nature, and the incident isn't simply a criminal incident in Chang'an City. They have to look at the whole country and the entire world. The chief instructors explain that in Huexia, they have the lowest crime rate, and countries in the West have it worse. Also West police force is completely overwhelmed, and they need to depend on powerful civilians to help them keep their peace and maintain stability. The chief military responded in frustration that he understand. Then the chief instructor held his shoulder and said he understand what he feels, but he need to relax because the world allied government won't sit around and wait for the situation to worsen. The instructor said the special times call for a special measure, and their task is still very heavy. Meanwhile, in the monster park, the students are properly listening to their instructor Renbai. Renbai lectured the students and said they all haven't even killed many monsters yet, and they already started to bully other students. Then Renbai announced that starting tomorrow all their familiars will be prohibited from entering school, and the military will construct a large gate on the side of the training group specifically for their familiars, while the other students were laughing at Gao Peng because of the green jellyfish in his head. Gao Peng tried to remove Silly from his head but Silly don't want to go. Then Gao Peng said he heard that jellyfish wolfberry soup is taste good, which made Silly shocked him in fear. Then Silly gets a bottle of juice in his inventory, then gives it to Gao Peng while saying Gao Peng should drink juice and not jellyfish soup. Renbai called for the student's attention and said it'll be time for the entrance examination for college in two months, and time waits for no man. The results of their last two months of training will significantly affect and even determine their final results. Renbai said to the students that they shouldn't think that a good result is useless because all the big groups, the military, and the government will throw a baton at all the monster trainer cadets with excellent grades, and those individuals who possess special talents will receive focused training. No matter the treatment or prospect, it'll be far beyond those of normal students. Then Renbai pointed to the screen behind him and asked the students to take a look. Renbai explained that the first set of the entrance examination for college questions for monster trainer cadets is out because they were sent to various base cities in multiple countries across the world. According to the document disseminated, the exam will be divided into three rounds. The first round will be a unified examination across the country. They will lead their familiars to challenge monsters. Firstly, the students can select the tier and grade of the monsters, but the monster type will be randomized at the same time. They cannot choose monsters with specific attribute advantages in the battles. If the monster has an attribute that is advantageous over their familiar's monster attribute, they will have one chance to change the challenging monster. And of course, if their familiar is successful in defeating a monster with an advantageous attribute, then they will get a 10% bonus. The base points given for normal tier monsters are 10 points, elite tier monsters give 50 points, and commander tier monsters give 500 points. Based on the points, excellent grade monsters with the same level will provide provide bonus points of 50%, and perfect grade monsters with the same level will provide bonus points of 100%. Secondly, the number of monsters they challenge cannot exceed the number of monsters they possess, and if they only have three familiars, then at most, 
they will be able to battle three monsters. That rule is to prevent examinees with high-level familiars from selecting a large number of low-level monsters to grind their points. The first round of their exam is essentially the finish line for most of the students. Only a few excellent students will meet the requirements to take the second round of the exam. The second round of the exam will be a real combat survival mission in the wilderness. Moreover, the proceeding will be broadcast live nationally, and the specific rules will be announced after the first round of the exam. However, as long as they can meet the requirement for the second round of examination, they can essentially get admitted to a prestigious university. Renbai also said for their third round of the exam, they need to wait until they've earned the right to participate in the second round of the exam before they let them know. Renbai said he hoped all the examinees won't waste their time, and he believed they had experienced the three years of calamity equally. It wasn't easy to achieve their exams, and he hoped that all the students treasure it, and the military instructors will provide the students with extra training in the remaining time. Gao Peng said with his skill set, he can participate in the year's exam even though he is just a sophomore, and he realizes that he needs to promote Stripey to a perfect grade as fast as possible. Renbai walked to the side of the monster in the cage and he said after their begging over and over, they've finally given special approval for the mutant Deadleaf Locust. Then he asks who wants to train first. The monster name is Deadleaf Locust, a gigantificated variant. The Locust grade is excellent and it was level 10 normal. Gao Peng look at the Locust data and he thinks that Stripey has grown to level 10 during the period, and in terms of level and grade. There's not much between Stripey and Dead Leaf Locusts. Also, the Locust is the perfect opponent for training. Moreover, Gao Peng knows that Locusts are originally the prey of spiders, so Stripey has the upper hand. But Gao Peng look at Stripey who currently hiding behind Da's eye and he wonders why Stripey is so timid. Then he remember that Stripey was ruthless when it attacked him last time and maybe it was a stress response after being frightened. Then Gao Peng raises his hand and tells Renbai that he'll go train first again, while Stripey is hiding behind him which made Renbai ask if he had another one to train. Renbai tells Gao Peng that under normal circumstances, monster trainers put everything into training their first familiar, and they only begin training a second one after the first reaches Commander Tier. That's only because Commander Tier familiars have the ability to preserve one's life genuinely. Renbai also tells Gao Peng that he's one of their outstanding students. Training multiple familiars at the same time will waste a lot of his time and effort, especially during a crucial period like before the entrance exam, and his best option is to advance one of his familiars to the Commander Tier so that he can obtain points from Commander Tier monsters. Gao Peng thanked Renbai for his advice, but Gao Peng said he already planned the training thoroughly, so it won't be a problem for him. Gao Peng also thinks although Renbai is saying that for his own good, he can't tell Renbai that he can easily promote a familiar's grade with the help of the system. Then Stripey shakily enters the cage where Locust was, while Gao Peng cheers Stripey outside the cage. Stripey look up and saw the Locust in the ceiling of the cage. Then Stripey shakingly tells to Locust not to hit him. Gao Peng classmates ask him why isn't anything happening, if the familiars are going to fight or not, and should his teddy go first instead. This made Gao Peng think his classmates is a good match because one is suspicious while the other one is cowardly. Gao Peng said he finally understands what Ren Bai meant about his familiars having differences in personalities. In the same first battle, Da Zai and Stripey are completely different. Da Zai is aggressive and it took the initiative to attack its prey, on the other hand, Stripey chooses to defend itself and run away. If the floor weren't cement, Stripey might have dug a hole in the ground to hide. Gao Peng look at Stripey and thinks Stripey need to experience something like that. If he wants to grow, Stripey needs to experience combat. Suddenly the locust attacked Stripey, then the locust grabbed Stripey claw and threw Stripey into the air, which made Stripey shocked. Gao Peng panics because he knows that the dead leaf locust wants to fight in the air, and the situation gives the locusts an upper hand and only the locust mutant creature possesses the strength to lift Stripey into the air. Stripey attacked the locust using its web while in the air, which made the locust stick on the ground. Stripey landed on the ground and shielded itself shakingly. The locust broke the web and attacked Stripey repeatedly. Ting tells Gao Peng that his little spider is pretty strong because it diffuses the attack of a special mutant. Gao Peng knows that Ting's words are wrong because it is supposed to be the best opportunity for Stripey to attack, but since it was busy defending after touching the ground, Stripey missed the chance. Although the locust is a mutant, its attacks didn't harm Stripey which means Stripey is far stronger than the locust. Gao Peng ordered Stripey to attack the locust, but Stripey disagree and said he's scared. Gao Peng assured Stripey that he was stronger than it, then he orders Stripey to climb up the cage and attack the locusts, but Stripey disagree again and said climbing the cage is too hard. Gao Peng angrily shouted at Stripey and reminds Stripey that he is a spider, but he has the gall to actually tell him that crawling up an iron cage is too difficult. Then Gao Peng said Stripey is undoubtedly the lamest familiar that he has trained. 
Gao Peng calms down and thinks that it's because he was too greedy and training a familiar has never been an easy task. Then he look at Stripey and realizes that Stripey's just a defense type familiar that does not rely on attacks. Since Stripey is unwilling to attack, it's okay to just train Stripey defense. Then Gao Peng calls Stripey to get out of the cage. Gao Peng tells Stripey to come out if he doesn't want to attack, which made Stripey think his new master is not happy and he will be left behind again. Stripey look at Gao Peng and said his new master is not happy and he will be left behind again, but he doesn't want to be thrown away again. Suddenly Stripey crawl to the cage and look down at the locusts. Stripey angrily looks at it while saying he doesn't want to be thrown away. Then Stripey jumps to attack the locusts. Then Stripey attacked the locust using its claws, which made everyone praise Gao Peng and cheer for Stripey, but Gao Peng thinks Stripey's condition isn't right. Gao Peng saw Stripey's status is aggressive and out of control. Then he saw a warning because Stripey's desire to fight had increased drastically, and staying in the state for a long time will cause irreversible damage to Stripey. Stripey attacks the locust using its web, then he stabs the locust using its claws repeatedly and angrily. Gao Peng reaches Stripey and he grabs Stripey to stop attacking. Then Gao Peng tells Stripey that he did great, and Gao Peng apologizes for what he just said, and he said Stripey was amazing. Stripey looks at Gao Peng while it's still thinking that Gao Peng is angry and he needs to fight because he doesn't want to be thrown away, and Stripey's status is still aggressive and out of control. Gao Peng smiled at Stripey and said he'll never leave him behind because he is his monster trainer, they are partners. Then he asks Gao Peng why in the world would a person leave his partner behind. Then Gao Peng ordered Stripey to come out because it was enough. Stripey looks at Gao Peng softly and asks if his word was true. Also Stripey's status is back to normal. Gao Peng patted Stripey and assured Stripey that he won't ever throw him away, while Renbai looked at them. Renbai remembers Gao Peng asking him to open the cage and let him in because his familiar's condition isn't right, and he needs to go save it. Renbai knows that intervening in a fight between familiars is a very dangerous thing to do, but Gao Peng didn't even hesitate, and perhaps the reason Gao Peng managed to achieve such excellent grades is because Gao Peng is fearless. Then Renbai sighed and said it'd be great if someone with that kind of talent become one of them. One week later, Gao Peng was looking at Stripey who's finally lost weight after one week of training. Stripey no longer fear combat. But in his spare time, he still consulted Renbai, and formulated a fighting style where the main goal is to deplete the enemy's stamina in order to avoid engaging in head-on battles. Gao Peng look at Stripey who currently upgraded to level 13 playing with Silly, while thinking that he has thought a lot ever since Stripey lost control last time. The aid the system provides him with is immense, but if he relies on the system too much and expects that everything will go smoothly, he will eventually end up at a big disadvantage, no matter the fighting tactic or his control over the information. Gao Peng knows that he is still too inexperienced and he needs to take it slow and not expect immediate success. Then he looks at the peeled skin of Stripey and he thinks each time he throws the skin of Stripey he feels like it was a waste. Also, he heard that spider exoskeletons or spider peeled skin can be used as medicine. Then he decided to try dipping it with egg, flour, and sugar and frying it. Gao Peng thinks he's one of the Celestial Empire's people after all and there's nothing he can't eat, and if it has poison, he has Da Zai which made Da Zai confused. Gao Peng start cooking, and when he tasted it he said it was so delicious, and adding cumin powder would make it perfect. Gao Peng called Stripey and Da Zai to have a taste of it. Then Da Zai eat it and said it was delicious, but Stripey said he feels that Gao Peng made has a familiar taste. Gao Peng put his apron on the handle while thinking that since Stripey level has increased, his soul strength should have increased too, then he decided to try signing a contract with Dummy again. Gao Peng tried to make a contract with Dummy and asked Dummy if he was willing to become his familiar. Dummy smiled and said he do, which made Gao Peng and Dummy contract successful. Gao Peng happily said it was a success and his soul has indeed increased. Then he smiled at Dummy and tells Dummy to guide him for the rest of his life, which made Dummy smile and agree. The second wilderness training day arrives. The students were on the bus and Gao Peng was peacefully sitting at the back of the bus while relief because it was finally time for their second training, and he remembered the last time they encountered a scary anaconda by just casually walking around the jungle, so they had to remain vigilant for the rest of the days. But this time, he brought Dummy and Da Zai so they can finally explore the place properly. Suddenly he hears his classmate talking angrily about someone who locked them in the safe house before, but his classmate said they don't know who it was because they didn't see the face who locked them and they said if they saw that someone. They have 100 methods to make sure that some won't be able to stay at their school. This made Gao Peng realize that those people were he locked in the safe house before, and he thinks fate is a funny thing. 
The student's bus and their beast bus arrived at the valley. Dummy and Dazai stand up to get down which made the other beasts shocked in fear. Then Dummy and Dazai who are currently wrapped around Dummy walk toward Gao Peng. While Gao Peng realizes though Dummy's level isn't high, the aura of an epic grade is enough to suppress the other familiars. Gao Peng orders Dummy to suppress his aura a bit, then he orders his beasts to follow him. The other student who's looking at Gao Peng angrily asks why Gao Peng is so cocky about his familiars. Inside the valley, Gao Peng and Da Zai were on Dummy's shoulder while Dummy is walking. Gao Peng said he didn't team up with Ting this time because it's easier to get things done if he's alone, and he believes that the more people, the harder things will become. Dummy said he will protect Gao Peng. Then Gao Peng asked Dummy where did he learn those words. Dummy said he learned it at an armor baby show, which made Gao Peng realize Dummy learned it from a children's show. Suddenly something jumped in front of them which made Gao Peng shocked. Then he said the direction that something disappeared is to the pond where they encountered the green-skinned frogs last time. Gao Peng orders Dummy to change direction because he doesn't want to be spit saliva by those green-skinned frogs again. Suddenly the anaconda showed itself, which made Gao Peng. Dummy and Da Zai shocked in fear. Gao Peng realizes encountering the anaconda two times in a row means their current area is the giant jungle anaconda's territory. The anaconda look at the frog in the pond, which made the frogs shake in fear. Then the frogs attack the anaconda, which made the anaconda angry and attack the frogs too. Gao Peng thinks the anaconda completely ignored the green-skinned frogs' attacks though the giant jungle anaconda is only level 20. Its overall strength is no less than commander tier monsters that exceeded that level. Also the anaconda turned the whole pond upside down all by itself. Gao Peng noticed the tadpole in the ground, and he saw the frogs and tadpoles panicking in the pond. Then he saw how the anaconda eats the small beasts. Gao Peng thinks the green-skinned frogs managed to survive in the ponds but never destroyed the balance of the ecosystem because of the periodical visit of the giant jungle anaconda. The anaconda finally left the pond, and Gao Peng thinks the anaconda left because it's full and he said life is not easy for everyone. Gao Peng also realizes that there's only a slight difference between the level of the anaconda and Dazai. Also Dummy has a higher grade than the anaconda, but it's still best to avoid direct conflict with the giant jungle anaconda. Gao Peng order Dummy something. On the other hand, in the bush, the frog and tadpole look at their pond sad because others of their kind were killed and eaten by the anaconda. Suddenly someone grabs the frog hiding in the bush, and the frog who has been snatched ended up being cooked. Gao Peng happily said the frog muscle is sweet and has a lemongrass aroma, and he said no wonder the anaconda made periodical visits because the green-skinned frogs really tempted it with their delicious meat. Suddenly Da Zai hear something and look in another direction alerted, which made Gao Peng shocked and asked Da Zai what was wrong. Gao Peng look up and saw a black light horse. The black light horse is level 14 and has excellent grades. The horse attribute is dark and its weakness is ice. Gao Peng turned to look at the horse who currently running away and said it was a high lethality, a pitch black body and it looks like a shadow, then Gao Peng said he want to collect it because the horse type of mountable familiar is way too cool. Gao Peng look away and convinced himself that he has already had familiars, but when he look at the frog leg it was gone. Gao Peng look at Dummy who currently eating pine needle cedar, then he looks at Da Zai who's lying on the ground full. Gao Peng knows who steal his frog legs. Then he asks Dummy why he steal his green-skinned leg frog leg and Da Zai looked at Dummy too and said it was really Dummy. But Dummy asks Gao Peng how could he suspect a skeleton to steal and eat meat. Then Dummy grabbed Da Zai's tail and then he shakes Da Zai until Da Zai spat out the frog leg. Gao Peng looks at the dizzy Da Zai and knows that only Dummy can put Da Zai in its place. Suddenly Dummy hears something. Then Dummy immediately grabs Gao Peng which made Gao Peng shocked and he asked Dummy what's wrong. When Gao Peng looked at his side he saw the anaconda sneaking to attack again. Dummy jumped to the other way while still holding Da Zai and Gao Peng. Gao Peng realizes that if Dummy hadn't reacted in time, Da Zai and him might have perished at the mouth of the anaconda. Gao Peng also realized that it was the second time the anaconda visited him even though he haven't looked for any trouble with the anaconda. Then he calls Dummy and asks Dummy if he can kill the anaconda. Dummy pounds his chest and says kill. Then Dummy jumped to the tree and jumps to another tree to reach the top of it. Then Dummy saw the anaconda in the distance, but Dummy still jumped off the tree with a force which alerted the anaconda, and when the anaconda looked up, it saw Dummy in the sky, then Dummy landed a punch in anaconda's face, which made the anaconda one tooth falls out at its mouth. The anaconda screamed with anger, but Dummy immediately punched the anaconda in its chin, and he punched it again in its body which made the anaconda lightly injured. Dummy punched the anaconda over and over again which made it moderately injured. 
Gao Peng said Dummy's combat ability has once again amazed him. Dummy punched the anaconda with force which made the anaconda move away from its position. The anaconda tried to stand up, but Dummy grabbed its face. The anaconda's eye release a red aura, and Gao Peng saw that the anaconda's status had changed to Berserk. Gao Peng shouted to tell Dummy to be careful of the anaconda's trump card which made Dummy look at Gao Peng for a second. And when he looks back at the anaconda it's spinning. Then the anaconda spun uncontrollably which made a tornado and made Dummy fly on the ground. Dummy sit back and saw the anaconda change its body. Gao Peng asks the injured Dummy if it can still stand up. Dummy signal Gao Peng to step back which made Gao Peng shocked. Then Dummy touches his heart and grabs it forcefully. Then Dummy hands was suddenly into the anaconda's heart. Gao Peng feels the overwhelming pressure and said Dummy used his blood thread heart, a supernatural gift that was awakened after Dummy's advance to epic grade. It controls the enemy's heart from a distance. Suddenly the anaconda rushed to attack Dummy because it was agitated. But Dummy just smile. Then Dummy squeezes heart which made the snake had a heart attack and collapsed to the ground. The dying snake looks at Dummy, then Dummy ready his fist, then Dummy punched the snake to kill it. Meanwhile, the military witnessed how Dummy killed the giant jungle anaconda in the CCTV. Then the military chief said Gao Peng familiar must have the combat ability of a commander tier monster because it killed the gigantified variant of the jungle anaconda. Then the chief ordered his man to send the information about Gao Peng to him. The man opened Gao Peng's data, and in this data Gao Peng is 18 years old and his family background said encrypted information. Insufficient clearance level. The man tells his chief that Gao Peng information is a bit special. The chief wonder if the training base branch's class C clearance level isn't enough because based on the definition before the cataclysm, a first class mayor has access to class C clearance and senior provincial officials have access to class B clearance. However, since Gao Peng information is encrypted it will be difficult to simply attempt to recruit Gao Peng. Then the chief turned to leave and order his man to take good care of Gao Peng, and he should try not to let any accidents happen which the man understood. On the other hand, Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to cut the anaconda open. Da Zai cut the anaconda easily which made Gao Peng shocked because the anaconda's skin doesn't sound like they're cutting through thick skin, rather it sounds like silk paper tearing. When the anaconda's skin tore open, Gao Peng saw a thick vine inside of it, and he realizes that the reason why the fat anaconda was capable of moving on top of trees as if it was floating, and that also the reason why the anaconda didn't create giant holes even when it fell from higher grounds. Da Zhe gives the anaconda crystal core to Gao Peng which made Gao Peng praise Da Zai. Then Gao Peng look at the tired dummy and he thinks earlier, dummy incredible strength was due to the activation of the blood thread heart. Even though the heart's destroyed, it will certainly regenerate with the passive effect gone. And Gao Peng noticed that dummy looks much weaker now. Gao Peng said the blood thread heart not only increased the host's strength, but it also has a lot of benefits. As to what extent its talent can be utilized, depends on how dummy trains itself after the heart regenerates. Suddenly they heard screams nearby. Then Da Zai said it was the big one from last time which Gao Peng ran immediately because he realizes that Da Zai was talking about Lotus Seed and Ting. On the other side of the forest, Ting told her classmate Wen and Yy Wai to be careful of their surroundings while Yy Wai helping Wen who broke her ankle. Ting hear something coming, then the monster showed itself to them. Then the monster attacked them, Ting order Lotus Seed to block the monster which Lotus Seed immediately did. Then Ting carries Wen while telling Yy Wai to run. When they running away from the monster, another monster showed in front of them. Ting realizes that Lotus Seed is currently busy with the other monsters and Wen and YY familiars can't fight against the enemy, which means they're doomed. Suddenly Dummy punched the monster. Then Dummy grabbed the monster's mouth and throw the monster away to Da Zai. Da Zai used his electricity and toasted the monster dead. Gao Peng orders Dummy and Da Zai to help Lotus Seed get rid of the other monster, which Dummy immediately attacked the other monster. Gao Peng asks Ting if she was okay. Ting said she's fine and she said if Gao Peng hadn't come in time, she would be the one lying on the ground right now. Then Ting thanked Gao Peng for helping them. Gao Peng said there was no need to thank him because they were friends and they should help each other. Suddenly the military announces to all examinees participating in the training that the Wild Valley simulation training is now over, which made Ting wonder if there's something happened. Gao Peng said it was because it was weird for the type of earthworm to appear, and maybe it was because the monsters nearby are acting up again. But Gao Peng wondered if isn't the situation was already normal for them. Then he tells Ting that they need to go back and group up which made Ting agree and Wen and Yy Wai think Gao Peng is cool. After they come out to the valley, Gao Peng and his beasts are walking to the alley, while Gao Peng thinks that according to their instructor, a new type of strong monster has appeared in the Dali Desert that's why the Sahachuaman man-eating earthworms were forced over the valley. 
However, he just communicated with Feng, and Feng said that the government has already come up with a solution. Gao Peng sigh and thinks that there really is no peace around them and that someone else is carrying the weight for them. Suddenly someone called Gao Peng name, the man said he had finally found Gao Peng, and he called Gao Peng a bastard because Gao Peng locked them up in the safe house last time, so he asked Gao Peng to have a talk with him in a sarcastic way. Gao Peng tells the man that he's already 18 years old and that he shouldn't get angry so easily because going around and looking for a fight is bad. Gao Peng also said they brought four monsters that haven't even reached the elite tier to block his path. Gao Peng thinks Da Zai can settle the situation, which make Da Zai sad. Gao Peng patted Da Zai head and tells Da Zai not to be angry because he's not looking down on him at all. The man said Gao Peng should relax because they know how to control themselves and the man said they will only break a few bones of Gao Peng. Then he orders his beast named Black Rajinkong to attack Gao Peng. Gao Peng notices that the man bought equipment for his familiar, and Gao Peng knows that for most familiars, their body parts are already their most lethal weapons as they're equal to steel, and Gao Peng worried about the man's IQ. The monkey attacked Gao Peng, but Gao Peng just sigh and order Dummy to teach the little monkey a lesson. Dummy grabs the monkey's neck and lifts it up. Then Dummy flicks the monkey's forehead which made the monkey owner and his friend shocked. Dummy let go of the monkey and patted it. Then the monkey run behind his owner which made his owner shocked and asks his beast why a 7 feet gorilla hiding behind him like it was a bullet daughter-in-law. The man looks at Gao Peng and thinks he didn't expect Gao Peng's familiar to be strong and he thought the only reason why Gao Peng won Renbai's favor was because Gao Peng knew how to flatter people. The man decides to back off in the meantime and find another chance to get back at Gao Peng. Then the man apologizes to Gao Peng and said it was all just a misunderstanding. But Gao Peng, Da Zai, and Dummy walked away before he can apologize. The man realizes that Gao Peng didn't even take him seriously, then one of the man's accomplices tells him to forget about Gao Peng. And they should have fun at the bar to relax, but the man responded that they should go ahead because he has something important to attend later. The man grabs a towel out of his pocket, then he wiped the tears off his monkey beast, and he tells his beast that jealousy and wrath are useless and that emotion will only waste his time and widen the gap between him and his enemy. Then he tells his beast that they should go home and start their training to become stronger together. Then the man looked at his beast and said when they become stronger they will be able to go up against Gao Peng. Meanwhile, at Gao Peng's studio, Gao Peng was looking at his computer and said the neutralize, the reagents, and all the data seems fine, and it should be a success this time. Then Gao Peng called Stripey, but Stripey is sleeping. Then Gao Peng shouted at Stripey to wake up which Stripey heard. Gao Peng patted Stripey head and said they should proceed to its evolution and make him stronger. Then Gao Peng pointed to the container and ordered Stripey to jump. Stripey used its web then crawl into the ceiling, and then Stripey jumped into the container. Gao Peng looked at Stripey inside the container and said it was done, and he just needs to wait. The system only provided the instructions, and he have to collect the materials and perform the operation by himself. Luckily, he just needs to boil all ingredients in a big pot, and once the grade increases, Stripey needs to help in the refining process of the materials. The fire control, electric control, ice control, and the temperature and duration need to be downright accurate. Gao Peng think it's going to be a tough challenge. On the other hand, two men were in front of the studio. The man asks his partner if he is sure that the studio is empty. His partner assured that he has been observing the studio for a few days, and by the current time, every employee of the studio went home. The man checked the door glass of the studio and said the glass is military grade bulletproof, and he asked his partner why they need to steal in a studio if they can steal from a bank. His partner responded that everyone now uses credits for transfers, there is no use for money, and he knows studios have some experimental material, that material can easily fetch hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. Then the man gets some slime on his beast and said they should hurry up to open the door. The man looked at his partner and said they don't need to worry about leaving their fingerprints. Then the man said it's his turn. The other man responded that his beast can regenerate infinitely, but his can't while holding something in his hand. The man was holding a mosquito beast inside the case. Then the man walked toward the door to install the crystal with a beast inside, while his partner told him that he can buy any powerful monsters he want as long as have the money. The man finally installed the crystal and he wanted his partner to be careful of the flying glass after the explosion. Then the man clicks the button which releases a pink smoke that made the mosquito free to the crystal. The mosquito attacked the glass which made a small hole in it and alerted Gao Peng. Gao Peng checks the surveillance camera because he thinks the noise came from the studio's main door. Gao Peng saw the security camera set up at the staircase seemed to be fine. 
but he can't see anything which made him think something probably covered the lens and he thinks people with ill intentions are on the other side of the door, but he doesn't know if the people are there to kill or just to steal things. Gao Peng immediately calls the police to report that someone wants to do something evil to him. On the other hand, the two men were inside the studio searching for something to steal. Then one man saw the other door with a light and said he thinks some equipment is still in operation. The two men walked closer to the door and saw that it was the laboratory. Then they said there should be valuable materials inside and they should go inside and check. The two men enter the laboratory and saw a big container with blue liquid, and there is something inside the container that made them wonder what is it. The man who's currently holding a small centipede said it's definitely very valuable and they should smash it first. Suddenly the centipede bites the man's hand, which made the man shout in pain while growing a big arm. Then the other man throws a big hammer. On the other hand, Gao Peng was hiding behind the curtain and thinks the situation is bad because if the men destroy the experimental cylinder, Stripey's evolution will most likely fail and Gao Peng knows he needs to stall them. Then Gao Peng called the two men which made the two men shocked. Gao Peng shows himself and tells the two men that they must be tired after such thorough searching. Then he asks the two men if they want to take a seat and have some tea. The two men just look at each other, then suddenly one of the men attack Gao Peng using a big hammer which made Gao Peng drop to the ground bleeding. One man asks his partner if Gao Peng is dead, and his partner said if Gao Peng is not dead, he will be soon. The man said Gao Peng messed with him and that was his consequence while the container behind them slowly broke. And the virtual screen said the dark evolution of the shield demon armored spider was a success. The two men were busy stealing things inside the laboratory, while they were being watched by something. Suddenly that something walked toward the two men, then Stripey attacked them. The police car arrived outside the building, then the police walked toward the studio and saw that the main door of the studio has been destroyed. Suddenly one police officer smell blood, then the police officers run inside the studio because they think the caller might endanger. The officer arrived at the laboratory where they saw two men laying on the ground dead. The two officers were shocked and said the two men were brutally killed and they should hurry to report to the chief. Suddenly Gao Peng asks them if they are the police which made the police officer shocked and point their guns at Gao Peng and tells Gao Peng to put his hands over his head and get down, which Gao Peng did and said he was the one who called the police. The police officer saw Gao Peng with Stripey protecting him. Gao Peng introduced himself and said he is the victim and they can check his information. After the incident, at the police station, one of the police officers was shouting asking Gao Peng why did he kill the intruders. Gao Peng responded that it was self-defense. The policeman angrily asks if continuing to attack the intruders after they've died is considered self-defense. Gao Peng responded that the intruders were the ones who attacked him first. Then he asks the police officer if they can't see the wound on his head. The policeman shouts at Gao Peng to say that he shouldn't change the topic and he should answer his question honestly. Suddenly someone knocks on the door. Kang Tang with a police chief opens the door, then the police chief said the result of the investigation is out, and the two people who died are the ones who broke and entered and attempt to murder. Gao Peng only acted out of self-defense and Gao Peng was free to go. Outside the police station. Gao Peng asks Tang Tang if his grandfather knows what happened to him. She responded yes and she said his grandfather was extremely angry and worried when he heard that he was sent to the police station. Then she asks Gao Peng how is his injury and if he wants to go to the hospital. Gao Peng said most of his injuries were absorbed by Stripey and he only has some flesh wounds. Then Gao Peng pointed to the bandage on his face and said he did it himself because in the current situation, if he didn't have an injury, he would have been instantly charged with murder. Tang Tang held Gao Peng's shoulder and she said Gao Peng did well because to be kind to the enemy is to be cruel to himself. Then she asks Gao Peng to go home and rest well because she'll take care of the rest. Gao Peng comes back to his apartment and directly lay on his bed to rest. Suddenly he feels that there was an intruder beside his bed standing. The intruder attack him, but fortunately, he avoided it. Gao Peng said he thought the man is dead. The man responded that he had crawled out of hell to take revenge on him. The man continuously attacks Gao Peng while saying he knows that when the spider was killing them, Gao Peng wasn't unconscious at all. Then he asks Gao Peng why he didn't stop the spider. The man also said Gao Peng could have let the spider trap them with its spider web and then hand them over to the police if Gao Peng do that, they wouldn't have died that way. Gao Peng responded they wanted to kill him, and they need to learn how to be ruthless if they want to survive in this world. Suddenly someone grabbed Gao Peng's shoulder which made Gao Peng shocked. And then the man who was holding a big hammer behind him tells him that he should explain to the king of hell, then attacked Gao Peng using a big hammer. Gao Peng wakes up in shock, then he sits up while can't believe that he dreams about the intruders, and he wonders if he was scared that the intruders come to take his life or if is it just because of guilt. Gao Peng also thinks his bond isn't as strong as he thought it was. Then he looks at his beast sleeping next to his bed while thinking about life springs from sorrow and calamity. Death comes from ease and pleasure, for their sake, he must conquer himself. 
The next day, in some place, the chief military announced that yesterday, the New World Allied Government united the world's top 12 monster trainer organizations and monster trainer leagues and applied strict control measures to all monster trainers. The Monster Hunting Association and the Monster Breeder Association have also announced their involvement in the Monster Trainer League, thus becoming the Monster Hunter Department and the Monster Breeder Division. They have also officially introduced the classification criteria of the familiars, thus dividing familiars into four categories, and it was ordinary tier, elite tier, commander tier, and lord tier. The chief said everyone can apply for a certificate based on the new classification, and when entering competitions and missions, priority will be given to those who possess certificates. The chief also announced that the year's first Monster Trainer College entrance examination is to be held in tandem with the Monster Trainer League and the New World Allied Government. As the exam comes closer, the difficulty of the training will be increased, and for today's monster is an elite tier Skullwing Blue Bat, the chief said as encouragement, if they beat the Skullwing Blue Bat, the monster will be given to them as a prize. The monster is named a Skullwing Blue Bat, its condition is healthy and sleeping. The bat level is 20 elite tier and its grade is excellent. Also, the bat attribute is a ghoul and its weakness are light and wind. One of the students said he'll go first, behind him is his beast named Electric Luster Bear in a growth period. The bear is level 18 and its grade is excellent, and once matured and evolved into commander tier, will be demoted to normal grade status. The bear's attribute is electric and its condition is healthy and happy. Also, the bear's weakness said devouring the water spirit fruit could cause diarrhea, and weaken its four limbs. The chief said that he should do his best, while the other student said the man who want to go first named Chen Heng Kuao, and Heng Kuao successfully evolved his familiar into an electric luster bear during the wilderness training. Gao Peng thinks the bear has an excellent grade and is level 18. Compared to the other familiars, he thinks the electric luster bear is not bad. The bear enters the cage and looks at the blue bat who currently sleeping upside down in the ceiling of the cage. Then the bear screamed, but the blue bat still peacefully sleeping, which made the bear stun for a second. Then the bear got angry and tries attack the blue bat, which made the blue bat wake up and dash behind the bear. Then the blue bat attacked the bear with supersonic which made Heng Kuao shocked and then the chief called the medic team. Heng Kuao cried while his bear was being treated by the medic team. On the other hand, Gao Peng who was looking from behind thinks the supersonic attack of the blue bat is good, and there was only a two-level difference between the bear and the blue bat, yet the bear was defeated with one blow. The chief asks the students who want to try, but the student avoided eye contact with the chief. Suddenly the chief looked at one of the students, but the student started to act that his stomach hurt while his dog beast is behind him. The chief said he can see that the students graduated from the drama academy, and he said they were always lively during normal training but now they chickening out. Suddenly someone raised a hand, then Gao Peng said he'll go next while Dummy was behind him, which made the students say Gao Peng had never fallen out of the top 5 and the other student cheered Gao Peng. Dummy enters the cage, then grabs his cape, and throws it away. Dummy immediately jumps to each side of the cage and ready his fist to attack. Then Dummy punched the blue bat, but the bat avoided it. Still, Dummy grazed the skulls in its head. The man from last time said Dummy is so cool and is grateful that Gao Peng didn't take them seriously before. The owner of the monkey agrees and he said though Dummy attack didn't hit the blue bat, it managed to graze the blue bat. Then the man looks at his scared gorilla and said they should work hard too. The blue bat attacked Dummy using its supersonic, while the other students who are watching said if Gao Peng's familiar could fly, the situation wouldn't be so tense anymore. Gao Peng heard the other students and smiled because he already formulated a plan for Dummy right from the start. Although Dummy can't fly, its other stats are all higher than the blue bat, so as long as Dummy continues to wear it out the blue bat's attack frequency is decreasing. Then Dummy jumps behind the blue bat ready to attack. Then he smashed the blue bat to the ground using brute force. Dummy gets down and punches the blue bat in the ground continuously. Then Dummy grabs and lifts the defeated blue bat out of the cage. Gao Peng faces the chief military and asks if the chief will keep his word and if he can do as he pleases with the skull winged blue bat. The chief agree and said he can do whatever he want with it. Then Gao Peng asked the other students if there was anyone who is interested in the blue bat, and it will cost them not 199, not 299 but 500 alliance credits. Gao Peng also said if they miss out on the deal today, they would not know when they can get another chance to get a top tier familiar, which made the chief shocked. Ting walked closer to Gao Peng and she said he want to buy it. Gao Peng asked Ting if she really wants to buy the blue bat, and Gao Peng said among the flying type monster, the skull winged blue bats aren't able to fly high or fast. The bat only can bully monsters that can't fly. Living that sort of lifestyle will only guarantee the blue bat's destruction when it meets large monsters. Gao Peng tells Ting to think carefully, even though its flying ability is its advantage, it's a bit embarrassing. 
Ting tells Gao Peng to stop fussing, and he may look down on the skull winged blue bat, but they value it a lot. Then she said he have transferred the alliance credits to him. Gao Peng happily checked his phone and said Ting is straightforward and he didn't know that Ting is a rich little lady. Gao Peng also tells Ting that it comes as a package, and he will give her a discount if she will come to find him to level up the blue bat grade. The evening come, Gao Peng was looking at the transport truck on his phone, and he said the transport truck has 16 wheels in total. The huge wheels support the detachable rear storage space and there are two layers of reinforced guardrails around the truck. It also has interwoven silver and black stripes with a matte glaze as the base color. Gao Peng thinks the truck is simple, yet the unpretentious look is strong and domineering. Then Gao Peng tells Dummy that they should buy it, because the Steel Black Dragon Series 3 is his dream car, and the driver's seat is a bit larger than a typical off-road vehicle. Also, the interior is luxurious. Gao Peng said he can store all of his beasts inside. Then Gao Peng looked at Dummy and said the most important thing is that the truck style suits him well, strong and domineering, the qualities of a real man, while Tang Tang heard all his words behind him and looked at Gao Peng in confusion. She coughed to clear his voice, which made Gao Peng look behind him shocked. Gao Peng saw Tang Tang and he asked if she was taking her cat for a walk. She responded that it was just an average cat and that it was dirty when she first found it. The cat's hair wasn't long and had green mucus running out of its nose. The monster is named Night Shadow Cat. It was level 36 commander and had a perfect grade. The cat's skills are shadow power level 2, and its weaknesses are it cannot eat white leaf catnip because its limbs will become unbalanced and will turn into something indescribable. The cat was confused, then it tried to jump off at her hand. While she tells the cat that she take back her words and said the cat's fur was already long when she first found it, but the cat angrily jumped to the ground and walk away. Gao Peng tells Tang Tang that her cat has quite the attitude. She responded that her cat named Softy has a bit of a temper, but he shouldn't mind it. Then she asks Gao Peng why he hasn't moved to the villa he bought in the suburbs. Gao Peng said a lot of things have been going on lately, so he didn't have time to pack his things. She grabs Gao Peng's shoulder and said the number of his familiars are increasing, and it's inconvenient for his apartment with the lack of space. She also said she knows Gao Peng doesn't actually want to leave, but the current place is his home, so he can come back anytime. Gao Peng lowered his head and agreed. Gao Peng opened his apartment door that was almost empty. Then he picked up the picture on the table and called his mother and father. Gao Peng said he's about to move out, and he remembered that his parents always tell him that when a child grows up, he will leave, and he thinks he has grown up now. Gao Peng touched his parents' picture and said he was moving to a big villa that he bought himself, and he can live alone in this world. Then he tells his parents to not worry about him. Gao Peng sat on the side of his bed while holding a picture of his parents and he tells his parent that his grandfather seemed to have met with some trouble, so he will go help his grandfather after he finishes the college entrance exam. After all his grandfather is the only relative he had. The monster trainer examination day come. At the venue, the huge truck parked in the parking lot, which made the people shocked. The truck door opens, and Gao Peng and his beasts get off the truck. Gao Peng happily said the monster trainer college entrance examination is finally starting. Then Gao Peng and his beasts line up, while the speaker said all the candidates should line up and enter in an orderly manner. Also, they need to show their admission ticket at the checkpoint. Gao Peng showed his ticket to the officer and greet him. The officer explains that Gao Peng and his familiars are to go through the two doors separately, and if he has signed a blood contract with his familiar, the light on the machine will turn green, and then he'll be able to enter the examination venue, which Gao Peng and his beasts passed. Suddenly the machine light turns red, the military tells the student to try again and Gao Peng notice it. The student bear beast screams and runs to pass through the machine. The military immediately called to send the Silver Moon Wolves as reinforcements. The Silver Wolves arrived and attacked the bear beast. The Silver Wolves bite the bear which made the owner shocked. Then the military asks the student to explain why his familiar suddenly goes berserk. The student kneeled on the ground and said he was wrong and the bear is his father's familiar, and he brought it from home secretly while his father was at work because he just want to pass the examination. Then he begged the military to not remove his exam qualification. The military sigh and helped the student stand up. The military tells the student that he is a man, and he shouldn't just kneel because the most important thing for a man is to have dignity. Then the student thanks the military examiner, but the military tells the student that he shouldn't thank him too early because rules are rules. The military said the student is already informed beforehand that the exam doesn't allow familiars that are not their own. Offenders are disqualified from the test. Then he asked the student to come back next year. Then the other military dragged the student away while the student cried because he want to take the exam. Gao Peng who witnessed everything sigh and thinks the student has the guts to try and cheat in the monster trainer college examination, while the military gave him a nameplate and tells him to not lose it. Gao Peng and his beasts walk to the entrance while thinking if they want to pass the examination, they have to rely on their own strength. 
Gao Peng looked at his nameplate and saw it was A5. Gao Peng wondered if the rankings aren't divided according to the commander, elite, and normal tiers. Gao Peng also wonders if someone has a lord tier familiar will they create an S area just for them. Then Gao Peng walked toward the barrier to look down while thinking that he's overthinking it. It's absolutely impossible for someone to have a lord tier familiar at their level. Gao Peng knows that there are only 8 venues in area it means that there are at least 7 monster trainers who have commander tier familiars. When he looked down he saw a girl with her beast and Gao Peng saw that the name of the girl's beast is a black anaconda. It was level 25 and its grade is excellent. Then he looked to the other side and saw a boy with a tiger beast. Gao Peng said this was the first time he had seen a tiger type familiar and he knows that the boy is definitely not an ordinary person. After all, there were already very few tigers before the cataclysm. Even with the enhanced reproduction ability they've received after the cataclysm, tiger-type monsters are still currently scarce. Gao Peng thinks he was right. Area B has mostly elite tier familiars while Area C has all normal tier familiars. However, Dummy is only at level 20, so it's only an elite tier familiar despite possessing the strength of commander tier familiar. Gao Peng thinks there really is no shortage of geniuses in their world, and being surrounded by commander tier familiars makes him feel like a husk that has strayed into a pack of wolves. Then Gao Peng walked towards an area A, where the top eight monster trainers in Chang'an City were. Meanwhile, in the other room, the military officer is looking at the area A. Members on the CCTV. Colonel said the eight people in area A are the eight strongest youngsters in Chang'an City. Commander Tan said only six of them are the youngest, and among them two are older. One is 21 years old and the other is 20 and their familiars were probably only recently promoted to the commander tier. Compared to the real geniuses, they're quite far away. Colonel responded but who can truly measure something like talent? And he only knows that the area of members are the only eight monster trainers out of the 30,000 in Chang'an City who have commander tier familiars. The general said everyone, each nation on earth saw the signs a decade ago. A small number of monsters started to appear in areas that weren't inhabited by humans. They thought that they'd be able to control the situation, but they still lost. And in order to prevent mass panic, textbooks and other various records state that the change occurred only three years ago. Then the general shouted to say that's why he doesn't want any accidents in the exam because the students are their future. The military said they can assure the general that all the soldiers stationed at the Monster Trainer College entrance examination were selected through a strict process, and every part of the exam is being carefully monitored by cameras. The military man also said they adopted a one-to-one -one monitoring method, and each camera is monitored by one person. If any problem occurs, not only will the person who committed the crime to be responsible, but the person responsible for monitoring that portion will also be punished. Meanwhile, in Area A, Dummy and Gao Peng were in the battle court and the speaker asks Gao Peng to prepare. The cage slowly open which releases smoke. Then the scorpion shows itself. The scorpion monster's name is a lakeside giant scorpion. It was a level 22 commander and its weaknesses are electric type and the scorpion doesn't have any carapace beneath its body, making that part more vulnerable. Gao Peng orders Dummy to attack the scorpion's side because it's the scorpion's weakness, which Dummy immediately understands and runs toward the scorpion. Dummy jumped behind the scorpion which made the scorpion confused, but before Dummy can attack it, the scorpion noticed Dummy behind it. Then the scorpion attacked Dummy using its tail which made Dummy fall to the ground. The scorpion used the opportunity and faced Dummy to attack. Gao Peng worriedly looks at Dummy and thinks it's not easy to overcome the difference in levels. The scorpion attacked Dummy, fortunately, Dummy caught its claw. Dummy shakingly tried to stop the attack to hit him, while the virtual screen showed Dummy's level increased and Dummy's level is 21 promoted to commander tier. Gao Peng was happy that Dummy leveled up, but the scorpion and Dummy is at a standstill, and the scorpion still has the upper hand. And if you compare the scorpion and Dummy's grades in a one-on-one -on -one ring match, even if you were to own more than one familiar, he wouldn't be able to summon the both of them into battle at the same time. Also, Gao Peng knows that once a monster is promoted to the commander tier, it'll have all kinds of incredible power. Its powers will grow exponentially during that time. The scorpion is able to control water within a close range after its awakening and it's using it continuously to erode Dummy which made Gao Peng wonder what he should do. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked to see that Dummy obtained a new ability. Gao Peng uses his telepathy to communicate with Dummy and tells him that besides strengthening some important joints, he should use the remaining blood treads to strengthen his legs. Dummy understands, then he put the remaining blood treads on his leg. Then he kicks the scorpion in its face, which made Dummy ability greatly strengthen the bone defense and attack increased. Also, Dummy's skills bone harden increased in level 1. Gao Peng smiled because, with the explosive force gained by gathering the blood threads in Dummy's new ability, the scorpion's exoskeleton can't possibly withstand Dummy's attack. 
The Bone Harden, although it's not as cool as having thunder or fire ability is suitable for dummy's crude and simple close-range fighting style. The half of Scorpion's face was shattered, then the Scorpion tried to counter-attack Dummy using its tail even though it has suffered heavy injuries, but Dummy grabbed the tail of the Scorpion, and then throw the Scorpion in the air. Then Dummy strengthened his hand with blood thread, then attacked the Scorpion's vital point. Gao Peng shouted to praise Dummy, then Dummy ran toward Gao Peng and lift him up to hug which made Gao Peng shocked. Dummy thanks Gao Peng and he said if weren't for Gao Peng, he would still be an ape that's locked in a cage somewhere. Gao Peng said the victory is a result of his own hard work. Then Gao Peng pointed at angry Da Zai and said Da Zai is getting jealous because they've been hugging for so long. Da Zai said Gao Peng just tell him that they just hug for a second but it was 5 seconds now. Then Da Zai jumped toward Gao Peng because he won a hug too which made Gao Peng shocked. Gao Peng tried to push Da Zai away while looking at the other examiners, and he noticed that the other examiners killed their opponent faster than he is, and there were no visible injuries on their familiar's bodies. Gao Peng thinks the girl candidates and her familiar sure are something. Meanwhile, the military officer witnessed how the girl win against a commander tier familiar without breaking a sweat. Colonel asks if the girl is from Jun Hang's family. One of the military men said he remember the girl named Jun Mei Lai and she was Yung Hang's only daughter. The general said they are ridiculous and he said he had seen the girl before. The girl has a cold personality, but she's a nice girl. Also, the girl's full name's Jun Moi. One of military officers said he heard Moi didn't go to school after her senior year in high school. Moi just invited a few tutors to her house and spent the rest of her time with an expatriate team of the New World Allied Government. Commander Tan said it was true, and Moi is a trainee of the New World Allied Government's Black Flag. The military officer said Moi should be extremely talented. One of the militaries changed the topic and said the monster trainer next to Moi is quite good too, and his familiar's a ghoul type. He said it's quite rare to see that kind of beast. Colonel said it was one of his students. Colonel also said Gao Peng is the youngest monster breeder in Chang'an City and Gao Peng helped out during the Dead Leaf Locusts incident. The one military said no wonder Gao Peng looks familiar, and he remember Gao Peng was the youngster director Feng recommended before. On the other hand, the general was watching Gao Peng on the CCTV, and he said that the old man sure has a good grandson. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, the military tells Moi that they finished the exam and she can leave first. But before Moi leaves, she notices Gao Peng praising Da Zai on the other battlefield stage, and she thinks Gao Peng is quite something because he defeated a commander tier with an elite tier familiar. Their third exam arrived. Gao Peng and Stripey are waiting for their opponent to come out. Gao Peng saw it was a dead leaf mantis. It was level 16 and has a normal grade. The mantis attribute is wood and its weakness is fire. Gao Peng thinks Stripey attribute is earth while the mantis is wood and that gives Stripey an advantage. Gao Peng was sure that Stripey will have a 10% point bonus. The mantis starts to walk like human, then Gao Peng wonder if it imitates human behavior, and he thinks it has pretty good intelligence that is similar to the intelligence of an 8 or 9 years old human child. Gao Peng knows that Stripey spirituality isn't low either, it's two grades higher than the Mantis, and he thinks the match will finally let Stripey gain some confidence. Stripey and the Mantis were in the position when the speaker said the exam start now. The Mantis looks at shaking Stripey. Then the Mantis starts to move like dancing which made Stripey confused. Then Stripey expression lit up, which made Gao Peng said Stripey expression is giving him a bad feeling. Then Stripey started to move and dance which made the Mantis confused too. Stripey tells Gao Peng that the Mantis also knows how to square dance which made Da Zai laugh. Gao Peng tells Stripey that the Mantis tried to scare him, and the Mantis wants to attack him, so he needs to strike back. Stripey sadly asks Gao Peng if the Mantis is not playing with him. Suddenly the Mantis attacked Stripey, which made Stripey confused, and asked if the Mantis saw a mosquito, but the Mantis' hand had a small crack. Then the mantis jumps and flies in the air, but Stripey attacks it using his web, which made the mantis land on the ground while trapped in Stripey's web. Stripey looks at the mantis confused and asks Gao Peng why the mantis is so weak. Suddenly the mantis broke the web and run towards Stripey, and then it hit Stripey with its claw that has aura, which hurts Stripey's forehead that made Stripey angry. Then Stripey jumps each side of the cage and attacked the mantis in one hit, which made the instructor shocked. The instructor tells Gao Peng that his exam is finished and he shouldn't dilly-dally around the exam site. Since his exam is done, he should head out. Gao Peng understand and said okay. Meanwhile, in the waiting area, other students said it's been an hour, but the first batch hasn't come out yet. The other student responded that only Moi from area A has finished the exam, and Moi has a military background. Suddenly the waiting area door slowly opened which made the other students wonder if someone finished the exam. Gao Peng and his beasts come out of the door which made the other students shout that it was Gao Peng from area A. 
and they think people are already heading home while they're still stuck there queuing, and it's the true difference in strength. Also, other student thinks Gao Peng is such a poser. After the exam, Gao Peng decided to check something and he was shocked by what he saw. Gao Peng wonder if the ruined villa is the new villa he bought and if the villa get run over by a hundred huskies. Gao Peng goes inside the villa and saw that his villa was destroyed, which made Gao Peng shocked. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed something behind his sofa. Then he angrily orders Stripey and Da Zai to get the guy who trashed his house that had the guts to stay at the crime scene. Dummy steps forward in front of Gao Peng and Gao Peng thinks Dummy is so considerate because he knows to protect him even without his command. Then Silly jumped toward Gao Peng, but Gao Peng catches Silly before it can sit in his head and shout at it that sitting on his head won't make him stronger. On the other hand, Da Zai and Stripey caught the monster, and Da Zai asks Gao Peng if he can eat it. Gao Peng looks at the bird and wonders what kind of monster it is. Suddenly Tang Tang called Gao Peng through his broken window. Tang Tang said the little bird is a housewarming gift from his grandfather, and he should keep it because his grandfather put in a lot of effort to get the little bird. Then she said she still had some things to do, so she won't be staying for dinner. Gao Peng realizes that he was right that she was building a new villa next to him in a few days, so it's more convenient for her to take care of and protect him. Gao Peng also thinks the housewarming she said is more like house wrecking while he feeding Silly a juice. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to lift the bird up. Dummy lift the bird while Gao Peng look at it, and he said the red crown crane with only one leg is quite uncommon. Then he ordered Dummy to loosen up a bit and don't strangle the bird to death. Suddenly the bird opened its eye and angrily attacked Gao Peng which made Gao Peng shocked and said the bird is a good actor. Also, he realizes he needs to intimidate the bird for it to learn its place. Gao Peng turns around and tells Da Zai that they have a roast crane for dinner Dinner which made the bird shocked. Then the bird cries. Gao Peng look at it and ask if it's still going to act tough and he said they should see what he exactly are. The bird's monster's name is a flaming red crane that's still in infancy. The bird level is 6 and its present grade is epic, and when promoted to commander tier, its grade would become perfect. When promoted to Lord Tier, its grade would change to excellent. The bird's attribute is fire and its special characteristic is unawakened. Also, the bird requirements for promotion are 500 Jin of Burning Heaven Crystal, 3 Prime Mystery Fruits, and 1 Fire Marrow Pulp. Gao Peng said although the Flaming Red Cane has the same grade as Dummy, it will automatically reach Lord Tier when it grows up. Dummy's promotion to Commander Tier was only because he received enlightenment after fighting in numerous battles, and he thinks the bird Lord Tier familiar will surely be a very powerful monster in the future. While Da Zai looked at the bird dreaming it was food, Gao Peng looked at the bird while handling a pack of mealworms and said once he enter his house, he become his familiar then he give the bird a mealworm which made Da Zai sad because it was his mealworm treats. Gao Peng bends down to face the bird and tell that since he has three flames in his name, he'll call the bird flamey while Da Zai is in the side angry and sad, and was silly floating to Da Zai offering his juice to Da Zai. Then Gao Peng touched the bird's head and tried to establish a contract with it. Gao Peng enters the mind of Flamey, then he saw some spot in it, and he thinks the clarity of a familiar's consciousness is a direct correlation to the familiar's intelligence. Gao Peng also thinks the bright spots must be Flamey memories. Gao Peng saw Flamey's mother in the forest near the pod and the alligator in the was pod lurking. Then the alligator eats Flamey's mother. Gao Peng sadly holds the crying Flamey because he realizes Flamey also lost his mother. Then he asks Flamey if he is willing to be his partner which the contract paper appeared. Flamey asks Gao Peng if he can help him get revenge. Gao Peng responded that if he signs the blood contract, he'll be one of them and his problem will become Gao Peng's problem. Then Flamey signed the contract that made the contract successful. Gao Peng look around in shock because he is still in Flamey's consciousness. Suddenly Dummy, Da Zai, Silly, and Stripey's contract appeared. The light from his five familiars contract goes to him and he thinks it's the knowledge of the familiars. Gao Peng wonders if it is a new life-saving ability, an elemental barrier. It consumes the energy of his familiars and then transforms it into a barrier to protect himself. Gao Peng knows that isn't a rare ability, and he remembers seeing someone use it in the first round of the exam, and it turns out that every time a familiar is promoted to Commander Tier, Lord Tier, and Emperor Tier, each one of them will gain new life-saving abilities. Therefore his new ability must have appeared during Dummy's promotion to Commander Tier, and the words battles should be handled by familiars. Monster trainers should hide behind the familiars and not be a liability. That popped up at Gao Peng that he doesn't recognize, but he can understand. Gao Peng thinks it was weird that a monster trainer is a profession that's been handed down by the previous generation. 
The blood contract states that the memories passed down from previous generations will be unlocked as the familiar becomes stronger. Then he wonders if could it be that there are existing monster trainers in other places. Gao Peng set aside his question because it was out of his reach, but his life-saving abilities are branded in the depths of one's soul, and he thinks there's no way that he teaches the moves to other people. Gao Peng also understands the word Tang Tang told before that he should keep the shifting constellation's ability a secret because people would definitely place their attention on him if they find out that he has a life saving ability that can be shifted to another person without any restrictions. Gao Peng realizes that Tang Tang and his grandfather are way scarier than he thought, and he doesn't know if he'll be any of help to his grandfather with his current ability. The next day, Dummy, Dazai, and Stripey are training outside the villa while Gao Peng reads a book and relaxing on the side. On the other hand, Flamey looks at the tree, then Flamey attack the tree using its beak continuously. Gao Peng noticed it and said Flamey has hatred rooted deeply in his heart and Flamey's is training so hard just so he can avenge his mother one day. Then Gao Peng started to find Silly because he notices Silly's missing and he remembers Silly just spinning in a circle a while ago because he was afraid Flamey would eat him. Then he found Silly sleeping in the bush and he said Silly's can fall asleep easily without caring that Flamey can eat him. Gao Peng back to reading and said the days have been so relaxed lately, ever since his grandfather gave him a limitless credit card, and the monster breeder has become a hobby to him. Gao Peng also said the book his reading is by director Feng and it was really good. Then Gao Peng sits back and clicks the digital bracelet in his hand because he remembers the exam result is released today. The virtual screen said the account has been logged in from another location and the location of the login is in the Southern Sky Group Temple Tower, Yuzhu. Gao Peng realizes grandfather saw it first, which made his grandfather sneeze and wonder who talking ill about him behind his back in the other place. Gao Peng doesn't mind his grandfather and clicks the virtual screen to check his result. The virtual screen showed his name, age, and the score is 710 points. Also, Gao Peng total score for all three exams is 700 and his additional score is 10. Gao Peng happily saw that his ranking is the first place in Chang'an City and he said he did well. Suddenly his phone rang and it was an unknown number. Gao Peng answered it and the person on the other line said Gao Peng have qualified to take part in the second round of the Monster Trainer College entrance examination. Then the person in the other line asks him to go to the venue where the first round took place on June 27th at 9 in the morning. The exam will last 15 days. Gao Peng does not need to bring keys, clothes, or toiletries. Gao Peng hang up the phone and look at Flamey. Gao Peng said since he didn't sign the blood contract with Flamey before taking part in the exam, Flamey won't be able to participate, and he need to find a place for Flamey to stay for a few days. Suddenly, Tang Tang greet Gao Peng with a good morning which made Gao Peng wonder if isn't too coincidental. Gao Peng thinks his grandfather already knows his score and the exam regulations were announced earlier, so it's not hard to guess that he'll need someone to foster Flamey. His grandfather probably even knew when Tang Tang had called to inform him to take the exam and already planned it secretly. Then Gao Peng look at the excited expression of Tang Tang and he thinks she just wants him to hurry up and ask her. Gao Peng thinks Tang Tang and his grandfather really like to worry, then he asks her if can she look after his flamey for half a month. She happily asks why Gao Peng is so cordial then she said Gao Peng need to relax and leave it to her, she'll feed flamey so well that it gets fat. Then Gao Peng look at her and Flamey wondering why he feels like Tang Tang's words is not an empty promise. Meanwhile, in another villa in Chang'an City, the guy was angrily asking how can he be in second place when he saw with his own eyes that he and Gao Peng both have three familiars, one commander tier and two elite tier. The lady called the man young master and explained that one of Gao Peng familiars is an earth type and the monster it fought against was a wood type and that gave Gao Peng 10 point advantage. The man angrily slams his fist on the table and shouts that he doesn't care and he won't let what happened go that easily. On the other hand, Gao Peng and the other player were waiting in the venue. Gao Peng notices that only a few people are there and he wonders if they arrive quite early. The military instructor said it's look like everyone has arrived. Then he greets the examiners and introduces himself as the person in charge of the round of the exam. Gao Peng wonders how can there be a second round with only 8 people, and if they going to assign the top 10 rankings among the 8 people. The instructor said the second round will take place in the Sun Mountain National Forest part that's within the base city of Jiangan, and the exam won't take part in a ring nor will it be a one-on-one -on -one battle. It will take part in the forest, and they will be fighting against real wild monsters, which made the examiners shocked and ask why do they need to go so far suddenly. 
the instructor explained the Sun Mountain Forest Park has been scouted by top monster trainers. They have ruled out the possibility of the presence of any Lord Tier monsters. However, there are no fewer than 500 Commander Tier monsters in the Sun Mountain Forest Park and some of them are peak Commander Tier monsters. The instructor also said that in principle, the government and the Monster Trainer League will ensure their well-being and give them all a flare gun to use in an emergency situation. However, since it is a virgin forest that has at least 500 Commander Tier monsters in it, the second round of the exam isn't mandatory. Then the instructor asks them to make their decisions now. One of the examiners apologized to the handler and said they think it was still dangerous. Then he asked if they can withdraw. The instructor responded it was fine and that he understand. He also said it's not embarrassing at all. Then he asks if there's anyone else who wants to withdraw. Moi raised her hand and asks if she doesn't need her parents' approval to join. The instructor responded that according to the rules, they don't need their approval. But then the instructor knows that Moi parents aren't just any normal parents. Then Moi said she want to sign up, leaving the instructor to say he was just a lowly handler. The instructor looked at the six examiners who want to stay and then he said the six of them will be representing Chang'an City, and all candidates from the military cities in the Huexia region will also be joining them in the exam. Then the instructor tells the examiners that they should do well and make Chang'an City proud. One examiner approached Gao Peng and introduced his name as Wang Zhengshan. Then he asked him what Gao Peng name was. Gao Peng smiled and introduced himself. Then Wang happily shakes Gao Peng hand and said he really wanted to meet him. Then Wang put his arm around shoulder of Gao Peng and said the others are all from wealthy families. If they aren't from political families, then they're second generation nouveau rich, or their parents are powerful monster trainers, and they were the only two muggles. Which made Gao Peng said to his mind that he was not a muggle either. Wang asks Gao Peng if have any companies scouted him because a few companies came looking for him right after the exam. Gao Peng responded not really and he thinks his grandfather or Tang Tang shooed the companies away for him. Wang taps Gao Peng's shoulder and said it was fine because his number one in Chang'an City maybe they're still thinking of a suitable price to scout him. Then Wang introduces his comrade god ant beast to Gao Peng. Wang said it mutated from a black ant to a god ant after it mistakenly ate something. So the name is a reference to the fact that the mutation was an act of god. The ant monster's name is Golden Devil Ant, it was a level 21 commander and its grade is excellent. The ant attribute is gold and its weaknesses are 1. The ant's joints are not protected by its shell. 2. The ants hate odors that cause irritations. Gao Peng thinks Han Zio is lucky, as the saying goes, the poor rely on mutation and the rich rely on technology. It's very hard to train a familiar up to commander tier just through talent alone. If monster trainers don't come from a good background or don't have the necessary resources, they won't be able to acquire the items needed to speed up a familiar's growth, but he wonders why the system shows its name as Golden Devil Ant. Now Gao Peng thinking about the system, and wonders what exactly is the naming system based on, and the system has even shown him names that don't exist in any books or data. It's as if it has precognition abilities. The instructor tells them that their airplanes have arrived. Then he asks the examiners to get ready because they're about to depart. The examiners arrive in the base city of Jiangnan. Other people watching the plane down said the military actually mobilized a large group of people for a test, even using military planes to transport them. The other citizen said the examiners are the best and brightest out of thousands of candidates. The military region definitely needs to protect the geniuses. On the other hand, Gao Peng and his beast are waiting with the other examiners wondering if the people with him are the other candidates in the exam. And he thinks there are a lot of people, close to 200 and almost every type of familiar is present. Then Gao Peng noticed one shy familiar being captured by other people while its owner trying to convince people to stop taking pictures. He said the familiar is made of granite and it's rare. The monster is named Vine Covered Rock Monster. It was level 23 with a normal grade and its attribute is rock. The rock monster's condition is healthy but shy and its weaknesses are 1. Show type monsters. 2. The rock monster is afraid to have its picture taken. Suddenly the door opened and a man showed up. The man said since all the candidates have arrived, they will give out consent letters. In order to participate in the second round, they must sign in order to acknowledge the possibility of dying. The man also said the location of the test will be far away from the city. Even with their emergency flares, there is still a 10% mortality rate in their examination. The man looked at them seriously and said the exam isn't a joke. The estimated mortality rate takes their commander tier familiars into consideration. 
Then he asks the examiners to think carefully because they need to be responsible for their own future. Then the other military started to give the consent letter. Gao Peng read number 5 on the consent letter that said his life is his own responsibility. But in the event of death, he will be made a martyr and 1000 alliance credits will be paid as compensation to his familiars. Gao Peng thinks 1000 alliance credits are not even a small amount for big companies and it means their exam is really very dangerous. The number 20 on the consent letter said the second round of the examination uses a point system. System. Within the forest of Sun Mountain, there are a lot of target pillars set up. Destroying the pillars and killing the monster will grant him points, which made Gao Peng think a competitive pressure is high. The man said since everyone has looked at the consent letters and been given the details of the second round of the exam, he'll now announce some information about the third round. The man explained that they will choose the top 12 candidates with the highest points to take part in the third round, and the third round is said to exceed the boundaries of the Monster Trainer College entrance examinations. It even has its own name the Alliance's strongest youth Monster Trainer General Assembly. Suddenly the man shouted that those who perform well, including their familiars, will be bestowed a title. Also, the last round of the competition will be broadcasted live globally. The battles between their familiars will be shown to everyone around the world which made the candidates excited about a universally recognized title, but Gao Peng said they're so eight greater. Then Gao Peng looked at his beasts and said he should think about it more. A title with the word king would be nice and he thinks, after all, there are so many titles that suit him which made Da Zai and Silly so done with him. At the Sun Mountain Forest entrance, the man in the helicopter said the second round of the examination will now begin, and they will officially start in 20 minutes. They need to head in the direction indicated by the helicopter's searchlight and reach the target destination within the time limit. Gao Peng tells Dummy who's holding him, Silly, Da Zai, and Stripey to move. Dummy jumped high, ground by ground until they saw a wall blocking their way. Gao Peng called Stripey which Stripey understands and uses its web to hold in the tree branch, and jump past the wall. Gao Peng thinks it was lucky that he has the shifting constellation technique because if he didn't, he'd be cut open by all the branches from the speed they're going at. Suddenly Gao Peng heard someone shouting at his familiar to slow down when he looked at the beast he saw that the monster's name is a stellar white pig. The pig is level 25 with a perfect grade and the condition of the monster is healthy and disgusted. Gao Peng knows that usually, the trainer is the dominant one in the trainer-familiar relationship. However, there are exceptional cases when it's reversed, especially if the trainer has a weak personality. Even so, getting despised by a pig is a bit sad. Then Gao Peng ran past the pig and its owner. Then Gao Peng and Silly give thumbs up to the owner and shouted all the best pig riding boy. This made the boy wonder why would Gao Peng wish him and he thinks Gao Peng must be a nut job. On the other hand, in television, the speaker said they have a candidate from Yanjing district and his registered familiar is a fire type bird type. Tang Tang tells Chubby Flamey to relax because Gao Peng will appear on the TV soon. Then Flamey excitedly touched the TV because the TV showed Gao Peng and the speaker said they have a candidate from Chang'an City. Gao Peng has four registered familiars, and Gao Peng is Chang'an City's top scorer. Gao Peng is also one of the popular candidates for the top 12. Tang Tang tells Flamey to eat more so he can become stronger, then he can follow in the footsteps of his master while holding a freshly cooked fish. Flamey sadly grabs one fish while Tang Tang happily looks at him. On the other hand, in the forest, the pig looks at Gao Peng and suddenly stops, which made its owner thrown in the ground. Gao Peng looked at the dizzy boy on the ground and said the pig is an irritable pig. The other examiners and their beasts arrived at the venue. Then the speaker shouts that it's time up, and the candidates who haven't reached yet are disqualified. Then the speaker in the helicopter said before they all enter Sun Mountain. He has a few things to say. He said right past the entrance they have placed field combat backpacks with compressed biscuits, canned food, and bottled water inside. It'll guarantee them an additional hour of survival in emergency situations, and each person may only take one. The speaker also said there were a total of 197 candidates for the second round examination, and in the end, 150 of them signed the agreement. The man said he was pleased because that is a higher percentage than they expected, and it seems there aren't many cowards among them. The man said he know some of them had the experience of surviving in the wild and are proficient in doing so, whereas some of them have rarely been outside the city. But no matter which type they are, they all have to remember that the forest is going to be completely different than what they imagined. So his best advice for them all is to survive. Only by surviving can make them get a high score. Meanwhile, on the stage, the lady welcomes everyone to the special program, with a man by her side and tell that through the tracking device on each candidate they are able to see their location. 
One audience tells his friend that the man sitting next to the lady is named Duan Wu from Didu's Dragon in the Cloud, and he thought Duan disliked taking part in the programs. His friend asks if Duan is famous. The man said the powerhouse in Didu place where many strong monster trainers gather are usually older and Duan is among the few young powerhouses there, and Duan had quite the reputation. On the other hand, the lady pointed to the screen where Moi and her beasts were shown. The lady said in order to get the highest number of points, they can clearly see that most of the candidates have gone to the center of the forest. The point pillars are all basically situated within the center region of it, and as for now, the participant with the highest score is Jun Moi. The lady tells the viewers that the first place candidate is a girl and that is most definitely unexpected. Then the lady asks what Duan thoughts about it. Duan responded it was not bad and that he believed that the species of snake is a black anaconda. The black anaconda's scale is shiny and its body is well built, so its grade should be rather high. Also, it seems like it's been raised well, then from the battle perspective, the black anaconda must have fought in many battles as it seems it is very strong in combat. This made the lady confused because she was asking Duan about the trainer but he noticed the familiar instead. The lady awkwardly said Duan's analysis is spot on as always and Duan is indeed professional. But the lady heard they say dragon in the clouds Duan is known to be hopelessly single and his display today truly lives up to having an innate ability to stay single. The lady changed the topic and said since they'd seen who was the first place, they should look at the candidate who is currently in last place. Then she asks the audience to pay attention to the screen. The screen pointed to the high place and the lady said the candidate seems rather cautious because he has chosen high ground, and perhaps he was making some preparation. Then the lady asks the cameraman to zoom in a little. When the camera zoomed in it was Gao Peng and his beasts resting. The lady looks at the screen and said the teenager seems to be really zen. To which Duan disagrees and said the candidate is just lazy. The audience wonders if the teenager is so lazy that the only thing they're willing to do is roll over. On the other hand, Gao Peng who currently lying said lying down is really comfy. Then he stand up to stretch and said the outer areas of the forest shouldn't be too dangerous now and they should also head over. Then Gao Peng pointed to something and happily said they should go into the woods. In the depth of the Sun Mountain Forest, Gao Peng orders Silly to throw away the red banded silver leaves they just picked because the blue light's golden rain flower they just saw is worth more than one alliance credit. Gao Peng also said they need to be prudent and thrifty, while they pick flowers Dummy notices something. Dummy called Gao Peng while pointing to something, Gao Peng looked and saw a material named White Earth Sandstone. The material White Earth Sandstone can be used on Earth type and Sand type monsters. It can be used in small amounts to improve stomach health. The other use is it has the ability to attract monsters. Gao Peng said destroying the pillar will give him points, but he look at something and wonder what he need to do about the monster named Ghost Wood Vine. It was level 22 commander tier and its grade is normal. The Ghost Wood Vine attributes are poison and wood type and its weakness is a fire type. Gao Peng said the Ghost Wood Vine hasn't moved an inch, and he wonders if it is pretending to be a normal vine. Gao Peng thinks it looks interesting and he decided since the vine seems to like acting so much, he'll give the vine a chance to earn a golden horse award. Then Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to make a fire, then Da Zai used his electricity to the leaves to make a fire. The fire slowly crawled to the leaves near the vine which made it say in fear that an experienced hunter must remain patient. The vine said he just had to wait a moment longer and an elite hunter must remain calm, but a small fire jumped into it. Then the vine shows itself while thinking he can't endure it any longer because it's too hot. Gao Peng called for Dummy, then Dummy attacked the vine, but the vine wrapped around to Dummy, then the vine tears off Dummy coat. Gao Peng said when hunting prey, it seems like the ghost wood vine will use its vines to envelop the enemy, and then use its knife-like leaves to lacerate the enemy until it either bleeds to death or its bones and organs are crushed by the pressure, but the vine is unlucky to have encountered Dummy. Dummy was shy because the vine tears off his coat while Gao Peng said that for the level of vines to cut through Dummy's tough bones, it's no different than using sandpaper to polish an object. Then Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to finish the vine quickly then Da Zai crawl toward the vine. Then Da Zai cut the vines, and Da Zai used his electricity to electrocute the ghost wood vine which made Dummy shocked. Gao Peng said he didn't expect such an easy victory, but again, despite the vine being a commander tier, it was just recently promoted and it didn't have any chance to fight back against Dummy and Da Zai. While behind him Dummy shaking Da Zai upside down because he shocked him and Da Zai explaining that he was helping him. Then Gao Peng pointed to the sandstone and ordered Dummy to crush it. Dummy punched the sandstone which the sandstone broke into pieces and released some devices that made a noise. Gao Peng digital bracelet congratulate him on destroying a point pillar, then he received 150 points which made his current points 199 points. Gao Peng grabs the dead vine and asks his beasts to give him a hand because there must be a monster core in its body, and they should search thoroughly, since the fight was so intense, they don't know where the monster core is and it's valuable. 
While finding the vine core, Gao Peng heard the speaker say candidate Zhu has eliminated. Gao Peng said it was the fourth eliminated candidate so far, and he wonders if the monsters in Sun Mountain are really vicious, or is it not because of a monster? On the other hand, the rescuer touched the small bleeding pig on the ground and he said they were late and Zhu already dead. The rescuer asks his partner what they should do about Zhu's familiar, the man responded that they should take it back and give it to Zhu's family along with the boy's body. The rescuer put Zhu in the body bag and said the monster even punctured through Zhu's specially made protective glasses. Meanwhile, someone approached Gao Peng with his beast monster named Giant Monarch Scorpion, level 21. The owner of the scorpion asks why there's so much smoke and if a battle took place. Gao Peng wonders if the other candidates are there for the remains. Gao Peng realizes that the rules didn't state that candidates weren't allowed to battle each other during the test, but since it didn't say it's prohibited, he shouldn't put his guard down. The owner of the giant scorpion said Gao Peng is quick to snatch the point pillar and he should consider himself lucky. The man also said next time, the king of scorpions will be the one to surge to victory. Just as the mountains stay lush and the water keeps flowing, they're bound to meet again someday in the future, which made Gao Peng think the man had an 8th grader syndrome. On the other hand, on the stage, the lady looked at the screen and said it looks like there was no conflict between the two candidates. Then she explained that the examination doesn't actually prohibit fighting between the candidates, but it's definitely not a good thing. Duan responded that it's actually realistic that way. Duan also said the exam isn't a fighting match and they won't be stepping into a ring for one-on-one -on -one fights, but the real wilderness is crueler and bloodthirsty. He explained that in the wilderness, killing and looting are common occurrences. After killing a person, one could simply dump the body anywhere in the wild. There wouldn't be a scrap of bone that would remain the next day. It's not an important base city with cameras installed. It's a place with no rules to protect them, and in order to obtain treasures, precious monster parts, or even the offspring of powerful monsters, murder is quite common. Meanwhile, in the depths of the Sun Mountain Forest, Gao Peng and his beast are finding and collecting materials. Gao Peng smells something rotten and he said the place is too quiet and that's weird. Then he tells his beast to keep a lookout for any suspicious movements while they're collecting materials. Suddenly something moves behind the bush that Stripey notices. Then the rabbit jumps out of it. Gao Peng said it was just a unicorn rabbit and it was a false alarm, which made his beast's relief. Suddenly something showed up behind the bush and stabs the rabbit. Then it goes back to the bush leaving a dying rabbit on the ground. Gao Peng orders his beast to fall back while thinking that he can't see the monster's attribute just from a segment of its limb. He'll need to see much more of the monster before he can tell since it's hiding in the dark. He can't see it, but it can see them. Gao Peng knows it isn't the time to act tough. Gao Peng order his beast to run. While running Gao Peng knows that they still lack long-range offense attacks. Otherwise, they could probe the monster and get a look at it. He would be able to know its attributes and weaknesses. They wouldn't have to take such a passive approach. Gao Peng and his beasts run, while Gao Peng tells his beast that the distance between them now is about 40 to 50 meters and they were almost. Suddenly the monster's limbs showed up which made Gao Peng shout that the situation is not good. Then the monster limbs attacked Gao Peng which dummy tried to block. But the monster limbs hits Gao Peng back which made dummy shocked. The damage transferred to Dazai that made Gao Peng shocked and said Dazai suffered such a heavy blow even with the elemental barrier skill. Dummy grabs the hurt Dazai and Gao Peng, while Gao Peng orders Stripey to use his spider silk. Stripey uses his skill, which made the monster's limbs trap. Meanwhile, in the surveillance room, one military said they can't let the corpse mutation dream insect continue anymore because it has already killed one monster trainer. The insect knows that the trainer has a weaker defense than the familiars, so it's attacking the trainer first. The man read the paper that said White Rose is currently 5 kilometers away from the target location, and she should arrive just in time for the rescue. The captain said one person already died at the hands of an insect monster, and if they have more fatalities don't they think the governments are crazy? They said to be prepared for the possibility of death and that it's a more realistic experience and training for their cadets. The captain also said now that someone actually died, the governments are more anxious than anyone else. The military man responded that the military officer has always been like that and that isn't the first time. But the military man said Gao Peng is behaving a bit too cowardly. The captain responded that isn't cowardice, it was a strategy. Knowing when to advance and retreat, understanding when to give and take, that's are the most important factors for a successful individual. Every great general has lost a battle. Even if you were to think he's invincible, he'd eventually lose because of his own arrogance. The man fearfully said their captain is right, then he asks his captain how Gao Peng know if he could beat the monster or not after such a brief encounter. Suddenly the man watching the CCTV shouted in shock. The monster was named Dream Stick Insect, it was a corpse type mutation. The insect is level 35 with excellent grades and its attribute are 1. Wood type, 2 corpse type. 
The insect weaknesses are one fire type, two metal type, three within the region of its abdomen. There's a white spot that's the size of a rice grain, and attacking the white spot can cause fatal damage to the dream stick insect. The other small beast is running out of the forest, and Gao Peng said that just locating the insect's weak spot will cost him his life, and he should just forget about fighting it and run. The insect ready its limb, then it attacks and hits Stripey's leg which made Stripey leg bleed. Gao Peng shouted at Stripey, but Stripey just shouted at Gao Peng to run while the monster was ready to kill Stripey. Angry Gao Peng shouted that they were not running anymore and they'll finish the insect off today. Then he said the insect's abdomen has a white spot that was the size of a rice grain and that it's weak spot. Dummy angrily screams and uses his blood thread to harden his bone then Dummy jumps toward the insect and punch it in the face. Gao Peng said the dream stick insect's main method of attack is to use its extendable spear-like limbs to impale enemies, but against a monster like Dummy with no flesh and blood, it'll have a hard time. The insect pierced Dummy using its limbs, Gao Peng thinks it's bad, although the insect won't be able to deal with any fatal injuries to Dummy. As of now, Dummy's stuck because of its limbs and can't pull back to launch any attacks. Dummy grabs the insect's limbs and holds it. Gao Peng realizes Dummy isn't stuck, Dummy is afraid that the enemy would attack them if they retreat. Then Gao Peng shouted Dummy to dodge the insect's attacks, and he doesn't need to force himself because they're already at a safe distance. Then he orders Dummy to counter the insects because he can beat it and he should try to find its weak spot first. Suddenly Dazai stand up which made Gao Peng shocked. Daze said he won't allow the insect to bully his friends, then Daze crawled to the insect's body. On the other hand, in the sky above the Sun Mountain Forest, the woman with his bird beast tells Gao Peng not to die yet. Below her, Gao Peng shouted at Daze to crawl up to the insect's abdomen, while Dummy held one of the insect's limbs and Daze crawled into its body. Daze saw the white spot, but the other insect limbs attacked Daze which made Daze fly in the air. Then the insect angrily stabs Daze using its limb. Gao Peng and Silly shouted Da Zai's name in shock, and Dummy saw Da Zai falling to the ground. Dummy angrily shouted Da Zai's name and broke the insect's limbs. Then Dummy grabbed the other limb that was inserted into his body and pulled it out. Then Dummy stabbed the insect's eye which made the insect shout in pain and stabbed Dummy in the heart. Dummy falls into the ground while Gao Peng shouts Dummy name. Gao Peng knows that they need to quickly get out of the stalemate. Although the Dream Sticks insect looks bleak and bloody because it has lost an eye, it hasn't actually sustained any major injuries because its combat power is still above theirs. Gao Peng wonder what should he do when Stripey, Dazai and Dummy have all suffered injuries of varying degrees. Daze still stands up which made Gao Peng shocked and asks Dazai to hit the insect's white spot with his electricity. Daze hit the insect's white spot, but the insect is still alive. Gao Peng thinks they almost had it, but he thinks it was effective. Then he tells Dummy to distract it, and made Dazai hit it again. On the other hand, the woman called the military and said she had arrived at the scene. Then she asks if she engage or stand by and observe. The person on the other line orders her to exterminate. Then the albatross uses its power on the insect. Gao Peng look at the beast and saw the monster named Light Albatross and it was level 38. Gao Peng knows it's the military beast. Then the albatross fly behind the insect, then it grabs the insect and flies away, which made Gao Peng wonder why it flew away just like that. Then Gao Peng fell to the ground and said it's fine if they had continued to fight, they would have been completely annihilated. Meanwhile, in the surveillance room, one military said luckily White Rose was fast enough, then the other military said Gao Peng isn't bad, and if is not wrong, the two familiars are both commander tier and own two commander tier familiars at the young age is quite rare. The captain said trying to defeat the dream stick insect with the two commander tier familiars is still too difficult. Then one military asks their captain why he let the White Rose exterminate the insect when based on initial instructions, they were not allowed to interfere until they received the emergency signal. The captain angrily responded that a candidate has died after all, and the higher-ups need to make sure the number of monster trainers doesn't drastically dwindle. The captain also said it was a mistake. Having good results in a match doesn't mean they can perform well in a real fight in the forest, and they're still too inexperienced. On the other hand, in Sun Mountain Forest, Gao Peng beasts are resting. While Gao Peng checks on Da Zai, he notices that the wound had already started to heal and familiars are sure to have great vitality. Gao Peng look at confused Da Zai and said Da Zai's flesh looks like the meat of a fish because it's tender. Da Zai notices Stripey crying while holding his broken leg. Da Zai crawled to Stripey and said he wanted to eat Stripey broken leg. Stripey angrily responded he treat Da Zai as his big brother, but he want to eat his leg. Da Zai explained that after he eat it, his flesh grow quick quickly which made Stripey sad. Then Stripey cried while giving his broken leg to Dazai and tell Dazai if you want to eat, then eat. 
Behind them Gao Peng said even after suffering such a severe injury, Da Zai still doesn't forget to eat. Gao Peng also said to think Da Zai wants to eat Stripey's leg just who did it take after. Suddenly, his beasts look at him which made him ask why they looking at him. Gao Peng and his beasts continue walking while the speaker said candidate Pan Feng is eliminated. Gao Peng said another candidate got eliminated, and then he tells his beasts that they should first find some food for Stripey, then they'll decide what to do next once Stripey sheds its skin and regenerates its leg. The night comes, Gao Peng and his beasts were eating. Gao Peng said a lot of candidates have been eliminated today, and it looks like if he wants to get the highest score, they just need to survive the longest. Gao Peng also said there's actually quite a number of point pillars scattered around the outer edge of the forest. Since everyone is rushing toward the center of the forest, no one will fight him for them, so destroying the ones along the outer edge of the forest will be sufficient enough. Moreover, his beasts needs rest to heal their injuries. They should be careful. Then Gao Peng tells his beasts that they should fight the monsters along the outer edge of the forest as practice for now. Then Gao Peng looked at eating Stripey and said the roaring wind mountain beast that Stripey eating has both wind and earth attributes, and its body is filled with vibrant energy. After eating it in the skin shedding process Stripey's level should increase to 20. Gao Peng said it was a pity that he didn't have enough time to train Stripey. Although Stripey has good defense compared to familiars of the same level, Stripey was powerless against a commander tier familiar. Stripey skin has started hardening. The skin shedding process should be complete tomorrow. Then Gao Peng goes to his sleeping bag and tells his beasts that they have worked hard today and they should sleep well. The next day, Stripey skin shedding process is complete. Stripey happily opened his brand new skin which made Gao Peng wake up. Gao Peng looked at Stripey and saw that Stripey condition is healthy and excited. Also Stripey level is 20. Gao Peng said Stripey has completely healed and its leg has regrown too. Gao Peng also said now that Stripey's level has reached 20, it's only one step away from Commander Tier and once Stripey reaches Commander Tier, he'll have three Commander Tier familiars, and with Stripey's defense and crowd control, it'll be able to fill the roles that their team is lacking in. Then Gao Peng happily tells his beast that they should continue and find more point pillars which made his familiars excited. Gao Peng and his familiars search for point pillars in the forest. Then Gao Peng pointed a point pillar to Dummy, then Dummy kicked the point pillar in half which made his teammates proud behind. Gao Peng saw a frog in the pod and wonder why the frog looked so familiar to him. The frog monster's name is a blue-skinned frog and it was level 8. The blue frog grease is normal and its condition is healthy and happy. Also, the frog hobby is sunbathing in peace and its weaknesses are 1. Electric, 2. Hate noise. Gao Peng said the frog's name is similar to the green-skinned frog he saw in the valley. Suddenly the blue frog spits on him which made Gao Peng angry and wonder why did the data not show the disgusting hobby of the frogs and the bad habit of spitting become part of the nature of the blue-skinned frogs as well. Suddenly Gao Peng notices the helicam in the air pointing at him, then he smiled. On the other hand, on the stage, the lady pointed to the screen and asks the audience if they still remember the person behind the flipping salter fish emoticon pack. The lady said Gao Peng has yet to be eliminated and tells the audience that they'll check his current ranking. The ranking showed that Gao Peng is ranked 15 and his score is 1765 which shocked the lady and said that the salted fish monster trainer managed to make it to rank 15. Duan responded that rank 15 is not a bad ranking because currently, only 121 examinees are left in the Sun Mountain Forest, and the top 15 includes the score of those who have been eliminated. Duan also said the requirement for getting to the third round of the exam is to be ranked in the top 15, and Gao Peng is very close right now, he certainly has a chance. The lady awkwardly tells the audience that they should hope Gao Peng can successfully make it to rank 12 just like Duan said, and she changes the topic and said they should take a look at the other higher ranking examinees. Then the screen showed Moi who is currently in the second rank and the other examiners. The lady said most of the examinees gained most of their points killing monsters instead of destroying point pillars. After a few days, in the forest, Gao Peng digital bracelet announces that the exam has ended and all the scores will cease to accumulate and will be tallied. Also, all examinees are asked to move to a safe zone and await transportation. Gao Peng exhaustively tells his exhausted beast that the exam is finally over and they can rest now, and he thinks although they hadn't found many point pillars over the last few days, thanks to Stripey succeeding in being promoted to the commander tier, they were able to kill several commander tier monster. Also, they gained quite a lot of points as well as many rare materials. Gao Peng said he has done his best regardless of the result, he won't feel any regret and he believes in the saying do one's best and leave the rest to destiny. Gao Peng ended up ranked 11 with a score of 4,396. After the exam, at the hotel in the base city of Jiangnan, the man tells the examiner that he orders him to try his best to get into the top 12, 
and if he can participate in the Alliance Youth Monster Trainer General Assembly, it will help him grow and develop in the future. The examiners responded that he tried his best. The examiners said the man should see his performance on TV, then he called the man's dad and asks him if he can contact someone and see if he can find a way. His dad angrily slams his fist into the chair table, then he said to his son how he expects him to get him into such a large-scale general assembly and if he thinks his father is almighty. Then he asks his son when will he start living up to his expectations. His father said right now, many eyes are watching him and the moment he makes a single mistake, they will pounce on him like hungry dogs and tear him apart. Then he orders his son to better keep a low profile over the next few days and don't hang out with those rubbish friends of his and if he sees him hanging out with his friend again, he will seriously break his good-for-nothing legs. On the other hand, Gao Peng was walking while eating and looking at his phone. Gao Peng wondered why the Youth Monster Trainer General Assembly will be held in three months, and he said the performance of the Monster Trainer candidates was unsatisfactory, so the government has decided to give them three months to grow, now the age limit is 20 years old. Gao Peng said the government is so sloppy and he wonders if the government wants to avoid people turning 20 years old right before the assembly because of the delay. Suddenly Wang called Gao Peng while waving his hand and said he had been looking for Gao Peng for a long time. Then he asks Gao Peng if you want to get dinner because they were all from Chang'an and they should have a get together. Then Wang put his arm around Gao Peng's shoulder and said they should have dinner together and even Moi who never smiles agrees to it, while behind them was angry Moi. Gao Peng laughed awkwardly and responded that he will join, so Wang should let go of him first. Wang shouted they should go and that he know a good seafood restaurant nearby. Suddenly the man asks Gao Peng if they can talk for a bit, but Gao Peng just walks past the man, which made the man shocked. Then he stopped Gao Peng with his hand while holding a card and said the password is six sixes and inside the card, there were around 1 million alliance credits. Regardless of the outcome of their conversation, the card is the payment for taking up his time. Gao Peng faced the man and said he didn't think his time was worth that much money, but the man just pointed to somewhere and said there's a cafe over there. Gao Peng smiles said wait a minute, then dummy peeked into the glass looking at the man, which made the man asks what is that? Gao Peng said it was his familiar that has always been cowardly ever since it was young and he have to pat its head every night, otherwise, it cannot sleep. Then Gao Peng said it was there looking for him because it couldn't sleep. The man smiled in fear and said Gao Peng is quite cautious, but that's a good thing and one should always be cautious no matter what they are doing. Then Gao Peng and the man proceeds to the coffee shop. At the coffee shop, the man tells Gao Peng that the truth is the reason he came there is to make a deal with him. Gao Peng asks what deal. The man handed a card to Gao Peng and said someone is willing to give Gao Peng a huge sum of money in exchange he will withdraw from the Alliance's strongest youth monster trainer competition. And the sum is definitely larger than the rewards given to the one who will rank first in the competition. And the man also said to show his sincerity, he'll disclose some insider information to Gao Peng. And based on the information that he has received, a monster trainer from the Mei district made a contract with a Lord Tier familiar. Basically, that trainer had the favorite for winning the competition competition, which means even if Gao Peng participated in the Youth Monster Trainer competition, there basically no chance for him to claim first place and he asks Gao Peng to give his offer some thought. Gao Peng responded that he was just a poor orphan who lost his parents. Then he asks what's there to be wary of. To think the man employer is willing to pay such a high price looks like they really love their child. Which made the man asks if they shall discuss the details. But Gao Peng responded rather than money, he want to have the chance to enter a higher stage. The man angrily asks what Gao Peng means. The man tells Gao Peng to give his offer some more thought because it was an enormous amount. Gao Peng look at the man angrily and ask if he was too tactful and he said that mean he refuse. The man responded that it was really a pity, Gao Peng stand up and start to walk away while telling the man to enjoy his coffee, and that it was on him. When Gao Peng finally left the man called someone. On the other line the man asked what did Gao Peng say. The man responded while looking at Gao Peng walking outside that Gao Peng rejected the offer and Gao Peng has quite the character because money doesn't work on him. The man gets out of the store while thinking he resolves problems through negotiation. But his client isn't someone who resolves things through words and Gao Peng is still young. Only after experiencing a few more difficulties will he understand the cruelty of the real world. But either way, that doesn't concern him. After all, he was just a lowly messenger. When the man is finally outside he was shocked because there's no one outside. Suddenly he hears chains and when he looks to his left, he saw a man holding his beast in the chain walking toward him. The man was shocked and asks when did the man appear. And when he looks to his right the other man holding his beast in the chain is walking toward him too. The man thinks he didn't think he would need to use his trump card that soon. Then he wonders who set him up. 
The two men stopped in front of him and called him Mr. Zhang. The man tells Zhang to stop struggling because his familiar is already in their hands and the man said they mean him no harm and he should just need to cooperate. Zhang realizes that he can't get in touch with his familiar and it didn't even get the chance to warn him. Zhang knows that he's in deep trouble. The man pointed to the door of the coffee shop and tells Zhang that someone wants to meet him. Zhang goes inside the coffee shop and saw a woman beside the man who asks if he is Mr. Zhang. Suddenly, the woman beside the man throws a card at him, but the card sticks into the wall near his face. Jai Huan apologized to Zhang for taking up his precious time. Then Jai Huan explained that the card has 5 million alliance credits on it and the password is 6 fives. Jai Huan said it was compensation for his time and he would like to know what Jang said to the innocent and naive child just now. Jang laughed in fear and responded that he just had a little talk with Gao Peng and he wanted to ask Gao Peng to quit the alliance's strongest youth monster trainer competition. While Jang thinks that the people in front of him are there for Gao Peng and he knows that the people in front of him and Gao Peng have a relationship that isn't ordinary either. According to his research, Gao Peng does have any notable background, so he wonders how Gao Peng is related to someone with status. Jai Huan angrily asked Jiang what Gao Peng answered. Jiang responded that Gao Peng declined his offer and Gao Peng said he didn't want to miss an opportunity to expand his horizons. Jiang wonder who is the man in front of him in shock. Then he realizes who the man is. Suddenly Jai Huan asks what his next step and warn Jiang that he don't want to hear any lies. And he was sure that Jiang's sister doesn't want to hear that her brother is a liar either because that would set a bad example for the children. Suddenly, the little girl behind Jiang called him brother. When Jiang looks back he asks the girl named Zio Xuan why she is there. Xuan said Jai Huan said Jiang could help her see him because he's always busy and doesn't come home and she hasn't seen him in a long time. Xuan also said that Jai Huan also asked her to play a game with him, to prevent him from discovering Zhang, and as long as she could do that, Jai Huan would buy her five ice creams. Then Xuan tells Zhang that she'll give him all of her ice creams so Zhang will not be angry, it's that just she missed him. Jai Huan patted Xuan's head and said her brother Zhang won't be angry at her because she was a cute little princess, and he have to talk to his brother for a while, then he asks Xuan to go inside and have some ice cream. Zhang worriedly tells Xuan that he won't be angry and she should be a good girl. Then Xuan left the coffee shop. Zhang angrily shouted to Jai Huan that his sister is innocent and she knows nothing. Then Zhang asks Jai Huan what he wants to know and he'll tell him everything. Then he explained that he just had a talk with Gao Peng and he hasn't done anything to him. Jai Huan responded that that's the reason why he's still standing there and talking to him. Then Jai Huan sits down while getting his coffee and asks Zhang if he wants to work for him. Zhang calms down and asks Jai Huan if he's not going to kill him. Jai Huan responded that no matter where they come from, as long as they're people, they have value, and killing them is the simplest, but also the most wasteful method. Then he asked Jiang to continue. Jiang confessed everything to Jai Huan and Jai Huan said the mayor of the base city of Jinling named Han Yuanamai. Jai Huan also said when he received information that someone was investigating Gao Peng. He always assumed it was something big, but to think it would be for a such a reason. Then the lady beside Jai Huan asks him if they should get rid of Huan. Jai Huan said no and that they should leave Huan for Gao Peng to handle himself. The incident occurred because of Gao Peng, so he'll be the one to end it and it'll give Gao Peng a sense of accomplishment. However, Jai Huan said there's one thing that he agrees with Jiang that is Gao Peng taking part in the competition is really a waste of his time, which made Jiang confused. Jai Huan stands up and looks outside while thinking it's been four years since Gao Peng and he last met. On the other hand, Gao Peng was looking outside at his room window glass and wondering who is behind the offer. Then he lay on his bed and said he'll think about that tomorrow since he rejected their offer he was sure they would definitely move on to their next plan, and he'll worry about it when the time comes. Suddenly, someone knocked on his door room which made Gao wonder why his enemy moved so fast. Then he walked beside his door and asks who is knocking. The person behind the door said it's not good for a young man to constantly oversleep while the doorknob turning. Then someone opened the door. Gao Peng was shocked because he remembered the voice and when he looked up Jai Hu and his grandfather was in front of him greeting him long time no see. Gao Peng hugged his grandfather while his grandfather told him that he haven't seen him in years and he had grown taller. Then Gao Peng made his grandfather sit. Jai Huan said he saw Gao Peng performance during the competition. Then he praised Gao Peng for being great, smart, and courageous. Gao Peng shyly responded that he wasn't strong enough and that he could only scout for point pillars on the periphery. Jai Huan said being able to preserve oneself is the greatest success, and there's nothing to be ashamed of because he was just like him when he first started the Southern Sky Group. He also took a step back on certain matters, but he is back now and as long as he's there, no one will ever bully him. Then Gao Peng asks his grandfather if there is anything he can help him with the group, and he said he has a lot of experience in training familiars. Jai Huan responded that only a few minor characters are still struggling and they can't do any harm to the group. 
Then Jai Huan said they should talk about something else, then he said someone tried to make Gao Peng withdraw from the competition, and it was the mayor of Jinling based city, named Han Yuan Ming and he know Gao Peng refused him, but he has more than one way to disqualify him from the competition, and asking him was just him showing him courtesy before the war. Gao Peng said if that was the mayor then that's a bit troublesome. Then he asks his grandfather what kind of war. Jai Huan responded that first, he'll ruin his reputation, Han find a girl who'll invite him to a meal, then after he and the girl finish the meal, something will happen, and then she'll accuse him of raping her. Then Han will spread rumors, and Gao Peng, a good child with no background, will never be able to depend on himself against such rumors. Then when enough people believe Han, the rumors will become the truth, and they will stick with him for the rest of his life. Then Jai Huan hopes that Gao Peng can avenge himself and he will help him with all his might but he thinks it's good to have that as motivation to push Gao Peng himself. Gao Peng thanked his grandfather and said he will remember. Jai Huan asks Gao Peng if he remembers his words or remembers the person, which made Gao Peng shyly laugh. Then Jai Huan said they should talk about the main topic. Jai Huan seriously tells Gao Peng that he hopes Gao Peng is willing to give up on the Alliance Youth Monster Trainer General Assembly. Gao Peng immediately agree and said he'll contact the organizer tomorrow. Jai Huan smiled and asked Gao Peng why he's not objecting when is making him give up such a big opportunity. Gao Peng responded that he was sure that his grandfather had a reason, but he have to listen to what Jai Huan had to say first. Jai Huan stand up and called him a little rascal, then Jai Huan walked toward the window glass while telling Gao Peng that Gao Peng knows that it has only been three years since the cataclysm, so the gap between individuals isn't actually that big. Age does not bring anyone any advantages. Whether a person is 30, 46, or 50 years old, everyone is standing at the starting line. Then Jai Huan face Gao Peng and ask him if he knows why he must go and seek the title of the strongest youth monster trainer, but isn't it better to remove the word youth? Gao Peng shockingly asks if his grandfather is talking about the strongest monster trainer. Jai Huan agree and said the strongest monster trainer. It's a different era, an era for the ambitious. Although the alliance controls the overall situation right now, it is only temporary. Then one day a conflict will arise. Gao Peng asks his grandfather what he was saying. Jai Huan said if a person could command familiars to destroy mountains and hills, to stir up rivers and oceans, would he still be satisfied with normality, and would he be satisfied with his current position? Then Jai Huan said a human's greed is always proportional to their capabilities. Gao Peng thinks he can't imagine what the future will be like when such a day arrives. Then Jai Huan put his hand on Gao Peng's shoulder and tells Gao Peng that he should strive to make himself stronger, and that participating in the strongest youth monster trainer kind of competition will only waste his time because a man should be more ambitious. Gao Peng said he have a question. Then he said when such a day arrives, there'll be strong people who will be willing to maintain order, but there'll also exist a bunch of people who want to destroy the order. Then Gao Peng asks Jai Huan if he wishes to maintain the order or not. Jai Huan smiled and called Gao Peng silly, then he tells Gao Peng that he will protect him. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he knows that deep in his heart, he's not happy about withdrawing from the competition, so he had a plan. In three months, when the competition start, he'll recommend that he participate in the competition as a judge. This made Gao Peng confused, but Jai Huan said he can help him fight for his spot. But whether he gets it will depend on him, so he needs to work hard for the next three months. Gao Peng realizes that participating in his current competition is indeed pointless, but to take part as a judge is interesting. When the competition starts, the participants will be very happy to see a former competitor as their judge. A few days later, at Chang'an Base City Airport Lobby, Gao Peng and his familiars arrive in their hometown. Gao Peng thinks he was finally home, but he wonders if a place without family is still considered home. Also, he thinks after settling some matters there, he'll be heading straight over to Yuzhu and he thinks it'll be better to apply to Yuzhu University. He has the system, so which university he goes to doesn't really matter. Although he can't really help his grandfather, it's better to stay close to his elderly. Suddenly Gao Peng phone rang, and on the other line, Feng Zhu asks if he's back from Jiangnan and if he was free because there is something he needs his help with and it's something good. Gao Peng agree and said he have some business to attend to at the association anyway, but Feng Zhu said he already left the Monster Breeder Association. Gao Peng asks why did he leave the Monster Breeder Association. Feng Zhu responded that the organization has changed. It's no longer the Monster Breeder Association that he loved working for and the Monster Breeder Association is now a subsidiary of the Monster Training League. But the Monster Trainer League alas, and Feng Zhu said they shouldn't talk about it. Then Feng Zhu said he's working for the military right now and there's a lot to be done. Then he asks Gao Peng if he's interested. Also, Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng that he can't pay him much for it, but he can make up for it with rare materials. Gao Peng tells Feng Zhu to feel free to get straight to the point and if it's within his abilities, he'll do his best to help. 
Feng Zhu said Gao Peng probably heard of the Shachuaman man-eating earthworms migrating over the Dali Desert. Recently, a monster hunting squad discovered that within the colony, a Commander Tier Shachuaman man-eating earthworm is about to evolve to Lord Tier. Gao Peng asks if the military is preparing to capture a Shachuaman man-eating earthworm on the brink of reaching Lord Tier. Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng not to worry because they won't be taking part in the battle between Lord Tier monsters, and all they do is prevent other monsters from interfering while the earthworm is in the midst of evolving. Gao Peng smiled and said Dali Desert already has a Lord Tier Desert ruler. Although the Dali Desert has gotten bigger since the Cataclysm, it's definitely not big enough to house two Lord Monsters. When the time comes, a huge battle will erupt, and it seems like the Chang'an military is preparing to reap the spoils of the battle. Which made Stripey sad, Gao Peng tells Stripey that he's not talking about him. Then Gao Peng asks Feng Zhu why did he comes to him and he asks if aren't there much stronger trainers within the military. Feng Zhu responded that the plan was proposed by him but the upper brass of the military didn't like it, so he can only rely on his own connections. But he tells Gao Peng not to worry because there shouldn't be too much danger. Feng Zhu also said he has a few military trainers on his side, and if the plan goes well in the end, the golden deity itself will personally lend them a hand. Gao Peng said seem like Feng Zhu is not doing so well since joining the military, but Feng Zhu just laugh awkwardly. Then Gao Peng agree and ask when will the earthworm be evolving. Feng Zhu shouted in happiness and said the earthworm evolving will be within the next two days. Then he said he owe Gao Peng one, so Gao Peng should feel free to come to him if he ever needs his help. Gao Peng said he should join in the fun and he'll be waiting for Feng Zhu's notice. Gao Peng hung up while thinking a battle of that level is way beyond his capabilities and if he goes, all he can do is watch, but if he wants to become stronger, he'll have to observe a fight between the strong and expand his horizons. Gao Peng was fetched by Tang Tang and Fat Flamey, which made Gao Peng ask why the Fat Penguin is with her, but after a second he realized it was Flamey. Two days after, at Chang'an outskirts, Gao Peng said their destination is not very far and they haven't threaded into the Dark Ember Forest yet. The part of the forest they are currently in is still considered as the periphery. Feng Zhu said any further in and they will be in the territory of the Lord of the Dark Ember and the Lord has always had a bad temper. It'd be bad to provoke it. Gao Peng looked at Tang Tang familiar and said he didn't know she had such a strong beast. The beast monster was named Shadow Japalura and its was level 39. The Japalura grade is perfect and its ability is Hardened Skin level 2. The Japalura special characteristic is Shadow Assassin, effect 1. The passive effect is when Japalura is silent and still, it will perfectly blend in with its surroundings, matching both color and body temperature to its surrounding. Effect 2. The passive effect is that Japalura's special skin allows it to absorb sound as well as vibrations, allowing it to move silently and remain almost undetectable. Gao Peng said Japalura attributes look frightening and he now finally understands why his grandfather sent her to him. And in the contrast to the helpers Feng Zhu brought, the guy introduced himself as Lai King. Lai King familiars are a level 24 thorny iron hide boar and a level 21 poison blooded green snake. The other helper Feng Zhu brought is named Kinyi. Kinyi familiar is flaming bird level 27. Gao Peng wondered if Lai King, Kinyi, and Zhang's names were wordplay, while Silly imitated him. Feng Zhu said they arrive at Earthworm territory and they shouldn't head in any further. Then he said right before a breakthrough in a level is when a monster is most cautious, and they must not provoke it. Gao Peng looked at it and asked in shock why are so many earthworms. But Feng Zhu told them that they might not need to do anything in the end and the Shachuaman man-eating earthworms will naturally protect their leader. While they hiding, Gao Peng asks Feng Zhu if the Lord of the Dark Ember's actual name is Lord of the Dark Ember. Feng Zhu responded no and explained that they call it that because it's currently occupying the entire Dark Ember forest. After all, not all Lord Tier monsters have a territory. For instance, if that desert ruler were to occupy the Dali Desert for a long enough period of time, maybe they'd start calling it Lord of the Dali instead. Then Feng Zhu tells everyone to be careful because there will definitely be monsters that'll use the opportunity to launch sneak attacks. Gao Peng tells Feng Zhu that something's coming, then they saw a huge rooster running toward the earthworms. Gao Peng was shocked to see a huge rooster which made Feng Zhu laugh and explained that chickens eat earthworms and the soon-to-be Lord Tier earthworm is just too tempting for the rooster. Then the rooster jumps toward the earthworms while Feng Zhu asks Gao Peng to look at the rooster, and he explains that by relying on its inborn nature, the five-colored golden rooster can easily bypass the earthworm's defense. Then the rooster jumped by each of the small earthworms on the ground to pass by, but when the rooster arrived at the end, it was confused at finding the big earthworms. Gao Peng imitated the chicken and asked where are the fat, juicy earthworms which made Tang Tang laugh. Feng Zhu responded that the earthworms can dig underground. 
The Commander tier Earthworm should be hiding underground while it's promoting, so it's normal to not be able to find it. Then Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng that he had talent, but he still has so much needs to learn. Gao Peng didn't answer but he knows Feng Zhu is an elite of the monster breeder industry and he will be caught if he acts too experienced. Suddenly the ground around the rooster shake, then the earthworm underground showed itself and caught the rooster's feet. When the chicken tried to fly away, the other earthworms helped the earthworm who caught the chicken's leg. Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng that once the earthworms worked together, the rooster couldn't escape even if it wanted to. Then the rooster was slammed to the ground. Then the earthworms launched to the rooster and eat it. Gao Peng disappointedly said the rooster really sucks at combat, but Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng to relax because it was just the beginning. Suddenly Tang Tang signed them to be quiet, then she said the big one was coming. The monster named Horrifying Violent Female Spider showed itself. It was level 40.5 and its attribute is rock. The spider's weaknesses are 1. Wood type, 2. Septic Bloodberry and 3. Platinum Radish Tendril. Also, its ability is Spider Silk Strengthening Level 2 and Toughened Skin Level 1. Gao Peng said the spider's stats are a bit familiar to him. The spider screamed, then it walked toward the earthworms killing whatever was in its way. Gao Peng said the female spider is probably the same one that Mr. Liu and the others fought when they led a crusade against the net of the brutal grey devil spiders. And if he recalls correctly, the mission failed and many people died but they managed to interrupt the female spider's promotion, so it's a deformed, half-promoted Lord Tier. Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng is correct and he said the military thought it'd be killed by the Lord of the Dark Ember, but to think it's still alive, he said how thoughtless of him. Then Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng that they should try their best to stall for time. Gao Peng asked Feng Zhu if he was serious because even though the spider is a deformed half-promoted Lord Tier, it's still a Lord Tier nonetheless. Gao Peng looked at Tang Tang while asking Feng Zhu if he wants them to go against it. But in his mind, he thinks maybe they still have a chance. Tang Tang walked toward Feng Zhu and said they can take action. But the price is the horrifying violent female spider that made Feng Zhu shocked. Feng Zhu said they just need to stop the female spider and defeating it might be a bit too difficult for their level. But Tang Tang just turned around and said Gao Peng and she shall attack the spider and the rest of them should stay alert and prevent other monsters from interfering. Leaving Feng Zhu to wonder how Gao Peng's sister has a familiar with a rare camouflaging ability because in the military, whoever's lucky enough to get a hold of that kind of familiar will immediately be given priority training and he knows she isn't some ordinary person. Gao Peng tells Tang Tang to let Dummy help her. She agrees and orders Dummy to stand behind her. Then she tells Gao Peng to be alert to his surroundings. Feng Zhu said they also helping but Tang Tang responded that they'll only mess things up. Feng Zhu sadly tells her that she can't be biased. She let go of Softy and Softy changes its form to combat form while she orders it to test the spider out. Previously, Gao Peng tells Tang Tang to let Dummy help her. She agrees and orders Dummy to stand behind her. Then she tells Gao Peng to be alert to his surroundings. Feng Zhu said they also helping but Tang Tang responded that they'll only mess things up. Feng Zhu sadly tells her that she can't be biased. She let go of Softy and Softy changes its form to combat form while she orders it to test the spider out. Softy run toward the spider and jump to the spider's body to reach the spider's top. Then Softy attacked the spider using its claws. Feng Zhu said Softy claws are very sharp, but Tang Tang said it isn't enough because they are only flesh wounds to the spider and didn't injure any of its organs. Then Japaler grabs one of the spider's legs using its tongue. Then Japaler pulled it, which made the spider fall to the ground, but it gets up faster and attacked Softy, but Softy avoided it. Then the spider attacked Softy multiple times using its web. Fortunately, Softy avoided it faster. Gao Peng said they can't go on like that. Although the female spider can't harm Softy, they're unable to launch any effective attacks on it either. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to use his blood thread heart. Dummy followed Gao Peng and used his blood thread heart which made the female spider have a heart attack. But the female spider immediately recover which made Gao Peng shock because Dummy blood heart thread lose effectiveness so soon. But Gao Peng knows that battling a monster of a higher tier is pushing it and they'll just need to stall the female spider as long as they can. Suddenly, the ground shakes violently which made Gao Peng wonder if there was an earthquake. Then the earthworms come out under the ground and bite off one of the female spider legs. Feng Zhu excitedly said the promotion of the Shachuaman man-eating earthworm is a success. Gao Peng look at the earthworm and knows that the earthworm is different from the female spider. The monster was named Shachuaman man-eating earthworm lord and it was level 41. The earthworm grade is excellent and its attribute is earth. Also, its weakness is a fire type. 
the earthworm was going to attack the spider, which made Feng Zhu shocked while wondering why must the earthworm duke it out with the spider. The spider is a pseudo-lord that underwent a failed evolution, and its potential is practically zero. Feng Zhu also thinks that the earthworm should go and have a good talk with the desert ruler instead. Only that way can military reap the spoils. Suddenly the earthworm dig a tunnel which made Feng Zhu realizes that the earthworm dig a tunnel because it wanted to escape from it. The female spider angrily digs the tunnel where the earthworm escaped. Gao Peng tells Feng Zhu that the female spider caused the tunnel to collapse in its rage and now, the female spider had lost all trace of the giant earthworm. Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng his right and seems like their mission today was a success. Lai interrupted Gao Peng and Feng Zhu's happy conversation when he called Feng Zhu to look at the spider because it was acting weird. When they look at the female spider it circles continuously, Lai said the female spider has been going in circles for a while now. Then he asks if the female spider had gone crazy because its food has escaped. Tang Tang responded that the female spider expended a lot of energy during the fight, so it must be hungry and it's purposefully gathering the earthworms together. When the female spider has done collecting the small earthworms, it used its web to trap the earthworms. Then the female spider uses one of its legs to grab the web with earthworms and eat it. Gao Peng sickly asks why the female spider look like it's eating soybean paste noodle which made Lai, Kin, and Feng Zhu look at him in disgust. Gao Peng asks why they're looking at him. Then Gao Peng looked at Tang Tang and said the female spider's injuries aren't severe, but he think they weren't able to catch it. Tang Tang tells Gao Peng to relax because he hasn't seen anything yet. Suddenly Softy screamed which made its body release a black aura, then Softy attacked and cut the female spider's leg fast which made the spider shocked. Then behind the female spider Japalura showed up and then released smoke from its mouth. Then Japalura bite off one of the spider's legs which made the female spider scream in anger. Then the female spider attacked Softy who got a light injury and Japalura that got a mild injury. Gao Peng shouted at Tang Tang to tell her that the female spider is still very strong and they should play the long game instead. But Tang Tang just smile and tells Gao Peng not to worry because the female spider now can't run away. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed something in the sky, then the bird landed on the ground which made Gao Peng shock to see a bird type lord. The bird monster named is Blood Eye Bearded Vulture, extremely strong. It was level 42 lord tier and its grade is normal. The bird's condition is healthy and calm and its abilities are a power of wind level 3 and strength and stomach level 2. The bird's attribute is wind and its weaknesses are 1. Electric type 2. Fire type 3. Metal type and 4. Dark type. Also, the requirements for promotion to it excellent grade are 1. Dark Evolution 2, Divine Evolution 3, Blood Evolution and more. Feng Zhu tells everyone to be careful because he thinks the bird lord tier was probably attracted by the man-eating worm and the sued lord female spider is distracting it now. Feng Zhu also said as long as they don't provoke it, there won't be any danger. The bird bowed to the enemy which made Feng Zhu shocked and asked why it was bowing its head instead of attacking the female spider, and that was against the nature of birds. Tang Tang responded that the bird is mourning for the monster which made Feng Zhu confused. Gao Peng asks Tang Tang why it's mourning. Tang Tang responded that it watched too many movies and she thinks it was Priest, and then there was V for Vendetta and Hannibal. She said there were too many that she can't remember. Lai asks Tang Tang if the bird type Lord Tear is her monster. Tang Tang just responded that ladies like her need to have some self-defense methods when they're outside. Gao Peng wonders what kind of self-defense method is that and he thinks he wouldn't be surprised if Tang Tang told him that his grandfather's familiar is a dragon. The bird look at the spider which made the female spider shakes in fear. Then the bird shakes its head. Tang Tang called her beast rascal because of its bad habit. Gao Peng asks her what bad habit. While the three man behind them was listening carefully because it is a rare Lord Tier familiar, and they want to learn about its habits. Tang Tang responded that her beast thinks the female spider is a scavenger and can only eat carrion instead of hunting prey, so it's adjusting its mentality right now, which made the three man shocked and wonder if the bird can adjust its mentality. Then Tang Tang tells his beast that the female spider isn't for him to eat. He just need to wound it severely and bring it back with them, which made the bird shocked. Then it exhales in relief then ready itself to jump. The bird jumps high into the sky very fast and flies back very fast to attack the female spider who currently shaking in fear. The bird attacked the spider and landed on the ground. Then the bird looks at them while licking the blood on its face. Feng Zhu said the pseudo lord was conquered too easily. Then Tang Tang order her bird to cut the spider legs tendons. The bird looks at its wings and put an aura around its feather, then cut the female spider's leg tendons. Tang Tang happily said the female spider can't escape now. Then Feng Zhu tells Tang Tang that her familiar is really strong. 
Gao Peng look at Feng Zhu and said they'll be taking the female spider with them. Feng Zhu immediately agrees. Then Lai asks Feng Zhu if their mission is accomplished. Feng Zhu, who is still shocked, said he thinks so. After their mission at Gao Peng's villa, Gao Peng was looking at a heavily injured and mobility impaired female spider. The current data of the spider monster's name is a horrifying violent female spider in pseudo lord and the required ingredients to promote it to lord are 0.5 kilograms of perfect stone, earth core, and flowing earth marrow serum. Dao Peng said there's only one option in the spider grade promotion column, which means that it only has one option to promote, and maybe because it lost a significant amount of potential, its evolution path is lacking. Also, Gao Peng said he had never heard of the ingredients that the female spider needed before and it looks like the female spider won't be of any use to him. Then he asks Tang Tang if she wants the female spider. Tang Tang responded he won't need a spider because it was so damn ugly and if he don't like it, he should give it to his grandfather as a test subject. Stripey heard Tang Tang words which made Stripey shake in fear and sad. Tang Tang patted Stripey head and said she wasn't talking about him and their Stripey is the best. Gao Peng walked toward his door and asked her if she want to stay for dinner because it was already so late. Tang Tang responded maybe next time because she still need to find somebody to settle the female spider. Gao Peng opened his door, suddenly sad Da Zai was flying toward Gao Peng which made Gao Peng shocked and asked what was wrong. Then Da Zai circle around Gao Peng while saying he wants to eat pork ribs. Gao Peng said there are no pork ribs left at home and he asked Da Zai if he thinks he can create pork ribs out of thin air. Suddenly Da Zai had an idea. Then Da Zai pointed to Dummy who currently watching TV. Gao Peng and Da Zai said it was interesting. Then Gao Peng prepared a large pot with boiling soup. Then he called Dummy who had just done watching TV. Dummy walks toward Gao Peng while asking if the pot is something delicious that Gao Peng prepared for him. Dummy happily said although he's just a skeleton and can't eat anything is happy that Gao Peng still didn't forget him. In the end, Dummy was sad inside the pot while Gao Peng was holding a bowl and said the soup doesn't taste bad and the temperature level is nothing to Dummy, which means he won't need to buy ingredients for cooking pork ribs soup anymore. Gao Peng happily carried the small pot of soup toward Happy Dazai, Stripey, and Flamey while behind him were silly comforting sulking Dummy. Gao Peng happily looks at his house window glass and thinks that his new journey is about to begin in Yuzhu. The next day, Gao Peng was sleeping in the airplane, then the flight attendant woke him up to announce that they were about to land in Yuzhu. Gao Peng woke up and looked at the airplane window, then said they'd arrived. At Yuzhu Airport, Kang Tang was on the phone saying she understand and she'll talk to the person on the other line later. While Gao Peng realized that the Yuzhu Airport doesn't look any different than the airport in Chang'an, only that the technology in Yuzhu is better. Tang Tang tells Gao Peng that his grandfather is caught up with something and can't come pick them up, but his grandfather has already made arrangements with the company so they can head straight over there. Gao Peng asked if did something happen. Tang Tang responded to Gao Peng that he shouldn't worry because it was nothing serious. Meanwhile, somewhere in the ocean, Jai Huan angrily said the trivial monster is the one that interrupted his reunion with his grandson. Suddenly the monster showed itself ready to attack them, while the man beside Jai Huan tells him that it was dangerous there and they should take cover. But Jai Huan just orders White to finish the monster fast because he still needs to go meet his grandson. Then suddenly the dragon named White appear and bite the monster in the ocean, which made a fog around the boat. Then White stand up behind the boat and fog which made them see how big it is. The monster of the ocean was floating above the water dead. Then the military are taking the corpse of the monster, then they call the blue monkey team. The monkey holds a hook and then jumps to the water with it. Then the monkey hooks it to the monster. The monkey raised its hand that means their task is completed then the military just needed to drag the monster up. On the other hand, the militaries were looking at the scene and said that dragging the monster was the only thing they can see because there was a mysterious fog every time and that's why they can't see the scene of the battle. The military chief said that Jai Huan sure is sneaky which made the military behind him shocked. Meanwhile, in the Southern Sky group, Tang Tang showed her card to the guard and the guard pointed to the way, and explained that there was a large lounge for familiars on the left. While Gao Peng was looking at the monster named White Demon Plant level 34 beside the guard while thinking it was a waste to put the Lord Tier Plant familiar on guard duty, Tang Tang tells Gao Peng that they should go and they'll wait inside. Also, she said Gao Peng should treat the building as his home. Gao Peng agrees, and suddenly the girl behind them laughs. Tang Tang angrily asked the girl why she was laughing. The girl apologized in a mocking way and called Gao Peng a country boy, while the man with her asks why she's talking to them, and who knows where they came from. Also, they need to hurry up because they need to meet an important person today. Gao Peng looked at her and said looks like they don't recognize her and he guess she'll need to work harder. Tang Tang awkwardly responded that she had been in Chang'an for two years. Then Tang Tang called the man old Han, which made the man with disrespectful women wonder why they know secretary Han. 
Secretary Han walked toward Gao Peng and said Jai Huan is back and he was waiting for them on the top floor. Secretary Han said he'll show him the way, then Gao Peng thanked him. The man before heard the conversation and realized that there was only one Jai Huan in the Southern Sky group. Then Gao Peng walked past to the girl who called him country boy while smiling which made the woman shocked. The woman called Gao Peng a rude little rascal, while Gao Peng explains that his greatest strength is that he won't hold grudges because he takes revenge on the spot which made Tang Tang and Secretary Han laugh. Then they enter the elevator, Gao Peng arrived at his grandfather's office and his grandfather greeted him. Gao Peng happily saw his grandfather while Stripey is shaking in fear behind him. Secretary Han tells Jai Huan that he'll arrange Tang Tang's accommodation first, then they left. Gao Peng asks his grandfather if there is something he wants to tell him. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that before his term starts, he'll temporarily work for the Southern Sky Group. Gao Peng was shocked and asked why it was too soon. Jai Huan responded that his already old and perhaps an accident might befall on him one day. The Southern Sky Group is going to be his in the future, so he must learn how to manage the group quickly. Gao Peng was shocked which made Jai Huan wonder if he was too harsh because Gao Peng is still just a high schooler after all. Then he tells Gao Peng to go to the Human Resources Department. Jai Huan also said that even if Gao Peng is his grandson, Gao Peng has to start from the bottom after joining the company. First, he needs to go to head to the Human Resources Department and stay there for two days. After that, he'll look for a chance to transfer him to the Research Department, and they'll build a lab, especially for him. Then he asks Gao Peng if he needs him to temporarily hide his identity. Gao Peng asks why hides his identity. Jai Huan responded that he heard that young people nowadays like to play the pig to eat the tiger. Gao Peng said that's for other people and he doesn't have such a disgusting interest. Jai Huan laughed and said no wonder Gao Peng is his grandson because Gao Peng doesn't have a type of disgusting habit which made Gao Peng wonder if his grandfather read too many novels. Secretary knock on Jai Huan's office door and said the arrangements are done. Then Jai Huan seriously tells Gao Peng to go on and Secretary Han will show him a different kind of battlefield. Secretary Han and Gao Peng proceed to walk toward the Human Resources Department. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed someone which made Secretary Han ask Gao Peng what was wrong. Gao Peng just smiled and responded nothing. Then he said he just met some familiar faces. Secretary Han introduced Gao Peng to the head of their marketing department named Cao Ziang. Cao bowed to Gao Peng and said that it was presumptuous of him on their first meeting. Gao Peng walked toward Cao and said Cao must be joking and that it was just a small matter while Gao Peng thought that Cao the head of the department bowing and apologizing to a newcomer is so uncool. And he thinks Cao sacrifice a bit of ego and put him in an awkward position. Cao is sure is a genius. Cao said is sure Gao Peng has a lot of things to attend to, so he won't be bothering him any longer. Then he asks Gao Peng to have a meal with him next time. Then he left. Secretary Han asks Gao Peng what the matter is between him and Cao. Gao Peng responded that it was only a small matter and Cao is just making a big deal about it. But Cao putting himself down in public to a brat like him without harboring any negative emotion. Then he asks Secretary Han if Cao is that good at controlling his emotion or if is Cao actually that calm. Secretary Han held Gao Peng's shoulder and responded that it was for him to find out. But with the stunt department head Gao pilled off, it'll be tiring for him to continue working in the company. Then Secretary Han asks Gao Peng if he wants to go to Bei District instead and handle the recruitment there. Then Secretary Han, Gao Peng Beasts, and Gao Peng proceed to go to Bei District. While in the car Secretary, Han tells Gao Peng that the Bei District is one of the districts in Yuzhu that's lacking economic development. Gao Peng asks how it lacking. Secretary Han responded that many people died there during the cataclysm and the social structure changed drastically as a result. The residents remaining are those who can't adapt to change. Gao Peng asked why the place they currently in is called Bei. Secretary Han responded that it was because the people who were looking for a job there came from all sorts of professions and industries before the cataclysm. Some residents were unwilling to resign themselves to their situation, so they worked hard and left the place. Their car stopped in the building while Secretary Han said there arrived. They go outside the car, then Secretary Han pointed into the building and tell Gao Peng that it was their Bei District branch and the branch is responsible for the human resources management in the district. Suddenly Gao Peng looked to his side and saw people in the street sleeping and just using their phones. Then he asked Secretary Han why the people were there. Secretary Han said the place is called Bei District's recruitment hall and the people inside are Bei's best which made Gao Peng confused and asks why people called Bei's best. Secretary Han responded that it was sarcasm and that many people there have either lost their loved ones, had their houses destroyed, or are unwilling to sign the blood contract. 
The people there think the blood contract is a curse from the devil and are just trying to get by and the Bayai's best have no hope for the future. Then Secretary Han pointed to the person in front of the building and tells Gao Peng it's time to acquaint himself with his new colleagues. Then Secretary Han introduced the section chief named Wang from the Human Resources Management HQ and the branch manager Zhu. Gao Peng tells Wang to call him by his position because they're all colleagues, and Wang agrees immediately. Then Secretary Han walked toward the car and tells Gao Peng that it is a bit messy in there, but the management is relatively easier, and it's a good place to develop one's skills. Then Secretary Han said Jai Hu and gave him other orders, so he'll be going now and Gao Peng should call him anytime. Gao Peng faced Wang and then asks Wang to give him a tour. Wang immediately agrees while calling Gao Peng young master which made Gao Peng pissed. After a few hours, Gao Peng and Wang arrived at the gym. Wang called Gao Peng young master and explained that the place they just visited is the branch's warehouse and the place they were currently in was their training center for familiars. Gao Peng look at Wang and order Wang to call him head Gao Peng and every time he calls him by the wrong name his payment will be deducted. Immediately Wang agree and called Gao Peng head Gao. Then Gao Peng called Wang Wiley Old Fox. Gao Peng asks Wang if every branch has such equipment. Wang responded yes and said basically every branch has the equipment but no one uses it. Then Wang said those people in the Department of Security and the Central Security Bureau have more advanced and luxurious training venues and they go to the forest regularly for field training too. Gao Peng smile and tells Wang that he can go now, and he said is for the recruitment of workers in Beiai District. But before Gao Peng can finish his words, Wang tells Gao Peng to rest assured because there are subordinates who will report to him about what's happening and he only needs to worry about the specific recruitments and transfer of personnel. Also, there won't be many affairs that need his intervention. Then Wang bowed and said he won't bother Gao Peng any longer, then left. Gao Peng look and hold one of the types of equipment and thinks no one uses the equipment, then he wonders where the tears from the equipment come from. Gao Peng called Flamey to come while thinking that Flamey is definitely a young familiar that's destined for the Lord Tier. Its growth is fast and it has already reached level 20. And once Flamey is promoted to the Commander Tier, it'll be an incredible combat power and it'll get rid of his problem of not having a flying type familiar. Gao Peng look at Fat Flamey, then asks it if it can still fly, then Gao Peng points to the rings and tells Flamey to try flying for a bit and fly through the rings because he wants to see how much agility Flamey has left. Flamey started to fly and fly toward the ring. Gao Peng said Flamey acceleration is top notch among flying type familiars of that level. But Flamey flew toward the ring body instead which made the ring break and Flamey landed on the ground, bounced twice, and got dizzy which made Gao Peng trying not to laugh and dummy confused. Then Gao Peng walked toward Flamey and patted it while comforting it and saying that it was fine and he shouldn't be discouraged because he need to believe in himself and they will try something easier. Then Flamey tried to fly inside the ring again, while Gao Peng cheered him, but Flamey hit the ring again and was thrown back. Then Flamey tried again and he perfectly got inside of the three rings. Flamey was happy but suddenly he collapsed because of the training. Gao Peng disappointedly wonders what was happening to the result of harsh training and natural talent. Suddenly Flamey woke up and its data said Flamey level increased to level 21. Then Flamey flew to the sky happily, while Gao Peng said he didn't expect Flamey's promotion to cause such a big spectacle. In the data, Flamey monster named Flaming Red Crane in a growth period, and it was level 21. Its monster grade is perfect and its current grade will demote to an excellent grade upon reaching Lord Tier. Flamey's attribute is fire and its ability is pyrokinesis level 1. Flamey's special characteristic is fire feathers. It has a passive ability that means resistance against fire is greatly increased. Active ability that means feathers can detach from the body and fly toward the enemy. The feathers will ignite after combining with the elements in the air and cause an explosion. Gao Peng said Flamey both monster ability and special characteristic has been unlocked. The first passive ability is easy to understand, but he is not too sure about the active ability. Gao Peng noticed that the blast doesn't come from the feather itself, but it acted as a spark to ignite the elements in the air to cause an explosion. Gao Peng knows that the blast should be powerful and the only downside is the ability would use up Flamey's feathers. Gao Peng also imagined Flamey without feathers if the ability is used too often. Then he shouted Flamey if Flamey know that the form he was in when he got promoted will be his permanent form, which made Flamey shocked. Gao Peng laughed and said is joking, then he look at Dummy who currently working out, and tell it that they should go. Dummy let go of the dumbbell and walks toward Gao Peng who is currently being shouted at by angry Flamey. The night comes, at the training center for familiars, one of the wall to the training center shake, then some kid comes out of it with his familiar. The kid gives some equipment to his beast while telling it that they'll practice that equipment today. Suddenly a big shadow appeared behind them and someone asked how long have they been coming there. 
The kid faced dummy in Gaopeng and responded that he had been going there for half a year, then the kid apologized and said he know it was wrong but before the kid can finish his words. Gaopeng said they should forget about it, but he ordered the kid to don't come through the hole in the future. The kid lowers his head sadly and apologizes to Gaopeng for using his equipment, then the kid said thank you. Then the kid started to walk away while Gaopeng realizes that seems not everyone there is muddling through life, and there are still some who yearn for the light despite being born in hell. Then Gaopeng tells the kid to stop walking. Gaopeng tells the kid to come through the front door next time and that he'll have someone get the kid an identity card which made the kid happy. Gaopeng started walking while telling the kid to come there tomorrow morning and if someone stops him, he should say that Gaopeng told him to come. The kid bowed and said he understand. The next day, in the training center, Gaopeng and Flamey were training. Then Wang with a kid beside him from last night tells Gaopeng that the boy he mentioned had arrived and he has already made an identity card for him. Then Gaopeng walked toward the kid and asks what the kid's name was. The kid responded his name is Lai Junzong. Then Gaopeng pointed something behind him and tells Junzong that there was a shower room there and that Junzong should wash his familiar first, and then he can start training, which made Junzong very happy and agree. Junzong and his familiar ran toward the shower room, while Gaopeng looked at Junzong Beast Data. Junzong's familiar monster name is a blood scavenger rat in a heavy metal variant. It was level 4 with a status of mild injury and exhausted. The rat grade is excellent and its attribute is gold. Also, the rat weaknesses are 1. Fire type and 2. Light type. Wang said the kid's lucky to have picked up a monster from the sewers and to have made it listen to him. If it wasn't for the rat, a young orphan kid like Junzong wouldn't have been able to survive. Gaopeng asks Wang what he means by sewers. Wang responded that there are a lot of monsters in the sewers there in Beiai, and they live off of trash. Gaopeng angrily asks why did they just leave the monster alone and why they let the monster reproduce down in the sewer without a care in the world. Wang responded that in the beginning, the monsters came up above ground. But after a few of them were killed by the monster trainers, they just hid underground. Then Gaopeng imagined the rats crawling in the Beiai. Wang also said he doesn't know how other base cities take care of the monster, but there's nothing to worry about in Yuzhu City because Jai Huan has a familiar that lives in the sewers, and its food source is the monsters living down there. Gaopeng thinks it was interesting that humans control the light of the city while the monsters occupy the shadow, stealing the garbage and waste thrown away by the humans and it was completely different from the situation in Chang'an City. Suddenly Junzong tells Gaopeng that there are a lot of monsters down the sewer, so people from the city are afraid of going there, and the last time he went down there was because he was really hungry, then he met his injured little blood rat. Junzong also said his rat is very agile and it dodges the other monsters and finds food for him. Gao Peng realizes that the scavenger rat is the one feeding Junzong. Then Gao Peng tells Wang that their factories have expanded recently, but the recruitment for workers isn't going too well. Wang asks Gao what he's saying. Suddenly Gao Peng look at Junzong and ask if Junzong wants to work for him. Then Gao Peng tells Junzong that he's young, so his salary will be lower than others, but they provide food and shelter, also he'll be able to use the training center for free after work, which made Junzong shocked. Junzong happily agrees and thanks Gaopeng while Gaopeng thinks he is just too soft-hearted. The night comes, at dormitory Gaopeng's room. Gaopeng was shocked to see Da Zai's level increase to level 25 because he just asked his grandfather to look after for Da Zai for the day. Also, he wonders if his grandfather feeds Stripey some kind of top-tier ingredient. Gaopeng looked at Da Zai and Stripey and said Da Zai and Stripey are still far from reaching the peak of their potential, so their current leveling is in a rapid growth period, but skipping levels is too much. Then he wonders if he should drop his familiars more often to his grandfather. Then Gaopeng looked at Silly while thinking even Silly who has always played some minor role has been promoted to level 20, but it's being restricted by its grade so it wasn't able to break through to the commander tier. Gaopeng also remembers Silly has a wood type healing attribute after evolving into a wood spirit jellyfish and he should find a lab rat to test it out. Half an hour later, Silly tried to heal the injured rat. Gao Peng said Silly healing effect is way too weak, and that even if Silly healed the rat slowly, a small wound should be able to heal by itself, but Silly wasted that much time only to heal a third of it. Suddenly Silly gets something to its inventory. Then Silly happily gets juice which made Gao Peng kneel to the ground while saying he gave up and wondering how weak Silly's healing ability, but more importantly Silly looks so proud of itself. Gao Peng angrily stand up and shouted that it must be because the level isn't high enough and he heard that most of the materials he asked his grandfather to collect are ready. Gao Peng also said when he gets back, Silly will be strengthened again, and it'll be useful on the battlefield once its level goes up, while behind him Silly just happily dances. Then Gao Peng noticed Dummy sitting and looking at the glass window. Gao Peng approached Dummy and asked it what's wrong. Dummy responded that he want to go back because he miss his daughter, which made Gao Peng shocked, and said he didn't know Dummy was already a father ape. 
Then Gao Peng tells Dummy not to worry because tomorrow they'll visit his hometown. The next day, Gao Peng and his familiars go to the Red Sand River Chuanchu. Gao Peng thinks the ships there are rather daring because a small ship they are currently in dares to sail along the river so boldly. Then Gao Peng asks the man controlling the ship if there's a monster below the river. The man responded yes but he tells Gao Peng not to worry because all their ships there have one of the King Red Carp scales attached to the bottom, and as long as they don't attack any of the monsters, they won't attack them. The King Red Carp is very nice and all they need to do is offer it some monsters as a tribute and it'll reward them with some of its scales. Its scales can protect them from being attacked by monsters while they sail along the river. Gao Peng looked at the man while thinking that he never heard anything like that before, but he was not surprised if any news of the government being unable to protect its citizens and forcing them to resort to worshipping monsters for protection got out, the government's reputation would be tarnished. Gao Peng looked at the forest beside the river while thinking that in order to maintain the security of a base city, they'd need at least a Lord Tier Familiar or Monster. Yuzhuo and Chang'an both have the best monster trainers protecting their places, so they don't have to worry about a monster invasion from the surrounding forests. But it's different for a small base city. The man pointed to the forest and said they'd arrived. Gao Peng looked at Dummy and asked if he was familiar with the place while Dummy looks at the forest. Dummy looks at one side of the forest and remembers that he was happily looking at his wife and daughter while the other red apes are chatting. Suddenly the net fall from above and traps him. Dummy signs to his wife and kids to run away. On the other hand, Dummy was checking the land while Gao Peng was sitting on Stripey asking Dummy if that was the trace his family left behind. Dummy look at Gao Peng and responded that the trace is from a few months ago. Gao Peng tell Dummy it was alright and that maybe they moved elsewhere. Suddenly Dummy hears something which made Gao Peng ask what's wrong. Then Dummy jumps somewhere while Gao Peng asks Stripey to follow Dummy. They ended up at the top of the falls, looking at the other apes showering in the falls. Gao Peng look at sad Dummy while thinking it was his first time seeing Dummy so emotionally. Then Gao Peng tells Dummy to go and take a look because they're Dummy's family after all. Then Gao Peng reminds Dummy that Dummy is once the king of his tribe. Dummy look at his body and said he can't go. Gao Peng wonders if it is because Dummy thinks he isn't a living being anymore. Gao Peng touches and tells Dummy that it's okay and he should take a look. Gao Peng also suggested that they can hide behind the trees so they don't disturb the other apes. Then Dummy and Gao Peng hide behind the tree near the apes while peeking at the tribe of apes. Dummy sadly looks at his daughter from afar and thinks what matters is his daughter happy. And he was useless because he was caught when his daughter was only three months old and couldn't be there to protect her. But Dummy said he still loves his daughter. Gao Peng look at the crying dummy while realizing that the skeleton can shed tears too. Then Gao Peng asks dummy if dummy wants to bring his daughter back with them and Gao Peng assured dummy that he can give his daughter the best possible life. Dummy look at Gao Peng and responded that with him his daughter is not free, and in there she is free. Then dummy held Gao Peng's shoulder and said with Gao Peng is very happy which made Gao Peng shocked. Suddenly the forest shake, then Gao Peng shouted that it must be the hunters. Dummy angrily looks at his tribe and uses its skill ready to attack. Ten minutes earlier, the three men were setting up their equipment. The man asked his comrade named Lai, why are they going through such trouble to catch the Red River apes that aren't valuable monsters? Lai responded that Miss Zhu of the Zhu family has recently developed a taste for Red River ape hearts, and that's why they are offering a high price for the monsters. The market price has already tripled. The two men look at each other happily because the Zhu family triples the price. Lai pointed his gun at one ape while saying it's had smooth and glossy fur that he can tell that its heart would definitely fetch a good price from just one look. Lai also said the apes are just a bunch of normal tier monsters and it's the shores of the Red Sand River, so there's practically no chance of running into any powerful monsters there, then he said their hunting game begin. Lai shot the ape, but he misses and the ape was shocked. Lai angrily said he missed then he tells his comrade that they need to upgrade their weapons after their hunting. Suddenly one of his men shouted that they have a situation while looking at the bush behind him. Lai orders his beast to go into the bush, then the beast jumps to the bush while the other man orders his comrade to grab the things and hide in the trees. Suddenly they heard something behind the bush, then something thrown out of the bush. When it landed on the ground it was Lai's beast dead. Lai who is currently on the branch of the tree can't believe that his iron-backed wold is dead so fast. Then Dummy angrily pop out of the bush and did walk toward the shaking kid ape on the ground while the other ape tried to stop its mother to go near. The ape smelled Dummy, then it stand up and walk toward Dummy. Dummy lifts it up and puts it on his shoulder. On the other hand, in the tree, the other man said to Lai that they were doomed because the ghoul-type monster is on the same side as the Red River apes. Lai responded that they don't have weapons that can harm a commander-tier ghoul-type monster and they're trapped. 
but he said they shouldn't panic and they should wait and see. Suddenly Gao Peng pops out of the bush while sitting on Stripey. Lai said Gao Peng is a monster trainer and his familiar is also a commander tier, and they think there is no monster trainer who'd look the other way at the sight of a wild ghoul type monster. The hunters think they were saved. Then Lai called Gao Peng to help them. Gao Peng angrily looks at the man while thinking he needs to give saving a scumbag like them some thought. Dummy patted his daughter's head and tells his daughter to not worry because he'll protect her. Gao Peng tells Dummy that he'll watch Dummy's daughter for him. Then Gao Peng ordered Da Zai and Flamey to protect Dummy's daughter which Da Zai and Flamey did. The man shouted at Lai to say that the monster trainer is on the same side as that ghoul type monster. Lai ordered his comrade to not be so loud. But Dummy angrily was walking toward them which made the man scared. Then Dummy punched the tree in half which made Lai fall to the ground. Lai holds his ribs in pain because he thinks his ribs are broken. Then Dummy walks toward Lai while holding Lai's comrades. Lai was shocked that both of his comrades were caught, then he tried to stand up to run. But Gao Peng noticed him and orders Stripey to use its spider web on Lai which made Lai trapped on the ground. Gao Peng and Dummy stand in front of Lai while Lai was begging for his life and said his mother is already 70, and his father is 72. His older and younger brothers both died during the cataclysm and right now there's only him in the family, and without him, his parents and his 13 years old child will all starve to death. Then Lai said he can give them all the Red River apes they'd killed and he said they're all humans. Then he begged Gao Peng to have mercy on them. Gao Peng asks why they killed the apes and Gao Peng asks if they aren't catching the Red River apes to make them familiars. Lai shakingly responded that if it wasn't for the Zhu family's second daughter having a familiar that likes to eat the heart of the apes. Then Lai asks who would come to hunt the worthless monkeys. Gao Peng grabs Lai's shirt and angrily asks if they're slaughtering all the Red River apes just to appease the Zhu family's second daughter. Lai shakingly responded yes because the Zhu family is one of the most powerful influences in Yuzhu City. Lai's comrade tells Gao Peng that it was all Lai's idea. And Lai's comrades also said, Lai was the one who said they could mark up the price if they killed all of the Red River apes so that the other teams could not get their hands on them. Gao Peng just turn around. While walking away Gao Peng tells Dummy that Dummy can take care of the three men as he sees fit, and they'll wait for him by the river. While Lai called Gao Peng and warned Gao Peng that nothing good will come out of opposing the Zhu family and that if Gao Peng let go of him, he will deal with the Zhu family for him. Dummy called for the other apes, then he tells the apes that an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth before starting to walk away. The apes angrily look at Lai which made Lai shake in fear while begging the apes to go away. A few minutes later, Gao Peng and his familiars were heading back, while Dummy is happy with his daughter. Gao Peng called his grandfather and said he don't think he did anything wrong. But why is he feeling down? Jai Huan asks Gao Peng if he regrets it, and Gao Peng responded he don't know. Jai Huan changed the question and asked Gao Peng if he were given another chance, would he stop his familiar? Gao Peng responded no. Jai Huan said the answer is right there and he called Gao Peng a faker. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng to stick true to his belief and do what he wants to do because in the outside world, he won't lose by being a bit more ruthless and Jai Huan said he'd rather see others lose than see Gao Peng lose to them. As for the remaining Red River apes, Jai Huan said he'll have someone bring them back to Yuzhu and provide provide land for them to live. As long as there is demand from the Zhu family, there will be countless poachers. Then Jai Huan said is busy and that Gao Peng should play by himself, then hang up. Gao Peng tells the man who owns the boat that they should go down and take a look at the Red Carp. The man corrects Gao Peng and said it was King Red Carp. Then the man explained that the King Red Carp can understand their language, so he shouldn't say it wrong next time. Gao Peng responded he understood. A few hours later, the man pointed to the people on the bridge and said the place where the sacrificial ceremony will be held over there, and the sacrificial monster's level and grade are used to determine the level of contribution. The scale would then be distributed according to the person's contribution level. Gao Peng asks the man how the King Red Carp deliver the goods, which made the man confused. Suddenly the water in the river made a sea typhoon. Then the monster named Dragon Blood Red Sand Carp arrived. He was a Red Sand River Lord with a level 44 Lord tier. Its grade is perfect and its attribute is water. The King Red Sand Carp skills are Water Mastery level 3 and Hardened Scales level 2. The people on the bridge said the King Red Carp arrives and they should take out their sacrifices fast. The people put their sacrifices in the water, then the King Red Carp used its water skills to make the food move toward him. Then it eats the food happily. In exchange, the Red King Carp spits out something circle out of its mouth toward the people on the bridge. The something circle that the King Red Carp spit out landed on the ground into pieces, while the people were shouting that everyone shall take the scale in the order of offering sacrifices or else they'll anger the King Red Carp. 
On the other hand, Gao Peng said this was the first time he had seen a veteran lord use its ability. The King Red Carp Hydrokinesis is just as mystical as in fairy tales. Then Gao Peng said he wished he could take a closer look. Then Gao Peng said he wonder what his grandfather's lord tier familiar is, and he knows a wild lord can't be observed up close, but he wonder if he can touch one that belongs to his family. Meanwhile, at South Africa Lusaka, in the middle of the road, a portal suddenly pop out of nowhere, which made the alarm system open. The other people panicked while saying that there was a high-energy spatial reaction nearby. And the white-bellied space worm has become agitated and it was most likely a spatial rift. The other people said they should send the red-spotted falcon and white-bellied space worm to go check out the target location. The red-spotted falcon arrived at the portal with a man. The man heard a horse's steps ready to attack and he ordered the red-spotted falcon to fly higher because he have a bad feeling. But before they can fly higher the man shouted in pain. Then the horse with the body of a human and the head of a horse cut the man and red spotted falcon in half. The monster landed on the ground and run. Meanwhile, at Jai Hanwu's villa in Yuzhu outskirts, the television report said Lusaka has experienced a high energy reaction. A new active spatial rift has appeared and is warmly welcoming monster trainers from all across the world to head over to the city. Gao Peng asks his grandfather if shouldn't the appearance of a spatial rift be treated as something serious, and why it feels as if it's something very good. Jai Huan responded that the spatial rift is dangerous, but which place isn't dangerous these days? Up until now, only three spatial rifts have been discovered. The temporary spatial rift only appeared during the early period of the cataclysm and none of them have shown up within the last two years. Jai Huan also said those who think they're strong see the appearance of the spatial rift as an opportunity instead. Spatial rifts mean new familiars and more importantly, new familiars from other worlds. New things are always popular and Gao Peng should understand that the logic is the same no matter where he goes. Then Jai Huan showed a card and he tell Gao Peng that it was the card to the villa's laboratory, and that the materials he wanted him to help him look for have been mostly found. Then Jai Huan said Gao Peng should see if he can put the materials to use. Then Jai Huan says, if he wants to raise his familiars, he can look for the advanced level monster breeders in the company. Consulting with them should be better than experimenting on his own. Gao Peng thanked his grandfather while thinking his grandfather doesn't know that he has the system, and the system is way much more reliable than any advanced level monster breeder. Jai Huan stands up and tells Gao Peng that he needs to rest there for two days because he had just come back. Gao Peng asks his grandfather if he can see his familiars. Jai Huan responded that his familiar named White is there, but Gao Peng needed to find it himself. After a few hours, Gao Peng goes to the backyard lake while thinking he had searched the whole house, but he couldn't find White. Then Gao Peng take off his shirt and said on such a hot summer day, he should just enjoy a cooling bath in the lake. Then he jumps into the water with Silly and relaxed while saying the water is really cooling. Suddenly Gao Peng was confused while wondering why he's flying. Gao Peng continuously flew to the water while he calling Flamey for help. But Flamey was scared of the monster looking at him. Still, Flamey flies to help Gao Peng while convincing itself to don't look down. On the other hand, on the balcony, Jai Huan tells White that Gao Peng is his little master, so he needs to play gently. Suddenly, Gao Peng stopped flying into the water, then Flamey comes to save him. Gao Peng holds onto Flamey leg, then Flamey gets down Gao Peng onto the ground. When Gao Peng looked back he was shocked to see a real dragon looking at him. The dragon monster was named White Aquatic Dragon and it was level 50 Lord Tier. White had a perfect grade and its attributes are cloud and water. White condition is healthy and acting cute, and its monster skills are water control level 4. Cloud Control Level 4 and Hardened Scales Level 3. White Special Characteristics are Cloud Walker and Rain Armor. Effect 1. Passive Skills are when within clouds, fog, or cloud type environment, the Aquatic Dragon's agility and speed will be greatly increased. Effect 2. Passive Skill is when within lakes, oceans, rivers, storms, or other water bodies and water type environments, the Aquatic Dragon's scales and claws will become much harder and more powerful. Also, the effect is stackable. White requirements for promotion to epic grade are 1. Pure Blood Evolution 2. Calamity Evolution and 3. Water Type Evolution. Gao Peng excitedly said although both have the blood of a dragon, the White Aquatic Dragon definitely easily surpasses the Dragon Blood Red Seng Carp in both level and ability. Gao Peng carefully walks toward White while thinking White's special characteristics are both passive skills. One increases its speed and agility, and the other increases the hardness and power of its scales and claws, so he can imagine just how terrifying its physical capabilities are. Gao Peng tried to touch White while saying White Dragon is the highest leveled familiar that he had ever encountered, but maybe because he's an ally it has fully suppressed its aura and he doesn't feel an ounce of pressure from White. Suddenly White looked at him, which made Gao Peng shocked in fear. Then Gao Peng stretched his hand and said he's so sleepy while thinking White is stingy, and he thinks he won't be able to pat it. 
Then Gao Peng turned around and said he's bored and is going. While behind him White tried to touch him. Then White touches Gao Peng. And when Gao Peng look at White, White is smiling while Gao Peng wondering what he's gonna do about White expression. Gao Peng said he should just go back and level up Silly. Also Dazai and Stripey's grade has also dropped a level due to their promotion. And he'll need to raise his familiars back to perfect grade. A few hours later, at Villa's simple laboratory, Gao Peng was ready a big bucket of water on the table. Then he poured the other mixture into the water while Silly was beside him drinking juice and Gao Peng said last time. The green serum had caused Silly to turn into its current jade green color. But this time serum is red does that mean Silly can change color again? Silly smelled the ingredients that Gao Peng mixed. Then Silly jumped to the bucket of the red mixture while Gao Peng looked at Silly and said it was working. Gao Peng explained that the aroma is pretty nice and a bit familiar, it was like a green apple. Suddenly Silly get out of the tube still green which made Gao Peng stun. Silly new monster's name is Dimensional Jellyfish with a perfect grade. It was level 20 and its attributes are 1, space and 2, wood. Also, silly weaknesses are 1, electric type 2, ice type and 3, afraid of fish. Gao Peng convinced himself that it was alright because at least silly color is in poor light condition, and the color won't be obvious. Then happy silly sit on the top of Gao Peng's head while dummy, Da Zai, Flamey and Stripey were peeking at the door while laughing at Gao Peng. The next morning, at the training center, Junzong greeted Gao Peng with good morning. Gao Peng said Junzong was there early. Gao Peng look at Junzong who currently encouraging his beast and he thinks Junzong is the first to arrive at the training ground, but the last to leave almost every day. Gao Peng also thinks Junzong is so hardworking and it wasn't a waste for him to help Junzong. Then Gao Peng gets a flying saucer and tells Flamey that they do it two at a time like before. Then Gao Peng throws the two flying saucer into the sky while Flamey is aiming to the flying saucer. Then Flamey hit the flying saucer with his fireballs. Gao Peng thinks Flamey's flames have grown significantly more powerful since last week. And right now, firing two continuous fireballs is easy for Flamey and their training seems to be extremely effective. However, Gao Peng thinks training a fire type familiar in the summer is torture. When Gao Peng was going to get water someone called him, Wang said they'd begun the recruitment process as Gao Peng instructed, and they opened up some jobs for orphans or children from single parent families. Then Wang tells Gao Peng that when he has time, he can come and monitor their work. Gao Peng responded that there's no need for that because although they're nominally in a superior, and subordinate relationship. He'll be spending most of his time training his familiars, so he'll leave the daily work to him. Wang responded he understand and said many in the company are saying how generous Gao Peng is. Recruiting children was illegal back in the day, but in today's world, giving the children some easy work to do so that they can afford a meal is a good deed. Gao Peng tells Wang to stop trying to curry favor with him in front of the child and that Wang should keep a lookout for promising talents and let him know if there are any. The character is first, and the capability is second. Wang laughed and responded that he understood. Suddenly Gao Peng notices a bunch of people on the side of the training center and asks Wang what's going on over there. On the other hand, Zhu tells the man that she heard a monster appear in the factory and a lot of workers went missing and the missing people's family members have come looking for them. The man responded that Zhu is probably discussing the search and rescue mission with security supervisor Jiang. Gao Peng said it looks like the discussion isn't going well. Then he walked toward the bunch of people while asking Jiang what the situation was right now, and if he have found the monster. Zhu responded that the worker was found and was sent to the hospital. The worker sustained grave injuries, but was able to avoid death. But the monster is, then Jiang interrupted to say that the monster is a slippery thing. It fled into the underground sewage system. Gao Peng asks how did a monster manage to enter the factory through the sewage system and if their underground defensive installations were damaged. Gao Peng also said the situation needs to be resolved quickly because it'll be troublesome if more monsters come in through the underground sewage system. Wang tells Gao Peng that there are no defensive measures placed in the sewage system, and there's only an alloy gate that discharges liquid waste from the factory. Gao Peng was shocked and looked at Jiang, then he asked Jiang what the meaning of Wang's words was. Jiang responded that they thought that the water pressure would be enough to prevent the monsters from entering the factory, and they have the alloy gate. Gao Peng angrily asked Jiang if did Jiang think they had time for that, Gao Peng said they only know that people have been seriously injured in a supposedly safe working environment, hindering their work and the result is a failure. Then he orders Jiang to show him the way, and orders Zhu to stay there and deal with the aftermath. Zhu happily agrees while Jiang angrily thinks who doesn't know how to talk in public. At the factory yard, Jiang pointed to a big hole in the ground and tells Gao Peng that there is where the monster disappeared. 
Gao Peng look at the hole while thinking there are definitely no Lord Tier monsters living in the sewage system, and he remembers that his grandfather has a familiar living in the sewage. All potentially dangerous monsters have probably been exterminated by his grandfather familiar. Gao Peng walked toward the hole and said he'll take a look, but Zhang called Gao Peng and said it best to leave the sort of things to them. Gao Peng look at Zhang and asks if Zhang going to send his four-winged mantis. Then Gao Peng said devil mantises aren't suited for combat in the damp dark places and it's not cut out for the job, which made Zhang can't say a word. But Zhang angrily thinks if it wasn't for that, he would have gone down in the sewage long ago and he called Gao Peng sheltered brats that all like to act tough, and he thinks in the end, they're the ones who have to clean up after him. Then Zhang tells Gao Peng not to worry because he believes in his familiar. It can adapt to all sorts of environments but behind him the mantis shaking its head. Gao Peng responded that he believes in Jiang ability, but every familiar has its limitations, and the four-winger devil mantises are suitable for combat in wide, open spaces. Besides, something major has happened in the factory, so he needs Jiang to maintain order. Jiang wonders if Gao Peng is actually helping him out and he thinks the brat Gao Peng is a bit different from the others. Jiang tells Gao Peng to be careful and he said it's not a high-level monster, but its movements are quick and agile, and it can also climb on walls. Gao Peng should watch out from above and once he'll down in the sewage, he needs to walk westward and he'll reach the alloy gate. Gao Peng said okay and tells Da Zai and Stripey that they'll be going down. Gao Peng and his familiars were walking to the sewage while Gao Peng telling his beasts that they're not there to play. Then Gao Peng said he don't feel nervous at all. Suddenly Da Zai alerted which made Gao Peng asks Da Zai what was wrong and if there was something up there. Gao Peng pointed his flashlight where Da Zai looking and saw a big cockroach. Then the cockroach flies toward Gao Peng to attack him. Then Gao Peng called Stripey. Stripey uses its spider web to trap and push the cockroach away at Gao Peng and Da Zai used its electricity to kill the cockroach. Stripey smell the cooked cockroach and asks Gao Peng if he can eat it. Gao Peng agree, then Stripey walk toward the cooked cockroach. Suddenly the cockroach fly away which made Stripey shocked. Then the cockroach flies away while Stripey says that the yummy food is fleeing away. Flamey thinks the cockroach is a flying giant disc, then Flamey attacked the cockroach using its fireball, which made the cockroach fall to the ground fully cooked, and Flamey is proud of itself. Da Zai and Gao Peng clapped because Flamey is amazing. A few moments later, Gao Peng and his beast arrived at the alloy gate, then Gao Peng enter the password to open the alloy gate while saying that normally the alloy gate would be tightly shut. It should only open when the factory discharges wastewater, then Gao Peng wonder if could the two monsters have slipped through the alloy gate and gone up against the current when it was opened. The alloy gate slowly opened while Gao Peng said it was weird because they were actually able to go against the current and go through the gate. Then he wonder what made the two cockroaches so determined. When the alloy gate is half open, Gao Peng saw many red eyes looking at him, which made him shocked. When the alloy gate finally opens, Gao Peng saw many cockroaches walking toward him. Gao Peng hears something inside and wonders what is it. Suddenly multiples cockroaches tries to attack Gao Peng. Then Gao Peng orders Stripey to attack and tells Da Zai to watch their back. Then he orders Flamey to burn the cockroaches. Flamey inhales, then flies and exhales a flame to burn the cockroaches on the ground. Gao Peng noticed the fat cockroach that's ordering the other cockroaches and he thinks it was the leader, and he thinks the sound he hears was probably it giving the cockroaches orders to attack. Then Gao Peng orders Stripey to attack the cockroach leader first. Stripey bulldoze his way toward the leader while the cockroaches that are in its way fly in the air. Then Stripey saw the cockroach leader and bite its head out. After the cockroach leader got killed, Gao Peng saw the other cockroaches dispersed and he think the gigantic cockroaches were the cause of the factory's accident, and the numbers are there. There'll always be one or two cockroaches who coincidentally rush inside the factory when the door opens. Suddenly Gao Peng saw Stripey upside down on the ground. Gao Peng panicked and asked Stripey what the matter was. Stripey responded that there was something moving in his mouth. Stripey opened his mouth and Gao Peng saw the monster named Dark Daughter, a parasite sub-body. It was level 19 in perfect grade and its attribute is dark. The parasite's hobby is eating metal and its weakness is hate sunlight. The parasite's characteristic is to suck up blood and fat beneath the host's skin as nutrition. Enables the host to recover their physical strength, repair their inner wounds, and upgrade their outer skin's defensive power. Gao Peng said the parasitic plant sub-body grade is pretty good and its strengthening attributes aren't bad either. Then Gao Peng patted Flamey head and apologized because Flamey is very young, yet he has so much to bear, which made Flamey confused. Flamey sadly ended up taking out the parasites inside Stripey mouth while Gao Peng is cheering it. The parasite in the ground suddenly has eyes that look at Gao Peng saying Stripey doesn't have the habit of rinsing its mouth regularly, while Flamey is vomiting. The parasite run in the other direction. Then Gao Peng looked at Da Zai and tells Da Zai that they'll be counting on Da Zai's sense of smell to swing by their new friend's place for a cup of tea later, 
and they'll find the main body if they follow the sub-body. Suddenly the tunnel moves which made Gao Peng panic. Da Zai tells Gao Peng that there's a big fellow behind them, and Flamey said he doesn't think it has ill intentions. Gao Peng turned around wondering what Flamey said. Then he saw big eyes looking at them and it was level 39. Then the monster left. Gao Peng said the monster is level 39 and if they fought it, they definitely couldn't win. Then he wonder why would such a scary monster be in the sewer when he thought his grandfather familiar had cleaned the sewer. Gao Peng realizes that the monster is his grandfather's familiar and if his grandfather finds out about his current situation, he'll be laughed at again. Then Gao Peng called Da Zai. Gao Peng looks at Da Zai and asks if Da Zai still remembers the smell of the black threads, and he said he had suffered emotional damage, so he needs something to make up for it. A few moments later, the parasite was peacefully walking. Then Gao Peng pointed the flashlight to it and said he find it, which made the parasite shocked. The parasite tried to run again, then Gao Peng ordered Flamey to block the parasite's way. Flamey made a barrier using its flame which made the parasite stop. Then Da Zai looked the parasite closely. Suddenly the rat appeared and carried the parasite above its head. Then the rat attacked Da Zai. Fortunately, Da Zai blocked the attack using its hands. But Da Zai has thrown away into the wall because of the rat's force. Then the rat landed on the ground smiling while one of its teeth is broken. Gao Peng angrily ordered Da Zai to electrocute the rat. Da Zai showed his electrocute which made the rat shocked in fear. But before Da Zai can use his electrocute the rat grabbed the parasite on its head and threw it on the ground. Then the rat ran leaving the parasite on the ground. Da Zai and Gao Peng look at the running rat confused. Then Gao Peng said it seemed like the rat parasitic relationship is more similar to symbiosis and the dark daughter can't give a forced command to the host, but it's also good that way and all he needs is its ability and not its thoughts. Then Da Zai, Flamey, and Gao Peng looked at the parasite. Then Gao Peng said struggling is futile while laughing. Gao Peng and his beast got out of the tunnel. Wang asks Gao Peng how's the situation. Gao Peng responded that the problem was already taken care of and they need to get someone to fix the crack in the ground. Then Gao Peng hand the parasite to Dummy and tells Dummy to take the parasite. Then he orders Da Zai, Flamey, and Stripey to head back first to rest. Dummy holds the parasite that currently moving and trying to escape. Then the parasite throws a piece of it to Dummy. And then the parasite goes inside Dummy, which made Gao Peng think the parasite is a bit dumb because it's searching for blood and flesh on a skeleton. Dummy hit the parasite, which made the parasite stop moving. Then Gao Peng asks Dummy what is he doing. Dummy responded that the parasite is squirming and it tickles him and he don't like it. Then Gao Peng gets something in his bag while asking Wang to find a bulletproof glass box to keep the parasite. Then Gao Peng answer his phone, and Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he can come back now. Gao Peng responded he just arrived there not long ago and he haven't managed to get anything done yet. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that Gao Peng personal laboratory is ready. He needs to come back and have a look at it. Gao Peng happily responded that he'll head to the villa right now. A few hours later, inside a cave behind the lake of Jai Hanwu's villa, Gao Peng tells his grandfather that his laboratory is a little too high profile. Jai Huan responded it's nothing. Then he orders Gao Peng to touch the beam of light. Gao Peng walked toward the beam of light and touch it. When he touch it, the light released a pink light around his hand. Then the laboratory door opened, which made Gao Peng shocked and think that the laboratory is way too posh. Gao Peng entered the laboratory and saw beautiful gadgets and equipment. Jai Huan asks Gao Peng if he was satisfied with the laboratory, and if not, they can build another one. Gao Peng happily responded that he's very satisfied. Then Jai Huan introduces Gao Peng to two people that the only advanced monster breeder in their company. Then Jai Huan said the name Deng Yimiao and Zhu Heming. Deng Yimiao greets Gao Peng, while Zhu Heming tells Jai Huan that he was in the middle of an experiment. Jai Huan tells Heming that the 20% increase of the experiment budget this month, which made Heming laugh and said Jai Huan is wise. Then Jai Huan introduced Gao Peng to the two monster breeders and said Gao Peng is an intermediate monster breeder. Deng said to be an intermediate monster breeder at a young age is indeed outstanding. Jai Huan laughed and said Gao Peng talent is just normal, and they should stop praising Gao Peng or else Gao Peng will become arrogant. Then Jai Huan looked at Gao Peng and said he invited Deng and Heming there to help Gao Peng with his experiment, and if there was any experiment Gao Peng wants to do, Gao Peng can seek guidance from Deng and Heming. But Gao Peng tells Jai Huan that he wanted to create a few evolution agents first. Then Gao Peng said he discovered a few evolutionary pathways of some familiars and they can directly create experimental drug agents for them. Also Gao Peng said if they could produce standard drug agents, they could definitely make a considerable profit selling them while increasing the Southern Sky Group's reputation. Jai Huan, Heming, and Deng were silent for a moment. 
Then Jai Huan laughed and said his grandson is so damn good and a real genius. Gao Peng looked at his grandfather's reaction and thinks his grandfather is really not suited for acting and that his grandfather's acting skills are actually even worse than Tang Tang. Then Gao Peng looked at Heming and Dang and thinks that they're probably laughing at him for pitching such a ridiculous idea. After all, even an advanced monster breeder might not be able to produce a stable familiar evolution agent. Then Gao Peng smiled while thinking that he'll need to produce results to make his point. Then Gao Peng goes to the computer and clicks something, then waits for the machine to fill the tube. When it's done Gao Peng gets the tube with a red mixture inside. Then Gao Peng showed it to his grandfather and teachers while saying the mixture is a new reagent that he developed himself. Then Gao Peng said he called the mixture reagent the bloody butcher and he said the main ingredients of the drug agent are bloody fruit, golden thread fungi, and the organs of the black magic spider. Then Gao Peng clicked a button to open the tube and showed Kong peeling a banana inside of it. Gao Peng said the test subject is a common ape type monster, the black raging Kong. He Ming asks Deng if the Black Raging Kong is the reagent for its two evolutionary paths already very mature. Deng responded that the ingredients that Gao Peng suggested are easier to acquire, and if the reagent can successfully evolve the Black Raging Kong, then it'll be a very successful improved version. Gao Peng heard his teacher's conversation and smile while thinking that in the first experiment, he naturally need to leave his teacher with an exceptionally deep impression. Then Gao Peng released anesthetic spray into the tube where the Kong was, which made the Kong sleepy while Gao Peng explained that because the experiments is a bit intense, a large amount of anesthetic spray is required. Then the machine injects the mixture into the sleeping Kong. After the mixture is injected, it releases red smoke. Then the red smoke made a circle that contained the Kong inside, which made Deng shouted that it was never before seen reaction. Deng looks closely at the tube, waiting for the experiment result while thinking that just having the kind of intense reaction is worth researching and even if the experiment fails, he can still discover many useful things from the experiment. Deng also thinks Jai Hanwu's grandson is really something. Suddenly Kong's eye opens and the Kong breaks the circle to get out, then the Kong showed itself successfully evolved. The data said a Kong monster's name is a blood raging Kong in a special bloody evolution. It was level 10 with an excellent grade and its attribute is blood. The Kong monster's preferences are quiet and light music and its weaknesses are 1. Septic blood berry and 2. Grasshoppers. Also, the requirement for its promotion to a perfect grade is 1. Advanced bloody evolution. Deng tell Jai Huan that it was astounding and that he had never seen that kind of evolution method before. Jai Huan asks Deng if his saying that no one has discovered that kind of monster before. Deng responded yes and there is no such ape type currently known. Then Deng order Heming to test the Kong with the Soul Crystal Obsidian which Heming immediately followed. Gao Peng asked Deng what is a Soul Crystal Obsidian. Deng responded that the Soul Crystal Obsidian is a type of natural stone, it's a mutation of obsidian. After being treated, it can be used to test the grade of any monsters below the Lord tier. The Soul Crystal Obsidian showed a color blue which made Heming shouted that the result is out and blue means an excellent grade. Jai Huan looked at the other tubes, while Thing the Red One mixture has already succeeded. Then he wonders what are the other three tubes. Then he thinks Gao Peng really does keep surprising him, but if the public got wind of Gao Peng talent, it could put Gao Peng in a lot of danger. Then Jai Huan seriously tells Deng and Heming that what happened today is a company secret and it's forbidden to share what happened with anyone, which Deng and Heming immediately agreed. Then Jai Huan walked toward Gao Peng and asked Gao Peng if he had given the monster a name because Gao Peng is the first person to create that type of monster, so he should name it. Gao Peng looked at the Kong eating a banana and responded that they can call it a blood raging Kong. Then Gao Peng grabbed the three tubes and said he named the three tubes reagents, Earth Reagent Type 1, Petrochemical Reagent Type 1, and Royal Reagent. Then Gao Peng clicks the computer to experiment number 2. In the big container behind Gao Peng, there's an ant. Gao Peng said the giant ant has already been injected with the petrochemical reagent, and they should view the result together. Gao Peng also explains that a lack of long-ranged attack is a common characteristic among monsters during their early stages. Then the ant's legs started to become stone while Gao Peng explained that it's hard to change the monster's agility, as that would involve changing their whole body structure. However, it isn't hard to raise the monster's defenses. While Gao Peng explains the ant evolved was successful, the ant's new monster's name is Stone Heart Ant. It was level 7 with an excellent grade and its preference is 1. Sugar water and 2. Tree sap. The ant condition is healthy and inflated. Gao Peng said the ant evolution is the result of the reagent and he'll call the ant stone heart ant. Heming pointed the soul crystal obsidian to the ant. Then the crystal released a blue light which made Deng said the ant is also excellent grade. But Gao Peng clicked the experiment number on his tablet and said is not finish, and they should take a look at the result of the royal reagent. The container showed a bird, and Gao Peng said it was the wolf mountain sparrow a common bird type monster in Shisheng. 
The bird evolved from the russet sparrow that had existed before the cataclysm, and the sparrow isn't very big, but it's fast. Moreover, it has a fierce temperament. The inside of the sparrow's beak is covered with sharp teeth. After the royal reagent was used, it evolved into an emperor wolf mountain sparrow, and its grade went from normal to excellent. However, Gao Peng sadly said the royal reagent has a small defect. The continuous use of the royal reagent can evolve a monster to perfect grade, but it also makes it harder for it to be promoted to lord tier. Dang and Heeming were shocked while thinking a reagent that can guarantee a monster's evolution to perfect grade with continuous use, and the only drawback is that it'll be harder for it to be promoted to lord tier, Gao Peng called it a defect. Then Gao Peng explained that the Earth Reagent can evolve the Golden Light Dog into the Earth Golden Light Dog, and its grade will be increased by 1. Also, its strength and toughness will also experience varying degrees of increase. Jai Huan held Gao Peng's shoulder and laughed, then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that in the future if Gao Peng need any materials, he just ask him. Also, Gao Peng only needs to tell him any results from his future experiments. Jai Huan said Gao Peng doesn't need to report it to anyone else in the company. Gao Peng responded okay. Then Jai Huan ordered Deng and Heming to prepare to mass produce the Bloody Butcher reagent, the Earth reagent type 1, and the petrochemical reagent type 1 and sell them to the public, but the royal reagent has more value, so they won't sell it yet. Heming and Deng bowed to Jai Huan and Deng said they'll return to their positions. While walking Heming tells Deng that youngsters nowadays are terrifying and he's afraid that Gao Peng isn't that far behind him. Deng responded that perhaps Gao Peng will surpass them in less than two years and their path is no longer lonesome. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks that having a personal laboratory is just to make it convenient for him to produce reagents to hand to his grandfather, and with the system, he doesn't need to carry out experiments to research the evolutionary pathways of monsters. Gao Peng also thinks staying in the laboratory is just a way to enjoy the air conditioning and waste time. Then Gao Peng asked his grandfather if there were any expeditions being organized by their group lately. That made Jai Huan shocked and asked Gao Peng if Gao Peng is interested in the wild and want to be a world hunter. Gao Peng happily asks his grandfather if he doesn't think world hunters are cool. Jai Huan said there's a very special group in the monster trainer community known as the world hunters and every world hunter has their own title. They are celebrities in the monster trainer community and are also one of the most unique and powerful monster trainer organizations. Unlike most inactive monster trainers, they would go deep into the mountains and explore unknown areas where humans hadn't set foot yet, and they are the explorers of the world and the warriors of the wilderness. The military needs to defend the base cities and protect humanity. Nearly half the known areas that humans have explored so far have been scouted by world hunters. Gao Peng excitedly tells Jai Huan that just thinking about world hunters makes him excited. Jai Huan said Gao Peng has always been wild ever since Gao Peng was young. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that it's not that he can't go out into the wild but he needs to train his familiars more because the way his familiars fight is too crude and the real wilderness isn't like a grove near the base city. Danger lurks everywhere. Then Jai Huan seriously tells Gao Peng that before he gets his permission, he can't go into the wild. Otherwise, he'll break his legs and have him stay in bed, which made Gao Peng shocked and fear. Gao Peng sadly thinks he has the shifting constellations technique, so if his grandfather wants to break his legs, his grandfather needs to break all of his familiar's legs first Dazai, and Stripey, and Silly and Flamey, then he realizes Flamey can be excluded. Then Jai Huan walks to leave while saying Gao Peng need to wake up tomorrow at 6 o'clock and bring all of his familiars for special training. Gao Peng agrees. The next day, at 5.57 o'clock, Jai Huan said he asks Gao Peng to come at 6 o'clock, and Gao Peng really came exactly at 6 o'clock. Then Jai Huan said Gao Peng is quite punctual and since Gao Peng is so punctual, he wants to reward Gao Peng with 30 push-ups, which made Gao Peng confused. Then Gao Peng responded that humans like them can never beat a familiar, and they have the protection of their familiar, so there's no need. Jai Huan said what no need. Then Jai Huan kicked the tree in half, which made Gao Peng shocked, and thinks it was outrageous because even a normal tier black raging Kong wouldn't necessarily be able to destroy the tree with just one kick. Then Jai Huan angrily looks at Gao Peng and said he doesn't need to train because he has the protection of his familiars. Then he called Gao Peng naive. Then Jai Huan asks Gao Peng if he doesn't need stamina when running away from danger. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that their monster trainers, protecting their own lives is the most important thing, and as long as they're still alive, they will have a chance to change the tide of a battle. Which made Gao Peng think his grandfather isn't wrong. Then Jai Huan explained that although the strength that comes from the feedback from their familiars is small if their familiars are highly leveled enough, the amount of power that's given to them through the feedback will also gradually increase. That's why with the increase of the number of familiars and their levels, a monster trainer's strength will slowly surpass that of a normal human's. Then Jai Huan said he had only used 30% of his strength when he kicked the tree, which made Gao Peng amazed. 
Jai Hyun thinks Gao Peng will surely worship him now, while White responded that Jai Hyun just wanted to show off in front of his grandson. Jai Hyun looked at Da Zai and said Da Zai is an electric type, and he has a familiar who may be able to give Da Zai a push. Then Jai Hyun called his thunder god to come out. The monster named Thunder God Snail showed. It was level 39 with an epic grade and its attributes are electric and water. Thunder God State is healthy and stable and its skills are Thunder Mastery level 3, Water Mastery level 2, and Hardened Shell level 3. Thunder God's special characteristics are Electric Shell, Effect 1, Passive Skill is Thunder Mastery plus 1. Effect 2, Active Skill fully releases all the electric energy saved in its electric shell, creating a catastrophic thunderstorm within a certain range. Also, Thunder God's requirements for promotion to legendary grade are Thor's Stone times 1, and 30 tons of healing water. Jai Hyun said he found the Thunder God Snail in the ocean. It isn't very strong, but it has a very gentle character that should be enough to train Da Zai. While Da Zai is shakingly hiding behind Gao Peng, Gao Peng realizes that it really was his grandfather familiar that they saw in the sewers. Gao Peng look at Da Zai and tells Da Zai to go on, and the Thunder God Snail's attribute is similar to Da Zai. Gao Peng also tells Da Zai that Da Zai should know that Thunder God is his senior, and he needs to listen to his senior, but Da Zai disagrees and shakes his head. Gao Peng called Dummy, then Dummy grabbed Da Zai's horn to lift up and walk toward the Thunder God. Da Zai shouted to Gao Peng that he doesn't want him anymore and that he have changed. But Gao Peng angrily tells Da Zai to train properly and he wonders how could he have a familiar who's that cowardly. Da Zai angrily responded that Gao Peng is a coward and he is the most cowardly and he learned to be a coward like Gao Peng. Gao Peng walks toward Thunder God and said he'll be handing the disobedient familiar to him to train. Then Gao Peng asks the Thunder God not to hold back. Thunder God smiled while Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that Thunder God said it was no problem and leave Da Zai to him. Then Gao Peng asks his grandfather what about Stripey, Dummy, and Flamey. Jai Huan responded that Flamey will train with Da Zai and he said although the Thunder God snail is a water and electric type, they're both elemental types. So there are a lot of similarities. Dummy is a ghoul type, and it has a close range fighting style. Then he asks Gao Peng how he planning on developing Stripey. Gao Peng responded defense and control. Jai Huan said it's a tank that has the ability to limit others' fighting capabilities. Then he said they need to train Stripey control and counter-attack abilities. Then Jai Huan clicked his fingers, then White showed itself. Jai Huan tells White that he's the training partner for Dummy and Stripey. Silly said Big Fish and collapsed to the ground. Jai Huan looked at them and said the training will begin. White looked at Dummy and Stripey, then White attacked Dummy using its tail, which made Dummy thrown onto the ground. Then Stripey used its ability to dig a hole. Gao Peng said Stripey realized its earth type ability on the spot, and Gao Peng thinks Stripey's digging a hole is a trap and he said he didn't expect Stripey to use tactics. But Stripey just goes inside the hole to hide, which made Gao Peng disappointed. White grabbed Stripey in the hole and tossed it to the ground which made Stripey bounce multiple times in the ground before landing. Then Stripey stand up and its state change into Berserk. Gao Peng shouted that it'll be troublesome if Stripey goes crazy. Then Stripey attacked White, but White just flicked Stripey which made Stripey sink to the ground. Dummy saw it and angrily attacked White. White attacked Dummy using its tail which made Dummy thrown to the ground again. But White was shocked because Dummy landed a hit on him. Jai Huan laughed and said that Dummy actually landed a hit on White. But Dummy and Stripey still need more training while beside him Gao Peng is pushing up and Gao Peng thinks although the gap in levels is quite big, they were defeated way too quickly. Then Gao Peng look at Da Zai and Flamey with Thunder God. Da Zhi sadly tells Thunder God that Thunder God is powerful and is not as powerful as him. Thunder God responded that he'll show Da Zai what he could do when he was at Da Zai level. Then Thunder God used his power and said that was his true power. Da Zai looks at Thunder God powers amazed. Thunder God said it's not as hard as Da Zai think, and for them controlling electricity is a natural talent. Just like how Da Zai can walk with the hundred of legs Da Zai have, and that is Da Zai talent. Thunder God also said Da Zai can be able to do it if Da Zai practices, but for Flamey walking with hundreds of legs at a time is something impossible. Then Thunder God used it one eye to come close to Flamey and ask it if he was right. Flamey asks what that has to do with him and Flamey said he doesn't care how many legs Da Zai has because Da Zai legs are still short. Then Flamey made a fireball. Thunder God asks Flamey how he was able to create a fireball on his first try and he said even he had tried a few times before he succeeded. But the one-legged bird succeeded in just one shot. Then Thunder God said Flamey has a lot of potentials. But Flamey just ignored Thunder God, which made Da Zai angry and wonder why Flamey was acting smug. Then Da Zai angrily said to Flamey did is just channeling the hidden power inside their body, and he can do it too. Then Da Zai tried to release his power while proudly doing it. Gao Peng said the next step Da Zai needs to do is slowly release the power in its body, then he cheered Da Zai. 
But Da Zhe just released a fart which made Gao Peng collapse on the ground. Then Gao Peng said he give up, while Dummy looked at him confused. On the other hand, Silly is still on the ground begging White that he thinks a big fish is going to eat him. Half a month later, Dummy avoided all White attacks, then it jumped toward White while White was ready to hit him using its tail. But Dummy grabs White tail and using it again to jump, then landed a punch at White, which made Gao Peng proud. Dummy jumped back, then landed on the ground proudly, while beside him, Stripey asked if the battle is over. White looked at Dummy and said Dummy reflexes and speed have reached the qualifying standards and the water controlling ability that he used just now was on the level of most commander tier water type monsters. Then White tells Dummy that if he can get close enough to the enemy under such conditions, it means he has already won half the battle. Then White looked at Stripey and said Stripey is just a tank, so Stripey just needs to withstand attacks. Gao Peng patted sad Stripey and assured Stripey that it was okay and at least is not afraid of being hit. Gao Peng looked at Flamey who currently practicing his fireball skill in the water. Gao Peng said after all Flamey training, it can control fire skillfully now. Then Gao Peng looked at practicing Da Zai and said Da Zai needs more training. On the other hand, Silly finally reached Commander Tier in half a month and Silly portable space has increased tremendously, to as big as a rear compartment of a large truck, and Gao Peng dream of having a portable warehouse has finally come true. Gao Peng said the training objective that his grandfather set has basically been achieved and he has already prepared the necessities needed for surviving in the wilderness such as food, medicine, and tents. Suddenly Jai Huan gives something to Gao Peng. Gao Peng asks what is it, and when Gao Peng opens it, it contains a map, a tablet, and a compass. Jai Huan explained that the tablet is solar powered. There's an electronic version of the map on it, and Gao Peng can also use it to make calls if there's a signal. Jai Huan said he had already taught Gao Peng how to use a map and a compass. Then Jai Huan explained that the map is the map of interior regions. It shows the terrain of Yuzhu and it also shows where the dangerous areas are, so Gao Peng should refer to the map often. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he has a flying type familiar, so he has more protection than most monster trainers on expeditions and he needs to learn to make the correct decisions when he's in danger. Jai Huan also said, as long as he's here, he will always be there to be Gao Peng's shield. Then he tells Gao Peng to do everything that he wants to do with confidence, which made Gao Peng emotional and touched. Then he look at his grandfather's hair and thinks that he remember that his grandfather's hair had once been black, but now it changed. Then Gao Peng responded okay and Gao Peng promised that he'll be back. The next morning, in the jungle outside Yuzhu City, Gao Peng and his familiar were stopped in the forest, while Gao Peng looked at the map saying that they should be there right now. Gao Peng said there are way too many red circles on the map and he can roughly spot at least 10 of them. The red circle on the map are all territories that belong to Lord Tier monsters. Then Gao Peng realized that his grandfather was right when he said the wilderness is dangerous. Then Gao Peng looked at Stripey's data and said in order for Stripey to get promoted to the epic grave, Stripey will need to swallow an earth spirit core, then sleep for 72 hours in black soil for Stripey to evolve into an earth shield spider. The data said the earth spirit cores can be easily found deep in caves that are surrounded by mountains. Gao Peng said he's not sure if it's because his soul strength has increased. But when he put his focus on certain materials, the system shows him where the materials can be easily found. Suddenly many mosquitoes appeared in the sky. Then Flamey tells Gao Peng that there are many big mosquitoes. Flamey ready his fireballs, but Gao Peng stopped Flamey and ordered Flamey not to attack and come down first. Flamey landed in the tree branch while asking Gao Peng why they not attacking. Then Flamey said they should catch the mosquitoes off guard. Gao Peng responded that the jungle is dark and full of thick trunks and dense shrubs, so they don't know where the other mosquitoes are hiding and if they get surrounded, they'll be in trouble. Then Gao Peng gets something in silly inventory while saying they need to be smart when dealing with such monsters. Then Gao Peng showed a big bag of mosquito repellent while saying the mosquito repellent was made with the mutated Telosma chordata plant after the cataclysm. It's mixed with purple gold lavender, Scorpio gold sunflower, giant citron, and orange jessamine to become a super mosquito repellent. Then Stripey lift up the open mosquito repellent while Dummy fanned it to make the fragrance of the mosquito repellent spread. Gao Peng said it was time to witness a miracle which made Flamey confused. The mosquito smell the mosquito repellent, then it collapsed to the ground while Gao Peng and his familiars were watching behind the tree. Then Gao Peng proudly said it was easy peasy. Gao Peng looked at his amazed familiar and said it was basic. Then Gao Peng and his familiars continue their mission. They walk to the river while Gao Peng looks at his map and said they need to cross the river, then they turn right. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked to see the monster jumping behind Dummy. Fortunately, Dummy blocks it. The monster named Storm Panther is on level 26. Its grade is excellent and its attribute is wind. 
Gao Peng thinks the panther is fast and luckily Dummy blocked it in time, or else Dummy would have been hurt. Then Dummy pushed Stripey to the panther and Stripey attacked the panther which made the panther thrown away. Then Gao Peng called Flamey to come back while thinking none of his familiars specialized in speed. Dummy's specialty is close range burst attacks, but long distance sprinting is simple beyond it. Also, letting Flamey chase it by itself was too dangerous. While Gao Peng shouts at the panther that the next time they meet, he'll definitely skin it alive. Then behind him something attacks him. But Da Zai saw it and pushed Gao Peng, which made Gao Peng unharmed but soaked in the water. The monster who attacked Gao Peng was named the Golden Palm Tree Spirit. It was level 29 commander. Its grade is normal and its attribute is wood. Also, its weaknesses are 1. Fire and 2. Electric. Gao Peng angrily said that was the second time the palm tree attacked him. Then he asked the palm tree if did it think it's easy to bully him. Then Gao Peng angrily said if you don't teach the palm tree a lesson, it'd think he's weak. Then he ordered Da Zai and Flamey to attack it. Da Zai and Flamey angrily look at the palm tree, then Flamey uses his fireball and Da Zai uses his electricity to attack it, which made the palm tree burn to ashes. Gao Peng walks toward the palm tree spot while angrily saying the palm tree like playing games with him. Then he asks the palm tree why don't it crank it up a notch. Gao Peng grabbed the crystal on the ground and said a core crystal of a plant type commander tier monster will be able to sell for at least a few thousand alliance credits. Then Gao Peng gave the core crystal to Silly to keep it in its inventory while telling to his familiars that they should find a place to rest. While they finding a place to rest, they saw a cave. Then Gao Peng said the mountain cave is away from the wind and is hidden enough, there's also a water source nearby, so they can rest there. Gao Peng also said he should mark the cave on the map as a temporary safe point. Suddenly the duck showed itself at the entrance of the cave croaking at Gao Peng. Gao Peng wondered why the duck is croaking. Gao Peng tells the duck that he just borrowing its place for a day and no need to make a fuss about it. Then he asks the duck to leave before his familiars start feeling hungry, but the duck continues croaking aggressively at him. Gao Peng angrily tells the duck that it can't even quack properly and that it's embarrassing. The duck wondered for a second what is croak and what is quack, then the duck started quacking. Gao Peng look at the duck data wondering how the duck manages to survive there that long with its low level of intelligence. The duck monster named is Adamantine Duck, Mutant. It was level 10 with an epic grade, and the duck's current state is healthy but tired. The duck's special characteristic is gooey power, its passive effect said when being attacked. It has a certain chance to enlarge its body for a certain period of time and its strength, defense, and speed will also be amplified at the same time. Gao Peng just looks at the duck and thinks that the duck is actually epic grade then he apologizes for his rudeness. Then Gao Peng turn around and tells his familiars that they should go and they'll just try to reach their destination by today. Then Gao Peng tells the duck that it must have been hard for a mutant like him to survive that long and the next time it sees a human, he shouldn't go up to them. Otherwise, he wouldn't even know how he died. Gao Peng and his beasts continue to walk, then Stripey tells Gao Peng that he was hungry and he wants to eat the duck. Da Zai also said he's hungry and wanted to eat the duck also. Gao Peng asks Da Zai why he's hungry when Dummy's the one carrying him around all day. Da Zai tells Gao Peng that Gao Peng also rides Stripey and he learned it from him. Then Flamey flies toward Gao Peng and orients Gao Peng. Gao Peng responded he no. On the other hand, behind the tree, something is hiding. Suddenly the duck croaked at them again, and Flamey tells Gao Peng that the duck is calling him. Gao Peng asks Flamey if he can understand the duck. Flamey proudly responded that he's a level B master in bird language, leaving Gao Peng shock. The duck ran toward Gao Peng while croaking continuously. Flamey tells Gao Peng that the duck said wait for him, big duck. And the duck thinks Gao Peng is a duck, which made Gao Peng shocked and wonder how could it because he helped corrected its quacking. Gao Peng turned around and said don't mind the duck, then Gao Peng ordered Stripey to go faster. Otherwise they'll have to spend the night in the jungle and it'll be very dangerous, while the duck is still croaking. Flamey translated the duck word and the duck said stop. Then the duck tripped its one leg and fall to the ground. The duck cried and said that the strange duck doesn't like him either, no one likes him, and his mommy and daddy don't want him either. Suddenly Gao Peng grabs him on the ground and when the duck look up it's excitedly said the big ducky which is Gao Peng didn't leave. Flamey tells Gao Peng that he thinks the silly duck was abandoned by its parents and the duck is still a child. Then Flamey asks Gao Peng if they're really going to leave the duck there. Gao Peng turned around and said fine, they will bring the duck with them while thinking since the duck is an epic grade, they're not at loss. While behind him his other beasts happily looked at the duck and assured it that they'll protect him. A few hours later, they arrived outside the Yuzhu City Stone Forest. Gao Peng saw a hole with a high chance of Earth Spirit Core emergence. Gao Peng said the Earth Spirit Core should be nearby, but the size of the hole is small that Stripey, Dummy, and Flamey won't be able to enter. Then Gao Peng look at Da Zai and order it to go inside the hole and take a look. 
Daze started to crawl into the hole while Gao Peng told Dazai to see if there was anything that was giving off rich earth elemental energy. Then Gao Peng tells Dazai to be careful and come out quickly if he comes across any monsters in the hole and he doesn't need to push himself. Then Gao Peng noticed something and look at it. The monster behind the rock is named the Rock Scorpion. It was level 11 elite with a normal grade. The scorpion hissed to the quaking duck while Gao Peng thinks that luckily, the monsters in the region aren't strong. Dummy asks Gao Peng if he should shoo the scorpion away, but Gao Peng stopped Dummy and said no need. Although the scorpion's level is higher than the silly duck, it's only a normal tier and it's nothing to worry about. Then Gao Peng tells the duck to show him his true combat power. Ten minutes later, Flamey was yawning and asks Gao Peng how long the duck and the scorpion going to continue their shouting match. The duck and the scorpion are just hissing and quacking at each other which made Gao Peng and his other familiars confused. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to chase the scorpion away, then Dummy walks toward the scorpion, then the scorpion runs away leaving the confused duck. Gao Peng asks the duck how on earth did the duck manage to survive so long. The duck responded but Gao Peng can't understand it. Da Zhe tells Gao Peng that he found it, then Gao Peng happily prays Da Zai and orders Da Zai to bring the earth's core out. Da Zhe gets out of the hole, holding the small earth core in its mouth. The item name is a small earth spirit core and the item effect says rich in earth elemental energy. It has the ability to allow earth type monsters to evolve. Gao Peng grabbed the earth core and said it was so small, then he wonder if it will work because he remember reading that Stripey required only one earth spirit core to evolve and it didn't specify the size. Then Gao Peng tells to his beasts that they should head over to the location they marked. A few moments later, they arrived at their rest location. Then Stripey was in the hole sadly swallowing the earth core, while Gao Peng ordered Stripey to sleep and assuring it that they'll wait by its side. Then Dummy bury Stripey, while Gao Peng tells his familiars that they'll wait there until Stripey awakes and perhaps the master of that place will return later, so they need to be alert. The night come, a monster crawled into the forest, then it saw a tent placed in its house which made it confused. Then the monster saw the duck sleeping beside the tree while thinking that the duck is blocking the door in his house. Suddenly the monster bites the duck's hand, the duck gets angry and asks the monster why it bites him. But the monster just uses its power on the duck, which made the duck cry because it hit its eyes while the monster laughs beside the duck. Suddenly the monster was shocked to see that the duck become larger, then the duck look at the monster angrily. Gao Peng heard the noise outside and peeked into the tent door while asking what going on and why is it noisy out there. Then he saw the duck so big which made him shocked and wonder when did the duck get so big. Gao Peng just looks at the angry big duck while thinking that he finally understands how the simple-minded duck has been able to live for so long on its own. The monster ran away in fear, but the duck just stomped the monster. Then the duck slowly goes back to its size, while Gao Peng looked behind it while thinking that at first, he assumed the duck gooey power would only allow it to expand its body size to a certain extent, and that the effect couldn't be stacked. It's also a passive ability, so he thought it was a useless ability, but now that he had seen it with his own eyes, it's actually a divine ability truly, fortune favors the dull-witted. Gao Peng called the duck while wondering if he can sign a blood contract with the silly duck. When the duck was near to him, Gao Peng placed his hand near the duck's head to connect with it. Gao Peng enters the duck's consciousness and he saw that the duck's mindscape is bright in color. Then he remembers Feng Zhu's book saying that the bright color represents a light-hearted and happy mood. Suddenly Gao Peng saw a tree with wings which made him shocked. Then a flower and grass that have eyes and mouth. Gao Peng thinks the duck looks dumb and silly on the outside. But its mindscape is pretty rich. Suddenly the duck's mindscape color changing which made Gao Peng confused and wonder why is the mood changing. Then Gao Peng saw the duck's parents talking. The duck's father asked the duck's mother if the duck is their child. The mother responded yes and said that the duck's eyes are very big. Then the father duck angrily said the duck had five toes and called the duck a monster. The duck looks at its toes and wonders what is a monster. Then the duck's brother proceed to eat, while the duck was sure that his brothers will leave some food for him because they were brothers. But his brothers kick him and tell him that he's not his brother. Then his brothers ask him to go away and don't come near them because he's a monster. The duck gets angry and becomes bigger which made his brothers shake in fear and shout that he's really a monster. The duck brother cried and tell their father that his brother is bullying him. The duck father angrily shouted at the duck to go away and don't come back, while the duck mother was crying beside his father. The duck cried and asks Gao Peng why everyone hates him and why everyone calls him a monster just because he has an extra toe. Gao Peng realized that's why the duck quack sounded off and that is why the duck followed him after he taught it how to quack like an actual duck. Gao Peng thinks being cast out by its parents made the adamantine duck especially sensitive, and give the duck some attention and it'll want to stick with him. After all, no one has ever had the patience to listen to its story until now. 
Then Gao Peng reaches out to the duck while telling the duck to don't ponder about it too much and if he follows him, the duck can eat all the fish he wants. The duck called Gao Peng a strange big ducky in an appreciative way. Then the contract between Gao Peng and the duck was successfully done. Gao Peng tells the duck that now that they've signed a blood contract, he'll have to give the duck a name and since the duck feathers are yellow, he'll call the duck Goldie which made the duck confused. Suddenly the ground where Stripey was buried released a gold light. Then Stripey broke the ground to get out, then Stripey showed itself in successful evolution. Stripey's new monster's name is Earth Shield Spider. It was epic grade in level 25 commander tier and its attribute is Earth. Its skill is Earth Mastery level 2 and its state is healthy and happy. Stripey's special characteristic is Earth Spirit. It means the Earth Spirit core has replaced Stripey Heart, increasing its affinity with the Earth element and making it lose its ability to merge with other elements. Passive Effect 1 is Earth Mastery level 1, Passive Effect 2 is Stripey is under Earth's constant protection. As long as it is standing on solid ground, it will be able to absorb the Earth's power and form an Earth elemental around its body. The armor's defensive power is determined by Stripey Earth Mastery skill level. Gao Peng happily said Stripey successfully evolved and also gained a new skill and their mission in the mountain is a success. Then Gao Peng decided to come back to his grandfather's villa. The next day, at Yuzhu Mansion, Gao Peng just finished showering when he noticed a piece of paper on the table. In the paper, his grandfather said the company needs him and he tells Gao Peng to eat breakfast first before reading the documents. Gao Peng grabs the documents while saying his grandfather really likes to worry and is not a child anymore. More. Inside the document Gao Peng saw some pictures of water. Gao Peng said the group of advanced divers discovered an unknown shiny object at the bottom of the Zihai Lake that drew swarms of huge carp to it. The system said the item's name is Forbidden Magic Stone Water, which made Gao Peng think the ingredients that he mentioned to his grandfather yesterday to evolve Goldie has been found. The Forbidden Magic Stone is one of the ingredients required for the adamantine duck to evolve into a forbidden adamantine duck. Gao Peng carefully looks at the picture while thinking he needs to get his hands on that forbidden magic stone and once Goldie reaches the legendary grade, Goldie will be able to awaken a second skill. Suddenly, the advanced device on the table ring, Gao Peng answer it, then his grandfather asks him if he has looked at the documents and if the ingredients he's looking for is the one in the documents. Gao Peng responded yes and thanked his grandfather. Jai Huan said he'll send someone to retrieve it for Gao Peng and Gao Peng should just stay at home. Then Jai Huan said he have another meeting and he'll going to hang up. Jai Huan hung up leaving Gao Peng confused if it was just like that. Gao Peng thinks he should be the one out there fighting a battle of wits and brawn with the dangerous monsters in the wild in order to obtain the prize, and make an enemy with some rich brat that's aiming for the same prize too and he said the situation right now isn't what he expected at all. Then Gao Peng smiled while wondering why he's so happy about the situation. Meanwhile, at Zihai Lake, many boats are coming toward where the Forbidden Magic Stone. One boat group complained because there are so many carps in the lake. Then the captain of that boat said the Black Gate group is offering 300 million alliance dollars and three commander tier monster core crystals for their mission. Then he asked his people if they think the mission would be easy. Then the captain tells his people to relax because there are many teams also aiming for the prizes and they just need to hold out till the end. One man asks his captain why don't they turn back because even if they might be able to pull the prize out from the bottom of the lake, they might not make it out alive unless they have a flying type familiar. Suddenly one man pointed to something and said he don't think a flying familiar will be of much use, then he call his captain to look. The captain looks in the direction the man pointing, then the captain is shocked to see the golden goose king flying toward their direction. The captain immediately orders his people to retreat while saying if the other team wants the money, they should let them have it and they're leaving. On the other hand, in the depth of Zihai Lake, one fish was near to the Forbidden Magic Stone. The fish look at the stone while saying that the Forbidden Magic Stone feels so peculiar, and the fish wonder if that is the fate her mom was talking about. The fish said she heard her mom was able to become extremely powerful because her mom ate a very peculiar fruit. Then the fish happily said all the powerful purple back carp in her tribe are birthed by her mom and she wants to give birth to a lot of powerful children just like her mom. Suddenly, one of the other fish feels something and asks who's there. The monster tells the fish to watch his tongue or he'll swallow him whole. The fish called the monster giant carp and the fish tells the giant carp to stay back because the place is their purple-backed carp territory. Suddenly the giant carp angrily showed itself which made the fish shocked and wonder why a subchief of the giant carp is there. Then the fish tells the giant carp not to come any closer because behind them is their chief's most beloved daughter, and their king will be furious if he dares lay a fin on the chief daughter. The giant carp just laugh and ask if would a bear fear the repercussions of eating a tiger's cub. The giant carp shouted no and explained that a tiger would do the same to its cub if given the opportunity. Then the giant carp said the chief of the purple-backed carp slaughtered many of his kind and eating the chief daughter is within reason, which made the fish shocked. 
Then the fish made the chief daughter swim away while the other fish tried to buy some time and trap the giant carp in the water currents. The fish used their skill to trap the giant carp, but the giant carp said all the purple-backed carp are abominations and their evolutionary pathway is all wrong. The giant carp uses his skill while saying brute strength is the only thing that matters. The other fish got killed, then the giant carp swim toward the forbidden magic stone and grabbed the stone using its mouth. On the other hand, the golden goose king said the glowing stone has disappeared. Then one of the golden goose kings wrapped up its wings to its body, then launched toward the water to grab the giant carp while telling the giant carp not to dare to swim and hand the stone over. The giant carp attacked the leg of the golden goose king using its tail which made the giant carp free. Then the giant carp swim fast, leaving the injured golden goose kings. The man in the boat angrily orders his people to go after the giant carp. But the man said the stone was definitely swallowed by the sub-chief of the giant carp and he tells his boss not to worry because they've been tracking the sub-chief. A moment later, the injured giant carp arrived at the place where his kind was, then the giant carp pop his head and transfer the forbidden magic stone to the other giant carp. Then the giant carp swim toward the man to the bay, while the man calls the retrieval team because the giant carp is there. Then the giant carp open its mouth and give the forbidden magic stone to the man who currently telling the retrieval team to get the stone and retrieve it. On the other hand, the man called the kid number three, and tells number three that the next time he controls the giant carps, he should tone down his dramatic because he's getting secondhand embarrassment just listening to him. Then the man in the bay reports to the man who's currently looking at the other team trying to get the stone to the giant carp. Then the man said that the item has been retrieved. Secretary Han responded that they should go and the other people can search for the stone as long as they want. After a few hours, at the laboratory, Gao Peng and Jai Huan were looking at Goldie who was currently in the big container confused. Jai Huan looked at the forbidden magic stone and said he didn't think that Goldie would be an epic grade. Then he looks at Gao Peng while thinking Goldie is in epic grade now, but Gao Peng wants to promote Goldie to legendary grade, and as of now, there are no known instances of someone successfully promoting a monster to legendary grade. At least he has never heard of any successful cases. Then Jai Huan put his hand on Gao Peng's shoulder and tells Gao Peng that he believes that Gao Peng can do it. Gao Peng tells his grandfather not to worry. Gao Peng look at the stone while thinking that other materials are expendable, but there's only one forbidden magic stone and he can't afford to fail. Then Gao Peng looks at the stone that is currently soaked in the green mixture on the tube while thinking the stone's reaction rate is a bit slow. The tube's green mixture slowly changing to the blue mixture, and after a few seconds, the mixture completely turned to sky blue, which made Gao Peng happy because his experiment is a success. Then Gao Peng showed a duck to Goldie which made Goldie excited and happy. Then Gao Peng pointed to the machine holding a tube with a blue mixture and tells Goldie to drink the mixture, and he will give the toy duck to him. Goldie immediately grabbed the tube while Gao Peng told it that he only wanted him to drink the liquid inside and he didn't ask him to swallow the glass tube. After Goldie drank the mixture it collapsed to the ground, then its feathers started to shed. Gao Peng looked at Goldie shocked wondering why Goldie shedding so many feathers. After all of Goldie feathers fall out, its body becomes big which made Gao Peng wonder if it was the legendary saying if he has gone bald, but he has also become stronger. Goldie's new monster's name is Forbidden Adamantine Duck. It was level 10 in legendary grade and its attribute is gold. Goldie's state is healthy and Goldie's weaknesses are 1. The Tianchu exercising stone can cause extra damage to the forbidden adamantine duck. 2. The forbidden adamantine duck cannot use elemental energy. Also, Goldie requirements for promotion to mythical grade had two evolutionary routes. 1. Divine adamantine martial duck and 2. Vicious nightmare suppressing beast duck. While Gao Peng looking at Goldie's data, he found out that the next grade after legendary is mythical and the ingredients needed are extraterrestrial starburst iron, star core magic stone, and more. Gao Peng think just looking at where the ingredients originate from is giving him a headache. Whether it's possible to acquire the ingredients on earth is one problem. Then Gao Peng click his tablet and decided that he will show the result to his grandfather first. Jai Huan look at Goldie in shock and said Gao Peng actually made Goldie a legendary grade and his grandson has achieved something that no one else on earth has achieved. Then Jai Huan look at Gao Peng and tells him that they'll keep the experiment between him and Gao Peng and he will tell the public that the duck was already a legendary grade monster when Gao Peng got it. Gao Peng tried to tell his secret to his grandfather but Jai Huan just said he knows Gao Peng has a little secret and he doesn't need to share it with him and is lazy to hear it too. Then Jai Huan started to walk away while saying that he will hand Gao Peng the responsibility of promoting his familiars. Gao Peng is in tear of joy said only his grandfather would unconditionally trust him like that. A few moments later, Goldie slowly opened his eyes and saw Gao Peng. Gao Peng said Goldie is awake which made Goldie confused. 
Gao Peng smiled and told Goldie it's nothing and he just thought that Goldie had gotten handsome. Goldie gets up, then walks toward the mirror. Then Goldie looks at himself in the mirror, then laughs while saying the duck he saw in the mirror is definitely the ugliest duck he has ever seen. A few seconds later, Goldie realizes that the ugly duck is him. Then Goldie starts crying and shouted to Gao Peng asking him what have he done. Flamey angrily hit Goldie in the head while telling Goldie that Gao Peng worked hard to make him stronger, and their noble bird type familiars so they need to act with politeness. While Dazai in the side saying Goldie has the audacity. The data said Goldie's secret power is secret patterns that mean strong resistance to elements, and the effectiveness of the skill is determined by the physical condition of the user. Effect 1, passive effect said strong resistance to elements and additional resistance to the water element. Effect 2, active effect said secret patterns will be activated temporarily when the effect is in use and a vacuum sphere will appear around the body, cancelling all types of elemental powers near the sphere. It will also expel all elemental powers within the sphere. Gao Peng said that based on his understanding of Goldie's data, the first effect is a passive effect that increases Goldie's resistance to elemental attacks and the second ability is to form an element-free sphere around its body, like an anti-magic field. Then he looked at the crying Goldie with a lump in its head while thinking of a bald duck that is immune to elemental attacks and grows stronger the more it gets hit. A few days later, at the Yuzhou University Branch Campus College Town, Gao Peng happily arrived and said he was finally in Yuzhu University. Then he saw Moi talking to the man and he wonder if Moi also came to Yuzhu University. Then Gao Peng looked at the university gate while thinking that he should go register himself first. Gao Peng walked inside the university while thinking that the registration for the monster trainer major should be around there. Suddenly the man beside the table and three people ask if he's a freshman and if his major is a monster trainer or monster breeder. Gao Peng responded monster trainer. The man said he thought Gao Peng would be a monster breeder with how polite looking Gao Peng is. The girl beside the man said monster trainers are everywhere now, unless the man goes out to the wilderness and enter the fray, it would be hard to find a job. Gao Peng walked toward the table while thinking the man's changed attitude is quite obvious and he guessed monster breeders are more welcome. The man at the table tells Gao Peng that he can register there, then he asks if Gao Peng brings his examination admission ticket. Gao Peng responded yes and give his admission ticket. The man swipes Gao Peng admission ticket and was shocked, which made the other man ask what is wrong with him. Gao Peng data showed his examination result that said Gao Peng is the highest scoring candidate in the first round exam in Chang'an City and ranked 11th in the second round exam in the Huexia region, which made the man shocked because of Gao Peng's data. The man stand up and said he will show Gao Peng the way to the dorms. While walking the man said someone gave all the monster trainers in all of the universities and use you all kinds of extravagant nicknames, but those nicknames are only used within universities and they're just for fun. If other people knew of them, they wouldn't approve of any of the nicknames. Then the man excitedly said except for four people. Those four people are the best monster trainer among all the universities in Yuzhu City and everyone in Yuzhu City acknowledge them because their abilities and fame greatly exceed the confines of a university. The man also said, of the four people, two are from Yuzhu University, one is senior brother Zhu Ming, who is now a permanent honorary member of the Council of the Base of Yuzhu. The other one is senior sister Lin Xinrui who's a world huntress, Lin is not in Yuzhu most of the time, though most of the areas around Yuzhu were explored by her. Finally, they arrived at the student dorm, Gao Peng said the places looks quite luxurious. The man responded that the place has all single bedrooms, one student per room and although there isn't a lot of space inside, the place is well furnished, and they all have air conditioning and a fridge. The place was donated by the chairman of Yuzhu University named Mr. Jai. Gao Peng asks who is Mr. Jai, the man pointed to the statue and said it was Mr. Jai's statue. The man explained Mr. Jai is the director of the Southern Sky Group, and the chairman's full name is Jai Huan, but the students call Jai Huan Mr. Jai, Mr. Jai is Yuzhu City's protector. Yuzhu City has been invaded quite a few times by dangerous monsters, but they were all pushed back by Jai Huan. Yuzhu City doesn't have a good geological position and they're surrounded by mountains, and ever since the cataclysm, there have been a lot of monsters. If it weren't for Jai Huan, they definitely wouldn't have been able to live as peacefully as they do now. Gao Peng thinks his grandfather really contributed a lot. Meanwhile, outside Yuzhu City, four people were walking in the forest, suddenly the captain stopped her team which made the man behind her shocked and asked what was wrong. Then the captain looks at his beast named Bei Bei who currently shaking in fear. The captain wonders why Bei Bei is acting a bit weird and she knows that there was only one time when Bei Bei acted like that before and that's when a Lord Tier monster had flown above their heads. Suddenly the forest shake uncontrollably which made the captain panic and wonder what's happening. 
On the other hand, Gao Peng was looking in his room window while saying numerous monster hunters had gone missing in the mountains northeast of Yuzhu City. Then Gao Peng saw white flying in the sky while wondering if the situation had become so severe that white dragon was needed to dispel the employee's anxiety. Level 5 martial law hasn't been imposed since Yuzhu City was established. Suddenly the house door opened, then Gao Peng ran down the stair to welcome his grandfather. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that Tang Tang Japalura was about to break through to Lord Tier, and he just went and helped her a bit. Jai Huan also said Thunder God is at the peak of the Commander Tier 2 and it should be able to break through to the Lord Tier this time. Then Jai Huan sits on the sofa while Gao Peng walks with a teapot in his hand. Gao Peng asks Jai Huan if the evolution is successful. Jai Huan responded that it was successful and the changes to the Shadow Japalura were quite significant that Gao Peng might not even be able to recognize it. Gao Peng poured his grandfather some tea while asking his grandfather what about martial law. Jai Huan responded that it was a new type of monster. Gao Peng worriedly asks if there are still monsters that haven't been discovered. Jai Huan responded yes and it isn't only them there in Yuzhu who are facing the problem. There are signs of change all over the world and there's something strange with the monsters. There are some scholars who think that the myths of the past are not entirely baseless and some are even starting to research the ancient myths. Then Jai Huan handed a picture to Gao Peng while saying they were calling the monster Mountain Spirit. A top monster trainer went and took a photo of the monster's body. Its body is a mountain, a living mountain, which made Gao Peng confused and asked what his grandfather talking about. Jai Huan held Gao Peng's shoulder and responded that Gao Peng heard him right, a living mountain, but fortunately the size of the mountain spirit that has been discovered isn't that big. The largest one is only 300 meters high and it's more like a big hill than an actual mountain. And perhaps because of its size, the monster moves very slowly, but the surface of the monster's body has a high lethality. Jai Huan also said they suspect that the missing monster hunters were killed when they accidentally entered the mountain while the monster there disguised as ordinary mountains. Jai Huan walked to the stair while telling Gao Peng not to worry because he'll protect Gao Peng even if the sky falls and those mountain spirits are intelligent, which means they can negotiate with them. But as last resort, simple explosives or carpet bombing would be able to blow up the monster mountains. Gao Peng just looks at his grandfather while thinking he's not like his grandfather because he's a selfish person and he doesn't want to sacrifice himself to save the world. Gao Peng also knows that he had never wanted his family to be so-called guardian angels, or heroes because being a hero is very dangerous. Jai Huan looked at Gao Peng to remind him that the Wanzai Moon Gold that Gao Peng asked him to keep an eye out for will be delivered in a few days. Gao Peng tells his grandfather not to worry about things and that he should go have some rest. Then Gao Peng looked at the umbrella that his grandfather used while thinking his grandfather gave him the Forbidden Magic Stone and the Wanzai Moon Gold for promoting Dummy to Legendary Grade was also acquired by his grandfather and he doesn't even have to do anything. Then Gao Peng goes outside and opens the umbrella while thinking he has really fallen, and before, he had to hide his power to protect himself. Then Gao Peng walked into the rain while thinking he had his grandfather now, but the worsening situation doesn't allow him to sit back and waste time anymore, so he decided that he had to produce more reagents. A few days later, at Yuzhu University, Gao Peng was sitting in the room while behind him his two classmates were talking. One man asked the other man named Bingli what were the effects of the bloody butcher drug he bought the other day and did his black raging Kong evolved. Gao Peng was walking to go out of the classroom while Bingli responded to the man that the drug was pretty good. His black raging Kong's fur has changed to blood red and its strength increased a great deal. The only downside is its temper became worse. The man laughed and said who knows when the next series of drugs will be released and things have been tense in current days. Also, everyone wants to become stronger. Gao Peng was walking in the school corridor while thinking the production of reagents is really fast. When he was outside the school building his cell phone rang and he saw that his grandfather sent him a message. Gao Peng opened the message and saw a picture. Gao Peng said the picture looks like the hill they passed by last time but he didn't see any stats of the mountain before and it's only been a few days. The mountain monster's name is Mountain Spirit. It was level 48 Lord Tier in a normal grade and its attributes are natural, earth, and rock. The mountain spirit skills is level 4 earth mastery and its state is slightly injured and angry. Also, the mountain spirit's weaknesses are 1. The mountain spirit's heart is the source of its life and 2. Moves very slowly. Gao Peng said a level 48 Lord Tier monster is a bit troublesome, and according to his grandfather, there isn't just one mountain spirit in Yuzhu City, not to mention the mountains around Yuzhu City are called the Hundred Thousand Mountains. Suddenly Gao Peng advice gadget rang, Gao Peng answer it, expecting his grandfather but the screen is just black and he wonder if isn't it a video call? Fortunately, Jai Huan appeared on the screen but the video is not clear. Jai Huan asked Gao Peng if he's still at school. 
Gao Peng responded his class just ended and is heading back now. Jai Huan tried to say something but it was not clear. Gao Peng asks his grandfather where he is because his grandfather's signal is very bad. Jai Huan said it's not surprising because he's at such a high altitude. Gao Peng asks Jai Huan what did he said because he didn't hear him clearly. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng to go home first and that he'll be back after his exercise. Then Jai Huan hang up and shouted to his old friend White that they should show the mountain spirit what they've got. On the other hand, the military saw a destroyed mountain spirit. Then the other military riding their bird type familiar said they arrived at their destination and everyone should descend. One military who currently standing on the mountain called his captain to tell that the mountain spirit core has been taken. The captain responded he heard him and they should continue taking samples and he'll report the situation to the headquarter. Meanwhile, the man was watching the soldier reporting that one hour ago, the mountain spirit number one was destroyed and had its core taken by Jai Hanwu. The man watching responded good work. Then the man shouted to tell his other comrade that it was definitely Jai Huan because he couldn't stand the attitude of the mountain spirit, so Jai Huan stepped up for them. Then the man said how laughable of them to ask them to stop killing monsters or else they'll get rid of the human, especially when the expert they sent out found countless monster corpses on their own bodies. The man also said if the mountain spirit remained stubborn, They'll continue to show them what they were capable of which made the other military courageous. The man shouted that Jai Huan gave the mountain spirits a clear indication of where the humans stood and they are willing to negotiate, but they will not yield. The man said that is their bottom line, and Jai Huan acted as the humans representative when he delivered his punch to the mountain spirits. Then the man orders his comrades to continue sending their people out there because they must show to the mountain spirits who are in charge there. Meanwhile, in Southern Sky No. 2 Open Air Test Site, the man tells Jai Huan that regarding to the mountain spirit Jai Huan defeated, the sampling works have been completed, and they will soon receive the results from the laboratory. The man also thanked Jai Huan because the military said they'd managed to establish a temporary peace treaty. Jai Huan stopped the man from talking and said once they gain consciousness and become sentient, they realize they possess great strength and they could easily destroy the lives of everything that lives near them and they think they're all powerful and that they're the lords of the mountains. Jai Huan also said that's why even though the mountain spirits possess intelligence, communication may not be possible. Only when the mountain spirits realize that their compatriots have fallen and that the mountain spirits are not invincible will they have room for negotiations. Then Jai Huan said when facing a monster, sometimes fists are more effective than words which made the man proud of Jai Huan. The man pointed to the bird and called Jai Huan to look while explaining that it was the Royal Mountain Wolf Bird Army they trained, and the Wolf Bird Army met their required standards. Then the man whistles to call the bird. The bird flies toward them while the man explains that it was the leader and its strength is much greater than the other Royal Mountain Wolf Birds. Also, it's able to augment the entire Royal Mountain Wolf Bird Army. Jai Huan ordered the man to test the Royal Mountain Wolf Bird's combat effectiveness which made the man follow. The man opens a cage while explaining that the strength of the Royal Mountain Wolf Bird birds is absolutely beyond imagination, and he said he really wants to meet the person who created the royal reagent. The boar come out of the cage while the man explained that it was a commander tier swine type monster. Under normal circumstances, mountain wolf birds would never attack a monster of that level unless they outnumbered it at a ratio of at least 10,000 to 1 or if the birds were starving. Then the leader of the Royal Mountain Wolf Birds screamed, which made the other Royal Mountain Wolf Birds fly toward the boar, then the birds attacked and bites the boar. The man excitedly said that isn't even the bird's limit and if the Royal Mountain Wolf Birds continue to take the royal reagents, the bird's strength will continue to advance further. The man also said the person who invented the royal reagent is a genius. Jai Huan responded that it was not bad and that they should keep up the good work. Jai Huan looks at the lake while proudly thinking that his grandson is a genius and he had already sent the materials over to Gao Peng. Jai Huan thinks Gao Peng should have started experimenting by now. On the other hand, Gao Peng was painting a circle on the ground, while confused dummy was inside of the hole in the center of the circle with some skeleton. Gao Peng said it's finally finished, but he thinks the setup is way too ominous. Then Gao Peng orders Silly who is currently afraid to hand him the box containing the Wanzai Moon Gold. Gao Peng grabbed the Wanzai Moon Gold while Silly was behind him shaking in fear. Gao Peng said as expected of super rare materials his whole body feels cool just by holding it. Then Gao Peng throws it to Dummy while ordering Dummy to swallow it. Dummy swallow the Wanzai Moon Gold, then Dummy release a strong blue aura which made Gao Peng blinded by the light and Silly shocked. Suddenly a white bone steel appeared at the place where Dummy was previously in. Then Gao Peng saw a shadow beside Silly who was currently collapsed in fear. Then he saw many shadows in the other part of the place too looking at the white bone steel. Then the shadows go to the steel and Gao Peng noticed that the spirits look like they were worshipping their king. Suddenly Dummy hand come out from inside the ground. 
Then Dummy showed itself while the data system said that Dummy Skeleton Tyrant Evolution was successful. Dummy's new monster's name is Skeleton Tyrant. It was level 30 in legendary grade and its monster skills are Bone Hardened level 2, and Control of the Undead level 1. Gao Peng thinks Dummy's level has gone up a lot along with the increase in grade and its level has increased by 4. Dummy's special characteristic is Blood Thread Heart. Effect 1, passive skill said uses a certain amount of blood threads to form a Blood Thread Heart. When possessing a Blood Thread Heart, the quality of all physical capabilities will be increased, and the passive effect is lost when the Blood Thread Heart is destroyed. Effect 2. Activating the Blood Thread Heart can trigger Heartbeat Resonance, which can be used to control the heartbeat of others in such a manner. Flame of the Undead. Effect 1. Active skill set inserting the Flame of the Undead into an intact corpse will resurrect it and transform it into a Bone-type Undead, with strength proportional to how powerful it was while alive. But the resurrected Undead cannot exceed the level of the Skeleton Tyrant. Effect 2. Undead resurrected by the flame of the undead can continue to grow, but cannot exceed the level of the skeleton tyrant and the skeleton tyrant can absorb the resurrected undead for its own growth. Also, dummy weakness is light type. While looking at dummy data Gao Peng thinks from the evolution pathway, dummy gained a new skill. Flame of the Undead seems to be a type of summoning ability except that it also has its limitations. A corpse is required or the ability will be useless, but the second skill effect being able to absorb the energy of the resurrected undead for its own use is indeed living up to the name of Tyrant. Daze asks Dummy why did Dummy become like that? Gao Peng happily looks at his beasts while thinking before evolving. Daze had to use all his strength for its mandibles to leave a mark on Dummy's bone and Gao Peng said he don't know if Dummy's defenses have improved after the evolution, so the best way to test it out is to try. Then Gao Peng orders Daze to give Dummy's thigh bone a good bite. Daze fearfully responded that there was no need for him to bite Dummy. But Gao Peng tells Daze that even though Daze and Dummy have become closer, Dummy's aura after its promotion still scares him. Daze shouted that he's not scared. Then Dazai bites Dummy Thigh, which made one of Dazai's teeth falls out. Gao Peng, Dummy, Silly, and Dazai look at Dazai's teeth on the ground in silence for a moment. Then Dazai cried and run while saying everyone has become stronger except him and he can't protect Gao Peng anymore. Dummy looks at Gao Peng and tells Gao Peng that he'll go after Dazai. Gao Peng said Epic Grade Stripey, Epic Grade Flamey, Legendary Grade Dummy, and Legendary Grade Goldie. Only Silly is still in the same grade as Dazai. But Dazai isn't like Silly who doesn't have the desire to become stronger and only cares about drinking juice every day. Gao Peng look at Dummy who currently comforting the crying Dazai and thinks it's too bad they don't have the materials to promote Dazai and Dazai just has to be patient. Then Gao Peng asks Dazai if Dazai is feeling insecure because all his friends have grown stronger. Then Gao Peng tells Dazai that whether Dazai is strong or not, he will always be his most important companion. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked to see that Dummy easily comforted Dazai using food. A moment later, Gao Peng pointed to the dead dog and asked Dummy to show his summoning skill. Then Dummy uses his summoning skill on the dog. Then Dummy successfully summoned the spirit of the dog, while Gao Peng thinks his grandfather says that the corpse is a wind-chasing wolf, but no matter how he looks at it, it looks like a husky. A few moments later, Jai Huan asks Gao Peng if Gao Peng wants to go out to look for materials for his little centipede. Gao Peng explained that Dazai is his first familiar, but because they haven't found any suitable materials, Dazai is the weakest, so he wants to try to promote it since he has some free time lately. Jai Huan thinks for a second and tells Gao Peng not to hang around in the forest for too long because the situation with the mountain spirits is currently stable, but monsters are known for going back on their words. Then Jai Huan grabs his cell phone and tells Gao Peng that Tang Tang is free nowadays, so he should let her join on his trip. Gao Peng tried to refuse, but his grandfather turned around and called Tang Tang, leaving Gao Peng to wonder why his grandfather always treated him like a kid. A moment later, Jai Huan, Gao Peng, and his beasts are looking at the sky. Then Jai Huan said she is there. Tang Tang Bird and Japalura landed on the ground. Japalura's new monster's name is Phantom Japalura. It was level 41 Lord Tier in excellent grade and its skill are Hardened Scales level 3 and Heightened Dynamic Vision Level 1. Japalura's special characteristic is Shadow Assassin. Passive Effect 1 said when it is still or moving slowly, it will blend in with its surroundings perfectly by matching both color and body temperature to its surroundings. Passive Effect 2 said its special skin allows it to absorb sound as well as vibrations, allowing it to move silently and remain almost undetectable. Gao Peng said Japalura is just like a giant dragon from Western mythology. On the other hand, Goldie was looking at Tang Tang Bird and amazed and said it's so cool. And they have the same aura. The bird looked at Goldie which made Goldie shocked and fear. 
Then it hides behind Flamey's back leaving its dress feather in its place. Gao Peng who witnessed Goldie's action laugh and thinks Tang Tang mentioned before that the blood eye bearded vulture had to rely on manic training in order to break through to Lord Tier and it became strong by testing its limits. But Goldie became strong by getting hit. Gao Peng also thinks he would have been surprised if the blood eye bearded didn't detest Goldie. Tang Tang greets Gao Peng long time no see. Gao Peng shyly said Tang Tang has become prettier. Suddenly she grabs Gao Peng collar and lifts Gao Peng up with one hand while telling Gao Peng that Jai Huan has already told her the details, so they should go. Then she throws Gao Peng to the blood eye bearded backs, then Japalera grabs confused dummy. Then they started to fly. Gao Peng shouted that he haven't gathered his other familiars. Tang Tang responded that they were not out to play house, and asked Gao Peng what the point of bringing so many familiars, and they'll be back in a jiffy. Jai Huan waved to Tang Tang and Gao Peng who currently flying and tells them to stay safe. A moment later, Tang Tang looked at the map on the phone while asking Gao Peng if they were in the first location. When Gao Peng didn't answer, she looked at shaking Gao Peng. Then Gao Peng responded that she was correct and Gao Peng said last time, he had to run around the jungle for a few days to finally reach his destination, but it only took her half an hour. Tang Tang walks toward the lake while asking Gao Peng if someone discovers lightning moths around the lake. Gao Peng responded that lightning moths like to live in damp and dark environments, and there has to be an abundant source of electricity close by. Then Gao Peng scratched his head, while wondering where should they start searching and he knew he should have brought Da Zai along because Da Zai is an electric type monster, so it'd be more sensitive to the presence of electric elements. Then Gao Peng look at Dummy, Dummy understands Gao Peng. Then Dummy used his summoning skill, then throws it into the lake. Many skeleton fish pop out which made Gao Peng shocked and tells Dummy that it was a mass resurrection. Dummy tells Gao Peng that the soul skeleton fishes can help him find whatever he's looking for. Gao Peng tells Dummy to order the soul fishes to pick up anything from the bottom of the lake that has a high concentration of spiritual energy since Silly's portable space is quite big. Tang Tang elbow Gao Peng while asking Gao Peng if his little skeleton can resurrect monsters. Gao Peng responded yes and said it was Dummy's new skill. Tang Tang said it was a pretty useful skill then she asked if Dummy isn't already on the close combat evolutionary path and why Dummy obtain a summoning type skill because it's not good to have such a jumbled skill set. Gao Peng responded that he hadn't thought about it back then since promoting a familiar to legendary grade is once in a lifetime opportunity and he wasn't in a position to be picky. Tang Tang tells Gao Peng that he had a good mentality and Gao Peng is right because reaching a legendary grade is more important. Only think about the less important things once he becomes stronger. As a legendary grade monster, dummy power also has to be legendary level. There are no limits to Dummy's Flame of the Undead skill, meaning it could even bring about a zombie apocalypse if it wanted to and just the skill itself proves that Dummy is indeed legendary grade. A few minutes later, the soul fishes are back handling different things. Gao Peng said the fishes are back but the fishes mostly brought back sundries. Then Gao Peng saw the two fish handling the item named Water Spirit Stone, Low Purity. The item description said a stone that contains high levels of water elements can easily form a vein in the ground and can easily absorb. Also, it has a wide variety of uses. Gao Peng thinks it seems like there's a vein of water spirit stone at the bottom of the lake, but the stone's low purity level suggests that the vein has formed only recently. Then Gao Peng tells Dummy that it looks like there's nothing else in the lake, so Dummy should let his little friends rest, but the discovery of the vein of the water spirit stone is indeed surprising. Then Dummy get his summoning skill back, which made Dummy level increase to level 31. Gao Peng was shocked to see Dummy increase to level 31, and wonder if absorbing the energy of resurrected skeletons is that effective. Suddenly the forest ground shake. Tang Tang said there was a mountain spirit nearby. Then she throws Gao Peng again to the back of the blood eye bearded. Then they fly away. While flying Gao Peng saw the mountain spirit behind them and said he didn't feel anything when the mountain spirit is dead. But he wonders why the mountain spirit looks so scary now that it has consciousness. Gao Peng also said he bet those with weaker hearts would have a nervous breakdown right away, though he too immediately ran away at the sight of the mountain spirits. The mountain spirit said humans, then Gao Peng tells Tang Tang that he thinks the mountain spirit is calling them. But she didn't hear Gao Peng and asked what did he say. Gao Peng pointed to the mountain spirit and said he thinks the mountain spirit said, it wants to bargain. Gao Peng thinks it was a pleasant surprise because no one knew they would receive information regarding the treasure from a mountain spirit. Lightning Bell Pine is an evolutionary path called the Six-Winged Thunder Centipede. After evolving, Da Zai would be able to fly, making Da Zai more agile. The mountain spirit tells them that he wants to bathe him in blood and he will tell them where the treasure lies. Gao Peng knows the mountain spirit was talking about its cavity, but there don't seem to be any powerful monsters there for a mountain spirit to be afraid of. Suddenly Gao Peng saw something inside the mountain. 
The monster named Armadrillo showed itself, it was level 32 commander tier in a normal grade and its attributes are earth and gold. The Armadrillo ability is earth walking level 2 and its weakness is fire. The mountain spirit said there are a lot of Armadrillo down there, which made Gao Peng wonder if the Armadrillos are the mountain spirit's weakness. Gao Peng said according to the legend Armadillos can travel freely beneath the earth and the Armadrillos that they have evolved must have a more powerful version of the ability. But for a gigantic lord tier mountain spirit to be weakened by commander tier Armadrillo, Gao Peng feels it too surreal. Gao Peng remembers his grandfather saying before that the mountain spirits rely on their special senses like some brain waves or something to scan their surrounding for living beings. So Gao Peng wonders would a mountain spirit really be afraid of a small armadrillo? Tang Tang orders her blood eye breaded bird to smoke the armadrillo out. Then the blood eye bearded ready its skill, then attack the armadrillo. Then the blood eye breaded launched down to where was the armadrillo, while Gao Peng was panicking and shouting to tell Tang Tang that he's still on the blood eye bearded back. The blood eye breaded grabbed the armadrillo, then drop it into the hand of the mountain spirit. The mountain spirit slowly closed its hand and crushed the armadrillo. Tang Tang tells the mountain spirit that she given the armadrillo to him, then she asked the mountain spirit if it can tell where they can find a lightning bell pine. But the mountain spirit responded that one armadrillo is not enough. Tang Tang tells the mountain spirit to tell her where the lightning bell pine is first and she'll help him catch more armadrillo. She also asks the mountain spirit what if he goes back on his word later. The mountain spirit responded that the lightning bell pine is in the east and he still needs four more armadrillos. Then Tang Tang said she hoped the mountain spirit is a good monster that keeps its promises. Then she ordered Blood Eye to continue attacking the armadrillos which made Gao Peng shocked. Then Blood Eyes fly toward the other armadrillos while Gao Peng restrains himself to vomit. The armadrillos use their skill to make a hole, then the armadrillos get into the hole which made Gao Peng shouted to tell Tang Tang that the armadrillos are going underground. Tang Tang tells Gao Peng to move aside, then Japalora drops dummy and silly to the sky while Tang Tang jumps toward Gao Peng which made Gao Peng shocked. Then she landed in the back of Blood Eye, while Dummy and Silly were caught by Blood Eye. Tang Tang ordered Japalura to attack which Japalura immediately followed. Then Japalura launched inside of the Mountain Spirit, then throw out the armadillos one by one. Gao Peng saw one armadillo had three heads and he thinks even a commander three-headed armadillo couldn't escape from a very brutal Japalura. Then Tang Tang asks the Mountain Spirit if it can tell them the complete location of the Lightning Bell Pine. The Mountain Spirit responded that the thing they were looking for is on a cliff five mountains away to the east. Tang Tang tells the Mountain Spirit that his better not be lying. Then she orders Japalura to go to the Lightning Bell Pine location and search for it. While the Mountain Spirits responded that the Mountain Spirits never lie, which made Gao Peng and Tang Tang laugh sarcastically. Ten minutes later, Gao Peng saw Japalura flying back to them and tells Tang Tang that Japalura is back. Japaler arrives while holding a tree of lighting bell pine. She looked at Gao Peng to ask if it was the materials he needed. Gao Peng responded yes, then Tang Tang, Gao Peng, and their familiar started to fly away, while she tells the mountain spirit that it was a pleasure doing business with it. While flying to go home, Tang Tang said the mountain spirit should be at least a lord tier, then she asked why would the mountain spirit crave the commander tier armadrillo's meat. Gao Peng responded he's not sure and that maybe there's something in the armadrillo's meat that helps the mountain spirits evolve, or maybe there's something that affects the mountain spirit buried in the ground where the armadrillo's live. On the surface, the mountain spirit wanted them to catch the armadrillos to satisfy its hunger, but perhaps the mountain spirit just wanted them to get rid of the armadrillos to whatever is buried in the ground all for itself. Tang Tang laugh and tells Gao Peng that they haven't met in so long and Gao Peng is already thinking like a wily old fox. Then she asks Gao Peng why don't they take the thing that the mountain spirit hiding for themselves. Gao Peng responded that it was all just a guess, beside, they got what they came for and they shouldn't be too greedy, but Gao Peng knows there was always a next time. A few moments later, in the industrial area outside Yuzhu City, the factory director named Zhao welcomed Gao Peng and Jai Huan to the factory. Then Zhao leads the way to where they process the monster bones. They arrived at the processing place place while Zhao explained that they don't normally throw away the bones and normally they either ground the bones into nutrient-rich bone powder or fed the bones directly to the familiars. Gao Peng look at the bone while thinking dummy requires skeletons that are over three quarters complete in order to bring the soul back to life, but most of the bones in the factory don't fit the criteria. Then Gao Peng asks Zhao if the bones Zhao have in the factory are always so crushed. Zhao responded in wonder if the bone there aren't whole to Gao Peng. Jai Huan seriously tells Zhao that from today onwards, he needs to try to maintain the integrity of the bones when processing them, to which Zhao immediately agrees. On the other hand, Gao Peng asks Dummy if it remembers the way there because, from tomorrow onwards, Dummy will go there and bring all of the skeletons in the facility back to life and absorb the flames of the undead from them. Gao Peng also said he taught Dummy a few times, so Dummy should already know the steps. 
To which Dummy responded yes. Jai Huan asks Gao Peng if Dummy can evolve just by absorbing the flames of the undead and if he is sure that he don't need him to help him search for other materials. Gao Peng thanked his grandfather and said he don't need any other materials and although the method is a little ethically questionable, as long as it works, then he has no qualms about using that method. Jai Huan held Gao Peng's shoulder and tells him that there was no need to be so polite with him and that now that dummy is settled, the ingredients for the little centipede's evolution will be arriving tomorrow, and he'll leave the rest to him. Gao Peng tells his grandfather to let him accompany him on a walk, to which Jai Huan said Gao Peng is so cheesy and he doesn't need that. Then Jai Huan asked Gao Peng what's the tree they brought back. Gao Peng responded that it was the lightning bell pine and its fruit can evolve Da Zai into a flying type familiar. Jai Huan said it was not bad, then Gao Peng tell his grandfather that he realized having a Lord Tier flying type familiar is incredibly convenient, and if he have one, or two of them it would be great. A day later, Gao Peng was walking to the backyard while holding a box and calling for Da Zai. Gao Peng tells Da Zai to come out because it's time for Da Zai evolution. Da Zai immediately pops out of the tree and asks if he hears evolution. Gao Peng showed the box to Da Zai and said the ingredients for its evolution have arrived. Then Gao Peng said they should go to the laboratory and Da Zai is happily following Gao Peng while singing and saying the word evolution continuously. They arrived at the laboratory. Gao Peng was looking at the golden winged cicadas while saying he'll first need to prepare a special solution using the golden winged cicadas, then he'll let Da Zai soak in it. Gao Peng also said he should have asked his grandfather for an assistant yesterday. Suddenly someone said hello behind him which made him shocked. The girl introduces herself as Zhu Kingjai and she said she's Gao Peng assistant. Gao Peng thinks the high hairline of King Jai looks familiar. Then Gao Peng asks King Jai what her relationship with Professor Zhu from the company's research facility. King Jai responded that Zhu is his uncle and although she hasn't graduated yet, she has been a member of the student council's monster breeder department since she enrolled, so he doesn't have to worry about her skills. Gao Peng said okay and tells King Jai to not just stand there and come to his place because he'll teach her how to handle the golden winged cicadas, to which King Jai immediately followed. When King Jai was near, Gao Peng hold one of the golden winged cicada and a knife on the table. Then Gao Peng showed and explained that first, King Jai need to pierce the head with a hammer, then use a knife. She has to be quick, steady, and precise when she pierces the golden winged cicada and importantly she shouldn't hesitate. Otherwise, it will struggle and damage its wings. Gao Peng also said when King Jai takes off the golden winged cicada wings, she shouldn't rush and it's okay to be a little slow because she needs to find the golden winged cicada joints and use the knife to gently detach it. Then Gao Peng showed the wing to King Jai while saying she can detach a complete wing that way and she should give it a try, while King Jai is clapping and Da Zai is secretly eating the gold winged cicada in the side. King Jai tries the process while Gao Peng is looking at her, he wonders if she's his researcher Zhu's niece, so that means King Jai's dad and uncle are both key executives of the Southern Sky Group. Gao Peng also thinks most of the things that happen in his laboratory are classified, so his grandfather surely sent over someone trustworthy. Then King Jai happily tells Gao Peng that she did it, to which Gao Peng thinks the more he sees, the more King Jai looks like a silly girl who just has a smart face, while Da Zai is secretly grabbing the golden winged cicada in the side. A few moments later, King Jai presents all the wings she detaches and tells Gao Peng that she's finished. Gao Peng seriously looked at the wings which made King Jai nervous, then Gao Peng said she was not bad and she passed, which made King Jai and Da Zai happy and high five. Then Gao Peng tells King Jai that since she's done, she can go now, which made King Jai confused and shocked. But Gao Peng just throws King Jai out of the laboratory. Then Gao Peng stretches his hand while saying he will begin. Gao Peng put the wings into the big tube with a green mixture and add the fruit of the lightning bell pine. Then the solution is ready. Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to jump in the solution. Da Zai immediately and excitedly jumps into the tube with a solution. On the other hand, outside the laboratory, King Jai was shocked to feel the laboratory shake and saw thunder inside the laboratory. Then King Jai angrily said she wished that Gao Peng who is a heartless and ungrateful bastard get struck by lightning. On the other hand, inside the laboratory, Gao Peng shouted that Da Zai evolution is a success while he was looking at Da Zai behind the fog. Da Zai's new monster name is a six-winged thunder centipede. It was level 28 in epic grade and its attribute is electric. Its ability is Thunder Mastery level 2 and its weakness said its heart lies in its 7th body segment, and hitting it there will render its whole body limp and numb. Dazai's special characteristic is Thunder Wings. Effect 1, passive effect said increases its flying speed and wingbeat frequency to the point that it can affect its enemy's senses by producing a thunderous noise with its wings. The effect of said noise is dependent on its wingbeat frequency. Effect 2, passive effect said the Thunder Wings effect will gradually strengthen all of the monster's wings. At first, it will only have one pair of thunder wings, but all its wings will be transformed into thunder wings later on and that process
Pegasus is irreversible. Thunder wings are sturdier and sharper than normal wings. Also, Daze's possible legendary evolution pathways are 1. Dragon Blood Evolution, 2. Strom Evolution, 3. Darkness Evolution, and 4. Ancestral Evolution. Gao Peng tells Daze that he looks good. Daze proudly responded that now his Gao Peng's strongest familiar. Then Gao Peng said Dummy should have arrived at the slaughterhouse by now and he wonder how it was going. Meanwhile, at the factory, Dummy summoning the soul of the undead, then many different souls of monsters pop out. On the other hand, in the surveillance room, Zhao turns off the computer and tells the man watching the CCTV to pretend that he didn't see anything today. Then Zhao orders the man to delete that footage, and from now on, he needs to turn off the cameras every time Dummy is inside the slaughterhouse, to which the man immediately agrees. On the other hand, Dummy raises his hand and absorbs all the souls of the monsters there, then Dummy smiled while his body absorbs the souls. After Dummy fully absorbed the souls he pressed the machine in the wall, then the factory worker tells his workmate to hurry and send down the next batch of the bones. His workmate tried to stop the man, but the man tells to not ask questions and just do what has been told. Meanwhile, in Yuzhu University, Gao Peng was walking outside the school building while thinking Da Zai's level is 28 now and Dummy has increased by two levels after coming back from the slaughterhouse. So Dummy is now level 33. At that rate, Dummy should be able to reach Lord Tier before the World Youth Trainer Championships. Suddenly someone called Gao Peng and asked if he had time. Gao Peng saw Jun Moi while wondering when did Moi get there because Moi scared him. Moi tells Gao Peng that the Students Association just discovered a new type of monster. Then she asks Gao Peng if he wants to come and take a look at it. Gao Peng responded that he's interested, then he asked Moi if it would be alright for non-members to come. Moi responded that the commission is from one of the seniors at their university, and the students association is just helping those seniors to find trainers who can help. Gao Peng said then it won't be a problem if he come. Then Gao Peng turned around to Moi and he tells Moi to lead the way. But Moi looked at him confused and pointed in the other direction, then said this is the way. A few minutes later, in a buffet restaurant near Yuzhu University, Gao Peng and Moi were looking at the one depressed man and the two other men talking at the table. Gao Peng whispered to ask Moi if the depressed man is the one who made the discovery, then Gao Peng said the man looks very haggard. Moi responded that she was also dragged there by someone else and she tells Gao Peng that they should hear what the man has to say first. The other man stand up and said the man's name is Senior Lai Yu who graduated from Yuzhu University. The man beside Lai Yu tells Lai Yu that everyone have arrived now, then the man asks Lai Yu to tell them the situation. Lai Yu said it's been a month now and is too afraid to go back home at night. Lai Yu said he hadn't paid attention to it when he first heard the weird bickering and Lai Yu said he was even interested to listen to it. The bickering continued for a few days until he finally remembered that he's living on the top floor and there was no one living above his floor. Lai Yu said he went to check with his earthen golden retriever and he could still hear the intense bickering from behind the door to the rooftop. But the moment he opened the door there was no one on the rooftop and the rooftop was quiet and empty. Lai Yu also said he couldn't see a single soul which made the other girls in fear. The man tells Lai Yu not to worry because there are many of them gathered there today and they even have familiars. So even if there's a ghost, they'll scare it off with their numbers. Lai Yu responded that it would be great. Gao Peng tells Goldie that at the first sight of trouble, Goldie should carry him out of the rooftop and run as fast as Goldie's legs can carry him. Goldie responded he can't carry Gao Peng because he is just a duck. Gao Peng look at Goldie while remembering that Goldie is the only duck he knows who can snap a tree in two with a single kick. The night come, Gao Peng and his other schoolmates arrived at Lai Yu building apartment. Lai Yu pointed to one room and tells to everyone that his house is in front. Gao Peng thinks he doesn't see anything out of ordinary and there's no black fog or mysterious sounds he'd imagined there'd be. Then Gao Peng look at Moi who currently petting her beasts. Then Gao Peng asks Moi where's her black anaconda. Moi responded that it's too big to bring around the city and Yuzhu's streets are a lot narrower than Chang'an's. Lai Yu waves his hand to Gao Peng and Moi to tell them to hurry up. A moment later, Lai Yu opened his apartment door and called his familiar name. The other students smell something inside Lai Yu room. Then Moi said it's the smell of a rooting corpse which made everyone shocked. Suddenly, Lai Yu shouted the name of his familiar loudly, then Lai Yu also shouted that it was his fault and he shouldn't have been left him at home alone. The man said if the monster killed a familiar, that means it was aggressive and not weak either. The other man asked if they should let the police handle the situation. The other man is also persistent to check it and said the monster probably isn't high level. Otherwise, the monsters wouldn't be lurking in the shadows like a coward. The man also asked the other man if he was scared of dying and said he had dealt with more dangerous monsters and the monster is nothing. Gao Peng just looked at his schoolmates and said his schoolmates are just a disappointment. Suddenly, the room light turned off and a few moments later, one of Gao Peng's schoolmates were running to get out of the room while begging to help him. 
Gao Peng asked the man what was going on inside the room. Suddenly Gao Peng saw a big hand reaching for his running schoolmate. Previously, suddenly, the room light turned off and a few moments later, one of Gao Peng's schoolmates were running to get out of the room while begging to help him. Gao Peng asked the man what was going on inside the room. Suddenly Gao Peng saw a big hand reaching for his running schoolmate. Gao Peng's schoolmates were shocked while Gao Peng was at the side of the door looking at the monster. The monster's name is a green haunt. Its attributes are ghost and ghoul. Its skill is illusion level 1 and its weaknesses are light, holy, and electric. The green haunt status is healthy but nervous and its special characteristics said it feeds off of fear, and it can convert the fear of other living being into yin type attacks. The man saw a white fog beside him and thinks a monster capable of altering its surrounding must be above commander tier, and they were no match for it. The man tells the other students to go and that he'll hold the monster off. Then he tells the other student to remember to call the police which made the other student touch while Gao Peng just looks at the man in disgust. The monster looks at them, then crawl toward the man who currently shaking in fear and wondering why the monster is growing bigger. The other students run while saying that they shouldn't let the man's sacrifice go to waste. Moi looks at Gao Peng who currently walking toward the monster and asks if Gao Peng isn't scared. Gao Peng responded why would he be scared if they were in ancient China and the monster named Green Haunt would have been dubbed a ghost. Moi hides behind the door while looking at Gao Peng. Gao Peng said in reality, the green haunt is just a monster, and if it's a monster, it has a weakness, and if it has a weakness, then it can be defeated. Then Gao Peng tells Goldie to attack, to which Goldie immediately followed. Goldie runs toward the screaming green haunt, while the man shouts to Goldie to stop because the monster is at least commander tier. Goldie kicks the green haunt and uses its forbidden domain skill, which made the illusion slowly fade. The man was shocked and asked where is the monster and where is the white fog. Then the man noticed the monster and pointed at it. The man shouted that another monster has appeared near the window. Then the man looks at Gao Peng in shock and asks Gao Peng what's going on. Gao Peng responded that there's nothing to be surprised about because it's an illusion and a good one at that. On the other hand, Goldie kicks the green haunt out off the window and said that his kick will teach the green haunt not to be arrogant. Gao Peng shouted to ask Goldie why did he kick the green haunt out the window, which made Goldie confused. Then Gao Peng looked out the window while thinking he wanted to take the green haunt home and raise it, and he said who knew Goldie kick would send out flying the green haunt and Gao Peng knows that it won't survive a fall from such a height. Suddenly Gao Peng and Goldie were shocked to see Moi beside them. Gao Peng wonder how Moi walk without making a sound. Moi order his beast to go out, which made Gao Peng ask Moi what was wrong. Moi tells Gao Peng to look below because someone was trying to take the monster's corpse. Gao Peng looked down and saw the man being trapped by Moi's beast, then Gao Peng said he can't believe someone wants the dead green haunt. Then Gao Peng turned around and started to walk away while saying if there was nothing else, then he'll be going now because he had already taken care of the monster, so he'll leave the task of comforting Lai Yu to the students' association. Moi asks Gao Peng if he isn't curious about the green haunt corpse. Gao Peng responded that someone called the police just now, so they'll be arriving soon and the the corpse will be taken away by the police for inspection anyway, so there's nothing to see even if he stay, and he better just heads back home. Gao Peng saw the man who tried to get the green haunt's corpse being held by the police. The man said he had got nothing to do with it and it was not his monster. He just saw a monster corpse on the ground and just thought he could earn a bit of money by selling it. Gao Peng thinks it's true that selling a monster's corpse can earn money, but Gao Peng wonders if the man's timing was too suspicious. Then Gao Peng waits at the gate of the building for his taxi, while thinking Goldie's forbidden domain is able to counter illusions, and together with Goldie's special characteristic of growing stronger with each hit, Goldie had a promising future. The taxi stop in front of Gao Peng which made Gao Peng wonder if that was his ride because it arrived way too quickly. Then Gao Peng enters the car and tells the driver to drop him in the Southern Sky group while Gao Peng wonders if there's an empty taxi nearby. While driving, the driver looks at Gao Peng, then Gao Peng tells the driver to pull over ahead because he needs to use the restroom. The driver tells Gao Peng to hold it in and he'll drive faster to reach the Southern Sky group in another 10 to 20 minutes. Gao Peng looked at the man and said their direction isn't the way to the Southern Sky group. Then Gao Peng ordered Goldie to beat the driver up which made the man shocked. The man tells Gao Peng to not be so hasty, but Goldie angrily hit the man's head while saying words. The man stops the car, then Gao Peng kicks the car door open to get down. Then Gao Peng walked toward the driver and tell the driver that he should have stopped when he told him to, then Gao Peng asked the driver who sent him. The driver got down of the car while raising his hands in the air and said that the situation is a misunderstanding and he don't have anything against Gao Peng. But Gao Peng hears the noise in the car trunk, then the car trunk opens showing the hand of the monster. Gao Peng asks the driver if the driver really doesn't have anything against him. Suddenly the monster appeared behind Gao Peng and tried to attack him. 
Then the monster hit Gao Peng in the back. Then the driver said Gao Peng only has himself to blame for not minding his own business. Gao Peng touched his head and said immunity to damage doesn't equal immunity to pain and the punch to his head still sting a bit. The driver was shocked to saw Gao Peng fine and said it doesn't make sense. Then Gao Peng looked at the monster named Frost Corpse Monkey who currently reaching at him slowly. It was level 20 in excellent raid and its attributes are yin and corpse which made Gao Peng think it was another corpse type. Just now it was a ghost type green haunt, and now it's a corpse type monster. Gao Peng thinks the monster must be there to avenge its death, but he didn't expect retribution to arrive that soon. Then the monkey tried to touch Gao Peng hot dog which made Gao Peng shocked and said the monkey is going too far. Suddenly Goldie jumped toward the monkey's hand. Then look at the monkey and said how dare the monkey touch the weird ducky. The driver was shocked to saw Goldie got bigger and asked why did the duck grow big all of a sudden. But Gao Peng just smiled while thinking what do barbarians like the man who only know how to swing their fists and Gao Peng knows his familiar's fight with tactics. Gao Peng also thinks that he had already tested Goldie when they first signed the blood contract. Transferring the damage he receives to Goldie can activate it passively and that endures his safety in case the enemy aims for him instead of his familiars and rapidly increases Goldie's combat power, thus killing two birds with one stone. Goldie throws his feather clothes, then attacks the monkey which made Gao Peng proud. On the other hand, the driver gets his stainless rod behind his car and tried to attack Gao Peng using it. Gao Peng remembers his grandfather telling him that since he already knows that monster trainers can receive a power bonus from their familiar. Jai Huan said he'll now teach Gao Peng a set of boxing techniques that can benefit both Gao Peng health and also train Gao Peng to effectively use the power he receives. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that the first step is to feel the power within his body with his mind. Then Gao Peng blocks the stainless rod the man holding while saying, then channel the power to his core and increase his strength. Start from below and gradually make his way up. Channel it up to his calf, thigh, crotch, and waist, back, shoulders, and neck, then arm until it reaches his fists. Then Gao Peng punched the man in the chin. The man collapsed on the ground while Gao Peng said the man overestimated himself. Then Gao Peng look at Goldie who currently eating the monkey, then orders Goldie not to eat the monkey. Then Goldie drops the monkey on the ground while stepping on it. Gao Peng look at his phone and said he don't know where the driver drove him, but he remember his grandfather telling him to contact one person if he ever needs some assistance. Gao Peng call the man, and the man answers immediately, then the man asks Gao Peng how may he help him. Gao Peng responded that he encountered some trouble, and that he don't know where he is right now, and that he should be somewhere near the old city area. Then Gao Peng asked the man if they can find him and send over some people who know how to fight. The man on the other line said Gao Peng location is being automatically transmitted to them the moment Gao Peng calls their number. Then the man asked if Gao Peng needs them to rush over to his current location immediately. Gao Peng responded that they were so advanced and he tells the man to come over and he'll wait for them. A few moments later, the helicopter arrives at Gao Peng location. Then Gao Peng waved his hand and said he was there. The man asks Gao Peng what are his orders. Gao Peng responded that they are even wearing the same uniform which makes them look like the bad guys instead. Then Gao Peng thanked the man for his hard work. Then he asked the man how should he address him. The man responded his name is Wang Ya. Wang Ya tells Gao Peng that all of them there are indebted to Jai Huan and now they handle Jai Huan less scrupulous affairs. Wang Ya also said if Gao Peng has any affairs that can't be brought to light they're the right people for the job. Gao Peng looked at the unconscious man on the ground and said after helping his friend with something. He got into a bit of trouble with a shady organization and the person laying on the ground is probably one of the shady organization's members. Huang Yi responded that he understand and tells Gao Peng to leave it to them. Then one man tells Gao Peng that the driver is probably a member of a Xiangxi based criminal group and there are seven core members in the group. Two commander tier familiars, a mid-stage commander tier night terror ghost, and an early stage commander tier ghost child respectively. Gao Peng started to walk away while thinking the criminal group was so weak and he thought he was being targeted by a huge shadowy organization with hundreds of members under its command, not some mere thugs. Then Gao Peng tells Huang Yu that he'll leave the rest to him. Huang Yu said the criminal group is just some street thugs, then he tells Gao Peng to rest easy. Then Huang Yu tells his team that their target is the Xingmao building in Yuzhis's old city area. Then Huang Yu and his team come back to the helicopter while Gao Peng tells them to capture the two commander tier familiars alive if possible, but their safety comes first. Meanwhile, in Yuzhu in an urban village, the woman in the bed asks the man beside her why isn't he sleeping. The man responded that there was something wrong because his brother C still hasn't contacted him yet and he can't reach C's number either. Then the man gets in under the bed while saying maybe they messed with the wrong people. Then he orders the woman to get dressed because they're leaving. Under the bed, the man was looking at the monster while saying he fell more at ease with the monster by his side. A few moments later, the man peeked into the door to check the outside. 
Then he tells the woman that the back is clear and they should go. Suddenly someone pointed a flashlight in front of them while asking them where are they two going at that time of the night, which made the man shocked and asked who is that. Wang order his team to subdue the targets using anesthesia bullets. Then they attack the man and the women, which made the man drops the jar he's holding. The jar opens and the monster pops out of it screaming and attacking the people around it. Wang Ye team said the Night of Terror Ghost has lost control. Wang Ye tells his team not to worry and be careful not to fall for the Night Terror Ghost's auditory hallucinations. Suddenly the horse jumps to the wall and attacks the Night Terror Ghost. Then the horse stepped on the Night Terror Ghost's body to avoid it escaping. Wang Ye looked at the Night Terror Ghost and said their mission is accomplished. A few hours later, Wang Ye meets Gao Peng, which made Gao Peng said it hasn't even been two hours, but Wang Ye succeed in the mission. Wang Ye responded that he's glad that they didn't disappoint Gao Peng. Then Wang Ye pointed to the horse and Night Terror Ghost, then asked Gao Peng to look at it. The horse monster's name is Red Blood War Horse. It was level 32 commander tier and its status is healthy but haughty. Its grade is excellent and its attribute is fire. The horse's ability is Sunfire level 2 and its description said it still retains the hardiness of the war horses it has evolved. The monster who is currently being stepped on by the horse is named Night Terror Ghost. It was level 27 commander tier and its status is heavy injury and angry. Its grade is excellent and its attributes are ghost and ghoul. Also, its ability is illusion level 2. Gao Peng thinks the horse should be Wang Yu familiar and what a coincidence for it to counter ghoul type monsters. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed something and saw the monster named Jai Spirit a ghost child, hiding behind the horse. It was level 23 commander tier and its status is healthy but scared. Its grade is normal and its attributes are ghost and ghoul. Its ability is illusion level 1 and its description said one of the 24 mythical spirits of old. Jai Spirit, a ghost child or wailing night spirit is often formed from babies who died prematurely. It is usually childish and timid in nature. Gao Peng think it was interesting and aside from the aquatic dragon, that is the first time he encountered a monster from an actual legend. Huang Ye asks Gao Peng if he is interested in the ghost child, which made Gao Peng wonder why Huang Ye called the Jai Spirit a ghost child. But then he remembers that what they call the monsters is different from the name recorded in the system. Then Gao Peng tells Wang to leave the Jai spirit to him for a while because he wants to study it. Then he thanked Wang Ye for his hard work and Gao Peng asked Wang Ye if he was free and would he like to visit his laboratory. Wang Ye responded yes, then looked at his horse tell to it that the company's recent hot selling reagents all come from Gao Peng's laboratory, and the only researcher in that laboratory is Gao Peng. Then Wang Ye told his horse that Gao Peng can help him evolve, so he shouldn't act naughty in front of Gao Peng later. The horse acts almighty and responded to his owner that a man must not be corrupted by riches nor swayed from his principles and not bend under pressure. Wang Ye realizes that he shouldn't have shown Lu Bu's biography to his horse because it's acting almighty, and it thinks of itself as some sort of pure blood. Then Gao Peng showed a tube to the horse and asked it if it want to eat it. The horse responded that he will not be swayed, but before it can finish its words. Gao Peng opens the lid of the tube, and its fragrance spread into the air. Then Gao Peng asks the horse again if it wants to eat it now. The horse smelled the mixture and looked at it excitedly. Then the horse bends its four feet, wags its tail, and said he want to eat it, which made Huang Ye embarrassed. A moment later, while the horse and Huang Ye walking away, the horse said he can fight for 300 rounds. Huang Ye responded that he know that his horse is very excited after its evolution, and that once they get back, he'll feed it more. Gao Peng just looked at the horse and Huang Yi and said that Huang Yi and the horse have a good relationship. Suddenly, Jai Huan coughs to get Gao Peng's attention. Then Gao Peng immediately turn around and greet his grandfather. Gao Peng said he thought Jai Huan is going to be stuck in a meeting until 12 again, but Jai Huan come back early. Jai Huan changes the topic and asks Gao Peng how's the progress of his familiars. Gao Peng pointed to his beast and said his grandfather is just in time because his familiars are in training right now. Gao Peng said Da Zai and Stripey are both epic grade and around level 30. The one is more offensive and has the ability to fly, and the other is more defensive and can control the battlefield with its spider webs. As for the others, Goldie kicked Dummy, which made Dummy push back away. Dummy said Goldie's attack is not bad, then Dummy made a sword then chased Goldie using it, while Goldie ran and asked Dummy when did Dummy learn how to conjure weapons. Then Goldie called Dummy a cheater. Gao Peng tells Jai Huan that after being in the slaughterhouse for three weeks, Dummy's level is currently 39 and it's only two levels away from being promoted to the Lord tier. 
Goldie also reached the Commander tier two weeks ago and had downgraded from Legendary Grade to Epic Grade, but Goldie was able to reach Legendary Grade again a few days ago. Dummy and Goldie are the best sparring partners for each other. Jai Huan remind Gao Peng that there's one more week before the World Youth Trainer Championship and for him to be a referee at his current level is a bit iffy. Then Jai Huan tell Gao Peng that if you want to convince the public and silence all criticism, he need to have a Lord Tier familiar before entering the competition. Gao Peng responded that at that rate, Dummy should reach level 40 by the time it enters the competition. But Gao Peng thinks getting to the Lord Tier is a little bit hard. Jai Huan just walk away while saying good luck to Gao Peng. Then Jai Huan also said White is preparing for its breakthrough tonight. Gao Peng got excited and said it was so sudden, but Gao Peng said if White evolves, it will be promoted to the legendary King Tier Familiar, which is the highest monster tier that human have made contact with. Then Gao Peng excitedly tell Jai Huan that he'll help him to guard White tonight. But Jai Huan just laughs and said in Gao Peng's level, he should just sleep. A few hours later, at Villa's lakeside, the lake water splashes strongly. On the other hand, Gao Peng was on the balcony looking at the lake in the fog and said it looked like the evolution has started. Then he said he can't sleep because it was the king tier they talking about. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed that white level is level 51, which made Gao Peng wonder white is already level 51 and if his grandfather didn't say the breakthrough is tonight. Gao Peng also wonders why white is howling when it has already made a breakthrough, and if something happens or does his grandfather have some sort of plan. Then Gao Peng realizes that is the reason why his grandfather told him to stay out of it. Meanwhile, at the military office, one military reported that Jai Hanwu's aquatic dragon is breaking through to a higher tier, which made one of the military officers shout that Jai Huan dragon should be around the highest level of the Lord tier, and if it breaks through it will reach the King tier. One other military officer said the Lord tier aquatic dragon that's at its peak is why Jai Huan has the influence he has now and that's why the Southern Sky group is able to act so independently. Then the man said be it the military or them, they were all forced to give in to Jai Huan demands. And now that Jai Huan dragon is going through another breakthrough. The other military man said his co-officer is being too unreasonable because Jai Huan is one of them. Then the man beside him said, Jai Huan is actually not bad, and at least doesn't throw his weight around. Besides, Jai Huan is quite respectful of the military. The other officer responded that's only because they don't know what kind of person Jai Huan is and it isn't that Jai Huan doesn't respect the military, but because Jai Huan is smart. Then the man also said if they knew what Jai Huan did in the past, they would know Jai Huan isn't a benevolent person. Then the other military said to who's siding with Jai Huan that if they want to be a guard dog of a businessman, they should do it themselves. Then the military who sided with Jai Huan and the military who don't like Jai Huan started to fight, while their senior official was just in the middle of the table silently thinking. Then one of the military break the fight and ask if they're going to make their move or not. One military official angrily stands up and asks his fighting comrades what the hell they're thinking. Then he reminds his comrades that they haven't even finished dealing with the monsters outside, and now they want to start a fight among themselves. The man also said if they want to argue, they should argue among themselves. Then the man left. This made the other military say the man named Long Zing left first again. And they said Long Zing always had an attitude problem just because he has a strong familiar. The senior official angrily told the military officials that their fight is enough because the decision has been made and everyone need to follow the orders and not interfere, or they will be court-martialed. Then the senior official started to walk away. Suddenly one military called the senior official which made the senior official look at the military man. The man said he agreed that they were not in a position to act, but then the man asked if they can't find someone else to take action for them. The man also said they can leak the information and there are definitely people out there who don't want Jai Huan's familiar to break through. The senior official responded that it was enough and order the military man to go back and stop thinking about leaking Jai Huan's familiar information because there was no one in Yuzhu City who would dare touch Jai Huan. The military man just smiles and thinks he doesn't think so. Meanwhile, at Jai Huan Lake, the tiger monster was in the hills while looking at White screaming below, while thinking that the human didn't lie to him, and there really is an aquatic dragon that was about to break through. The tiger also thinks monsters with dragon blood are a great dietary supplement for him. But the tiger is hesitant if it is a trap and if he should risks going to it. Then the tiger jumps down the hills and runs toward White while thinking listening to White roar. He knows that White is definitely still in the middle of breaking through and he can't miss the opportunity. When the tiger landed on the grass he wonder where is the dragon. Suddenly White stabs the tiger in the back, then White bites the tiger in half with one bite. 
The next morning, Jai Hyun was at his office looking out of his window when Sayo Zhu called him on the digital device. Jai Hyun responded that he was done in his office. Then he asked Sayo Zhu how's it going over in Sayo Zhu's current location. Sayo Zhu responded that the security department has found a few other spies in the company even though they purged them once in the past. Then Zhao Zhu said they'll use the opportunity to properly do another cleanup and as expected, the moment Jai Hyun show a hint of weakness, the rats will waste no time scurrying out of their hiding place. Jai Hyun orders Zhao Zhu to clean the rats out, to which Zhao Zhu immediately follow. On the other hand, in the company's technology department, Zhao Zhu arrived, the security man said the door is locked. Zhao Zhu orders his beast to go, then his beast kicks the door which made the door destroyed. When the door opened, a monster showed which made Zio Zhu say hiding a familiar behind the door is a cheap trick. Zio Zhu familiar punched the monster which made the monster die. Then Zio Zhu ordered the security to bring a few men inside and check the place thoroughly. Then he ordered one of the securities named Zio Lai to inform Team 2 to guard the exits which the securities followed. The security immediately searched the room and reported to Zio Zhu that a lot of documents are missing and the files in the computer have been deleted. Zio Zhu called his beast named Oriate and order it to find their department head, Zhao. Oriate close its eyes to concentrate, then it open its eyes and run and jump to the window which made the girl employee shocked. On the other hand, Zhao was in the parking lot walking to his car cursing. Then Zhao goes inside his car while saying that the stupid tiger failed and the tiger also wasn't willing to sign the blood contract with him. Yet the tiger kept taking the benefits without giving anything back to him. Zhao also said who knew that old fart Jai Han who still had a trick up his sleeve and Jai Hu an aquatic dragon probably evolved a long time ago, and it was all an act. Zhao angrily said it was okay because the documents he possesses have a lot of information about the Southern Sky Group's internal matters and if he can bring it to the Sky River Group. The Sky River Group have to at least give him the deputy director position. But Zhao thinks it's a pity that even as head of the technology department, he unable to access information about the Southern Sky Group's technology because Jai Huwen doesn't trust anyone. Then Zhao started his car and drive faster which made the parking barrier break. Suddenly Oriate appeared in front of Zhao car which made Zhao shocked. Then Oriate lifts Zhao car, then throw it aside. Oriate angrily looks at Zhao inside his car. On the other hand, at Jai Huwen's office, Gao Peng gives the documents to Jai Huwen and tells him that he had a new inspiration when he was helping Huang Ye to promote his familiar. And in the paper is the data of the new type of reagent that can increase a horse type familiar's endurance and strength. Jai Huwen smiled and tells Gao Peng that his idea is not bad. Suddenly Zio Zhu arrived at Jai Huwen's office which made King Jai who was with Gao Peng ask her dad why he is there. Jai Huwen walked towards Zio Zhu and patted his back. Then Jai Huwen said he told Zio Zhu to come there. Then Jai Huwen tells Gao Peng that Zio Zhu is Zhu's son and he is his right hand man. Then Jai Huwen tells Gao Peng that he can call Zio Zhu's uncle Zhu. Gao Peng greeted Zio Zhu. Then Zio Zhu said Gao Peng is a genius who even his dad can't stop praising, and he can't have someone like Gao Peng call him an uncle. Gao Peng thinks he has long heard about the head of the Southern Sky Group's security department. Big name but he hasn't seen him in person before. Also, Gao Peng thinks old Zhu and Zhu Qingjai both look polite while department head Zio Zhu doesn't look like them. Then Oriate throws Zhao into the ground while looking at Oriate he thinks that compared to Zio Zhu, his familiar is more interesting. Oriate Monster's name is Golden Dazzling Light Boxing Champion Kangaroo. It was level 40 in perfect grade and its skill is Extraordinary Sixth Sense level 2. Its monster attribute is light and its monster state is healthy and active. Oriate Monster Introduction said a kangaroo who loves kickboxing and muscle training and it has become very strong because of its long-term training and a diet high in nutrition. Also, it gained its Extraordinary Sixth Sense ability through a mixture of natural-born talent and hard training. Gao Peng thinks it was his first time to see a skill like an extraordinary sixth sense and he thinks it was a greatly enhanced sixth sense because the creature's visual senses are senses of hearing, sense of smell, sense of touch, sense of taste, and the sixth sense is the sense of danger. Gao Peng knows that for most monsters, the extraordinary sixth sense is useless, but for monsters such as the golden dazzling light boxing champion kangaroo that do close combat, the skill gives the kangaroo a huge advantage. Oriate smiled at Gao Peng which made him think the longer a monster's name is the cooler it is. On the other hand, Jai Huan was looking at Zhao and said he was the one who helped Zhao pay off his father's 3 million yuan gambling debt 
and Jai Huan said all these years, he have trained Zhao as one of his trusted aides. Zhao shakingly responds that Jai Huan has treated him well. Jai Huan said it was understandable if Zhao wanted to leave. Then Jai Huan tells Zhao that he could have gone anywhere he wanted and he wouldn't have bothered him. But Zhao shouldn't have taken the documents and attempted to find a better future at their rival group. Zhao shakily bowed his head and begged Jai Huan to give him another chance. Jai Huan angrily called Gao Peng's name. Then Jai Huan looked at Gao Peng and asked if it was him. How would he handle the situation? Gao Peng responded that he'd make an example out of Zhao. Jai Huan said Gao Peng thinking is good because if they were living in a peaceful era, they would obviously let the law take its course, but they're living in a new world now. Then Jai Huan tells Zio Zhu to make sure there are no loose ends and if anyone asks, tell them it was an experiment that went wrong and that Zhao, unfortunately, died at his post. Then he orders Zio Zhu to increase the compensation to the Zhao family by two levels. Zio Zhu immediately agrees and drags Zhao who currently begging for his life to Jai Huan and Gao Peng and saying that he was wrong and he worked for many years with the Southern Sky Group and he has sacrificed his blood, sweat, and tears. A night comes, at Jai Huan's villa lakeside, white is happily wagging its tail, on the other hand, at the balcony. Jai Huan asks Gao Peng if he's still thinking about what happened earlier. Gao Peng responded that he was just thinking about what other people would think if they had forgiven someone who betrayed the company, and leak the company's internal matter to their rival. Gao Peng look at the lake and ask if the people would think to try betraying the company too since they could just ask for forgiveness if they were caught. Then Gao Peng said they can't set a bad precedent. Jai Huan responded that originally he wouldn't have wanted Gao Peng involved in those shady things, but as his grandson, Gao Peng can't be raised as a sheltered flower. Gao Peng tells his grandfather not to worry because he understands. Suddenly, White threw something using its tail on the balcony to Gao Peng and Jai Huan's side, which made Gao Peng and Jai Huan confused. They look at the hole and saw Stripey Dizzy. Jai Huan and Gao Peng look at Happy White. Then Jai Huan said White has been very playful these few days. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he'll ask White to catch a few high-level monsters for dummy leveling. Gao Peng responded that he'll be counting on his grandfather White Dragon because dummy just needs a bit more to be promoted. A few days later, in the Imperial Airport, the boy tells Moi to give her best at the youth championship and that she should show the other contestant the strength of Yuzhu University. The other man happily said Moi will definitely be in the top three, and the lady also said good luck to Moi. Suddenly, the girl noticed Gao Peng. This made the girl ask why Gao Peng was at the airport and if Gao Peng didn't already withdraw from the Youth Monster Trainer Championship. The man said maybe Gao Peng regrets it and wants to go watch the match live. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks his grandfather said someone from the capital would be there to pick him up. The boy said if Gao Peng also took part in the World Youth Monster Trainer Championship, there would have been three contestants from their university. The other man said he remember there are three contestants from Imperial University, and that three contestants were so proud of themselves and always claimed that they'll win the gold, silver, and bronze on the university forums. Suddenly the girl tells his schoolmates to look at the convoy of tending Feng trucks, then the girls ask if it could be that some big shot from the other base cities has come to the capital. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks it is so high profile when they are just there to pick someone up and they must be scared that people don't know they're rich. But the man smiled at Gao Peng which made Gao Peng wonder why he have a bad feeling about the situation. The man bowed to Gao Peng and asked him to get in the car. Gao Peng responded that he need to get his familiars first. But the man tells Gao Peng not to worry because they'd already sent someone to pick up his familiars and his familiars are in another vehicle. The man also said they can depart once Gao Peng confirms it, which made Gao Peng wonder if he didn't tell his grandfather that he wanted to keep a low profile. On the other hand, the boy wonders if Gao Peng had such a rich background, then the other man wonders if the special ride is there to pick up Gao Peng. Also, the man also asked if Gao Peng background didn't say his parents passed away a long time ago. A few moments later, Gao Peng goes into the room and greets Zhu. Zhu Tianmen, one of the 12 elders of the Monster Trainer League and former chairman of the Nine Mountain Group. Zhu said Gao Peng is young and promising, then he asked Gao Peng if he is was around the same age as the contestants. Gao Peng responded that he's not just around the same age, he was also a contestant who withdrew. Zhu said regarding the issue of letting Gao Peng be a referee, Jai Huan and he both approve. But old Ping Zhang doesn't agree because Ping Zhang doesn't trust someone as young as Gao Peng and he wants a referee who's more steady and calm. Gao Peng asks if Ping Zhang is one of the 12 elders. Zhu responded that Gao Peng was right and Zhu explained that originally Gao Peng didn't have to take a test. Zhu said he took Jai Huan words and he wanted to forego it. But there are some people who are making an issue out of it, so Zhu said he have to trouble Gao Peng to come with him to take the test that will shut those people up. To which Gao Peng confidently agrees. A few moments later, Gao Peng with dummy and Zhu arrived at the training room. 
The girl walked toward them and called Zhu's grandfather and asked Zhu what bring him there. Zhu introduced Gao Peng to his granddaughter named Zhu Meng Meng. Zhu also said that Meng Meng is in third year at the Imperial's University, and she is two years ahead of Gao Peng. Gao Peng happily greets her, while Zhu tells Meng Meng that she needs to call Gao Peng a little brother because Gao Peng is Jai Huan's grandson. Meng Meng asks Zhu if he's talking about Jai Huan from Yuzhu. Zhu said she is right and he tells Meng Meng not to look down on Gao Peng even though he is two years behind her and the reason Gao Peng came to the capital is to take part in the Youth Trainer Championships as a referee. Which made Meng Meng shocked and said Gao Peng is so young for being a referee to the Youth Trainer Championships. But Zhu just walked past them and said it is precisely because Gao Peng is young, so those old geezers want them to test Gao Peng. Then Zhu called Gao Peng to follow him into the testing room. Zhu said he remembered Jai Huan said Gao Peng have six familiars at a young age, and possessing three commander tier monsters is already considered a rare genius, so if Gao Peng has two commander tier familiars and he slightly tweaks the results, Gao Peng tells Zhu that if that case, there was no need for the test. Then Gao Peng called Dummy. Then Dummy walks closer to Gao Peng. Then Gao Peng asks Dummy to give Zhu a demonstration. Dummy grabs his coat and throws it away, which made Zhu shocked to see Dummy's monster name is a skeleton tyrant in level 41 Lord tier, and its grade is epic. Its skills are Bone Hardens level 3 and Control of the Undead level 2. Also, Dummy's special characteristics are Blood Thread Heart and Flame of the Undead and its weakness is Light Type. Zhu shouted that Gao Peng's familiar is a Lord Halo that Ghoul Type familiar. Gao Peng shyly said he was just lucky and it was all thanks to his grandfather. Meng Meng thinks his strongest familiar is only a late stage commander tier after more than three years of training and she thinks a Lord tier is already enough to defend a few small base cities. Zhu laughed and said Gao Peng hit his familiar quite well, and he said he can't wait to see the other elders' faces. Zhu also said it'll be quite a show. A moment later, at the World Youth Monster Trainer Championship Live. The reporter named Han Yunjang from Southwest TV, reporting live from the World Youth Monster Trainer Championship and she said there's an hour until the championship begins, but the atmosphere is already very lively. A half hour later, a girl reporting from Magic TV pointed to Moi on the screen and said there was only half an hour until the championship begins and contestants are starting to enter the arena. After waiting, 8 o'clock arrives. The host welcomes the audience to their first ever World Youth Monster Trainer Championship and the very first friendly exchange between the new generation of monster trainers. The host said she believes the audience is very excited, so she'll explain the rules of the tournament. The host said there are a total of 64 contestants and only 32 of the contestants will go on to the second round, and only 16 will go on in a similar fashion until they determine who's the strongest monster trainer. On the other hand, in the arena waiting area, the main contestant said the tournament is about to start, then he asks the other contestants if they were nervous, but the other contestants just ignore him. The man angrily thinks the other contestants ignoring him because his dad pulled a couple of strings to get him onto the team. Then he decided to show the other contestants that he made it onto the team because of his sheer talent. Then the man confidently thinks that he can win because he didn't just goof around during those three months. The angry man named Henley thinks is not weaker than anyone and he's not Gao Peng's replacement. On the other hand, the host showed Han Lei and the other man's faces on the screen while explaining that the picture on the screen draw lots of determine their opponents and for the first round, they have Han Lei of the Huexia region against Lucas of the Great Britain region. Then the host called Han Lei to the rung which made Han Lei proud of himself because so many people are watching him. Then the host called Lucas into the ring which made the audience cheer, which made Han Lei angry and thinks Lucas is only a tad better looking than him. Then the host called the youngest of their three referees, which made Han Lei shocked and asked how can it be Gao Peng. Then Gao Peng showed himself. The audience and the contestants were shocked to saw Gao Peng as a referee. The other audience whispered that Gao Peng is too young to be a referee, and they believe it even though they said Gao Peng is a contestant. Also, Gao Peng's schoolmates from Yuzhu University were shocked and said people can have the same name but not the same looks. Meanwhile, in the Chang'an city at Han family's estate, Han was watching the television and wondered if Gao Peng didn't accept his money to withdraw from the tournament. Han also said apart from talent, one's background is much more important to become a referee, and he wonder if his background check on Gao Peng is wrong, and he was sure Gao Peng is sly at the same time he wonder what if Gao Peng trips Han Lei up. Then Han clicks the phone in his chair and orders someone from another line to put him through to Director Chen of the Monster Trainer League. Director Chen accepts Han call, then Han asks Chen if he can help him contact Gao Peng. Chen responded that Gao Peng is currently busy refereeing in the tournament and Chen said if Han want to talk to Gao Peng he can call him after a match and if Han had nothing else to say he'll be hanging up. Then Chen hang up which made Han angrily called Gao Peng's name. Meanwhile, in the arena, Gao Peng made everyone silent and said he was indeed one of the referees of the tournament, and he's only 18 years old. 
The audiences were shocked and shouted that the minimum age requirement to sign a blood contract is 18 years old. Then they asked Gao Peng angrily if he did become a referee right after signing with a familiar. The other audience also angrily asked how can a pipsqueak like Gao Peng be a referee, then they called the situation a setup. But Gao Peng calmly flipped his hand and called Dummy. Dummy jumped behind Gao Peng. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to show his skill to the audience. But Gao Peng also tells Dummy to remember to limit his range and don't accidentally injure anyone. Dummy used his summoning skill which made everyone shocked including Han Lei and his beast on the side. Then Gao Peng asks the audience if they still have questions about his qualification. One of the audience said that Gao Peng is so scary because he is only 18 years old but he had a Lord Tier familiar. He also wonders if Gao Peng is cheating. The man beside him said no wonder they invited Gao Peng to be a referee. Otherwise, the other contestants wouldn't have stood a chance and he thinks the organizer is wise. The man tells his friend that just earlier he just accused Gao Peng of being a setup but now he's taking his words back. On the other hand, Gao Peng explained the rules and said stepping out of field bounds is forbidden and there are no restrictions on the battle techniques they can use. However, directly attacking their opponent is forbidden. Then Gao Peng also said the match is over when one of the contestants admits defeat or when one of their familiars is unable to continue fighting. Then Gao Peng asks the contestants to move to the command area. Then Gao Peng signed to start the match while saying the first match of the tournament begin. Han Lei Beast immediately ran toward Luka's Beast which made Gao Peng think the victor is basically determined and that is kind of boring. Gao Peng also thinks it was a pity that he can't place bets as a referee. Han Lei Beast monster named is Skeletal Rhinoceros. It was level 27 in excellent grade and its attributes are ghoul and bone. Its status is healthy and currently competitive and its weakness is holy. Skeletal attacked Lucas's beast named Swamp Monster. It was level 26 in excellent grade and its attributes are earth and mud. Its status is healthy and currently afraid and its weaknesses are 1, wood, and 2, water. Gao Peng thinks although the Skeletal Rhinoceros is at a higher level and its condition is better than the Swamp Monster, the Rhinoceros is actually at a big disadvantage. The Swamp Monster skill ooze level 2 and as long as its body isn't completely separated, it will be immune to physical damage. The Rhinoceros was confused why his feet were being trapped by the Swamp. Gao Peng knows that despite being a ghoul type, the Rhinoceros hasn't awakened any ghoul type spells yet, and it can only rely on its strong skeletal structure to fight while being countered by the enemy's attribute. Hanlei angrily realized that the information he received stating that Lucas's familiar was a silver-backed gorilla is fake, and he wonder where the swamp monster come from. Then Hanlei called his beast idiot and order it to move on already. The rhinoceros jumped and broke free from the swamp monster, but the audience saw the swamp monster is catching up to the rhinoceros again. Gao Peng asks Dummy if it were Dummy was fighting the swamp monster, what would Dummy do? Dummy responded that he will chop it up the swamp monster. The rhinoceros was currently mildly injured because it was attacked by the swamp monster, which made Gao Peng walk toward Han Lei while thinking Han Lei is about to be eliminated and it was a shame. Then Gao Peng asks Han Lei if Han Lei want to admit his defeat. Gao Peng also tells Han Lei that his performance had actually been quite good. It's just that Han Lei was a bit unlucky and Gao Peng said he hoped that Han Lei won't be disheartened by today's defeat. Han Lei shouted that he will not admit defeat because he haven't lost yet. Then he asked Gao Peng if he was jealous that he can compete but Gao Peng can't. Then Han Lei also said that why Gao Peng pulling those tricks on him. Gao Peng calmly responded that he's acting as a referee now and he tells Han Lei that risking damaging his reputation just to get back at him is only an idiot would do. Gao Peng also tells Han Lei that he's only giving him a reminder out of goodwill, and it's better to be a coward for a minute than dead for the rest of his life. Gao Peng explained that the swamp monster is corroding his familiar and defeat is just a matter of time. Also, if Han Lei admit his defeat now, Han Lei can still save his familiar, but if he chooses to keep going, then Gao Peng pointed to the rhinoceros who was heavily injured. But Han Lei just pushed Gao Peng aside and ordered his rhinoceros to get up, which made Gao Peng wonder if Han Lei still did not want to give up. The rhinoceros heard Han Lei and broke free from the swamp. Then the rhinoceros in pain looked at Han Lei and said he got up. Han Lei angrily shouted to his rhinoceros what is it standing there for. Then Han Lei ordered it to hurry up and kill the swamp monster because they must win. But the rhinoceros shakily looked at his master in pain. Still, Han Lei don't care and shouted to the rhinoceros to stop whining and orders it to hurry up and attack. Gao Peng thinks the rhinoceros is not bad because it has a strong will, but it was unlucky to have met such a master like Han Lei. 
The rhinoceros used its last energy and attacked the swamp monster. This made Gao Peng shocked because the fortified fiberglass protective screen, which could withstand even a commander tier monster's attack has been punctured by the rhinoceros. But the rhinoceros condition said it's on the verge of death and needs to provide treatment as soon as possible. Gao Peng realizes the rhinoceros last attack is last burst of strength. Then Gao Peng announced that contestant Han's familiar has fallen to the ground for more than 30 seconds, so the winner is contestant Lucas. The rhinoceros called Han Lai, but Han Lai just walks past at it and called it useless. Han Lai also said to his beast that he doesn't care if it died because his father will just finds him another stronger familiar which made the rhinoceros cry in pain. Gao Peng shakes hands with Lucas and congratulates Lucas. While Lucas asks if the rhinoceros is okay and if Han Lei does not have any morals because he just ignores his own familiar, Gao Peng tells Lucas not to worry because they'll take care of the rest. Then Gao Peng walked toward the rhinoceros and tell it that he was a good familiar, and his master doesn't deserve him. Then Gao Peng angrily looks at the rhinoceros. Meanwhile, on Union News said, a referee has become the hottest topic of the tournament, and the referee's name is Gao Peng who was Huexia Region's 11 contestant who withdrew from the tournament. Also, Gao Peng is only an 18-year-old referee with a Lord Tier familiar. Meanwhile, in the World Youth Monster Trainer Championship Arena, the host said she believed the audiences are tired after watching a whole morning's worth of matches, but she asked the audiences to be patient because next was the 32nd match of the first round and it was also the last match of the first elimination round. Then the host called the Huexia Region's champion contestant named Yuji with his familiar name the Black Scaled Tiger. It was level 32 in perfect grade and its attribute is dark. Its abilities are Hardened Scales Level 1 and Darkness Mastery Level 1. The Tiger's special characteristic is Eye of Darkness. Passive Effect 1 said the Black Scaled Tiger can see perfectly in the dark, and not only are spirits visible to it, but it also has a high affinity for the darkness element. Active Effect 2 said looking at its target can make its target fall into a state of darkness subjecting its target to a night environment that has the lowest visibility. Then the host called the Yingli region's champion contestant Brandy with his familiar named Wailing Serpent Tree. It was level 30 in epic grade and its attribute is wood. Its abilities are Tough Tendrils level 2 and Accelerated Regeneration level 1. The tree's special characteristic is Acidic Sap. Passive Effect 1 said its sap is highly corrosive and it can spray it from a specialized organ in its body and cause corrosive damage to an enemy. Passive Effect 2 said it leaves a high amount of acid inside the bodies of its prey. Passive Effect 3 said if its acidic sap is left to stew inside its body for a long time, it will gain additional effects, such as increased acidity or anesthetic effect and its weakness is fire. The audience excitedly said the champion of the Huexia region versus the champion of the Yingli region was exciting to watch. The other audience said the winner is definitely Yuji, but the other said Brandy isn't weak either because Brandy is Yingli region's number one, after all. On the other hand, Gao Peng announced that the match began. The tiger slowly walks toward the tree which made Gao Peng think although the tiger is two levels higher, its grade is one level lower than the tree. Therefore, there's a chance the tree is a bit stronger than the tiger. But Gao Peng knows that neither familiar seems to be weak against the other's attributes and the tiger's innate ability probably wouldn't be able to have any huge effect on the tree. However, the tree has a much wider range of attacks than the tiger. Still Gao Peng thinks the tree is plant-type familiar and like most plant-type familiars, it has a generally known flaw and its mobility is restricted. Gao Peng also thinks that both familiars have an equal probability of winning. Then the tiger made the first move and run toward the tree. Then the tiger used its dark region skill which made the tree surrounding dark. Then the tiger was planning to attack the tree in the dark. But Gao Peng knows that the tree is a plant-type familiar that relied on its infrared radiation to determine its opponent's position, and not its eyes. Then the tree attacked the tiger using its vines, the tree hit the tiger, but the tiger bites off the tree's branch. Yuji happily said the tree's attack can't even break his familiar's defenses and the match must be his win. But Gao Peng look at the tiger who is currently lightly injured and the corrosion is in accumulation and thinks he doesn't think Yuji is winning because the tree attacks indeed don't have much destructive power. But the real attack is the corrosive effect in the acidic sap on its vines. Then the tree wrapped the tiger and attacked the tiger using vines while Gao Peng thought the tree is pretty good because besides the tree attribute, its patience is what makes it so scary and the tree is just like an old experienced hunter because it waits patiently for the tiger to approach while using its sap to slowly corrode the tiger. Gao Peng knew that the winner has been determined. A few moments later, the tiger was full of corrode was shaking in pain. When Yuji saw his beast, Yuji raised his hand and said his surrendering. Then he orders his tiger who's still trying to stand up and fight that they should go back. Then Gao Peng walked toward Brandy and congratulate Brandy for his victory in the match. Brandy tells Gao Peng that he is strong and he hopes to fight Gao Peng someday. 
Gao Peng responded that he'll try to let Brandy lose with his dignity intact. Brandy happily said he'll try his best, then Brandy happily said goodbye, leaving Gao Peng confused. On the other hand, Yu Ji tells his tiger that he knows it's not satisfied. But it would have been too dangerous if it had continued fighting because the tree can regenerate but it can't. Then Gao Peng called Yu Ji. Yu Ji turned to look at Gao Peng and said he lost and that was all, and if Gao Peng was going to console him, he said Gao Peng can save his breath because he don't need it. Gao Peng responded that he don't have the time to console people and he remember Yu Ji's mother is the leader of the Shadow Blood Monster Hunter Association. Gao Peng also said he had a business proposal from Yu Ji's mother, then Gao Peng asked him if he knows the difference between Yu Ji and Brandy. Yu Ji responded he probably have less experience than Brandy and his tiger was too careless. Yu Ji also said they probably should have tested his familiar's ability first before going to the match. But Gao Peng said no and that Yu Ji still haven't figured it out. Then Gao Peng explained that Yu Ji's familiar's grade was one level lower than the tree's and the tree is an epic grade familiar while Yu Ji is just an average perfect grade tiger. Yu Ji realizes that the reason why Brandy is confident enough to send out a plant type monster because plant type monsters not only have notoriously restricted mobility, which makes it nothing more than sitting ducks in the face of long range attackers, but most of it is also at an extreme disadvantage against fire type monsters. Then Gao Peng held Yu Ji's shoulder while saying if Yu Ji's tiger had reached epic grade, it would have had the speed and power necessary to shred the tree into pieces before it even had time to regenerate its limbs. Then Gao Peng said he knows of a way to evolve Yu Ji's tiger and he should let him know if Yu Ji is ready to take the next step. Gao Peng also tells Yu Ji that he can come to find him when their current situation is over. Yu Ji just look at Gao Peng while wondering how Gao Peng can evolve a tiger into an epic grade and who is Gao Peng really is. At the World Youth Monster Trainer Championship Referee Waiting Room, Gao Peng walks toward the water dispenser to get some water. Then referee Lai tells Gao Peng that yesterday's news was all about him and his famous now. Gao Peng tells Lai to stop teasing him because it's only for a little while and everyone will forget his even exists after the tournament. Referee Guo said there are 32 contestants in the second round and the Huexia team makes up only a quarter of the number while looking at the screen. Lai responded that the 32 contestant number is indeed lower than they expected. But it's not surprising. Although the Southeast Asian and African regions were less developed than their country before the cataclysm, their natural environment is very suitable for monsters to survive, so their familiar's fighting capabilities are very strong. Then Lai angrily wonders if he should say the African and Asian region familiar's fighting capabilities are very brutal. Guo also said he heard what Lai said before because he's from Kunju, near the Southeast Asian region, and the Asian train their familiars by pitting them against each other. Gao Peng was shocked to hear the familiars in Asian train their familiars by pitting them against each other, then Gao Peng asked Guo to tell them more about it. Guo said all the major Southeast Asian countries were combined into a single region when the New World Allied government was formed. A lot of children lost their parents in the early days of the cataclysm and those orphans were places in training camps by the government. When those orphans turned 18, the government would assign each of them their own familiars and let them fight it out until only one of them remained. The government only choose the strongest from every batch, as for the others, the chance for survival was slim. Gao Peng said it was so cruel, then Lai said even though some excessive brutality is understandable since the world isn't the same as before but he thinks it's still too much. Duo also said anyone who managed to come out of the government training regiment alive would be able to enter the upper echelons of society in the Southeast Asian region and they would be guaranteed access to everything from money to women as long as they name it. And if they chose not to participate, these orphans wouldn't even have a chance of survival, so it's hard for them to judge them. Gao Peng wondered if they could also set up their own training camp, and he think it doesn't have to be so brutal since he can promote a familiar's grade straight away. And for the children like Junzong who lost their parents, that will give them a chance to survive in the dangerous world. Meanwhile, at Jai Huan Villa Lake, Da Zai is lying on the grass relaxing. Suddenly someone angrily asks what Da Zai is doing, which made Da Zai wonders if Gao Peng is there and starts finding Gao Peng. Then Da Zai saw a small camera while Gao Peng said Da Zai may not know what the power of technology is, but he already know that Da Zai had been slacking off all the time and he wanted to give Da Zai a chance to realize Da Zai's mistake. But since that's too tall an order for Da Zai, Gao Peng said from now on, for every hour Da Zai slack off, a thousand more sets will be added to Da Zai training routine, which made Da Zai sad and tells Gao Peng that he can explain. Gao Peng angrily said he had been watching Da Zai this whole time and he can see Da Zai every action very clearly. Then Gao Peng asked Da Zai how do Da Zai intended to explain. Da Zai was in fear and tried to explain. In the end, Da Zai just make a cute face and said he liked Gao Peng the most. 
But Gao Peng just smiled creepily and asked Da Zai if he thinks that will work on him. Then Da Zai tried to act cute at Gao Peng and continuously said Gao Peng is the best. Which made Gao Peng said he'll let Da Zai mistake one slide. But Da Zai should get all 10,000 sets done by today. Then he warned Da Zai that he was watching him, so he shouldn't even think of slacking off. While Lai and Guo were watching Gao Peng from behind and said every genius has their own quirk and they should be more understanding. Lai noticed the noise which made him say their break went by so fast. Then he asked Gao Peng if he want to hear a piece of advice from his senior. Then Lai said among the 12 contestants from the Huexia region, 8 of the contestant got through to the second round, and among those 8, 3 were eliminated in the matches in which Gao Peng were the referee. To which Gao Peng just said so. Lai responded that there won't be an issue right now, but if more contestants from the Huexia region get eliminated under his watch, then there will be an issue because there are always people who like to find excuses to cover their own failures. Then Lai proceeds to walk away while saying a tall tree attracts the wind. That means a famous or rich person tends to attract criticism. Then Lai wishes Gao Peng good luck. Meanwhile, at the arena, the host said the third match of the second round between Gang Mu from African and Kim Mu En from Korea was coming up next. On the other hand, Kim Mu with his beasts was being cheered by his fans. Gao Peng thinks Kim Mu familiars is another silverback gorilla and swamp monster, which made Gao Peng wonder if that beast's appearance rate is too high, especially the swamp monster because almost every team has won. Then Gao Peng looked at the African contestants familiar and said it was the first. The monster's name is Giant Tarsier. It was level 33 in perfect grade and its attribute is wood. The Tarsier's special characteristic is a spiritual brain. Effect 1, passive effect said thanks to its spiritual brain, it is endowed with incredible psychic energy and telekinetic powers. Effect 2, active effect said its spiritual brain also allows it to control low-level monsters that are mentally weaker, and its monster skill said despite its powerful mind, the giant Tarsier has an incredibly weak body so it's lax in melee combat. The other monster name is Rainforest Scorpion who's controlled. It was level 29 in excellent grade and its attribute is water. Its ability is fortified exoskeleton level 1 and its weakness is earth. Gao Peng knows Tarsiers are native to the Southeast Asian region and they are a shy species which usually feed off crickets and other insects. But the most interesting thing Gao Peng heard are Tarsiers emotionally tethered to their habitats and they would die if they were removed from their homes for too long to which Gao Peng wonder how did the Tarsier sign a blood contract to become a familiar. Then Gang Mu called the Tarsier mom and whispered something to it. Then the Tarsier patted Gang Mu head. Gao Peng who heard Gang Mu called the Tarsier mom is shocked. Gao Peng thinks he had heard of a special training method that involves pairing young children who have undergone special training with ape-like monsters that have recently lost a child, and through long-term cohabitation, those monsters gradually come to see those human children as their own children, which would make signing a blood contract with it much easier. But the most interesting thing is that those monster trainers will call their familiar mom, which means they are a foster child of their familiars and not a master. Gao Peng said it looks like that is the method the African contestant is using and that's why Gang Mu was able to make the giant Tarsier go against its own nature to be merciless to oneself is what makes one ruthless. Then Gao Peng said the match started. The gorilla and the swamp monster, the Tarsier and the scorpion were looking at each other. Kai Mu thinks he hasn't seen a Tarsier familiar before, so he should be careful. Then he orders his swamp monster to stop the scorpion. The swamp monster jumped toward the scorpion, but the scorpion used its skill and attacked the swamp monster which made the swamp monster splash on the ground. But the swamp monster trapped the scorpion's hand which made the scorpion confused and try to break free. Then Kim Mu saw the opening of his enemy and order his gorilla to attack the Tarsier. Then the gorilla was going to punch the Tarsier but the Tarsier used it telekinesis skill, which made the gorilla mind controlled. Gao Peng thinks contestant Kim's main attacker, the gorilla was controlled that easily and he knows that there's a huge difference in familiar's strength. Then the Tarsier remembers Gang Mu words that the monster wants to hurt them and she must kill it. Then the Tarsier angrily used its power and snapped its finger which made the gorilla's head exploded. Kim Mu shouted to call his beast's name, but the Tarsier heard Gang Mu say there was another bad guy and all bad guys must die. Then the Tarsier walks toward Kim Mu and tried to control his mind which made him say that there is something not right with the Tarsier. On the other hand, Gang Mu look at Gao Peng while thinking Gao Peng who withdraw from the tournament really is a flower vase. He also wonders if Gao Peng not notice it and said he shouldn't be worried because he's next. Suddenly, something attacked the Tarsier's power which made the Tarsier falls back and Gang Mu shocked. Gao Peng look at Gang Mu and tells him that according to the rules, directly attacking his opponent is strictly forbidden and that is his first warning, which made Gang Mu angry and swear that he'll definitely kill Gao Peng. Then Kim Mu raised his hand and said he surrender which made Gao Peng announce that the winner of the third match is Gang Mu. Then Gang Mu tell his familiar that they defeated the bad guys. Then Gang Mu look at Gao Peng from behind and thinks even if his Tarsier, 
and Gao Peng's skeleton familiar were on the same level. His Tarsier wouldn't be able to defeat it and he also thinks ever since he was a child, he understood fully that if he wanted something, he would have to work for it and maybe he can have higher ambitions. After the tournament, Gao Peng was greeted by his schoolmates. Then Gao Peng said although his respected, being a referee is surely boring. Then Gao Peng thinks although the rules forbid referees from bidding, it didn't say a referee's familiar can't bid, and if that is the case Gao Peng had an idea. Meanwhile, Goldie was hanging in the fence, peeking at someone's window who currently showering in the bathroom. Suddenly Goldie's phone rang and made a duck ring tone, which the person in the shower and shouted whose bastard is peeking while someone is showering, to which Goldie panicked and jumped off the fence, then landed on the ground and started to run. Gao Peng asked Goldie what was it doing just now and why didn't it pick up the phone. Goldie responded that he was busy. Then Gao Peng tells Goldie that he wants Goldie to do something for him. Then Gao Peng order Goldie to help him place a couple of bets. Gao Peng also tells Goldie not to worry because they'll definitely be making a lot of money from that and if Goldie does that for him, he'll give Goldie two more dried fish every day for a whole month which made Goldie agree in excitement. A few moments later, in Happy Lottery Imperial City Purple Sea region, at Purple Thorn Road Branch, Goldie enter the place and which happily greeted by the man. But when the man looks at Goldie, he changes his expression to confusion. Then Goldie walked toward the man and showed him his cell phone. Inside the cell phone, the text said bet on Jangyi of the Huexia region's victory in the seventh match of the second round within 10 minutes. This made the man say betting on Jangyi winning within 10 minutes is an unpopular bet because Jangyi's opponent is the number one contestant in the Yajou village of the Neon district, and he performed exceptionally well in the first round. On the other hand, Zhang Yi came in ninth place in the Huexia region's preliminaries and barely scraped out a victory in the first round. The man also said Zhang Yi's betting odds are 1 to 16 and 1 to 98 for a 10 minutes victory, which means that no one believes Zhang Yi can win. Then the man showed Goldie a bill that have 100 pictures printed. Then he asked Goldie how much Goldie want to bet. Goldie takes out all of his money inside the bag and gives it to the man forcefully. But the man thinks Goldie is rich. After the man counted Goldie's money, the man said Goldie money is 5,129.70 alliance credits. Then the man asks Goldie how much Goldie wants to wager which made Goldie confused. Then the man gives the lottery ticket to Goldie while reminding Goldie not to lose the lottery ticket. Then Goldie happily walked out of the store and said he did it. The man opened the other door room while saying with that kind of betting odds, the duck's master would earn a lot if they win. But the man said how could the duck possibly win? Then the man tells his coworker who currently watching television that he had something funny to tell them and he said someone bet for Zhang Yi to win. Suddenly, the host announces the first World Youth Monster Trainer Championship, the seventh match, Liu Sheng from the Neon District versus Zhang Yi from the Huexia region. Zhang Yi wins, which made the man curse in shock. After the competition, in a mountain villa of the Southern Sky Group Capital Branch, Gao Peng tiredly set his back and when Gao Peng entered the house, he got hit by Goldie. While on the ground Goldie said he can eat so many dried fish then he said Gao Peng is so cool and the coolest duck he had seen among those without feathers. Gao Peng asks Goldie if Goldie gets the money, but Goldie holds it bag and said the money is for him. Gao Peng stand up and said he know it was money, so he won't steal it from him. Then Gao Peng called Goldie a little money grubber. Then Goldie asks Gao Peng if he has any more insider information. Gao Peng patted Goldie's head and tells Goldie that gambling is bad and he just let him place that bet for fun and help Goldie earn some lunch money. Then Gao Peng reminds Goldie that it is better not to get itself addicted to gambling. Then Gao Peng tells Goldie to sleep early and don't start getting any funny ideas. Suddenly Gao Peng phones ring. Then Gao Peng answered the phone and started walking away leaving Ducky disappointed. Gao Peng tells to the person on the other line that he knows Zhang Xiao and his is one of the Huexia region's contestants. Gao Peng also said Zhang Xiao got skills and is full of vigor, he also has high expectations for him. Then Gao Peng said he can make time to have a meal with him after his match. Then Gao Peng hangs up while saying he's really famous now because he's the heir to the Southern Sky Group. A Lord Tier familiar owner who will turn 19 in a month, and a genius monster breeder, so he thinks it would be weird if other people didn't want to curry favor. Then Gao Peng throws his suit to the side while saying in their kind of world, the strong dominate, and pulling that kind of small trick in a competition like that. Then Gao Peng decided to shower because there are still quite a few matches the next day. On the other hand, Goldie was listening on the side of Gao Peng room door, smiling while thinking if Gao Peng doesn't want to give him insider information, he'll remember Zhang Xiao's name. The next morning, 
erupt in the arena. The host announced the first World Youth Monster Trainer Championship. In the third and first matches, Zhang Yi wins. Then Zhang Yi look at his enemy who currently crying while thinking luckily Gao Peng isn't the referee for his match and that the six contestants who were eliminated indeed lacked skill. But among the eight contestants that were eliminated, the six were eliminated in matches where Gao Peng was the referee. Suddenly referee Guo tells Gao Peng that he'll leave the rest to Gao Peng because he'll be resting in the break room. To which Gao Peng agreed and made Zhang Yi shocked. Zhang Yi waved and greeted Gao Peng which made Gao Peng think Zhang Yi's thoughts are written all over his face and Gao Peng said he's also from the Huexia region and he wouldn't betray his own people. He also wonders if the people who believe in the rumor really have a brain. Then Gao Peng look at his tablet while thinking when the contestant isn't strong enough, do the people really expect him, the referee, to get on the field to fight for them. Then Gao Peng just brushed it off and decided to take a look at the information of the contestant in the next match. The data showed a girl named Daisy whose region of origin was in the Great Britain region, and Daisy raking is second place in the Great Britain preliminaries. Also, Daisy's familiar name is a sea dragon, which made Gao Peng said the sea dragon is an amphibious monster whose long neck and slender limbs are reminiscent of the long extinct plesiosaur. It can only bring out its full potential in shallow waters, but the tournament is held on dry land, where the sea dragon's mobility is severely impeded. Then Gao Peng looked at the tournament schedule and said that the Skyfire Hound just now has a high chance of encountering the sea dragon and although the environment isn't ideal, the sea dragon has an advantage with its size and attribute and if they rally matched against each other, the Skyfire Hound will have a tough time winning. An hour later, Gao Leshi lose in 11th place, Long Bin Yu lose in 7th place and Jun Moi lose in 5th place. The host announced that Huexia region's last contestant Jang Yi and contestant Daisy from the Great Britain region who have inexorably climbed up the ranks will be facing off against each other in the final match to decide once and for all who the strongest trainer in the current year's World Youth Monster Trainer Championship is. On the other hand, Gao Peng was watching the screen while thinking that he was right because it really is the Skyfire Hounds against the Sea Dragon. Then Gao Peng opens his his advanced gadget while saying he wonders if his familiars are training properly today. Meanwhile, at Villa Lake, Gao Peng called Goldie who currently relaxing in a chair using the camera which made Goldie shocked. Goldie fearfully called Gao Peng's name, but Gao Peng said he sees Goldie has been learning from Da Zai. Then Gao Peng tells Goldie to train well and if he is able to gain 7 levels in a month, he'll give him 300,000 alliance credits for Goldie's effort and he will be able to eat anything he wants. But Goldie waves his hand and responded that he doesn't need to train because he'll be getting a lot of money soon. Goldie also said he's exceptionally smart because he bet on Zhang Xiao. Gao Peng asks Goldie if Goldie went and bought a lottery ticket and he asks Goldie how he buy the lottery tickets because the boss probably couldn't understand what Goldie was saying. Then Goldie showed the writing to Gao Peng and said Stripey wrote it for him because Stripey is a cultured spider and Stripey writing is really pretty. Stripey heard Goldie telling Gao Peng is the one who write it and hits Goldie's head while telling Goldie that he promised he wouldn't sell him out. Gao Peng asks Goldie why did he bet on Zhang Xiao and if his daft because Zhang Xiao lost that morning and all his money is all flushed down the drain now. Then Gao Peng said in a teasing way that Goldie lost all his lunch money, which made Goldie shocked turning into stone while Stripey walks away from him angrily. Then Gao Peng sits on the sofa while telling Goldie to stop being sad and that Goldie should train well. Gao Peng also tells Goldie if he can gain 7 levels in a month, he'll give him 300,000 alliance credits, and for every level, he'll increase his reward, so he can earn way more that way than by gambling. But Goldie who currently working out now tells Gao Peng that he doesn't want money and he just wants to know who defeated Zhang Xiao. Which made Gao Peng ask what is Goldie trying to do. Then Gao Peng said it was a fair match and the contestant who defeated Zhang Xiao was stronger than him unless they fixed the winner. He didn't do anything wrong. But Goldie just cryingly lift the dumbbells to which Gao Peng said as long as Goldie train hard. He can guarantee that Goldie will be able to eat the most expensive duck treats in the world. Suddenly Lai asks Gao Peng if he's really not considering refereeing the final match. Gao Peng responded no way and said there are already lots of people on the internet accusing him of being against Zhang Yi and if he loses the battle, people will definitely be throwing more shit on his way. A few minutes later, at the arena, Zhang Yi and Daisy together with their familiars are on the stage while the host announces that the long-awaited finals of the First World Youth Monster Trainer Championship will begin. Zhang Yi familiar are the monster named Goldenback Wild Boar. Its grade is normal in level 30 and its attribute is gold, and the monster is named Black Thorn Opium Poppy. Its grade is excellent in level 27 and its attributes are wood and illusion. The poppy skill is deadly paralysis level 1. Also, the Skyfire Hound. On the other hand, Gao Peng was looking at Zhang Yi familiar from above while thinking the Blackthorn Opium Poppy has an interesting skill, and it can emit a type of gas that makes any creature that inhales it go into a hyperactive state and lose its sense of pain. 
Then, it'll wrap its vines around its prey and kill it. Gao Peng knows that to use the Blackthorn Opium Poppy as a supporting monster is clever. But Gao Peng only concern is whether or not the other monsters would become addicted to the Blackthorn Opium Poppy's gas and if they become addicted it will become a big problem. Meanwhile, contestant Daisy has sent her signature familiars named Sea Dragon along with the two Earthen River's otters. The Earthen River otter grade is excellent and it was level 28 and 29 and its attributes are earth and water. Also, the Sea Dragon in Diplocoric variant grade is epic and its level is 34. Its skills are Hardened Scale level 2, Dynamic Visual Acuity level 2, and Water Elemental Mastery level 2. Its attribute is water and its weakness is electricity. The Sea Dragon's special characteristics are Diplocoric and innate skills. Passive Effect 1 set increases dynamic vision and improves visual sharpness. Effect 2 and Effect 3 are inactivated. Its Heart of the Beast, Effect 1, Passive Effect set improves overall physical strength. Effect 2, Active Effect is said to give itself a burst of power for a short period of time. This made Gao Peng think he only thought humans would only have Diplocoric and it even has unknown skill effects. Gao Peng look at the Sea Dragon while thinking it was like Dummy's Blood Thread Heart. The Sea Dragon probably has an organ that has an extraordinary ability. Gao Peng thinks he can tell that kind of skill isn't some cheap good that they can get at the market judging by all those inactivated effects. Then Gao Peng silently tells Zhang Yi not to lose, otherwise, people will blame it on him again. On the other hand, Lai said the match began. Then Zhang Yi immediately order his poppy to spread the pollen which the poppy immediately did. The pollen was spread to the boar and skyfire hound which made the skyfire and boar strong. Then the boar scream angrily and ran toward the two otters. Then Daisy orders his otter to use the shield wall to which the otter immediately follows and blocks the boar attack. Daisy thinks the white jade basalt is very hard and is rich in earth elements. So the earthen wall created by the otters is also very sturdy. Otherwise, the wall would have been broken by the boar. Suddenly the skyfire jumped behind the boar and launched an attack. But the sea dragon used its tail to hit the skyfire. Then it looked at the boar and attacked the boar using its claws which made the wall also broken. Gao Peng thinks Daisy's sea dragon is indeed extraordinary. But then Gao Peng looked at the lightly injured but excited boar who currently looking at the sea dragon. Then Gao Peng said after losing its sense of pain, it's hard to make the boar lose its will to fight and if Daisy wants to win, she'll have to really up her game. Then the Skyfire angrily screamed to boost its power and launched an attack at the Sea Dragon while the Sea Dragon was looking at the boar. But the Sea Dragon noticed it and used its skill to change the terrain which changed its surrounding into the sea and made the boar who still charging forward slow, and the Skyfire stopped its attack. The Skyfire angrily looks at the Sea Dragon who currently looking at the Skyfire too. Then the Sea Dragon uses its water pillar to stop the Skyfire burst attack. Gao Peng thinks that's not it because the water pillars are just distractions and the sea dragon's body is hidden under the water, and the sea water's real target is the boar. Zhang Yi notices it and orders his boar to come back quickly, but it's too late because the dragon bites the boar. Gao Peng flinched and thinks the sea dragon bites surely killed the boar and Gao Peng said illegal drugs are really harmful. Gao Peng also thinks the Skyfire Hound has very good battle instincts. So even under the influence of the gas, it can still perform well, but the boar brain has been turned to mush by the gas and that isn't a viable way to battle. Zhang Yi angrily orders his Skyfire to kill Daisy Earthen River Otter and said since Daisy killed one of his familiars, he'll kill one of Daisy's familiars as well. Then the Skyfire launched an attack on the otters, but the Sea Dragon saw the Skyfire, then activate its skill and attack the Skyfire using its tails from behind, which made the Skyfire Hound fly back into the air heavily injured. Then the Skyfire landed on the ground shaking in pain, to which Zhang Yi was shocked and called his beast's name. Then Daisy and her sea dragon look at Zhang Yi, then Zhang Yi said he admit his defeat. The host announced the match is over and the winner is the Great Britain contestant named Daisy to which the audience cheered. On the other hand, the reporter asks his boss how should they report the tournament when they lost. The boss whispered that they should change the topic and just throw all the responsibility for the tournament loss on Gao Peng because he was sure it'll blow up. A few hours later, many reports and articles pop out saying Gao Peng refused to be a contestant to be a referee for the matter of personal gain versus his country's glory, and Gao Peng was a traitor for eliminating his own countrymen. Gao Peng look at his phone and thinks as he expected, he became the scapegoat, and he said it was a pity because if he had participated as a contestant, the result probably would have been different. Suddenly Goldie called Gao Peng which made Gao Peng ask Goldie why he is there. Then Gao Peng smiled and said since Goldie is there, he has an idea. Meanwhile, at the award ceremony. 
Lai announced that after a series of fierce competitions, the final winner had been decided, and Lai said he hereby announced the winner of the World Youth Trainer Championship is. But before Lai can finish his words, they heard Goldie steps, which made Daisy look at Gao Peng wondering why Gao Peng familiar is on stage. On the other hand, the chief referee whispered to Zhu that the Southern Sky Group sent a request just now and Gao Peng wants something, but he thinks it was a bit inappropriate. Zhu responded that it was normal for young people to be impulsive, and he ordered the chief referee to tell the others to cooperate. On the other hand, Goldie pointed at Daisy and said Daisy is the one who caused him to lose his lunch money which made Daisy confused. Then Gao Peng test his mic if everyone can hear him. When Gao Peng confirmed that they didn't cut the signal of his microphone, he said firstly, he want to congratulate Daisy on becoming the champion of the World Youth Trainer Championship. However, his little friend Goldie doesn't feel satisfied with the result. Gao Peng also said his little Goldie is just turned one and a half years old and is now at mid-commander tier. However, the contestants and the familiars that were chosen to come there to compete are the best of the best from their regions, so how can a peasant duck from the countryside compare? Then Gao Peng asks Daisy if she can help him and ask her sea dragon to teach his little duck a lesson. Daisy forcefully smiles while thinking she won't gain anything from winning. But if she loses, her reputation would be greatly affected and the champion of the World Youth Trainer Championship not being able to defeat a peasant duck from the countryside was bad for her reputation. Then Daisy notices the organizers aren't giving any response, which means they've already approved of Gao Peng request and this could even be the organizer's idea in the first place, so she knows she won't be able to refuse Gao Peng. Daisy smiled and said she accept Gao Peng's challenge, but she dare say she won't be able to teach Gao Peng duck anything because it was a familiar of monster trainer who has a lord tier familiar, after all. Gao Peng thinks Daisy's words are sarcasm, but he determined that Daisy is about to become a victim because it's understandable for Daisy to want to complain. Then Gao Peng pointed to Goldie who was currently angry and order it to go, then Goldie ran toward the sea dragon. The sea dragon once again moves and turned its surroundings into water while Goldie was launching at it. But Goldie uses his skill to make the water in his way disappear. Then Goldie jumps and kicks the sea dragon's face which made Daisy shocked and called her familiar's name. The sea dragon used its tail to attack Goldie, which made Goldie thrown to the wall. Then the sea dragon immediately uses its long neck and tried to bite Goldie. Fortunately, Goldie avoided it, but the sea dragon immediately attacked Goldie again using its claws which made Goldie thrown on the ground. Daisy looks at Goldie and thinks something is not right because the light around the yellow duck's body is very strange and she notices Goldie has becomes more buff. Then Goldie kicks the chin of the sea dragon while asking it if it hasn't eaten yet because its attacks are not enough. The sea dragon got angry and attacked Goldie using its claws, then use its tails to make Goldie fall to the ground. Then the sea monster attacked Goldie who's on the ground continuously. This made Daisy thinks the little yellow duck can't possibly endure such a fierce attack and she confidently thinks she win and Gao Peng isn't anything special. Suddenly Daisy was shocked to see the little duck is growing bigger. Goldie lifts the sea dragon's claws angrily while thanking it for its attacks. Then Goldie punched the sea dragon which made the sea dragon fly in the air, then Goldie uses its skill and ready itself. Then Goldie jumps and punched the sea dragon in the air while saying his skill called ultimate fist of destruction which made the sea dragon knock out and landed on the ground. Goldie happily flexes his muscle while Daisy repeatedly says she admits defeat. Then the audience cheered for Gao Peng and said that is Huexia region's strongest. The media always like to spread fake rumors and they knew that the media were just trying to find excuses. On the other hand, Gao Peng tells Daisy not to worry. Although the sea dragon's condition doesn't look too good, it just bruises and it be fine after a few days of rest. Then Gao Peng handed his laboratory ticket to Daisy and said Daisy can come to join him at his laboratory anytime. Gao Peng also apologized for what happened, but Daisy angrily storms out while saying she's from a rich and powerful family in Great Britain. So why would she go all the way to the Huexia region to join another person's laboratory? Gao Peng just smiled and think in less than five years, his laboratory will become one of the world's leading laboratories. Gao Peng also thinks Daisy choose to ignore him today, but he was sure Daisy will end up wanting to curry his favor in the future. Meanwhile, at the villa, Jai Huan was happily preparing the Liang Pai and Tangerine suite that Gao Peng favorites when his phone rang. Jai Huan picked the phone and he already knew who is it. Then Jai Huan transferred the call to the advanced gadget and the colonel said he had a situation over there and he know Gao Peng has just come back but he wouldn't have called Jai Huan if it wasn't an emergency. Jai Huan responded he know that there would be trouble every time the colonel called. Then Jai Huan asked the colonel to tell him what is the situation. The colonel responded that the things in the mausoleum of the first emperor have come to life, which made Jai Huan stand up in shock. Meanwhile, in the suburbs of the Ling Tong district, at the northeast of Chang'an city, the captain looked at something while saying that it was the tenth day. Then the man behind him asked if the tomb of the first emperor was really in there. Suddenly the ground shook which made the military panic. 
Then the ground started to break. Then the thunder light showed something from afar, which the military man asked what is it. Suddenly the statue starts saying a words O strong warriors of kin, save their nation together and battle shall not cease until their blood bleeds dry repeatedly. The chief military shockingly said the terracottas have come to life. Then the main mausoleum collapsed, showing a coffin that was currently being dragged by the two red horses. Then one of the military men shouted at everyone to be alert and he tells his comrade to prepare to fire. Then the military golden god beast also arrived at the place. Suddenly the person inside the coffin angrily said a mere little yellow bird dares to call itself god. Then a few minutes later, the military noticed a dragon in the sky, and they said it was the white dragon and Jai Huan has arrived. On the other hand, one military tells terracottas that it was not their intention to disturb nor become enemies with their majesty. However, the land in front of their majesty is a holy and impregnable land of the alliance government and if their majesty really wants to infiltrate the land, they will also not shy away from war. A person inside the coffin said a dragon while the military man said if their majesty is willing to ally with them, they are willing to provide their majesty with the latest information about the current world. The person inside the coffin responded granted. Then the military reported that the target has retreated back to the mountainside and they should continue to monitor the situation. Then the colonel tells Jai Huan that he's getting tougher as he age and he'd believe it if he said he was going to live for another 100 years. Jai Huan responded that the colonel is right because he still want to hold Gao Peng's child after all. The colonel tells Jai Huan to stop showing off his grandson because everyone there had a grandson. Then the colonel tells Jai Huan to hurry back to his villa. Jai Huan touched white and tells the colonel to take care over there because that thing inside the tomb of the first emperor gives off an evil vibe. Jai Huan also tells the colonel to call him if anything happens. Meanwhile, on the lakeside, Flamey was peacefully enjoying the water. Suddenly something launched into the water which made the water shake uncontrollably and made Flamey confused. Then White pop out looking at Flamey who explaining that he was just checking the temperature of the water for White. Then White dive under the water which made Flamey fly away to the lake. But in the end Flamey was collapsed on the water which made Gao Peng laugh and said his familiars is all the same. Gao Peng thinks his grandfather came back safely and he realizes his grandfather has to go deal with trouble personally every time there's an emergency. And it looks like Jai Huan has some kind of agreement with the government. Perhaps that is one of the reasons why the Southern Sky Group is as successful as it is today. The Alliance government needs his grandfather's strength, so Jai Huan is an important asset to the government and that is a good thing for the survival and development of the company. But it also means his grandfather will be forced to put himself in the face of danger and who knows how strong of an opponent his grandfather would have to meet one day. Then Gao Peng gets his phone while thinking maybe he could train a trustworthy Lord Tier Monster Trainer for the Southern Sky Group, and that would both strengthen the company and reduce the number of times his grandfather has to be sent out. Then Gao Peng thinks first that person has to be trustworthy and it'll be stupid to train someone to become a Lord Tier Monster Trainer just to have them betray the Southern Sky group like the Sly Man before. Then Gao Peng searched to his phone while thinking that person doesn't have to be loyal to him and it's fine if that person is only loyal to his grandfather. A few hours ago, inside the laboratory, Wang Yu was walking with his horse while thinking he received an order last night to work under Gao Peng and Jai Huan is the one who gave him his current life, so he's not supposed to complain, but being treated as an object that that can be gifted to another makes him feel a little hurt. Then Wang Ya saw Gao Peng and said his reporting to Gao Peng. Gao Peng happily greeted Captain Wang Ya. Then the horse excitedly greeted Gao Peng which made Wang Ya ask his beast who is his real master. Then Gao Peng happily said he'll call Wang Ya old Wang. Then he asks Wang Ya if he wants a Lord Tier familiar, which made Wang Ya shocked and asked what did Gao Peng say. Gao Peng tells Wang Ya that he can give him a Lord Tier familiar but there are no guarantees and if he works hard, he'll better his chances. Huang Ya confidently agree which made Gao Peng tell Huang Ya not to rush to agree yet because great power comes with great responsibility, and once Huang Ya has a Lord Tier familiar, he'll need to bear greater responsibilities. Gao Peng tells Huang Ya that he'll be pushed to the top and become the Southern Sky Group's new hero. Also, in an emergency situation, he'll be sent out to deal with some trouble on the company's behalf. Huang Ya responded that he understand, then Gao Peng turn around while saying he hope Huang Ya won't disappoint his grandfather. Then he asks Huang Ya to follow him. Gao Peng brought Huang Ya to where the female spider was, then Gao Peng introduced Huang Ya to the female spider as their long lost friend. Then Gao Peng tells the female spider that she had failed to promote in the past and if nothing changes, she'll be stuck at her current level for her whole life. However, Gao Peng said he had a way to help the female spider finish her evolution. Then Gao Peng ordered Stripey to translate the female spider words. The female spider talked, then Stripey tells Gao Peng that the female spider say it won't eat Gao Peng if he can help her finish evolving and she'll also forgive Gao Peng for capturing her. Gao Peng smile, then called Dummy using his telepathy. Meanwhile, at the side lake, 
Dummy was with his daughter reading a book, suddenly he hears Gao Peng calling him, then Dummy immediately ran which made his daughter confused. Dummy arrived where Gao Peng is, then looks at the female spider angrily behind Gao Peng, while Gao Peng tells Dummy that they should help the beautiful female spider to understand its current situation. A few moments later, the female spider is beaten up by Dummy. Then Gao Peng tells the female spider that he doesn't have much patience and he gives the female spider to choose to submit and live to become a Lord Tier Monster, or she can continue to resist because he doesn't mind adding one half Lord Tier Monster Core Crystal to his collection. The spider shakingly talk and Stripey translated that the female spider said it agrees to sign the blood contract. Then Gao Peng pointed to the spider and look at Huang Yi to say that Huang Yi can try signing a contract with it. Huang Yi touched and tried to make a contract with the female spider, but Huang Yi hand pushed back, to which Gao Peng asked Huang Yi what was wrong. Huang Yi responded that the female spider is resisting a bit, so he need to try a few more times. Gao Peng looked at Stripey which Stripey immediately understands. Then Stripey hit the female spider while telling it to hurry up and sign the blood contract if it doesn't want another beating. Wang Yu tried to make a contract with the female spider again and happily tells Gao Peng that he had successfully signed the blood contract. Gao Peng mixes the two mixtures in one tube, then gives it to the female spider. The female spider's eyes glow, then it stands up glowing breaking all the chains in it. Which made Stripey ask in shock how can there be such a tall spider. The stone slowly wraps the female spider and a few minutes later, the female spider is completely wrapped by the stone. Gao Peng said the earth has wrapped around the female spider and the solution is working very quickly. Also, he said the female spider is already starting to evolve. Then Gao Peng started to walk away while telling Huang Yi that the evolution will take some time and that if Huang Yi is worried, he can wait there until the female spider evolution finishes. To which Huang Yi thanked Gao Peng. Meanwhile, in the mountains on the outskirts of Yuzhu City, people in White Hood arrived where the mountain spirit was. The girl asks the man if the mountain is the mountain spirit that is mentioned in the Bible. The man responded it should be and who knew that the mythical mountain spirits would appear. Another man from behind said there was nothing to be shocked about. Then he asked if they have seen their uncle Jerry's griffin which made the girl angry. Then the man from the black hood stops the man and the girl from quarreling and said if the mountain spirits are real, then that means the records in the Bible are most likely real too. So, all the other creatures that are recorded in the Bible are back at headquarters. Then the man in the black hood orders his familiar to come to him. Then the man rides to his familiar and flies toward the spirit mountain, while saying they should have a talk with the mountain spirit. Meanwhile, at the laboratory, the stone that wrapped the female spider moved. Then the spider's claw popped out of the stone. On the other hand, Gao Peng who was looking at the monitor wondered if the female spider is about to finish evolving. Gao Peng goes down to where Huang Yi and the female spider were, then he asks Huang Yi if he likes his new familiar. Huang responded that the experiments worked, and he excitedly said he never thought there would come a day he would have a Lord Tier familiar. The female spider's new monster name is a horrifying murderous female spider in Lord Tier. It was level 41 in excellent grade and its attribute is rock. Its state is healthy and happy and its weaknesses are 1. Wood type, and 2. Platinum King Radish. The female spider skills are Spider Silk Strengthening level 2. Hardened Skin Level 2, and Sharpened Spider Claws Level 1. Gao Peng tells Huang Yi to train it well and if Huang Yi wants to show it off, he can take it on a walk around Yuzhu City. Huang Yi responded he understand and thanked Gao Peng. A few minutes later, Gao Peng was back in his laboratory and he hear his cell phone ringing on the table. He picks up his phone and saw that King Jai is the one who was calling him. Gao Peng wonders what King Zi calling for when she's on her leave. On the other hand, King Zi greets Gao Peng, but Gao Peng just asks her what is it. King Zi who currently looking at someone responded that she has a friend who wants her to introduce her to him. Her friend is also from the monster trainer department and she thinks her friend is also called one of the four stars of Yuzhu. Gao Peng asks King Jai if she's talking about Xinrui. King Jai asks Gao Peng if he knows Xinrui. Gao Peng responded he heard about Xinrui before. Gao Peng thinks he remembers that Xinrui is a world hunter, the one that travels in deep uninhabited mountains and explores unknown wastelands on a daily basis. So for Lin Xinrui to make a name for herself in that field means that Zinrui is the real deal and if the Southern Sky Group could recruit Zinrui, it'd benefit the company greatly. Then Gao Peng tells King Jai that is fine with her request and that they should meet downtown later, but King Jai should come too. On the other hand, King Jai tells Zinrui not to worry because her boss is very easygoing. Zinrui responded alright and thanked King Jai. 20 minutes later, Zinrui and King Jai saw something in the sky, then it fall down on the ground. Gao Peng asks Flamey why did he suddenly lose balance. Flamey apologized to Gao Peng and explained that it was not his fault for not flying properly it was because he suddenly felt something hit his head while he was flying. Gao Peng remembers that after Dummy evolved to Lord Tier, Dummy gained a new life-saving ability named Soul Chain. 
The soul chain allows him to chain his soul to a familiar he signed a blood contract with and the contract can't be changed within the first month of it being signed. Then after chaining his soul to a familiar for a period of time, the soul chain will increase his soul strength and if an enemy wanted to attack his soul, they would then be facing the combined soul strength of both him and the Lord tier familiars. Gao Peng thinks the soul chain should be a pretty strong ability and he wanted to try it out on Flamey, but Flamey reaction is shocking. Then Gao Peng started to walk away while thinking that he shouldn't tell Flamey the truth or Flamey will be nagging him all day. On the other hand, Flamey told Gao Peng that Gao Peng have to believe him because he really didn't do it on purpose, and Flamey said it felt like some idiot suddenly punched him in the head and it really hurt. A few minutes later, Gao Peng arrived at the restaurant and meet King Jai and Xinrui. Gao Peng apologizes for making them wait. King Jai responded they didn't wait long, then she asked Gao Peng to have a seat. When they seated, Gao Peng said they were all busy people, so they should let cut to the chase, then he asked Xinri what she wanted. Xinri asks Gao Peng if he knows about the Platinum Hands. Gao Peng responded that if Xinri is referring to that notorious extremist group, he had heard about that group before. The Platinum Hands are based in Jinsha. It's made up of fanatic followers of the Holy Luotian and those people love to use tactics like human shields and suicide bombing. Also, those people don't care about the lives of innocent citizens. Xinri said those peoples are madmen who can't be reasoned with. Xinri also tells Gao Peng that a few days ago, someone spotted people who resemble the platinum hands on the outskirts of Yuzhu City where the mountain spirits are gathered. This made Gao Peng wonder why those platinum hands can't just stay in Jincha and why those people need to come all the way to Yuzhu. Xinri said putting aside of platinum hands craziness, the scarier is the fact that there are at least a few hundred mountain spirits and among them, even the weakest has the strength of a lord tier. Also, if the mountain spirit were riled up by the platinum hands, Yuzhu city would be crushed flat in an instant. Gao Peng tells Xinri to just spit it out and he asks her why did she come to him, or rather, what she hopes to gain from him. Xinri responded that her goal is very simple, she doesn't like the Platinum Hands, so she doesn't want them to be roaming around Yuzhu, but she also doesn't want to deal with the Platinum Hands personally, so she hopes powerful groups like the Southern Sky Group could act as the protector of Yuzhu. Gao Peng thinks the situation is embarrassing because he thought Xinri got to know about his ability from King Jai, and wanted him to help promote her familiar's grade but it turns out Xinrui was aiming for the Southern Sky Group. Gao Peng also thinks he was lucky that he didn't try to recruit Xinrui out of the blue. Then Gao Peng tells Xinrui that the Southern Sky Group accepts her request, but Xinrui should let him give her a small piece of advice. Then Gao Peng handed his laboratory card to Xinrui while saying the Southern Sky Group's laboratory standard is already at the world level and if Xinrui join the Southern Sky Group, all of her familiars will receive a chance to promote their grades for free. Xinrui accept the card and said Gao Peng offer is generous, then she asked what she need to give in exchange, but Xinrui clear herself first and said she only liked girls. Gao Peng said that currently there are only three world hunters in Yuzhu, so Xinrui is very valuable. Gao Peng Peng tells Xinri that they can sign a temporary contract first and after her first familiar has successfully evolved, they'll decide if they want to sign an official contract. Then Gao Peng stands up to leave while telling Xinri to give his offer some thought and that he'll be waiting for her answer. While walking Gao Peng take his phone and said seeing how the platinum hands sneaking around like that, their power level shouldn't be that strong. Even so, he should go confirm it himself. Then Gao Peng contacted Wang Yi and asked if he was at home. Then Gao Peng order Huang Yi to bring Dummy, Stripey, Flamey, and Goldie and meet him at the North Road exit. Suddenly Da Zai appeared on the screen angrily telling Gao Peng that he didn't bring him and that Gao Peng is biased and not fair. Gao Peng asked Da Zai if he was as strong as Dummy which made Da Zai confused. Then Gao Peng continued to ask Da Zai if he can fly as fast as Flamey or if he is as durable as Stripey which made Da Zai sad. But Gao Peng still asks Da Zai again if he can defeat Goldie which made Da Zai start sulking. Gao Peng lecture and tells Da Zai that he give them the same training environment. But Da Zai slack off during training, so he's the weaker than his other familiars by a whole lot. Then Gao Peng asks Da Zai how can he bring him. Also, Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to stay at home and focus on training. Goldie comforts Da Zai while telling Da Zai not to worry because he'll protect Gao Peng. But Da Zai just ran away crying while saying they always bully him, which made Goldie confused. Gao Peng hang up and said Da Zai should just stay at home because their mission will be really dangerous. A few moments later, outside of the Yuzhu city jungle, Gao Peng and Huang Yi with their beasts were running toward where the mountain spirits were. Suddenly Huang Yi was shocked and said something was not right. 
Then he tells Gao Peng that all that's left there is a large crater. Gao Peng responded that mountain spirits are lazy in nature, so mountain spirits won't move without valid reasons. Then Gao Peng wondered if could it be that the platinum hands have already made their move. Then Gao Peng look at Flamey while saying they'll chase and he wants Flamey to fly into the sky and alert them if he finds any traces of mountain spirits or human activities, to which Flamey immediately agreed. Then Flamey flies to the sky. Flamey reported to Gao Peng that Flamey see them and they are so many. Gao Peng responded so many what? Flamey said to Gao Peng that he sees so many mountain spirits in one place. Gao Peng thinks that those platinum hands really have a method that attracts the mountain spirits and Gao Peng think that if they use that method in Yuzhu that place will turn into dust. Then Gao Peng tells Flamey that don't expose the fact that he is his familiar. Then Gao Peng orders Flamey that he should act as a monster in the wild that sensed a lot of mountain spirits in front of him. Then Gao Peng tells Flamey that Flamey panicked and fell from the sky, which Flamey immediately understood. Then Flamey acted and said so many mountain spirits, how scary. They should run away, then Flamey died, while falling from the sky. The man in the hood saw Flamey falling from the sky and questioned himself if he see a one-legged bird familiar. The man also said normal monster would definitely not dare to come closer after sensing so many Lord Tier monsters around here, but it flew so close. Then the girl said maybe Flamey is just dumb. The man in the black hood orders the other man to ignore it because their mission is about to begin. Suddenly the mountain spirits release lava, while the man in the black hood tells the mountain spirits to evolve and may the mountain spirits be blessed by the holy Luatan. On the other hand, a bee flies toward the man in the black hood who currently praying. Then the bee goes inside the man's black hood. But before the bee bites the man, the monster in the man's back eats it, which made the man stripped and he saw Gao Peng and Huang Ye coming toward them. The man kneeled on the ground which made the other man panic and ask if he's okay. Then the man said they have company. When the man has done wearing his clothes, he orders his winged thunder ape to go and entertain their guest. Meanwhile, Stripey was flying back to Gao Peng while asking Gao Peng how is his acting skill, to which Gao Peng give Flamey an okay sign. Suddenly something was going to attack Flamey, then Flamey uses his skill, then Flamey use his feathers to block the attack. While Dummy and Stripey protect Gao Peng who currently wondering if they were found out. Flamey said he can't hold the attack any longer, then Huang Ye order his female spider to use the elemental shield, to which the female spider immediately followed and blocked the attack. Flamey landed on the ground crying because his prettiest feathers disappeared. Goldie notices sad Flamey and gives his feather clothes to it. The man said since Flamey had seen it, he can't leave, then he attacked Flamey again. But Goldie pushed Flamey away, and angrily used his forbidden domain. But Goldie's forbidden domain didn't have an effect and Goldie got hit by the attack, which made Gao Peng called Goldie name in shock. Gao Peng walked toward Goldie while thinking even the forbidden domain isn't able to neutralize the attack. Although it activated its passive, it knocked Goldie out. Then Gao Peng realizes the attack is the strength of the Lord Tier. The man thinks Goldie is useless now and as for the other two Lord Tier familiars, he flicked his finger, then the monster showed itself at Gao Peng who made Gao Peng shocked. The monster's name is a wood peacock. It was level 44 in perfect grade and its attribute is wood. Its skills are plant manipulation level 3 and fast healing level 2. Also, the peacock's special characteristic is a tree of life. Effect 1, passive effect set increases the host's manipulation of plant type monsters by one level. Effect 2, active effect set fully activates the healing effect of the tree of life and can create a life domain within a certain range. Also, all life forms recognized by the wood peacock within the range will obtain a healing effect equivalent to one third of the wood peacock's own healing effect. Effect 3, active effect said fully activates the life force of all wood types and all large plants will receive life activation within a range, but effect 2 will be unusable within a certain time frame after use. The man tells Gao Peng to allow him to repent for the sins he had committed. He fell he has to let him know who exactly is the person who is sending him to meet Saint Luotian. Then the man said the person sending Gao Peng to repent in front of Saint Luotian is the greatest bishop in the Platinum Hands Order, the Forest of Life, Bishop Garu. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks the peacock is a perfect grade Lord Tier familiar, moreover, it's a healing and support type. Gao Peng also knows that there's another Lord Tier hiding in the shadows and it also has two Lord Tier familiars. Gao Peng thinks that is going to be troublesome. Wang Ye tells Gao Peng that their situation is a bit difficult for them to handle, so he'll ask his Red Blood War Horse to notify Jai Huan through their blood contract. Gao Peng responded okay. Suddenly Flamey angrily attacked the man using its fireball while saying he lost his feathers because of the man. But the winged thunder ape blocked Flamey attack easily. The man angrily said how dare Flamey interrupt him. Then he ordered his winged thunder ape to kill them all. The ape flies toward Gao Peng and Huang Ye. Then Huang Ye called his female spider and Gao Peng called dummy and orders it to attack the winged thunder ape. 
The ape grabbed the female spider's hand, Dummy noticed it and tried to attack the ape who currently trying to attack the female spider, but the vines blocked Dummy way which made Dummy confused and look at the peacock. Gao Peng tells Dummy to ignore the peacock and quickly destroy those vines and go assist the female spider. Dummy immediately destroyed the vines, but Dummy was shocked to see a huge tree falling to him which made Gao Peng wonder how can the peacock can freely manipulate a huge tree. Dummy create a sword and cut the huge tree in half, but the vines continue blocking Dummy's way which holds Dummy. Gao Peng thinks the peacock holding Dummy back and the female spider has just reached Lord Tier, and without Dummy's help it'll be difficult for it to fight off the Thunder Ape. Moreover, Garu is hiding behind his peacock, so he can't target Garu. Gao Peng thinks the situation is bad because the peacock had a plant manipulation ability, and they're now in the middle of a dense forest, so it has the upper hand. Gao Peng thinks if only they were in a desert. Suddenly Gao Peng had an idea, then Gao Peng orders Flamey to spew fire at the trees and burn the whole forest down, to which Flamey immediately did. Garu said Gao Peng is naive if he thinks that burning the forest is going to work. Then Garu orders his peacock to send the burning trees to attack Gao Peng and Huang Ya. The peacock manipulated the burning trees and attacked Huang Ya who is currently in shock. The female spider tried to shield Huang Ya, but Huang still got hit by the burning trees and landed on the ground injured. Gao Peng look at Huang Ya in shock, but Huang Ya tells Gao Peng that he's okay and not to worry because he needs to focus on the fight. Garu smiled and said the fight is over because his opponent's strongest familiars are currently preoccupied, and Dummy was holding by the vines and is not alone. Suddenly the other man and their other beasts stand beside Garu, then Garu said he remembers that Gao Peng is the young referee from the World Youth Trainer Championship. Then Garu laughed and said it's such a shame for Huexia to lose their genius in the jungle. Garu orders the familiars to kill them all and leave none of them alive. Meanwhile, in the Southern Sky Group conference room, the man reported to Jai Huan that the documents he was holding are all the details concerning Xiangxi's development, and they'd already received preferential policies from the local government. Suddenly the horse barged into the conference room while the bodyguard was shouting behind to stop the horse. The horse bowed crying to Jai Huan, which made Jai Huan confused and asked what was going on. Secretary Han tells Jai Huan that the horse is Huang Ya's red blood war horse. Suddenly Jai Huan realizes that Huang Ya went out with Gao Peng and he thinks something bad happened. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Gao Peng and Huang Ya were surrounded by many familiars. Huang Ya tells Gao Peng not to worry about him and run once there's an opening. Huang Ya also tells Gao Peng to just place the head of those guys and he'll die without regrets. Gao Peng responded that it won't come to that because they still have their secret weapon. Suddenly, one of the men was shocked to see Big Goldie behind Gao Peng and Huang Ya which made the man wonder if it was the duck they saw earlier. And how did it grow so big? Gao Peng said the flames Flamey did weren't just for destroying the wood peacock's favorable terrain. With the flames acting as a distraction, Flamey successfully moved Goldie to a safe location. Following Gao Peng direction, Flamey activated Goldie's passive when it was waking it up. Flamey slaps Goldie continually to wake it up. Gao Peng thinks in a situation where both forces Lord Tears are at a standstill. As long as Goldie's passive is stacked high enough, Goldie will be able to crush those at the same level as it and that is the key to breaking that siege. The man asks his familiars why they're so afraid of the duck when they outnumber them. Then he orders his familiars to kill the bald ugly duck. Gao Peng tells Goldie that those guy is laughing at him for not having feathers and calling him ugly, which made Goldie pissed. Then attack the lion while angrily asking how dare they make fun of him for being bald. Then Goldie kicks the alligator. The man shouted don't rush at it head on because the duck had immense raw strength and they need to restrain it using the spider webs. Then the spider trapped Goldie using its spider webs which made Goldie confused. Then the man tells the girl to use that opportunity to kill Gao Peng and Huang Ya. Then the girl orders his glass mantis to attack. The mantis attacked Gao Peng and Huang Ya which made Huang Ya said their situation is bad. But Gao Peng smiled while thinking the mantis attack is just in time. Then Gao Peng pushed Huang Ya aside and blocked Huang Ya from the mantis attack which made Huang Ya shocked. The owner of the mantis happily said they got one. But the other man asked the girl to look at Gao Peng because Gao Peng is completely unscathed. On the other hand, Goldie got bigger which made Goldie free from the spider web which made the platinum hands man ask why did the duck grow bigger. Then Goldie steps on the glass mantis and looks at the platinum hands who currently wonder if they can really defeat Goldie. Garu who was watching thinks he miscalculated because he thought eight familiars would be enough to take down Gao Peng and Wang Ya. Suddenly the mountain spirit made a noise and released a black aura which made Garu excitedly thinks the mountain spirit is already halfway through its evolution. Then Garu laughed and said the mountain spirit king's merging process can't be reversed now and the strongest mountain spirit king is about to be born. Garu also said that is Platinum Hand's first step to conquering the world and when that time comes, Yuju City will be the first to taste his wrath, which made Gao Peng wonder what mountain spirit king Garu is talking about. 
Then Gao Peng realizes that Garu was talking about the monster name's Mountain Spirit King who currently evolving. It was level 50.5 with an unknown tier yet and its attribute is Earth. Its grade is epic or perfect and its description said a herd of mountain spirits has gathered around one of its own in an attempt to stimulate its evolution. Also, the system said the mountain spirit king is still in the middle of evolving. Gao Peng said it was a new tier and he wonder if that was the Platinum Hand's plan. Garu then orders the mountain spirit king to trap Gao Peng and Huang Yi and don't let any one of them escape. The mountain spirit king heard Garu and grabbed Gao Peng team. But the Mountain Spirit King also grabbed Garu and his team who were currently confused. Garu asks the Mountain Spirit King what the meaning of his doing, and why he's trapping them too. But still the Mountain Spirit King grabs everyone. Gao Peng snaps some glow stick, then he asks Wang if he's okay. Wang responded is okay. Gao Peng looked at his surrounding while realizing that they were completely sealed in and he wonders if they were inside the tremors. Then Gao Peng heard Garu and his team from behind, which made Gao Peng wonders if those platinum hands arguing with each other. Gao Peng thinks the platinum hands can't fully control the mountain spirit king either. Then Gao Peng saw a hole that keeps radiating heat. He thinks the hole looks like an exit, but he's not sure where it leads to. Gao Peng patted Sad Stripey while thinking his grandfather should be on his way and as long as they can hold on until his grandfather arrives, everything should be fine. Meanwhile, it's somewhere. Secretary Han tells Jai Huan that according to reliable sources, Gao Peng left the city through the exit, but they're not able to confirm Gao Peng exact location. Secretary Han also tells Jai Huan that a blood contract can only allow a trainer to communicate with their familiar telepathically within a certain range. Neither party can sense the other's exact location. Jai Huan tells Secretary Han that he did a good job. Then Jai Huan ride white while angrily saying he wants to see who dares to touch his grandson. Then he orders White to go. Meanwhile, in the Mountain Spirit King trap place, the Platinum Hands tried to destroy the wall using the Thunder Ape power, while Gao Peng teams just looked at Garu's teams. Gao Peng look at the wall and he thinks the wall is very tough even the Lord tier tried to break it. And if it was a Commander tier, it probably wouldn't even be able to make a dent. Gao Peng knows that the Mountain Spirit King isn't dumb and it definitely won't let a group of monsters punch their way out of there. Gao Peng also knows that they won't break down the walls any faster than the Mountain Spirit King can create them. Then Gao Peng tells Flamey that if he had nothing to do, he should peck at Goldie's butt, just in case of an emergency, to which Flamey understand. Then Gao Peng holds his clothes while saying it was getting hotter and hotter there and if it continues like that, he'll probably die of dehydration which made Stripey look at Gao Peng sad. Suddenly Garu walk toward Gao Peng and tells Gao Peng that the situation is dire, so they need to have a ceasefire because they only have a chance at survival if their familiars attack the wall together, and Garu said he have a plan that can buy them more time. Garu said his plan is a sacrifice because now that the Mountain Spirit King is at a critical stage of its evolution, it needs an insane amount of energy that's why it swallowed them because they look like a delicious feast in the Mountain Spirit King's eyes. Then Garu pointed to the hole while saying that according to his knowledge, that hole leads to the Mountain Spirit's core and it'll continuously emit heat until its prey dies of dehydration. Then, the corpse will be slowly absorbed by the Mountain Spirit. Garu said if they send in a sacrifice, it'll stop emitting heat until it has finished enjoying its meal. Gao Peng asks Garu where are they going to find a sacrifice. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked because he understands what Garu saying. Garu tells Gao Peng that they'll take turns sending in their familiars as a sacrifice to satiate the Mountain Spirit King's hunger. Garu said his team will send one of their familiars to the hole, and then Gao Peng will send one of his familiars too. Then Garu asks Gao Peng how his plan sound, but before Gao Peng can answer Garu said as proof of his sincerity, He'll go first. Then he orders one of his familiars to go into the hole which made Gao Peng shocked and tried to stop Garu, but it's too late. Garu smiled and tells Gao Peng that he had proven his sincerity, so it's his turn now. But Gao Peng firmly said he refused because his familiars are his friends and he will not sacrifice his friends' lives so that he can live a little longer. Suddenly Stripey ran toward the hole, which made Gao Peng shocked and asked Stripey what is Stripey doing. Stripey responded that he'll help Gao Peng to slow down the big chunk of rock and he'll be back in a second. The girl said people from Huexia sure are hypocrites, and he tells Gao Peng that his is acting as if he cares when he was actually planning to sacrifice his crab all along. The girl's words made Gao Peng angry and asked the girl what did she say. Then Gao Peng punched the girl because he's a Sigma male who didn't take no BS, and looks at her angrily while saying if she spouts nonsense again, he'll tear her apart, which made the girl shake in fear. Then Gao Peng ran toward the hole with Goldie while saying their blood contract tells him that Stripey is still alive. Then he asks Goldie to follow him to save that little fool Stripey. On the other hand, the man tells Garu that they hit one of their own and Gao Peng team looks like they're not willing to cooperate. Then the man asks Garu if should they kill them. Garu responded that no need and they should let them throw their lives away and buy them some time. When Gao Peng and Goldie were ready to jump into the hole, they heard something. 
the piece of the wall was destroyed. Then Gao Peng saw White Hand on the broken wall. Then Jai Huan looks at the broken wall and asks Gao Peng if he's okay and if he's hurt. Gao Peng waved his hands while assuring his grandfather he's okay. Then Gao Peng pointed to the hole and asked his grandfather if can he let White break down the wall because Stripey's inside. Jai Huan responded okay and tells Gao Peng to move aside. Then White used its claws to break the hole. Gao Peng look at the hole and realizes there's another hole at the bottom and he can't see where the hole leads. Then Gao Peng shouted to ask Stripey if it can hear him and ordered Stripey to come out. Suddenly Gao Peng heard Stripey said he's so sleepy which made Gao Peng think Stripey responded sounds like it's not in any life-threatening danger just yet. Then Gao Peng shouted to Stripey to hurry up and come out because his grandfather is already there and he's safe now. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that it is too dangerous down in the hole and he tells Gao Peng to come out first. Gao Peng realizes that they can only rely on White Dragon to break down the walls to reach Stripey and being there will only hinder White, so he should leave first. Then Gao Peng helped Huang Yi to walk toward Jai Huan while telling his grandfather that Huang is hurt, so Huang Yi should get out first. Huang Yi tried to make Gao Peng go first, but Gao Peng just tells Huang Yi that his grandfather is there now so no danger will come to him. Then the man said your excellency but before the man can finish his words, Garu made him silent and tells the man that they'll sneak out after Gao Peng teams leave. Suddenly Gao Peng look at the platinum hands and angrily tell them if they think he'll forget about them. Then Gao Peng pointed to Garu while telling his grandfather that those are the people from the platinum hands inside, and they were their enemies which made Garu shocked. Then White hit Garu using the stone, which made Garu smashed. Then White grabbed Gao Peng who currently thinking that if their places were switched his familiars would be squashed by easily too. Then Gao Peng wondered if the difference in strength is that big because he was not sure when it started. But he had slowly come to value only the familiars grades and not their levels. Gao Peng thought as long as their grade improved, his familiar could beat monsters tens of levels higher, or maybe even a whole tier above, but a monster's strength grows exponentially. At late tiers, the difference in strength grows bigger. Whether it's the Mountain Spirit's King Rock Wall Trap or the White Dragon's Emperor Claw, the difference between King Tier and Lord Tier monsters is as clear as day. Suddenly the Mountain Spirit King cried which made Gao Peng wonder why the Mountain Spirit King's cry sounds fairly weak, and the magma flowing on its surface is turning dull. Gao Peng saw the system that the monster spirit king who currently evolving was weak and its condition said it was about to hibernate forever. Also, its supply of energy is insufficient. Gao Peng thinks the mountain spirit king's vitality is growing weaker and weaker, and he can feel Stripey's life force growing fainter. Then Gao Peng asks his grandfather if he can send White to go kill a couple of mountain spirits, which made Jai Huan ask if he heard Gao Peng right. Gao Peng responded yes because they'll feed the core of the Mountain Spirits to the Mountain Spirit King. Gao Peng also said he noticed that the weaker the Mountain Spirit King is, the fainter Stripey's life forces, and right now, the only way to save Stripey is to ensure nothing goes wrong with the Mountain Spirit King. White screamed and attacked all the Mountain Spirits one by one in its way. Then White get all the Mountain Spirits cores. Then White throws it to the Mountain Spirit King. The cores are slowly absorbed by the Mountain Spirit King. Then the system showed that the Mountain Spirit King's condition said an error has occurred during evolution, so a new life will be born. Gao Peng notices that the Mountain Spirit King has stopped moving, but the system says it's still evolving, and he thinks they made the right move, but there seems to be a new power growing within the Mountain Spirit King's stomach. It was very weak, but it was full of desire for survival, which made Gao Peng wonder if it was Stripey. Gao Peng hold his head angrily while thinking Stripey is in danger because of him. Then he asks himself what were he being cocky for. Gao Peng also thinks he was supposed to be following the principle of prudence, but his action lately contradicts his low-profile lifestyle. Then he wonders if he thinks he's on top of the world now, after acting as a referee once. Jai Huan held Gao Peng's shoulder and tells Gao Peng not to be too hard on himself. Then Jai Huan said they should go back and think about their next move. Then Jai Huan assured Gao Peng that he'll help him to save Stripey. Gao Peng angrily thinks if Stripey dies, he'll kill every last mountain spirit in Yuju to avenge Stripey. Half a month later, Flamey was flying in the sky, then Flamey landed on the side of the river lake while holding a fish. On the other hand, Goldie sadly looked at Flamey while asking Flamey why can Flamey feathers were grow and if they didn't agree on being bald together. Then Gao Peng looked at his familiar training while thinking after the incident with Stripey, his familiars all started to train harder during the half month, especially Especially da Zai. Although Da Zai doesn't say anything, Da Zai is always the first one to wake up and train every day. Da Zai was also the last one to go to sleep. Gao Peng said his blood contract with Stripey tells him that Stripey isn't in any life-threatening danger, and it's only that it has fallen into a deep sleep. However, his grandfather organized a dedicated team to scan the Mountain Spirit King's body, but they couldn't locate Stripey's exact location. Suddenly Gao Peng feels something that made him wonder what's going on. Then the ground his feet standing on collapsed and the tree he hit using his hand broke. 
Gao Peng was shocked and wondered why his strength suddenly increased so much. Then Gao Peng calms himself and closes his eyes because he senses something extraordinary senses. Gao Peng feels that his third familiar has awakened which made him think it was Stripey. Suddenly Gao Peng heard Stripey ask him where he was and Stripey said he's scared of heights. Gao Peng happily asked Stripey if he was awake and where he is right now. Stripey responded he don't know and is so sleepy. Gao Peng thinks Stripey has probably absorbed the mountain spirit king. Otherwise, there's no other explanation for the monstrous strength and Stripey should be at the same place they had left it. Gao Peng also thinks although monster trainers can receive a 1 over 100 physical boost from their strongest familiar, they aren't able to use any of their familiar's skills so he always thought it was a useless boost. But now he feels like superb. Together with his extraordinary senses, he's not only possessed the powerful six senses, but he can also perfectly control the power he holds. Then Gao Peng tells his familiars that they should go because they're bringing Stripey back which made Da Zai shocked. Da Zai asks Gao Peng if he wants to ride on his back. Gao Peng responded is good and asked Da Zai if Da Zai want to have a race with him. Da Zai asks Gao Peng if he will buy something yummy for him to eat if Gao Peng won. Gao Peng tells Da Zai he'll buy him something yummy if he loses and if he wins, Da Zai will get nothing. Da Zhe confidently called Gao Peng stupid because Gao Peng is going to lose. Then Gao Peng said they should start. Then Gao Peng ran fast which made Silly who currently holding on to him shocked and confused. Also, Goldie and Da Zai were shocked which made Da Zai ask if Gao Peng isn't dummy dressed as Gao Peng. Gao Peng was in a far running, while Da Zai calling dummy to wait for him because Da Zai thinks dummy was dressed as Gao Peng which leaves the real dummy confused. Stripey wonder if Gao Peng come for him, then Stripey look at his surrounding and said where is this place, and the place is way too high. Stripey stand up, which made Goldie and dummy shocked and confused. Then Silly tried to pull Gao Peng while saying they should run because there's a big fish. Da Zhe also pulled Gao Peng legs and tells Gao Peng to run. But Gao Peng grabbed Silly and tells Silly to look closely at who it is, but Silly passed out which made Gao Peng said Silly is too much of a coward. Stripey's new monster's name is Disaster Mountain Spider. It was level 51 King Tier and its grade is epic. Its attributes are Earth, Rock, and Magma. Also, Stripey skills are Giant Body Level 1, Earth Control Level 5, Magma Control Level 2, and Hardened Rock Level 3. Gao Peng said Stripey's strength really has a meteoric rise this time. Gao Peng thinks now that Stripey is an epic grade, it's probably became a legendary grade during evolution, and reached King Tier, but Stripey is too big to travel around with them now. It's like a fortress, it's only suitable for defending a particular location. Then Gao Peng welcomes Stripey back. Stripey bended to see Gao Peng and said he want to hold Gao Peng, but he can't hold him as he used to now. Gao Peng was shocked and asked Stripey if he can talk now, not through their blood contract but with his own voice. Then Gao Peng patted Stripey and praised it. Gao Peng tells Stripey that he had grown so big now, so he should learn to be quieter, and since Stripey absorbed the mountain spirit's essence, from now on, Gao Peng said Stripey shall be the ruler of the mountains. Stripey happily agrees and said he'll help Gao Peng keep those mountain spirits in line and be the ruler of the mountains. A few hours later, Stripey was in the back of the river lake looking at confused white. On the other hand, Gao Peng asks his grandfather if he just let the news out like that. Jai Huan responded that he wanted to cover up for Gao Peng. But Jai Huan asked Gao Peng if he has seen the size of his familiar and how he was supposed to hide Stripey, and he said the people aren't blind. Jai Huan also said everyone in Yuzhu knows about Stripey and the government said they'd accommodate their request, and that they've already reported the situation to the federal government of the Huaxia region. Then Jai Huan asks what if people know and what can they do about Stripey. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he must remember that the strong will always prey on the weak. Then Jai Huan also tells Gao Peng, back when he was gone, they had laid their hands on the southern sky ground, and they had nothing by the time he returned, and the night he came back he was ambushed by snipers, familiars, and even bombs. Gao Peng angrily asks his grandfather who did it to him. But Jai Huan just asked Gao Peng if he looks like someone who would bide their time to seek vengeance. Jai Huan said he took white with him the next day and he executed his enemy one by one till it was a bloodbath, then, they started to fear him. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he was hoping to spare him for a couple more years, but within a blink of an eye, he had already grown so much and he no longer need him anymore, which made Gao Peng stun. Then Gao Peng asks his grandfather shyly if that is cue to act cute, which made Jai Huan call Gao Peng a little brat. Wang Ye arrived and tells Gao Peng and Jai Huan that the two familiar corpses had arrived at the laboratory. Gao Peng thanked Huang Yi and ordered Huang Yi to go prepare first and he'll join him later. Then Gao Peng tells his grandfather that he'll be leaving to handle the two corpses. When Gao Peng was walking away, he feels his grandfather's gaze behind him. Suddenly Jai Huan attacked Gao Peng. Fortunately, Gao Peng blocked it using his hand. Then Gao Peng asks his grandfather what is he doing. 
But Jai Huan just walk away while saying Gao Peng is not bad and he had gotten stronger. Then Jai Huan said Gao Peng must be hungry, so he's going to rustle up some food, leaving Gao Peng confused. While Jai Huan was walking away, he thinks Gao Peng doesn't know how to respect his elders and he can't believe Gao Peng used his full strength. Jai Huan's hand was shaking while he was saying he shouldn't have held back. But he also said now that Gao Peng has the strength to protect himself, he can let go of many of his worries now. The night comes. The two beasts' corpses were lying on the ground. Wang Ye tells Gao Peng that those are the two familiar skeletons they brought back. The winged thunder ape died on the spot so they brought back its corpse and its blood and flesh have been broken down to make materials. As for the wood peacock, it survived, but it refused to eat anything and starved itself to death. Gao Peng said that is a familiar's way of proving their loyalty and that's their benevolence toward it, so no need to force it. Then Gao Peng tells Wang Ye not to worry because that isn't his fault. Then Gao Peng tells Dummy that it's his turn. Dummy uses his summoning soul skill, but the peacock soul doesn't respond. Gao Peng said Dummy is currently level 43 but the peacock was level 44. So Gao Peng wonder if that means Dummy can only extract souls that are lower than its level. Gao Peng thinks the possibility is very high. Then Gao Peng look at the ape soul responding to Dummy call which Gao Peng thinks it seems to be going smoothly. Gao Peng said those glowing fragments should be the lingering memories contained inside the soul. And Gao Peng also said every life has its own epic. Dummy said the ape had too many memories and there was no use absorbing it, so Dummy burn it. Suddenly the ape's eye opened and it screamed while the system showed the monster's name as a winged skeletal ape subordinate to the skeletal tyrant, which made Gao Peng think his plan worked. Stripey was happily thinking as the ruler of the mountains continuously. The system showed Stripey's special characteristic is the heart of earth. An earthen heart had replaced its original heart and increases the earth's affinity with the condition of it losing the possibility of confluence between other attributes. Effect 1, passive effect is earth control level 1. Effect 2, passive effect said as long as it's in contact contact with the ground, it can indefinitely absorb Earth's elemental energy to form a layer of granite armor, and that skill is inextricably linked to its Earth control ability. The other one is the disaster cloud. The Earth is not its only source of power, nor is the magma flowing deep beneath the Earth. Excess magma energy collected is released in the form of ash-gray smog through the holes on its back which is known as the disaster cloud. Effect 1, passive effect said the clouds have incredibly powerful magma energy and can absorb the energies indefinitely until it reaches its limit. Effect 2, active effect said disaster cloud mastery is an incredibly powerful attack that rains magma from the skies on its opponents. Also, Stripey's weaknesses are impenetrable defense, large body. As long as it's in contact with the ground, it can raise its defensive power indefinitely. However, mobility is extremely poor due to its gigantic size, and it has to be in contact with the Earth to maximize its battle potential. Stripey's monster introduction set an Earth Shield spider that consumed the heart of an evolving Mountain Spirit King. It was lucky enough to merge and evolve with the Mountain Spirit King to evolve into an extremely rare disaster Mountain Spider. Gao Peng looked at the winged skeletal ape while thinking that the power of reviving the dead always amazes him every time. The winged skeletal ape level is 41 in normal grade. Its attributes are ghoul and bone, and its weaknesses are holy and light. Gao Peng thinks the winged skeletal ape's level and grade are one level lower, and a reincarnated ghoul can't access the full spectrum of its power and abilities from when it was alive. Even if the reincarnated ghoul is the same attributes, there is a difference in the strength of all reincarnated ghouls. Gao Peng also thinks the factor that affects that difference is still unknown. But currently, he doesn't have time to research that kind of thing. Then Gao Peng tells Dummy to order the winged skeletal ape to carry the remains of the wood peacock to the laboratory and Dummy should tell the winged skeletal to be gentle because even its master wasn't a good person, it really is a good familiar. Also Gao Peng tells Dummy that his daughter named Xiao Hu already evolved successfully and Xiao Hu was still sleeping in the cottage when he left, so Gao Peng asks Dummy to go into the cottage to see if his daughter is awake. Then Gao Peng walk away while telling Dummy that he'll be heading back first. Dummy vow his head and thank Gao Peng. The next morning, in the laboratory, Gao Peng was looking at the monitor confused asking Stripey when did his head have so many tangerine trees. Suddenly Gao Peng saw something climb down fast on Stripey's head which made Gao Peng shocked. Then Gao Peng noticed that it was Da Zai and angrily asked what is Da Zai doing which made Da Zai shake in fear. Da Zai looks at the camera and waves his hand with dirt while explaining to Gao Peng that it wasn't him and that he didn't do anything. But Gao Peng notices the dirt in his claws and asks what is on his claws. Da Zhe immediately hides his claws behind his back. Then Gao Peng released the camera hands, then grabs Da Zai hand, and swings Da Zai in the air while Gao Peng angrily asks Da Zai how many times did he have to tell him to not bully Stripey. Da Zhe called Gao Peng ugly and asked Gao Peng to let go of him, while Stripey told Gao Peng his okay and his head is all rock so he don't feel anything. Stripey also said Da Zai was only playing with him. 
Daja used his skill which made the camera hands let go of him. Then Daja immediately run to climb up on Stripey head while telling Gao Peng to stay in the laboratory and he'll bring back tangerines for him. Suddenly the monitor in the laboratory showed Huang Yu who was calling Gao Peng which made Gao Peng confused. Then Gao Peng asks Huang Yu what is it and if it's about the progress of the arrangements he made before. Huang Yu responded yes and said the school established in his name has been completed and the first batch of orphans to be enrolled has been arranged. Wang Ye also said the school is built close to the Southern Sky Group, which assures the orphans' safety and as Gao Peng instructed, the school provides a full waiver of miscellaneous fees, food, and a hostel. As for teachers and lesson plans, they've already consulted professionals and he believes they'll see the results soon. Gao Peng told Wang Ye that he did great and there have been so many orphans after the cataclysm who the Alliance can't possibly take care of, so their lives aren't as amazing as the media portrays the orphans to be. But of course, they won't force the orphans and that is a fair deal. Gao Peng also said they'll ensure that the orphans receive top-class education, and if the orphans' grades are good, they'll even gift them familiars. However, there is no such thing as free lunch. Giving goes both ways, all they want from the orphans is a little bit of loyalty. Then Gao Peng tells Wang Yi he had worked hard and he should carry on. Wang Ye tells Gao Peng that there's one thing he wants to say, and it was a young lady named Lin Xinryu who is there to see him. Gao Peng responded that Wang Ye should send Xinryu straight to his laboratory because Xinryu made an appointment with him, to which Wang Ye immediately followed. Half an hour later, Xinryu with his beast meets Gao Peng in the laboratory. Then Xinryu tells Gao Peng that he looks like he made a pretty good haul. Gao Peng responded that he see that Xinryu is well informed and it looks like she had given his offer some serious thought. Then Gao Peng tells Xinrui to trust him and join the Southern Sky Group, and he promises Xinrui that she won't regret it. Then Gao Peng looked at Xinrui's familiar and asked if that is the familiar Xinrui wanted to promote, to which Xinrui responded yes. Xinrui monster's name is Goldtail Divine Shrimp. It was level 40 in excellent grade and its abilities are Muscle Growth level 2 and Shell Hardening level 1. Its attributes are gold and its weaknesses are 1, fire, and 2. The point in its tail where the third and fourth joints connect is very weak. Gao Peng thinks the shrimp should be a close relative of the sparrow-tailed mantis shrimp. Then Gao Peng saw the system that showed the ways of reaching the shrimp's perfect grade is 6. This made Gao Peng think some of the materials can be found in the lab, and some can be found in the wild. But, no matter which way he chooses, it will be difficult to gather the materials immediately and it was troublesome for him. Gao Peng tells Xinrui that he knows a way of promoting her shrimp, but he lack of the materials. Gao Peng also said he'll immediately send people to gather the necessary materials and if they're fortunate, they should have all the materials in a week. And if not, Gao Peng asks Xinrui to give him a week. Xinrui tells Gao Peng not to worry because she's not in the hurry. Xinrui said after all, there is no monster breeder who has a 100% success rate in the world. And if Gao Peng failed, she understand. But she assured Gao Peng that she believe in him. Gao Peng smile and tells Xinrui not to worry because he'll definitely keep his promise and he wished them happy cooperation in advance. Meanwhile, at near the Adamantium Bridge, there's a corpse lying on the ground. The chief asks the military where is the witness. The military responded that the witness is inside the car and it was just that they were a bit shaken. The chief thinks it's not surprising because according to the coroner, the victim had been decapitated and the wound patterns suggest that it was probably done with a blunt instrument. The chief also thinks that using a blunt instrument for decapitation is sure the suspect must have monstrous strength. Then the military man sitting at the side with a computer called the chief to look at what he found. The chief walked toward the military who was making him look at the computer and the chief was shocked to see the Guangong statue was alive in the landmark of the Adamantium Bridge. Dungong's status is also known as Guan Yu. It was a Chinese military general in the period spanning the late Eastern Han Dynasty 25 to 220 and the Three Kingdoms 220 to 280. The chief immediately orders the military to hurry and check the surveillance cameras because they need to find the Guangong statue. One military man tell the chief that their forces in Chengxi called and said the missing statue was spotted at Chengxi's Magnet Mouth Plaza, which made the chief shocked because the Magnet Mouth Plaza is one of the largest commercial districts. The chief immediately ran toward the car while ordering the militaries to evacuate all of the civilians at the Magnet Mouth Plaza immediately, and bar the non-police and non-military personnel from entering, to which the militaries immediately followed. Meanwhile, Gao Peng was in the Magnet Mouth Commercial District with Silly and Da Zai. Gao Peng thinks the Magnet Mouth Commercial District is currently a bit empty. Gao Peng also thinks he went to every shop but he still hasn't gathered all of the materials he needed, and he wonders if he should check the black market. Suddenly he notices something from the side, then he looks at it while wondering why is the statue so familiar to him and if the statue is the Guanggong statue at the Adamantium Bridge Commercial Street. Also, Gao Peng wonder why the statue is there. 
The Guangong monster name is animated bronze statue of Guangong. It was level 41 lord tier in an excellent grade. Its attribute is gold and its abilities are iron skin metal bones level 3 and super durability level 1. The Guangong statue's weaknesses are 1. Earth, 2. Electric and 3. Items with impurities and its introduction set originally, it was just a normal statue. But it gained life energy after being infused by the power of wishes. The life energy was then fully activated by the surrounding spiritual and elemental energies. So the statue became an animated statue. Which made Gao Peng shocked and wonder what the hell is that Guangong's animated statue. While Gao Peng looking at the Guangong statue system, he thinks the Guangong statue probably isn't faith since there isn't any place to burn incense and worship at the adamantium bridge and the closest it ever came to was passers-by staring at it in respect as they walked past it. Gao Peng get his phone while thinking it was interesting and he should text his grandfather about the Guangong statue. Jai Huan called Gao Peng to say that he received his text but what's interesting is that the Yuzhu city government didn't tell him anything about the Guangong statue because they used to tell him about the situation like that. Gao Peng responded that maybe the government doesn't want to let the word spread and he thinks the civilians don't know about the situation either. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he's not that petty and Thunder God is closest to him, so it'll be in his current location as soon as it can. Gao Peng responded okay to his grandfather, then he hang up. Gao Peng sees the militaries from afar while thinking an animated statue can't really cause much trouble in Yuzhu City, but he hopes that there aren't many animated statues in that historical area of Huexia. Gao Peng realized together with those things that had crawled out of the mausoleum and if the situation isn't a coincidence that is bad. So Gao Peng hopes is just being paranoid. Then Gao Peng noticed the military's attire is the black flags. Gao Peng remembers his grandfather telling him all about the various unit under the allied government, even the secret ones. The black flags are a secret unit under tasked with handling emergencies within the base cities. Then Gao Peng saw many monsters named Obsidian Hounds. The Obsidian Hounds are levels 23 to 35 with normal and excellent grades. Their attribute is dark and their condition is healthy but ferocious, alert, and ready. Gao Peng thinks there are around 50 commander tier Obsidian Hounds there, with all of them expertly trained to turn on a dime. But whether they're enough to take on the Lord tier animated bronze statue is hard to say. The Obsidian Hounds walk toward the Guangong statue. The statue looks at the Obsidian Hounds angrily. Then the horse that the Guangong sitting on stands up and made a noise signaling that it was ready to attack which made the chief realizes that the statue is a Lord tier monster. Then the chief immediately gets his radio and orders the Black Flags to immediately notify the Lord tier monster trainers in Yuzhu City and evacuate all police personnel because their area is now a red zone. One of the obsidian hounds attacks the statue using its claws, but the obsidian hound only leaves a little scratch on the statue. Then the statue stabs the obsidian hound using its spear. The other obsidian hounds ran toward the statue to attack, but the statue swing his spear to the ground and made a big wave that kill the obsidian hounds in half and destroy the things that spear wave hit. The chief sees many of the obsidian hounds get killed which made him think that they won't have enough familiars to maintain order. Then he orders the military to stand down. Suddenly the ground shook which made the chief wonder if there was an earthquake. Then some shells pop out in the ground, and then Thunder God showed itself smiling. The chief look at Thunder God and wonders if isn't it Jai Huan familiar. Gao Peng asks the chief if he is Chief Liu, while the black flag stopping Gao Peng from walking forward and asking for his identity. The black flag pointed a gun at Gao Peng while Gao Peng told them not to be nervous because he was just a law-abiding citizen who just happened to pass by. Then Gao Peng introduces himself, then pointed at Thunder God while saying it was his grandfather's familiar name Thunder God. Liu heard Gao Peng and confirmed that it was really Jai Huan familiar and he wonder if Gao Peng is the legendary grandson of Jai Huan. Then Liu stops the black flag and asks them how could they point a gun at a kind civilian. Then he orders them to stand down. Then Liu held Gao Peng hand while begging for Gao Peng assistance in subduing the rampaging statue for the sake of the city and all its people. Then Liu tells Gao Peng that he implores him. Gao Peng responded that naturally, that is what a citizen of the alliance should do. Then Da Zai tells Thunder God that he'll leave it to him. Thunder God immediately uses his skill to create a thunder ball. Then Thunder God attacks the statue who's in shock after seeing it. Thunder God create more thunder balls to attack again. But the statue avoided all Thunder God attacks while running toward Thunder God to attack. The statue jumps into the sky, launching an attack on Thunder God. But Thunder God immediately used his power to grab the statue's hands and feet which made the statue shocked. Then Thunder God trapped the statue and its horse in the ground. The statue tried to break free from Thunder God trap. But Thunder God breaks the arm of the statue. Gao Peng said Thunder God attribute counter is so scary, and he said the battle is over. On the other hand, one of the black flags asks Luo if the fight is over just like that and if it is possible that the statue expended too much strength against their men earlier. 
and is currently running on fumes. Luo asks the man angrily if he should ask Gao Peng's familiar to stop attacking and send him out there instead, which made the man can't speak a word. Gao Peng who's heard everything smiles and thinks Luo is smart and he thinks they can work together in the future. A minute later, in the truck, Thunder God was guarding the animated bronze statue of Guan Gong who's lightly injured and paralyzed. Gao Peng waves his hand to Luo while thanking Luo for his generosity. Gao Peng also told Luo not to worry because he won't take credit for defeating the statue Lord Tier Monster, and the credits will be on Luo. A few hours later, in the mountain behind the villa, Da Zhe told Gao Peng that Thunder God said it was a little tired. Gao Peng responded that the statue is a Lord Tier monster, after all, so the energy expended while suppressing it must have been great. Suddenly Thunder God trapped slowly faded which made the statue break free. Then the statue immediately kicks his spear up in the air and grabs it. Then the statue immediately attacks Gao Peng. But Gao Peng just caught the spear using one hand and asks the statue why he's weak and if he didn't eat. Then the statue was shocked to feel something powerful looking at him from behind. Then the ground that the statue standing on collapsed which made the statue fall into the hole, while Gao Peng tossed the spear to the side. Then the stone wrapped the statue slowly while the statue tried to break free. But unfortunately, the statue was wrapped inside a huge stone. Gao Peng said the stone is so big and its radius should be at least 50-60 meters. But Gao Peng said it was expected of a king tier monster and it could easily deal catastrophic damage. Then Gao Peng asks Stripey who currently looking at the stone that he'll be leaving the statue in his care. Then Stripey sit on the stone which made Gao Peng tell Stripey is telling him to keep an eye on it, not hatch it like an egg. Then Gao Peng's cell phone rang. Wang Ya told Gao Peng that as he had instructed those are the photo taken near the human Shan Buddha statue. Then Wang Ya sent the photo which made Gao Peng think the statue doesn't show any stats, so the Buddha statue should only be an ordinary statue. But the mountain and rivers have experienced certain mutations after the cataclysm which makes rivers have turbulent water flow and the river in front of the statue is way too calm, so it's possible that the Buddha statue has experiences mutation but hasn't awakened yet. On the other note, there's a place called Yungang Grottoes at Yuncheng Base City in the Bing province and in just one night, all the Buddha statues there came to life. Also, no one knows the exact situation, but it is said that the allied government's Huexia branch has already dispatched a team to investigate. Other nations haven't responded to that incident because that phenomenon hasn't only occurred in Huexia. Other nations have also encountered similar troubles, like Rome, Greece, and Egypt. Gao Peng thinks the Allied government is losing their prestige and control. Even though the New World Allied government was formed immediately after the cataclysm in order to save humanity, the world is simply evolving way too quickly. Gao Peng knows that humanity has long been booted from the top of the food chain and he can't imagine what would happen if the world continued to evolve so fiercely, and the only thing they can do is accept the truth and focus on becoming stronger, as long as they keep themselves ahead of the evolutionary race. Also, no matter how cruel the world becomes, they can still survive. Then Gao Peng shouted bring it on and they should see if the monster can mutate faster, or if his familiars can evolve faster. Then Gao Peng calmly tanked Huang Ye and ordered Huang Ye to continue to follow up to which Huang Ye immediately agrees. A few moments later, Gao Peng saw that the statue status is healthy and calm but depressed. The statue likes are 1. Standing motionless and pretending to be an ordinary statue. 2. Decapitating evildoers. And its weakness is the power of impurity. Gao Peng who's looking at the statue thinks the statue has accepted its fate because the King Tier familiar is the one guarding it, so it can neither fight nor run. Then Gao Peng smiled evilly while thinking about the statue's weakness. Then Gao Peng made the chickens poop on it, but the statue still acts ordinarily. Then Gao Peng dumped blood on it, which made the statue gets angry at Gao Peng, while Gao Peng thinks it had no effect, and he figured out that the power of impurity isn't referring to dog blood or feces. Gao Peng wonders if it could be an undiscovered hidden material like the wood space heart. Then Gao Peng tells Stripey that he has other things to do, so he'll leave the statue there with him. Gao Peng also tells Stripey to talk to the statue when he's bored and ask about its reason behind killing people if he can, to which Stripey agree. Then Stripey looked at the statue and laughed while saying he finally had someone he can talk to, which made the statue shocked in fear. Then Stripey bury the statue in the ground while happily asking the statue if had eaten mealworms before. Then Stripey realizes the man is a statue and he thinks it is pitiful that the statue doesn't even know what it's like to taste the mealworm. Stripey also asks the statue if he knows mealworms are delicious, and Stripey said he thinks that the mealworms that Gao Peng bought for him in Chang'an City were the tastiest, but it's a pity because he had never eaten such delicious mealworms again. 
Then Stripey again asked the statue if he had heard of Chang'an City before, and Stripey said the statue had probably never been there. Stripey explained that it's a base city that's almost as big as Yuzhu City. Then Stripey asked the statue again if he heard about him, and Stripey said he think the statue should have heard of him because he had gotten a lot of praise from the stupid humans outside recently, and the humans said that he's the greatest familiar in the world. Then Stripey angrily asks the statue why he's ignoring him. Then Stripey tells the man that they should talk about his hobbies instead. Then Stripey asks the statue why did he kill those humans. The statue who's currently trapped underground responded that he just saw a couple of hooligans causing trouble in the neighborhood, so he killed them with one strike. Then the statue begs Stripey to stop talking. Stripey look at the statue, realizing the statue can talk. Then he tells the statue that they should continue chatting for a bit. A few days, at the entrance to the forest outside of Yuzhu City, Stripey was walking. Gao Peng and his other familiars were on the head of Stripey exhausted. Gao Peng said although it's safe to ride on Stripey, then he looks at the smoke coming out from Stripey and said whenever Stripey moves, it absorbs the heat from the earth and exudes black smoke that is extremely high in temperature, and it's really too hot. Then Gao Peng thinks the talk about the statues coming alive has died down lately, and their willpower is too fierce, they would rather die than submit to humans and become familiar. So, the allied government could only make an agreement with the statues to gain some control over them. But that incident has given him an idea. Since the rate of mutation is so fast, there should be undiscovered monsters and treasures hidden in the mountains outside of Yuzhu City. Before due to not having a safe resting place, monster hunter teams could only explore the parts near Yuzhu City. But now the resources in the forest near Yuzhu city have been emptied, and only a handful of experienced monster hunter teams dare to enter areas that are far from the city. Gao Peng also thinks if he could get the mountain spirits to cooperate, he can create a method that's similar to a mountain post. Then, individual duels and teams could venture further in without any worries, and when they're tired or need supplies, they can rest at the outpost. As for the price making it three to four times higher than the market price would suffice. After all, transporting goods out to the wild needs manpower. Also, they could charge guests for accommodation for the night and charge them according to a fixed rate for resting in the morning. Then Gao Peng Happy pointed to somewhere and said they could make a huge profit no matter how he look at it. Then he said they should scout the routes first. One month later, Gao Peng was looking at his tablet while Happy saying the fourth outpost is set. Then he told Stripey that they should move on to their next destination. Gao Peng also said they had currently united more than 10 mountain spirits and that really is a big project and he had been traveling most of his time. In the past month, Flamey, Goldie, and Stripey reached level 39 and level 40. They're only one step away from reaching Lord Tier. Gao Peng happily said he'll have four Lord Tier familiars and one King Tier familiar soon. Suddenly he heard something, and when he looked back he saw many mutated bees coming on their way. The bees monster's name is Lion Blade Bees in a Swarm. They were level 11 to 20 in normal, excellent, and perfect grades. The bee's attributes are gold, poison, and wind and their skills are armor-piercing stinger level 2 and anesthetic acute poison level 1. The bee's special characteristic is sound wave and their special skill set can only activate when their swarm number reaches at least 100,000 and their special effect can cause auditory discomfort to nearby monsters. Also, the bee's weaknesses are a lion blade bee is weak by itself. The bee's description said as descendants of the bumblebee, lion blades bees are a vicious and bloodthirsty species with no fears. Their greatest desire is to feast on fresh flesh and they shy away when alone. Also, the bees fear nothing. However, as a swarm, they fear nothing and would even try to take on a dragon. Gao Peng knows that a lion blade with an anesthetic poison can make the victim immobilized once stung, and the victims can only watch helplessly as a swarm of bloodthirsty predators devours their one of the worst ways punishments. Then Gao Peng smile while thinking the bees will be perfect to test Stripey's new skill named Disaster Cloud. Then Stripey used his Disaster Cloud skill which made the bees burn alive, then the bees fall to the ground. Gao Peng who currently looking at burned falling bees realized that is the power of lava and he said the fried smell does smell nice. Then he called Flamey while saying they should go over to the spot where the bees fell. Gao Peng was riding Flamey who currently flying while thinking that the bees are all elite tier monsters and thousand of monster corpses mean thousands of monster core crystals, so he'll become rich without even trying. Then Flamey saw the cooked bees on the ground and excitedly said it was yummy. Then Flamey eat the bee, while Gao Peng asked Flamey if it was really tasty. Then Gao Peng called Dummy and Dummy immediately landed on Gao Peng's back. Gao Peng ordered Dummy to try to resurrect the bees corpses which Dummy immediately did. The bee's skeletal resurrect, but immediately broke too. Dummy tells Gao Peng that the bee's type of monster doesn't have a complete skeletal structure inside its body, so he cannot resurrect them. Gao Peng responded never mind. Then he looks at Happy Flamey who currently looking at the bee on the ground, while Gao Peng remembering that there were a couple of bees over Flamey place, but now it's all gone. 
Dao Peng wonder if Flamey finished devouring the bees so quickly. Then Flamey approached the bees and started to eat it. Also, Goldie and Stripey were there eating it which made Gao Peng wonder when did Da Zai and Goldie come there. Then Gao Peng looked at Dummy and told Dummy that since they were already there he should try reviving every dead creature buried in the earth there. To which Dummy immediately did. Many different types of monsters come out from underground. Then Gao Peng noticed that Dummy also revives the adventurer. Then he orders Dummy to let the adventurer rest in peace because they shouldn't disturb it any longer, which Dummy immediately followed. Suddenly they heard something move in the bush, then Dummy stepped forward to protect Gao Peng while telling Gao Peng that something has happened and the resurrected ghouls have encountered a monster. Then Dummy told Gao Peng that he will let the Legion go first. Then Dummy ordered the Legion to go check the bush which the Legion immediately did. Then something inside the bush moves, and the mouse jumps out of the bush which made Gao Peng confused. Then the mouse ran past them while Gao Peng ordered Dummy and Flamey to catch it. Flamey uses his fireballs, but the mouse avoided all Flamey attacks while running. Dummy immediately appeared in the mouse's back which made the mouse shocked. Then Dummy grabs the mouse who currently moving trying to escape. Gao Peng looked at the mouse and said it was a pleasant surprise. The mouse monster's name is a money-grubbing mouse. It's level 18 and normal grade and its attribute is mystic. Its condition is healthy but afraid and it had three ways to evolve to excellent grades. Gao Peng thinks the mouse's name is boring and its grade isn't high, but that is the first time he had seen a monster with the mystic attribute, so it's worth catching. Then Gao Peng told Dummy to let Stripey watch over the mouse, and he should let his ghouls gather the lion blade bees' corpses together. A few moments later, all the bees' corpses were in the big hole. Then Gao Peng tells Flamey that it's his time to shine. Then Flamey burned all the bees' corpses, to which the bees' crystal cores were left on the ground. Gao Peng thinks after obtaining power, gaining riches has become an incredibly easy feat. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to order the ghouls to move the core crystals onto Stripey's back. Dummy orders his ghouls, which his ghouls immediately followed. Then Gao Peng look at the crystal core excitedly while saying although the bees are just low-level elite tier core crystals, the sheer volume of the crystal core can at least get him 10,000 alliance credits. Then Gao Peng order Dummy to recall the ghoul legion because they should head in deeper and persuade the rest of the mountain spirits in half a month. On the other hand, Da Zai, Silly, and Goldie were behind Gao Peng back getting some crystal cores. Da Zai told Goldie to hurry and eat the crystal core before Gao Peng sees them because if Gao Peng sees them they won't be able to eat the crystals, to which Goldie responded Roger that. After half month, in the villa lakeside, Gao Peng and his familiars were looking at the pond confused. Gao Peng wondered when did another pond appear there. Suddenly a big tail come out into the lake which made Gao Peng and his familiars shocked and wonder if it was a big crocodile. Then Gao Peng patted angry Flamey while telling Flamey to be good because it isn't his enemy. Jai Huan said a month ago, there was a massive flood at the Pearl River Delta that unearthed an enormous underwater cavern, and that's where it crawled out from. Coincidentally, he was thinking of catching a monster to bring home, so he chose it. Which made Gao Peng realize that the crocodile was his grandfather's new familiar. The crocodile monster's name is Ancestral Viridian Crocodile, an ancestral variant. It was level 46 Lord Tier and perfect grade. Its attribute is water and its abilities are water control level 3. Hardened carapace level 3 and explosive crunch level 4. Its special ability is berserker blood. Blood undergoes violent mutation. A high chance of inducing blood rage. Effect 1. Passive effect said gains a violent bloodlust proportional to the severity of the damage taken which increases its strength and explosiveness for a short period of time. The crocodile condition is healthy and calm and the requirement for its epic grade is the ancestor Ancestral Viridian Crocodile is currently in the process of reversing its mutation, and that is an irreversible process, and it will not be able to evolve until the process is completed. Also, it needs to consume many water attributes treasures. The more it consumes, the purer its blood will become. Gao Peng said the crocodile familiar is so cool. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that his familiars aren't too bad either, then Jai Huan look at angry Flamey while asking Gao Peng if Flamey is going to promote soon. Gao Peng responded yes and said Flamey reached level 42 weeks ago, so they're finding a place for it to evolve. Then Gao Peng handed his tablet to his grandfather while saying they had discovered a total of 168 mountain spirits on their journey, and they have all agreed to cooperate with them. Jai Huan responded that Gao Peng was not bad. Then he asked Gao Peng what are his plans to do next, and if he only planning on setting up a network of outposts, or if he have something else in mind. 
Gao Peng asks his grandfather to advise him. Jai Huan looks at the tablet while saying although the mountain spirits are his allies now, what's most important is that familiar of his. With his familiar by his side no one will be able to threaten him, so only using the mountain spirits to make a quick buck would be incredibly crass. On the other hand, the hunters who depend on those outposts for their livelihood will bring them the most worth and he tells Gao Peng to gather those hunters no matter what it takes. Gao Peng responded he get it and said they'll create a union. The mountain spirit outposts will be the flagship offering of the union, and union members will enjoy a 50% discount on lodging. They can even collaborate with the Southern Sky Group and offer a 10% discount on the company's product. Jai Huan said Gao Peng was right and he also said it's best to share a part of the profits with the Yuzhu government because it'll not only ensure their smooth operation, but it'll also get rid of unnecessary headaches. Gao Peng thinks in addition, they can distribute 20% of the profits as a year-end bonus to the members of the union, and their share of the bonus will depend on factors like their performance and rank. Also, wealth has to spread around because no one likes a miser. Gao Peng also thinks it may seem like they're sharing a lot of their profit, but the remainder would still be a hefty amount. Once the initial venture takes off and stabilizes, their next target is to go worldwide. Place like the Dong Ting Recreational Zone, the Sky Villa, the Amazon Hall, and the Bermuda Triangle Recreational Zone have been strictly off limits ever since the Cataclysm. But the myths and legends have swirled around those places since ancient times, and maybe it's possible to evolve a rare creature in those places. Then Gao Peng happily said they'll call the Union the Explorer's Union, while Jai Huan was proudly saying, as expected, his grandson is smart. The next day, Da Zai was sleeping peacefully on the grass. Suddenly Gao Peng grabbed Da Zai in the horn which made Da Zai confused. Then Gao Peng throws Da Zai in the big glass with the formula. Da Zai was shocked and asked Gao Peng what was wrong with him, what was going on, and why Gao Peng throw him in the big glass. Gao Peng tells Da Zai that it was an electric energy charge formula created especially for him. Then Gao Peng turns away facing Dummy who currently holding the mouse while telling Da Zai to be a good boy and evolve well in there. Then Gao Peng looked at the mouse which made the mouse shocked. Gao Peng thinks the money grubbing mouse has three evolution paths and it has the least evolution paths among all of the monsters he had seen. Gao Peng wonders if it's because the mouse has the mythic attribute or if it's the type of mouse that doesn't really have much potential. Then Gao Peng gets something in the cabinet while saying they should first sign the blood contract and level up the mouse grade. Then Gao Peng held a pot while asking the mouse who was shocked to be good and jump in the pot. Then Gao Peng tried to make a contract with the mouse while telling the mouse to not be scared and they should sign a blood contract first, and with the blood contract, he won't hurt him. After the successful blood contract, in the end, the mouse is still in the pot boiling sad, Gao Peng set the fire to 180 degrees for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, Gao Peng opened the pot lid which showed a lot of smoke. Gao Peng was confused and picked up the mouse while wondering why the more the mouse evolve, the uglier it becomes. The mouse's new monster name is a treasure sniffing rodent. It was level 18 and excellent grade and its attribute is mystic. Its state is healthy but dispirited and its introduction set evolved from the money grubbing mouse. It's sensitive to the smell of treasure and is able to sniff out the smell of treasure when it passes by. Gao Peng thinks no matter what, the mouse can still evolve and there are two pathways. One is to sniffing ability and the other is to let it swallow treasures to activate other skills which made Gao Peng wonder if that still counts as occupation changing. Gao Peng also said he's rich and already have many treasures and now that he has found a money grubbing mouse, he definitely would choose to become even richer which made Silly confused. Gao Peng said they have most of the materials at home except for the blood of the king tier monster and he thinks it's going to be too hard to get it from Stripey since Stripey body is all rocks and he knows that he'll have to trouble his grandfather. A few moments later, Gao Peng was holding a big bucket while telling White to help him out because he'll only borrow a little of his blood and it is just a bucket, which made White shocked. Gao Peng tried to act cute while telling White that he already told his grandfather. Then Gao Peng asks White if his grandfather didn't talk to him which made White disappointed. Then White cut his arms to give Gao Peng blood. Suddenly Gao Peng phone rang. When he answered it, he saw Feng Zhu calling him young master. Gao Peng tells Feng Zhu no need to be so distant and that he can just call him Gao Peng. Feng Zhu laugh and said Gao Peng is not the same as before. He can't treat Gao Peng as casually as before. Gao Peng tells Feng Zhu that he treated him quite well before and they should cut to the chase. Feng Zhu said after the Shachuaman man-eating earthworm lord successfully evolved last time, it led its clan back to the Dali Desert to fight for territory. Feng Zhu also said they were going to let two lords compete against each other, but the Shachuaman man-eating earthworm lord surrendered to the desert ruler, and now the two lord-tier monsters are on the same side. 
Gao Ping responded that it was indeed a troublesome matter. Then he asks Feng Zhu what he expects him to do about it, and Gao Ping said Feng Zhu can't be asking him to take care of those two monsters. Gao Ping also told Feng Zhu that he overestimated him because although he has a king tier familiar, its size is too big for long range combat and he only has a Lord Tier Skeleton familiar that's suitable for the mission. Feng Zhu responded no and he said Gao Peng misunderstand it because currently, the Golden Deity will also personally descend. Feng Zhu tells Gao Peng that they only want him to delay the Desert Ruler while the Golden Deity deals with the Shachuaman Man-Eating Earthworm Lord. Then, they'll all finish off the Desert Ruler together. Gao Peng sarcastically said Feng Zhu's plan sounds like a good plan. But Gao Peng knows that wanting his help is just a ruse and they really want is to get his grandfather to act. And if he agreed, his grandfather would follow him secretly to ensure his safety. Then Gao Peng wonders if they want to use him. Gao Peng disappointedly thinks he treats Feng Zhu as a friend and that is how he treats him and Gao Peng angrily asks himself if he looks like a pushover to Feng Zhu. Previously, Gao Peng sarcastically said Feng Zhu's plan sounds like a good plan. But Gao Peng knows that wanting his help is just a ruse and they really want is to get his grandfather to act. And if he agreed, his grandfather would follow him secretly to ensure his safety. Then Gao Peng wonders if they want to use him. Gao Peng disappointedly thinks he treats Feng Zhu as a friend and that is how he treats him and Gao Peng angrily asks himself if he looks like a pushover to Feng Zhu. Gao Peng said that the Lord Tier monsters don't have low intelligence unless humans really threaten their existence, and the Lord Tier monsters wouldn't attack human base cities on purpose. Then Gao Peng tells Feng Zhu that he thinks of him as his friend, so he should tell him the truth. Then Gao Peng asks Feng Zhu why the Chang'an military needs to kill the two Lord Tier monsters, which made Feng Zhu stun for a second. Then Feng Zhu awkwardly responded that the grandson of one of the heads of the military region was attacked by the desert ruler during his mission in the Dali Desert, and unfortunately died while on duty. But Gao Peng just hang up while disappointedly saying Feng Zhu has become better with his words after joining the military, and a grandson of a Chang'an military district was killed by the desert ruler can't be alive, but to say that he died while on duty is. Gao Peng also said he guessed that the grandson of a Chang'an military was either greedy for the fame of fighting a Lord Tier, or he overestimated his own capabilities and wanted to tame it, or perhaps he wanted a Lord Tier Monster's core crystal. Gao Peng said because of the man's own greed, the man idiotically threw his life away, and his grandfather wants to avenge him but isn't well acquainted with his grandfather, so they turn to him, who is young and naive instead. Gao Peng also said for Feng Zhu and his past fellowship, he wouldn't have had any issue with requesting his grandfather's help for them, but Feng Zhu decided to take advantage of him instead, and now he had one less friend. Suddenly White tapped Gao Peng's shoulder which made Gao Peng confused. Then White pointed to the bucket full of blood to show it to Gao Peng. Then Gao Peng happily hugged White Claw while thanking it which made White blush, and when Gao Peng looked at White wound it's almost healed. Then Gao Peng lifts up the bucket of blood while thinking the weight of White blood doesn't weigh like water, but like mercury and there isn't even the tiniest ripple on its surface when he lifts it. Also, there is even a reflection to it like a mirror which made Gao Peng wonder if white blood is really blood. Gao Peng also thinks the King Tier familiars have already surpassed humans' understanding of biology because the King Tier monsters are life forms of a higher level. Then Gao Peng happily said his money grubbing mouse can reach the perfect grade. The next day Gao Peng was looking at Flamey Egg while saying Flamey's egg had been more active lately and it looked like it was going to evolve soon. Then he looks at Dazai who is currently level 41 and Mouse who is currently in the perfect grade while saying Dazai and Mouse are promoted easily. Then Jai Huan called Gao Peng to say that the Guan Gong statue has been placed in front of Gao Peng Welfare School's gate. Jai Huan also said he heard that the statue killed a big honey badger on its first day of work, which allowed the cafeteria to provide an extra dish on its menu. Gao Peng responded that they made the best use of the statue. Suddenly a strong thunderlight appeared in the sky which made Gao Peng wonder if it's going to rain. Jai Huan noticed Flamey Egg released a flame which made Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that his fat Flamey seems to be close to evolving. Then the lightning strike hit the tree which made the tree burn. Then Flamey who successfully evolved come out of the egg. Gao Peng thinks Flamey finally looks like a proper one-legged crane and not a penguin. But it's a little fat. Jai Huan looks at Gao Peng and asks if Flamey evolution counts as successful. Gao Peng responded yes and said that Flamey awakened a new bloodline but the exact details can only be confirmed later. Flamey's new monster name is Forest Flame Spirit Crane, an ancestral bloodline reawaken. It was level 41 in perfect grade and its attributes are fire and wood. Its skills are flame mastery level 4 and flame resistance level 4, and its special characteristic is fire feather. Also, Flamey introduction said Flamey has awakened a new bloodline in its body and it only needs to devour a large amount of fire attribute spirit to continue to promote its grade. 
Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that someone from the Chang'an military district approached him for a favor, and he knows that he already rejected them. But Jai Huan suggests Gao Peng go take a look and assess the situation because if Gao Peng can help, then he should help, and if it's too inconvenient for him to help, he just turns around and leaves. Then Jai Huan asks Gao Peng what he thinks of his suggestion. Gao Peng agreed to his grandfather's suggestion while thinking to think even his grandfather wants him to go have a look, making him wonder if it could be that there was something else in Dali dessert. The next day, Gao Peng and his familiars arrived at Chang'an Base City. Gao Peng happily said his home and also said although his staying with his grandfather in Yuzhu makes him happy because Chang'an feels more like home to him. Then Gao Peng walked toward the roadside travel agency while saying they should get down to business. Gao Peng tells the receptionist that he wants to ask if they offer any travel programs to the Dali Desert. The receptionist responded that they currently don't have any travel programs to the Dali Desert which made Gao Peng wonder if they really don't have a program for the Dali Desert. The other employee's man said he heard that Dali Desert is very dangerous because a lot of people died there, and no one dares to go there anymore, and the military has been strict with border control. So anyone wishing to enter the Dali Desert will need to register for a special pass. Gao Peng walk away while thinking that things are a lot more complicated than the military had let on. Gao Peng was outside the travel agency thinking that it looks like entering the Dali Desert via official means isn't reliable, and he has to see for himself if he wants the truth. Also, he shouldn't expose his trump card to the military. Then Gao Peng look around him while thinking he needs to think of another way to get into Dali Desert. Then Gao Peng continued to look around because he knew that there were brokers around there, then he saw the man with green hair looking around too. Gao Peng called the man to come to him, then the man opened the door while telling Gao Peng to go inside because they need to talk secretly. When they were inside, Gao Peng opened his bag full of money while telling the man that he had enough money and he can give him a deposit. Then Gao Peng said he want to go to the Dali Desert today. Then he asks the man if the man has any groups going into the Dali Desert. The man immediately responded yes. Then the man smiled while thinking that another loaded young master who was an idiot. Then the man tells Gao Peng to follow him. Suddenly a monster was slowly approaching Gao Peng from behind. But Gao Peng noticed it and glare at the monster, which made the monster shiver in fear. The man wonder who is Gao Peng because a simple glare from Gao Peng at his familiar incites fear from the depth of his soul. The man shakingly pointed to the gate while saying their gathering is just up ahead, and he tells Gao Peng to rest for a bit because they'll depart at 10 p.m. Then the man also assured Gao Peng not to worry because they'll wait for no one. Gao Peng responded okay while knowing the man want to do shady business with his wussy character. The next day, inside the hotel room in the Dali Desert, Gao Peng just woke up while saying his back hurts after riding in the truck yesterday, but luckily they stopped to kill a few wolf-type monsters on the way so he could get down and stretch for a bit. Then Gao Peng stand up and look at his room window while saying it felt like he was being pinned on his bed for the whole night, and the more he sleep, the more tired he was. From his window Gao Peng saw that the Dali Desert streets are quite lively. Gao Peng said that Dali Desert Street is the last outpost before entering the Dali Desert, and he heard that there are a lot of specialty materials sold there. Gao Peng also saw some materials like exploding cactus. Its description said it can be applied directly to any wound to achieve a cauterization effect and it can also be used as a medicinal ingredient. Normal sand type monster core crystal. Its description said a core crystal formed from the residual energy inside a sand type monster's body and can be used on a familiar to increase its elemental power. It's also most effective when it is used on a sand type monster. And the other material name is sand soul stone. Its description said a stone that's saturated with sand type and earth type elemental energy can be used. Gao Peng said as he expected those three materials are the most sold items there. A few moments later, Gao Peng was sitting in the restaurant just finished ordering. On the other table, the man said the military is preparing to lock down the entire Dali Desert because lately, they're forbidding people from Chang'an from entering. The other man angrily said the military is just trying to hog the good stuff for themselves. The girl hushes her friends and tells them to watch their words. On the other hand, Gao Peng who heard everything thinks the Chang'an military still holds a lot of influence. At least most people don't dare to badmouth the military in public. Then the waiter gives Gao Peng drinks, while Gao Peng thinks for the military locking down the Dali Desert and forbidding anyone from entering means something big is going to happen. So Gao Peng thinks he should hurry over once he finishes his breakfast. An hour later, in the Dali Desert, Dummy was looking at his feet confused because his feet sank on the sand while Da Zai laughing and teasing Dummy that Dummy is so heavy that his feet already sinking in the sand. Then Da Zai runs around the sand happily while telling Dummy to look at him because he can run around all he wants, which made Dummy angry and tried to run in the sand while shouting that the sand can't stop him. 
But in the end, Sad Dummy sunk his half-body into the sand. Silly and Flamey grab Dummy's shoulder to lift up while Flamey tells Dazai to stop bullying Dummy and help them to which Dazai immediately helps to lift Dummy. Gaopeng who's looking at his familiar said the desert is different than land and his familiars may not be used to it. Then Dummy looks at Gaopeng and tells Gaopeng that the sand there is very angry, which made Gaopeng ask what Dummy was talking about. Dummy responded that when a Lord Tier monster has been in a place long enough, its presence has an effect on the environment around it, including the air. Gaopeng realized that the water in White Dragon's Lake is especially cool and clean, so it's because of White Presence and using the same logic, the monster in the depth of the desert should be an ill-tempered entity. Although the sand element had always been active, it never gave off an angry feeling. Suddenly Flamey noticed something, and tells Gaopeng that someone's fighting monsters up ahead. Then Gaopeng tells Flamey to lead the way, and he said they'll observe the situation on higher ground. From the higher ground Gaopeng saw people with their familiars fighting monsters. Gaopeng said judging from the people's attires, the people don't look like people from the military, but the team leader isn't too bad because the leader immediately changed to a defensive formation when the battle isn't in their favor. The people managed to hold out by relying on their more defensive familiars that have thick skin and muscle. However, Gaopeng saw the monsters increasing in numbers and he knows that at that rate the people will die. Suddenly Gaopeng was shocked to see one of the people familiar attack one of the monsters. When the monster monster got hit, its crystal core is thrown on the ground. The monster's name is Sand Monster. It was level 12 in a mortally injured and unconscious state. Its attribute is sand and its weaknesses are 1. Ice, 2. The sand core crystal in its body can be destroyed, and 3. Chopping off any part of its body will considerably reduce its overall power. Also, the sand monster needs a lot of time to heal itself, which is done by absorbing sand from its surroundings. Gaopeng said the heart-like object in the ground must be the sand monster's core crystal and a sand monster could be rendered unconscious if one forcibly removed its core crystal from its body. Then Gaopeng look at Dummy while saying if a sand core crystal is the same as a sand monster's heart, then there's an experiment they can do, then Gaopeng order Dummy, to which Dummy understands and holds his heart to use his blood heart thread skill. On the other hand, the man whispered to his boss that the sand monsters are acting a bit weird, and when the man look at the sand monsters it moving uncontrollably, then the sand monster explode dropping its core crystals in the sand which made the people wonder what was going on and why the sand monsters explode. On the other hand, Gao Peng said the results are disappointing and the sand monsters look like they received a heavy attack, but their sand core crystals didn't sustain much damage. Gao Peng also said it would have been nice to have an ice type familiar because according to his previous experiments, sand monsters are generally resistant to electric type and fire attacks, excluding Dazai and Flamey, and he is only left with Dummy, but Dummy's mobility is restricted by the desert environment, so Dummy won't have higher ground. Then Gaopeng disappointedly said having an elemental disadvantage sucks and if he was to help the military, it would be an extremely tough battle. Then Gaopeng saw a lot of military trucks and said the military has been hurriedly evacuating nearby crowds for the past few days, and it looks like they can't stall the situation any longer. Then Gaopeng sees the Lord Tier monster walking to the militaries. Gaopeng said that the main character arrives. The Lord Tier monster's name is Desert Ruler. It was level 44 and slightly injured, but angry status. In the Desert Ruler's neck is the monster named King Sandworm. It was level 41 in healthy status, but alert. Gaopeng saw the tree nearby with an aura. Gao Peng wonders if the aura is the desert ruler's Lord Tier aura. Then a few seconds later the healthy tree soil is gradually turning into sand. Gao Peng thinks the desert already gives the desert ruler the upper hand, but it can still expand its territory further and that is really tough. On the other hand, the military attacked the desert ruler using a missile, but before it landed on the desert ruler, it used its power to control the missile. Then it closed its hand which made the missile explodes in the air. Then the desert ruler summoned its sand monster army. The chief military order his comrade to open fire and don't let the sand monsters advance. The militaries attack the desert ruler using their guns, but the desert ruler just shields itself. On the other hand, Gao Peng is covering his ears while saying that is the first time he heard many gunshots nearby and he thinks having good hearing is a kind of torture. Then he notices that the sandstorm from the attack is subsiding. Then the angry desert ruler holds his weapon while saying, humans must die. Then it jumped toward the military to attack, but something flushed the light on the desert ruler which made the desert ruler blind for a moment, and the military man shouted to his comrades to hold the line because the golden deity arrived. Then the golden deity attacked the desert ruler in the shoulder which made its shoulder have a hole. The desert ruler angrily looks at the golden deity, then it holds and ready its spear, then throw it toward the golden deity. Fortunately, the golden deity avoided it and fly toward the desert ruler back to attack. 
The military happily said even the Lord Tier monster can't hold out for long after sustaining such a heavy injury. But the military has taken back to see that the desert ruler's wounds had healed. Gao Peng wonders if the desert ruler can freely disperse any part of his body into a cloud of sand to avoid the enemy's attack. Gao Peng thinks in order for that tactic to work, the golden deity would need to possess a quick reaction speed and grasp the exact timing. And if its reaction had been too slow, the hit would have landed. Also if the golden deity had been too soon, its opponent would have been able to pull back and come at it from another angle. The golden deity monster's name is Zhengjin Celestial Eagle. It was level 47 in healthy and calm status. Its grade is perfect, its attribute is gold, and its abilities are hard feathers level 3, sharp feathers level 3, and elemental gold mastery level 4. The golden deity's special characteristic is Zhengjin Divine Feather. Its feathers have been continuously tempered and strengthened, which gives a huge boost to its attack and defense. Effect 1, passive effects are feather hardness plus 1 and feather sharpness plus 1. Effect 2, passive effects said it has a certain level of resistance against other elemental attacks, which made Gao Peng said as he expected of the golden deity, its stats are really nice. However, Gao Peng who currently looking at the golden deity attacking the desert ruler said the golden deity is up against the desert ruler who has the upper hand and if the Chang'an military doesn't have a backup plan, it'll be hard to determine the winner of the battle between the golden deity and desert ruler. The desert ruler uses his hands to jump fast behind the golden deity's back which made the golden deity shocked and confused. Then the golden deity immediately uses a barrier to protect itself, but the desert ruler punch and broke the barrier of the golden deity which made the golden deity fall on the sand. Then Gao Peng said in horror that the desert ruler is fierce because it broke through a Lord Tear's defensive barrier with only one blow. On the other hand, one military man tells the commander that the golden deity is at a standstill with the desert ruler. Then the man asks if they should continue firing the missiles. The commander responded no and said if it was any other familiar, accidentally injuring it wouldn't be a problem. Even if it's a commander tier familiar that's at its peak, as long as it can bring them victory, sacrificing it wouldn't be an issue. But the problem is that it was the golden deity and it's not only Chang'an military's strongest lord tier, but it also acts as Chang'an's symbol of hope. Then commander orders the military man to tell the soldiers to get ready. And as soon as the golden deity pulls out, they should fire the missiles immediately. To which the man immediately understand and agreed. Suddenly the sand shook which made one of the men ask what was happening and if there was an earthquake. Then the king sandworm come out under the sand and attack the military tank. Then more man-eating earthworms come out underground and attack the military tanks. Which made the commander shouted that their formation has been disrupted and he ordered to scatter all familiars to move in. Then the roosters jump in and bite the man-eating earthworms. On the other hand, Flamey asked Gao Peng if they should help the militaries. Gao Peng responded not yet and he said they won't be of any help if they go down immediately. Then Gao Peng looked down while saying if the military wanted to take on the Dali Desert with only that much firepower, the military would be too naive. And he thinks the military wouldn't send an idiot to command such a battle, so he knows that the military must have an ace up their sleeves. Moreover, Gao Peng notices the black robed figure behind the commander's back while thinking that the black robed figure's height, it's definitely not human. Gao Peng angrily said he can't see the black robed stats because of how it dressed. On the other hand, the desert ruler grabs the golden deity by its neck. Fortunately, the golden deity uses its power to attack the desert ruler's arm which made its arm destroy. The desert ruler looks at the golden deity in anger, while Gao Peng thinking that the desert ruler is evidently in its element and as long as its sand core isn't damaged, it can heal itself so its combat power isn't affected. Then Gao Peng saw that the desert ruler absorbed the sand monsters which made Gao Peng wonder if it could be that the desert ruler has some kind of secret move. After the desert ruler absorbed the sand monsters, it stand up and its appearance changes, then angrily grabs the injured golden deity, which made Gao Peng tell his familiar to be prepared to interfere because the golden deity is a Chang'an guardian deity, so it mustn't die there. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked to see the statue in black robbed running toward the desert ruler. The monster's name is a terracotta soldier named Meng Tian. Meng Tian was a military general of the Qin dynasty who fought against the Qingnu and was involved in the construction of the Great Wall of China. It was level 44 in epic grade, and its attributes are corpse and dark. Its abilities are divine power level 2 and reinforced armor level 4. Meng Tian's special characteristic is sarcophagus. Originally a receptacle containing a human corpse, it mysteriously evolved into a monster. Effect 1, passive effect said its armor is reinforced by the fumes released from the decomposing corpse inside its body. Effect 2, active effect said it absorbs all the fumes inside its body to give itself a temporary buff. There are no negative side effects to that, however, the effect only lasts for short while. 
Also, the terracotta soldier's description said the body inside it used to belong to a distinguished human general who was unfortunately poisoned and stuffed inside a terracotta soldier, where its soul has remained ever since. Gao Peng realizes that the black robe figure was a terracotta soldier and that the gray smoke must be the fumes that can temporarily boost its strength. On the other hand, the terracotta soldier was running toward the desert ruler who was currently in shock. The desert ruler attacked the sand to make a wave hands toward the terracotta soldier, but the terracotta soldier jumped toward the hand waves and cut the hand wave one by one while running toward the desert ruler. On the other hand, the desert ruler grabs the head of the golden deity, but the golden deity uses its power to shine bright which made the desert ruler blind for a moment. Then the desert ruler notices the terracotta soldier launching an attack behind its back. The desert ruler got distracted which made the golden deity escape and fly away. The terracotta soldier saw the golden deity escape and smile. Then it stopped its attack and run away to the desert ruler which made the desert ruler confused. The commander thinks the plan to distract the desert ruler to create an opportunity for the golden deity in order to escape worked well, and he didn't expect a monster to possess such battle instincts. The commander also thinks that the golden deity almost lost, so he needs to force to use his trump card. The commander looks at the soldiers while thinking it was a shame that the desert ruler isn't willing to leave the desert, and they're unable to defeat it there. Also he thinks if they continue on like that they'll lose. Then the commander tells his soldiers that they'll retreat. Then one of the soldiers approach the commander while holding a gadget and tells that he have a video call from the general. The commander orders the man to answer the call. The commander salutes the general and tells the general that due to lack of firepower. But before the commander finishes his words the general said the commander his name, and angrily tells Zio Yong that his grandson was his only family, and is already 66 years old, so he won't have time to wait for another opportunity to come by, and the general said his only wish is to send the desert ruler to hell, no matter the cost. Then the general asked Zio Yong if he understand what he mean which made Zio Yong shocked. Then Zio Yong angrily responded that he understand. On the other hand, Gao Peng tells his familiars that they should go because the military has retreated and the desert ruler has gone back to the depths of the desert, so they shouldn't pick a fight with the desert right now and wait until they have an ice type lord tier familiar. Suddenly Gao Peng feels something and wonder why he feels a sudden chill down his spine and if it was the feeling of danger. Then Dummy pushed Gao Peng to the side which made Gao Peng ask Dummy what is it. Gao Peng saw something in the sky falling down to the sand which made Gao Peng who is currently protected by Dummy ask what is that thing in the sky. The thing in the sky hit the sand and explodes, which made Gao Peng and Silly shock. Silly said it was a big mushroom, and Gao Peng realizes that the military used a nuclear bomb. Silly passed out while Gao Peng said they were lucky that they kept a safe distance, and he said as saying goes, they'll be bound for good fortune after surviving a great disaster. Then Gao Peng asked his familiar how they feel because the radiation and blast wave of the explosion has been transferred to their bodies. Then he asks his familiar again if they can feel the radiation. Dummy, Dazai, and Flamey shake their heads and responded that they're okay. Gao Peng said luckily, the damage was divided equally between his three lord tiers and radiation has no effect on high level monsters. Then Gao Peng looked at the scene and said the military is way too bold. Then he tells his familiar that they should go and check on the desert ruler. A few moments later, in the depths of the Dali Desert, Gao Peng and his familiars were at the scene where the nuclear bomb exploded. Gao Peng said the nuclear bomb won't necessarily kill a Lord Tier monster and only if it was at the center of the nuclear explosion would it evaporate instantly. Gao Peng noticed that nothing there was left, so they don't know if the desert ruler survived or not. Then Gao Peng and Silly hold something like a crystal in the sand which made Gao Peng say that it was still warm and it's felt like glass. Suddenly Mouse tells Gao Peng that there's a treasure. Gao Peng glares at Mouse and tells it that everything is a treasure to him. Gao Peng also tells Mouse that yesterday, they shoveled sand for hours just for a normal grade core crystal. But Mouse tells Gao Peng it was a real treasure and he should trust him. Gao Peng responded that he'll trust him one more time. Then he ordered his familiar to dig. A few hours later, Gao Peng and his familiar are still digging when Gao Peng tells Mouse that they've already dug so deep. Then Gao Peng asked Mouse if it was sure that the treasure is down there. Mouse who currently shaking its tail responded that they are almost there and told Gao Peng to continue digging. Suddenly, Dummy hit something under the sand, then it looked down confused because it saw something. Gao Peng notices Dummy and asks Dummy if he finds something. Dummy grabbed that thing he saw, but Dummy's hand got burned. Gao Peng thinks even a nuclear bomb can't hurt Dummy, but that weird looking bone can. Then Gao Peng orders Silly to bring out his protective gear because he needs to take care of the weird bone first. A minute later, Gao Peng put the unknown bone on the table, saying that the weird bone is the first time he had seen garbled characters since he awoke his stat reading ability, and he knows that the bone isn't ordinary. Gao Peng wonder if that means his ability can still be improved. Then Gao Peng happily looks at Mouse who is currently proud of itself while sitting in Da Zai head. 
Gao Peng tells Mouse that he has achieved something great this time. Then Gao Peng said since it's bone, does that mean it can be placed on dummy? Then confused dummy lifts up the bone while Gao Peng tells dummy to place the bone on his chest and treat the bone like a breastplate. Dummy put the bone in his chest, but Dummy released a smoke which made Gao Peng run toward Dummy worried while asking Dummy if he's okay. Gao Peng suddenly entered somewhere and was shocked to feel something behind him. When he looked back he saw a starry sky and a giant monster which made Gao Peng wonder if what he's seeing is an illusion. Then the bone dropped on the sand which made Gao Peng back to reality. Then he asks Dummy who's still releasing smoke if he feels pain anywhere. Dummy responded no. Then Gao Peng noticed a pattern in Dummy's hand which made Gao Peng realize that the pattern is the same as one of the patterns on the bone. Gao Peng also saw that Dummy obtained a new skill named Dark Flame Mastery Level 2, which made Gao Peng think Dummy received a new skill, but the flame doesn't seem capable of burning anything, since Dummy's robe is covered in flames yet it isn't burnt. Gao Peng said the bone is interesting, then he ordered Dummy to take the bone with him because they were going back. The next day night, in Chang'an City, one of the soldiers tells the commander that the radar shows an unknown entity is currently heading toward Chang'an City. The soldier head orders the soldiers to hurry to gather the familiars because they need to stop the unknown entity. He also orders the soldiers to grab their weapons and head to the sentry towers to prepare for the battle. At the sentry tower, the soldiers and familiars were preparing and looking at the monster heading toward them. One of the soldiers shouted that the monster is picking up speed. Then they saw a crystal glass monster which made them wonder what kind of monster is it. The monster uses its power and hit the tower wall. Meanwhile, inside the hotel room, Gao Peng was reading the text that said the state of emergency, which made Gao Peng said the alert level isn't low, so he wondered if something happened. Then someone knocked on his room door. Gao Peng opens the door, then the soldier asks if he's Gao Peng. Then the man said Chang'an City has initiated a level 5 alert, and all available monster trainers are to accept enlistment from the government without conditions. Gao Peng responded that it was not a problem and that he'll be there after he grabs something, to which the soldiers salute to him. Gao Peng closed his door while saying the last time he heard of a level 5 alert was when White was promoting and he thinks something really big has happened. A few moments later, Gao Peng arrived on top of Chang'an Base City's eastern city wall. Gao Peng was shocked to see a monster named Nuclear Ruler a radiation variant. It was level 46 in epic grade, and its attribute is Earth. Its abilities are Hardened Body level 3, Elemental Resistance level 3, and Gravitational Mastery level 4. Its special characteristic is Nuclear Core. In order to survive the nuclear radiation, its sand core developed the ability to absorb nuclear radiation. Effect 1, Passive Effect said it can strengthen itself using nuclear radiation. Effect 2, Active Effect said it can tap into the nuclear energy contained within its core in order to give itself a temporary power boost. The nuclear ruler's weakness is its hard body is now as brittle glass, and its description said after being exposed to extreme heat and terrifying levels of radiation, the desert ruler has mutated into the nuclear ruler. Gao Peng thinks the desert ruler has undergone mutation due to the radiation and its defense and elemental resistance seems to have increased, but its healing speed might not be stronger than before its mutation. Gao Peng knows that the nuclear core is uncommon compared to a sand core, so he's not sure if the mutation is a good or bad thing. Suddenly Gao Peng saw the golden deity flying in the sky in a healthy condition but angry. Gao Peng was shocked to see that the golden deity has already recovered. Then the golden deity attacked the nuclear ruler using its power which made Gao Peng say the golden deity unleashed a powerful skill right from the start. But the nuclear ruler just stands still in shock. After the attack Gao Peng saw the nuclear ruler in the smoke still in the place. Then the nuclear ruler looks at the golden deity in the sky. But Gao Peng noticed that the golden deity powerful attack only left a small scratch on the nuclear nuclear ruler. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to go help the golden deity to hold the nuclear ruler, but he tells Dummy not to fight the nuclear head on like an idiot, to which Dummy agreed. While Gao Peng thought Dummy's mobility was restricted in the desert, but that isn't the case there. Then Dummy jump off the tower and landed in front of the nuclear ruler who was in shock. The nuclear ruler immediately uses its power to attack Dummy, but Dummy uses his arm with a pattern to shield himself. Then Dummy uses its summoning skill to summons the ghouls under the sand. Then many ghouls' hands come out under the sand which made the nuclear ruler shocked. Dummy also summoned the Elder King Centipede that was slain by the Golden Deity six months ago which made the militaries fearfully shout that the dummy summoned a wave of the undead. The King Centipede ghoul and the other monsters' ghouls bowed to dummy which made the nuclear ruler shocked. 
On the other hand, the colonel who's looking at the situation said that the nuclear ruler is at a standstill with Gao Peng's familiar, and he also said that is their chance. Then the colonel orders the golden deity to use its wing slash to cut off the nuclear head. The golden deity ready itself to use the wing slash which made it release a bright light, and the nuclear ruler notice it. The nuclear ruler tried to escape, but Gao Peng shouted at Dummy to stop it from running and tells Dummy not to let the nuclear ruler escape. To which Dummy heard, and order his ghouls to block the nuclear ruler's way, which his ghouls immediately did. Then the golden deity attacks the nuclear ruler using its wing slash, unfortunately, the nuclear ruler blocks the wing slash using its arm which made its arm break. The nuclear ruler looked at his broken arm angrily. Then it tried to launch an attack on the golden deity, but the king centipede ghoul grabbed its tail in time and pulled it back. But the nuclear ruler punched the king's centipede skeleton skull with one hit. Gao Peng orders Flamey to support Dummy from above, to which Flamey immediately attacks the nuclear ruler using fire from above. But the nuclear ruler grabs Flamey using its gravity manipulation skill, which made Gao Peng think that before, the desert ruler got the upper hand because it could continuously generate due to its environment, and now the nuclear ruler is good at both offense and defense. However, he knows that if they're talking about melee combat no one's better than Dummy. Dummy saw the nuclear ruler holding Flamey and angrily ran toward it. Then Dummy punched the nuclear ruler from behind which made Flamey free from its gravity manipulation. The nuclear ruler launched a punch toward Dummy and Dummy launched a punch toward the nuclear ruler at the same time. But Dummy ducked to avoid the nuclear ruler's punch and punched the nuclear ruler's body which made it fly and landed on the sand with a broken body. Then the golden deity and Flamey used the opportunity to attack the nuclear ruler on the sand using their wing slash and fire, which made the nuclear ruler die. Gao Peng tells Da Zai that they should go because they have to meet with the military. Gao Peng faced the military and said the condition they agreed upon was that he'll have first rights of selection regarding the spoils of war. Then Gao Peng said he has three Lord Tier familiars while the military only has one, and that's a 3 to 1 ratio, so he'll take 75%, and the military has 25%, and that is one arm and leg. Then Gao Peng asked the military what they think. The military man responded that Gao Peng is certainly the MVP of the battle, but the Chang'an military has the most complete laboratory and five advanced monster breeders. The man also said the corpse of the nuclear ruler will yield better result if it was with them. But the man cleared that the Southern Sky Group can research the nuclear ruler together with them. Gao Peng looked at the dead nuclear ruler lying in the sand while thinking that ever since the cataclysm, he felt as though human technology had hit a dead end. However, the presence of the nuclear ruler has given the conservatives hope. Although he knows about the nuclear ruler's lack of potential, it would be bothersome to have people missing it every day if he took it back with him. Then Gao Peng tells the military that he had two requests, and if the military agreed, they can take the Lord Tier corpse back with them as a whole. Then Gao Peng said his one request is he wants the nuclear ruler's core crystal, and the other one. He said he heard that the military had two flesh-enhancing tablets in their possession, so he wants one. The military man responded that the core crystal alone holds half the value of the entire monster. The man also said the flesh-enhancing tablet is very valuable as well because it can enhance a monster's flesh, and it belongs to a highly ranked lab manager in the military. Gao Peng said he only want one, so they'll still have another one with them. Gao Peng also said they can let the general search the corpse as compensation. The man tells his comrade that Gao Peng probably wasn't interested in the corpse of the nuclear ruler from the start and it was bait to reel them in. His comrade responded that there was no other way and apart from research, the general specified that they want to see the corpse of the nuclear ruler, so they should just agree to Gao Peng requests. The next day, in Gao Peng's laboratory, the tube opened releasing a lot of smoke. Then Goldie comes out of it while saying the feeling he felt is the feeling of an energized body. Then Goldie shouts that he has become stronger and there are fewer people in their world who can steal his money, while Goldie punching the air. Then Goldie kicks the door while saying that his attack is called a cosmic explosion and it also shouted that he's invincible now. Which made Gao Peng and Tang Tang look at Goldie in shock. Goldie was excited because it's now Lord Tier, but extremely bloated. Gao Peng angrily asks Goldie what is he doing and he told Goldie that if he has nothing to do he should train. Gao Peng also tells Goldie that he has to pay for the door he kicks, which made Goldie roll on the ground while saying Gao Peng is bad because he has become stronger, but Gao Peng still stealing his money. Tang Tang tells Gao Peng that his familiars are really interesting which just made Gao Peng shyly laugh. Then Gao Peng told her that the military has sent over the flesh-enhancing tablets, so they can start with the experiment. Tang Tang looks at her blood eye and asks Gao Peng to take care of it because the blood eye bearded vulture's evolution path is tricky, and it grows stronger by undergoing heavy strength training. 
She also said that the monster breeders who studied her blood eye before all said that it was already a miracle that it is as strong as it is now. Gao Peng held her shoulder while telling her not to worry because he believed that the best evolution path it can take and that it'll definitely succeed. Then Gao Peng asks Blood Eye if he's ready. Then Gao Peng started to pour the mixture in the rock with help of Silly. After a minute he made a big green rock. Then Gao Peng gives the big green rock to Blood Eye while telling Blood Eye to swallow it, which made Blood Eye confused. But still, the Blood Eye swallowed the rock. After it swallowed the big green rock, Blood Eyes collapsed on the ground. Then its eyes turns red. Then Gao Peng snaps his finger and Dummy delivers the big meat to Gao Peng. Gao Peng tells Blood Eye to eat the raw meat that's prepared especially for him. To which Blood Eye immediately followed and eats the meat. After it finishes his raw meat, Blood Eye released a red aura and successfully evolved. Blood Eye's new monster's name is Blood Eye Bearded Vulture. It's level 43 in excellent grade, and its attribute is Wind. Its skills are Gale Force level 3 and Savage Claw level 1. Its monster characteristic is a blood-enhancing stomach. After evolving, its stomach will be able to convert any material into the nutrients it needs to evolve. But the side effects include a state of permanent and insatiable hunger. Effect 1, passive effect said the blood-enhancing stomach will absorb and digest anything inside it no matter dead or alive, and convert it into valuable nutrients for the host to evolve. Also, its weaknesses are 1. Electric type, 2. Fire type, and 3. Gold type. Gao Peng explained that before, the blood eye bearded vulture had already reached its limit, but now that it has evolved, for a creature who trains as hard as it, it'll only continue to grow and become stronger without limits. Tang Tang happily said her soul strength has increased which means that her blood eye evolved successfully. Gao Peng tells her that the blood eye beard only needs to continuously swallow fresh meat to enhance its strength, and the rest is up to how hardworking it is. Gao Peng also said he also has an idea of how to promote blood eye grade but she needs to search for the materials. Tang Tang thanked Gao Peng and said she was fine for its excellent grade for now, and as long as there's no limit to her blood eye growth, it should evolve just fine. Suddenly Gao Peng digital gadget rang. Gao Peng answer it. Then Wang Ye tells Gao Peng that the Yongcheng Broadcasting Station is asking him to attend one of their programs as a guest of honor. Gao Peng responded that he was not interested, and he tells Wang Ye that he told him to reject those kinds of invitations. But Wang tells Gao Peng that the Yongcheng Broadcasting Station is willing to give him a thunder shell as a reward, which made Gao Peng change his mind and ask Wang Ye when the program started. Wang Yu responded that they'll start recording at Yongcheng next Monday. Gao Peng remembers that a thunder shell is one of the materials needed for evolving Thunder God, and the materials needed to evolve Lord Tier and King Tier familiars are becoming rarer. So he decided to go because he don't want to waste the chance. Then Gao Peng said if the level of familiars keeps increasing, he'll need to head into unexplored forbidden zones on Earth to gather materials of higher grades, or perhaps head to other worlds through spatial rifts. The next Monday, in Yongcheng Airport, Gao Peng and his familiar were welcomed by a man. The man said he has heard a lot about him being the Huexia region's genius. Then the man shakes Gao Peng hands while introducing himself as Wang Muzi the assistant director of the program An Eye for Talent, and he tells Gao Peng that he can call him Old Wang, which made Gao Peng awkwardly tell Wang that he's too humble. Wang tells Gao Peng that they should talk in the car. Inside the car, Wang said he'll introduce their program to Gao Peng and he also said that they have gathered a lot of materials and monsters from the wild, and most of the materials they have are unfamiliar to the public. There are also some species that are completely new and have never been discovered by anyone before. Then Wang tells Gao Peng that he has sent him an information package, so he may take a look at it. Gao Peng opened his digital gadget and saw some materials which made Gao Peng prove that there are indeed a lot of rare materials and he know that Wang team has put a lot of effort into it. While Wang says their selling point for the program is that they'll be identifying the attributes and characteristics of the materials and monsters. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed a flower named Dalingshan Dandelion on his monitor. Gao Peng also saw the system that said the flower monster's name is Yin Yang Kalanjula. It was level 3 in excellent grade, and its attributes are light and dark. Its state is healthy, but currently trembling, and its introduction said it's a brave and fearless plant-type monster that likes to explore, and it has the ability to heal and weaken the abilities of other monsters. As it's still at a low level right now, it can only use the seeds on its head to make soup and that may be a good choice for it to make right now. Gao Peng thinks the flower skills to heal and weaken is an uncommon combo. Then Gao Peng asks Wang if those monsters and materials belong to his team because he really likes the Dalingshan Dandelion. Then Gao Peng asks Wang how much the price of Dalingshan Dandelion. Wang tells Gao Peng no problem and that he'll inform the main director and producer and have the Dalingshan Dandelion sent to his room that night. As for the payment, there's no need for him to pay such a small amount. 
Wang also thinks normally he wouldn't have the chance to interact with someone of Gao Peng's stature, but now that he has the chance, he won't let go of it so easily. Gao Peng thanked Wang and Wang happily responded no problem while they headed to the program station. The night comes in Yang Cheng Jai family villa. Gao Peng was looking at the Dalingshan dandelion while saying that Wang is quite efficient because he really sent the Dalingshan dandelion over. Then Gao Peng lifts up the flower and blows it. Gao Peng look at the flower while saying that it is quite the actor and no wonder they mistook it for a normal plant instead of a plant type monster which made the flower worried for itself. Then Gao Peng snaps his finger while ordering Silly to give him an elite grade light type monster's core crystal, to which Silly immediately did. Then Gao Peng asked the flower if it want the core crystal which made the flower nod its head continuously. Then Gao Peng said fine and give the core crystal to the happy flower while thinking that it was an easy creature to please. Then Gao Peng ordered Flamey to peck his finger for him which Flamey immediately did. Then Gao Peng put his finger with blood on to confuse flower head while thinking that needles can't prick his skin now because his skin is so thick that it can be compared to rhinos. The contract with the flower and Gao Peng was easily successful. Then the flower called Gao Peng in a confused tone because Gao Peng was staring at it while thinking that compared to Silly's lackluster healing ability, the Yin Yang Kalanjula seems to be much more professional. Gao Peng decided to name the flower Flowery since most of his familiars' names end in Y. Then Gao Peng gives Flowery to Dummy while telling Dummy that he'll leave protecting Flowery to him. Then Flowery stands to Dummy's head happily, which made Dummy sad and Gao Peng happily said it's not bad because it looks quite harmonious. Meanwhile, somewhere in the ocean, the wave was big, and something sticky was sticking to the rocks beside the ocean. Inside the sticky things were eggs slowly opening. Then something screamed loud from somewhere in the ocean. Meanwhile, in the villa, Gao Peng was lying on the sofa board while thinking that some of the material's information is wrong, and the script sounds unnatural. Then Gao Peng convinces himself that for the sake of the thunder shell and yin yang kalanjula, he'll endure it. Then Wang arrived and apologized to Gao Peng and explained that the main director is a pampered rich kid who transferred over to their division so all the grunt work is dumped onto his shoulder. Gao Peng responded it was okay because he can see that he's very busy. Then Gao Peng tells Wang to go ahead. Wang happily thanked Gao Peng for his understanding. Then Gao Peng checks his cell phone and saw many missed call from his grandfather which made him wonders if something happens to his grandfather and he decided to call his grandfather back. Gao Peng called his grandfather, then he asked his grandfather if isn't having a quarterly meeting today and why did he call him. Jai Huan asks Gao Peng if he has finished shooting the program. But before Gao Peng can answer, Jai Huan said the Southern Sky Group's branch in Yangcheng has been attacked by a wave of monsters, and their communications are down. Then Jai Huan ordered Gao Peng to go down to their group branch in Yangcheng first and stabilize the situation. Gao Peng tells his grandfather not to worry because he'll have the situation there all taken care of before he gets there. Then Gao Peng look at the clock while thinking that the rest of the missed calls are probably about the monster wave, and the wave must have been going on for over two hours. Gao Peng knows that their branch in Yangcheng isn't that strong, so the fact that they could hold on for a long means that the strongest monster must only be Lord Tier. But he wonders why isn't the Yangcheng military doing anything because the military should have been on top of the situation. Unless, it isn't just the Southern Skies branch that has been struck by a monster wave, leaving the military with their hands full. Meanwhile, in Yangcheng's southeast region, Yangcheng Cheng's new area, Southern Sky Group's Yang Cheng Branch, were attacked by many small monsters. Then one of the monsters scream and look at the man who was shouting to their people not to be afraid because the backup will be there soon. Then he orders his team to stand their ground because their family and friends are inside the factories behind them, so they must not falter. Suddenly something come out of the smoke and attack the man above which made the man shocked. Fortunately, something shields the man. When the man looked back he saw the tree tails and thanked it for saving him. The man again tells his people to hold one just for another 10 minutes which made the people say they'd already been waiting for 2 hours, and the other people angrily ask when is the backup going to come. The man convinces the people to believe in him, but before the man can finish his words he notices a black smoke coming toward them, and he saw many tiny kappas inside the black smoke, but the tiny kappa's target is the three tails. The tiny kappas bite the three tails, then the three tails use it fire to burn the tiny kappas. Suddenly the black smoke landed on their place, and inside the black smoke were four armed kappas. Then the kappas punched the three tail continuously. Then the man called his three tails while the other people behind him were running away while saying that the kappas are too strong. 
One of the Kappas happily looks at the running people, and it chases the people. Suddenly something hit the Kappa's head, then Goldie just look at the dead Kappa while Gao Peng disappointedly looked at the people running below while in the sky riding flamey. Then Gao Peng called the people useless and he said he won't acknowledge them as his employees if word gets out about their cowardice. Then Gao Peng jumps off at flamey while saying he just referring to those who were slacking and he doesn't expect them to risk their lives for the company, but they should at least do their part since they offer the highest salary in the industry. Gao Peng also said not to mention the familiars they gave them. Also geographical advantage, a stronghold, several hundred elite tier familiars, dozen of commander tier familiars, and equipped with guns, grenades, and they very best electronic gadgets. Then he asked the people why they couldn't hold down a fort like that, which made the people stunned in fear. Gao Peng also said he initially thought that there were lord tier monsters in the horde. But it turns out that there's only a group of normal grade elites and commander tier. Then Gao Peng angrily stare at his people while saying there are a lot among them who don't use their brains. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy and Da Zai to take care of the monsters on the other gates, and Goldie and he will take it from here. Then Goldie jump off the terrace and landed on the ground making the Kappas thrown away. Goldie angrily looks at the Kappas and punched all the Kappas launching an attack at him. Then Goldie jumps forward to attack more of the Kappas. Suddenly one of the Kappas bites Goldie's shoulder which made Goldie angry and got bigger. Then he punched the Kappa into pieces. On the other hand, Gao Peng who's watching Goldie kill all the Kappas called his grandfather to tell his grandfather that there's no need for him to come over because there is not a single Lord Tier monster there. And Gao Peng tells his grandfather not to worry because he'll be careful and he'll take care of the business there in his name. Meanwhile, in the west gate, the apes were shielding the gate while the people were attacking the turtles walking toward them. The man shouted that all members of the third unit, replace the second unit, and don't let the turtles in. The man also said the turtles' brains are nothing but mush and the turtles don't have intelligence, so there's no need to be afraid. Suddenly they saw thunder in the sky, then the thunder hit some of the turtles. Dazie appeared and looked at the burned turtles on the ground while flying in the sky. The other turtles angrily look at Dazai, then attack Dazai, but Dazai uses his thunder wing skills and released a lot of electricity. Then Dazai attacked all the turtles using his electricity, which made the turtles collapse on the ground and electrocuted. The man happily said it was a Lord Tier familiar from the company, and those turtles are paralyzed, then he tells his brothers to finish all the turtles. Meanwhile, in the East Gate, the Kappas were dead on the broken ground, while Goldie was looking at the other shaking Kappas, then Goldie just stepped on the other Kappas to kill it. On the other hand, the man who's watching Goldie said Goldie is so strong while Gao Peng looks at the man from behind while thinking that it's obvious that those who slack off view the company's familiars as their own possessions, and are unwilling to send the familiars into battle. Unfortunately, familiars and their owners are bonded by a blood contract and ownership can't be transferred. But he can't let that work ethic spread. Gao Peng said maybe he can allocate people from the security department to a familiar combat squad and hand the real battles to professionals. Gao Peng also noticed that there was something suspicious about the attack because the monsters won't suddenly attack humans for no reason, and he'll have to look into the reason behind it, and where the monsters came from. Then Gao Peng order Captain Zheng to bring the ones who did well in the battle just now, and he asks them to follow him, to which Zheng agreed. Zheng immediately called Xiao Wang, Old Zia, and other people who fight with the monsters to come over. A few moments later, all the people who work hard to fight the monsters along with their familiars were lined up while Gao Peng told them that there are true warriors, and warriors should be rewarded for their bravery and every scar on their bodies is a testament to such bravery. Then Gao Peng pointed to the camera while saying after the battle, they'll be rewarded and punished accordingly, but Gao Peng also said he can give some of them a second chance. Then he orders the other cowardly people to catch the rest of the Kappas alive and every Kappa they catch is worth a point. The other man angrily said nothing in their world is more important than his own life and quitting the job in Southern Sky Group isn't a big deal. The other man said a young master like Gao Peng only knows how to talk, and if he had Gao Peng resources, he'd definitely have a Lord Tier familiar too. Suddenly one of the men named Zio Guo tells the two men to stop the cynical remarks and he admits that he was afraid when facing the monster wave just now, but he doesn't wish to be a coward forever. Then he tells his beasts to come because they'll go catch some Kappas, which made the two men angry and ask if Zio Guo was calling them cowards. But Guo just walk away to catch some Kappas while the two other men were running to catch Guo because they also want to catch some Kappas. Which made the other cowards people to said that the three men were fakers and a bunch of idiots. But Gao Peng thinks that it seems like not all of their people are hopeless, and he knows everyone will make mistakes, but as long as they want to make amends, he doesn't mind giving them a chance. As for those who are stubborn and refuse to change, he wonders who's going to be the bad cop. The next day, the monsters named Coastal Algae Kappa are being held in cages. Its level is 14 and its grade is normal and its attributes are water and dark. 
Its status is light injuries, leg injured, but still cautious. It pathways for promotion to excellent grades are 1. Deep Sea Algae Kappa for Water Evolution 2. Gloomy Algae Kappa for Gloomy Evolution 3. Terrifying Algae Kappa for Terror Evolution 4. Shadow Algae Kappa for Shadow Evolution and more. Also, its description said it lives near the coast and like to drown weaker creatures in the water, then feast on their flesh. The man tells Gao Peng that the monsters that were caught are all there. Gao Peng noticed that the excellent grade evolutionary pathways and monster stats have become more detailed, so he wonders if it was because his soul strength increased. Then Gao Peng said normal people's familiars based on their looks, they won't sell for a high price since they're ugly. Then Gao Peng ordered the man to sell the dead kappas for parts and those that are still alive can stay, which the man immediately records. Then Gao Peng looked at the monster named Six-Legged Antlered Turtle. It was level 18 in normal grade and its attributes are earth and wood. Its status is moderate injuries and internal bleeding but indifferent, and its pathways for promoting excellent grade are 1. Greenwood Antlered Turtle for Wood Evolution, 2. Six-Legged Bullhorn Turtle for Earth Evolution, and more. Also, its description said it lives most of its life in the ocean and every winter it will come ashore to lay its eggs. Not only do the antlers on their head help regulate body temperature and blood flow, but they also reduce swelling and ward off evil spirits. When cooked, they provide nourishment to the kidney and tonification, refreshing oneself and promoting blood circulation and when ground and made into cream, they nourish the skin which made Gao Peng think some of its antlers are already growing back, meaning they can be harvested. But the turtle in front of him doesn't look like a deer's antlers at all, which made Gao Peng wonder if it could be that it provides similar functions. Then Gao Peng tells the man to start raising those turtles and make sure that the turtle's antlers are harvested regularly, to which the man immediately agreed. While they walk in Gao Peng asks the man if the rewards have been sent out to the ones who participated in the monster wave. The man responded that according to his instruction, the security department has been divided into combat, and reconnaissance divisions and both are being led by personnel who made stellar contributions. The man also said the other outstanding employees have been given a raise and promotions. Then Gao Peng angrily looks back to ask the man how about Zhang Yu, Han Fu, Cheng Zhan, and Lai Jiaxian. The man carefully responded that the punishment for all four of them have been announced to the entire company and they were fired from the Southern Sky Group, and their familiars are being held at the underground laboratory. Gao Peng asks the man if the four men accept the punishment without making a scene. The man fearfully responded that Han Fu argued that according to the law, a familiar is a monster trainer's personal possession, and that the company has no right to detain it. But then Han Fu was punched in the face by Zheng Taizhu which made Gao Peng amazed. Then the man also said he heard that Zheng Taizhu's childhood friend had one of their legs eaten by a kappa and is now a handicapped person, and he was Han Fu's subordinate. Gao Peng said those high-ranking officers are useless because when faced with trouble, they run away without a care about their subordinates' lives. Then Gao Peng angrily asks how dare they said that the familiars are their personal possessions. Then Gao Peng ordered the man to send those four men a lawyer letter and teach those illiterates that the company has the right to take back their familiars. Gao Peng also ordered the man to make those men pay the highest sum for violating the company's code of conduct. Gao Peng start walking while telling the man that those who didn't perform well in the monster wave will receive a pay cut for three months while those who fought head-on and were injured on the battlefield will receive half a year's salary as compensation, and that will also be put on their personal records. Gao Peng also said as for those who lost their lives in battle, their families will be taken care of by the company and they will be provided education, food, and accommodation. The man responded he understand and thanked Gao Peng. Then Gao Peng ride Flamey and tells Flamey that they'll be going to Nan village to find out where those monsters came from. A few hours later, Gao Peng and his familiars arrived at Nan village. Gao Peng saw the village destroyed and said the same thing happened four years ago during the cataclysm, and when confronted by a more powerful presence, all life is so fragile. Suddenly Gao Peng noticed something moving inside the destroyed house. Then Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to go to the house and check it out, to which Da Zhe immediately ran inside the house and caught something that was trying to escape. Then Gao Peng jumps off at Flamey while Da Zai tells Gao Peng that he caught a little shrimp. Then Da Zai lifts up to show Gao Peng the collapsed shrimp while proudly saying he caught it continuously. The shrimp monster's name is Land Kama Shrimp in multi-legged variant. It was level 8 in excellent grade and its attribute is wind. Then Gao Peng tells Da Zai that he knows he caught it in his grate. But that little fellow isn't their target, so he orders Da Zai to let it go. Then Da Zai let go of the shrimp in the ground, but it didn't move which made Da Zai wonder why isn't it moving now when it just jumping around earlier. Gao Peng looked at the shrimp and saw the shrimp status as healthy and aggressive on the outside, but timid on the inside. Gao Peng thinks it's interesting because it knows how to play dead. Then Gao Peng turned and walked away with Da Zai while telling Da Zai to ignore the shrimp and that they should move forward leaving the shrimp lying on the ground. 
When the shrimp feels that Gao Peng team's gone, it stands up and checks its surroundings, then it run fast. On the other hand, Gao Peng and his familiars were hiding behind the wall. Gao Peng asks Flamey how is it? Flamey responded he already left his scent on the shrimp. Gao Peng prays Flamey and tells it to keep an eye on the shrimp because it's normal to see shrimp type monsters there since that village is near the sea, but for a low level monster to be alive after a monster wave, it's not so much. Then Flamey tells Gao Peng that he thinks the shrimp wants to go underwater. Gao Peng tells Flamey to follow the shrimp. On the other hand, the shrimp swim down to the water, but it was attacked by something which made the shrimp explode while something in other water called the shrimp idiot because it didn't even know it fell into an enemy's trap. On the other hand, Flamey tells Gao Peng that the scent that he left on the shrimp is gone. Gao Peng tells Flamey that it's alright and he thinks a commander tier monster must have picked up his scent on the shrimp's body. Gao Peng said he knows that the mastermind behind the monster wave probably isn't far away, and it is even possible that they're hiding beneath them inside the ocean. Then Gao Peng looked at the sea and said the sea is too calm. Then he ordered Flamey to fly higher, to which Flamey immediately agreed. But before they can fly higher they have been attacked by something using the water in the ocean. Then a big monster attacked them which made Gao Peng and Flamey shocked. But Da Zai angrily flies in front of Flamey to protect them and shouted. Then Da Zai uses his thunder wings to attack the monster. Gao Peng noticed that the monster has inner armor beneath its scales, so Da Zai lighting didn't affect it at all. But Da Zai fly toward the monster's scale and cut it using its claw. Then Da Zai uses its thunder wings again to attack the monster inner without its armor while angrily asking the monster how dare he try to eat Gao Peng. Then Da Zai angrily said he'll electrocute the monster continuously, which made Gao Peng proudly said Da Zai had grown because Da Zai slash opened the monster's inner armor before electrocuting it. Then the monster named Gloaming Oceanic Manta Ray jumps back at the ocean. It was level 46 Lord Tier and excellent grade, and its attribute is water. Its abilities are Water Mastery level 3, Hardened Skin level 2, Stealth Skin level 1, and Strengthened Organs level 1. Its monster status is Mild Injury, but still enraged, and its description said its wingspan can reach up to 50 meters, and despite its size, it can move nimbly in the water and it can swallow its prey up with its pocket-like mouth. Da Zai proudly tells Gao Peng he chased the big weird fish away. Gao Peng said it was not bad and he promised to give Da Zai a whole box of mealworms when they get back. Gao Peng also said the ray doesn't look too strong, and it's probably not the one they're looking for. Then Gao Peng thanked Da Zai who is currently so proud of himself. Then Gao Peng ordered Flamey to try attacking the ocean's surface. Then Flamey ready its fire skill and attack the ocean surface using it while angrily saying how dare the monster to wet his feathers. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked to see two big eyes staring at them under the water which made Gao Peng said something was not right. Then he immediately orders Da Zai and Flamey to fall back. On the other hand, the big monster said Gao Peng left, but he was sure that Gao Peng will bring back more humans and that place has been compromised. Meanwhile, in the Yangcheng Military Division 3 office, the chief was sitting on his table chair while saying he's so bored, while one of the militaries said it was a good thing because that means their area is safe. The man also said Divisions 1 and 2 suffered many losses during the monster wave two days ago. Suddenly the alarm in their office rang, which made the chief ask the military looking at the radar why the alarm is ringing. The man responded that the radar has detected a high energy reaction under the sea and it was increasing. The chief ordered his military to send out drones to investigate, which the military immediately did. The drones see a lot of eyes under the water. The military said they have received the data and it's at least 300 square kilometers big. The man also said it was an unknown monster that is able to suppress two Lord Tier monsters at the same time which made the other soldier shocked and ask if it was a new massive monster wave. The chief angrily tells his soldier to not just stand in their position in order to bomb the monsters and check if they can drive some away because he needs to report the situation to the higher ups. Outside Yangcheng City Territorial Sea. The drones attacked the monsters underwater using bombs. Then the fish smell the bombs which made the fish shake and die. The big monster said the smell is unpleasant and some of the little ones have been scared off. The monster also said all the surrounding sea monsters have gathered and it's time for humans to feel their wrath. The other monster asks the big monster why they need to attack the humans and if it is because the fish aren't tasty enough or if there's not enough food there. The fish monster also said he hates the desiccated feel of the land. Then the angry ray said he was bitten by an annoying centipede with wings a few days ago and he promised to devour it this time. But the other fish just made a disappointed noise. Then the big monster tells everyone to get ready because it's coming. On the other hand, Gao Peng sees so many flying type familiars in the sky which made him say a few of the flying familiars are also Lord Tears, and he thinks the Yangcheng military is going all out this time. Then Gao Peng looked at the monsters under the water and said when a large number of sea monsters are gathered in one place, they are able to create a tsunami. Fortunately, the military upgrade the embankment, so it shouldn't be a problem. 
On the other hand, the general angrily shouted that they cannot let the monster wave proceed any further, otherwise, the fortifications will be destroyed. Then he ordered that all ranged combat personnel on site attack the rear of the monster wave, artillery and missile vehicles get ready to attack the center of the wave. Gao Peng tells his familiars that they should go fight the monster wave together with those familiars. Then he orders Da Zai to go with Flamey and don't leave Flamey's side. The flying familiars of the military attack the ocean using their power skills, and at the same time, the missile and tanks of the military are attacking too, which made the other sea monsters get killed. Then the sea monster uses its skills to make a big wave to attack them, which made Gao Peng shocked and think that it was a huge wave that was at least 6 meters taller than the previous one. Then the huge wave slams into the high embankment. The man who's currently running toward Gao Peng asks him if he's okay. Gao Peng responded is fine. Suddenly a big fish jumped off the water and tried to attack Gao Peng. Fortunately, Goldie arrived in time in front of Gao Peng while asking the fish how dare it lay its hands on Gao Peng and if he's invisible to him. Then Goldie said he'll teach the fish a lesson which made Gao Peng confused about what drama Goldie watches recently. Then Goldie uses his secret power named Secret Pattern, Elemental Vacuum Domain, and punched the monster while shouting that its skill is named Invincible Duck Duck Punch which made the monster break into pieces and made strong waves on the ocean which made the other sea monsters thrown. Then Goldie proudly said he's indeed invincible which made Gao Peng disappointedly said those monsters aren't even commander tier. Suddenly a big fish comes out of the ocean, then it attacks Goldie. The monster's name is Sea King Electric Eel. It was level 43 Lord tier in normal grade, with water and electric attributes. Its skills are Water Mastery level 2, Electric Mastery level 3, and Slick Skin level 1. Its condition is healthy but had chest pain and confused, and its description said it evolved from a deep sea electric eel. It likes to live among the coral and it has a body length of about tens of meters long and can release electricity. Goldie shouted that the eel was so strong that he called Dummy a big dummy and asked Dummy to give him a hand. Dummy jumps toward Goldie while telling Goldie to don't call him a big dummy. Then Dummy stabs the eel using his sword. The eel shakes its body to throw Dummy, fortunately, Goldie caught Dummy. Then Goldie angrily said the eel is quite good, then it attacked the eel using his explosive duck punch combo. But the eel showed its electricity which made Goldie shocked. Then it looks at Goldie while telling Goldie not to get ahead of himself. Then the eel attacked Dummy using its electricity, but Goldie shielded itself smiling which made the eel confused. Gao Peng who was watching laughed and said the electric eel probably doesn't even know why only half its body can release electricity. Then Dummy and Goldie punched the eel which made the eel cry while Gao Peng proudly said that although the Sea King electric eel has the upper hand at sea, when Dummy and Goldie work together, it won't even stand a chance. Suddenly Gao Peng saw the water reach his place and he wonder why the sea level is rising. Then he saw something coming out of the seawater, then a coral slowly showed itself. When it fully showed itself, it was so big which made Gao Peng. Goldie and Dummy shocked. The monster also looks at Gao Peng angrily. The monster's name is Sea Coral King. It was level 51 King tier in perfect grade, and its attributes are water and earth. Its skills are Enhanced Reproduction level 3, Accelerated Regeneration level 2, Hardened Body level 3, Enhanced Spirit level 4, Water Mastery level 3, and Earth Mastery level 3. The Sea Coral King's special characteristic is Coral Waters. The Sea Coral King's body is made up of living and dead coral and each mutated coral has a special physiological structure. They can create an environment that is slightly beneficial to aquatic organisms around them. Effect 1, Passive Effect said numerous corals gather together to form a super large area that exists around the body of the Sea Coral King, and all water-type monsters within its boundary experience gradual recovery from wounds and diseases, and they will also feel happy and comfortable. Effect 2, Active effect said it can choose to consume some of the corals and provide enhanced healing to a specified target. However, the target must be near the Sea Coral King. The Sea Coral King description says coral reefs are made up of countless corals and the dead bodies of corals become coral reefs. The parasitic corals on the coral reefs eject a large amount number of young bodies at intervals, and those young life forms rapidly evolve into new coral polyps in the water and then build new communities on the edges of coral reefs to form new reefs, expanding their boundaries that process happens countless times, year after year, layer after layer. The new generation will keep expanding on the dead bodies of the previous generation, eventually growing into a behemoth, and one day, the behemoth becomes an intelligent sentient creature with consciousness, and the constant pollution humans pour into the sea has caused the sea coral king to hate humans. Gao Peng thinks as he expected, such a large creature must have evolved from a collection of sentient creatures, and if it's a living organism, then Da Zai, the others and he won't be able to return to shore alive. 
Gao Peng said what is truly scary about the Sea Coral King is its regeneration capabilities and commutative abilities and if he has to describe it, it's akin to an aircraft carrier. Also, Gao Peng thinks if someone could conquer the Sea Coral King, they could build a headquarters directly on its back and they could recruit large numbers of flying and marine monsters, and they would then be able to move unhindered across the entire ocean. Suddenly Gao Peng heard two men beside him debating what is the sea coral king because the other man can't believe a big coral reef becomes sentient, and the other man proved that it can. Then Gao Peng walked toward the two men and tells them that what they arguing isn't important right now because based on their situation earlier, the sea coral king probably has the ability to control or charm the sea monsters and right now, the sea level has already risen above the fortification, so there's a high chance it'll attack their place. Then the military man said they need to tell the other people to evacuate and he asked the professors to follow him. Gao Peng also tells Goldie and Dummy to wrap things up quickly because they leaving too. While they walking Gao Peng saw people and asked the military man why are the people still there because he thought civilians are prohibited. The military responded that the civilians probably sneaked in to loot some monster corpses and he tells Gao Peng not to be concerned about the civilian because they need to retreat first. On the other hand, one military shouted to the civilians that they need to leave quickly because the golden sickle fish have already broken through their defense and they're absolutely no less dangerous than sharks. And the military also tells the civilians that there was no need for them to risk their lives for such few corpses. One man tells his friends to run because their lives are more important. When one of the civilian men ran he saw that the golden sickle fish is catching up to him. Then the man was shocked to see his familiar named Blackie come to save him. After Blackie killed the golden sickle fish, the man tells his beast that they should hurry and go to the shore. While walking the man looked back and saw many golden sickle fishes swimming fast toward them. Then one of the fish attacked Blackie which made the man shocked. But Blackie grabs the man's shirt and throws the man to the shore. Then the golden sickle fishes attack Blackie. The man begs his friends to save his Blackie while saying he was the one who is greedy, and his Blackie doesn't deserve it. But his friends just stand didn't know what to say. Gao Peng called Flamey and Goldie to rescue Blackie, to which Flamey immediately burned the golden sickle fishes while Goldie grabbed Blackie and ran toward the shore. Goldie put down the injured Blackie to his owner who was panicking and asking Blackie if it was okay. Gao Peng orders Dummy to give him a pedal, to which Dummy immediately gets to Flowery who currently staying on his head. Then Dummy and Silly put the pedals on wounds of Blackie. The man cryingly said Blackie's wounds are gradually recovering and he thanks Gao Peng continuously. But Gao Peng tells the man not to misunderstand because he only helped because of his familiar's undying loyalty. Gao Peng saw that the man's condition in the system showed happy but guilty. Then Flamey who's still attacking the fishes tells Gao Peng that the fishes started fighting and there are so many big fishes, prawns, and a bluefin too. Tuna. On the other hand, the military who currently blocking the sea monsters with their familiars tells their captain that the monster wave is too powerful, and their comrades and familiars can't hold the monster wave any longer. The captain responded that they need one minute max fully evacuate the citizens and they must stand their ground no matter what. But Gao Peng tells the military to step back while Dummy was flying toward the monster wave and attack the monster using its power. Then Dummy held his heart and shouted resurrect which made the dead familiars come back to life. On the other hand, one military man who's holding his dead beast's name Afu, crying and saying it was all his fault. Then a white smoke entered Afu head that made Afu come back to life which made the man shocked. Then Afu angrily attacked the monster in the sea and the other undead familiars of Dummy attacked the sea monsters once again. Meanwhile, one military reported to the commander that Gao Peng from the southern sky has resurrected an army of undead and had successfully held off the monster wave. The man also said General Lai and General Gao have already decided to start counter-attacking. The commander happily said although Jai Huan is good for nothing, Jai Huan sure does have a good grandson. Meanwhile, in the seawater, one military pointed to the sea coral king and said the island monster left. Then the other military man collapsed on the water while saying it was finally over. While Gao Peng thinks luckily the army of undead stopped the monster wave and once it ran out of fighters, the coral king could only run away since it doesn't possess much attack power. Then Gao Peng looked back and was shocked to see Goldie picking the dead fish in the sea. Gao Peng tells Goldie to just bringing the Sea King Electric Eel's corpse back is enough and that he should leave the other's fish. But Goldie responded he don't care because Gao Peng said one fish was worth 500 alliance credits. Then Goldie started to count the fish he was holding. Then Goldie saw the man picking up fish corpses and walked toward the man while telling the man to drop the fish corpses because all of it was his, which made the man shocked. On the other hand, Gao Peng answer Wang Ya call and asks why Huang Ya call him. Wang Ya congratulate Gao Peng on his victory and he said the Lord of the Undead has already started to spread. 
Gao Peng said the news spread fast because they have just wrapped things up over there. Then Gao Peng tells Wang Ye to stop with the nonsense because he knows Wang Ye must have something important to tell to him. Wang Ye tells Gao Peng that he has news about the unusual phenomenon he asked him to keep an eye out and he said the ghostly soldiers walking the earth and building their own bases on the mortal plane. Gao Peng asked Huang Ye where, and Huang Ye responded in Bingzhu, Gaoping City, which made Gao Peng wonder would Bingzhu have the materials needed to promote Dummy to a legendary grade. Then Gao Peng ordered Huang to continue to look into it and that he needs accurate information. The next day, in the Yuzhu laboratory, Gao Peng was looking at the tube with a boiling solution while saying that the reaction of the solution is perfect and the solution was also successful. Then Gao Peng ordered Flowery to come to him because he'll give him his shot, which Flowery immediately followed. Then Flowery hugged Gao Peng arm happily while Gao Peng was holding an injection in the other hand, telling Flowery not to be scared because it'll hurt a little, but it'll help him become stronger. Then Gao Peng injects the solution into Flowery. Gao Peng heard the water in the river splash which made him say it was white and his grandfather is back from the heavenly lake, and he wonder if that means that the thunder god has successfully evolved. Then Gao Peng look at Flowery who's inside the tube weak and tells flowery that is still very weak, so he needs to rest inside the protective glass case for a while. Then Gao Peng walked outside and saw his familiars and his grandfather. Gao Peng asks his grandfather how Thunder God is, but Jai Huan tells Gao Peng to see it himself. Then Gao Peng look at successful Thunder God evolved. Thunder God's new monster name is Thunder Shell God. It was level 45 and legendary grade and its attribute is electric. Its status is healthy and happy and its skills are Thunder Mastery level 5 and Hardened Shell level 4. Thunder God's special characteristic is Thunder Shell, a mysterious shell with equally mysterious properties, and it has a high electrical affinity. Effect 1, passive effect is Thunder Mastery level plus 1. Effect 2, active effect said the Thunder Shell God summons a calamitous storm within a certain area by releasing all the electricity stored in its shell and it was named Electrogland, a special gland in the Thunder Shell God's body that allows it to summon and control the cloud. Effect 1, active effect said with it, the thunder shell god is capable of gathering all the clouds in the sky into a storm cloud and then drawing power from it. Also, the system showed thunder god pathways for promotion to mythical grade are 1. Calamitous evolution it was calamitous thunder shell god, and 2. Eclectic evolution it was cloud devourer thunder beast. Gao Peng patted Thunder God happily, while thinking the bonus Thunder Mastery level boost in the special characteristics section hasn't been added to Thunder God's Thunder Mastery level as shown in the Monster Skills section. So the actual Thunder Mastery level should be level 6 and that is the highest elemental mastery level he has ever seen. Which made Gao Peng wonders if the Thunder God is now a heavily armored eclectic attribute mage. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he tested Thunder God once he come back and Thunder God is already legendary grade. Gao Peng responded that the evolution was a success after all. Jai Huan thinks those few breakthroughs have proven that Gao Peng can steadily breed legendary grade familiars, although Gao Peng doesn't have a 100% success rate. That is already a very terrifying achievement and he thinks the southern sky is still peaceful as of now, but to further protect Gao Peng he needs to become stronger. Gao Peng tells his grandfather that he plans to bring Flamey on a trip to its birthplace, then he asks his grandfather if he still remembers where Flamey birthplace was. Jai Huan responded that a year passed in the blink of an eye but he think it was in a swamp to the west of Jiangnan Bay City. Then Gao Peng look at Flamey and tells Flamey that he promised him last time, so they'll go visit his birthplace tomorrow. Flamey responded okay while thinking about his mother. The next day, in Jiangnan Bay City's Southern Sky Branch, Gao Peng was with Flamey listening to the man while looking at the monitor. The man pointed to the monitor and tells Gao Peng that the information he requested about all the crane type and crocodile type monsters in Jiangnan Bay City and the swamp was on the monitor, which made Gao Peng tell the man named Chen he did good work. Then Flamey who's looking at the monitor tells Gao Peng to stop scrolling because he saw the crocodile. Gao Peng asks Flamey if the crocodile on the screen is the one who hurt his mom. Flamey responded yes and pointed to the screen while telling Gao Peng that those cranes behind the tree hiding are his kin. Gao Peng asked Chen if he know where the place was. Chen responded it was the swamp of the crocodile spirit in the Kayan family's territory. Gao Peng slowly stands up while asking Chen if there's such a thing called the Kayan family's territory. Then Gao Peng angrily asks Chen when did the wilderness become a family territory. Chen responded it's an unspoken rule and it is just like how everyone says that Yuzhu is Southern Sky's territory. Gao Peng look at Chen and tells Chen that Yuzhu can only be the Alliance's territory and they Southern Sky is just the Yuzhu government's closest ally, which made Chen immediately agree while wondering if the other districts say that Gao Peng is easily approachable because he thinks Gao Peng is just like a tiny giant 
Kai Huan. Then Gao Peng ordered Chen to tell him more about the Kayan family. Chen responded currently, there are 12 Lord Tier monster trainers in the Jiangnan base city. Three are from the government, two are from the military, five are from the four big families Zhao, Kayan, Sun, and Lai, and the other two are from the common people. Chen also said among the four big families, the Kayan family possesses two Lord Tier familiars, so Gao Peng can say that the other families are led by them. Plus the Kayan family has the support of the government. Gao Peng asks Chen which trainer in the Kayan family has a Lord Tier red-eyed crocodile as their familiar. Chen responded the second oldest member of the Kayan family named Kayan Wu Liang. Gao Peng started to walk away while ordering Chen to send a written challenge to Kayan Wu Liang and have him meet him on the northern outskirts of the city in three days. Then Gao Peng angrily said life and death to each their own. Chen tells Gao Peng that challenging Kayan Wu Liang is like declaring war on the entire Kayan family, and the four big families are in an alliance. So declaring war on the Kayan family is akin to declaring war on the big four. But Gao Peng just said the family is just united with each other to protect their own interests from the government. Then Gao Peng looked at Chen ordering Chen to send invitation to the Zhao, Sun, and Lai families and invite them to a banquet because they'll kick the Kayan family out of their territory and he thinks it's time for the Southern Sky group to step in. Then Gao Peng asked Chen if two can play that game and if he agrees, which made Chen fearfully respond he agreed. Then Gao Peng continued to walk away again while saying he'll make a visit to their dear mayor tonight. Meanwhile, in the evening, at the Kayan family's mansion, the secretary was running while telling the family head that they just received word that the Southern Sky Group has invited the Zhao, Sun, and Lai families to a banquet and the three families have accepted the invitation which made the Kayan family shocked. The lady asks if someone offend the Southern Sky group and if not, why would the young master pick a fight with them? The man said they were the four big families, so he wonder how could they do that to them. The other man said they could just decline the challenge because it was just a written challenge. The other man responded that Gao Peng is lucky to have an influential grandfather backing him. And if they take Gao Peng on, they'll be provoking Jai Huan and it'll be troublesome for them. Suddenly someone hit the table hard while telling the Kayan's member to stop talking. Then the man angrily asks why should they decline because he was Kayan Wu Liang and he fears no one. Wu Liang also said he'll just spare Gao Peng familiar's lives when he defeats Gao Peng. Wu Liang angrily said Gao Peng high popularity. And an undead catastrophe were nothing and young people like Gao Peng are all talk and no show. Then he orders them to spread the word that he accepts Gao Peng challenge and they'll meet in three days in the western outskirts. Then Wu Ling started to walk away leaving the other Kayan's members wondering if they really going to make an enemy out of the southern sky. On the other hand, the lady walks toward the one man while the man asks his mother if there is something she needs. The lady tells the man named Shei Yu that only he and his second uncle Wu Ling have a Lord Tier familiar in their family, so their family's future relies greatly on him. Then the lady also tells Shei Yu that when his uncle Wu Ling shows up for the challenge, he should remember to look after his uncle. Shei Yu tells his mother that if she's worried that Wu Ling might hurt Gao Peng, there's no need to worry because Gao Peng is stronger than Wu Ling. The lady said the Kayan family accepts any outcome from the match, but Wu Ling has great ambition and is arrogant, so she's worried that Wu Ling result to tricks because Wu Ling doesn't want to lose and Wu Ling purposely changed the fight venue to the western outskirts. The lady also tells Shei Yu that if the worst comes to worst, he should bring Wu Ling back immediately, no matter what it takes. Meanwhile, in Jiangbei City Chengxi outskirts Swamp of the Crocodile Spirit, the crocodile was peacefully sleeping on the grass while Wu Ling told it not to treat him as if he's invisible because he admit that he took advantage of it by forcing it to sign a blood contract with it when it was severely injured by the Lord Tier Fire type crane all those years ago. But Wu Ling tells the crocodile that he has treated him well all these years. Then Wu Ling also tells the crocodile that someone wants to challenge him. Then Wu Ling asks if he still remembers the white dragon he encountered a year ago. Then Wu Ling explained that the one who wants to challenge him is the grandson of the white dragon's trainer, which made the crocodile shocked to open its eyes and ask Wu Ling if the white dragon come to challenge him. Wu Ling responded no and he said it was probably a skeleton. Then Wu Ling tells the crocodile to try not to kill that person's familiar, and spare its life, which made the crocodile just close its eyes again and doesn't care. Meanwhile, in Jiangnan base city Lake Tai, Gao Peng was walking on the bridge with a girl. Then Gao Peng asked the girl why there were no silverfish for sale because he remembered that they were a Lake Tai specialty. The girl responded currently, it is prohibited to fish for silverfish in Lake Tai and it is also prohibited to kill them because a silverfish prince has appeared in Lake Tai, and it scared all the other monsters living in the lake into not attacking the Jiangnan base city. So they're only allowed to fish for monsters that aren't silverfish. Gao Peng look at the lake and thinks that the silverfish prince is smart at using the strength of others by letting the humans fish out the other monsters living in the lake, and the silverfish prince 
Prince is able to create a conducive environment for the silverfish to grow in. Then Goldie happily jumps to call Gao Peng to come and take pictures, then Goldie gives the camera to the girl while the girl tells Goldie she got it, and he'll definitely make sure he looks handsome in the photo. Then the girl captured a photo of Gao Peng and his familiars. The day of the challenge comes, in the Jiang Base city's western outskirts. The man assured Gao Peng not to worry because they are representing the alliance and their judgments will be fair which made Gao Peng thank the man. Then Flamey angrily looks at the crocodile who's smiling in the lake. Gao Peng looks at angry Flamey while thinking it was the first time he has seen Flamey that angry and it looks like the crocodile is Flamey's nemesis. Then Gao Peng looked at their surrounding while saying as he expected, the place Kai and Wu Liang chose is a swampy land with abundant water and grass, as well as a large number of shallow shoals. Gao Peng knows that the place is the perfect environment for amphibious monsters. However, Gao Peng said a red crown crane's habitat has a lot of similarities to the crocodiles, and Flamey has the ability to fly if it can't win, it can at least fly away. Suddenly Wu Ling tells Gao Peng that he thinks the battle can be avoided and he hopes they can set aside their hatred. But Gao Peng responded that flamey parents were killed, and Wu Ling demanded with great righteousness that it set aside its hatred and forgive its enemies. Gao Peng also tells Wu Ling that maybe he can do that, but flamey can't, and he says he won't interfere in the fight because that is something flamey and the crocodile needs to settle among themselves which made the Kayan's members shocked and said they thought Gao Peng would be sending out the skeleton tyrant, and they think the crane looks one year old at most. Then they wonder if Gao Peng is crazy, but Gao Peng just laughs and tells Flamey to show those people what he got, to which Flamey immediately showed its fire aura while Gao Peng was beside it. Then Flamey flies above the crocodile to attack, but before Flamey can attack the crocodile sucked Flamey to get close, then the crocodile uses its tail to attack Flamey. Fortunately, Flamey uses the force of the explosion to dodge it. Flamey fly higher and attack the crocodile's tail using its firepower. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks the crocodile combo is scary because it sucked Flamey into his attack range for a surprise attack and he thinks the crocodile king is surely strong. Also, he know that if Flamey hadn't used the force of the explosion to dodge its tail, the fight would have been over right then and there. The crocodile monster's name is Greenwood Swamp Red Eye Crocodile King. It was level 45 normal tier and its attributes are water and wind. Its abilities are Hardened Carapace level 3, Sharp Fangs level 2, Water Mastery level 3, and Wind Mastery level 2. The crocodile's current condition is healthy and calm in its introduction said a giant crocodile who lives in the swamp region. It's arrogant yet powerful and it has strong attacks and likes to live in a group. Gao Peng shouted to tell Flamey that one of the crocodile's attributes is wind, so he should be careful not to get hit with its wind attribute attacks. To which Flamey responded he understand. Wu Ling tells the crocodile that flamey attribute is fire and it can fly, so he needs to watch out, and also. But before Wu Ling can finish his words the crocodile said Wu Ling is noisy which made Wu Ling stunned. Then Flamey attacked the crocodile from above which made the crocodile tells Flamey that his attacks aren't effective and he can't continue to be on the defensive anymore. Then the crocodile swims inside the water and uses its water skill to shield itself from flamey fire attack, which made Flamey shocked. Gao Peng worriedly thought that the crocodile used its surroundings to create an elemental barrier, and that is its home ground. Also as he expected, the crocodile has a trump card. But Flamey angrily asks the crocodile if he thinks water can stop his flames. Then Flamey attacked the crocodile using fireballs to make a rains of fireballs, while shouting he'll scorch the crocodile's skin and dry out every drop of its water. Gao Peng said he can feel the scorching heat despite standing a few hundred meters away. And even if the crocodile king doesn't die, it'll at least lose its skin. Then Gao Peng saw that the crocodile condition is moderately injured and burned. Then the crocodile tried to escape, but Flamey chased it while telling it is not giving it a chance to run. The crocodile looks at Flamey, then it attacked using its wind skill which made Gao Peng worried, and asks Flamey if he's okay. Flamey tells Gao Peng not to worry because he won't get hit a second time. Then Flamey angrily shouted that he'll burn the crocodile to death and avenge his mother, which made the crocodile thinks the heat of Flamey flames is even higher than before and he knows that Flamey isn't just any ordinary Lord Tear. Also, the crocodile said if he doesn't come up with a plan soon, he'll really die. Then the crocodile saw Gao Peng and thinks that as long as he eliminates Flamey Trainer he'll be fine. Then it attacked Gao Peng which made Wu Ling shocked and asked his crocodile what it was doing and he shouted don't attack Gao Peng. On the other hand, She Yu and his beast are hiding from the tree. She Yu orders his beast to be quick because they need to stop the crocodile king. But She Yu beast tells She Yu to wait and look because the ghoul type familiar next to Gao Peng is strong. Dummy kicks the crocodile away from Gao Peng, which made the crocodile thrown away. Then it starts to run while Flamey still chasing it while telling it not to run. Gao Peng said the crocodile even knows how to make use of the momentum to run away. 
However, Gao Peng said Flamey has already won and the crocodile's movements are agile and it has a strong burst attack. So if Flamey hadn't received his help and was just an ordinary Lord Tier, there's no way that it would have been able to get its revenge. On the other hand, Shei Yu approaches his uncle, but Wu Ling tells Shei Yu not to worry because a defeat is a defeat and he won't resort to dirty tricks. Which made Shei Yu thinks his second uncle is more cooperative than he'd thought and Wu Ling people are also becoming more willing to listen to his mother's orders. Although the Kayan family suffered some setbacks in the past, at least they're more united now. Suddenly Wu Ling coughed blood which made Shei Yu worried and help his uncle to walk while saying seeing how serious the backlash Wu Ling received it looks like the odds are against the Crocodile King, and he was afraid that from now on, there might no longer be a Crocodile King in Jiangnan Base City. After the challenge, Gao Peng was on the Lake Tai Bridge while Chen reported that the Kayan family is willing to cede the entire Crocodile Spirit Swamp to the Southern Sky Group, including all the familiars inside and that includes Flamey's kin and the Kayan family also prepared a huge sum of money as compensation. Gao Peng responded no and said that the challenge is just a personal vendetta between the two familiars and he'll accept the Crocodile Spirit Swamp but Gao Peng tells Chen to pay the Kayan family back according to the market price and return the compensation in full. Chen responded yes and said in addition. The three big families have signed a partnership agreement with them and the local division of their company will establish a branch of the Explorers Union in the Crocodile Spirit Swamps as the second membership program. Chen also tells Gao Peng that the company has fulfilled his request to send relevant personnel to check on the Flaming Red Crane's living conditions at regular intervals. Gao Peng tells Chen that he has done well, then he asks Flamey if he really not going to visit his kin. Flamey responded that even without his intervention, there's a chance that his kin will be able to forge their own evolution pathways one day. And Flamey tells Gao Peng that being able to assist him in his revenge has already made him happier than ever, and as for other things, he'll just let nature take its course. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked and confused to see something in the lake swimming toward them. It was the monster named the Mystical Mirror Diviner Turtle. It was level 46 in perfect grade and its attribute is mystic. Its abilities are Reflective Mirror Armor level 4, Jade Skeleton level 3, and Water Manipulation level 3. Its special characteristic is Mystical Shell Armor, an extraordinary shell that developed over the years and may be used to divine prosperity or misfortune. Its special characteristic 1, Passive Ability said it has a strong sense of danger and will avoid any danger once detected and it can also sense good fortune and good fortune will then approach. Which made Gao Peng wonder if it could be that the turtle is a good judge of character, and is there to be his familiar. When the turtle was near to Gao Peng, he wonder if he should accept the turtle as his familiar or not. But then the turtle gives a material's name Ambergris Jade. It was made out of the condensation of various dragon species and it can store the dragon's languages and information about them. When Gao Peng gets the jade he looks at it and wonders why the turtle gives him that jade, while the turtle is returning to the lake. Gao Peng also wonders if it could be that the turtle was sent by the silver dragon prince to find white dragon. Then Gao Peng gives the jade to Chen while telling Chen to send the jade back to white dragon and Yuzhu because he has to go on a trip to the Changping village next to which Chen immediately agreed. Meanwhile, in the Gaoping base city outside Changping village, Xiaozu, Qingzhai, and Xinrui with their familiars were there searching. Xiaozu said he thinks they were nearing Changping village which Xinrui responded yes. Then she gets something in her bag while saying that the report stated that all the monsters inside are ghoul type, so they should rub some ghoul powder on themselves first. Then Xinrui showed a box of ghoul powder which made Xiaozu shocked. Zinri tells Zio Zhu not to be a baby and hurry up because the powder only lasts for 4 hours, and she said that it's just ashes of ghoul-type monsters, not humans. Then they started to rub the ghoul powder on themselves while Zinri remind them to not forget to rub some on their familiar. Suddenly Zinri see a red grass on the ground and happily said that was blood sword grass that they can sell for up to 10 alliance credits, and if she collect all of the blood sword grass that adds up to more than 100,000 alliance credits, then she said she's gonna be rich. While Zinri excitedly picked up the red grass on the ground, Zhaozu said that the place is more dangerous than they thought, which made King Jai ask why is the place dangerous. Then Zhaozu pointed to the ground and said that the whole field is littered with valuable materials, yet no one has come to pick up the materials. Then he asks King Jai what she thinks is the reason. Then they started to walk again while Zhaozu tells Zinrui that the bone ash of her is pretty effective because the previous two teams were attacked multiple times on the stretch of road. 
but they were able to reach there safely. While they walking something inside the ground felt Zyozu's feet, then a hand come out of the field and tried to grab his feet. Fortunately, Oriate punched the hand in time. Zinri tells Zyozu to be careful because they're only hiding their smell with ghoul powder, but the monster there can still sense them if they're too close. Suddenly the air in the place got heavier and someone tells them to go home continuously. Then the ghost soldiers come out underground which made Zinri said there are thousands of ghost soldiers and she said Gao Peng's commission isn't easy to complete. Then Zinri pointed to somewhere and tells Zio Zhu and King Jai that the general's bone and the thousand-year heart of darkness can be found at the center of the village, but the flames of darkness spawn randomly. Then Zinri said that they should search the vicinity first and if they don't find anything in an hour, they'll head straight into the center of the village. Then the group started to continue to walk while walking King Jai shake in cold and asks if there are really people who live there. Zinri responded that according to their sources, the people in the Changping village moved away after the cataclysm, but she said those dry corn cobs look like they were hung up on the wall just recently. Suddenly someone appeared behind them which made them shocked. The man with a monster in human form said hello to them and said that the general would like to see them. Zinri asked the man which general. The man responded that it was General Zhao which made King Jai realize that it was the Battle of Changping Zhao Kuo. Zio Zhu and Zinri look at each other, then Zio Zhu said they should follow the man and the monster in human form because he trusts that the great General Zhao Kuo wouldn't result in dirty tricks. They follow the man and arrive at the gate with a ghost soldier guarding it, while the man tells them that they're almost there. Then the ghost soldier opens the gate for them and they saw General Zhao sitting in the center while many soldier ghosts were behind him which made Zio Zhu think that the place is the nest of the ghost soldiers. Then Zinri introduced herself and said he greets General Zhao which made General Zhao laugh hysterically and ask if he should take Zinri's words as an insult. Then the ghost soldiers pointed the weapons at them, but Zinri calmly put her hands in the air while telling General Zhao that they would never dare to insult his excellency. General Zhao looked at their beast and said they were the strongest group he have seen in the past few years. Then General Zhao said he would like to work with them and if they're there for Changping's local specialties, he'll allow it, but he would like something of equal value from them in return. Which made Zinri breathe a sigh of relief and think if it's something money can solve, it won't be a problem for them. Then she asks the General Zhao what he needs. Zinri also tells General Zhao that they hail from the Southern Sky Group and at least in terms of financial resources, they will definitely be able to fulfill all of his requests. General Zhao responded that they should tell him what they need first. Zinri said they need a general's bone and a thousand-year heart of darkness, which made General Zhao wonder why they need his bone. Then General Zhao said fine, but they may only take one bone and as for the thousand-year heart of darkness, he has never heard of it. Zinri tells General Zhao that the thousand-year heart of darkness is his heart then she orders her beast to attack General Zhao to which her mantis shrimp immediately did and made the general throw in the wall. Zio Zhu tells Zinri that she's really something and after an attack like that, her crystal sparrow-tailed mantis shrimp won't be able to use its pincers for a month. Then Zio Zhu asks Zinri if her mantis shrimp is an assassin. But before Zinri can answer, King Jai from behind shouts that they have been surrounded by ghost soldiers which made Zinri shouted that they can't let the ghost soldier gather, then King Jai order her deer to use the holy light deer. Then the deer holy light heals Zinri mantis shrimp broken pincer and fades all the ghost soldiers who got hit by the holy light. Inside the holy light, King Jai said looks like they'd temporarily suppressed the ghost soldiers. On the other hand, Zinri noticed that there was something that was absorbing yin energy from the hole, and General Zhao should still be alive. Then she shouted that they should kill General Zhao when he was weak. Then she called Kangaroo to which Oriate understand and punches the hole multiple times where General Zhao was. Suddenly General Zhao's sword in the ground move, then it goes inside the hole hitting Oriate arm. Then General Zhao stand up and caught his sword, then angrily attack Oriate using his sword and look at them and ask them how dare lowly thieves like them attack him. Then General Zhao raises his sword in the air while ordering his ghost soldiers to kill them all. Zio Zhu notices the yin energy is gathering to form a blood cloud and he knows that it was bad because if they get swallowed by the blood cloud, they'll tire themselves to death while fighting the ghost soldiers. Then he orders his hairball to release the black smoke which hairball immediately did. Then Zio Zhu tells his team to retreat. King Jai and Zinri jump toward the eagle's back while Oriate and Zaozu were holding onto the eagle's leg. While they fly away Zinri wonders why the sky is changing again. Zaozu responded that the lighting is driving away the blood clouds. Then Zinri was shocked to see a white dragon. Zaozu said it was Jai Huan. White used its power to make a tornado to clear the clouds, on the other hand. General Zhao confidently shouts that he'll cut white in half in one strike. Then General Zhao attacks white using its skill sword. But General Zhao's attack just faded on White's tornado and got hit by it which made General Zhao thrown away. 
Then Jai Huan gets down at White while saying he doesn't care if General Zhao's name is Zhao Qiuo or Lai Qiuo and he tells General Zhao that since he dares to stand in their way, he should accept his fate which made General Zhao ask who is Jai Huan. But before General Zhao can finish his words, Jai Huan orders White to take General Zhao away, but he should be gentle and not kill him. A few moments later, in Jai Huan's side lake, General Zhao was thrown onto the ground unconscious. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he doesn't know how to harvest the general's bone and the thousand-year heart of darkness he wanted, so he just brought the whole thing for him. Jai Huan also said he had brought the flames of darkness that Xin Ri collected for him, which made Gao Peng stunned and thinks it was another material obtained so easily, and he doesn't even need to face any hardship. Gao Peng also thinks that there is only one material left to collect in order to promote Dummy to legendary grade. Then Gao Peng look at White who's looking at its burned tail confused. Then Gao Peng called White and asked what did the Silver Dragon Prince give to him and if the Silver Dragon is his son. Then Gao Peng excitedly said no way because White is so young yet it already has a son. Then Gao Peng asks White who's Silver Dragon's mom, which made White angry and wet him using the lake water. Jai Huan started to walk away while telling Gao Peng that there was something he hadn't had the chance to tell him. A spatial rift has appeared in the Bei district and it shouldn't be too dangerous with his skill level, so that experience will be good for him. This made Gao Peng who was drenched wonder what spatial rift. The next day, in the Bei district, Gao Peng asks the military if the spatial rift is inside the building. The military responded yes and he said the black fog weakens the most at noon and when its diffusion rate is considerably suppressed, however, at night, it envelops the entire building, completely concealing it from sight. Then the military pointed to the monsters and tells Gao Peng that those monsters are the main inhabitant of the Black Fog, and normal weapons don't work on the monsters. The monster's name is a Black Jacket Gecko. It was level 20 in normal grade and its type is Shadow. Its skill is Power of Shadow level 1, and its description said a gecko wearing a black coat, and it capable of moving nimbly with its slender body. It also likes to eat fresh meat. Gao Peng said there shouldn't be any Lord Tier monsters inside. Then he ordered Goldie to go and take a look inside the building, to which Goldie immediately followed. Then the military ordered the team 2 to stand by, but Gao Peng tells the man that they don't need to enter because Goldie can handle the situation alone. On the other hand, Goldie attacks all the geckos that block his way which made the geckos scream. One military man tells his comrade that he thinks it's the screams of the black jacket geckos. A few minutes later, Goldie walks out of the building while telling Gao Peng that all the monsters inside have been taken care of by the humble monk which he means himself. Then Goldie showed the dead gecko to Gao Peng while telling Gao Peng that all the monsters inside are fish with four legs. Then Goldie asks Gao Peng if he can sell the corpse of the geckos for 500 alliance credits. Gao Peng responded that it was a gecko and he also asked Goldie where did he get those Buddhist prayer beads. Then Gao Peng said all the monsters inside should be cleared out, so they'll enter first. Then they started to walk inside the building passing geckos in the side. Then Gao Peng saw the item named Spatial Rift, its travel between two entirely different worlds. Which made Gao Peng wonder why a Spatial Rift is considered an item, and he thinks if it's an item that means he can definitely bring it back with him. He also said maybe he can capture two Spatial Rifts and place them at their home as back doors. Suddenly the Spatial Rift released smoke which made Gao Peng wonders what was happening. Then a tentacle comes out of it, and the monster named Yellow Jacket Devil Octopus comes out of it. It was level 26 commander tier in normal grade and its attribute is psychic. Its status is healthy but afraid and its description said a monster that likes to control the minds of enemies to satisfy its convoluted heart and finally devours its still fearful prey. Gao Peng thinks if only he knew what the yellow jacket and the black jacket stood for, and he wonders if could it be the black jacket gecko and yellow jacket devil octopus attributes are means black is shadow and yellow is mind. Then Goldie punched the octopus in the chin while asking what was that ugly thing because it was hideous and he said the octopus even wore a yellow jacket to imitate him, leaving Gao Peng stunned in the side. Then Gao Peng asked the military if they have explored the other side of the spatial rift. The military responded that they tried to throw an electronic device into the spatial rift but they were unable to receive any signal. Then, they tried experimented using monsters, but all of their monsters were killed. Gao Peng ordered Dummy to summon the Sea King Eel skeleton and let it check out the spatial rift for them which Dummy immediately summoned the King Eel and made the military beast scared and tell it not to be scared because it's not an enemy. Then the Ghoul King Eel enters the spatial rift. Dummy tells Gao Peng that there are only a few black jacket geckos on the other side and there are no other stronger monsters. Then Dummy tells Gao Peng that he'll go inside the spatial rift and confirm. A few seconds later, Dummy who's inside the spatial rift tells Gao Peng that it's safe, which made Gao Peng responded okay. Then he orders Flamey, Goldie, and Dazai to follow him. Then Gao Peng peek his head into the spatial rift while thinking that the feeling of passing through a spatial rift is peculiar, 
and it feels like his passing through a curtain of water. Gao Peng also notices that there's not much black fog there, so his vision isn't disrupted. Then Gao Peng looks at the wall wondering why the wall looks like a maze. While the military behind him told the other militaries inside the spatial rift to be faster and prioritize measuring data and collecting samples. Gao Peng look at his surrounding and thinks that it was the look of a different world. Suddenly they heard a loud noise which made the military shocked. Then one of the militaries pointed to something and called his captain to look at it. The monster's name is Blood Jacket Labyrinth Watcher. It was level 49 Lord Tier in excellent grade and its attribute is Shadow. Its skills are Power of Shadow level 3, Strong Muscle level 3, Enhanced Hearing level 3, and Super Recovery level 3. Its special characteristic is a bloody pursuit that means when its attack makes contact with a target. Within 10 seconds, all Blood Jacket Labyrinth Watchers within a certain range will receive a real-time vision of the aforementioned target. The Labyrinth Watcher's weakness is light and its description set a monster unique to the desolate labyrinth in the Black Fog world. With a mischievous disposition, it likes to play tricks on travelers that get lost in the maze and will become uncharacteristically violent after suffering damage, as well as grudges. It also remembers the face of anyone who attacks it, even after a hundred years. Gao Peng noticed that the Labyrinth Watcher was holding a weapon which made him wonder if that world have its own civilization. Then Flamey angrily flies toward the labyrinth while telling it not to play tricks, but Flamey just stopped by the invisible wall in the air. Then the labyrinth laughs hard, and when it looks back it was confused and shocked to saw Gao Peng telling the military to hurry up and run out of there. Then it angrily walk inside the maze which made Gao Peng said it was chasing them. Then he orders Da Zai to hold it off to which Da Zai immediately made electricity balls and attacked the labyrinth using it. Goldie ran while shouting that he'll help Da Zai, but Gao Peng stopped Goldie which made Goldie confused. Gao Peng tells Goldie that if he grows in size there, he won't be able to pass through the spatial rift later. On the other hand, Da Zai who's being attacked by a big axe was shocked and called Dummy to come and help him. Dummy arrive and use his arm to shield Da Zai while telling Da Zai to fall back. Then Dummy fell to the ground, then jump and kick the labyrinth leg, which made the labyrinth fall to the ground because its leg was destroyed. Then Dummy jump in the air and punch the labyrinth's head which made the labyrinth scream in pain. Then Gao Peng asked Dummy to translate his word to tell the labyrinth his words. Gao Peng said they came there from another world through a spatial rift and they come in peace and harbored the kindest intention. He also said he didn't intend to hurt his knee and it happened because he couldn't control his strength which Dummy translates to the labyrinth. Suddenly Gao Peng heard the noise again which made Gao Peng shock and said that noise again. Then he counted and saw seven different labyrinths standing looking at them. Then Gao Peng looked at the injured labyrinth and was shocked to see that its wounds are already starting to heal and eight excellent grade labyrinth watchers with super recovery skills. The labyrinth sits and talks. Dummy tells Gao Peng that the labyrinth said that there's a barricade seal around the labyrinth, so there's only one way in and he thought that there were loopholes in the labyrinth's defense, but who would have thought that it was a spatial rift? Then the labyrinth who's in level 50 and in the peak of Lord Tear said that they don't harbor ill intentions toward them either, but they need their help to wake up their master, which made Gao Peng think who knows if the labyrinths will secretly try to offer them as a sacrifice. Then Gao Peng tells the labyrinths to give them some time to prepare, and they'll return when they're ready. The labyrinth responded fine and he hoped Gao Peng aren't lying to them. Then Gao Peng asked the labyrinth if they can give them some black geckos to raise. The labyrinth responded that Gao Peng would not be able to raise the geckos as its reptiles don't reproduce with each other. However, the labyrinth said if he is able to wake up their master, he believed their master would be happy to trade with him. Then the labyrinth also said they, the people of the desolate labyrinth, do not hate humans, unlike many other forces in the Black Fog world which made Gao Peng ask if there are other humans in the Black Fog world and if they're located close to the labyrinth. The labyrinth responded he haven't seen any humans in the past 70 years and those liars escaped to other worlds. Then the labyrinth started to walk away while telling Gao Peng that he may go back first and come back when he's willing to wake their master for them. Gao Peng said it seems like there once existed humans in that world, but they left a bad reputation. Gao Peng also said he wonder if the humans in that world also own familiars, but since Dummy can communicate with the spatial rift monsters they should have. Gao Peng thinks humans from other worlds wouldn't be a problem if there isn't a huge difference in strength, but if there is, all it would bring is war and invasion. After a few days, in the laboratory, Gao Peng was looking at Happy Flowery who was hugging the crystals in the buckets while thinking that Flowery reached 31, and those jelly-like frozen crystal soil really does work as well as they say and the only drawback is that it was expensive because it was 15 alliance credits for one acre, and the only ingredient currently missing to promote dummy is the essence of the undying heart. Gao Peng also thinks he thought they could find it in Changping, but Changping doesn't fit the image of a peaceful resting place and the amount of resentment from the 400,000 soldiers who died there must have been over the sky. 
Dao Peng thought was interrupted when his phone rang and he saw that the school is calling which made him wonder what could the school be calling him for. When Gao Peng answers the call the man was panicking tells Gao Peng that there's an extra bronze statue at their school gate which made Gao Peng shocked. Gao Peng goes to the school and saw the monster named animated bronze statue of Kin Kiong looking at Guan Gong's statue. It was level 41 Lord Tier in normal grade and its status is healthy but impassive. Which made Gao Peng wonder why did a Lord Tier bronze statue suddenly appear on his doorstep. And he planned to just take it back to his home and let it stay with Stripey for a while. After that, he'll let it stand guard at the school. Then Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to take down the Kin Kiong statue which Da Zai immediately agreed. Then Da Zai charged his electricity and attacked the Kin Kiong statue using it which made the Kin Kiong statue shocked. Then Gao Peng called Da Zai attacked electrotherapy wrapped around the Kin Kiong statue's body and electrocuted it which made the statue shout in pain. Then Gao Peng dragged the electrocuted Kin Kiong statue while happily saying the next is his turn which made the military man and Da Zai shocked. Then the man said that the Kin Kiong statue weighs thousand of kilograms and yet Gao Peng is able to drag it away with just one hand. Gao Peng looked back and said he gained 1% of Stripey's strength, and Stripey can lift way more than just a few thousand kilograms. Then Gao Peng happily apologized to the military man for scaring him which made the military man and Da Zai speechless in shock. After a few hours, in Yuzhu, in the small valley where Stripey is resting, one beast was confused to see Stripey looking at him. On the other hand, Gao Peng tells Stripey that he brought him a toy. Then Gao Peng tells Da Zai to release the statue, to which Da Zai immediately did and frees the statue which made the statue confused. Then the statue tried to attack Gao Peng which made Gao Peng said the statue is still so energetic even after being tied up for so long. Stripey got angry and said a toy cannot be too naughty, then it flicks the statue away from Gao Peng which made the statue thrown into the stone, leaving Da Zai and Gao Peng worried. Stripey panicky asks Gao Peng if he didn't break the statue. Gao Peng patted Stripey leg and responded no. Then he tells Stripey that the statue won't break as long as he's gentle with it. Gao Peng responds made Stripey said it was a relief. Then Stripey sadly asks Gao Peng when can he leave the place with him because although it's nice there, he still misses him and the others a lot. Which made Gao Peng stun and worried for a moment, then tells Stripey not to worry because he'll definitely find a way and they still need to go on adventures together. Then Da Zai grabs Gao Peng to fly away while Gao Peng tells Stripey that he'll come to visit him again. But Stripey thinks he isn't stupid and he knows that he's getting bigger. Stripey sadly asks in his thought if he'll never be able to stay by Gao Peng's side anymore. On the other hand, the Kin Kiong statue laying on the ground and crying while calling for help and explaining that he was just excited to find one of his kind, and got curious about it. Then it asked what are the people going to do to him and he said he's not curious anymore. Meanwhile, in Africa region Zambia Lusaka base city, the man in the suit asks the other man if there's no one who can decipher the symbols on the table in front of them. The man responded that the linguists all said that those letters don't appear to be of terrestrial origin and one of them said that they seem to resemble an Atlantean language. But before the man can finish his words the man in the suit angrily said that he doesn't care if it's an Atlantean language or not because he just wants to know what those letters mean which made the man respond yes in fear. Then the man in the suit points to the line on the table and tells the man not to just say yes and tells him what that is. The man responded he think that is an unexplored city, which made the man in the suit angrily shout that the black badger group may not be as great as the crimson leopard of the nine-headed lion. But what they lack is an opportunity and he said that the completely new and unexploded city ruin is their chance. Then the man in the suit orders his people to prepare to head out leaving the man at the table looking and wondering why the city ruin looks like a maze. Meanwhile, in the Bayai district, in front of the spatial rift, Zio Zhu and his beast Oriate were looking at the spatial rift. Then Zio Zhu said that it was his first time seeing the spatial rift. On the other hand, Tang Tang tells Gao Peng that she won't be crossing over and she have told Softy to listen to his every command. Then Gao Peng thanked her. Then Gao Peng tells his familiars that they should go. Gao Peng and his team enter the spatial rift and got welcomed by the labyrinth who said that he knew Gao Peng would return. Gao Peng tells Dummy to relay his words to the labyrinth exactly as how he told him earlier. Then Dummy tells the labyrinth that Gao Peng said those monsters with him are his familiars. Then he asks if there won't be a problem if they come with him. The labyrinth turn around and responded of course not, which made Gao Peng think he purposely instructed Dummy to say the word familiars, but the labyrinth watcher didn't react, so that means humans are also monster trainers in that world. Then Gao Peng looked down and see the plant, the system showed that the plant is consumable, and it's rich in nutrients and water. Gao Peng said the plant is food from another world, then he drinks it while saying its taste is not bad. In the same time Gao Peng ordered Mouse to memorize the route using their telepathy. After a moment of walking, the labyrinth said they were there and pointed to the Grand Hall covered in ice while saying that their master is sealed inside the Grand Hall. 
Bao Peng asked the labyrinth if he's hoping that he could wake up his master, and he said he doesn't know how to remove the seal, and it can't be as simple as burning it with fire. The labyrinth responded that their master was the one who sealed himself and the seal will be automatically removed when a monster trainer enters the hall. Gao Peng walks toward the Grand Hall while telling Goldie that he's entering with him. Inside the Grand Hall Gao Peng and Goldie were inside Goldie's elemental barrier. Gao Peng wonders what type of ice is the Grand Hall and why is it so cold. Gao Peng also thinks if it wasn't for the elemental barrier he'd have frozen to death in just 5 minutes. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked to see two creatures, one creature is on the ground and the other one is on the throne. The one creature in the ground sealed in the ice was material named a well-preserved blood hunter corpse and its description said it used to be a blood hunter. However, after its death, it became a corpse so they can do anything they want with that corpse. Which made Gao Peng think he didn't expect that the frozen dead body on the ground belonged to the blood hunter and he wondered what the other creature lying on the throne was. Then Gao Peng looked at the other creature on the throne and saw that it was the monster named Desolate Frost Lion who was currently sleeping. It's level 11 elite tier and legendary grade and its attribute is ice. Its weakness is rock and its special characteristic is eternal frost which means it provides more frost power for its control. Effect 1, active effect is a frozen field which means it releases the frost power within its body to form a field and the field will be affected by its frost power and only the ones approved by the desolate frost lion are immune to the frozen field effect. Effect 2, Eternal Frost Field which meet it completely releases all the frost power from its body, causing devastating damage to certain areas in its surrounding. However, its own bloodline power will be greatly weakened, causing it to fall into a deep sleep. Also, its other special characteristics of it are inactivated. The Frost Lion introduction set a divine polar lion with devastating first power in its bloodline, and it fell into a deep slumber due to excessive exertion of power. Gao Peng remembers that the Labyrinth Watcher said that their master is a blood hunter, which is the corpse in the ground, and the little lion is probably its murderer. Gao Peng touched the blood hunter sealed ice while thinking that the Labyrinth Watchers asked him to wake up their master, but he wonder if they don't know that their master is dead. Then Gao Peng realizes that maybe the labyrinth traps them. Suddenly he heard something outside and he heard Flamey telling Gao Peng that there are so many monsters outside. Which made Gao Peng panic and tell Goldie that they should go. Suddenly Gao Peng heard the little lion yawn, so he looked back while asking if the little lion is awake. The little lion stand up, but Gao Peng and Goldie ran away while Gao Peng told Goldie to ignore the little lion because they need to go outside immediately leaving the little lion confused. When Gao Peng arrived outside the Grand Hall he asked Xiao Zhu what was going on. Xiao Zhu responded that after Gao Peng went in, the Labyrinth Watchers suddenly attacked them and if Dummy hadn't summoned the Sea King Eel Skeleton to block the exit, the Labyrinths would have killed all of them. Then Gao Peng asks Flamey how's his injury. Flamey who is currently being healed by Flowery responded if the Labyrinths hadn't jumped them. But before he can finish his words he feels the pain of his injury and tells Flowery to be gentle. Goldie got angry and run toward the labyrinths while saying he'll avenge Flamey, but Gao Peng tried to stop Goldie while telling Goldie that the labyrinths outnumber them, so he shouldn't be rash. Gao Peng also said things for them become troublesome. Suddenly he heard something behind him, then when he looked back he saw the little lion and asked it why did it follow them. Gao Peng also tells the little lion that it's dangerous there, so he should hide. On the other hand, Goldie launched toward the labyrinth while asking how dare it hurt Flamey, then Goldie kicked the labyrinth's face and punched it while angrily shouting that he'll kill all the labyrinths. But the labyrinths attacked back using its weapon and hit Goldie in the back, which made Gao Peng shocked ignoring the little lion again protesting in his back. Gao Peng angrily looks back and tells the little lion that he doesn't understand what he's saying and he suggested that they should just sign a blood contract which made the little lion shocked. The little lion asks Gao Peng if he thinks he's the same as those foolish newborn monsters and it said he won't be fooled by a cunning and vicious human being like Gao Peng. But before it can speak again Gao Peng put his thumb finger with blood to its forehead which made it shock. Then Gao Peng enters the little lion's consciousness while thinking that the desolate frost lion's consciousness is very big and he can feel an enormous yet weak consciousness creeping around the depths of its sea of consciousness. Gao Peng realizes that the little lion is definitely over level 11 and it's only in a weakened state after it fully unleashed its power. Gao Peng also knows that the little lion will be able to fully recover back to its original form after swallowing an ice-type treasure. Suddenly Frost Lion tells Gao Peng that if he really wishes to sign a blood contract with him, he'll allow it. However, he will face many strong enemies. Then he asks Gao Peng if he's sure. Gao Peng asked the little lion how strong it was during its peak performance and how strong his enemies were. The little lion responded that his peak performance was only a step away from Overlord Tier and those who were strong enough to be his enemies would be at least Emperor Tyr. Then it tells Gao Peng that if his is scared, he can let him go and he won't blame him for being a coward because he knows it's not a burden that a young man his age should take on. 
Then Gao Peng responded all right and said that their contract is signed which made the little lion shocked and asked Gao Peng if did he not understand what he said. Gao Peng responded he heard it and is not scared, then Gao Peng tells the little lion that he thought he was strong, but now he guesses he aren't, which made the little lion angry and attacked Gao Peng while saying he can't believe Gao Peng thinks is weak and Gao Peng is too arrogant. The little lion tells Gao Peng that although he knows he owns a king tier familiar through the blood contract, he might not be able to own an emperor tier familiar for his entire life. And it said Gao Peng won a jackpot by owning an emperor tier familiar that was incredibly close to becoming an overlord tier familiar at the age of 20. But Gao Peng reminds the little lion that he's only at the elite tier right now. The little lion tells Gao Peng that he has lived for 126 years and is older than his grandfather. But Gao Peng once again reminds the lion that he's only at the elite tier right now. The lion angrily tells Gao Peng that he has killed over 10 emperor tier monsters and he has dominated territories that span thousands of miles. So the other monsters called him the Frost Lion King. But Gao Peng just reminds it once again that it's currently only elite tier. Then Gao Peng tells the lion to stop talking nonsense and just tell him how to deal with their current situation. But the little lion responded that they should run, which made Gao Peng confused. The little lion responded that they have humongous bodies, but they were still inside the desolate labyrinth, and if they can stand a chance in combat, they fight, if not, obviously they have to run. Then the lion tells Gao Peng not to worry because the labyrinth is his and he know the way out. And he also said he built a tunnel that only monsters with small bodies would be able to go through and those big labyrinth watchers wouldn't be able to get through. But Gao Peng just throws the little lion to Ziaozu while telling the little lion to forget its plan because he can't abandon Goldie. Then he orders Ziaozu to take the little lion and leave first. But the little lion said no and tells Gao Peng that they just signed a blood contract, and he have already started digging his grave. Gao Peng tells the little lion to relax because he has a king tier familiar, and although it's not there with him, he still has a portion of its strength in him, which made the little lion angrily and said so what if he has a portion of his familiar's strength and ask how much strength can a familiar give him. But before the little lion can finish its words, Gao Peng kick one of the labyrinth legs which made the labyrinth shout in pain and fall. Then Gao Peng orders Da Zai and Dummy to use their thunder and blood thread heart, to which Da Zai and Dummy immediately did which made the labyrinth watchers scream in pain. Then Gao Peng orders Silly to heal Goldie because the enemies are all Lord Tier, so Da Zai and Dummy can't hold them down for long. Silly immediately heals Goldie, while Goldie tries to stand up and provoke the labyrinths to come at him, asking it if they didn't eat. One of the labyrinth watchers got angry and tried to attack Goldie and Silly, which made Gao Peng said that the control effects have worn off, then he shout Goldie and Silly names and tells them to watch out. Goldie got angry and bigger, then blocks the labyrinth punch while asking it if it had its fun just now, while Silly was flying toward Gao Peng afraid. Then Goldie kicks the labyrinth and grabs its sword. Then Goldie pointed the axe at the labyrinth watchers angrily while saying it's his turn now. Then Goldie throws the axe toward the labyrinth watcher, hitting its shoulder. Then Goldie punched the other labyrinths while behind him Dummy is fighting the other labyrinths. The two labyrinths said they should take on Goldie together, but Goldie used his invincible duck duck punch skills which made the labyrinths scream in pain. One of the labyrinths said Goldie is too weird and they should retreat. Goldie angrily shouted he won't let the labyrinths run after bullying his friends. But Gao Peng tells Goldie to come back because they're at disadvantage there and only three of the labyrinth watchers manage to escape. Gao Peng also promises Goldie that they'll take care of those three labyrinth watchers after the situation there is settled. The little lion can't believe what he witnesses and said Goldie has to be at least an epic grade or not because being an epic grade wouldn't mean that it can school so many monsters stronger than itself. Ziaozu asks Gao Peng how should they take care of the carcasses while thinking it killed 8 Lord Tier, and if the word gets out, it will shock the whole world. After all, a Lord Tier familiar is enough to protect a base city and that also means they'll have 8 Lord Tier monster core crystals and many rare materials, so that is Gao Peng's true strength. Gao Peng said someone needs to guard those corpses and Oriate isn't weak, but it can only take on one labyrinth watcher at a time, so it's best for him to stay there and wait for backup. Then Gao Peng asked Mouse if it still remember the way back, but Mouse was confused. Then Gao Peng showed something while telling Mouse that if he can remember the way back, he will give the treasure he was holding to him, which made Mouse excited. Then the mouse tried to think hard to remember the way back which made the little lion wonder what's that all about because the treasure Gao Peng holding is just a random piece of ice that he froze all those years ago. A few seconds later, mouse said he remembers the way back and he tells Gao Peng to give him the treasure. Then Dummy and Ziaozu proceed to walk away while Gao Peng tells Dummy to be safe and make sure to protect Ziaozu. Then Gao Peng look at Silly who currently healing Goldie, and Flowery who currently healing Da Zai. The little lion tells Gao Peng that Da Zai wasn't much help during the fight and it's a bit weak. 
Gao Peng responded that Dazai is an epic grade and he asked the lion if isn't he nitpicking too much. But the lion was shocked to hear Dazai is epic grade and said Dazai should have awakened its skill. Then it asks Gao Peng if he hasn't developed Dazai's special skill yet. Gao Peng happily asks the lion if his saying after awakening a skill, they can continue developing it and he said that it seems like they have a lot of information to exchange with each other which made the lion stun in shock. A few moments later, the lion was rolling on the ground laughing hard while confirming if Gao Peng says it's now only the fourth year after the evolution of his world and the highest monster tier is just the king tier. Then the lion called Gao Peng silly and said his homeland has tons of minerals and yet is there trying to dig up dirt. Then it asks Gao Peng if he's dumb. Gao Peng asks the lion if he's saying that the special and powerful treasures will spawn around the world during the early stages of evolution. The lion responded yes and said currently, the real treasures in the black fog world have all been snapped up by the stronger monsters and to find an unclaimed treasure is harder than trying to become a god. So if he wants a treasure, he'll have to fight for it or think of a way to steal it. The lion also tells Gao Peng that his world has just started to evolve, so there wouldn't be any emperor tier monsters in four years time. Then he tells Gao Peng to put two and two together and he'll be able to take all the treasures for himself. Gao Peng responded that the lion said his world is just in its four years of evolution and putting aside the number of treasures that have spawned, of course. He'll try to gather all the treasures. Then the lion seriously asks Gao Peng if he knows that some treasures require time to develop, so he has to take initiative to find his treasures and place them in his house to watch them grow. Which made Gao Peng confused and asked the lion when did the treasures become his treasures. But the lion just laughed and responded that the treasures belong to the strong. Which made Gao Peng ask the lion if he's talking to himself and he said to think he had the audacity to say something like that. Then Gao Peng pushed the lion which made the lion roll on the ground crying while telling Gao Peng that he will lose his power over him one day, and he just have to wait. Gao Peng showed stripey picture to the lion while telling the lion to stop talking about treasures and that they should talk business. Then Gao Peng asks it if there's any way to shrink a monster's body size. The lion responded that the first method is to let his familiar evolve and obtain an ability that can control its body size, but as for the details on how to awaken that ability, he's not sure either. The second method is to sign a blood contract with a high-level space-type monster and open up a portable dimension to bring his familiar along with him anywhere. It's just that his familiar is huge, so the space requirements of the portable dimension would have to be great as well. To which Dazai, Goldie, and Gao Peng look disappointedly at confused Silly who is currently drinking some juice. Then Gao Peng responded never mind and asked if there were any other methods. The lion responded that he remember that there's a kind of fruit called a guy's fruit that appears in the Black Phoenix Mountain, and that fruit allows the monster to shrink up to a thousand smaller than its original size. But it's kind of useless because once his familiar enter combat mode, the effects of the guy's fruit will wear off. Moreover, there's a black feathered sparrow there and he wouldn't go head to head with it even when he was at his peak. Gao Peng asks if the Black Phoenix Mountain is far from the labyrinth place. The lion responded that it was only around 5,000 kilometers and back then, he could run that distance in just a few hours. Gao Peng said although 5,000 kilometers isn't far, the Black Fog World is still far more dangerous than Earth and King Tier monsters are also common there. But for Stripey, he'll have to make the trip no matter what because he promised Stripey that he would bring it along with him on an adventure. Then Zio Zhu runs toward Gao Peng while telling him that the company has received the news and the logistic team will be there soon. Also, he said as Gao Peng instructed, he had brought him all the ice-type fruits that are available. Zio Zhu opens the case showing a different type of ice fruit, but the lion tells Gao Peng how dare he use those low-class fruits as offerings to the divine lion and he'll tell him, he won't even eat a bite of such low-class food even if he has to starve. Gao Peng laugh and think he hopes the lion won't go back on its word. Then Gao Peng orders Silly to store the ice-type fruits away and he said they'll start exploring the other parts of the labyrinth leaving the lion shocked. A few moments later, a few trucks arrived at the spatial rift. Then one man said the place is magnificent and it was a miracle. The other man said they are the first one to arrive there, which means all the treasure inside belongs to them and the place is such a large ruin, then he wonders how much good stuff is in there. Suddenly they heard something walking toward them, then they saw the labyrinth watcher which made them shocked and wonder what it is. The labyrinth said he had already fled so far, but the humans still won't let him off the hook. Then it stamps its feet on the ground to use its shadow power. The people shouted it using shadow power, so they should hurry and put up their elemental barriers. But one man break his barrier which made the other man say putting up an elemental barrier still isn't safe, then he told his team to fall back. One man orders his beast to stop the labyrinth watcher, which made the labyrinth angry because it was a bird, then it attacked the people angrily. On the other hand, Gao Peng asks the lion who's currently eating why didn't those labyrinth watchers attack him back then, and he said he doesn't think a mere stone temple was enough to protect him. 
The lion responded that it wasn't that simple and back then, he had imposed a restriction on the labyrinth. The lion also said if those labyrinths were to force their way in, it would trigger the frost aura and blast them into ice cubes. Which made Gao Peng think the lion definitely left countermeasures in place and the labyrinth watchers had wanted him to enter first too. Then Gao Peng asks the lion why didn't he attack him back then. The lion responded because he's a human which made Gao Peng confused. Suddenly they heard someone fighting over on the other wall. The lion said the ice-type fruits are delicious and they need to go over and take advantage of the situation because what he loves the most is taking advantage of others. Then Gao Peng saw the labyrinth watcher who escaped earlier fighting with familiars. Then Gao Peng ordered Goldie to rescue the other familiars, to which Goldie immediately follow and ran toward the labyrinth. The labyrinth was ready to attack the man, then the man shouted begs someone to save him. Suddenly he heard something and opened his eyes and saw Goldie punching the labyrinth while saying he let the labyrinth escape earlier and they should see where it's going to run now. On the other hand, Gao Peng was behind the man wondering if the people are locals. The lion responded the people are not from the Black Fog world because even if they were standing far away, he can still smell that the people have the same sense as Gao Peng. The lion also said in the other words, the people come from the same world as Gao Peng which made Gao Peng shocked, and if the people were really from the same world as him. Because he know that the entrance to the labyrinth has been sealed off and normal people would have no way of getting through, let alone a group of black men. The lion said the only other possibility is the spatial rift at the desolate labyrinth isn't the only one between Gao Peng world and the black fog world. Gao Peng said the spatial rift newest one is in Lusaka and Africa and he knows that before the cataclysm, Africa and the Huaxia region were separated by over 10,000 kilometers, and after the cataclysm, the earth grew larger and the distance increased by at least tens of thousands of kilometers, but they haven't traveled far inside the spatial rift, so if that's the case, then maybe they can make use of spatial rifts to form new trade routes. Then Gao Peng asked the man if he's hurt anywhere, which made the man ask if he was someone from the Huaxia region. A moment later, Gao Peng waves his hand while saying goodbye to the man, and the man also waves his hand while saying goodbye to Gao Peng and said that they are forever friends. But the lion said those people are dumb because they easily provide information after listening to some sweet words, and they're even thankful for it. Then Gao Peng said according to those people, there's a spatial rift that leads to the Lusaka base city a thousand kilometers away in a city ruin located at the west of the desolate labyrinth. Gao Peng also said he'll tell the Explorer Union to come to develop that when they get home and he happily said he's gonna be rich again, which made his familiars stun and shock. Then Gao Peng tells his familiars that they'll go explore the Black Phoenix Mountain first. Three days later, in the Black World nearby the Black Phoenix Mountain, the lion tells Gao Peng that he only knows that the fruit come from the Black Phoenix Mountain, but he doesn't know the exact location. Gao Peng proudly responded it was alright because there will be kind-hearted locals who will help them, which made the lion ask where would he find the local. Then Gao Peng pointed to the tortoise who was currently surrounded by his familiars. The lion said the tortoise is a sad golden striped tortoise. Gao Peng tells the tortoise not to worry because they mean him no harm and they just wanted to ask him something. Then he asked it if it know where the guy's fruit is, and said it was a fruit that grows on a tree, it has a white, speckled surface, and it can temporarily shrink anyone who eats it. Then Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to translate his word to the tortoise, to which Da Zai immediately translated. But the tortoise just goes inside its house, which made Goldie angrily kick it while telling it to come out because Gao Peng is talking to him. The lion wonders if he did join a group of villains. Then Gao Peng tells the tortoise that his Goldie has quite a temper that not even he can control it sometimes, so he asks the tortoise to try to recall where the guy's fruit was. The tortoise fearfully responded which Da Zai translate and tells Gao Peng that it said that it's seen the fruit on the eastern side of the mountain range and that it was five mountains away from there. Then Gao Peng and the lion jump onto the tortoise's back while Gao Peng said he knew that the locals there have good hospitality, then he asked the tortoise to take them to the eastern side of the mountain range first. A few moments later, the tortoise speak which Da Zai translated, and said that the fruit is on the mountain and it doesn't dare to go any further because the mountain is full of scary monsters. Gao Peng ordered Flamey to fly up and let him know if he spots anything unusual in the vicinity to which Flamey immediately followed. While flying he saw something crawling in the stone and said that the monster had a Lord Tear Aura. Suddenly the monster looked at Flamey which made Flamey said he have been found out. Then the monster eats something which made it bigger. Flamey thinks something's odd and he better keeps his distance. But before he fly away he noticed something white and covered with tiny black spots. Then he realized that it was the fruit Gao Peng searching for. Then Flamey tells Gao Peng that he found the fruit which made Gao Peng happy. But he saw the monster named White Steel Bladed Beast chasing Flamey who was trying to fly back at him. 
It was level 49 Lord Tier in perfect grade and its attribute is Wind. Its abilities are Hardened Steel Armor level 3, Sharp Edge Spike level 4, and Wind Mastery level 3. Its special characteristic is Roaring Wind Armor which means a Roaring Wind forms an elemental armor inside its body. Effect 1, Passive Effect said gives the monster certain resistance to psychic and spiritual attacks. Effect 2, Passive Effect said while moving at high speed, it's able to further boost its own rush of air from within its armor, and its weakness is Ice type. Also, its description said not only does it have hard armor, but it is also surprisingly light and it's capable of moving at high speed and unleashing powerful, explosive attacks. However, as it was born with short stature, the white steel-bladed beast is insecure about its height. Flamey said he saw the fruits on the mountain, but there was a Lord Tier monster guarding it. But Gao Peng was curious about the white steel-bladed beast's insecurity about its height. Then Gao Peng looked at Dazai while saying at least the beast has 7 to 8 meters high and it's still feeling insecure when it has that kind of height. Then he asks what about their Dazai then which made Dazai confused. Then Gao Peng said the beast monster isn't one to be provoked. But he has to get his hands on a guy's fruit no matter what because that is his promise to Stripey. Then he orders Dazai to attack Goldie with his lightning which Dazai followed and hit the confused Goldie. On the other hand, the beast flies toward Flamey while angrily saying that he hates all the monsters that are higher than him. Then the beast attacked Flamey using its wind skill. Fortunately, Flamey used his blazing feathers in time to block the beast's attack. But Flamey still got caught in explosion and fall to the sky which made Gao Peng tell his familiars to be quick and help Flamey. The lion said that the beast has incredible explosive power and he have once seen it take out other monsters of the same level in a single shot. Then Gao Peng tells his familiars to remember to protect their vital points. Goldie tells Dummy and Silly to go save Flamey and he'll take care of the ugly insect. Then Goldie attacks the beast, but the beast uses its storm cross kill skill to attack Goldie which made Goldie throw on the ground. Dummy who currently protecting Silly and Flamey on the ground, called Goldie's name worried, but Goldie tells Dummy not to come over. Then Goldie angrily said what doesn't kill him only makes him stronger, then Goldie tells Dummy that he wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with the beast. Then Goldie tells the beast to come at him and called it Shorty and he said it should use everything it has to destroy the fleshy vessel of him and let him taste the sweet nectar of death once again. The beast got angry and tells Goldie how dare he call him Shorty. Then the beast immediately ran toward Goldie's back and cut Goldie's leg. Then it confidently thinks if Goldie wants to catch him, Goldie needs to train for another few hundred years. But Goldie just smiled and asked the beast if that was all he got because the pain will only make him stronger. Which made the beast shocked and confused to see Goldie's wounds are healing. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks Goldie controls its muscles to avoid dying of blood loss, and at the same time stacking its passive and that is a sign of it having incredibly high control over its body. But Gao Peng wonder when did Goldie become that cringe that even Dummy can't stand it anymore. The beast thinks it looks like he has to end the fight fast because Goldie is strange and he thinks it's crazy. Then it ran toward Goldie fast and hit Goldie using its thousand gusts of roaring wind which made Goldie's yellow jacket break. But when the beast looked back it was shocked and confused to see Goldie heavily injured but got bigger. The beast asks why Goldie becoming bigger. But Goldie just praised the beast for its spirit, then Goldie once again provokes the beast to come at him with everything it got. The beast got angry and ran fast toward Goldie while saying since Goldie wants to die, he'll fulfill its wish. But Goldie uses one of his skill which made him see the beast move slowly, then he caught the beast. Then Goldie crushed the beast using his hand while telling it so what if he injured him badly because once he gets caught he is nothing. Which made Gao Peng relieved and said it was a frightening battle and if Goldie hadn't already stacked its passive before fighting the beast, Goldie would have probably been knocked out with one hit. Then Gao Peng tells Flowery to go on and heal Goldie, to which Flowery followed and used its petals to heal Goldie. Goldie happily said that Flowery healing power is feel nice, after healing Goldie. Goldie, Flowery cried while saying she was all used up and ugly now. Then Dummy put a leaf on Flowery head which made it confused. Then Dummy tells Flowery that she was pretty again which made Flowery shy. A few moments later, Gao Peng saw the fruit named Guy's Fruit. Its effect said it contains the power of Guy's, and upon consuming it, any living object will be able to change its own size by at most a thousandfold. Gao Peng said there are only four fruits and it'd be a waste coming all that way if he didn't take the tree with him. Then Gao Peng orders Da Zai and Dummy to dig the tree out because they taking it with them. Then Gao Peng looked at the beast and said since they were already taking the tree. He asked the beast how about they take him with them too, which made the beast angrily call Gao Peng insolent and shameless, then it tell Gao Peng to let him go. A few days later, the beast was shaking in fear while asking if Stripey is a devil. Gao Peng tell the beast that he didn't lie to him, and Stripey was shorter than him when it first became his familiar, but Stripey is big now. The beast speaks and Da Zai translates it to tell Gao Peng that the beast asks him if he really isn't tricking him. 
Gao Peng tells the beast not to worry because he thinks there's a lot of potential in him and it may be difficult for him to grow as tall as Stripey, but becoming as tall as Dummy isn't impossible. While Gao Peng kicked Da Zai which made Da Zai confused and angrily asked Gao Peng why did he kick him. Gao Peng tells Da Zai that he's trying to persuade the beast and he doesn't want him to agitate it, so he tells Da Zai to be good and he'll give him five packs of dried mealworms later. But Da Zai demanded that he want one box of dried mealworms. On the other hand, the beast thinks although he was beaten by Gao Peng familiar, he should have a way to make him bigger, but if he agrees immediately, he wonders if wouldn't he look like easy to fool. Then the beast speaks which Da Zai translates and tells Gao Peng that it agrees to the contract, but it says if Gao Peng can't make it bigger, it won't listen to his commands even if the contract is signed. Gao Peng responded that it was not a problem. Then Gao Peng showed the fruit to Stripey while confirming if Stripey didn't always say he wanted to go on adventures with them. Then Gao Peng tells Stripey that he can become smaller once he eats the fruit, but Stripey sadly responded that if he becomes smaller, he can't protect Gao Peng. Gao Peng tells Stripey not to worry about it and that it's just that he can't go around fighting other monsters after eating the fruit or else the effect will wear off, to which Stripey excitedly said he'll never fight. Then Flamey dropped the fruit inside Stripey's mouth. Then Stripey slowly becomes smaller which made Gao Peng think although Stripey's still very tall at least he'll be able to bring Stripey outside with him and those tangerine trees in Stripey's head are still alive. Then Gao Peng look at Goldie who's telling the beast that he isn't bad. Then Goldie tells the beast that they should train together when they get back. Dazai also asks the beast if it can stand it, which made the beast angry and tells Goldie that he's not scared of him and that he was just careless last time. Gao Peng think his familiars that the number has exceeded double digits, and the lineup is beginning to take shape, so they can attack, defend, and heal, and now, even the only remaining story coming, assassination, is also filled. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that his familiars team's not bad which made Gao Peng happy. Then White drops axes on the ground while Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he brought some equipment for Goldie, but Gao Peng wonder why are those axes so familiar to him. Jai Huan responded that the axes are the labyrinth watcher's arms that he brought back, and he thought they looked nice, so he instructed the laboratory to take the axes down and make some modifications. Goldie grabs the axe and swings it, then Goldie asks White if there are any heavier axes because the axes are too light, which made White stun. Then Gao Peng tells Goldie to stop watching so many journeys to the west. Goldie grabs the axes and puts them on his back disappointed. Then Gao Peng tells his grandfather that he encountered monster trainers from the Lusaka base city, Africa outside the desolate labyrinth and they told him that Lusaka's spatial rift is located 1000 kilometers west of the desolate labyrinth. Jai Huan asks if it's really only 1000 kilometers and if anyone else knows about it. Gao Peng responded that only the people he saved should know and one party is Lusaka's high-ranking officials, and the other party is the Black Badger Group's high-ranking members. Gao Peng also said he has already agreed to have a business partnership with both parties. Jai Huan said alright and tells Gao Peng not to worry about that matter anymore and that he can just focus on the important things. Then Jai Huan asked Gao Peng if he's heading out after he got back and if he have prepared everything already. Gao Peng responded yes and said they'll be traveling further and they'll head to St. Jelm City first because that's where the essence of the undying Hedi would most probably be. Gao Peng also said that all left for Dummy's promotion to mythical grade is the essence of the undying heart, and he'll have peace of mind once he gets it. Then Gao Peng also said St. Jelum is the capital of the Yellow Desert Nation and they'll pass by the Jincha region during their journey to the Yellow Desert region, and the headquarters of the Platinum Hands is in the Jincha region, so they'll get to visit an old friend. Jai Huan put his hand on Gao Peng's shoulder while telling Gao Peng that he's an adult now and he decides on his own matter. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that he has already stored food and equipment inside his little jellyfish. Then he tells Gao Peng to be careful on the road. After a few days, in the highland, Stripey was walking fast which made the other familiars shocked. On the other hand, Mouse smells something and points at it while telling Gao Peng that there was some treasure at the foot of that mountain, which made Gao Peng wonder and look at the map while relaxing in the chair. Gao Peng said it was the Mount Everest. Then he said they can stop by there and he tells Stripey that they'll go over the Mount Everest first. A few moments later, they saw the pond named in the system as Freezing Aqua. Its description said it was a liquid containing huge amounts of frost power, and the strong frost power is extremely corrosive. The lion was amazed and said the water is extremely beneficial for him. Then he asked his team to wait for him for a while which made Gao Peng think the description the system gave him is a bit vague and he wonder if isn't just a pond of ice water, and why it's considered a treasure. Then the lion dives into the pond and rises up happily while its monster level increased to level 41 Lord Tier, which made Gao Peng shocked and confused about how the lion managed to break through just like that and if the pond is really a treasure. Then Gao Peng saw the lion going out of the pond which made him ask it why did it stop absorbing. 
The lion responded he have broken through to Lord Tyr so that cold water will have little effect on him and that he need to find a more concentrated freezing aqua. Gao Peng asked the lion if it can level up just with ice water. The lion responded that it was definitely not the case for normal monsters and that is only useful for monsters with advanced bloodlines. Also, that won't work on his other familiars either because that is only for rapid recovery of strength since he was once at Emperor Tyr, he has a foundation. Gao Peng said alright, but he also said he still have one last question because he just want to know why are the lion still so small after reaching Lord Tyr. The lion said Gao Peng is shallow minded and he responded a little body harbors a great soul. Then Gao Peng look at the ice mountain while saying they'll reach the yellow desert region once they go past that mountain with so many Lord Tyr familiars with him and King Tyr Stripey. He can reach greater lengths than before. Then Gao Peng angrily walks away while telling Platinum Hands that they'll be meeting very soon. A few days later, in the Golden Sand Desert. Gao Peng who's looking at the map said the map clearly shows that there's a town nearby and he thinks coming to places that are located far from the base city is troublesome because he can't even use a GPS there. Flamey tells Gao Peng that there are houses ahead of them which made Gao Peng said finally, but he was confused to see the monster's name white spotted herbivorous monkeys and heard. The monkey's grades are normal to excellent and their level is 5 to 19. The monkey's attribute is water and its description says it is a type of monster that likes to imitate humans and its favorite thing to do is wear human clothes. Clothes. It also possesses an average IQ and is active and full of energy. Gao Peng wonders why a herd of monkeys likes to wear clothes, and he thinks the monkeys running away very fast because they're probably spooked by Stripey's aura. Then Gao Peng wonders if someone raising those monkeys. Then Gao Peng knocked on one of the house doors while asking if there was anyone home. Someone behind the door responded no which made Gao Peng speechless for a second. Then Gao Peng said it's looked like there was no one home and thanked someone inside the door. That something behind the door responded welcome. Then the beast destroyed the door while Gao Peng said he wonder how could a human say something so stupid. But it turns out it was just a dumb monkey. The monkey monster's name is White Furred Carnivorous Monkey, a fat species. Its level 25 commander tier in perfect grade and its attribute is ice. Its weakness is low mobility due to its fatness and its description said it's a rare breed of the white spotted herbivorous monkey family and every carnivorous monkey is born to be the leader of a group of herbivorous monkeys. Also, white furred carnivorous monkeys are more ferocious and aggressive than gentle white spotted herbivorous monkeys. The monkey walks toward the bowl on the table which made the beast ask Gao Peng what is the monkey doing. Gao Peng responded he thinks the monkey is searching for something and it doesn't look like it's holding ill intentions toward them, but it was still better to be careful. Gao Peng also said the room has a weird smell, then the monkey give the bowl with food to them while offering them to eat because they were guests. But Gao Peng just walked toward the room behind the monkey while telling the monkey that the food he's giving to them doesn't look the same as the one he's eating earlier. Then Gao Peng asked the monkey how could he hide away the good stuff when he has guests over and he likes to see what exactly he's hiding which made the monkey confused. The monkey looks at Gao Peng angrily, then it tries to attack Gao Peng. But White Steel attacked the monkey fast. Gao Peng goes inside the room and notices that there are traces of a human settlement there, but he doesn't see any humans. He also notices that there's a faint smell of blood and cooked meat inside the house. Then when he looked at the pot on the stove, he saw a human finger in the soup. Then Gao Peng looked at the monkey who's injured and lying on the ground and asks if he enjoys eating the stuff in the pot. The monkey angrily responded that humans eat them, so they eat humans. It also said the human in the pot eat his son, so he eat that human. Gao Peng responded he understand and he don't have the right to accuse him because that would be hypocritical of him. However, he said he is still human and now that he has seen what happened there he can't just let him go. Then Gao Peng walked to exit the house while ordering the beast to give the monkey a quick death, to which the beast immediately followed. The night comes, Gao Peng was looking at the people using his telescope while saying that their current place should be the place of Platinum Hand's headquarter and if it wasn't for the information that his grandfather's friend provided, it would have been very difficult to find the Platinum Hands. Gao Peng angrily said the Platinum Hands not only agitated the mountain spirits to harm Yuzhu City, but they also hurt Stripey and kept sending assassins to assassinate him, so he'll also give them a surprise. Then Gao Peng tells Dummy to do what they plan. Then Dummy uses his summoning skill while telling his fellow undead to resurrect and awaken from their slumber, to which his ghouls heard. On the other hand, inside the Platinum Hands headquarter, the bishops of Platinum Hands were in the meeting. One man asks if the Desert Wing has not been subdued yet because he has had enough of that and is sick of the accursed desert. Then he asks when will the Desert Wing be theirs. The other man tells the man to be patient because according to the information he has received, the Desert Wing seems to have finally let down its guard after half a month of effort and it's now coming to take a look at them. 
which made the other man ask him what to look at. The man responded to see if there are any suitable monster trainers and if there were any, it just might announce its decision. The other man angrily asks his team if they believe in a monster's words. Suddenly one of the Platinum Hands members ran toward the bishops while saying they have trouble because the corpses that they're buried near the town had resurrected and they were currently attacking their people, which made the bishops shock. On the other hand, outside of the headquarters, Dummy was in the back of the skeleton dragon flying in the sky, while the people of the Platinum Hands were running while calling for help. Dummy once again uses his summoning skill while telling his fellow undead that their time of glory is upon them, to which the ghouls heard and come out underground. One of the bishops was shocked to see the giant thornbone lizard Lord Tear they killed last month resurrected. Then the Platinum Hands rang their bell. Then a monster attacked the skeleton lizard. The monster who attacked the skeleton lizard is a monster named Blue Scaled Four Armed River Ape. It was level 44 in excellent grade and its attribute is water. Its skills are Fortified Scales level 2, Water Mastery level 2, and Explosive Power level 1. Its weaknesses are 1, Wood Type and 2. It lacks lower body strength and it cannot bring out its full power when in midair. The River Ape description said it's a monster that likes listening to light music and it prefers life by the lake or any other bodies of water. It also likes eating striped prawns and it detests loud noises. The Platinum Hands people shouted that their bishops have arrived and they were saved. On the other hand, Gao Peng said he had no idea that there would be so many monster corpses buried near the town, and Dummy's ability alone is enough to make the Platinum Hands have their hands full. Suddenly they see something in the sky which made the lion shout that something was coming. It's the monster named Silver Winged Mirage Butterfly in variant type. It was level 42 in perfect grade and its attributes are Mirage and Light. Its skills are Sharp Mouth Parts level 3, Light and Shadow Mastery level 2, and its special characteristic is Mirage Scales. Effect 1, Passive Effect said it can turn completely invisible in the atmosphere by forming a special optical mirage on its body surface. Effect 2, Active Effect said it uses the replenishable scale powder on its wings to form a mirage in the atmosphere for a certain period of time. The butterfly weaknesses are 1. Fire type and 2. Electric type. Also, its description said it is a rare type of variant form of a mirage butterfly and it has the ability to turn light and shadow into a mirage. It's like using mirages to confuse its prey and then devouring the brains of its prey using its sharp mouth parts. Gao Peng said the butterfly is the mirage that obscured their perception that even Flamey and the others weren't able to sense it coming and its mirage ability is quite strong. Then Gao Peng ordered the beast to go, which it immediately did leaving the lion shocked. Then the beast attacked the butterfly using its storm cross kill skill, when it landed on the ground. The butterfly in the sky broke into pieces while the beast proudly say it was easy peasy. On the other hand, the man who's watching on the monitor fearfully said the silver winged mirage butterfly of their silver bishops got one shotted. Suddenly he was shocked and tells his earth dragon to come back. The monster is named Saprophytic Earth Dragon. It was level 45 in excellent grade and its attributes are Earth and Shadow. Its skills are Malicious Decay level 2, Earth Mastery level 2, and Shadow Mastery level 2. The Earth Dragon's weakness is a holy type and its description said it lives in dark and damp places, and it dislikes hunting. But it likes to feed on decayed corpses and its most favorite thing to do is to snatch away the prey of other monsters who worked hard to hunt. Also, when it can't find any decayed corpses, it will create its own corpses. The Earth Dragon come out to fight, but it was shocked to see the ice slowly wrapping around its tail. The Lion complained that Gao Peng want him to deal with weak monsters like the Earth Dragon and it was a waste of his talent. But Gao Peng just tells the Lion to enough complaining and just do it. Then the Lion uses its ice power to create a cage while saying it was boring and he'll just trap the Earth Dragon in an ice cage but the Earth Dragon uses its shadow skill to melt the ice, which made Gao Peng look at the lion and tease the lion that his ice got easily melted by the Earth Dragon. The lion angrily said he hate their current environment because the ice in the atmosphere is just too thin. Then the lion said he'll treat the situation more seriously, then he trapped the Earth Dragon using his ice which made the Earth Dragon scream in pain. Gao Peng look at the river ape who currently fighting the giant lizard while saying the earth dragon has been dealt with and currently, the river ape is the only one left. The river ape grabbed the giant lizard's head and pulled it off, killing the lizard. Then the monkey stepped on the head of the lizard on the ground and pound its chest proudly, but it was shocked when it heard dummy saying death is the home of all the living, but he has no fear of the dead. Then dummy pushed the river ape in the chest, which made the river ape's chest had a hole and thrown away. The river ape looks at Dummy while shaking on the ground. Suddenly it was a shock to feel so much pain because Dummy used its blood thread skill and burned the ape at the same time. Gao Peng said Dummy combined both the flame of the undead and blood thread heart to form a new skill and Dummy can control the enemy, 
and burn it with its flames at the same time. But Gao Peng noticed that the river ape unleashed the last of its element power as a counterattack to Dummy. The river ape attacked Dummy using its whirlpool which made the beast ask Gao Peng if they should go and help Dummy. The lion called the beast clueless and said the water whirlpool may look scary, but it would only wash away the dust that's on Dummy body. The beast responded that he won't argue with someone who's smaller than him which made Gao Peng laugh and said the beast is not wrong. Then Dummy used his weapon to stab the river ape in the chest while Gao Peng says the river ape attack is nothing for Dummy. Then Gao Peng look at Flamey in the sky and tells it that they're almost done there, but he should continue to keep an eye on the others and don't let anyone escape. On the other hand, inside the Platinum Hand's headquarters, one of the bishops tells other bishops they should go and there's another tunnel, he also said to let those people help buy some time for them. But the two other bishops point guns at the man which made the man ask what is the meaning of that. The silver bishop man responded that their familiars are either injured or dead, and only he remains in perfect condition, and he asks who knows what schemes he might have in that head of him. Then the silver bishop told the man to send his lord tier familiar out to stall some time, and then they can all leave through the tunnel together. The other bishop agrees and tells the man that his lord tier familiar must not leave with them. If not, he said no one will be going anywhere, which made the man angry. The man responded fine, but he used his power to create a light which made the two bishops collapse on the ground in shock. Then the man showed his rug while saying he had originally wanted to let the two bishops retire peacefully with women and money, but they can die there in peace because he will lead the platinum hands to glory. Then the man attacks the silver bishop using his rug, while the man plead that they can talk about the situation. But the man didn't let the silver bishop continue talking and killed it. Then the man uses rug to kill the other bishop next. But when the rug attacks the bishop, the bishop vanish which made the man wonder how the bishop vanished. The bishop teleports somewhere while saying luckily, he has been hiding his true strength from the platinum hands but he realizes he steps into the trap. The eyes slowly trapped the bishop which made the bishop shock. Gao Peng who see everything disappointedly said the man walked right into the trap. Then Dummy throws the other bishop on the ground while telling Gao Peng that he has captured the guy who tried to escape and the guy's familiar. The bishop who was trapped on the ice saw the other bishop injured on the ground and thinks it was so brutal, and he wonder who'd have thought that the once glorious platinum hands would be wiped out by just one person. Gao Peng said that means the two men are hostages and he thinks bringing the two men along would be too troublesome and it'd be easier to just kill them, which made the bishop on the ice shocked and asked Gao Peng to spare him because he know where the platinum hands treasure are hidden and he'll tell him everything he know. The man begs Gao Peng and said he can also tell him the location of the other bases and if Gao Peng gives him an order, he'll be his dog and he'll do anything he orders him to do. Gao Peng look at the man and tells the man that he piqued his interest and that he'll unfreeze him, so they can talk in detail. Suddenly Stripey tells Gao Peng that a monster is coming on their way and it's not weak which made Gao Peng think Stripey is a king tier. And to it, most lord tier familiars are nothing more than ants, but now Stripey claiming that it's not weak. Then Gao Peng saw the monster named Desert Pillar Monster. It was level 52 King Tier in perfect grade and its attribute is Sand. Its skill is Sand Mastery level 5 and its special characteristic is Desert Wings which mean it was endowed by the desert with a pair of wings that allow it to traverse distance across the desert at top speed. Effect 1, Passive Effect said while the Desert Pillar Monster is equipped with an enhanced regeneration ability, it's hampered by its innate sluggishness, which is remedied by an agility boost from its Desert Wings. However, that effect can only be activated in a desert environment. Effect 2, Passive Effect said as it was blessed with a pair of Desert Wings by the desert, its Sand Mastery ability automatically receives a plus one level boost in any desert environment. Effect 3, Active Effect said the Desert Pillar Monster is capable of whipping up a terrifying black sandstorm with its desert wings, and its weakness is ice. The Desert Pillar description said it's a creature that usually lives in the deeper regions of the desert. While their numbers are small, they are a species blessed by the desert itself, and different types of Desert Pillar Monsters exist, each of them endowed with a unique ability by the desert and thanks to its desert wings. The particular Desert Pillar Monster is bestowed with increased agility and enhanced regeneration ability. Gao Peng walks toward the Desert Wings while the bishop tells him that he must be careful because the Desert Wings is a king tier monster and it was only with its blessing that they were allowed to build a base out there in the desert, to which Gao Peng responded he got it. The bishop looks at Gao Peng from behind while thinking that Gao Peng is very strong. But since his is young, he might show some compassion, and as long as he lowers himself and show Gao Peng that he's useful, he might have a chance to escape when they start fighting later. Then Gao Peng asks the bishop where are the platinum hands treasures hidden. The bishop asks Gao Peng to give him some time to refresh his memory. Then Gao Peng changes the question and asks the bishop if he knows how to subdue the desert wings, which made the bishop wonder why he wants to subdue the desert wings when he has already has a king tier familiar. And he thinks if he let Gao Peng get his hands on another king tier monster, there 
would be no one in their world who could stop Gao Peng. Then he responded he doesn't know how to subdue the desert wings either because it's a king tier. Gao Peng tells the bishop that if he isn't giving him any answer, then he has no use to him. Then Gao Peng called Dummy. Dummy grabs and lifts up the bishop, which made the bishop tells Gao Peng that he remembers where the treasures are hidden. But Gao Peng tells the man that as a leader of a terrorist organization he's still so naive. Then Gao Peng asked the bishop if he thinks he would spare his life if he acted pitifully and gave him vague information. Dummy squeezed the man to death which made its bones crack. Then Gao Peng gives the frozen earth dragon to Stripey while he tells Stripey that it was a snack for him. The pillar wings got angry and asked Gao Peng how dare he ignore him. Then it warned him that he successfully caught his attention. But Gao Peng just asks the desert wings how he caught his attention and what is with those words. Then Gao Peng called the desert wings crazy. The desert wings tell Gao Peng that he's the one who's crazy and his aren't welcome there. Then he orders Gao Peng to leave the place. Gao Peng walks away while telling the desert wings that they won't be leaving the desert today because he's tired, so he's going to stay there for the night. Which made the desert wings shocked and asks Gao Peng how dare he defy him. Then the desert uses his power while angrily telling Gao Peng that he's dead because no one has ever disobeyed him before. But Gao Peng just looks back annoyed and said the desert wings are talkative and not only does its breath stink, but its tone also isn't good either. Then he ordered the lion to take care of the desert king. The lion uses his ice to attack the desert wings which made it thinks that Gao Peng's king tier familiar is clearly an earth type but Gao Peng's not using his strongest familiars to fight him. Then the desert wonder if Gao Peng's trying to find his weakness and he thinks he'll just have to catch Gao Peng and ask him himself. Then the desert wings look at Stripey while saying he'll start by killing the big one. Then it stabs Stripey which made Stripey bigger and wonders if the mosquito bites him. The desert wings was shocked and wonder what's happening and where did the big mountain come from. Then it realizes that he's too high from the desert and the desert's blessing is becoming weaker and weaker. Suddenly Stripey sees the desert's wings and tells it he found him, which made the desert realize that the big mountain is the earth spider he attacked and he wonders how did it become so big. Then he feels intense heat below him which made him say it was bad. Then Stripey explode his lava where the desert wings were which made the desert wings fly away, while angrily saying he hates mosquitoes. Gao Peng looked at the desert wings who's got thrown away while saying the desert pillar monster's attack dispelled the guy's fruit size altering effects, allowing Stripey to return to full size and KO it with one hit. Gao Peng also said being the strongest is incredibly lonely. Then he looks at the monster named Gold Threaded Rug Monster who's currently in Dummy's hand. It was level 43 in excellent grade and its attribute is metal. Its skill is sturdy golden threads level 2, and its weakness is fire. Also, its description said it was originally a gold threaded rug passed down for 3000 years and it came to life after the cataclysm, and subsequently evolved into the gold threaded rug monster. It also has a gentle disposition and it likes to eat rugs and hates fire. Gao Peng said a rug that came to life and killing the golden bishop isn't a problem but he really wants to study the gold-threaded rug monster. The lion asks Gao Peng if he wants to turn the rug monster into his familiar. Gao Peng responded he don't want to sign a contract with the rug monster and that he just want to study it for a bit. Gao Peng said if the rug monster is strong and without a master, he could still let one of his subordinates keep it, but it's already someone else's familiar. The lion said so what if the rug monster still has a trainer and it's not like a blood contract cannot be broken? which made Gao Peng shocked and asked the lion if a blood contract can be broken. The lion responded as long as he has the incantation that can break a blood contract and both the trainer and familiar are willing, the blood contract can be broken. However, for that to work, both parties must be in a normal state of mind and if any party is bewitched or under any form of mind control, he won't be able to meet that condition. Gao Peng said perhaps that would best describe the act of breaking a blood contract and he thinks it'd be too dangerous to reveal the news to a world that has only just evolved and it looks like he'll have to contact his grandfather to bring them back first. Then Gao Peng gives the ice type fruit to the lion while saying if the act of breaking a blood contract succeeds, he'll give the rug monster to Huang Ya, so he'll be thanking the lion on Huang Ya's behalf first, which made the lion proud and happy. The morning comes, Stripey was walking fast somewhere while some group is following them. The man tells his comrade to be quick and orders them to tell those at the back to keep up. Stripey who's annoyed tells Gao Peng that the group at the back of them has been following them for a while, and he's annoyed. Gao Peng tells Stripey that it's okay and they'll just open the way for the group and if the group could really keep up with them for the whole journey, then the group is pretty good. Then Gao Peng look at his tablet while saying they should be nearing to their destination. Gao Peng saw the picture of the monster named Stone Statue of the Convicted on his tablet. It's a level 40 commander in perfect grade and its attribute is dark. Its weakness is light and its skills are enhanced speed level 1 and strengthened stone skin level 1. Also, its description said the stone sculpture at the top of the temple was also affected by the cataclysm, and it loves listening to others read scriptures before it and dislikes others blaspheming the temple. 
Gao Peng said the temple was built by the Holy Light religion and the Holy Light religion advocated for the color white, so all buildings were covered in white, with white walls, white roofs, and white windows, but the statue at the top turned black. So he wonders if that means that all the black items in the temples were contaminated before undergoing mutation. Suddenly Mao said he saw a treasure and said that he's going to faint. Which made Gao Peng smile and said judging by Mao's reaction, there should be valuable treasure there. Then he orders Stripey to turn back and head toward the direction Mouse pointed. A few moments later, Gao Peng saw the material name Flame Face Mushroom and its effect said it contains rich fire-based nutrients, grows extremely rapidly in hot and humid environments, and contains traces of fire poison. Gao Peng saw something hiding in the bush behind the mushrooms and thinks the mushroom even has a guardian protecting it. Then Gao Peng hit his hand while asking what treasure is the mushroom because it looks kinda of familiar. Then Gao Peng wonder if isn't the one they planted at home. Da Zhe gets Gao Peng words and responds yes, then said it was the one they planted at home. Which made Flamey and Dummy stun. Then Goldie said since the mushroom belongs to them, then he'll go retrieve it. Then Goldie tells Silly to hand him an axe which made Silly confused and the lion disappointedly said Goldie really fell for Gao Peng and Da Zai's words. Then Goldie walks toward the mushroom and the monsters attack him. But Goldie called the monsters tiny centipedes and asked if that's all they got because it's laughable. Which made Da Zai confused. Then Goldie attacked the centipedes using its axe. Then give the mushroom to Gao Peng. Da Zhe pointed at the mushroom and asks Gao Peng what is that treasure. Gao Peng responded that it was material that can be used for Flamey's evolution. The next day, in the yellow desert region nearby the temple, Gao Peng said they finally arrived there. Then he looked back at something and said he got there pretty fast. It was the monster named White Rich Tree Demon. It was level 35 in excellent grade and its skill is Stout Body Level 1. Its special characteristic is united in a row which means when the number of Birch Tree Demons gathered together exceeds 10, they will gain more power. Effect 1, Physical Fitness Enhancement, is affected by the number of survivors. Effect 2, Recovery Speed Increases, affected by the number of survivors. The Tree Demon's weaknesses are Fire and Thunder. Also, its description said the Birch Tree Demons, which mutated after being affected by an unknown force have a spiritual connection with each other, and they aren't afraid of pain. The other monster is the monster named Stone Statue of the Convicted, and it's level 41 Lord Tier in normal grade. Which made Gao Peng say the statue was only level 40 in the photo, but it has reached Lord Tier now. Then Gao Peng tells Flamey that he'll leave the tree demon to him, then he orders the beast he named White Steel to kill the stone statue. Flamey burned the tree demons while White Steel attacked the stone statue. But Gao Peng noticed that the stone statue is still standing even after getting hit by White Steel. And if it were an ordinary Lord Tier monster, it would have been killed instantly. Then Gao Peng said heroes can't be underestimated. The stone statue uses its dark skill while saying convicted sink into the darkness of hell, then it touched the tree demon which made the white birch tree demon change to darkness ignited. Also, its level increased to 36 and it had resistance enchantment to the fire, which made Gao Peng think not only did the tree demon's state change but there was also a temporary increase in level, and the damage flamey deals on the tree demons aren't as great as before. After the darkness was ignited, the tree demon's resistance to the flames increased significantly. Then Gao Peng ordered flamey to retreat and let Da Zai take over. Da Zai laughed and said Thunder God taught him another two techniques before they left, so he'll show Gao Peng a big one. Then Da Zai fly and use his thunder net storm to attack the tree demons. Which made Gao Peng happily said Da Zai had improved because it knocked down four of the tree demon and also dealt damage to the others. White Steel panicked and asked why is there a black spot on his white shell, and he said he can't wipe it off. Gao Peng tells White Steel not to panic because it is just a sign that he has been corroded by the enemy's darkness and it'll disappear once they defeated the stone statue. White Steel said he's so angry because no one can dirty his white shell. Then White Steel attacked the stone statue using his 3000 slashes of the endless hurricane which made the stone statue shocked. Then the stone statue collapsed into the ground in pieces. Gao Peng angrily tells White Steel to be more gentle because he smashed the core crystal of the stone statue. But White Steel responded that destroying the stone statue core crystal still doesn't quell his anger. Da Zai panicky tells Gao Peng that the tree demons suddenly stopped moving and are slowly wilting. Gao Peng responded that the tree demons were feeding on the stone statue of the convicted's power of darkness earlier, and now that the power source is gone the tree demons will wilt by themselves. Then Dummy opened the door of the temple, while Gao Peng orders Stripey to wait for them outside, and he orders the others to follow him. When they enter the temple, Gao Peng said there are no disguised monsters there, so they should keep moving. While they walking Gao Peng saw a statue in the center of the temple and thinks its disguise is pretty good. The statue's monster name is Sculpture of the Punished. It was level 46 in normal grade, and its attribute is dark. 
Gao Peng said it was also time to stack up a few layers of Goldie's passive. Then he ordered Goldie to chop up the sculpture. Three minutes later, the sculpture of the punished was broken into pieces on the ground. Gao Peng gets the core crystal of the sculpture while thinking Flowery is currently level 36 and once it absorbs the core crystal of the sculpture, it should be able to reach the Lord tier. Then he gives the core crystal to Flowery while ordering it to absorb it well. Suddenly the black hole appeared which made Gao Peng say the path in front had already been completely corroded by darkness, and it looks like their target is in there. Then he orders Flamey to light a fireball to illuminate their surroundings. Then Flamey light a fireball, then they start to walk toward the black hole. But Gao Peng stopped his familiars because he saw something in the hole. Gao Peng saw the item named Crystal of the Undying Heart. The item description said it's a crystal that's naturally condensed around the essence of the Undying Heart, and it is formed by the various types of incomplete soul power absorbed from the air through the essence of the Undying Heart. Gao Peng realizes that they're near the essence of the Undying Heart, then he orders Flamey to increase the flame, to which Flamey immediately follow. Then Gao Peng saw the item name Essence of the Undying Heart. Its description said it's a unique condensed item that is produced from devout faith to death, and it can purify remnant soul power in the void. Gao Peng said the impurities that were removed from souls have become the source of the darkness that corroding the place and he thinks it's ironic. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to bring the essence of the undying heart over, then he orders Goldie to punch a large hole for him. Dummy grabs the undying heart, but the undying heart releases a black smoke which made Dummy shock. On the other hand, Gao Peng was pouring some mixtures into the hole Goldie made for him. Then Gao Peng throws the thousand-year heart of darkness at Dummy while ordering it to place the essence of the undying heart into its eye socket, and the thousand-year heart of darkness into its chest. To which Dummy followed and lastly put the thousand-year hearts to his chest which made Dummy shout in pain. While Gao Peng who's watching thinks the hearts had a terrifying power that Dummy almost went under. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to quickly get in the pit and tells Dummy good luck. Dummy walks toward the pit and sinks into it. Then a big black power comes out from Dummy which made Gao Peng said the hearts are so powerful. After a few minutes, Dummy opens his eyes and stands up with his successful evolution. Dummy's new monster's name is Skeleton Dominator. It was level 47 Lord Tier in Mythical Grade and its attributes are Undead and Yin. Dummy skills are Yin Skeleton of Death level 5, Control of the Undead level 4, Dark Flame Mastery level 3, and Strengthened Soul level 3. Its special characteristics are 1. Heart of the Yin Soul. Effect 1. Passive effect said it consumes a certain amount of the power of the undead to condense the heart of the Yin Soul. When the heat of the Yin Soul exists, it greatly enhances the all-around physical quality of the Skeleton Dominator and only soul-type attacks can destroy the heart of the Yin Soul. Effect 2. Active the heart of the Yin Soul to transform the host into the Yin Soul Dominator and highly immune to physical attacks, and has soul-type attacks. Second skill. Flame of the Undead. Effect 1. Active effect said it's putting the flame of the undead into the complete skeleton of a corpse can revitalize the corpse and transform it into a bone type undead or a soul type undead and its power is related to the strength of the corpse prior to death but the resurrected undead cannot exceed the level of the skeleton dominator effect 2 said the undead revived by the flame of the undead can continue to grow but it must not exceed the maximum level of the skeleton dominator also the skeleton dominator can absorb the resurgence of the undead for their one growth Effect 3 said it can control the undead level plus 1. Third skill, Extreme Yin Soul. Effect 1, Passive Effect said the soul can be strengthened by permanently absorbing parts of the soul of life forms killed by the Skeleton Dominator. Dummy weakness is the Tainted Soul Godstone can weaken the Skeleton Dominator to a certain extent, and its pathways for promotion to eternal grade are insufficient soul strength and others that are unable to view. Gao Peng was shocked that he was unable to view Dummy's pathways for eternal grade, and he realizes that increasing his soul strength is the way to upgrade the system. Gao Peng also thinks currently, he hasn't seen a level 5 skill among monsters that are below King Tier, which means Dummy, in certain aspects, is no less inferior to a King Tier monster, and he thinks if he adds the level boost provided by the Flame of Undead skill that gives Dummy two level 5 skills, and with it possessing the talent of being able to permanently increase its soul power, Dummy's possibilities are unlimited. Gao Peng knows that currently, the strongest is Till Stripey who's a king tier, but in terms of soul mastery, Dummy's potential definitely exceeds Stripey's, and he thinks he can switch the soul chain to Dummy. Then Gao Peng switched the soul chain to Dummy while telling Dummy that they need to test how much soul strength he receives for every monster he absorbs and whether his undead subordinates increase his soul strength whenever they kill a monster. Then Gao Peng ordered Goldie to go back to Stripey's and bring over one of the tree demons they caught earlier, to which Goldie immediately followed. A few seconds later, Goldie was back while holding a Wilt Tree Demon. 
Then Dummy resurrected one ghoul, and order his ghoul to freeze the tree demon which frees Goldie too. Then Dummy absorbs the soul and tells Gao Peng that he'll receive around one-fifth of soul strength if he absorbs it himself. But if the undead absorbs it, he'll receive one-tenth of soul strength and it can also absorb the same amount of soul strength as he did. Which made Gao Peng realizes that Dummy's skill isn't actually just limited to Dummy. On the other hand, behind Gao Peng Goldie angrily asks Dummy why did the underling freeze him too and he accused Dummy that he did it on purpose. Then Goldie kicks Dummy while telling Dummy is lucky because he has become stronger or else people would accuse him of bullying the elderly. On the other hand, Gao Peng thinks the undead resurrected by Dummy can also absorb a small portion of soul strength and troop storming tactic paired with the characteristics of unlimited growth potential. Gao Peng also thinks the strength of a mythical grade monster is scary. A few moments later, outside the temple, Gao Peng tells Dummy that he has too many undead henchmen. Then he orders Dummy to keep the ones above level 40 and absorb the rest. Dummy uses his skill and absorbs the souls which made Dummy level increase to level 50. Gao Peng wonders if Dummy kind of leveling speed is considered cheating because Dummy is one step away from the King tier. Gao Peng thinks currently, the Earth isn't suitable for the Skeleton Dominator that grows stronger by massacring monsters to develop as it's still developing. But the Black Fog world is different because there are countless skeletons buried there, and as long Dummy's level is high enough, Dummy can turn the skeletons into their forces. Then he tells Dummy that when they return, he should bring his henchmen to the Black Fog world for expansion which made Dummy confused. Then Dummy sadly asks Gao Peng if he deserting him. Gao Peng weakly punched Dummy while asking Dummy how could he abandon him. And he tells Dummy that it's just he'll have many restrictions if he stays by his side and his potential should not be wasted on the earth. Dummy kneeled in front of Gao Peng while saying he understand and tells Gao Peng not to worry because he'll become stronger until no one can stop them from being together. A few days later, in the Black Dragon Base City Airport, Gao Peng asks Wang Ya how are things with the preparations. Wang Ya pointed to the luggage bag and responded that the sources he needed for his trip had all been thoroughly prepared. Gao Peng thanks Wang Ya and asks if everything's okay at his home. Wang Ya responded that Jai Huan is well, and everything is fine at his school too. Wang Ya also said Guan has almost adapted to his position and Guan even saved a few students a few days ago. Gao Peng tells Wang Ya that Wang Ya should have to tell him all about it when he gets back. Then Gao Peng remembers something and order Goldie to bring over the rug monster. Goldie give the rug monster which made Huang Ya ask Gao Peng if the rug monster is a familiar. Gao Peng tells Huang Ya that he worked hard and that if he likes the rug monster Lord Tier familiar, he can keep it. Which made Huang Ya ask if another Lord Tier familiar is for him. But Gao Peng just held Huang Ya's shoulder and tells Huang Ya to pay more attention to Dummy who's in the Black Fog world and help him bring Goldie and Da Zai back home because he'll be heading straight to the North Pole from there. Then Gao Peng started to walk away while raising his hand and saying his leaving. Huang Ya bowed at Gao Peng and thanks him for the rug monster familiar. A few days later, Gao Peng, White Steel, the lion, silly and flowery who's shaking in cold arrived at the North Pole. The lion uses his power to shield flowery in the cold which made flowery said it's amazing because he's not cold anymore. The lion proudly said it was nothing. Gao Peng said if there aren't any materials that can meet the lion's requirements there, they are probably located at the South Pole. But the lion said he can feel something faint up ahead of them and told Gao Peng to continue walking toward the northeast. A few hours pass, and while they walking the lion tells Gao Peng to hang in there a little longer because the feeling is growing stronger. Suddenly Gao Peng sees something and wonder if it was the ice city. The lion jumps down while excitedly telling Gao Peng that it's up ahead of them. Then they walk toward the city and Gao Peng thinks the place doesn't look like a palace that they could build. Suddenly the palace door opens, and the monster named Ice Asura Knight in Sealed comes out. It was level 51 King tier in Epic Grade and its attribute is Ice. Its abilities are Aurora Blade level 5, Hardened Armor level 4, and Ice Mastery level 4. Its features are 1. Frozen Blade which means it possesses incredible destructive powers. Effect 1, Passive Effect said it increased the destructiveness of attacks and damage. Effect 2, Passive Effect said enemies who are hit by the Frozen Blade will fall into a Frozen Destructive Effect and all damage taken during that duration will increase. 2, Ice Sealed Heart which means the Tranquil Heart will remain fearless and calm. Effect 1 is ignore the ability of mind control, causing it to be unaffected by charm, takeover, confusion, fear, and so on. Effect 2, any mental and soul damage taken will be decreased. Also, its description said the Ice Asura Knight that is sealed is a monster with strong fighting capability, and they are brave, fearless, and loyal. Gao Peng was shocked that it was a King Tier monster and Dummy and Stripey aren't with him, so the strongest familiar he have with him is probably the level 50 White Steel Bladed Beast. Also, they were on the enemy ground and he thinks he can't force his way through. But the lion excitedly jumps back at Gao Peng back while telling him that there's something good inside the palace. Gao Peng angrily tells the lion don't say it and if he thinks he can't see it. 
the Ice Knight pointed its weapon at Gao Peng while telling him to leave the place, which made Gao Peng shocked because he realizes that the Ice Knight had the ability to speak the human language which means it isn't a wild monster and it must have been in regular contact with human civilization, and it might have even been someone else's familiar. Then Gao Peng tells the Ice Knight that they won't enter the place and they're just going to take a look around outside. Then Gao Peng asks the Ice Knight if it's alright with him. Then Gao Peng said please and tells it they'll play by the rules which made the Ice Knight think for a minute. Then the Ice Knight walked back inside the palace which made Gao Peng said the Ice Knight went back which means it was accepting them to explore the palace's surroundings. On the other hand, the lion sees something and jumps off excitedly, then runs toward the frozen lake while Gao Peng tries to stop it. But the lion just jumps into the frozen lake which made Gao Peng just sigh. The lion was relaxing in the frozen lake while its level increased to level 43. Gao Peng thinks the lion's level rose from level 41 to level 46 and that's probably the frozen lake's limit. Suddenly Gao Peng was shocked and wonder when the ice knight appeared behind him. The knight looks back and tells Gao Peng to come with him, then the ice knight started to walk away while Gao Peng calls the lion and said they won't gain anything if they don't take it. Suddenly they saw the ice well release a pure ice spring which made the lion excited. But Gao Peng lifted and hold the lion tight to stop it from running toward the well, then the lion tells Gao Peng to let him go repeatedly. Gao Peng tells the lion to be quiet because the ice knight is staring at him and he said most importantly, they don't stand a chance against the ice knight. The ice knight tells the lion that he had grown weak and the pure ice spring could help him recover a portion of his power. Gao Peng thanked the ice knight, then Gao Peng ordered Silly to give him a pail and a water tank. Then Gao Peng gets a bucket of pure ice spring water, but when he looks at it, he notices the water turned pure black after it left the well, and it's no longer steaming. The lion asks Gao Peng if he didn't know and explain that it ensures that the extremely powerful ice power within the water won't be lost and that it's a rare, and valuable treasure. Then Gao Peng said it was done and ordered the lion to jump inside the bucket, to which the lion immediately did in excitement. But when the lion touched the water, then the lion froze and becomes ice which made Silly worried. Suddenly someone asked Gao Peng if it was his familiar, which made Gao Peng confused and looked back and saw a beautiful lady who was currently assisted by the ice knight. Gao Peng noticed that the lady's foreheads had a red lotus pattern and he knows it's uncommon but then he wonder why he's paying attention to such details. Then he responded that the lion is his familiar. The lady asks Gao Peng what currently the time is. Gao Peng responded that it was 7.30 in the evening. The lady laughed and said it's been a while since she had guests since she could feel the elemental energies returning. Then she asks Gao Peng how long has it been since the planet's elemental revitalization. Gao Peng responded five years which made the lady say he has slept for so long but it's only been five years. Then the lady looks at Gao Peng while saying to be able to raise a couple of Lord Tier familiars in just five years is no small feat. Also, he tells Gao Peng that his little lion is quite something and its previous tier must have been quite high, which made Gao Peng shy. Then the lady asks Gao Peng if he wants to taste her cooking because she's really good at making grilled fish, but Gao Peng thinks the gesture of offering food to guests feels very familiar to him. Then Gao Peng tells the lady that no need to trouble herself because he has brought some canned food with him which made the lady ask what is canned food. Gao Peng snapped his finger while saying the canned food is something really delicious, then Silly showed the canned food, then Gao Peng offered the canned food to the lady. The lady looked at the canned food thinking which made the Ice Knight confused. Then the Ice Knight tells the lady that the canned food doesn't look healthy, but the lady just stops the Ice Knight and searches for something inside its dress while saying that the canned food had a strong aroma. Then the lady lifts up a spoon that she's hiding under her dress while saying the canned food is worth a try. Then she started to eat the canned food. A minute later the canned foods were empty which made the lady sadly say the canned food is empty. Gao Peng tells the lady it is okay and if she likes it he still has plenty, to which made the lady excited. But the ice knight was kneeling on the ground in disappointment because of his mistress. A few moments later, the lion proudly said he once again a king tier which made Gao Peng tinks the limit placed on that world hadn't been lifted yet, and currently, the king tier is the highest tier a monster can reach. Monsters higher than the king tier also can't enter that world and that should be the world's own defense mechanism. Then Gao Peng tells the lady that it's getting late and the reason he came there was to help his familiar level up. The lady responded she'll give him a gift. Then the lady gives the monster name Male Magnetic Beast while telling Gao Peng that the Male Magnetic Beast can sense the presence of a Female Magnetic Beast. And the Female Magnetic Beast is inside the place, with the Male Magnetic he definitely won't get lost the next time he comes there. The Male Magnetic Beast level is 5 in normal grade and its attribute is metal. Also, its description said Magnetic Beasts come in male and female pairs, and when both genders are within a certain distance from each other, they immediately sense the other and are inexorably drawn to each other. 
Also, the closer they are to each other, the stronger the attraction they feel to each other. Gao Peng awkwardly thanked the lady and said his family operates a canned food factory. Then he tells the lady to rest assured because he has plenty of food that is more delicious than canned food back at his home, and he'll send them over to her once he gets home. The lady said everyone in their tribe had the Bei surname and her name is Bei Qingyan. Qingyan also tells Gao Peng that she'll go find him in Yuzhu when her people have returned. Then Qingyan winked at Gao Peng and said they have a deal. Then Gao Peng and his familiars proceed to walk back. While walking Gao Peng said they came there in hurry, but now they can take their time because it's not every day that they get visit the North Pole, and he thinks leaving without bringing a souvenir back wouldn't feel right. Suddenly they saw a group of penguins walking in the snow which made Gao Peng wonder why a group of monsters gathered there. Then one of the penguins looked back and saw Gao Peng. The penguin monster's name is yellow-browed monster penguins. It was level 18 in normal grade and its attribute is water. Also, its description said it is the strongest among the other penguin-typed monsters of the same monster tier, and it has a rowdy personality and is considered the gangster in the penguin family. Then Gao Peng looked at the monster wondering if it's a penguin while the penguin was talking. Then the penguins start to shout at Gao Peng which made him said the penguins are so noisy and he asked the lion what are the penguins saying. The lion said the penguins warning them not to go near their territory. Then White Steel said the penguins are a bunch of bugs and tried to attack them, but Gao Peng stopped White Steel. Gao Peng wonder why the penguins that are supposed to be in the South Pole have appeared in the North Pole. Then Gao Peng tells the lion that they're just passing by, so he orders the lion to just give the penguins a scare by freezing the ones that are blocking their way. To which the lion did which made the other penguins shocked to see one of their kin frozen. But the penguins gets angry and shouted at Gao Peng loudly which made Gao Peng think the penguins become more agitated after seeing their kin getting frozen. Then he orders White Steel to frighten the penguins some more. Then White Steel cut off the hair of some penguins, which made the penguins who lose their hair cry because they think they were ugly. Then the other penguins run because they don't want to lose their cool hair. Which made Gao Peng said the penguins finally left. Then he notices something frozen and wonders why there's a frozen ship in the spot the penguins gathered. Then Gao Peng saw the flag of the Northern Bear region on the ship and he said most of the ship's cannon barrels, radar, and other apparatus have been destroyed and frozen solid by the Arctic cold, and Gao Peng thinks it was interesting. Then he asks White Steel, which way did the penguins go? White Steel points at the cave and tells Gao Peng that the penguins go there which Gao Peng said they should go and check out the cave. Inside the cave Gao Peng saw a room and said that it's looked like an abandoned laboratory, and the penguins must have been captured to be experimented on. But then something went wrong or maybe it was a monster attack. Gao Peng also thinks the lab was forced to be abandoned, and the penguins managed to escape and were able to proliferate freely. Then Gao Peng goes inside the room and said although the laboratory was destroyed, there are no signs of human corpses inside of it and maybe the survivors took them together with them when they left. Or they're now inside a monster's belly. Suddenly they heard something walking, and Gao Peng saw something inside the hole and used his flashlight to see it. Gao Peng saw the monster named Yellow-Browed Emperor Monster Penguin and Mutant. It's level 45 in perfect grade and its attribute is Ice. Its skills are Ice Mastery level 3 and Improved Strength level 3. Its special characteristic is Frozen Crown, a frozen crown that was formed on top of its head due to the crystallization of a rare royal blood type. Effect 1, Passive Effect is Ice Mastery plus 1. Effect 2, Active Effect said it expands the energy contained within the frozen crown to erect a frozen hellscape around itself. Also, its description said it was originally a crested yellow-browed penguin that was injected with the blood of an emperor penguin, and it later mutated into a yellow-borrowed emperor monster penguin. It also has an irritable temperament and absolutely hates all human beings. Then Emperor Penguin angrily said something, which made Gao Peng wonder what it was saying because it sounds very angry. The lion responded that the Emperor Penguins mistook them as the people who killed its family and captured it to be experimented on. It also wants to eat them. Then the Emperor Penguins attack them which made Gao Peng shocked and run while telling the lion that he can see that the Emperor Penguin wants to eat them even though he didn't tell him, and that place isn't suitable for a fight. Then Gao Peng said the exit isn't far from there, so they should get out of that cave first. But Gao Peng noticed that the Emperor Penguin blocked the exit using its ice. But the lion jumped off which made Gao Peng wonder and called the lion he named Desolian. Desolian asks if he can't be freeloading forever. Then it used its power which made Gao Peng shocked, and it transformed to combat form. Then Desolian uses his unshackle skill to trap the Emperor Penguin in ice and attack it. But before he can attack the Emperor Penguin uses its skills to break off the ice which made Desolian say as expected of a mutant. It's able to break free from his frost and he said he has only recovered his strength till King Tyr, so he's still kinda weak. Then the Penguin uses its ice hell to trap Desolian way using ice, which made Gao Peng say the Penguin's skill is so cool. 
Desolian said it was because they were at the North Pole and if it were to try that in Yuzhu, it'd be lucky to pull off one-fifth of that power. But Gao Peng just responded yeah which made Desolian angry and tells Gao Peng to watch closely. Then Desolian uses his frost consumption skill to eat the ice that blocking his way. After eating the ice it burped and said the ice is not bad because he's actually half full which made the Emperor Penguin shocked. Then the Emperor Penguin tried to run back to the hole, but Desolian attack it. Then Desolian back to his non-combat form while licking the blood of the Emperor Penguin in its claws. On the other hand, Flowery and Silly were clapping at Desolian. But White Steel called Desolian a liar because it says a little body harbors a great soul. Desolian's special characteristic is frost consumption. Born by the frost, dies by the frost and the desolate frost lion is capable of absorbing and converting external ice energy into its own power. Effect 1, active effect said all the ice energy that the desolate frost lion has absorbed will be stored in its abdomen. But absorbing too much ice energy from its environment could have a negative effect on its body. Effect 2, active effect said it can release all the ice energy that it has absorbed as its own attack. Gao Peng said the frost consumption was the new skill Desolian gained after recovering its strength till the king tier because before reaching the king tier, the section of Desolian's skill was still unviewable which means it hadn't been awakened yet. Gao Peng also said although Desolian's new skill is very niche, it's super effective when used against ice-type monsters. Then Gao Peng orders Silly to bring the Emperor Penguin corpse back with them because the fusion of genes from two completely different monsters must have been what the Northern Bear region was working on. And even after the formation of the World Allied Government, the larger regions are still fighting over resource behind closed doors. Then Gao Peng tells his familiars that they should go because it seems like they'll have to pay the Northern Bear region a visit. Desolian said there's a downside to the method, putting aside the success rate. Even if the experiment is a success, the monster created will also lose its innate abilities. Then he tells Gao Peng that humans really like to play God. Meanwhile, on the other side of Lusaka Spatial Rift Black Fog World, the Lusaka militaries were guarding it. On the other hand, the general asks the man if the results come out and what is the tier of that monster. The man responded yes and the anaconda monster that they had designated as the Black Jormungandr should be above King Tier. The general said the core crystal of a monster above King Tier would probably be able to promote any other monster to King Tier, and every part of its body serves as a very valuable ingredient. The general also said if their plan succeeds, he'll go down in history as Kokang's hero and that may even propel Kokang to greater heights of glory. Suddenly the ground shook which made the general and the man shocked and wonder if there was an earthquake. Then the general familiar grabbed the general while saying there was a danger, then they saw the anaconda come out underground which made the general say they were doomed. Meanwhile, in the northern bear region Tomsk base city, on southern sky's new branch, Wang Ye tells Gao Peng that the staff and the first batch of familiars to be sold are both ready. Gao Peng responded that Huang Ye did a good job and he said according to his observation, the people from the northern bear region are fierce fighters, so as long as the familiar is strong enough, it'll surely be popular that's why he asked him to make that trip. Then he asks Wang Ye if there's anything happened in Yuzhu lately. Wang Ye responded Lusaka Base City's spatial rift has been closed off and word is they found a monster that's supposedly above King Tier in deep hibernation in the Block Fog world. Assuming it was dead, they tried to open up its brain and take out its core crystal. Wang Ye also said they still don't know the exact details, but they know only that the area on the other side of the spatial rift is under lockdown which made Gao Peng shocked and said his grandfather should be in the Black Fog world and the labyrinth is only a thousand kilometers away from the Lusaka Spatial Rift, and that kind of distance isn't considered far for monsters above the King Tier. Wang Ye tells Gao Peng not to worry because Jai Huan has already returned to Yuzhu Base City, and he said Jai Huan said that he strongly agrees with Gao Peng's decision of opening a branch in the Northern Bear region. Gao Peng responded he understand and said the Northern Bear Tomsk branch is going to officially open for business tomorrow, and if everything goes smoothly, they'll be able to expand their business across the whole Northern Bear region. Then he looks at the familiar on his side and asks Wang Ye if that is the familiar they're selling tomorrow. Wang Yi responded yes and said according to his instruction. He had brought a selection of the commander tier monsters that are capable of surviving in the northern bear region, and the six-horned dreadwolf is the main attraction. Wang Yi also said not only is the six-horned dreadwolf proficient in combat, but it's also capable of healing itself by consuming blood, and it has an extraordinary sense of smell and is especially sensitive to fresh blood, making it the perfect hunting companion. It's also very useful familiar to have in the vast wilderness of the Northern Bear region. The monster's name is Six-Horned Dreadwolf. It was level 30 commander tier in an excellent grade, and its attribute is blood. Its abilities are bloodless level 1 and sharp claws level 1. Also, its description said it may look like a fearsome creature on the outside. 
but it has a heart of gold and it will help those lost in a blizzard find their way back home inside their bellies, which is the warmest place one could go. It also has a habit of guiding lost travelers to places they aren't supposed to go. Gao Peng tells Wang Yu that he never disappoints him because the six-horned dreadwolf is not bad and he said when their store opens tomorrow, they can arrange for their familiar to spar against one of the most representative familiars of the northern bear region, and maybe an icefall bear, for example. Then Gao Peng said they should let the people see for themselves the true strength of their familiars. Then Gao Peng look at Wang Yi and tells Wang Yu that he made a new friend lately and he's called Bunshaft. Bunshaft is the second son of a well-known local household. Gao Peng also said he had asked Bunshaft to bring his friends along to liven things up tomorrow, so he ordered Huang to contact Bunshaft and don't forget to reimburse him, which made Wang Ye ask Gao Peng if they really need to do something like that. Gao Peng responded of course and said having a lively atmosphere is also very important. Then he tells Wang Ye to rest well which made Wang Ye speechless. Then Gao Peng wonder how's Dummy doing because there are many things happening in the Black Fog world lately. Meanwhile, in Black Fog world, at the land of Thousand Streams, Dummy's undead army was standing near the river. Suddenly a big monster appeared and eat some of Dummy's undead. Which made Dummy said the monster is strong and that if he could turn it into a part of his undead army, it would definitely become an incredible ally. Then Dummy noticed something and look at the swamp and said he thinks there was a powerful aura buried beneath the swamp. Then he uses his resurrection to resurrect it. The swamp water had a whirlpool which made the big monster confused. Then something slowly came out under the swamp and the big monster was shocked to see the blue water sky toad come back to life. But the monster angrily swims toward the toad while saying if he can kill it once, he can kill it twice. Then the big monster uses its tail to attack the toad which made a big impact on the water and throws the other undead monsters. Then Dummy ordered his undead to surround the big monster to which his undead army immediately did and attack the big monster which made it annoyed. Then the big monster uses his skill to make a big wave into the swamp and throw away Dummy's undead. But Dummy still orders his undead army to surround the big monster which made the big monster more angry and said he had enough. Then it uses its skill while saying he'll get rid of all Dummy's undead. Then it used its water dragon tooth to attack the toad which made the skeleton toad dead. Dummy disappointed said he thought the toad would be able to put up a fight, but it was weak and he thinks he'll have to settle the matter himself. Then Dummy gathered his power and absorbed the undead. Then he looks at the big monster and jumps toward it. Then Dummy grabs the big monster's head which made the big monster shocked. Then Dummy grabs tightly to its head that even it tried to shake Dummy off, Dummy won't fall. Then Dummy asks if that's all there is to the land of a thousand streams. Then Dummy said it's nothing special, then Dummy get the big monster soul, and made it his undead. Then Dummy said from today onward, he's the master of the land of thousand streams. Meanwhile, in the northern bear region Tomsk base city, on the villa Gao Peng rented, Gao Peng was walking in his villa while holding a cup of tea. Then he opens the television and watched the reporter reporting that they will visit the Southern Sky Group's newly opened familiar store from the Huexia region. And she said to the viewers that it's not even 8 in the morning yet there's already a long queue in front of the store. The reporter also said in the display area at the entrance, they can see a monitor showing a fight with their main attraction the Six-Horned Dreadwolf. And she said during its battle with the Icefall Bear, they can see the Six-Horned Dreadwolf is no ordinary fighter. Then the reporter said they will interview some of the customers and listen to their opinion. One customer said the Six-Horned Dreadwolf is so cool and he came there just to buy it because he was going to train it into his main DPS. The other customer said he heard someone from a big family come and bought 20 of Six-Horned Dreadwolf to make them into a new team of bodyguards a few days ago. So he came there to see what's so special about it, and the six-horned dreadwolf really didn't disappoint him. Gao Peng said it looks like the six-horned dreadwolf has already left a deep impression on the locals and now that the northern bear branch is stable, he can leave the rest to Huang Ye to follow up and continue with his next plan. Then Gao Peng looked back while saying there's a monster higher than King Tier in the Black Fog world and he doesn't know if it's an Emperor Tier or Overlord Tier, so he can't go over there so soon. Desolian asks Gao Peng what monster he's talking about. Gao Peng responded he's not sure and that there are no pictures of it but he heard it was a giant black snake. Desolian arrogantly asks Gao Peng what's there to be afraid of and he said that the monster should be at the peak of the Emperor tier at most because there's no way it's an Overlord tier, which made Gao Peng ask him why he was so certain. Desolian called Gao Peng an idiot and asked which Overlord tier monster dares to slumber in the territory of another Overlord tier monster and if the monster has its death wish, which made Gao Peng sarcastically laugh in response. Then Gao Peng's cell phone rang and he saw it was his grandfather, then he answered it and called his grandfather. While Desolian asked Gao Peng how dare he looked down on him and said he's a temperamental lion, and he's already close to losing control of his emotions. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that there's trouble in Chang'an again and it's a monster invasion that came from within the Taklamakan. 
The Taklamakan Desert is the largest desert in the Huaxia region and it's the second largest shifting sand desert in their world. Jai Huan said according to his latest sources, the Taklamakan Desert is slowly shifting toward the Chang'an Bay City. And based on current estimations, the Chang'an Bay City would be completely swallowed up by the desert in approximately 10 years' time. Which made Gao Peng said Chang'an really has many disasters, but a desert comes to life. Then he said if such a large desert really becomes a monster, then it would be troublesome to deal with. Jai Huan said that the reason why he'll be heading over to Chang'an to check on the situation and he tells Gao Peng that when he returns to Yuzhu he should look after their house. Gao Peng asks his grandfather if he should come with him. Then he grabs this oleum while telling his grandfather that he has an ice-typed familiar now and ice counters sand. Jai Huan laugh and agree. Then he tells Gao Peng to bring Desolian with him because the situation is indeed odd and initially, the Taklamakan Desert was located southwest of the western region. But it has not moved toward the northwest part of Chang'an City. Jai Huan said that based on his calculations, there's a possibility that the Taklamakan has been consciously moving toward Chang'an since the beginning of the catastrophe. Which made Gao Peng think that perhaps there's something in Chang'an that's attracting the Taklamakan Desert. The next day, in Chang'an Bay City outskirts, Gao Peng and his familiars are in the sky riding white. Gao Peng looked down and saw the Taklamakan Desert. Gao Peng thinks the Taklamakan Desert is not alive because he doesn't see any monster attributes and it hasn't mutated into a monster, but the desert isn't just moving, it's devouring. The Taklamakan is devouring the soil from the outside world to make itself stronger. Jai Huan called White, to which White understand and attacked the Taklamakan Desert which leave a hole. Gao Peng said the Taklamakan Desert is too strange because it's a large desert, but he can't spot a single monster, and he knows that even in an impoverished land, there would be life. Suddenly Mouse feels something, and jumps into the sky while saying treasure. Fortunately, Gao Peng caught Mouse and tells it to be careful because they're up in the sky. Daze said the mouse should be in its hyperactive state. Jai Huan asks White if he sees anything. White used its skill and attacked the Taklamakan Desert using it. Then White looked down and said he found it. They saw something wiggling on the sand, which made Gao Peng ask Mouse if that is the thing that caught his attention. Mouse responded no and it's below that thing. Gao Peng tells his grandfather that he should try next, and Jai Huan tells Gao Peng to be careful. Then Gao Peng jumps off the ground with his familiars, then Dissolian uses his ice power, and traps that thing. Then Gao Peng ordered Goldie to shatter the block of ice, to which Goldie followed and break the block of ice. Then they saw the monster's name Brain of Growth. It was level 51 King Tier in perfect grade and its attribute is Psychic. Its skills are Mind Power level 5, Extraordinary Brain level 3, and Spiritual Space level 3. Its special characteristic is Court of Thought, changing the world with mind power is the limit of the mind. Without a body to live in, it stays alive with only a brain but losing its body has presented it with more possibilities at the same time. Effect 1, active effect is the seizure of mind, its powerful soul allows it to seize the body of any non-living object, thus gaining the ability to move. Effect 2, active effect is the extraordinary flexibility, the seized object will go through a mutation, gaining all kinds of extraordinary attributes. Its currently seized object is the Taklamakan Desert, degree of control is 60%. Also, its description said a bizarre creature with no physical body but a brain, it can seize non-living objects and turn them into its own body, and it has an extreme desire for the brains of intelligent living creatures, which could also allow them to grow rapidly. Gao Peng realizes that the brain of growth was the reason behind the situation, and he thinks it's really disgusting. Suddenly the brain digs into the sand to run, then Gao Peng order Goldie to catch it. Goldie jumps toward the brain while asking it where is he running off to. But before Goldie can attack it, the brain uses its tentacles to attack Goldie. But Goldie just cut the tentacles and launched toward the brain. Unfortunately, the brain uses its hypnotic power on Goldie, which made Goldie confused about where he is, where Gao Peng was, and the big brain. Then Gao Peng called Goldie and tells him that he should go because he doesn't want him anymore. Gao Peng also tells Goldie that he can't afford to raise him anymore because he demands 500 alliance credits for each fish type monster he catches and he's too good at making money, so he simply can't afford to raise such a diligent duckling like him. Goldie asks Gao Peng if demanding 500 alliance credits per monster is too much and he said he even deceived Gao Peng's money with monsters that weren't fish type. Goldie also said Gao Peng suffered great losses and he asked if that was the reason why Gao Peng can't afford to raise him anymore. Gao Peng feel hurt in his head, and when he opens his eyes, he wonders if what he experienced is a mental shock or a mind invasion, and he said luckily, Dummy's soul fire was able to help him mitigate most of the effects. Then he looks back to his familiars who currently watching Da Zai and Goldie and asks what they're doing. 
Dasolian responded they were enjoying the show and Dazai and Goldie still haven't recovered from the enemy's mind attack yet. On the other hand, Goldie is panicking asking if reducing the alliance credits by 50 is enough, Mouse who's currently digging under the sand because he sees a treasure, and Dazai who's promising Gao Peng that he never going to steal Gao Peng food again, and he won't spit in his cup again either, so Gao Peng shouldn't hit him. Dasolian asks Gao Peng if he should catch that brain monster and let his familiars return to normal. But Gao Peng patted Dasolian's head while saying wait, and order him not to do it yet because he'd like to know what other things his bastard's familiars have done behind his back. Which made Dasolian speechless. A few moments later, Jai Huan gets down on the sand and looks at the brain monster trapped in Dasolian ice crying. Then he asked Gao Peng if he caught the brain. Gao Peng responded yes and said there shouldn't be any problem now. Jai Huan said that is the first time he has seen something like the brain monster and a bare brain exposed in the air, but with no signs of dehydration. Gao Peng tells Jai Huan that the brain monster is called Brain of Growth and it's a psychic type monster. He also said it can manipulate non-living objects and it was the one manipulating the Taklamakam. Then he asked his grandfather if he was interested in raising the brain monster. Jai Huan responded he doesn't have enough soul power to sign a contract with the brain monster because it's a king tier at the least and he could perhaps try it if we're a lord tier. Then Gao Peng confidently said he'll take the brain monster then because it's not easy to find a psychic type monster, and its level isn't low either. Then Gao Peng looked at the afraid brain monster while Da Jai said the monster is a delicious brain and he wants to eat it. Suddenly a kid ghost appeared begs Gao Peng to let him go, which made Gao Peng think the brain monster wants to communicate with him. Then Gao Peng tells the brain monster to tell him first why he's going to Chang'an. Then the woman ghost tells Gao Peng that he is cold and asks him if she tells him will he let her go. Gao Peng responded that it depends on its performance. Then the man ghost introduces his name as Wang Zhang, and he said is from Chang'an. He also said he's a desert hiker, and when the cataclysm occurred five years ago, he was hiking through the Taklamakan Desert. After the disaster, there was a huge sandstorm in the desert. He said he tried his best, but he ended up dying in the sandstorm. Then Wang Zhang's ghost kneeled and said his daughter's third birthday was in another seven days, and he wanted to go back to see her and sing her a birthday song. Then Wang Zhang's ghost also said he only wanted to return to Chang'an to see his daughter. Goldie cried because Wang Zhang's story was so sad. But Gao Peng asks Wang Zhang if that is why he wanted to bring the Taklamakan back to Chang'an. Wang Zhang responded his body became one with the desert and he can't leave the desert, and he really just want to go back to Chang'an. But before the ghost finishes his words Gao Peng asks if he wants to eat more people along the way. Then Gao Peng tells the brain monster to just decide if he wants to surrender and said if he's willing to become his familiar, he can live, but if he doesn't Da Zai has been hungry for a while. The woman ghost said it was not impossible for her to surrender to him. But she asked what would she gain from him. But Goldie smacks the brain monster and responded that he can gain love from him, and he asks it if that is how he talks to Gao Peng. Goldie also tells the brain that Gao Peng recruited him to be his familiar because Gao Peng thinks highly of him. Then Goldie angrily asks the brain monster how dare he negotiate the conditions with Gao Peng, to which made the brain monster cry and said he was willing to surrender. Then Gao Peng successfully made a blood contract with the brain monster. Inside the brain monster consciousness Gao Peng saw some memories and thinks reading the memories of devoured brains should be its innate ability. He also notices that there are quite a few memories stored there, but most of them are from low-level creatures with little intelligence, and seven belong to humans, but mostly from the disaster that occurred at the start of the cataclysm. Then Gao Peng looked at the brain monster eye and said its eyeballs are its visual organ and also act as its eating channel. He thinks releasing something akin to memory fragments from there can briefly increase its mind power. Gao Peng discovered that memories are also a form of matter, although they can't be touched and are colorless and invisible, they exist in different forms. And he thinks under special conditions, memories can be shredded and turned into fuel for an explosion. Then Gao Peng ordered the brain monster to release his control over the Taklamakan Desert. And he said although the Taklamakan Desert will be shifting after being freed from the brain of growth's control, it will stop moving towards Chang'an in a conscious manner. Then Goldie who's currently holding the mouse asks Gao Peng if the mouse is dead, and Gao Peng responded it's not. Suddenly the mouse smells something and moves while saying he smells treasure. Gao Peng asks the brain monster if there are other monsters under the sand. The brain monster responded that there are a few parasitic beasts of his. Then it moved the sand and showed the monster named Demonic Sand Tree. It was level 21 commander tier in normal grade and its attribute is wood. Also, its description said it is a kind of parasite that lived near the brain of growth. And when the brain of growth is present at a certain place for a long period of time, the surrounding environment will be infected thus creating the king of peculiar monsters. Which made Gao Peng said the demonic sand tree is a parasitic monster itself, yet there are parasitic shabbat beetles that rely on it to stay alive and he thinks it's interesting. 
Then Goldie asked Gao Peng to come and look which made Gao Peng ask Goldie what was wrong. Goldie pointed to Mouse who currently digging while telling Gao Peng that the mouse went down the big hole which made Gao Peng shocked and confused. Then a few seconds later the mouse tried to lift something up which made Gao Peng said the mouse actually found something useful. Then he orders Goldie to hurry up and help the mouse. Goldie lifts up the thing and shows it to Gao Peng. Gao Peng thinks they come across a white jade bone that's similar to the one in the Dali Desert. And both their materials are almost exactly the same. And they have the same complex pattern on top of it with a hint of scarlet red right where the jade broke. Then the mouse hugs the white jade bone happily while Jai Huan tells Gao Peng to look at the mouse and he said that really is a treasure, so their trip there was worth it. Then Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that the problem there is settled, so they should drop by Hanjong which made Gao Peng confused. Three days later, in Hanjong base city over the suburbs, Jai Huan said Emperor Liu Bang of the Han Dynasty sent General Han Xin to conquer Zhulu Central Plains. During Wai's conquest of Shu, General Xia who was cut down by General Huang Zhang in Hanjong, Liu Bei later declared himself the first king of Hanjong and Zhu Liang had stationed his troops in Hanjong, and ultimately, he was laid to rest at the foot of the mountain. Jai Huan also said the cataclysm brought a curious change in Hanjong land of prosperity. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that previously, there were reports of fighting noises coming from Mount Dingjun and there were also sightings of army tents and flags erected on the mountain. A Lord Tier monster trainer was sent by the Hanjong base city to inspect the area. However, the monster trainer didn't find anything. Gao Peng asks his grandfather if his saying they hid the truth. Jai Huan responded that it was the official statement they gave to public, but in reality, the monster trainer found a flag on Mount Dingjun. Gao Peng asked if could it be that the flag had come to life and he said many flags had been flown on Mount Dingjun and some of them dated all the way back to the Ming Dynasty. But Jai Huan tells Gao Peng to save his words because he'll get to see it for himself very soon. A few hours later, they saw tents below them, and when they get down they heard people saying to kill them all which made Gao Peng think the shouts are coming from the top of the mountain. But they didn't see anyone there. Then they heard someone shouting that the Han Emperor has shown him such generosity, and who he is to betray the Emperor's goodwill. That someone also said he will raise the world to the ground if that is what it takes to repay the Han Emperor's kindness. Then someone shouted that Xia who will soon taste his blade. And someone shouted that he will not disappoint his majesty and he will bring glory to the Han Dynasty. Gao Peng tried to ask his grandfather what they're hearing, but Jai Huan brush it off and tells Gao Peng that they should go over. Then they walk up the stairs, and when they reach the top they saw a monster with a flag. The flag monster's name is Military Confirmant Flag. It was level 46 Lord Tier in excellent grade and its attribute is metal. Its abilities are Soldier's Blood Lust level 3, and War Aura level 2. Its description said, It was a military flag that was brought to life by the lingering thousand-year bloodlust in Mount Dingjun, and its grade suffered a slight drop due to the short period of time it was able to spend in the pool of bloodlust and violent energy. It loves listening to army songs and watching war films, but it hates pansies. Also, its pathways for promotion to perfect grade are 1. Admiral Votive Flag and 2. Iron Blood Murderous Flag. Then the monster who's with the flag is named Land Terror Alligator. It was level 45 in normal grade and its attribute are Earth and Water. Its abilities are Strength and Turtle Shell level 2 and Strength and Bite level 2. Also, its description said its creature that has awakened its ancestral blood and it has a terrifyingly strong bite and strong defenses. It likes to eat fish and hates being disturbed. Suddenly someone laughed and said no wonder the weather is so pleasant because it turns out he has guests. Jai Huan tells the man that he seems quite carefree these days, and he asks why a youngster like him acts like an old man. The man responded that it's the consequence of working for the government. Jai Huan tells Gao Peng that the man is named Lu Wang and Jai Huan also said thanks to Lu they could find the ingredient that Gao Peng was searching for. Gao Peng bowed to Lu and thanked him for the help. Lu laughed and tells Gao Peng his welcome. Then Lu hand over something in the container while saying he found it when he was trying to subdue the military confirmant flag. And he still has no idea what it does, but he only remembered it after hearing that they were looking for exotic ingredients. Gao Peng gets the container and thanks Lu. He also tells Lu that if he ever needs help, he'll always be there. Lu responded no problem. Then he asked them to eat and said once he heard that Jai Huan is coming. He went hunting in Kinling two days ago and caught a Lord Tier Ghost Fire Crow, and he thinks it'll make a nice meal for the three of them. Gao Peng give the container to Da Zai while telling it not to drop it which made Da Zai confused. Then Gao Peng tells Da Zai that it's an ingredient for his evolution, which made Da Zai thinks he was just a small centipede and it's going to be inconvenient no matter how he hold it. 
Then he saw Goldie and tells Goldie that he'll give him 3,000 alliance credits if he help him bring the box and the contents back home. But Goldie just tells Dazai to do it himself and asks Dazai if he wants him to help him with just that much because it is a joke. Then Daze tells Goldie that he'll give him an extra 7,000 alliance credits, and 10 boxes of salted fish when they get back. Goldie grabbed the container while saying it was a deal because it was a good offer which made Dazai laugh and Gao Peng speechless. Goldie said Dazai is pampered by Gao Peng and must have a lot of spending money. Maybe he can strike up a long-term deal with Dazai so that he can continue milking more money out of the golden goose. Goldie also said he'll be making way more than selling fish. Inside Lu's house, Lu said there goes another chopping knife. Jai Huan laughed and said after all that talk about treating us to a ghost fire crow, Lu can't even prepare the meat properly. Lu responded that the ghost fire crow is a lord tier monster, and after all, it's tedious to deal with even when it's dead. Then he asks Jai Huan to give him a hand. Then Gao Peng tells Lu to let him do it, to which Lu agrees and said young people should work out more after all. Then Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to bite the ghost fire crow's claw off, to which Da Zai followed. Then Gao Peng cut the ghost fire crow's meat in just a second. Then Goldie and Silly put the meat in the stick while Gao Peng happily asked Lu to look. Lu tells Gao Peng he's not bad and is really talented. Lu also thinks Gao Peng is really something because even if the ghost fire crow's claw is really sharp, Gao Peng will need to possess incredible strength to cut open its tough skin that easily. Suddenly people enter the house which made Lu shocked and ask who they are. The lady responded that they were from Hanjong based city. Then Lu tells Gao Peng and Jai Huan to eat first because he needs to step out for a second. Outside the house, Lu asks the people what it is. The lady responded that an unknown plague has spread in Hanjong city, and the entire Hanjong based city is currently under quarantine. Lu said if it was a plague they'll have to find a researcher and he asks why did they come looking for him and if they think he can cure the plague. Lu also said if there are monsters that need killing, he's their man. But he doesn't know how to cure a plague, and he's not a doctor. The lady said the plague has become very serious and all monsters infected by it are acting very aggressively. Then she tells Lu that Lu is the only elite trainer in Hanjong city and only he can calm things down which made Lu speechless and scratch his head. Then Jai Huan asks Lu what was going on. Lu tells Jai Huan that he also knows that he only got his two familiars by sheer luck, and calling him an elite monster trainer is a bit exaggerated. Then Lu said that currently there's trouble in Hanjong and he can't turn a blind eye. But before Lu can finish his words, Gao Peng tells his grandfather that they should take a look. After a few hours, in a hospital in Hanjong, the doctor who's on the computer tells Gao Peng and Jai Huan to look over the computer because there are three patients who were infected a month ago, two weeks ago, and three days ago respectively. Then he showed the patient named Zhu Yuanyuan who was staring blankly into the air. She's 21 years old, the time since infection is 76 hours or three days and her symptoms are fever, fainting, loss of appetite, visibly stimulated by the sight of blood, increases physical strength, and other bodily capacities, signs of hair loss, capable of infecting others, and accelerating blood circulation. The system also said Zhu Yuan Yuan does not seem to have developed and aggressive tendencies, but her intelligence has regressed considerably, making it difficult to communicate with her. Gao Peng said the situation does look like something out of the movie. The doctor showed the second patient named Chen Weizhong who's tied up in the bed shouting. Is 32 years old and the time since infection is 361 hours or two weeks. Chen's symptoms are his hair has fallen out completely, wrinkles on his skin, Loss of teeth, severe desiccation has developed, extreme cravings for blood, increased blood flow, and increased heart rate. Any form of Chen skin puncture is inadvisable during the duration of quarantine for fear of severe blood loss. Then the doctor fearfully showed the patient named Jin Shengeming who was currently crawling on the ground with a four horn in his back. Jin is 18 years old and his time since infection is 726 hours or a month. Jin's symptoms are all of his hair has fallen out, suffering from the loss of vision but seems to have developed some other form of sensory function. Sluggish movements increased physical strength and increased bone density. Jin also has a strong desire for fresh blood and seems to have been completely infected, and incapable of infecting others. Gao Peng asks the doctor if Jin isn't infectious. The doctor responded yes and said they've run some tests, and confirmed that Jin is no longer infectious. Then Gao Peng tells the doctor to let him take a look at Jin. Then they walk toward Jin Ward, and when they arrive there, the doctor tells Gao Peng not to worry because Jin Ward has been remodeled extensively and it can withstand attacks from Commander Tier monsters for one hour. Then the doctor looks at the ward glass and said the patient is inside. 
Suddenly the patient that becomes a monster named Green Plague Bug Infecti screams. It was level 3 in normal grade and its attribute is poison. Its weakness is fire and its description said a Green Plague Bug releases fragments of itself into its surroundings as its main method of reproduction. And those infected by its fragments automatically become host bodies for the Green Plague Bug's larvae. Also, a Green Plague Bug's larva is capable of surviving extreme conditions and its small size also allows it to elude detection. However, it is averse to high temperatures. The monster tried to break the glass while Gao Peng who was looking at it said as he expected. Jin is no longer human, and he realizes something and uses his telepathy to order the brain monster he named Baldi to scan the hospital. To which Baldi who is currently held by Flamey in the sky responded okay. Gao Peng was shocked because he see many bugs in his surroundings. The doctor asks Gao Peng if something is wrong because he's making a weird expression. Gao Peng awkwardly laughs and apologizes to the doctor, then said it because the patient looks really terrifying up close. The doctor said it was fine and asked Gao Peng if he have any thoughts on the situation. Gao Peng scratched his head while responding not yet and said he'll go back and ask Lu if he has any ideas. Then Gao Peng start to walk away leaving the doctor looking at him creepily. Then Gao Peng walks outside the room while Baldi asks him if they should kill those bugs, but Gao Peng order Baldi to wait and scan the whole city. Then Gao Peng tells Baldi that he doesn't have to send the results to him and just tell him what he sees. Baldi tells Gao Peng that the bugs haven't spread across the entire city, but the bugs already clinging to the buildings and shirts of every pedestrian on one side of the city. Gao Peng tells Baldi that they can kill those larvae, but it would only be a temporary solution since they can't completely get rid of the source. Then Gao Peng start to walk faster while saying the situation is troublesome. Then the lady asks Gao Peng if he discovers something. Gao Peng tells the lady who currently running to catch up with him to take him to where the plague first broke out. A few moments later, Gao Peng and the lady arrived at the Nanxang Orthopedic Hospital. The lady tells Gao Peng that the first case of plague happened there. The lady also said the orthopedic hospital was shut down because when everyone realized what was happening, more than 90% of the people inside the hospital were already infected, including most of its doctors, which made Gao Peng wonder why another hospital. Then he asks Desolian if he has any ideas on how they should deal with the situation. Desolian responded that when dealing with parasite-type insects like larvae bugs, destroying the parent insect will usually kill all the little ones. Gao Peng tells Desolian that his thoughts were exactly like what he said. But the only problem is, how are they supposed to smoke the parent insect out of hiding? Then Gao Peng looked at the lady and said when the plague first broke out, they watched the CCTV recording and he asked if they have any leads. Suddenly the man responded that they actually found something but they were still not certain of its accuracy due to a lack of evidence. Then the man gives his hand to Gao Peng while introducing himself as Lai Meng from Hanjong City's Forensic Division. Gao Peng shakes Meng's hand while saying hello. Meng said the truth is they already have a suspect in mind, but they don't have enough evidence against him. Then Meng give the documents to Gao Peng while saying what's trickier is that even if they do manage to take the suspect down, they can't be sure if the plague would completely spiral out of control. And he said now that Gao Peng is there, Hanjong City will be in his care. Gao Peng get the documents and look inside, he was shocked and said it was someone he know. The night come, the doctor whose coughing was entering his house, then he put his coat down and take off his cat picture showing a digital locker. Then the doctor enters the pin which opens his secret room. He turned on the light and look at something while laughing. Then he walked toward his big larvae while saying that it's his power, and those who dared to mock and belittle him in the past, he can kill them whenever he wants to. He also said when his familiar's larvae infest everyone in Hanjong City, the whole city will be his to control, or maybe he can pretend to find a cure for the plague, so he could gain power and status quicker that way. But then he said his plan won't do because he'll be figured out eventually, and the world has never been short of geniuses. Then he laughs creepily while saying he'll just kill a few people first for fun since a few people dying during a plague is perfectly normal. Suddenly someone behind him said he finally found him which made the man shocked. Then the doctor runs toward his familiar while thinking he'll die if he turns around and the safest place to be is beside his familiar. But then he wonders why he's feeling cold without knowing that he's slowly being trapped by ice. Desolian said it was boring because it was too easy. Then Gao Peng looked at the doctor named Zhu Buling who was currently trapped inside Desolian ice and said Zhu thought he covered his tracks well enough when in reality, he was already being suspected and the government just didn't catch him right away to keep things from getting out of hand. Gao Peng tells Zhu to not underestimate how powerful a government is. Then Gao Peng looked at Zhu familiar who was in the tube, and said it's not a lord tier, yet it's already capable of creating such a widespread plague. The monster's name is Green Plague Queen Bug. It was level 40 in perfect grade and its attribute is poison. Its skills are accelerated reproduction level 2 and reinforced infection level 1. 
Its special characteristic is the Insect Queen's Venom Sac, a mutated Venom Sac that's endowed with enhanced reproductive ability and has the ability to enhance its offspring's innate traits. Effect 1, Passive Effect said it grants its offspring the ability to camouflage themselves, including but not limited to masking their own presence and shape shifting. Effect 2, Passive Effect said it grants its offspring the ability to reproduce asexually, even after finding a host to infect, still, offspring can still reproduce. Also, its description said it is a type of parasite that somehow merged itself with a virus when the cataclysm happened and it's physically weak, but can endow its offspring with high combat power. The queen bug opens its mouth to call many little bugs to attack Gao Peng. But Gao Peng just laughs and tells the queen bug that she overestimates herself. Then Gao Peng called Baldi. Baldi uses his psychic skills and attacks the little bugs that are coming toward Gao Peng. Then the bugs collapse to the ground, which made the queen bug angry and break off the container to attack Gao Peng. Gao Peng said the queen bug is still strong after suffering from Baldi's psychic attack. Then he ordered Baldi to give the queen bug another shot. But Baldi tells Gao Peng that it was his strongest attack which made Gao Peng shocked and tells Baldi that he can't even kill a commander tier. And that's embarrassing. Da Solian asked Gao Peng if he should do it, Gao Peng responded no and said since the situation is under control, he should train Baldi. Then Gao Peng ordered Baldi to continuously stack his attacks and release them all at once on his signal, to which Baldi immediately followed that made the queen bug scream in pain. Then Gao Peng said now to which Baldi released his stack of attacks and killed the queen bug. Baldi proudly said he did it. Then Gao Peng walked toward the stair while saying he'll head upstairs first and he orders Desolian to freeze the queen bug corpse so he can show it to the authorities afterward. Desolian said he'll do it for two boxes of ice fruits, to which Gao Peng immediately said deal. Upstairs, Gao Peng said if there was no one guiding Baldi, the most it could do was envelop its prey in illusions and make them die from hunger and thirst in the desert, and he said Baldi still needs some practice before it can unleash its true strength. Then he said maybe they can try brainwashing other monsters and if they can do that to them from a young age, he'll be able to control a batch of monsters even without a blood contract and the next step is to have Baldi get rid of the leftover larvae in Hanjong City, but before that, he tells Baldi that he'll have to dress him which made Baldi shy. Baldi happily flies away while saying pretty clothes repeatedly, then Gao Peng waves his hand while telling Baldi to remember to kill all the bugs and don't miss out on a single larva. Then Gao Peng patted Da Zai while saying now that he have done Hanjong Base City a huge favor, the reward will be great and his grandfather will be able to strike a deal that both parties are satisfied with. So he doesn't need to bother himself with it and he thinks it's finally over because it was a long trip and he thinks it's time to go home. On the other hand, Da Zai was confused why Gao Peng patted him. Meanwhile, in the Lohan district Santel City, the dragon was burning the city down. The man who was riding the dragon said only the strongest can set the rules of the world and from now on, Santel City is declared independent. The man also said they belong to the world allied government. But no third parties are allowed to be involved in the internal positions or affairs of Santel City. Meanwhile, in the South Egypt district Trudeau City, the man pointed to the thing floating in the sky and tells his friend to look because there was a coffin floating in the sky. The man responded that many weird things are happening these days and he even heard statues are coming to life in other districts. Suddenly the coffin opened showing a hand, then the mummy come out of the coffin saying that from now on, Trudeau City declared independent and said they belong to the world allied government but only internal members are responsible for any of the internal affairs in Trudeau City. Meanwhile, in the Nihon district Yuta City, the man who's with his familiars announced the order from the Almighty Cherry Blossom and said from now on, the Almighty will take over the internal affairs of Yuta City. Meanwhile, somewhere, the people in the projector were in the meeting hall. One man said they have finished raising the flags, but he wonder why has there been no action in the Huexia region. The other man asks the first man if he thinks it is easy for him. Then he said Yuzhu is right next to him, then he asked if they don't remember whose territory Yuzhu is. The other man responded that it was just a king tier familiar, and he said Huexia people sure are cowards. The man angrily responded that it was easy for the man to say and asked the man to do it himself. The man also asks who said there's only one because the latest information is that Jai Huan is currently the owner of two king tier familiars, which made the other man shocked and asked if his sources are accurate. The other man cleared his throat and said they gathered together because they all have the same purpose and they have almost achieved their goals. The man also said missing one or two pieces won't pose a problem. Then the man excitedly said what's important is their next move. The next morning, Jai Huan who's looking out the window said trouble is brewing and those peaceful days will soon be over. Gao Peng asks his grandfather if what's happening is normal and he said they couldn't even come together as one to fend off world-ending catastrophes like the cataclysm, and things wouldn't be any better. Then Gao Peng said what's more interesting is that the other major region is all in pandemonium, but their Huexia region is unusually quiet. 
Jai Huan said it because they're uncertain of their standing and the monster trainer is a new profession that ignored all previous social status, so it doesn't matter what power and status he held before the cataclysm. Jai Huan also said with a bit of luck and effort, one could become an elite trainer and those trainers are responsible for the defense of an entire city and face other lord tier monsters or massive swarms of low-leveled monsters. All of those come with great risk, and yet despite putting their lives on the line, they're still subjected to the authority of the local government since the benefits they received weren't as great as they thought. Jai Huan also said some of the monster trainers would naturally start having other ideas. Then Gao Peng said and even if the monster trainers didn't, other people would surely persuade them because it's just like how General Zhao Quanjian was crowned emperor by his subordinates despite his will. Jai Huan said those troublemakers are only a few in number, and in ancient times, they would just be a few lone soldiers who would be trying to revolt. Once the imperial court gathers its soldiers, putting those people back in their places would just be a matter of time. Gao Peng agreed with his grandfather's words and said the imperial court would only truly fear someone who holds great power, then he pointed out his grandfather while saying, for example, someone who owns two king tier familiars like his grandfather. Which made Jai Huan remember Gao Peng saying his white is surely incredible because his fiancée came all the way there to find it along with their fat son to which made Jai Huan say white son is really too fat. Then Gao Peng tells his grandfather that he doesn't think that those rebels belong to any organization because their actions don't seem coordinated after all. And some challenged the twelve elders to duel, but others assaulted and killed the elders outright. Jai Huan said those rebels are just a bunch of thugs and the twelve elders are just a title. Jai Huan also said they even invited him to join them back then, and he asks why would he serve as someone else's lapdog when he can enjoy his life as a director instead. Suddenly Wang Yin knocks on the door and tells Gao Peng and Jai Huan that the situation outside is becoming worse. Wang Yi reported that the five regions declared independence yesterday, and the world allied government officially blacklisted and imposed sanctions on all five regions. Wang Yi said the army and trainers were dispatched to place those regions under martial law and currently, the number increased to seven, including the most populated Yinyang region. Moreover, one of the twelve elders of the Yinyang region, Bo Jinjuo, was found dead on the peak of Mount Puchuo, and Bo Jinjuo's familiar was sliced in half, and its blood spilled over half of the mountain. Wang Ya also said the trainer who murdered Bo Jinduo is called Hua Lun and is only 22 and is regarded as the most talented trainer in the Yinyang region. Hua Lun familiar is a king tier familiar known as the Dark Asura. Then Wang Ya said he'll forward to Gao Peng and Jai Huan a video witness took. Then they saw Hua Lun walking in the street while behind him is his king tier familiar. The monster looked back at the camera which made Gao Peng see the monster named Dark Asura. It was level 52 king tier in perfect grade and its attribute is dark. Its skills are Dark Power level 5, Enhanced Strength level 3, Enhanced Cogitation level 3, and Enhanced Regeneration level 3. Its special's characteristics is Dark Comet, a curious core crystal which was formed in the depths of its consciousness and endowed with extraordinary properties. Effect 1 Active Effect said by activating the Dark Comet, the Dark Asura is able to improve its physical constitution for a certain period of time. Also, its description said it is a servant of darkness, and the Dark Asura is a calm creature that craves the excitement of a fight. It hates creatures of the light and prefers looking at the stars in the night sky in solitude. Gao Peng thinks having special characteristics means that it has already attained an epic grade in the past, and a perfect grade King Tier monster is by no means weak. Gao Peng also thinks looking at Dark Asura stats, it must be a dark type close combatant, much like White Dragon. Huang Ya tells Jai Huan that Huan Lun person is really arrogant because he spouted a bunch of nonsense during their party yesterday saying that his familiar is the most perfect and powerful familiar in the world, even more than him and Gao Peng. Jai Huan angrily said Huan Lun is an ignorant person, once under the influence of alcohol, and he said some people think they are better than everyone. Huang Ya said how magnanimous Jai Huan and Gao Peng to be the bigger person there. Gao Peng responded that it was just a title and it was fine as long as Hu and Lu doesn't bother them. As for bragging, anyone can brag, so he tells Huang Yu just to continue to keep an eye on the situation outside. To which Huang Yu agreed immediately. Then Gao Peng asks Huang Yu if he really says he found a clue regarding the concentration stone. Huang Yu responded yes because it has been confirmed and he said someone saw the stone turn into a flying beast at night and then turned back into a stone during the day at the foot of the goddess peak. Then Gao Peng said to his grandfather that the next day is the first day of the Lunar New Year, and it was a good day to head to goddess peak. Gao Peng also said Da Zai can also evolve quicker which Da Zai heard. Da Zai looked back at his friend and asked if they hear Gao Peng words. Then he said Gao Peng said he should be able to evolve and he's going to be stronger than all of them which made Goldie, Desolian, and White Steel speechless. The next day, the little girl who's in the boat points to someone fishing while telling her sister that the person looks silly because he's fishing in a place like that. 
The lady tells the little girl not to be noisy and be careful with her words when she's outside or she'll get in trouble. The little girl sarcastically responded yeah right to her sister. Suddenly the little girl was confused to see the water form a circle and boiled. Then the white king crocodile come out which made them shocked and confused why the king crocodile was there because they already gave it the year's offering. Then the white king crocodile swims toward the man while the little girl tells her sister that the white crocodile king's target isn't them and it's headed toward the fisherman. The little girl shouted to the fisherman to watch out because the white crocodile king is very dangerous, he'll die. Which made Gao Peng look at the little girl confused. Suddenly, Stripey come out underwater which made the white king crocodile shocked. And wonder what Stripey is because he sensed an intruder in his territory so he wanted to come and check. Stripey looks at the white king crocodile who's trying to escape while the white king crocodile thinks that he should just go. Which made Gao Peng wonder why it's running away. Then he orders Stripey to take it down. Then Stripey attacked the king using his legs which made the people in the boat shout to steady the boat because of the strong wave. A second later, the white king crocodile was floating in the water dead, which made the little girl ask her sister if the white crocodile king is dead. Her sister responded yes in a daze while they both soaked in water. A few hours later, Gao Peng said they have already passed Ninglong Peak, Shenquan Peak, and Kaoyan Peak, and he said the goddess peak should be up ahead. Then Gao Peng heard something and asked what was with the sound of flipping pages. Then Gao Peng said to their right is Feifeng Peak, where you the Great had mitigated the Great Flood with the help of a mystic book from Yao Fei, and he wonder if it was possible a book will fly out from the mountain. Suddenly a book fly out off the waterfall which made Gao Peng shocked and confused if the book really fly out from the mountain. Then Gao Peng noticed that the books are flying towards Goddess Peak and he thinks there's something strange going on over there. Then he tells Stripey that he's too much of a target right now, so he should eat a guy's fruit later because they'll climb the mountain together. A few moments later, Gao Peng and his familiars climb the mountain. Then Gao Peng saw something flying in the sky and he wonders if it's a dragon. But then he saw that it was the material name Concentration Stone. Its description said it not only can imprint on itself the shadows of other monsters, but it can also absorb a monster's yin-yang essence and it can summon shadows in places that are rich in elemental energy. Gao Peng shouted that it wasn't a waste of energy to climb the mountain because the Concentration Stone is coming their way. Then they followed the Concentration Stone and arrived at the top of the valley while Gao Peng was saying who knew that they'd discover an undocumented valley there by following a book, and that place looks completely different from the outside world. Then Gao Peng saw a woman dancing which made him wonder why is there a woman inside the valley and if she was the goddess from the legends. Suddenly he notices something and it was a stone, then he realizes that it was always a stone, and the woman goddess was an illusion. The stone monster's name is Wu Gorge's goddess stone. It was level 51 king tier in excellent grade and its attributes are rock and mystic. Its skills are weather prayer level 4 and hardened body level 4. Its description said it's a stone on top of the goddess peak in Wu Gorge that was brought to life by people's faith, and it has the power to control the weather. Gao Peng tells Stripey that they should explore the surrounding area, but when he looks at Stripey he was shocked to see the monster named Holy Spring Spirit. It was level 50 Lord tier in epic grade and its attribute is water. Its skills are accelerated self-recovery level 3 and divine spring whirlpool level 4. Its special characteristic is holy spring reflection. The holy spring is capable of conjuring anything that is reflected on its surface. Effect 1, passive effect said the holy spring can capture other monsters reflections on its surface and can keep a record of at most 3 reflections on it but reflection can be deleted. Effect 2, active effect said the Holy Spring Spirit can bring the reflection of its target into being, and said reflection will have 90% of the target's combat power as well as its abilities. However, the reflection will not be able to replicate the special characteristic of the monster above the legendary grave, and it can conjure up to at most three reflections at the same time, and maintaining a reflection expends its own Holy Spring Spirit power. Its description said the Holy Spring Spirit is as real as the moon in the well, and reality and illusion are simply two sides of the same coin. It is a rare monster that can replicate other monsters and use them as its weapon. The Holy Spring Spirit tells Gao Peng to die which made Gao Peng ask it if it's looking for a fight. Suddenly a big stone falls behind him which made him realize that he is surrounded and it looks like a fight is inevitable. When he looked back he saw the monster named Dragon Decapitation Chapter Water. It was level 50 Lord Tier in Legendary Grade, and its attribute is Water. Its skills are Water Mastery Level 4 and Accelerated Regeneration Level 3. Its special characteristics are 1. Dragon's Layer Mark, a mysterious birthmark that holds incredible power. Effect 1. Active effect said greatly reduces the power of all dragon-type monsters for a certain duration of time and if a dragon-type monster's level is lower than the dragon decapitation chapters, the dragon-type monster's elemental power will be completely sealed. 
2. Mystical Water Barrier, a new page that was added to the Dragon Decapitation Chapter. Effect 1, Passive Effect said any water-type monster within its range will be weakened to an extent and controlled by the Dragon Decapitation Chapter, and low-level water-type monsters will be more severely affected. Also, its description said it's one of the chapters that was ripped out from a mystical book. Then Gao Peng saw many stripey which made Gao Peng wonder if those are projections. Then he saw the three projections monsters name is Mini Disaster Mountain Spider Projections. They were all level 50 Lord tier and excellent grade. Which made Gao Peng think those three projections are all below level 50 and they all are based on stripey's disguised form. Gao Peng thinks the situation is easy and asks the monsters why they blocking his way. Then he tells the monsters that if they won't move out of the way, he won't hold back anymore. Suddenly the dragon decapitation chapter trapped Gao Peng using his mystical water barrier which made Gao Peng feel that the surface of his body is wrapped in a layer of plastic. And he thinks it should be the dragon slaying chapter's mystical water barrier skill. But he thinks that skill is useless on him and Stripey. Suddenly Stripey projector was going to attack him, which made Gao Peng said they asked for it, and order Stripey to take it down. But don't kill it. Stripey launched an attack on his projector which made it shocked. Then Stripey attacked it using his claw which made it break into pieces. Then the Holy Spirit monster comes back to its original form and transforms into its slumber. Gao Peng grabs the Holy Spirit and looks at it while saying it was the Holy Lake Spirit in its slumber state after its source had been exhausted. Then the system said the Holy Spirit can be fused which made Gao Peng think that is the first time he has seen that. Then he looks back at the Goddess Stone who was trying to escape. Then it fly to escape leaving a bright light which made Gao Peng cover his eyes, and between his finger, he saw the goddess flying to escape. But Stripey uses his disaster cloud skill which made the goddess stone burn and fall to the ground. Gao Peng gives the holy spirit its silly, while looking at the goddess stone in the ground thinking the goddess stone has burned to ash black and is giving off a burnt stench and green smoke. The system showed that the goddess stone monster is can be fused which made Gao Peng confused. Then he notices behind him the dragon decapitation chapter escaping underground. But he said coincidentally, Stripey is also an earth type. Then Stripey stabbed his claw underground which made the ground show the dragon decapitation chapter and trap it. Gao Peng who's looking at the dragon decapitation chapter said that there won't be anyone stopping him from finding the concentration stone. A few moments later, they found two concentration stones which made Gao Peng happy. Then he looked at the goddess stone, holy spirit, and dragon decapitation chapter who were trapped in the ground while saying he get two concentration stones and a bonus of another three excellent monsters. Gao Peng also happily said the Wu Gorge is a great place. Then he tells his familiars that they should go home. A few hours later, on the highway along Wu Gorge River, Stripey was on the side of the river walking past the cars on the bridge. On the other hand, Gao Peng said now that they have the concentration stone, they can follow any formulas. While the small concentration stone behind him was shaking, then it cracks. Suddenly two girls were flying around Gao Peng which made Gao Peng shocked and confused. Then the two girls kneeled down and offered Gao Peng to eat an orange. It's the monster named Orange Tree Monster. It's level 21 commander tier in excellent grade and its attributes are wood and life. Also, its description said they were originally ordinary orange trees, but after absorbing monster blood and soul as nutrients for a long period of time, and eventually the concentration stone, the trees morphed into orange tree monsters. Gao Peng look at the orange tree monsters and wonder if those are the half-dead orange trees that were planted on Stripey's body and he thinks he could call that fate. Then he realizes that the orange tree was from the concentration stone. Then he looks back and saw the small concentration stone was destroyed which made him think he was right. But luckily it was the smaller one and the bigger stone should be enough for Da Zai's evolution. Then Gao Peng tells the orange tree monsters that when they're outside they will introduce themselves as orange delivering children. Then he named them Manju and Beijai, to which the orange tree monsters agreed. Suddenly someone waves to call him and asks if he's Gao Peng which made Gao Peng shocked and saw that it was Chen Heng Kiao. Chen tells his uncle that it was his high school friend Gao Peng and he'll have to chat with him. His uncle responded alright but said he should make it quick. Gao Peng tells Chen is not bad because he already has his own monster hunter party. Chen laughed and responded that most of their classmates who had put in a bit of effort in their studies are able to make a living by themselves now. But he tells Gao Peng that on the other hand, is now the best monster trainer in the world, and he's the most successful out of all of their classmates. Chen also said he even brags about them being classmates to others. Suddenly Nanju offered Chen an orange which made Chen confused. Gao Peng tells Chen to eat the orange while it's hot, which made Chen laugh and said it's been so long since they met, yet Gao Peng is still the same. Gao Peng asks Chen if they going on a mission. 
permission. Chen who's currently peeling his orange responded that they just received a request to clear up the monsters on the Golden Buddhist Mountain because someone spotted a group of mutated monsters there and wants them to exterminate them. Chen ate the orange and said the Explorers Union had also issued a mission regarding it and it was rumored to be a type of rare mutant monster that's highly aggressive toward humans. Then Chen waved at Gao Peng while saying he'll be off now and they should talk again another time. Gao Peng tells Chen to remember to come and visit Yuzhu, and he'll treat him to a meal. Gao Peng asks if the Explorers Union is not the union formed by his grandfather and the coalition government, and he wonders if Chen will be okay. After a few days, inside the laboratory, beside the lake by the villa, Nanju and Bei Zhai giving oranges at King Jai. A few minutes later, King Jai was in the center holding a lot of oranges while Nanju and Bei Zhai circled around her fighting whose orange should she eat. King Jai had enough and called Gao Peng angrily, but Gao Peng tells King Jai that the oranges were quite delicious and she should eat more. Then Gao Peng asked Da Zai if he was ready, and Da Zai excitedly responded is ready. Gao Peng tells Da Zai that once he makes up his mind, there's no turning back. But Da Zai responded confidently that he won't regret it. Gao Peng tells Da Zai that he might not be a pure centipede anymore, but Da Zai angrily asks Gao Peng why he's so naggy and he said he can't wait any longer. Da Zai also tells Gao Peng to hurry up and just inject the injection into him. Gao Peng responded alright and tells Da Zai to come to him while holding a big injection. Da Zai can't wait any longer and grab the injection to Gao Peng and drinks it while saying injecting is too slow, so he'll just drink it all. After drinking Da Zai released a strong thunder which made Gao Peng think the effects are too strong, and he can't stay inside the laboratory. Then he run, while telling King Jai not just to stand there and run, which made King Jai confused and run. When they are outside the laboratory, King Jai asks Gao Peng what's going on. Suddenly the laboratory explodes behind her, which made King Jai shocked and stuttering said that the laboratory explodes. But Gao Peng tells King Jai that it's fine because he wanted to move to a new laboratory anyway. Gao Peng thinks judging by how big the reaction was, the evolution should definitely be a success and transform Da Zai. Then a rock flies towards Stripey which made Stripey angrily trap Da Zai inside the stone and tells it not to simply throw things. Da Zai uses his thunder skill and makes the stone explode releasing a strong purple light which made Stripey confused and asks if Da Zai becomes a light bulb. On the other hand, White and his wife look at the purple light while saying they sense the presence of a dragon, then they saw Da Zai in successful evolution. Da Zai's new monster's name is Dark Golden Centipede Dragon. It was level 48 in legendary grade and its attribute is electric. Its skills are Royal Thunder level 4 and Bone Hardens level 4. Da Zai weaknesses objects or monsters that can counter dragon type monsters, and its special characteristics are 1. Dark Dragon Wings Effect 1, Passive Effect Set increases the speed of flight and each wing can store additional lighting power, increasing the upper limit of the lightning permanently. Every Dark Dragon Wing can permanently increase the Dark Golden Centipede Dragon's lightning power's upper limit by 10%. Effect 2, Passive Effect Set The Dark Dragon Wings can grow and increase in number and it could be regarded as an organ of the Dark Golden Centipede Dragon. The Dark Dragon Wings are always grown as a pair, and its current number of Dark Dragon Wings is 6. 2. Eye of the Heart A tiny eye that grows in the depths of the Dark Golden Centipede Dragon's heart and it has the power to pry into others' hearts. Effect 1 said it's able to pry into the emotional fluctuations of other monsters. Effect 2 said it's able to turn emotion into explosives that can be detonated later, causing substantial damage to the enemy. Also, Da Zai pathways for promotion to mythical grade are 1. Dark Knight Sky Destructive Centipede Dragon, a destruction evolution, and 2. World Cleansing Thunder Dragon, a dragon type evolution. Gao Peng convinced himself that the eye of the heart should be a noun and not an adjective, and maybe the eye is just really small that should be it. P.S. The eye of the heart can also be used to describe a petty person in Chinese words, but by erasing the word small it will no longer mean petty, so Gao Peng convinces himself that it's just a coincidence. Da Zai asks Gao Peng why he only left with two pairs of claws and he said he feels weird. Gao Peng responded that he's no longer a pure centipede now and small changes like that are quite normal. Then Gao Peng said now that Da Zai's evolution is settled. He'll have to take care of those three monsters that are in the dungeon, and he knows that fusing a monster definitely requires materials. Gao Peng also said the three monsters seem to have a good relationship with each other and maybe those three monsters are meant to be fused together. Suddenly his phone rang and he saw that it was Chen Heng Kiao. When he answered it, Chen was injured and asked him for help and said he's at the Golden Buddhist Mountain's sunrise draw, which made Gao Peng think he knew something would go wrong. A few hours later, in Golden Buddhist Mountain sunrise draw, Da Zai were flying in the sky which made the monster on the ground shock. Then Gao Peng saw three survivors inside the high cage while surrounded by the monsters below. It was the monster named Decomposing Corpse Deer Pack. The Corpse Deer levels is 11 to 20 elite tier in normal to excellent grade, and its attributes are ghoul and metal. 
The corpse deer weakness is holy and light, and its description said those creatures are the result of modern society's imprudent handling of heavy metal waste, and they despise humans. It also lost all sense of pain and isn't contagious. Gaopeng said those corpse deer look scary, but there's not a single commander tier, and Chen Monster Hunting Party has seven commander tier familiars, so he thinks they should not have been backed into a corner. Then Gao Peng tells Da Zai to bring them closer. Suddenly a big hand appeared on their side and tried to grab them which made Gao Peng shocked. It grabs Da Zai body, but Da Zai uses his royal thunder while saying how dare it ambushes the great merciful liberator. Then Gao Peng looked down and saw a masked men and wonder if the masked men could be the group of people who attacked the elders. Gao Peng also sees many monsters. One of the monsters is named Infernal Incinerator. It was level 49 Lord tier in perfect grade and its attribute is fire. Its description said it's a vengeful soul born from an inferno and it's filled with vengeance and hatred. Being in constant pain, it's an extremely bad temper, but it likes novels and films about knights and princesses and hates tragic endings. Then the monster named Three Eye Crow General in Variant flies toward them. It was level 47 Lord Tier in excellent grade and its attribute is a curse. Its description said it's a peculiar three-eyed crow general born from a mass grave and after absorbing the inauspicious air of its birthplace, it gained the ability to disable its enemies by casting curses on them and it likes scavenging corpses. Below them, Gao Peng also sees the monster named Giant Radioactive Scorpion. It was level 46 Lord Tier in excellent grade and its attribute is electric. Its description said it's a scorpion that mutated by the aftereffects of the nuclear exploding in the Dali Desert, and it's like consuming highly radioactive substances. Then the other monster named Phytophagus Symbiotic Moss. It's level 48 Lord Tier in normal grade and its description said it's a plant-type monster that sustains itself by consuming other plants and it can absorb all types of nutrients and elements in order to achieve growth. It also can support others by splitting into smaller versions of itself and latching them onto the bodies of its teammates. Then the three-eyed crow used his curse on Gao Peng and his familiars, which made Gao Peng head hurt for a second. Then Gao Peng looked at his hand while saying if the damage hadn't been transferred to Stripey, he would have been quite uncomfortable. Desolian said his power was weakened by 1%, Steel White said it was 5% for him, and Dazai said 3% for him, which made Gao Peng clap and said it was very impressive. While they talking, one masked man looked at Dazai who was moving in the sky happily, and said now is their chance because Dazai has been driven mad by the curse. Then he orders their familiars to focus all their attacks on Dazai. The three eye crow and the other masked men's familiars attack Dazai, but before Dazai get hit, Dazai use his lightning world purgatory which block the enemy's attacks. One of the masked men was shocked to see that Dazai blocked it and said that it was a combined attack by three lord tier familiars, and still all three are considered to be extremely powerful compared to other lord tier monsters, and he said their familiars rarely met with an equal match. Then Dazai angrily looks at the masked men who are wondering what exactly Dazai was. One of the masked men members named Terra tried to fight back, but his comrades stop him while telling him that Masakado's familiars don't even pack that much firepower, which made Gao Peng ask the masked men if they were from Nihon and if there were more of them. Then Gao Peng said if not, then they can all die, which made the one masked angry and said Gao Peng is an arrogant brat. Then he orders his infernal incinerator to kill Gao Peng, on the other hand, Gao Peng orders White Steel to wipe the masked men out, to which White Steel agreed, and jumps toward the masked men. Then White Steel attacked the masked men. One of the masked men said their situation isn't good and Gao Peng has an assassin-style familiar, so they should retreat. Gao Peng said their playtime was over, then he tells the Solian that they should get off because they don't want to get in Da Zai's way. Then they jump off while Gao Peng tells Da Zai to give the enemy's familiars a quick death. Also, De Solian tells Da Zai good luck. Then Da Zai stabbed the three eye crow using his claw. Suddenly the infernal incinerator appeared on Da Zai's side which made Da Zai shocked. But Da Zai used his tail to attack it before the infernal incinerator hit him while the three eye crow fell. Because of Da Zai attack the infernal incinerator fell, but the giant scorpion used its electric skill to fly toward the infernal incinerator. The infernal incinerator grabs the giant scorpion's claws and jumps to its head while they launch toward Da Zai who's confused if that's possible. Then Da Zai stabbed the giant scorpion, but the infernal incinerator jumped and avoided Da Zai attack. Then it flies back at Da Zai while pointing its sharp claws which made Da Zai shocked and got hit by it. Dazai angrily tells the Infernal Incinerator that he'll tear his whole body apart. Then Dazai uses his Eye of the Heart skill, which made the Infernal Incinerator's body burn, then it's explode into pieces. Gao Peng who's looking at Dazai said it's not bad and his petty centipede can crush enemies that are on the same level as it. 
Then White Steel pointed at the monster and tells Gao Peng that it was killed in one hit. Gao Peng responded all right and order White Steel to catch the other two that escaped. Then Gao Peng tells Chen not to worry because the rescue team will be there soon. Chen apologizes to Gao Peng and tried to explain. But Gao Peng tells Chen that it's alright because the masked man's real target is him, and he's the one who should be apologizing for involving all of them in his conflict with those people. Then Chen's father put his hand on Chen's shoulder while telling him that it was only a minor setback at that time, and he still has a lot of time to improve himself. Chen's father also said it's only been five years since the cataclysm, and they still have plenty of time to build themselves back up which made Chen speechless and touched by his dad's words. Then Chen's father thanked Gao Peng for saving them and said Gao Peng aren't to blame for the situation, and those people and whoever was behind them were the ones who ambushed and killed their familiars, so he said they can only blame themselves for being weak. Chen's father also said the survival of the fittest is the only rule that matters in their world and weakness has no place in it, but still, he won't let their current matter slide. Which made Gao Peng think Chen's father is an individual who is full of tenacity, but most importantly, he's unyielding, and he's quite admirable. Suddenly something come out from the ground which made Chen's father confused. Then he patted it while saying it didn't leave and said back then, he trapped it in order to sign a blood contract with it. After all those years, it has given me nothing but the cold shoulder, so he thought it hated him. Then Gao Peng asks Chen's father what are his plans for the future and if he would like to join the Southern Sky group. Chen's father responded that they have lost everything and their entire monster hunting party is finished. He also said earlier, when he noticed that something was wrong, he cancelled his blood contract with the monster he currently patted because he didn't want it to die in vain. But Gao Peng said what's truly hard to find is an individual with a good character. Gao Peng tells Chen's father that seeing how his familiar decided to re-establish its blood contract with him, he must have a good heart. Which made Chen's father look at the monster and said since Gao Peng says so, then he begged Gao Peng to let them work for the Southern Sky Group. Gao Peng tells Chen's father that is too kind, Chen's father asks Gao Peng what their next move is. Gao Peng responded that their next move is to get him and Chen back to the company, and get their revenge. After a few hours, in some lake, Gao Peng calls Baldi while saying there's work for him to do. Then Baldi comes out underwater telling Gao Peng is coming while the fish calls Baldi daddy. Which made Gao Peng stun and tells Baldi that he asked him to try seizing the Yangtze River, but instead, he reenacts a scene from a journey to the west. Then Gao Peng said never mind that, and asks Baldi if he was able to read people's memories. Then Gao Peng pointed the two masked men to the ground while telling Baldi to extract their memories from those two men because he want to know who was behind the attack. But Baldi said he can do it, but it's a barbaric procedure, and most creatures are left brain dead as a result. Gao Peng tells Baldi not to worry about that and just get him the information. The more detailed the better, to which Baldi agree and reads the two masked men's memories. Baldi tells Gao Peng that he has found it and that the masked men are originally spies sent from the Yingli region to infiltrate the Nihon region. Then the masked men were dispatched by the Nihon region to assassinate him. Baldi also said the masked men's last orders were to disguise themselves as representatives of a nameless organization. Gao Peng said it's such a convoluted background and he asks Baldi if that means the masked men were from the Yingli region, or did the Nihon region catch on to their treachery and wanted to get rid of them. Then Gao Peng asks Baldi if he has any concrete information for him, but Baldi responded no. Gao Peng said the situation is so confusing, and all sorts of weirdos are popping out of nowhere. Gao Peng asks if the weirdos think he has a good temper and will simply take them in. Then Flamey asks Gao Peng what they're to hesitate about and said both of those masked men are bad guys, so they'll just get rid of them one by one. Gao Peng tells Flamey that he's right and said just knowing that those people came from the Nihon region is enough. Then Gao Peng said what he really needs is an excuse, not the truth. Meanwhile, in the Black Fog world, at the land of a thousand streams, Dummy called his broken jade devil spirit, six-tailed heavenly fox skeleton, and stone mountain elephant skeleton to come forward. Forward, to which the three monsters skeletons followed. Then Dummy absorbed the weaker ghouls while saying since his going back to Earth, there was no point in leaving the weaker ghouls there. After absorbing, Dummy power increases, then Dummy tells to himself that he will return to Gao Peng's side soon and he asks him to wait for him a little longer. A few days passed. Goldie and White Steel whose training stopped because they sent something. Goldie said a familiar presence appeared all of a sudden, which made White Steel ask Goldie if he sense it too. Then something comes out from a black fog. Dummy who's currently level 59 kneeled in front of Gao Peng while saying he was home which made Gao Peng happily said Dummy's home. 
Dummy said he has been consistently getting stronger and is always ready to fulfill Gao Peng's commands. Gao Peng happily patted Dummy while telling Dummy that his back was just in time and they should go overseas. Gao Peng also tells Dummy that they should take a walk in the Nihon region because he heard a rumor that a night parade of 100 demons appeared after the cataclysm in the Nihon region. And according to myths, there should be 8 million gods, so they should check out what those gods look like. Dummy responded at his command. Then they start walking while Goldie tells Dummy that he's back just in time, and asks Dummy to train with him because training with White Steel is so boring, which made White Steel angry and called Goldie a crazy duck and said Goldie is the one who begged him to spar with it. Also, Daze asks Dummy to look at how handsome he has become, while in the pond the crocodile is looking at Dummy shocked and confused about what is Dummy because it looks scary. A few days later, in the Nihon region, the two men were picking up something on the ground, then Gao Peng asked the men if they harvesting monsters. One of the men kneeled shakingly and showed what they picking up, then said those are white meat conches and when it's sunny, they'll crawl out from the sea toward the cliff to sunbathe, and when it's almost raining, they'll crawl back to the sea while revealing the white meaty part of their bodies. The man also said that is when they take the opportunity to scrape off their white meat for sashimi. Gao Peng thinks of a monster that doesn't attack, he has seen quite a few before, and some are indeed gentle, so it's okay to make close contact with them, but he has never heard of any monsters that would remain gentle even after being scraped with a knife. The monster who's in the man's hand is named Salt White Conch Monster. It was level 17 in normal grade and its attribute is metal. Its description said it's a type of monster that lives on seashores and its bodies are able to absorb the salt from the sea and discharge it by sunbathing to achieve a perfect cycle that can keep its bodies the perfect texture. Also, its blood and flesh contain a small number of toxins that could increase the consumer's dopamine, and continuously eating it would cause addiction to its meat. And ultimately, the toxin would accumulate and cause paralysis, making the consumer the monster's puppet and the puppet will then be consumed by the monster. Gao Peng said there really is no such thing as free lunch and things that look harmless on the outside are often traps hidden in disguise. Then Gao Peng tells the man that something is wrong with the meat and orders the man to try to eat less. The man lifts his bag with a white conch monster inside and tells Gao Peng that those are their yield for today. Gao Peng thinks the fishermen there are severely enslaved and all he wanted to do was give them a kind reminder, but they want to turn their harvest instead. Then Gao Peng tells the man to keep his catches because he doesn't want them and he orders the man to just tell him where he was. The man shakingly said he was on Xiaosang Island. Gao Peng patted Flamey while saying they're still quite some distance away from the capital, and last time Terra no Masakado from the capital voted him out when he wanted to be a referee. Gao Peng also said he'll hold on to that grudge and tell Terra about that time's incident first, then he tells Flamey that they should go. A few days later, in the capital of the Nihon region, Terra no Masakado was sitting at his house concentrating while drinking some tea, then his beast tell him that a strong one is approaching from the west, which made Terra angry and open his eyes. Then he looks outside the window and sees a group of undead coming their way. Terra orders his familiar named Haisha to stop the group of undead, to which Haisha agreed. Then Haisha was transported outside and saw the people of the Nihon region running. Then it flies toward the group of undead and attacks it. On the other hand, Terra who's looking at his familiars fighting with the group of undead said the undead were a bunch of clowns. Suddenly the ground moved which made Terra shocked and confused. Then the man on the monitor tells Terra that they have a problem. The man said they have discovered a new spatial rift at Shikoku, and the almighty cherry sky tree has been attacked by a mysterious monster trainer that came through the spatial rift, which made Terra shocked and asks who's a mysterious monster trainer, and have another group of people come. On the other hand, Haisha pulled off the undead monster's leg, which Gao Peng said Terra's is familiar quite strong to the point where Dummy's army of undead doesn't have the upper hand. But Desolian said it was just a small fry and they should watch him. Flamey threatened Desolian that if he don't impress him, he'll throw him overboard. Then Desolian uses his ice power to attack Haisha which made it cut into pieces. But after Haisha got hit by Desolian it gathered his body which made Desolian ask it if he still wants to gather. Then Desolian exhaled ice which slowly traped Haisha. When it was fully trapped inside the ice, it fell down which made Terra and his people who are on the rooftop of the building shocked. Then one of the men asked if Haisha lost because that was so quick. Suddenly they saw a big explosion which made Gao Peng shocked and confused. Desolian said a very strong familiar died just now and it was not far from them, which made Gao Peng ask if could it be the Nihon region's guardian, the cherry sky tree, and he also asks what was going on. Gao Peng said the cherry sky tree is a level 54 epic grade monster, and it has an above average regeneration speed and is also a defensive specialist, so he wonders who could have been powerful enough to kill it. But Gao Peng said never mind and they should just focus on the task at hand and they'll worry about it later, then they fly toward Terra. 
Dao Peng jumps off the rooftop building where Tara and his men are, while telling Tara that he apologizes for coming there unannounced in the Nihon language. Then Gao Peng looked at his cell phone while saying he was there because he encountered an assassination attempt not too long ago, and the assassins were sent from the Japanese region, so to avoid any misunderstanding between them, he has come to inquire about details regarding the matter. Then he said inside his cell phone is the video recording for their interrogation and asked Tara to have a look at it. The monster named Jai Lion who's beside Terra is angry, but Terra stops it. It was level 47 in epic grade and its skills are corrosive venom level 3, withering poisonous mist level 3, venom mastery level 3, and agility level 2. Its attribute is poison and its special characteristic is infectious venom. Its strong toxicity was increased drastically via mutation. Effect 1, passive effect said all poison type abilities level plus 1. Effect 2, active effect said releasing a poisonous mist into the air, inflicting a one-time destructive blow on its enemies, and the damage taken by its victims is proportional to the concentration of its poison in their bodies. Its description said it has the upper torso of a chicken and the lower torso of a snake spirit. It likes living inside volcanoes and its poisonous mist can spread for miles, causing all life around it to wither and die. During hibernation, it will unconsciously release the poison in its body into the air, and cause the volcano it is living in to erupt as a result. Terra tells Gao Peng that he'll give him a satisfactory answer in Huexia language which made Gao Peng say Terra speaks the Huexia language fluently. Terra angrily responded that he once studied abroad in Huexia, and although his familiar was badly injured, he's willing to believe that their situation is all just a misunderstanding. He also said he hoped their conversation after will be carried out without any misunderstanding. Then Terra showed his digital gadget while asking Gao Peng to look at that, then he clicks it showing the destruction destroyed bridge, and a killed monk, under the cut tree. Gao Peng asks what is it? Terra responded that it was footage they received from the drone and the almighty cherry sky tree had been attacked. He also said the earthquake was caused by that. Suddenly the footage saw three people and familiars, then one of the familiars used its skill to attack the camera which made the camera destroyed. Terra said that was the last footage they received before the drone was destroyed and they have run the man's face through the universal facial database in their system, but no match was found. Terra also said the system they're using is the most advanced and it's not possible for it to make a mistake that's why there is only one possibility. Gao Peng wonders if the people in the footage could be the people Bei Qin Yan told him. Then Gao Peng remembers that previously when they met Bei Qin Yan, he had guessed that a civilization of trainers and familiars had once existed on Earth and it was just that the entire tribe had decided to leave Earth for some reason. Gao Peng also remembers that Bei King Yan told him that once the planet became more conducive for habitation, the people of the lost tribe would return and Gao Peng thinks the tribe returned with ill intentions. Terra tells Gao Peng that their current forces are unable to stop those people and he hopes for the sake of both their regions, Gao Peng would lend them his assistance. But Gao Peng said he has two requests. Then he tells Terra that his first request is he won't be meeting those people in person and he'll be interacting with them via real-time broadcast. And second if the enemy is too strong, he'll immediately leave the Nihon region. Gao Peng thinks there is a change of circumstance and pressuring Terra right now won't get him anywhere, but he still has to protect his rights if he were to cooperate with Terra. Terra responded angrily that it won't be a problem. Then Gao Peng tells Terra that there is no time to lose, so Terra should send someone over as soon as possible because those people have come with ill intentions, so he shouldn't send someone too weak. Terra responded indeed and said an elephant wouldn't be willing to have a serious conversation with an ant, so he'll go there himself. The next day, somewhere, the man who's looking at the place below him asks his comrade named Tong Xiang if the place below him is the ancestral land their ancestors spoke of. Xiang responded it seemed like it, and called the man named Tong Mo to say that the ancestral land certainly seemed rich, and they met a king tier monster once they come out. Xiang also said it was quite powerful, so its grade should have been at least a 4 star. Mo laughs while looking at the girl while saying his one-eyed giant demon cut it down and his familiar is a metal type, so it counters wood types. But the girl just ignore him. Then the other man said someone is coming. Mo said they must be natives of the land they are currently in, and his father sent them there to measure their strength, but he said honestly, those people are just descendants of those who they abandoned there. Then he asked mockingly how strong could those people possibly be. Zhang responded that those people weren't abandoned, but before Zhang can finish his words, Mo ordered the man named Tong Ying to test their strength with his black lightning eagle, to which Ying agreed. On the other hand, Terra who's in the sky riding Jai Liao, said to his microphone that he have arrived at the scheduled location and he see those people. Then he asks how's the signal is. Meanwhile, in the Nihon city base, Gao Peng who's watching from the monitor tells Terra that the signal is clear. Terra tells Gao Peng that he'll go nearer and try to communicate with those people, then he thanked Gao Peng for helping them. 
Suddenly a black eagle appeared behind Terra, which made Terra thinks it seems like those people want to communicate too. Then the black eagle stopped above Terra and ready itself to attack which made Terra shocked and ask why. Unfortunately, the black eagle attacked Terra and Jai Liang using its lightning bolt. On the other hand, Gao Peng said the signal is lost, which made the man behind him worried about his master. Gao Peng said Terra lost his life just like that and he's even one of the 12 elders. Gao Peng also said judging by the impact and speed of that lightning bolt, the enemy's familiar is at least a king tier. Then the man said they have tracked the people down and those people are heading to the Higashida base city. In the footage, Gao Peng saw the monster named One-Eye Giant Demon. It was level 58 in epic grade. The monster's name Black Lightning Eagle. It was level 57 in perfect grade. The monster's name Golden Light Holy Spirit Beast. It was level 58 in epic grade, and the monster's named Six Tusk Brahmin Elephant. It was level 59 in epic grade, which made Gao Peng realize four familiars, three epic grades, and one perfect grade. All of the monster levels are at the peak of King Tier. Fortunately, there are no legendary grades. Otherwise, all he can do is run away. Gao Peng thinks logically speaking, the tribe would send their strongest warriors to scout an uncharted area which means legendary grade familiars are a rarity for those people. Then Gao Peng smile while thinking in a situation where both familiars are at the same level, what they should see next is their grades. Meanwhile, the tribe was looking down at the city. Zhang said it was a big city. Then the lady said the city population is even larger than their entire Sang Tong tribe. And in such a huge city, there are bound to be many powerful trainers, so they should turn back just in case. Zhang agreed with the lady named Tong Ling and he tells Mo that they have already scouted the area and fulfilled their mission, so they should head back before it gets dangerous. But Mo angrily asks Zhang if he's scared, and he said he won't go back, and if they have someone strong, he wants to challenge them. Then Mo patted his one-eyed giant demon familiar while telling it that they should let them know and lure the strong ones out of the city. Mo thinks that their situation is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so he'll prove to Tong Ling that he's the strongest trainer in the Sang Tong tribe. And as his father said, the strongest on earth has to offer is the peak of the king tier, and he confidently thinks his one-eyed giant demon definitely won't lose. Ten minutes later, Xiang said it was strange and asked why hasn't anyone come out yet. Then he said there are civilians inside the city, so he wondered if those monster trainers aren't going to take the fight outside. Mo responded maybe the city doesn't have any strong trainers left. Suddenly, Lying sees something in the sky and shouted that their enemy is coming. On the other hand, the helicopter was in the sky. Gao Peng asked the pilot how long until they reach Higashida, the pilot responded it was right in their front. Suddenly the pilot saw the black lightning eagle flying toward them which made the pilot shouted that their enemy is attacking. Gao Peng look at Desolian, then Desolian uses his ice to shield the helicopter in time, which made the black lightning eagle attack useless. Gao Peng said it seems like the tribe placed all their focus on improving their familiar's strength instead of technology. On the other hand, Mo wonders what is a metal ice dual attribute familiar, because he has never heard of one before but he said it doesn't matter. Then he orders his one-eyed giant demon to hit Gao Peng with a strong one, to which the one-eyed demon did and release a fire out of its eye to attack the helicopter which made Desolian ice shield break. Then the helicopter fell. On the other hand, Gao Peng tells the pilot that the plane was going down and he shouldn't worry about him and eject himself, to which the pilot agreed. Then Gao Peng kicks the helicopter door and jumps out with Desolian, while Desolian makes a rain of ice that freezes Mo and his monster. When Mo familiar is completely frozen, Zhang orders his six-tusked Brahmin elephant to use his psychic attacks to wake Tong Mo up to which the elephant immediately did, and made a crack in the ice. Then Ying tells Zhang to rescue Mo, and he'll take care of Gao Peng while ordering his black lightning eagle to attack. Ying thinks it was his perfect chance to strike because, in mid-air, most brawny-type familiars can only bring out 70% or less of their total power, but he wonders why he has a bad feeling about that. The black lightning eagle flew toward him which made Gao Peng said the eagle must be the familiar that attacked Terra and its speed is indeed fast, but it was nothing dummy can't handle. Then suddenly Dummy appeared in front of Gao Peng which made the eagle and Ying shocked. Ying wonders why Gao Peng has two familiars and how is that even possible. Zhang thinks if Gao Peng is a holy individual and if the legends say that only someone with a unique physiology could sign as many contracts as they wanted. Zhang also asks how is possible for them to meet a holy individual that easily. On the other hand, Dummy activates his heart of the Yin Soul, then he uses his Yin Soul Dominator to attack the Black Lightning Eagle, then he slams the eagle on the ground which made Ying cough blood and collapsed on the ground. Zhang called Ying named worriedly, but Ying tells Zhang to run. Then Zhang grabs Ling toward his elephant while telling him that they should go, but Dummy landed on the elephant's head, which made Zhang shock and say Dummy is fast. 
Then he orders his elephant to drive Dummy back and go, but don't engage. Then the elephant uses its trunks to grab Dummy. But Dummy caught the elephant's trunks and burned the elephant using his skill. Then Dummy absorbs the soul of the elephant which made the elephant collapse on the ground while Xiang worriedly calls his elephant's name. Then Dummy attacks Xiang and Ling using his skill which made Xiang and Ling thrown in the ground. Gao Peng look at Xiang and Ling who are fainted, and orders Dummy to tie them up before they wake them because he wants to get to the bottom of their current situation. Then Dissolian asks Gao Peng what about the one-eyed demon and its master who's currently trapped in ice. Gao Peng responded since its master was the one who chose to attack first. He don't see what was left to negotiate. Gao Peng also said they already have enough hostages, so there was no point in leaving them alive. Then he orders Dissolian to shatter it, which made Dissolian confused for a while, but still snaps its finger while saying alright. Then the one-eye monster and Tong Mo who's inside the ice shattered into pieces. A few moments later, Zhang speaks something and continuously talk but in the other language. Which made Gao Peng ask Desolian what are they talking about and if he can translate. Desolian said they were saying that they come from the San Tong tribe and one of the people said that his father is the high priest. And another said that her father is the vice captain of the tribe's hunting squad. Desolian also said the people's elders would be willing to pay the price for their safety. Gao Peng said the people's status isn't low and asked what about the one who was frozen. Desolian responded that that man was the patriarch's son. Gao Peng thinks his current situation is tricky because who would have thought those people were people of such high social status, and those people's tribe is crazy. Gao Peng wondered why the tribe couldn't just send cannon fodders over instead of their direct descendants, and he thinks he only wanted to take it easy and train his familiars without worry until he becomes strong enough so that no one could pose a threat to him, and not get involved in some revenge arc. Then he orders Dummy to look at the people which made Zhang shakily say it has a strong killing intent, and they're doomed. Then Ying tells Gao Peng to just kill him and said that the men of the Sang Tong tribe aren't afraid to die who's translated by Desolium. Gao Peng said alright and said he'll fulfill his wishes. Then he orders Dummy. Then Dummy uses his yin yang to burn Ying's soul. Suddenly, Desolian throws small eyes at Gao Peng face while telling him that his emotions aren't stable at the moment which made Gao Peng confused. Dummy tells Gao Peng that he might have been affected by him because after he grew stronger, he gave him souls in the form of feedback and he strengthened his soul by killing the living. Dummy also said he has filtered most of the malicious aura out from the soul that he has transferred to him. But before Dummy can finish his words he stops which made Gao Peng confused. Desolian said it might be because Dummy has been improving too quickly and now Dummy's grade is too high, but this shouldn't affect him much and it should fade after a while. Then Gao Peng slaps his head continuously, then smile while telling Desolian to translate his words to the people, and he said he was joking with them just now, and they should talk business, as long as his elders can provide him with one of the following materials, he'll send them back. Then Gao Peng tells the people to remember the materials he wants, then he said he wants true dragon fruit, great destruction origin stone, light of zero degrees, body of the war god, and flame of the sky, which made Zhang shocked and confused. A few days later, they arrived at the Cherry Sky Tree destination. Gao Peng who's riding flamey in the sky asks if that is the Cherry Sky Tree destroyed below them. Then Gao Peng said since the Cherry Sky Tree isn't a combat type familiar, even if they manage to revive it, the additional combat strength that it gives them is negligible. But Gao Peng said perhaps its calm aura could calm the negative emotions within him. Then he ordered Flamey to bring them down. Gao Peng looked at the destroyed cherry sky tree while telling it that it has done its best, and every life form is giving its all to struggle and survive. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to try to resurrect the tree, to which Dummy immediately did. Dummy continuously tried to resurrect the tree which made Zhang shocked while thinking Gao Peng was already a holy individual, and now he can even turn dead familiars into the undead, so he wondered if there are any limitations placed on an overpowered ability like that, but he thinks even if there are, it's still very scary. Zhang also thinks he just hopes the elders wouldn't be too impulsive once they find out he was kidnapped. Then Dummy resurrected the Cherry Sky Tree monster, but its new monster name is Amorphic Hell Tree Invariant. It was level 54 in epic grade and its attribute are yin and ghoul. Its skills are slaughtering aura level 4, violent aura level 4, and dreadful aura level 4. Its special characteristic is amorphic hell, the tree is able to regenerate its broken branches and sprouts new buds from old branches. It possesses incredible vitality, but when it actually dies, it will die completely. Very few trees can be resurrected from the dead and it's an event with an incredibly low probability. Also, every resurrected tree monster will have a low chance of returning as the amorphic hell tree. Effect 1, passive effect is hell's void, it absorbs all negative emotions from the mortal world, and when enough negative emotions have been absorbed, they will condense and become a corresponding aura. Also, the amorphic hell tree's grade cannot be increased through other methods, and it can only increase its grade by possessing a certain amount of aura. 
Its description said since kindness cannot protect what it wants to protect, it will use darkness instead. Which made Gao Peng thinks all of the Cherry Sky Tree abilities disappeared and it's become an aura monster. But he wonder where is the calm aura that he wanted and why did it turn into a violent aura. Then Gao Peng just thinks at least its ability is useful to dummy who summons a large number of underlings, and its slaughtering aura and violent aura could buff its teammates. Gao Peng also thinks its dreadful aura could weaken enemies, and it has the potential to grow, so training it would be worth it. One month later, in the lake beside Jai Huan Villa, Gao Peng was looking at the black and red aura from afar while saying he had managed to gather all of the materials needed for Flamey's evolution from their trip to the west, and it was so worth it. Flamey's new monster's name is Sub Blood by Fang. It's level 49 in legendary slush legendary grade, and its attribute is fire. Its skills are flame mastery level 4, wooden heart flame level 3, and blazing feathers level 3. Its special characteristics are wings of fire omitted, and exorcism, an ancient divine bird known as Bai Feng. Emperor Huang was once cursed by the malicious spirit of tribal chief Chiyu, who afterward was driven off by a Bai Feng. Effect 1, passive effect is enhanced attack damage on soul type monsters. Effect 2, passive effect said by Fang has a natural deterrent effect on all soul type monsters and it strikes fear into their hearts. Effect 3, active effect said its screeching has the power to exercise or drive away souls, as well as lift any curse. At the same time, it will cause damage to the soul of the enemy. Its description said a monster that possesses the sub blood of Bai Fang is a monster that inherited the Bai Fang's bloodline in its body, and it also possesses some ability of the original Bai Fang. Also, it likes flames and is capable of repelling evil. Gao Peng said after one month, Flamey has finally promoted its grade, and it's not bad. On the other hand, White Steel new monster's name is Black Armored Blood Bladed Beast. It was level 50 in Epic Slush Epic grade and its attribute is Wind. Its skills are Hardened Steel Armor level 3, Sharp Edge Spikes level 4, Explosive Jump level 2, and Wind Mastery level 4. Its weakness is Ice and its special characteristics are Roaring Wind Armor, Omitted, and Death Bloodline Seal. An excellent assassin can exploit its enemy's weaknesses and deal a fatal blow, while a much more exceptional assassin can actively create opportunities. Effect 1, Active Effect said the Black Armored Blood Bladed Beast can create a line of blood on its enemy's body by staring at it, and the bloodline cannot be removed using conventional purifying skill, and it's also impossible for the naked eye to detect it. Also, the maximum number of bloodlines on a single target is 9. Effect 2, Passive Effect said when the Black Armored Blood Blade Beast's attack hits the bloodline, it can deal extra damage to the enemy and ignore the enemy's defense. Its description said the White Steel Bladed Beast's evolved form. It possesses incredible lethality and at the same time, increases its stealth. Also, the Black Armored Blood Bladed Beast has chosen a smaller and more agile body size. Gao Peng said White Steel has also successfully evolved and its assassin ability has improved and it has become stronger. But its name is now Black Armored Blood Bladed Beast, so calling it White Steel is inappropriate. Then Gao Peng decided to change White Steel's name to Flowing Light. Then Gao Peng saw Flowing Light goes to the tree which made Gao Peng wonder if Flowing Light is going to train again. And he happily said Flowing Light is so hardworking so, he'll have to praise it well later, so his other slackers familiars will reflect themselves. On the other hand, Goldie, Silly, and Desolian were chilling on the side. Then Goldie who's drinking three juice at the same time asks why he feels cold suddenly. Desolian tells Goldie that he should sunbathe more. Then Gao Peng sees that flowing light just measuring its height in the tree. Then he disappointedly said he'll just pretend he didn't see anything. While flowing light crying calling Gao Peng a liar because he promised to help him to grow taller. Da Zai laughs and asks flowing light if he becomes shorter. Then he tells flowing light to look on the bright side and said at least he has become stronger. Which made flowing light angrier. Then Gao Peng look at the mouse's new monster name is treasure sniffing rodent who's sleeping on the ground. It was level 41 in epic slush epic grade and its attribute is mystic. Its abilities are treasure sniffing level 3 and Nimble Pace level 2. Its special characteristic is Ultimate Treasure Detection. A ghost has a ghost's smell, a human has a human's smell, and a treasure has a treasure's smell. Effect 1, Active Effect said it greatly improves the perception of treasures in a brief period, allowing it to sift out the most precious treasure in the vicinity from the extremely faint smell of treasure in the air, and can find the most precious treasures in a certain range after activating the ability for a certain period of time. Also, it is able to selectively tune out certain treasures. Its description said a greedy rodent that likes to search for treasures and it's quick and nimble. Gao Peng said the mouse combat ability is still at rock bottom. 
but since it's only used to find treasure, teaching it how to survive should be enough. Gao Peng also said the latter is the peak of the monster's grade while the former is the monster's current grade, and that should be a new ability he has awakened after strengthening his soul using the feedback from his familiars. Then he walks away while saying his new ability is not bad at all and now that his familiar's evolution is settled, he should pay those three familiars they captured on the goddess peak a visit. Then he calls Dazai who's currently being chased by angry flowing light. Then Dazai laughed and said flowing light is getting anxious. Then they arrived at the back of the mountain, at the confinement room specially made by Stripey. Then Gao Peng opens the door happily while asking the three monsters how have they been. Suddenly a big fist attacked Gao Peng which made Gao Peng shock. Fortunately, Da Zai pushed Gao Peng to the side in time. On the other hand, Goldie and Silly heard the noise which made Goldie ask what happened to Gao Peng. The big fist hit the wall and the wall broke leaving Gao Peng stunned on the side. Then he saw the monster named Dragon Slaying Goddess. It was level 56 King Tier and Legendary Slush Legendary Grade and its attributes are Rock and Mystic. Its skills are Hardened Body level 5, Enhanced Regenerative Healing level 4, and Enhanced Strength level 4. Its special characteristic is Illusory Clones. Effect 1, Active Effect said once activated, it can summon two clones and the copies possess 80% of the main body's strength and will vanish after exceeding a certain time limit. Also, it has a Dragon Slayer mark omitted. The Dragon Slaying Goddess description said it is a fusion familiar that was created through special means, and it possesses immense physical strength, has a violent personality, and is capable of suppressing dragon-type monsters. Also, it decomposed into its pre-fusion form after being destroyed. But currently, the fusion form has been activated temporarily. Dao Peng thinks the Dragon Slaying Goddess's physique can slay even 10 dragons, and it's holding the Dragon Slaying Chapter Water in its left hand. So Gao Peng thinks the fusion core of the dragon slaying goddess is most likely the dragon slaying chapter. Then Da Zai stands forward while telling Gao Peng to step back because the monster stone isn't friendly at all. Gao Peng tells Da Zai to wait, but the dragon slaying goddess uses the dragon decapitation chapter and seals Da Zai which made Da Zai confused and asks what it is because his body feels heavy. Gao Peng thinks because of the Dragon Slayer mark, all Dragon-type monsters will be weakened and if their level is lower than it, their elemental powers will be completely sealed, and that is the equivalent of banning the use of powers. Then Flamey screeched to attack the Dragon Slaying Goddess while Goldie comes to Da Zai and tells Da Zai not to be afraid because he's there. Then Goldie kicks the Dragon Slayer Goddess's face, but Goldie attacks not even leaving a scratch to it. Then the Dragon Slayer launched to punch Goldie which made Goldie said it was fast, and Gao Peng thinks their situation isn't good because Goldie's grade is the same as the Dragon Slaying Goddess, but its level is far greater than Goldie's, and the difference between their levels is too big. Before the Dragon Slayer punched landed on Goldie, Dummy Fist collide with the Fist of Dragon Slayer. Then Dummy tells the Dragon Slayer that his opponent is him which made it shocked. Gao Peng ordered Goldie to back down because he's not its opponent, but Goldie was worried at Dummy. Gao Peng assured Goldie that it's okay because they still have Flamey. Then Flamey used his wooden heart flame to attack the Dragon Slayer, but it stands still unscathed. Gao Peng said the flames can only give the Dragon Slayer a slight burn and it was not powerful enough, which made Goldie confused. Then Goldie calls Flamey by Yuan and tells it to give him a mouthful of spit to stack his passive. Flamey got angry and tells Goldie his Bifang while attacking Goldie using his wooden heart flame which made Goldie shocked. Then Goldie runs back and forth because Flamey Flame is hot. Gao Peng who's looking at Goldie said it's a yellow roast duck. On the other hand, Dummy and the Dragon Slayer were punching each other. Fortunately, Dummy hit the Dragon Slayer face hard, which made it crack. Then the Dragon Slayer uses his power to multiply and surround Dummy who's wondering if it's strength in numbers. Suddenly Stripey walks toward the Dragon Slayer who's in shock and Dummy who's escaping. Then Stripey sits on the Dragon Slayer which made the Dragon Slayer submerged underground while Stripey asks if it's over. Desolian said Stripey is a weird and crazy familiar, while behind him Dummy appears. Gao Peng said things won't go wrong with Stripey there and they should use the chance to test out the Amorphic Hell Tree's ability. The trees use its aura power to power up Dummy and Goldie. Also Goldie tells Gao Peng that he has nothing to fear now. Then Goldie tells Stripey to let the Dragon Slayer Goddess go because he wants to have a fair one-on-one -on -one battle against it. Gao Peng responded all right, then Stripey stand up. Goldie looks at the Dragon Slayer who's slowly standing up while telling it that it fought so fiercely now, then he asks it why it can't even stand up. The Dragon Slayer got angry and punched Goldie in the face, but Goldie just smile and ask it if that was all he have got. Then Goldie grabs the Dragon Slayer's hand, spun it, and slams it on the ground hard while telling it to die. Then Goldie turned around happily while saying it was lonely at the top leaving the Dragon Slayer upper body sunk underground. 
then Desolian freezes the Dragon Slayer Goddess, on the other hand, Stripey crushed the three monsters which made the Wu Gorge's Goddess stone dead, the Holy Spring Spirit heavily injured, and the Dragon Decapitation Chapter heavily injured. Gao Peng tells the three monsters that they were already seriously injured when he caught them and he let them recover for one month, yet they decided to fuse with each other and cause trouble. Gao Peng also said now that one of them is dead, and the other two are heavily injured. Then Gao Peng looked at the Dragon Decapitation chapter and said it can heavily suppress dragon-type monsters, so he must get his hand on that monster because its ability isn't just an ordinary suppression ability, and it's more similar to a domain that weakens groups of enemies. It also can ban the use of elemental powers when it has a higher level. Gao Peng also said his grandfather has two dragon-type familiars and he has one, if such a familiar cannot be under his control. He'd rather destroy it. Meanwhile, in Wu Gorge Base City at a certain riverside, a boat was destroyed and many people were dead on the ground. The man shakily calls for help while looking at the big monster who's saying that it must be fate that he sees a bunch of despicable human being after waking up. Then the monster tells the man that he'll become his prey soon, so he doesn't hate him that much anymore, then it laughs. Then the monster attacks the man using his power which made the man slowly decompose. On the other hand, the people see a dragon flying in the sky, suddenly a big wave appeared behind them which made the people panic and run. Then the flood strike the city. Meanwhile, in the military place, one military angrily ask why did a sudden flood strike the base city if the monitoring division is sleeping, and why didn't the monitoring division tell them such crucial information? The man in the chair responded that the flood isn't natural and it must be the evil dragon's doing because it can cause flooding which made the military man shocked. Then the man in the chair closes his eyes while saying it's over, and the Wu Gorge base city is doomed. Meanwhile, in the sky, someone asks Gao Peng how long until he arrives at Wu Gorge Base City because just a minute ago, the Wu Gorge Base City was flooded by what appeared to be a black dragon and it has the power to cause floods powerful enough to break through the city wall. That someone also tells Gao Peng that thousands of lives in the city are at stake as they speak. Gao Peng tells the person on the other line not to worry because he'll be there soon. Then Gao Peng ordered Da Zai to fly faster, to which Da Zai responded he'll try to go faster. Then Da Zai flies faster. A few hours later, they arrive at the riverside and they saw many people floating in the river dead, which made Gao Peng said it's so tragic. Then he sees the monster named Black Flood Dragon in a moderately injured state attacking people. It was level 59 King Tier in Legendary Grade and its attributes are Water and Soul. Its monster skills are Water Mastery level 5, Soul Devour level 4, Sharp Dragon Claw level 3, and Enhanced Healing level 4. Its special characteristics are 1. Water Insurrection. The dragon has the innate ability to control all bodies of water, allowing it to manipulate them as it pleases. Effect 1. Passive effect is Water Mastery level plus 1. Effect 2. Active effect said cause all the water in the air and any nearby body of water to have a sudden violent reaction. And the higher the concentration of water is in an area, the more devastating the ability's effect will be. 2. Soul Consumption. The dragon's malformed soul can absorb other souls as a source of power, allowing itself to become stronger in the process. Effect 1. Passive effect said it can heal any injury it has sustained on its soul or boost the power of its own soul through the consumption of other souls. Effect 2. Passive effect said its attacks are capable of inflicting direct damage on its opponent's souls and that effect also acts as a natural deterrent to all other soul-type monsters. Effect 3. Active effect said it can activate the effect to momentarily suppress any other creature in its vicinity, and it can also directly consume the souls of those significantly weaker than it. Gao Peng who's looking at the water dragon said the dragon slaying chapter can suppress it, if only he had tamed it, and taking the water dragon down would be much simpler. Then Gao Peng noticed that the water dragon moderately injured state is changing to a lightly injured state. Then he realized that it's consuming human souls to heal itself. Then Gao Peng ordered Dummy to stop the water dragon. Dummy jumps toward the water dragon and attacks it using its flame. Then the water dragon attacks Dummy using its tail, but Dummy avoided it. On the other hand, Desolian tells Gao Peng that the water dragon is difficult to deal with, and even if it's injured, Dummy might not win against it, so he'll go help. Gao Peng tells Desolian to be careful because the water dragon attacks can harm his soul and he should try to avoid it. Then Desolian changed to its combat form and run toward the water dragon while stepping onto his ice. The water dragon saw Desolian and said Dummy has a backup. Then the water lion gathered its water power and attacked Desolian. But Desolian avoided it and attacked back using its ice which hit the water dragon's face. The water dragon looks at Desolian angrily, then it gathers the water to change the battlefield. Gao Peng noticed it and ordered Desolian to stop the water dragon before it changes the battlefield terrain because the higher the water concentration in the air, the more damage it can cause. 
Then De Solian uses his ice power to freeze the water which made Gao Peng think it's fortunate that De Solian's ice powers are able to temporarily freeze the water elements. Gao Peng also thinks with the dragon's physical attributes, Dummy won't be able to overwhelm the water dragon. Also, Dummy's main ability isn't suited for single combat and its heart of the Yin Soul is the only thing capable of supporting its in battle. Gao Peng knows that even though Da Zai, Flamey, and Goldie are legendary grade familiars as well, as three of them are currently only level 50 and they wouldn't be much help. Also, Goldie's passive only allows it to reinforce its physical strength, not its spiritual fortitude and Desolian had returned to its peak grade legendary grade, but it's four levels lower than the enemy. Then Gao Peng said he don't think he have ever been in such a pinch before. On the other hand, Desolian and Dummy were attacking the water dragon who's annoyed because of Dummy and Desolian. Then it saw Gao Peng and said that the human is the master of those familiars, so he should kill him. Then the water dragon launched to attack Gao Peng, but it noticed Desolian running toward him angrily, then Desolian scratched the water dragon's body using its claws. 